Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 275 Ujeha gasped after hearing the familiar voice. That was definitely Ilya's voice. He seemed to have been concerned about the three of them who left after hearing about Juhian's date. The two women had looked ready to kill when they left. They say that the top three things to watch in life are fires, fights, and women, so he probably just came because he wanted to see a good cat fight. But what? I had no idea your heirloom would be the phoenix. W, wait, you see. Ujeha started to shake in fear after seeing the cold smile on Ilya's face. Ilya was pale with red lips so he looked like a vampire to start with and he looked even scarier than usual now. However so you were a damn zombie but you kept using me as a shield. Jeha had done that even after getting the heirloom. Ilya's heirloom was about to explode from anger. Yu Jeha shrieked in response. Ah! Baby chick! I am a zombie but I still feel pain. So! Shut the hell up! Ache! Yu Jeha had now ended up being Ilya's shield as well. That wasn't all. Ha ha ha. What a great shield. Ilya had used his devils to throw Ujeha toward Jack the Ripper. Ujeha could only continue to scream. Unfortunately, these terrible team members of his would not even give him time to faint. Wake up, you punk. You're playing a pivotal role here. Ujeha started to cry. But this is not it. Make Dan work if you're going to do this. This is wrong, you should be ashamed. Dan should be doing this with me. Then you call him. Ha. Huh. Okay, you were the one who told me to do it. Do you think that I won't call him? Ujeha's eyes opened wide as he pulled out his phone. Well, Dan will happily agree to do it but he'll end up dying. And Sue will cry if Dan dies. She'll probably cry a lot. Ujeha put his phone away while crying. Fuck. My name is Ujeha and I have been promoted to Shielder starting today. Go. Sure. I like that attitude. Ah. Ujeha ended up being kicked by Juhian again. Jack the Ripper was blocked by this Jeha shield again then ugh. Juhian's group had captured Jack the Ripper. The title of one shot one kill was about to be damaged. Juhian sat down on Jack the Ripper and smiled viciously. All right, let's look at your face. How beautiful are you to keep your face so tightly hidden? Juhian grabbed Jack the Ripper's hood. The body under Juhian started to flail. He probably had orders that nobody was to see his face. Unfortunately, the hood was removed. While that was going on Kaya, let go of me. In a different dark alley something that would give people the chills was going on here. How dare you pull such a scheme of all things? Siole and Irene, who had dragged the monarch of seduction here, were giving off extremely scary auras. They had been suppressing their anger earlier because Juhian was there and because they were worried that Juhian might be in danger, but how dare you? And of all things, you aimed for his lips that even I barely managed to steal a kiss from. A kiss with Mr. Juhian is extremely precious. I've never even been kissed. Never. It was rare for the rope to team up with them like this. But it was tightly binding the monarch of seduction in anger. The shape might be embarrassing for other people to see, but that didn't matter. The Captain Nim will be happy if we steal all those artifacts. W, what did you say? Kaya. The monarch of seduction was ruthlessly stripped. Irene seemed a bit flustered at that moment. Ah, this piece of clothing is not coming off that easily. How do you take it off? Just rip it. It's not like it's an artifact. Oh, perfect. Rip, rip. They ruthlessly cut apart Elena's thin clothing with knives. They took off her underwear and touched her naked body all over to search for any hidden artifacts. They knew that this woman was covered in artifacts. Ha. Huh. Something was weird. What the hell? Some of the artifacts disappeared. Siole, who was very sensitive at aura detection, tilted her head in confusion. Elena had started with about 20 artifacts on her. Not a lot of them had disappeared, but why are there some missing? 
I wanted to take them all to the Captain Nim. The women who would have never imagined that their captain was the one to take them puffed up their cheeks in anger. Ah whatever, let's just take all of these. W, wait. Kaya. Once Elena was stripped completely naked what are you doing over there? Miss Elena. Irene and Cola's jaws dropped after hearing some unfamiliar voices. The people running toward them were protect Elena Nim. Oh oh oh. Kaya. All of the men around the area were gathered together and attacking Irene, Ciole, and the rope. They numbered in the hundreds. She was the monarch of seduction. She was able to turn all of the men nearby into her slaves. The trio became anxious. We can't use our attack type artifacts on regular civilians. Ah, she ran away. Ciole was grinding her teeth and just about to use her heirloom when Irene stopped her. You're not familiar with that artifact yet so I know it will be difficult to use. Don't overdo it. But. Irene started to smile. I'm going to kill all of those bitches. The naked Elena got in a car her guard had prepared in advance. And then head back to the hotel. Tell them to bring the Monarch of Destitution and Monarch of Ghosts heirlooms later. She started grinding her teeth while thinking about Ciole and Irene. Irene Holton is one thing but where the hell did that bitch Lee C.O.L.A. come from? Heirlooms should belong to people who deserve them. What the hell? Why aren't you moving? The guard who was at the driver's seat did not respond. It was at that moment. Her slaves next to her pushed her down and restricted her movement. What the hell are you doing? It seemed quite obvious what they were doing. There are a few more artifacts here. They quickly started taking things away from Elena. For example, there was an artifact contact lens in her eyes, the artificial nail on her finger, they managed to take away everything that Irene and the others had failed to recover. Elena was resisting intensely at that point. Hey! Are you crazy? What the hell are you doing? Let go of me! Ugh! She wondered if these weren't her slaves but they definitely were ones she had lured under her spell. So what was going on? This is all for Irene Nim. W, what? What could that mean? Knock knock. Someone knocked on the window from outside. Elena gasped after looking out the window. T, they are. Hurry up and get out. You damn bitch. The slaves pretty much manhandled Elena and threw her out of the car. They then handed everything they took from Elena to Irene. That wasn't all. This is Elena Cotton. She's the criminal who hired Jack the Ripper. Please arrest her. What? Are you fucking crazy? Yes ma'am, she tried to kill Seo Juhian's team by using Jack the Ripper. She also tried to kill innocent civilians. What? When did I do that? What the hell is wrong with you guys? She could only be confused for a moment before ring, ring ring. She received some unbelievable messages on her phone. I'm sorry. I'm cancelling your sponsorship. I might need to sell my house and everything I own for Irene Nim. I can't give you the job anymore. I'm going to ask Miss Irene to do the pictorial. Sorry. I'm going to use all of your money under my care for Miss Irene. W, what the fuck? Irene was smiling. You see, I got a new heirloom. I've been waiting for a chance to test it out. A fox's tail appeared behind Irene. Actually, there were nine tails. W, what the? You. That was right. Irene's heirloom was a fox. Seduction is not something only the monarch of seduction can use. Her heirloom was a thousand-year-old nine-tailed fox, the strongest of the nine-tailed foxes. This thousand-year-old nine-tailed fox was known in Taoism for volunteering at the palaces of the divine world and said to have the powers of a lesser god. Irene had met the fox heirloom at the monarch's tomb. That artifact tried to ignore Irene at first. My goodness, is that you, S. Senior? The nine-tailed fox seemed to have fallen into a state of shock after seeing Daji with Irene. M. My goodness. I never expected to meet the Master Fox who aided the Jade Emperor and the gods here. Master Fox. 
Although the thousand-year-old nine-tailed fox was already a lesser god-level divine-grade artifact, they called the most powerful of the thousand-year-old foxes who was as strong as the gods the master fox. Daji was that master fox. Senior, after the lords were almost wiped out by the crow we thought we would never see you again because the supreme leader took away your powers. Irene had been shocked. I do remember Mr. Juhian saying something like that. Ju Hien had told her that he believed Daji had been demoted and her powers sealed by the Supreme Leader. That was why she wanted Ju Hien's strong yang energy in order to regain her divine might. That was probably the reason. S. Senior, this human is about to suppress you. Irene had pretty much abused Daji with the berserk artifact of destitution at that time. There's a human who can suppress the Master Fox. The thousand-year-old nine-tailed fox was wary of Irene but also full of respect. I too shall follow the master who has suppressed our leader. That was how it had become Irene's heirloom. Daji had gone crazy trying to say that wasn't it. Furthermore, someone like me does not dare to call myself an heirloom in front of your presence, senior. I pass the power of this heirloom to you. The power of the heirloom had passed to Daji as well. After all that happened, it was ironically Daji who had become Irene's heirloom. The other fox had passed the heirloom's powers to Daji after finishing the contract with Irene. Heirlooms would usually never pass on their powers but this was a special case. Daji had protested saying that this was wrong since her master was Juhian and not this kind of woman, however just stay as Irene's heirloom for a while. H. Hey, master. What's wrong? You were able to gain your powers back without my young energy. Senior, that's right. I will be by your side to learn your ways. Hey. Ju Hien had laughed out loud while leaving Daji to Irene for a while. He didn't want her despite Irene trying to give her back to him. He probably thought he could get that troublemaker off his back while watching something entertaining as Daji and Irene dealt with each other. That's an order. You will stay as Irene's heirloom until the original fox is able to upgrade to the master fox. M. Master. Why are you doing this to me? Why else? You annoy me every single day. Daji, who had instantly become Irene's artifact, had shaken in fear. H. Human, don't come any closer. I will really eat Seo Juhian up if you come any closer. Oh, you're going to eat him. Kaya. Irene had used the fox's special attribute. It was seduction. Irene's power of destitution had been avoidable until now if a person stayed away from her. But now that she had this seduction buff, Irene's powers were perfect with a source of aggro as well. She was able to lure the enemies into the path of destitution even if they tried to escape. She is the goddess who leads people to destruction. This was probably the perfect heirloom for her and her power of destitution since extremely beautiful women were said to bring down countries. Let's see just how much I can do with the power of seduction. The monarch of seduction started to scream as she sensed Irene's anger. Returning back to Juhian's group holy shit, you are. They were all shocked after removing Jack the Ripper's hood. N. Nina. Julian was completely out of his mind after figuring out Jack the Ripper's identity. Why is Nina? See, I told you we should suspect her. Juhian started to frown as well. Jack the Ripper had changed. Did the future change? However, at that moment, Juhian found a weird scar on the back of Nina's neck. This is. He clearly remembered where he saw it before. This was the same scar that had been on Jack the Ripper's neck in the past. It was the exact same scar on the exact same location. Was Nina Jack the Ripper in the past life too? Yu Jaha could not believe it. Excuse me? What do you mean? Captain Nim, how would you not have realized that Jack the Ripper was a woman? Juhian seemed to be deep in thought for a bit before he answered back in a serious tone. Em, mm, because she's flat-chested? That comment made Julian explode. Chapter 276. You. What's wrong with Nina's chest size? I'm going to sue you. Julian grabbed Juhian by the collar and Jeha said something to calm him down. Well, it's true that she's flat chested. It's big. Nina's chest is big enough. You got that? 
Are you being serious? Julian was crying internally as he let go. Juhian couldn't bear to keep watching and agreed with Julian. Okay, okay. Your sister has big boobs. Are you happy now? They're great. Julian grabbed Juhian by the collar again. You little punk. What do you mean they're big? Are you making fun of Nina right now? Ha. Huh. This bastard is getting angry regardless of how we play along with him. Julian looked sad while looking at Nina. Only I'm allowed to make fun of my sister. It didn't matter. The important thing was looking into Nina's situation. Ilya. Yes, Captain. Take her away. Pull out all information by tomorrow. I understand. Julian became anxious. It was because Ilya was in charge of the tomb raiding team's information gathering but also its torturing. Pulling out information from captured enemies using any methods necessary was his job. That using any methods necessary was what Julian was worried about since he knew Ilya's personality. It didn't mean that Ilya would use violence against her, but his specialty was mental attacks and torture using his devils and spell books. Ilya, wait. Juhian's eyes flashed. Ilya. Don't let Julian talk to her at all. Julian anxiously shouted toward Juhian. Wait. But Juhian was stern. No family members allowed. You know how it is. Julian bit down on his lips. It was understandable. Nina was an enemy who had tried to kill them. There were too many questionable parts to say she was just the monarch of seduction subordinate. There's also the fact that she has the same scar as the Jack the Ripper Juhian met in the past. Juhian pointed to the scar on the back of Nina's neck. It was a peculiar scar that would not be common. That was the reason it had been so memorable. Thoroughly investigate this scar. Use any and all means necessary. Do whatever will give you the most accurate information. Julian turned completely pale after hearing that. Wait, Captain. Then at least. He was about to grab Juhian and ask him to let him at least watch what happened to Nina if he promised he wouldn't do anything. Ilya lightly chuckled and started to put on a black pair of leather gloves. Don't worry too much. The captain saying all this is actually telling me not to overdo it. Of course, Ilya had no plans on listening to that order. MMPH, MMPH. Nina was huffing while being questioned by Ilya. MMPH, MMPH. She was extremely angry while looking at the man in front of her. The man in front of Nina was not Ilya but the monarch of pushoverness. Hey Nina, aren't you hungry? Nina was extremely angry after hearing him asking things like that so nonchalantly. Damn it! She could have taken the heirlooms if it was not for this damn meat shield. How does he not have a single scar on him? An angry Nina flailed enough for her kick to reach Ujeha. Anlun Ph. Anlun Ph. She might have been telling him to die. Ujeha felt wronged. Ow! Why are you doing this to me? What the hell did I do wrong? She probably thought that he had done a lot of things wrong. Anlun Ph. Ilya started to shout after hearing the beaten up Ujeha whining to him. Hey, you're in my way. Get the hell out. Ah why, you're done with your investigation anyway. Bullshit. Look at you bringing food because the captive is a girl. Hey hey, you're the one who is too much for not even giving her a sip of what hey. Why are you eating all of it? Ilya stuffed the bread in his mouth as if he was a hamster before getting angry. Shut the hell up, you damn pushover. You just answer my question. What? How the hell did you die in the past life when you have the phoenix artifact? Why do you ask? So that I know how to kill you. You Jeha couldn't believe it. Sigh. There's naturally a way to do it. Whatever, just go outside. The Captain Nim wants you to report what you found out. TSK. Nina's eyes flashed once Ilya recalled his devils and left. This is my chance. Now that the torture expert was gone, her chance to escape had come. They just left this weakling behind. This bastard was an artist no, a meat shield with no fighting power whatsoever. I'm going to get out of this prison first. 
she charged toward Ujeha who was not paying attention. However. Boom. Nina slammed into something and rolled on the ground while clutching her forehead. You, ugh. She felt as if she had run into a cement wall. Ujeha was chuckling at her. Hey hey, I accept that I seem like the easiest to push around on this tomb raiding team but did you really think he left me alone in here without any preparation? The whole area was full of bulletproof glass made with his Da Vinci's artifact. This is special bulletproof glass made with an artifact you sucker. Ugh. This Appa and the Unis will bring you cake if you are a good girl. Got it? Nina could only slam against the glass in anger. That damn son of a bitch. While Nina was slamming against the glass it really is Chairman Kwan's doing. Yes, after looking through her memories for 18 hours, she was revealed to be someone from TKBM and not the Monarch of Seduction subordinate. To be more specific, the Monarch of Healing had been experimenting on her. That girl ended up in the Monarch of Healing's hands once she teamed up with Chairman Kwan. Julian urgently asked a question after hearing that report. Then Nina, it really is Nina? It is. I saw her memories of living with you as well. Julian stumbled and sat down on the chair. He had wondered if it was real but Nina truly was Jack the Ripper. Then why does she not remember me? What I saw was her subconscious memories. That doesn't mean that she remembers it. Julian started grinding his teeth in anger. That meant that TKBM or the Monarch of Healing had erased her memories. But why? Juhian answered that question for him. It's obvious. They did it so that they could use her as Jack the Ripper. Juhian handed over the document Chloe had analyzed. The scar on the back of her neck it's quite a headache. Quite a headache. What the hell is it? What is it? It's a modification artifact that turns a person into a human weapon. They were all shocked. Human weapon. How else would a regular girl use a homicidal maniac's artifact without any hesitation? It must be the monarch of healing's doing. They had done all that to use Nina as Jack the Ripper. Ilya drew something on a piece of paper and handed it to them. This is what the artifact looked like. They used this artifact to modify Nina into a human weapon who cannot feel pain or guilt. Wow, you suck at drawing. Ilya glared at Ujeha who had come over to mock him. Juhian soon made a comment. Even I've never seen this artifact before. They wondered how he could use such a terrible drawing to tell but Juhian had enough information based on its abilities. Yeah, no matter how many times I think about it, I've never seen that artifact before. Ho. Even the greatest under heaven Captain Nim doesn't know what it is. Ilya gave an answer that seemed to explain the reason. Apparently it is a new artifact they made with unknown. Juhian's eyes flashed. Unknown. That was the suspicious item with Pandora's executive board that they didn't know about. Was that why he didn't know about this artifact? As he had that thought Julian jumped up as he was unable to hold back his anger. Those old bastards. How dare they do that to Nina. Whoa, whoa, Kong Ming. Sit down for now. How the hell can I sit down? If you're trying to tell me something to calm me down. No. I'm about to tell you something that'll make you angry. Julian grabbed the back of his neck. There's something else. Juhi inside. Kong Ming, you ended up Chairman Quan's slave in the past because he agreed to help you find your sister, right? Yes. Nobody was able to find her until you found her ten years later. No. TKBM wasn't looking for her back then either. I looked at those shitty TKBM bastard search records and started looking for her myself after seeing that they were only looking for her in weird places. I understand it all now. That bastard Chairman Kwan had your sister under his control but lied to you that he couldn't find her. He was shamelessly using her as Jack the Ripper while lying to your face. TKBM was the one who used Jack the Ripper for ten years after all. Julian started to foam at the mouth. Then. If you think about it, Jack the Ripper's appearances dwindled down once I found your sister for you. They probably stopped using her as much because they were worried that you would find out. Julian was about to faint. A thunderbolt flashed inside the room because of his anger. 
Bang. Crack. An extremely strong thunderbolt swept through the hotel room. Kaya. Siole, Irene, and even the rope tightly hugged Juhian after being scared by it. Julian looked extremely angry. Those bastards pulled that crap in the past and are doing the same thing now. Juhian said something to Julian who was huffing in anger. The cost of everything you destroyed is coming out of your paycheck. Chapter 277 In another part of the world it seems as if everybody failed in their attempts to take the heirlooms that CEO Juhian has monopolized. Prometheus put a hand to his forehead after hearing his subordinates report. I hoped it would not end up like this but in the end it seems it is inevitable. He was currently in the Amazon. There were many poisonous snakes and insects around this tomb within the vast jungle. Prometheus was in a cave somewhere within that jungle. He had no choice but to come here in order to go up against Seo Juhian who had monopolized the heirlooms as well as to achieve their grand vision. The artifacts that came with Prometheus started to whisper while looking at something inside this underground cave they could see a large box. This was the original of the small Pandora's box Shin Kai Yuan had in her possession. Must you remove the seal on these bastards? Yes. This is our only option. They needed heirlooms they needed to turn the bastards they wanted into monarchs. Those bastards needed to be able to use divine-grade artifacts. And if they could not take away the heirlooms from Seo Juhian. Their replacements. They had resisted using these replacements because these ones were hard for them to control but they had no choice. They are annoying to deal with but they are very strong. If the heirlooms turned humans to have superhuman bodies and upgraded their attributes, these bastards did something different. But their abilities are at the level of the heirlooms. Boom! Prometheus released the seal on the artifacts. He had to personally remove the seal that they had placed to imprison these bastards in the past. There was suddenly an intense earthquake. The tomb crumbled and the artifacts imprisoned inside were laughing as they shot up into the air. Bo 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 boom. Ka ha ha. We're free. Free. Who is it? Who ended up releasing us? Hmm. Aren't you Prometheus? What? It was you. You released us after imprisoning us for being a thorn in your eyes? Ka ha ha. Prometheus laughed toward them as well. Follow me, you gross bastards. There are humans for you to parasite over. Ka ha. Ha ha ha. That sounds great. Here. Go. We will reward whichever one of you who manages to create one of the four emperors. The seal on the box was completely removed. We can't sit by and watch Seo Juhian become the monarch among monarchs, the majesty. Other monarchs are able to use divine grade artifacts again. Did they purchase heirlooms from Seo Juhian? The world was in uproar. Yu Jeha screamed while reading the articles. Hold on. What the hell? Are there heirloom replacements or something? Just how? Ju Hian seemed calm. Why are you freaking out like that? We expected this to happen. Those bastards are the type who would definitely try to find replacements to squeeze their way as monarchs if they can't get the heirlooms. I, is this okay? Quan Tae Jun and Quan Hyuk Su are monarchs as well. Ju Hian chuckled in response. Who cares if they did? It clearly states that they are false monarchs. Well. That Pandora system artifact seemed to be quite honest. Although the official documents had the other people listed as monarchs, well the Pandora website clearly indicated that they were false monarchs. The server had been shut down as soon as it was seen but everybody in the world had already seen it or taken screenshots of it. The media was in a frenzy right now. They must have used abnormal methods to gain such benefits. Can we still trust Pandora? We cannot accept anybody who does not have a heirloom. The monarchs are probably aiming for the remaining seven great tombs. Either way, is this okay? It's okay. They would have used those heirloom replacements a long time ago if they are that great. But they tried their best to steal our heirlooms and finally settled for those. It was obvious that they dragged it out as long as possible before making a decision they did not want to make. 
those replacements must be double-sided swords or have extremely difficult risks or some other negative factor compared to the heirlooms no matter what, a heirloom replacement was only a replacement. At minimum they are divine grade artifacts. They will be strong artifacts. It is quite interesting. The thing that was most interesting were the artifacts from the seven great tombs and that majesty's treasure of course. The precursors for the rest of the seven great tombs appeared as soon as the monarch's tomb disappeared. It was to be expected. That tomb should have originally come out later but they had forced it to open. It made sense for the seven great tombs to appear. The fact that the monarch's tomb was cleared first seemed to impact their appearances that they were showing up a bit later than expected. I need the other two to go find the crow. He really wanted to know more about that majesty's treasure business. According to the artifacts, it is an overbearing artifact that can control all artifacts, change their abilities, and even get rid of them. That artifact might even be in the tomb where the crow was imprisoned. They saw an unfamiliar face on the TV while looking up information on potentially related tombs. You were promoted to a monarch again. Please comment. The world is currently full of people claiming Seo Juhian is the messiah or whatever but that is not the truth. A man with an eye patch over his left eye was on TV. In my opinion, Seo Juhian is not the messiah but chaos itself. He is an evil person who will bring destruction to this world. Is that true? I am the Mithraya. I am able to look into people's minds using supernatural powers. The man seemed to be Juhian's clone. Everybody became shocked at what they were seeing on TV. They did hear that new monarchs had appeared, but I, isn't that Gung Ye's artifact? Hey hey, that's not important right now. He's an exact copy of the Captain and I Ugg. Juhian was pinching Yu Jeha's cheek. Hey. Do you want to die? How can you say that cult leader like Frog looks like me? Huh? Oh, Soe, please let go ah. Juhian seemed extremely annoyed. Siole seemed to be quite annoyed as well. Yeah. How can you say that they look similar? A fake like that could never measure up to the Captain Nim. No, they really do look sim. I said they don't. The Captain Nim is much cooler. Siole started choking Ujeha in anger. But no matter what she said, they did look similar. There had been a monarch who looked like Juhian in the past as well, but that guy had clearly not been as handsome. However it's not a lower quality this time. The guy was no doppelganger but did seem extremely similar to Juhian. This one was actually handsome like Juhian. Siole did not seem to like that at all. She quietly started to mumble. It's not like a hidden twin brother suddenly appeared what the hell is going on. Is it an artifact? Irene innocently asked a question after hearing C.O.A.S. mumbling. Now that I think about it, Mr. Juhian, didn't you say that you had a twin? The team members flinched. The male team members seemed to be flinching quite significantly. Juhian tilted his head in confusion. Irene, how do you know that? The rest of the team members started shaking in fear. Why? Let me make one thing clear. I have no family members, you got that? They had been extremely scared because Juhian had stabbed a knife into the table. The fact that Captain Nim did all that means he really didn't want us to talk about it. But someone had talked about it. Someone had told Irene about Juhian's twin. The desperate team members pulled Irene by the arm. What do you mean a twin? The Captain Nim doesn't have a sibling. Excuse me? But. Ha, Irene, you must have heard wrong. Juhian's smile looked quite ominous. They were right to feel scared. Who told her? E, excuse me. The fact that Irene knows about my twin means that one of you must have told her about it. N, no, that. Juhian was smiling brightly. But that smile was proof that Juhian was extremely angry. Irene seemed to have realized the situation as she anxiously grabbed Juhian's hand. Ah, um, I'm sorry. I kept pestering everybody else about it. Irene clenched her eyes closed. It's all my fault so. Juhian continued to smile brightly as he caressed Irene's hair. Ah, it's okay. It's totally fine. Really? 
I just have to take their heirlooms to pay for their sins. Especially you, you Jeha. I really want yours. Hand it over. That must have been his goal from the start. The team members foamed at the mouth after seeing the chaotic crow's aura behind Juhian and ran away. Ak. No. You know that we will die if the heirlooms leave our body. Heirlooms were artifacts that turned the human body into a superhuman body. They would return to being a regular person if their heirloom was destroyed before dying not too long after. Although they could generally protect their parasitic heirlooms, Juhian's power that preyed on other artifacts and sucked them up was truly a source of fear. It'll be destroyed if it is gobbled up by the crow. It's fine, I'll tell it to swallow them without chewing on them. Don't say something like that with a serious expression on your face you son of a bitch. That's not the problem. The team members started crying as they begged for forgiveness. We're sorry. We know that information leak is a sensitive issue but we let our guards down because we were in our base. It was because we were talking to Irene. Please don't kill us. Ju Hian showed them his phone after hearing the team members begging for forgiveness. Then as punishment, each of you will go get a menu item from this restaurant. Here's the menu. I will give you one hour. Excuse me. This is a place you have to wait in line for hours to get inside. It's also located in France. Did you forget that we are in New York? Either that or hand over your heirlooms. We will go get it right away. Ilya and Jeha ran out as fast as lightning and Juhian leisurely called Dan over. You don't need to make dinner for the two of them for a while. I, is that really okay? Those bastards won't dare to come back for at least a week. Well, I need to do this much in order for them to be more careful next time. Irene asked again, as if she had been waiting for a moment to do so. Um, then is it okay to ask you about your family member, Mr. Juhian? Juhian happily answered Irene's question. I do have a twin, a twin sister. Ah, uh, I guess I have two siblings if you consider Kwan Wu Hyung's son in Korea. Where is your twin sister right now? Is she in Korea? She should be in the US. Ha, huh, the US. We were separated when we were young. We lost our parents in an accident and have not seen each other since we were six years old. She was adopted by a family abroad. Aha! Julian sighed and asked at that moment. But that really is Gung Ye's artifact, isn't it? So what? Didn't Gung Ye's artifact not show up in the past? I do remember seeing Wang Jian's artifact though. Chairman Quan had sold that off to the Chinese government in the past. There had been a lot of diplomatic issues because China had claimed that Korea was required to hand it over as a vassal state of China. Did it come out but I just forgot about it? No. I don't recall Gung Ye's artifact coming out either. Then who the hell is that bastard? Who was he? I am the Mithraya. The man who looked extremely similar to Ju Hian was calmly smiling at Pandora. The other monarchs who were called here were frowning, probably because he looked so similar to Ju Hian. Who the hell is this crazy bastard? Is it because of his artifacts risk? He seems a bit of a nut job. How dare you? You seem to have evilness in your mouth. What? What did you just ug? A scream echoed inside the meeting room. Pow! The head of the man who had talked back to the Mithraya exploded and he turned into a lump of meat. M, my goodness. What the hell did you do? Guinness, the monarch of delicacies, glared at the man after his subordinate was killed. Are you fucking crazy? The man who significantly resembled Juhian calmly made a comment. Chapter, 278 What am I doing? You should be thanking me for what I did. I took care of a bug for you. What? My eyes can see the truth. That man was going to betray you. Where the hell did this crazy bastard? Something terrible happened again once a different subordinate tried to make a comment. Pow! Kaya! Fuck, it was the body that blew up this time. The man started to laugh out loud. My eyes can see everything. All of you bastards here are bugs who just care about their own self-interest. 
Quan Hyuk Su started to laugh out loud like a maniac while watching what was going on. It was to the point that Chairman Quan had to glare at him to stop laughing. This is no laughing matter. No, but Hyung Nim. Look at that complete lunatic. He's the same as Seo Ju Hyun in that regard. I like him. Who is he? Prometheus sighed and answered that question. He is a politician who has accepted an evil god artifact. Ho! What? These people were currently gathered at Pandora. The group consisted of approximately eight monarchs. TKBM's Chairman Quan and Quan Hyuk Su were here as well. They had already contracted with the artifacts Prometheus had sent them and had become superhuman like Ju Hian and his team. They had the body required to continue using divine grade artifacts. However, the artifacts I sent you are all evil god artifacts. They are not heirlooms. The evil god artifacts were artifacts that had committed such cruel deeds in the past that they had turned completely evil. Some of them were born evil as well. These evil god artifacts consisted of artifacts born evil, devils from ancient times, as well as evil tyrants from history. Those artifacts are the complete opposite of heirlooms the evil gods will be parasites in your body that turn your body into the body of an evil god. Although you will have a superhuman body. We're going to end up having shorter lives or lose our senses one by one or something like that. That is correct. There should be some people who have already lost body parts as well. Those bastards are quite wicked that they will continue to ask for more as time goes on. They'll ask for other body parts or organs, things and people you cherish, and eventually, your life and your soul. The people standing in this room were all those who were skilled enough to survive the invasion of the evil god artifacts into their bodies. The other candidates had died without being able to handle the impact. That's why the monarch among monarchs will appear from this group. We accepted the evil god artifacts knowing the conditions, but they truly are the worst. The reason they were willing to accept such risks to get these artifacts was because there were quite a lot of things they could achieve by using artifacts. Economy, science, military, art, medicine, artifacts allowed countries and individuals to grow and profit in numerous fields. They had no intentions of giving up on this pot of honey after all this time. They didn't care if it would mean that a lot of people would end up dying in the process. But Seo Ju Hian just says some weird nonsense. He had told them that he would sell them the heirlooms but told them not to use them. He had snickered and said the following as well. I won't use them if you guys don't use them. This is an amazing chance to suppress me. But it was all bullshit. How could it be possible not to use the artifacts? Why the hell would we buy them to leave them around to collect dust? There's no way that bastard meant what he said. The people who had thrown away this chance Ju Hian had given them without even knowing what they had done started to speak. The monarch of healing can help us with losing body parts and it's not like we will die right away. Yes, it should be fine. The problem will be resolved if you quickly steal Seo Ju Hian's extra heirlooms or earn the Majesty's treasure. What is this Majesty's treasure? Prometheus was silent for a moment. The Majesty's treasure consisted of multiple items used by the ruler of the artifacts. They were able to make all other artifacts submit and brought a revolution to the world. Anyway, one of them is an artifact that allows you to change the risk of an artifact. You just need to use that. It might be smart to gather talented individuals to join you as monarchs to take down Seo Ju Hian together as well. Then leave the tomb excavation to us. But we are still lacking in healing artifacts and defense type artifacts. Fine. It might not be a bad idea to figure out what artifact Seo Ju Hian has to only clear the tombs that might give us artifacts that might be his weakness. That is true but we also need to consider scouting new individuals. Look for talented individuals who will be able to survive an evil god artifact entering their body. Ask the different countries for their cooperation and keep up the business end as well. Yes sir. The now busy Pandora employees started to mumble. Ah, is there nobody as talented as Seo Ju Hian anywhere? What? A lunatic who looks like me is aiming for our lives. Irene's brother George Holton was on the line. Yes. That bastard was quite the headache. Don't you think it would be smart to lend out your heirlooms to increase your firepower? 
Each person can only use one heirloom after all. Ju Hian responded as if he had been waiting for this. You're going to join my side and work for me, right? Do you think that I am crazy? What's wrong? They're going to try to scout you as well. Yes. Those bastards keep bugging me to join them but I'm definitely not going to work for you. I don't even want to think about the type of contract you're going to force me to sign. Anyway, that side is fervently scouting monarch grade candidates. Be careful so that they don't beat you to it. Ju Hian chuckled. It wasn't as if monarchs would just fall from the sky. But at that moment George asked an unexpected question. Do your team members not have any talented family members? I was thinking about it because of the Jack the Ripper incident, but do you think that it was a coincidence that the Nina girl went missing? What if Chairman Kwan abducted her on purpose from the beginning? What if he knew about her talents and wanted to put it to use? What the hell are you trying to say? This is a rumor that floated around Pandora. They're calling it heritability and believe genetics might play a role when it comes to talent with handling artifacts he was basically saying that because Julian was a monarch, Nina should be just as talented based on their shared genetics. In fact, Nina did have the talent to be a monarch. That old bastard subordinates did do a lot of investigation into our families. But Siole who was listening next to Juhian started to pout. That doesn't make any sense. The rest of my family members can't use artifacts at all. That was right. If what George was saying was true, Colas family members should at least be expert grade artifact users. They were the reason that although Juhian had suspected genetics playing a role in the past but believed that he was wrong. Well, I'll look into it. Okay. Check it out thoroughly if you have any family members as well. There might be some hidden potential monarchs. Anybody related to you would be a monster as well. Irene's eyes opened wide after hearing her brother's comment. Huh. Then shouldn't you go meet your twin sister, Mr. Juhian? Juhian was hesitant about what to do. Not too far away in Cambridge, Massachusetts inside a laboratory located within Harvard University. My goodness, a monarch, it's a monarch. The research students were amazed while hearing about the monarchs on the news. Joy, look at this. This person looks like you. A male student called out to someone in the lab and a female student next to him shook her head. Joy doesn't like things like that. She doesn't seem to pay any attention to it at all. She didn't even know who was on the monarch's list. She's a complete research nerd, a research geek. She's always in that room doing research. She's a total babe but she just wastes her beautiful looks. Tell me about it. She's so pretty she could be on Harvard's brochures but hasn't even gone on a single date ah. Uh. How about you not call me a geek? Joy. Joy, well, Ju Hian's twin sister Seo Ju Won, sighed. As that happened Joy. There's someone looking for you. Me. I saw him on TV before. But he looks exactly like you. She walked out to see an extremely familiar looking person. Long time no see. Hello my other half. It was someone wearing an eye patch who looked exactly like her. Joy's eyes opened wide while looking at the man talking to her. The man was smiling brightly. He looked so handsome smiling that both men and women were stopping to take a look. They couldn't help but be swayed by his looks. My goodness, what the hell? Is he no way, right? Seo Juhian. Is he Seo Juhian? No, isn't he the monarch of the heavens? He has an eye patch. Many of the people walking by recognized him. The man must have heard them as he took off his eye patch. What is it? It's me. Did you already forget who I am? Everybody was shocked once he took the eye patch off. He looked exactly the same as Seo Juhian once he took the eye patch off. What? He really is Seo Juhian. What? The monarch of predation is here. Holy shit, I'm his fan. This definitely caught their attention. The monarch of the heavens smiled toward Joy. This girl is Seo Juhian's twin sister. He had put in so much effort to locate her. Why? This girl might actually be Seo Juhian's weakness. A chaotic aura started to gather in his eye. 
however, nobody noticed it happening. Even Joy, who was making eye contact with him, did not notice it. That made the monarch of the heavens smile. This is disappointing. You really don't recognize me. Ju Hien slowly walked closer to Joy. Joy's eyes were shaking as she started to speak. She was certain now. This face, this voice holy crap, are you really? Yes, it's me. Did you forget what I look like after such a long time apart? Joy smiled brightly and hugged the monarch of the heavens. Appa, how many years has it been? Ju Wan, I missed you. It was an emotional reunion. Well, it seemed like an emotional reunion. The monarch of the heavens flinched after feeling something down at his belt. He couldn't help it because Joy's hand was aiming for the artifact on his belt. How dare this thief try to go for my artifact? The monarch of the heavens quickly twisted her skinny arm. Joy clicked her tongue once her arm was grabbed and ruthlessly launched a knee. And then crack. A sharp noise echoed through the area. The monarch of the heavens clenched his teeth after being kicked in a sensitive spot. His dominance shook for a moment as well. The others who had no idea about what was going on started to panic. Jui. What the hell are you doing? Kaya. Are you crazy? What the hell did you just do to the monarch of predation? They couldn't believe it. They didn't know whether this man was the monarch of the heavens or the monarch of predation, but what they knew for sure was that he was a monarch either way. He was also a superhuman who had transcended the limits of ordinary humans. You're going to end up dead. Joy didn't care and smiled brightly while putting her hands into the pockets of her white lab coat. Aha. I guess even superhumans can't train their crotch. And what did you say? Long time no see, my other half. Are you crazy? That guy wouldn't say something so creepy like that. She threw a book at him after saying that. The corner of the book was flying toward the monarch of the heavens. The monarch of the heavens cried internally after getting hit directly on the head. He felt as if blood would spurt out of his head. It was at that moment. This damn woman. A chaotic aura started to gather around the now angry monarch of the heavens. He must have been suppressing his strength because he was worried that she would be wary, however you bitch, it seems as if the devil has possessed your mind. His chaotic evil god artifact tried to aim for joy but what? Something weird happened. Chapter, 279 Pot The attack from the artifact headed for joy suddenly disappeared. To be more accurate, the artifact withdrew its attack on its own. What is going on? Something was weird. Joy was fine despite not having a single artifact on her. The monarch of the heavens figured something out and started frowning. Did this punk perhaps? Something came flying toward him before he could finish the thought. Pow! It was a fire extinguisher. Ah, that damn lunatic. I couldn't grab an artifact in the end. J. Joy. I was sure that he would use a good artifact since he is a monarch. Joy, are you crazy? All of Harvard was in uproar right now. It was a big issue that a monarch had visited the campus but there was a woman who had kicked that monarch to the curb. Furthermore, that woman was upset that she did not manage to grab an artifact from the monarch. Joy, are you okay? Isn't that guy your twin brother you talked about before? Joy scoffed in response. Who said he was my twin? That's just a look-alike. What? A look-alike? She had last seen Ju Hien in Korea 17 years ago. They had not been able to see each other since then. Actually, the truth was that Ju Hien refused to meet with her. Maybe he was justified with his actions. Especially after that kind of goodbye. Originally, Ju Hien was supposed to be adopted with her. They were supposed to go together. However, Ju Hien stole the to-be foster parents' wallet on the day of the adoption. Furthermore, he started a fire in the to-be foster parents' car. He then held up a can of oil and spewed some nonsense. Get lost. Or you'll be lit on fire next. Her adopted parents had said they couldn't handle such a child and left Ju Hien behind while taking her with them. She could not even dream of meeting Ju Hien until she became an adult. 
She did track Ju Hian down while she went on a trip to Korea as a middle school student, but he had left her hanging. She had somehow managed to get his number and call him, but get lost. I don't have a sibling like you. He ignored all of her messages and letters. It had been close to twenty years since she had not seen him. Forget his face, she didn't even know his voice. That was why she had been shocked to see the lookalike appear in front of her today. She really wondered if the guy was Ju Hian. Her friend Arthur asked her about it as well. It was because that guy looked identical to Ju Hian he had seen on TV. Are you sure that's not your twin brother? No. They don't look alike at all. Their noses are completely different. His nostril is tilted one centimeter in comparison and the shape of their ears is different too. I'm sure of it. I now understand why you don't have a boy fog. She ruthlessly pummeled her friend. It's a good thing I remember that guy's face. Although she was saying that, the YouTube video she saw while looking for some research materials had been extremely helpful. She had stopped tuning into any form of media ever since the artifacts appeared because she hated both artifacts and artifact users, however I'm sure of it. The man in the video had been Ju Hian. Joy sighed. That look alike from earlier and all these artifacts what the hell is he going around doing? She sounded a bit concerned. Back in New York, Yu Jeha was smiling like a buffoon while looking at a picture Ilya had taken. Our Ju one really is pretty. Ilya had visited Harvard under Ju Hian's orders. It was easy to teleport stealthily thanks to Seol A.S. Heirloom and his spellbook artifact. He took a picture and brought it back, but this damn bastard Captain Nim, please give me your twin sis Ugg. Yu Jeha was hit by a steel mug and beaten to a pulp. Ilya whispered to him after seeing Jeha in pain. TSK, you get rejected by Seol A so you go for the Captain Nim sister now. W, what? Yu Jeha became flustered and Ilya wickedly added on. What's wrong? You confessed to Seole and she rejected you. Yu Jeha urgently covered Ilya's mouth. Hey, that's from the past life that's so long ago. We only care about the right now. That's a dark page in history. You deserve a dropkick for that. Well, whatever. Give up on the Captain Nim's sister. Even that Mithraya was beaten to a pulp. Yujeha's jaw dropped in shock after hearing about that. What? Ju Wan beat the hell out of the Mithraya? That crazy Mithraya? She even tried to steal his artifact. His son was attacked as well. What? That bastard has a son. His unborn son. Yujeha started to shake in fear after hearing about the attack. Ilya, who had seen it all in person, was also shaking. However I guess they really are siblings. Blood definitely does not lie. They act the same way. Ju Hian was calm. Actually, he complained about what Joy had done. Damn, she should have just cut it off while she was at it. It's hell enough with what she did okay. The Mithraya almost lost his son and went straight to hell. The monarch of the heavens almost became the monarch of eunuchs. Sounds good. It's not like a Mithraya needs that. They all shook in fear. Well, to be honest, it doesn't seem like the Captain Nim's sister would be taken down so easily. Why? She was the almighty Seo Juhian's other half. It was obvious that his sister would also be a fireball. Will you be okay? Captain Nim? What? Captain Nim, maybe you'll get beaten to a pulp too when you get to see Ju One. That might actually happen. He had been neglecting her for the past seventeen years. Well, it's not like Shell want to see me anyway. There was no need for him to go find her. Even if he did go, he would not let her hit him just because she wanted to do so. But Captain, the monarch of the heavens' artifact didn't seem to work on Ju One. She didn't seem to have used an artifact, so how? Jeha, that is a bit odd. Did she have some kind of artifact related ability? Ju Hian, ah, she does. Excuse me? Her affinity level is no joke. Excuse me? Ju Hian picked his ear with his pinky. How do I explain this? You know how I have 100 dominance and zero affinity. She's zero dominance, 100 affinity. While I find affinity to be completely useless, 
her affinity is so high that the artifacts don't want to attack her. Ilya and Jeha both drop their jaws at the same time. Something like that is possible. Yu Jeha was extremely flabbergasted. His affinity was quite high compared to the others on this tomb raiding team but forget not attacking him, the artifacts treated him as a pushover. He did not have the time to test his sister's abilities in the past. Unfortunately, he had seen his sister again for the first time in his late twenties. He had Inspector Kim help him find his twin sister but she was already suffering from a severe case of tomb syndrome at that point. She was almost a corpse and all artifact-related abilities had fallen. She was in the critical care unit so he could not even meet her. All Chairman Quan told him was that he would give Ju Hian some healing artifacts if he completed his missions. But there was also Inspector Kim's family as well. Ju Hian had been toiling away as a slave under Chairman Quan to heal Inspector Kim's family and their tomb syndrome because they had been more like family to him than his real family. That was why he had been having Edward keep an eye on her after returning to the past. Edward was to let him know if anything happened. He didn't want to personally go because it would just be giving Chairman Quan and his other enemies an extra pawn. Ilya chimed in. Oh, based on what I heard, she seems to be talented enough to be an artifact engineer. And if her affinity is really that high, then what about that Pandora system artifact you got from the Monarch of Detection? Maybe she might be able to activate it. Ju Hian had taken a piece of the Pandora system artifact from the Monarch of Detection in the past. He had tried to use it but the message had been quite clear. Your affinity is extremely lacking. Ju Hian had then tossed it to Yu Jeha who had the highest affinity level on the team, however you are not qualified. Your affinity is not high enough. You are unable to use this artifact. Ju Hian didn't think much about his failing because he was pretty much an affinity eunuch, but it was shocking to see Yu Jeha, a person whose affinity was at the monarch level, fail like that. This is no normal artifact. It seemed as if the artifact had activated for the monarch of detection not because of his affinity but because he was a member of Pandora. That was why they had kept it stashed away even though it seemed important. Mm. And she manhandled a person who was strengthened with an heirloom substitute. Ju Hian had to think hard about this. He had known that his twin sister had extremely high defenses because her affinity was at max level. But to handle someone with an heirloom like that apparently Ilya's devil didn't even have time to react, something seemed weird. Unless she has an heirloom as well, Ju Hian greedily started to smile. Did that punk? Returning back to Harvard. Inside a Harvard University laboratory joy, this is bad. Someone who looks like you is here again. Someone came to look for you again. Joy got angry thinking that the crazy bastard from earlier had come back. But something seemed a bit different this time. Bang! A loud noise echoed throughout the university. There was something different from the earlier situation with the Mithraya H. Hey! That is a restricted area. Hey! Someone kicked the door down as if it was a decoration and not an actual door. Call the cops. The cops. What the hell? Who the hell is this rampaging idiot? Joy's face slowly turned pale inside this pandemonium. And, no way, right? And then the person barged in. Ah, I finally found you, you ugly puppy. It was the original this time. Joy screamed internally while looking at the person in front of her. She was sure of it. This voice and this face. It really is Ju Hian. She subconsciously started to smile. It really was her twin brother. This was the first time she had seen him in 17 years since the last time she saw him was when they were 6 years old. But she could tell by looking at him. He truly did look different from the look-like who was here yesterday. She wondered why he had such a grumbling expression on his face, but she immediately recalled the child from back then. He had not changed at all since then. Joy started to feel emotional. He got so tall. He had been shorter than her when they were little but now she needed to lift her head up to look at his face. Although she had seen him in videos, it was different seeing him in person. She was happy. That was probably the reason. Ju Hian Ah. She was about to happily greet Ju Hian. I got you now, you fat pig. There was a bright light. 
The ground Joy was standing on exploded. Ah! A hole was instantly created and the white gown hanging next to her burnt to a crisp. Joy plopped down on the floor in shock. But Ju Hian didn't care about that at all and just seemed quite amused. Oh, the artifact really doesn't want to attack her. W, what? Artifacts taking on all sorts of appearances such as pencils, necklaces, fountain pens, etc. started floating in the air. They were all divine grade artifacts. Anubis, Osiris, even Xiang Yu's artifact was there. Joy turned completely pale after looking at them. Ju Hian just smiled brightly without caring about her at all. Ah, right. I should tell you this in advance. Don't cry if you get hit. What? What do you may Akaya? Bong. Chapter, 280. There was another explosion inside the laboratory. The explosions continued one after another. Bang. 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 Ju Hian was using divine grade artifacts to attack his twin sister as if he was crazy. It was as if he wasn't happy to be reunited with his sister. He even called Osiris to open the gate to the afterlife. The gate to the afterlife has been opened. The others who came with Ju Hian could only drop their jaws in shock. What the hell is this guy doing? Was this any way to act to a blood sister he had not seen for 17 years? The funny thing was that Joy didn't have a scratch on her despite everything Ju Hian did. She truly has max affinity. He did not know about this in his past life and had not believed it at first when Edward told him about it, but I guess it is real. Both of these siblings were at the four emperors level. But she's pretty much a dud at fighting since her dominance is at zero. Ju Hian smiled as if he was amused after personally analyzing Joy's power. However, Joy's lab was destroyed and ended up a total mess. Yu Jaiha could not hold back anymore and started to shout. Captain Nim. You're going to get arrested for property damage. Are you crazy? How can you destroy the building? Ju Hian kicked a crumpled steel door out of the way and responded to them. Why do you think I brought you guys with me? Excuse me. Ju Hian smiled at Ilya and Yu Jaiha. A restorer and the aftermath cleanup crew. What a perfect combination. This son of a bitch. Bong. Joy was crying as she ran away from the destroyed lab. Wah. That stupid bastard, that motherfucker. She should not have been happy to see his face after 17 years. Why did he change so much? I, I have to call the cops first. She urgently looked for her phone. However, she could not find her phone anywhere. What the hell? Where's my phone? My phone. Where did I drop it? Are you looking for this? Joy started to foam at the mouth. Ju Hian was holding something as he chased after her with a bright smile on his face. It was her gold and pink colored cell phone. When had he stolen that from her? She shouted with anger. Hand it over. But forget handing it to her ah, why did it have to be a TKBM phone of all things? Crack. Ju Hian broke the phone into two. Joy screamed. What are you doing? My fo one. I haven't even had it for a month yet. Your older brother will buy you a new one. Ju Hian threw the phone away and continued to chase after her. So little puppy, come over here. Wah! That son of a bitch. Joy ran as if her life was on the line. She felt as if she was being chased by a homicidal maniac. Fuck, that look-alike from yesterday was a thousand, no, a million times better. Joy was bawling now. Unfortunately, Ju Hian seemed angry after hearing her comment. What did you just say? Ju Hian's expression turned vicious as he chased after her. You said that crazy look-alike is a million times better than me? Of course. Is this how you treat your sister after seeing her for the first time in 17 years? You son of a bitch. What? Son of a bitch. Hey, call me Appa. Appa my ass. You were born just a few minutes earlier. Biologically, the firstborn is the younger one. Plus, we're twins. Who knows if the hospital screwed up the records. Are you crazy? 
Do you really think a hospital would not be able to tell apart a boy and a girl? Wah! Stop chasing me! You big dummy! Juhian clicked his tongue. I thought she was a bookworm. Did she run every day or something? How the hell is she so fast? Juhian got annoyed with chasing her and activated a long necklace and white gold watch. Two large animals instantly appeared in front of Joy. Ah! They were the large white dog set that was taller than most adults and the black doggy Anubis. The two of them moved toward Joy with vicious expressions on their faces. Joy was completely scared. Her reaction was understandable. Set was so scary that the part-timers delivering chicken quit after seeing him once. Anubis looked majestic but his size, charisma, and ferocious gaze was enough to make even trained soldiers shiver in fear. She couldn't help but be scared since he was drooling and baring his fangs unlike his usual self. H, hold on. Set opened his mouth wide. And then he attacked Kaya. Nope, he did not attack and just licked Joy's cheek. As for Anubis he tried to push his head under her skirt as if he was courting her. Of course, Juhian pummeled him for trying to do that. Do you want to get fucked up? What do you think you're doing? A scared Anubis quickly shook his head. M, master, this isn't what it looks like. That human bitch has a monstrous affinity level that I lost my mind ah. Juhian smiled while stomping on Anubis. I'm not certain but it looks like she has something that's not a heirloom but is like a heirloom. She was giving off an odd scent. It was probably a parasitic artifact. Juhian's eyes flashed as he turned back toward her. Hey, stupid idiot. Strip down. However, his sister had long since run away. He's crazy, he's crazy. He's fucking crazy. Joy was crying internally. Co Juhian, that damn bastard had come to look for her after 17 years just to try to kill her. She only sniffled for a moment before smiling in relief after coming to a busy restaurant. He won't be able to do anything in a place full of people. She then asked some students if she could borrow their phone for a moment. She was planning on calling for help. Let's call the professor first to ask for help however, forget getting help beep, beep, beep the phone she borrowed didn't seem to work. W, what the hell? What's wrong with this thing? It was at that moment. Kia. What the hell? My phone stopped working. A ghost. It says it's because of a ghost. What? Kaya. What is that? All devices in the restaurant became useless because of all the ghosts that had appeared. Joy decided she had to change plans and tried to personally ask someone for help when hey. I heard someone say that they saw President John Kennedy over there. Hey. There's a ghost over there dropping money. What? Really? Really? People were focused on finding these ghosts. Nobody seemed to be interested in Joy at all. D, damn it. She was certain about it. This was her brother's doing. Joy quickly tried to rush outside. However MMPH. Someone was holding Joy from behind and covered her mouth. She turned around to see Juhian smiling as if he was a wild beast. I found you. Let me go, let me go. MMPH. MMPH. Where do you think you're running away, you damn pig? Joy, who had been instantly captured by Juhian, was tied up by the rope. Anunpeh. He carried Joy over his shoulder like a bag of rice and walked out of the restaurant. The abduction had happened in an instant. There was a woman on the roof of the restaurant watching this abduction take place. Is it really okay to do this? Ciole sighed while controlling her ghosts. Fuck, why the hell do we have to do this? Ujeha and Ilya were currently stuck side by side restoring Joy's public lab that their captain had destroyed. I'm going to kill that captain of ours. I'm going to make him pay me more for overtime. Although they were grumbling, this kind of restoration was nothing to them. Ilya lightly motioned with his hand and the destroyed lab immediately started to get fixed. The broken things were getting back together, the crumpled door was opening back up things seemed as if they were going back in time. The items that had fallen to the ground returned to their spots as well. 
even the particles of dust returned to their original locations. Everything returned to before Juhian had come here. It was a time regression spell for a specific area. Something like this was nothing for Ilya who used spellbook artifacts as the aftermath cleanup crew. Ujeha's work was quite the spectacle as well. Ilya was in charge of restoring the area in order for Jeha to save energy while he took care of the destroyed equipment. His restoration was so great that the old equipment turned into new equipment in the process. Returning to the present are you done fixing things? Ju Hien was satisfied with his subordinate's work after returning to the lab. He was most satisfied with the old equipment that had turned new. Good, she should at least have this much. But then he tapped on the door. Ilya. The door is squeaking. Tighten the screws properly. Ilya and Ujeha asked as if they realized something. I, is that why you destroyed everything? You wanted to remodel your sister's lab? Ju Hien was silent for a moment before he sneered. No. I just thought we could charge the school a remodeling fee like this. His subordinate started swearing. Email protected. It didn't sound as if they were speaking a human language though. Ju Hien threw his sister who was tightly bound to the couch. M M M P H. M M P H. Joy flailed around as best as she could while being bound by the rope. Unlike the rest of the artifacts that could not harm her at all because of her artifact affinity, the rope seemed to be an exception. What is going on? M M P H. Ju Hien ordered the rope to release Joy's mouth. He then said the following. I'll get right to the point. Don't you have a special artifact on you? What? It'd be a parasitic type that is inside your body. Joy seemed to become a bit depressed after hearing that. But she answered his question anyway. I don't have anything like that. Really? You really don't have anything like that? I really don't. Ju he inside and turned around. All right then, I'm leaving. Joy became flustered and urgently asked. Hey Juhian, no, Appa. Did you come all the way here just to ask that question? That's all you wanted to know after 17 years? Yes. Why else would I need to come find you? We are strangers at this point. What did you expect? Did you want me to cry my eyes out like we were separated by the Korean border for ages? What bullshit? He sounded as if he came because of money. Well, technically that wasn't wrong since he came because of a potential artifact. Joy bit down on her lips as if she was upset. They were twins. Even if they were separated because of the adoption, they were the only kins left in this world. But after ignoring her for 17 years he showed up all of a sudden for this. You shitty artifact file. Ju Hien quietly sighed while looking at her with her head down. It was normal for her to get angry or cry. Even he knew that he did something terrible. He had done something terrible in the past and right now as well. However, he did not believe that either of his actions were wrong. But still fine. What do you need? Money? I can get someone to. Artifact. Okay, artifa what? Forget crying, Joy jumped on Juhian. Hole. An angry Joy grabbed Juhian's artifacts as if she had never been crying in the first place. My goodness, how the heck are all of your artifacts so good? She instantly looted Juhian's artifacts. Chapter, 281 Ah, uh, um, that spot is a bit. Just try to relax. Ah, uh, wait ow. Joy clenched her eyes shut after feeling someone push down on her body. A pair of hands roughly caressed her boobs. The hand slid down her toned stomach and slowly headed farther and farther down. And then the moment they pressed down on her legs ow. It hurts. It hurts you idiot. Joy screamed in pain. She felt an unbearable pain she had never felt before. Sorry, did that hurt a lot? I've been telling you it hurts since earlier. Siole quickly took her hands off Joy's body. What was going on? Joy had instantly been stripped for Siole to do a body search on her. They said something about finding the heirloom artifact that Edward was trying to take from her. To be more specific, it was not a heirloom but one of the evil god artifacts that had suddenly shown up. 
It was at that moment. You still haven't found the heirloom? Joy jumped in shock while Seo lay sighed after hearing the voice outside. Captain Nim, he really I haven't found anything. There are no evil god artifacts either. They could feel Ju Hien's rage through the door. Is it really not there? Are you sure it's not there? That's what the chaotic aura seemed to be saying. It probably really wasn't there if Seo Lei couldn't find it, but Seo Lei, come outside. I'm going to check myself. Both Seo Lei and the naked Joy gasped at the same time. Appa, are you crazy? See, Captain Nim. Seo Lei had been the one to scream and prevent Ju Hian from stripping Joy in the first place. Seo Lei had said that she would do it and took Joy to the other room. But what? Come out. I'm going to check myself. Captain Nim. Hold. The door was destroyed and Ilya and Yu Jeha peeked in before quickly turning their heads away. They momentarily saw a pair of perky boobs, slim waist and her stomach they couldn't see a lot because she quickly covered herself with a blanket but they did see the silhouette of Joy's killer body. But their captain would kill them if they said that they saw it. They heard screams from inside the other room. Kaya. What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you looking at? Where do you think you're touching? You pervert. Shut up, you fat pig. Who cares about a fat girl like you? They could hear their arguments, no, to be more specific, they could hear Joy's cries. Ju Hian had inspected Joy's body quite thoroughly. Of course, he was not just doing it to find an artifact. He seemed to be looking for traces of any illnesses or tomb syndrome. A few minutes later it really isn't here. Ju Hian clicked his tongue while Joy was crying in Colas arms how can a so-called older brother appear after 17 years to destroy her lab and her phone while stealing all of her artifacts. He even did a body search on her. He was willing to put her through all that for a stupid artifact. Just go die. You idiot. I'm the idiot for worrying about this bastard until now. Joy was feeling really stupid. He could at least ask if I've been doing okay after not seeing each other for 17 years sob. She was actually dripping tears. He should just tell me if he hates me. Joy liked Ju Hian. No matter what, he was her one and only family member left in this world. They had never been affectionate but they did treat each other well when they were young so how did things end up this way because she got adopted? Well, I do have some ideas about it, but Ciole patted her on the back. Don't worry, the Captain Nim might be acting like this but he cherishes you a lot. How can she say that after everything he just did? She's right, even when we went into the lab earlier, he grumbled and told us to fix everything because things were old. He destroyed things on purpose after hearing that you don't get much funding. TSK TSK, he's a radical Tsundra for an older brother. He destroyed his younger sister's equipment on purpose to turn them new ug. Bang! The door was destroyed again at that moment. It was the same door that Ju Hian had destroyed earlier. Ah! Why did you do that? We just got it fixed. He then nonchalantly commented while looking at Ilya and Yujeha. Fix it properly. It broke again. Restore it properly this time. It was his way of threatening them to not say useless crap. The Ilya and Yujeha restoration combination got back to restore the door again. Siole smiled bitterly while looking at them before whispering to Ju Hian. Captain Nim, actually, Ju One's leg. I know, I saw it. Ju Hian started to frown. Underscore 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 looked at Joy's leg with concern. I heard that evil god artifacts take something away from you and I guess it is the truth. The proof was on her leg where it was quite visible that the evil god artifact had entered her body. It looked as if it had tried to take Joy's leg. 
The fact that it hurt when Siole put her hand was proof. Her lower body was slowly becoming paralyzed along with the pain. The reason Juhian wanted to see his sister's body with his own eyes was because he wanted to see how much damage the evil god artifact had done. Juhian needed to see it with his own eyes to feel relieved after losing her once. The reason he wanted her to work for him was because that was the safest place. Based on his experiences from the past life, Joy's affinity was the reason Tomb Syndrome struck her worse than normal people. She was okay now thanks to the medicine created from the herb of eternal youth that Juhian had Edward give to her. It looks like she was a good girl and ate the medicine properly. She didn't seem to show any symptoms even with her unbelievable affinity. Even still I can't believe she even dragged an evil god artifact to her. Affinity was an illness at this point. However, that evil god artifact was not visible right now. Edward looked at Joy and found this to be odd. That's odd. I confirmed that the artifact was in Joy's body not too long ago where the hell did it go? Where else would it have gone? It obviously ran away after noticing that the captain was coming. Ilya sneered. You can tell how rushed it was from the fact that a damn parasite ran away from the host's body. He was saying that it ran away without being able to even feed on Joy's body. I don't know what kind of evil god it is, but it seems like quite the coward. Juhian was probably the problem. That was actually exactly what had happened. Damn it, Co Juhian, you motherfucking bastard. The evil god was shaking in fear while hiding somewhere. It had been thinking about hiding away to suck the life of its host but Co Juhian had suddenly appeared. It had dropped everything and ran away for its life after feeling that dangerous crow's aura. He shouldn't know that I am still here. However it's around here somewhere. It didn't go far. The evil god artifact that was nearby almost screamed after hearing that. D, did he notice? They quickly kept talking as if they had no idea where it was. It's best to find it quickly. Although it ran away for now, the contract should still be in place. It might look okay to let it be but it may try to harm Joy and steal a part of her body again. The evil god artifact smiled after hearing that. There's no way for a damn human to find me here. He could try his best but he would never find it. I'll lay down roots in this bastard's body as well. The evil god artifact that had laid down roots in one of Juhian's team members after leaving Joy's body smiled wickedly. While Juhian was doing that, TKBM and the other monarchs were busy recruiting monarch-level talents. They were creating a grand alliance to go up against Seo Juhian. One of those people was Yujeha's Sunbei, Julian. Yes, the top official restorer was being recruited. He had turned into a monarch using an evil god artifact a long time ago. And then your exhibition will be quite an important thing. The exhibition is when the four emperors who rule over the monarchs are prophesized to appear. Chairman Quan threw them a newspaper while saying that. Yujeha, the monarch of pushoverness. His first personal art exhibition. Julian, top official restorer. His personal exhibition is on the same day. Is he planning to suppress the monarch of pushoverness now that he has TKBM's backing? That is why we will carry out the plan during your exhibition. Yes sir. Julian was confident. In addition to the evil god artifact, he also had Michelangelo's artifact. That artifact was Ujeha's Leonardo da Vinci's artifact's rival. As you should already know, this artifact is the da Vinci's artifact's only weakness. Chairman Quan looked at a little kid standing next to Julian as he said that. I have high expectations for you as well. You are our newest monarch with an evil god artifact. Don't worry, Chairman Nim. I got a good artifact. The former monarch of fraud and Ujeha's son. Louis Martin smiled wickedly. Damn, look at that woman. She's beautiful. Inside a New York art gallery Ciole who was wearing a blue evening dress that came down to her knees was looking around. Everybody was looking at her and complimenting her by saying that she was like a brightly shining fairy but she didn't care. What she did care about was hey Jeha, where did Louis go? He's your assistant. Her question made Jeha scream in anger. I don't know. Who the hell cares? He left saying he was going to go buy some pigments and ran away. 
it's already been a couple of days. Well, Yu Jaha didn't seem to care since Louis tended to run away quite frequently. And that bastard isn't the issue right now. Jaha, who would usually not be seen wearing a suit like he was right now, was panicking. S. C. O. L. A., do you think that I will succeed? Will people talk shit about my art? No, I don't care if they talk shit about me but what if it makes the Captain Nim look bad? Yu Jaha was having a mental breakdown while grabbing C. O. L. A. Yes, the day was finally here. This was the day of his private exhibition that Ju Hian had prepared for Jaha. There was only one hour left until the opening. This is a dream. If it is not, today must be the day I die. That must be why such a gift has been given to me. It really holds no weight when you are the one saying that. Ju Hian had prepared this exhibition to celebrate Jaha getting rid of the copycat accusations. It was supposed to be a small exhibition but the gallery Ju Hian reserved had connections with Chairman Quan, so hold on. That old fart did exhibitions for artists in that gallery? Ah, uh, yes sir. It's quite a good gallery thief also sold a lot of paintings. I heard it was the highest amount of sales in history those words had made Ju Hian's eyes flash with a competitive spirit. Call over all curators and art merchants when he is doing his exhibition. Close all other art galleries in New York that day. Make sure all of this bastard's paintings sell, no matter what. Make them sell out. E, excuse me. You Jaha. Make sure your personal exhibition is a success. I'll kill you if you don't make it a success when I created this opportunity for you. As a result you Jaha, the monarch of pushoverness, is going to have a fancy debut in New York. This will be his first personal exhibition. Unbelievable publicity and promotion for the past four months. Both experts and laymen have high expectations will it lead to the largest number of viewers for a personal exhibition. Professors, appraisers, curators will all show up as Seo Juhian is the sponsor. The personal exhibition of a monarch. Political leaders, CEOs of global corporations and royalty are all planning on attending. The stage of evaluation. What is his true abilities not as an artifact user but as an artist? The true creator of world-renowned artist Jean Richards' painting? Isn't he all talk? Yu Jaha is just an unknown and untalented rookie. Ah! Captain Nim, why did he? He promoted it too much. Yu Jaha started to cry. He was so thankful for this opportunity that he could not thank Ju Hian enough even if he had a hundred mouths. He would never forget about what Ju Hian had done for him. But still. This is too big. Yu Jaha was the monarch of fraud who had scammed the entire world but he was just a nameless copycat in the art world. He feared showing his paintings to people because of those false accusations of the past. The first exhibition would have made him anxious no matter what, however this became such a huge ordeal now. There was also a problem. Artists sponsored by Chairman Quan and the New Monarchs will have an exhibition on the same day. Which one will have the most people visit? Who will receive the better evaluation? A sponsor battle between Seo Juhian and Chairman Quan Taejun. A battle between Seo Juhian's faction and its competitors. What the hell is that damn Chairman Quan thinking? That was right. It would have been fine if people talked crap about his work but now they might talk crap about Ju Hian as well. I didn't know the princesses would sponsor me too. They said they were thankful for him always sending them news about Ju Hian so Ju Hian's fan club pulled some strings as well. Yu Jaha is a raw or. They also sent some extra messages as well. Mr. Jaha, I look forward to your exhibition. P.S. Please make sure to take a picture of Juhian Nim in a suit at the opening ceremony. Returning to the present the critics around the world were saying he has no skills but is being carried by famous people. There were all sorts of negative comments about him. Those people were going to come and critique his paintings. The critics writing terrible reviews is like throwing crap at the sponsor's face. Then you should have done a good job so that they can't do that. Right? Ah. Yu Jaha started shaking while looking at Ju Hian who was standing behind him. I, I need a Chung Shim Wan. A Chung Shim Wan. One seal, a patted Yu Jaha's back as he swallowed the Chung Shim Wan down. It's okay, you gave it your best. 
You do have to be careful of a few things though. What? All of the monarchs are going to show up. There's been rumors that this exhibition is where the four emperors would appear. T, the four emperors. I don't know if enemies will appear or certain people will become the four emperors though. There will also be hyenas looking to cause trouble on purpose as well as old fogies trying to cut you down before you could sprout. What? But the most important thing is what the Captain Nim did. He put some money down. What? He made a bet with the enemies about whether your paintings or theirs would sell better. It's a one billion dollar bet. What? One billion dollars. That's one trillion one. Does he have that kind of cash? People started to arrive as he asked that question. There were naturally hyenas mixed in with the crowd. Yu Jeha staggered while looking but Ju Hian was smiling brightly. Well, it's fine. I won't be angry even if you lose to their artists. Oh, I'm sure. You won't be angry. But you'll kill me. Chapter, 282 Well, it's fine. I won't get angry even if you lose to Chairman Quan's artists. That's right. You won't be angry. But you'll kill me. Yu Jeha was sobbing. It was scary enough to get his art judged but now he had to consider the Captain Nim's reputation as well. Monarchs are showing up as well. That should have been expected. All monarchs would be trying to steal their heirlooms right now. They wanted the heirlooms to monopolize the artifacts again and control world economy and politics to create their own great empire. They wanted to be like TKBM that was now stronger than an alliance of multiple countries. In order to do that, they needed to take down Ju Hian and his team who were in their way. But why does it have to be here of all places? It's already scary enough without them. Well, there was nothing he could do about them. However and what does she mean by a one billion dollar bet? I mean, I probably would have joined in on the fun if it wasn't my exhibition, but how can you make bets over my paintings without asking me first? Ju Hian's eyes opened wide at Jeha's angry rant. He thought that Jeha would have been fired up by it. Had it touched his pride as an artist or something? If it upset you. No oh. Captain Nim, why are you making a bet where you're going to lose? Yu Jeha was wailing. He started pounding on a poster that looked like a K-pop idol's promotional poster. Yu Jeha, the shining jewel it was a large poster you would normally see on the side of a building. He was happy that the princesses printed his face so large, but still. It's not like I'm a hotshot whose exhibition would have people lining out the door. Who is going to buy paintings from a nukes exhibition? Oh, it was that issue. Excuse me, Captain Nim, you might not know about this but their artists are quite famous. There is even a bastard who received an award from a prime minister. Of course I'm going to lose. How the hell are you going to get one billion dollars? I'm not sure. I think they'll give me at least that much if I sell you off to a country. Are you really thinking about selling me off? You son of a bitch. Ju Hian chuckled after seeing Yu Jeha's expression. It's a joke about the money bet. Ah, uh, of course. There's no way you would make a bet like that, right Captain Nim? I was worried you would lose money because of me. Oh but I did bet some heirlooms. Ju Hian smiled brightly and added on. So you know what happens if you lose, right? Is he being serious? Seo Lei whispered to Ju Hian after seeing Jeha heating up. Don't you think that was too much? He seems completely out of it. It's okay. I just gave him a nudge not to belittle himself. I don't know about that. He seems to be having a mental breakdown. Ju Hian looked outside. Hey Jeha, it's your first customer. Get ready. Yu Jeha was still frozen stiff but seemed a bit happy. However Kia, Julian and Inaba are over there. Something odd happened. All of the people who looked as if they would come here started heading toward the other exhibition hall. They were all avoiding Ujeha's exhibition for some reason. It truly was weird. Mr. Ju Hian, nobody is coming this way. Irene looked anxious looking at people who were only gathering toward the exhibit on the left. They had nobody come to their exhibit. But the artists sponsored by Chairman Quan and the new monarchs had over 10 0 
Irene asked while looking at the crowd. Isn't it weird? There's not a single person here. The rest of the team members chimed in as well. I heard someone over there is being sponsored by the US president. They're all so famous that anything they put out sells out. Ujha seemed to be getting smaller at every comment but Ilya landed the final blow. Well, let's be honest. These paintings suck compared to theirs. Even I can tell these aren't that good. He was just provoking Jeha as usual but Jeha looked as if the world was going to end. One billion dollars one billion dollars. He was crouching down on the corner thinking about being sold off. At this rate, forget beating them, he wouldn't even sell a single painting. Well, he never expected to sell any in the first place, but ha ha ha, why don't we set a list of potential countries to sell me off to first? Personally, I would prefer a country with a lot of beauties. Hey hey, snap out of it. Even the rope was trying to console Jeha. But this truly was weird. Why would so many people all go there? It was at that moment. Kia, Inaba's work is truly the best. It has a way of mesmerizing people. They overheard some people walking by outside. They had stopped by the other exhibition and were leaving. The brochure in their hands was proof of where they had just been. Of course, they didn't even give a glance toward Jeha's exhibition. That was probably the reason. Hand that over for a bit. Kaya. He had not purchased one because he didn't want to help increase their profits, but he did need to know about his enemies. Just how amazing is their art? Juhian tilted his head in confusion after looking at the painting in the brochure. Why? Even if art is subjective this shit? This was not something that should sell. Juhian didn't know that much about art, however he could tell by looking at it. There's no sincerity and it shows no skill. Although Juhian had that response, the other hall was packed and people were all praising the piece. What is going on? As they were thinking it was weird there really are only flies on that side. The top official restorer Julian and the rest who were participating in the exhibition sneered toward them. That's why you should have used Da Vinci's artifact, you Jeha, you stupid retard. Isn't it over if he has no customers? That was right. The five artists going up against Ujeha today were all artifact users. They used Michelangelo, Raphael, Rembrandt and other famous artists' artifacts to create their works. It was easy to get people to praise your work when it was created by using the artifact of a genius painter. Their marvelous auras were being channeled into the paintings. The artifacts were responsible for these artists getting awards, sponsors, and being praised as geniuses. Look at those stupid pigs being fanatical about my work. My stuff is guaranteed to sell out today. I didn't know it was so easy to make money. They get in line to buy our shit even if we don't try at all. They were still wary of you Jeha. That was to be expected. Hey, are you sure it's totally fine? You Jeha has Da Vinci's artifact as well. Isn't it game over if he uses Da Vinci's artifact? We lose our sponsorship money if we lose. Only CEO Juhian will benefit. It was hard to rank the artists but the artifacts became more powerful the more popular their namesake was to the humans. Someone as famous as Leonardo da Vinci would mean that anything created by that artifact would be a masterpiece. I told you. He doesn't use artifacts when making his own paintings. Louis was the one to respond. You are the sixth artist to join us if I remember correctly. You better be telling the truth. Louis shrugged his shoulders. I already told you. He said it's cheating to use an artifact while painting or something like that. He said that only trash do that. The other artists sneered at him. Wow, what an inspiration to all artists. I heard that Ujeha was going to display a new style of painting. He needs to be embarrassed by the critics to wake the hell up. He's probably expecting it. But I didn't know Seo Juhian would be a heirloom. Does he trust his subordinate that much? Do you think he has an ace up his sleeve? Or maybe he's just dumb and doesn't think before he acts. That's true since nobody will go there as long as we have the entry restriction artifact going. All they will have are flies. But at that moment then why don't we send those flies here too? The artists who were in the waiting room were shocked. The voice they had heard had come from the ceiling. 
Why, you are. I knew something was weird. Our pushover might be a retard but his paintings don't suck. The monarch of devils. The person hanging upside down on the ceiling was Ilya. His angry gaze was directed at Louis who was with the artists. Ah, it's you. You're that little monarch of fraud who ran away. Ilya frowned after noticing something on Louis. He could feel a terrible evil god artifact on Louis. It feels like a Nazi artifact. Could it be Hitler? Eily scrunched his eyes together. Well, it's fine. It doesn't matter to me anyway. A battle should be fair, don't you think? Huh. Something happened once Ilya's eyes flashed. Ah. What is this? There were strong gusts of wind inside the exhibition hall and a large number of flies flew in. Ah. The hordes of flies stuck to paintings and turned the western hall into pandemonium. Get out. Hurry up and get out. The people inside started to escape. That wasn't all. Kaya. Blood. Blood. Nobody was harmed but the foul stench and flowing blood made people run away even faster. The artists in the hall all glared at Ilya. That bastard. They could tell what had happened. What happened just now wasn't through Solomon's devils or through a spell book. This is the power of a heirloom. The heirloom Ilya got was the monarch of devil's artifact. It was Satan Beelzebub, the devil from the Bible. The tempter, the king of evil, the deceiver of the world, the adversary, the accuser of the people, the evil one, the lord of flies, the fallen one, etc. It was indeed that devil who has so many nicknames. The artists were ready to fight Ilya even after seeing Satan. No no, stop. What? I hope that our captain doesn't have to use his powers. Ju Hian was standing where Ilya was looking. His eyes were red and his arms were crossed with an expression that was saying that they were dead if they tried anything funny. The crow's aura seeping out of him was proof that the threat was real. Maybe he was saying that they better sit their asses down and follow the rules since he wasn't using artifacts today against them either. The corners of Ju Hian's lips curled up and they heard some things exploding. Ju Hian had destroyed all of the entry restriction artifacts. The artifacts hindering people from entering have been destroyed. Julian was about to use his evil god artifact after seeing people start to move. Why I ought to? The others stopped him. It's fine. The chairman Nims will be here soon so let's not cause a fuss. The flies and blood disappeared so it's fine. Let him flail all he wants. Yu Jaiha didn't use his artifact for his painting so there's no way he can win. That's right. There's no way he will sell even one painting. Yu Jaiha's son Bei Julian and female Hubi both laughed. That is true. He was the worst artist out of everyone in our class after all. Back in the other hall the rope's eyes flashed after hearing people's voices. People are here. They're here. The rope even had a ribbon on today. The happy rope smacked the sulking Ujeha's back. Hurry up and cheer up. Cheer up. The people walking in started to observe his paintings. Ha. Huh. The style of painting is different. I heard he was the original painter of Jean Richard's supposed new style. Ujeha tensed up after hearing people's voices. What the hell? I was looking forward to that style of painting. Why did he change it? It was the critics. I guess he really is a fraud. It's not that good. I had high expectations after hearing he was the true artist behind Jean Richard's style. I told you. He's just a fake. Ujeha bit down on his lips after hearing that. He was thinking that he really was not good enough. He could have used that style of painting that Richard had stolen from him, however I chose a different method on purpose. He had used an even more developed style. However, the famous critics were sneering and other people were talking crap. That last picture probably did so well because a hotshot took it. The original artist isn't that good. There's nothing more to see. Let's go look at the other ones. Yu Jaiha, who had been selling brochures, lowered his head with disappointment. The team members all had awkward expressions as they didn't know what to say. 
Ju Hian had his usual stoic expression but it was definitely not a smile. Did you draw that painting? E, excuse me. An old man was standing in front of Jeha. His appearance got people talking. Wait a minute, that person. The critics who had been ripping Jeha's work to shreds suddenly became anxious. Chapter, 283 Wait a minute, that person. The critics who had been ripping Jeha's work to shreds suddenly became anxious. Maybe it was to be expected. Why did it have to be this person? The person standing in front of you Jeha was the US president. Everybody was talking in shock after the president appeared with the secret service. Yu Jeha was in shock as well. W, why would this guy, he recalled that the US president had a bad relationship with the captain. As a result, he, as Ju Hian's subordinate, should be on the black list as well. Ju Hian's eyes were open wide in shock as well. However, it was so minimal that only his team members would be able to tell he was shocked. Ciole quickly whispered. D, do you think he's here to get revenge? He wants to do that here. Well, he's someone who might do that. They did take down General Kira, a monarch working for the US and had looted the artifacts belonging to the US government during that incident at the Pentagon. Although they made it seem as if Chairman Kwan had done it, they were still not cleared of all wrongdoings. There was also that murder incident with Dan's trial. According to rumors, the true culprit who had falsely accused Dan he apparently had some connections with the president. There were many reasons this person would not look kindly upon them. That wasn't all. Inaba Taichi, the man that the US president personally sponsors, is on the other side. President Gray was, without a doubt, on the other side. Although he might talk crap about Ujeha's paintings, he would never praise them at all. The tomb raiding team members frowned while the critics were smirking. I guess he came to check out what the enemies have going on. Did he come to talk crap about Ujeha? Well, he probably doesn't want his cherished Inaba to lose. Unfortunately for them, President Gray said the following. Would you be willing to take me on as a sponsor? E, excuse me. I like your painting quite a lot. I'm sure that you'll need a sponsor. No, um, wait. But at that moment there's no need. Ju Hian appeared with a smile on his face. Murderous intent could be felt even though he was smiling. He would probably have told the person to get lost if it wasn't the president actually, he probably would have said it anyway if other people were not around. I am this punk sponsor. He does not need any more sponsors. President Gray smiled brightly and responded. That's not for you to decide, monarch of predation. It ain't your decision either, old man. President Gray frowned while looking at Ju Hian's gaze. It was quite threatening. Although Ju Hian was being gentle with him, the pressure President Gray felt from Ju Hian's eyes was strong enough to threaten one of the most powerful people in the world. It's at Kira's level no, he's a bit stronger than her. He had confidently tried to start something with Ju Hian after getting an artifact of his own but it was too much. He definitely is not easy to deal with. He's grown even stronger in such a short period of time. Ju Hian was much different from how he had been prior to getting the heirloom. It seemed obvious that Chairman Quan and Pandora would be wary of him. He then changed his target. Yu Jeha, I don't think that the monarch of predation is a good sponsor who would help you succeed in the future. Why don't you switch sponsors? Yu Jeha's eyes opened wide. Of course, I would be honored to be sponsored by the President of the United UG. Yu Jeha almost suffocated because of Ju Hian's dominance. Ju Hian's crow looked ready to rip apart and eat Jeha's phoenix. Yu Jeha was crying internally as he responded. I, I'm sorry, I can't do that but thank you for your kind words. President Gray smiled and turned around. Feel free to come look for me if you ever change your mind. Why the hell would he change his mind? Get lost. Ju Hian became angry while Yu Jeha sniffled once the president was gone. Damn it, he would have been my first true sponsor. Why did you stop him Ugh. You dumbass, do you really think that guy has pure intentions about sponsoring you? It's to steal you away. To steal you away. Ciole smacked Jeha on the head. He's so excited that he lost his wit. Julian chimed in as well. Yes. 
They don't need the artist Ujeha, they need the restorer and monarch Ujeha. The U.S. had lost one of the four emperors thanks to Juhian. The U.S. also lost the number one title for artifacts in the world. The current strong faction was the CR Alliance. China was expected to be a leader thanks to having Jin Kai Yuan. There were also the European nations, Middle East, Korean, and Japan using artifacts to quickly become strong nations. Most artifact users were associated with a country. If we don't have any homegrown monarchs, we can only steal them away from others. Zhu Hian's tomb raiding team was special in that none of them were aligned with a country. They would probably have been buried or plucked away a long time ago if they didn't have the protection of the Holtons, who had the political and economic power to even destroy the U.S. Army. Their past life was proof of how they would have ended up. They were an extremely desirable prey in many ways. Now that the entry restriction artifacts were destroyed, there were quite a lot of hyenas who were salivating to drag Jeha to their country. Nice to meet you. This is who I am. Hello sir. They couldn't approach Juhian because he was too scary so they were trying their luck with the others. Your painting was magnificent. Please look kindly upon our corporation. That kind of conversation happened over and over. Yu Jeha gasped. Nobody came to see the paintings. He really meant it. The nicer ones would at least peek at the paintings before trying to chat with him. Ju Hian said something as Yu Jeha sulked. It's not like you didn't expect this. The others whispered to each other after hearing that. I think it's just because the Captain Nim turned it into too big of an issue. It might have been better if it was a small exhibition with no publicity. Then the people who came might have come for the art itself. Ju Hian started to sweat after hearing those comments. However, Yu Jeha shook his head. No guys, I'm truly thankful that the Captain Nim even gave me such an opportunity. How else would I get to do a personal exhibition like this? He was extremely lucky to have such an amazing opportunity. Yu Jeha started chuckling. It's okay. I really don't mind if I don't sell any of my paintings. I wasn't expecting to sell any of them anyway. He was happy enough having people see his paintings. Everybody started to sulk. Ju Hian called out the doggies as if he had made up his mind. I'll be back after getting rid of all the useless fools. The rest of the team wanted to help as well. I'll use my ghosts to kick them out. I can use my thunderbolts. I have my knife. Then I can use my power of destitution. Yu Jeha gasped and shouted toward them. Egu. It's fine. It's fine. You guys not doing anything is helping me out. You're going to make everybody run away. The critics were laughing quite hard watching this take place. They had come after being bribed by Chairman Quan's side, however the painting really sucks. Even if selling paintings is important, anybody who buys them is just doing it to earn his favor. There's nobody buying it because they like the art itself. This happened quite frequently in the art world. People would buy paintings from celebrities or the children of celebrities to network with them. It's the same for Yu Jeha. He was one of the many who would disappear without a trace. Well, he might be able to continue his life as an artist if someone in a position of power or a wealthy sponsor liked his art and told him to continue. He should be happy to be a monarch. He can continue promoting himself as an artist thanks to the attention he gets as a monarch. Maybe he can restore people's artifacts and force them to buy his paintings in response. Ha ha ha. All right, we got our money so let's go write our reviews. Yu Jeha's personal exhibition is the focus of the entire world right now. I guess we can title it, Terrible, Horrible. As the critics were about to head out M, is it possible to purchase this painting? E, excuse me. There was one more viewer standing in front of Yu Jeha. She was an older woman. Your paintings were all so great that it took me some time to look at all of them. The woman smiled brightly. I want to hang them at my school, is it possible to buy them? Ah, maybe you're not selling at all. I'm sorry, I've never bought a painting before. Silence filled the room for a moment. The woman who looked like a professor really seemed to like his painting. The woman waved her hand after seeing Yu Jeha blankly standing there. Um, excuse me. Yu Jeha jumped up from the ground. 
T, thank you very much. Can I buy it? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, of course you can buy it. You, um, please put this sticker next to the painting you like to show your intent to purchase and an employee will help you with the process. Thank you. I'll make sure to stop by again if you have any more exhibitions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yu Jaeha bowed to thank her over and over. He looked like he wanted to cry but he couldn't help but smile. I sold one for the first time in my life. This was the first time he had ever sold a painting. His own painting and not something he had forged had sold. He was extremely happy about that fact. However, it didn't end there. People started to gather around Jaeha one after another. Are you the artist? The paintings were so great. The people who were true patrons of the art and not here for their own benefits came over to ask about the paintings and wanted to know when he would be having his next exhibition. The number of people wanting to purchase his paintings grew as well with intent to purchase stickers being placed all around the room. There was one on every painting now. The rest of the team was happy to see this happen. The employees were shocked as well. Holy crap, he's already sold that many. This is just the first day of the exhibition. All of the brochures have sold as well. We asked the print shop to print some more. The critics dropped their jaws in shock. They could tell what had happened. The people who came to look were buying Jeha's paintings as well as the brochures that had an explanation about each piece. These people weren't as crazed as the people in the Western Hall but people really seemed to like the pieces. That meant that these were good paintings. As they were watching with disbelief the pieces that the critics talked so much crap about are selling like wildfire. Hey, this is a major scoop. The reporters who had come after sniffing a story rushed over to the critics with excitement. The paintings you said were terrible are selling quite well. Could you please make a comment? Why do you think this is happening? The critics started to frown. It's because the paintings are cheap. He's selling them for almost no profit. Excuse me? Cheap? Ah, it is cheaper compared to the works of famous people but they are priced normally for any new artists. To say that he is selling them cheap to sell more is a bit. These prices are nothing to the rich. But a lot of regular people are buying them as well. The critics didn't know what to say. The popularity of a piece and its quality are separate issues. Just because a piece is popular with the masses doesn't mean that it is a good piece of art. They gave excuses while secretly grinding their teeth. We weren't wrong. Those morons who don't know anything are buying his crappy paintings because they think ITLL make them look more cultured. Those dumbass are buying it with herd mentality because someone bought one. They don't know anything and just think it's great. It was at that moment. Hey, did you hear? Apparently it's going pretty well for you Jeha. What? The five artists selling paintings on the west side were hearing about Jeha's situation. The patrons who had run away had returned and they were having no trouble selling their paintings. But what? Yu Jeha has had so many people wanting to buy the paintings that he had to change it to auction style. He is having trouble because he can't answer when his next exhibition is going to be. What the hell did he draw? The five artists looked anxious seeing the curators all heading to the Eastern Hall. Are you sure that the son of a bitch didn't use Da Vinci's artifact? Inaba Taichi just started laughing. They're just interested because it is a monarch's painting. They probably think they could resell it for profit. Damn pigs. But such tricks won't work in front of my master. What? Your master master Andrew. He was a famous artist who was currently serving as a critic as well. Master Andrew is here. Yeah. He came to see my paintings. He said he might as well see you Jehaz while he's here. All of them started to laugh. Wow, he's screwed. Master Andrew is extremely picky. He's so blunt with his critiques. He's also extremely influential. One word from him and a person's image can plummet to the ground. He was also pretty close to Jean Richard, wasn't he? He was upset that you Jeha threw Jean Richard in prison. Ah, Yu Jeha is done for. Andrew and other famous artists from around the world were entering Yu Jeha's exhibition hall at that moment. 
Critics, curators, reporters all of them, including the art merchants, turned toward them. Master Andrew. Wow, pretty much all of the famous painters are here. They went around looking at Ujeha's paintings. Even the general public was whispering. Some of these artists were so famous that even people who knew nothing about art knew who they were. The critics who had been talking crap about Ujeha approached them with excitement. Masters, what do you think about these paintings? It's just a copy of Jean Richards, right? Andrew, who had been staring at a painting, frowned as he made a single comment. How stupid. Right? That's what we thought. Yes. You guys are extremely stupid. Excuse me. Chapter, 284. I heard back from the publisher and they updated 279 to 290. They are going to be here because they took out some parts that I want everybody to have a chance to read so once 284 is released to the public, they will all be updated. 279 to 284 are all in this chapter for now so please use a search function to get to 284 if you want to skip but you should probably reread as some things did change. 279 pot. The attack from the artifact headed for joy suddenly disappeared. To be more accurate, the artifact withdrew its attack on its own. What is going on? Something was weird. Joy was fine despite not having a single artifact on her. The monarch of the heavens figured something out and started frowning. Did this punk perhaps? Something came flying toward him before he could finish the thought. Pow! It was a fire extinguisher. Ah, that damn lunatic. I couldn't grab an artifact in the end. J. Joy. I was sure that he would use a good artifact since he is a monarch. Joy, are you crazy? All of Harvard was in uproar right now. It was a big issue that a monarch had visited the campus but there was a woman who had kicked that monarch to the curb. Furthermore, that woman was upset that she did not manage to grab an artifact from the monarch. Joy, are you okay? Isn't that guy your twin brother you talked about before? Joy scoffed in response. Who said he was my twin? That's just a look-alike. What? A look-alike? She had last seen Juhian in Korea 17 years ago. They had not been able to see each other since then. Actually, the truth was that Juhian refused to meet with her. Maybe he was justified with his actions. Especially after that kind of goodbye. Originally, Juhian was supposed to be adopted with her. They were supposed to go together. However, Juhian stole the to be foster parents' wallet on the day of the adoption. Furthermore, he started a fire in the to be foster parents' car. He then held up a can of oil and spewed some nonsense. Get lost. Or you'll be lit on fire next. Her adopted parents had said they couldn't handle such a child and left Juhian behind while taking her with them. She could not even dream of meeting Juhian until she became an adult. She did track Juhian down while she went on a trip to Korea as a middle school student, but he had left her hanging. She had somehow managed to get his number and call him, but get lost. I don't have a sibling like you. He ignored all of her messages and letters. It had been close to twenty years since she had not seen him. Forget his face, she didn't even know his voice. That was why she had been shocked to see the look-alike appear in front of her today. She really wondered if the guy was Juhian. Her friend Arthur asked her about it as well. It was because that guy looked identical to Juhian he had seen on TV. Are you sure that's not your twin brother? No. They don't look alike at all. Their noses are completely different. His nostril is tilted one centimeter in comparison and the shape of their ears is different too. I'm sure of it. I now understand why you don't have a boy fog. She ruthlessly pummeled her friend. It's a good thing I remember that guy's face. Although she was saying that, the YouTube video she saw while looking for some research materials had been extremely helpful. She had stopped tuning into any form of media ever since the artifacts appeared because she hated both artifacts and artifact users, however I'm sure of it. The man in the video had been Juhian. Joy sighed. That look-alike from earlier and all these artifacts what the hell is he going around doing? She sounded a bit concerned. Back in New York, 
Yu Jiha was smiling like a buffoon while looking at a picture Ilya had taken. Our Ju one really is pretty. Ilya had visited Harvard under Ju Hian's orders. It was easy to teleport stealthily thanks to Seol A.S. heirloom and his spellbook artifact. He took a picture and brought it back, but this damn bastard Captain Nim, please give me your twin sis Ugg. Yu Jiha was hit by a steel mug and beaten to a pulp. Ilya whispered to him after seeing Jiha in pain. TSK, you get rejected by Seole so you go for the Captain M sister now. W, what? Yu Jiha became flustered and Ilya wickedly added on. What's wrong? You confessed to Seole and she rejected you. Yu Jiha urgently covered Ilya's mouth. Hey, that's from the past life that's so long ago. We only care about the right now. That's a dark page in history. You deserve a dropkick for that. Well, whatever. Give up on the Captain Nim's sister. Even that Mithraya was beaten to a pulp. Yujeha's jaw dropped in shock after hearing about that. What? Ju Wan beat the hell out of the Mithraya? That crazy Mithraya? She even tried to steal his artifact. His son was attacked as well. What? That bastard has a son. His unborn son. Yu Jiha started to shake in fear after hearing about the attack. Ilya, who had seen it all in person, was also shaking. However I guess they really are siblings. Blood definitely does not lie. They act the same way. Ju Hian was calm. Actually, he complained about what Joy had done. Damn, she should have just cut it off while she was at it. It's hell enough with what she did okay. The Mithraya almost lost his son and went straight to hell. The monarch of the heavens almost became the monarch of eunuchs. Sounds good. It's not like a Mithraya needs that. They all shook in fear. Well, to be honest, it doesn't seem like the Captain Nim's sister would be taken down so easily. Why? She was the almighty Seo Juhian's other half. It was obvious that his sister would also be a fireball. Will you be okay? Captain Nim. What? Captain Nim, maybe you'll get beaten to a pulp too when you get to see Ju Wan. That might actually happen. He had been neglecting her for the past 17 years. Well, it's not like Shell want to see me anyway. There was no need for him to go find her. Even if he did go, he would not let her hit him just because she wanted to do so. But Captain, the monarch of the heavens's artifact didn't seem to work on Ju Wan. She didn't seem to have used an artifact, so how? Jaha, that is a bit odd. Did she have some kind of artifact-related ability? Ju Hian, ah, she does. Excuse me? Her affinity level is no joke. Excuse me? Ju Hian picked his ear with his pinky. How do I explain this you know how I have 100 dominance and 0 affinity? She's 0 dominance 100 affinity. While I find affinity to be completely useless, her affinity is so high that the artifacts don't want to attack her. Ilya and Jeha both dropped their jaws at the same time. Something like that is possible. Yu Jeha was extremely flabbergasted. His affinity was quite high compared to the others on this tomb raiding team but forget not attacking him, the artifacts treated him as a pushover. He did not have the time to test his sister's abilities in the past. Unfortunately, he had seen his sister again for the first time in his late twenties. He had Inspector Kim help him find his twin sister but she was already suffering from a severe case of tomb syndrome at that point. She was almost a corpse and all artifact-related abilities had fallen. She was in the critical care unit so he could not even meet her. All Chairman Quan told him was that he would give Ju Hian some healing artifacts if he completed his missions. But there was also Inspector Kim's family as well. Ju Hian had been toiling away as a slave under Chairman Quan to heal Inspector Kim's family and their tomb syndrome because they had been more like family to him than his real family. That was why he had been having Edward keep an eye on her after returning to the past. Edward was to let him know if anything happened. He didn't want to personally go because it would just be giving Chairman Quan and his other enemies an extra pawn. Ilya chimed in. Oh, based on what I heard, she seems to be talented enough to be an artifact engineer. And if her affinity is really that high, 
then what about that Pandora system artifact you got from the Monarch of Detection? Maybe she might be able to activate it. Ju Hien had taken a piece of the Pandora system artifact from the Monarch of Detection in the past. He had tried to use it but the message had been quite clear. Your affinity is extremely lacking. Ju Hien had then tossed it to Yu Jeha who had the highest affinity level on the team, however you are not qualified. Your affinity is not high enough. You are unable to use this artifact. Ju Hien didn't think much about his failing because he was pretty much an affinity eunuch, but it was shocking to see Yu Jeha, a person whose affinity was at the monarch level, fail like that. This is no normal artifact. It seemed as if the artifact had activated for the Monarch of Detection not because of his affinity but because he was a member of Pandora. That was why they had kept it stashed away even though it seemed important. Mm. And she manhandled a person who was strengthened with an heirloom substitute. Ju Hien had to think hard about this. He had known that his twin sister had extremely high defenses because her affinity was at max level. But to handle someone with an heirloom like that apparently Ilya's devil didn't even have time to react, something seemed weird. Unless she has an heirloom as well, Ju Hien greedily started to smile. Did that punk? Returning back to Harvard. Inside a Harvard University laboratory joy, this is bad. Someone who looks like you is here again. Someone came to look for you again. Joy got angry thinking that the crazy bastard from earlier had come back. But something seemed a bit different this time. Bang! A loud noise echoed throughout the university. There was something different from the earlier situation with the Mithraya H. Hey! That is a restricted area. Hey! Someone kicked the door down as if it was a decoration and not an actual door. Call the cops. The cops. What the hell? Who the hell is this rampaging idiot? Joy's face slowly turned pale inside this pandemonium. And, no way, right? And then the person barged in. Ah, I finally found you, you ugly puppy. It was the original this time. Joy screamed internally while looking at the person in front of her. She was sure of it. This voice and this face. It really is Ju Hien. She subconsciously started to smile. It really was her twin brother. This was the first time she had seen him in 17 years since the last time she saw him was when they were 6 years old. But she could tell by looking at him. He truly did look different from the look-like who was here yesterday. She wondered why he had such a grumbling expression on his face, but she immediately recalled the child from back then. He had not changed at all since then. Joy started to feel emotional. He got so tall. He had been shorter than her when they were little but now she needed to lift her head up to look at his face. Although she had seen him in videos, it was different seeing him in person. She was happy. That was probably the reason. Ju Hien Ah. She was about to happily greet Ju Hien. I got you now, you fat pig. There was a bright light. The ground joy was standing on exploded. Ah. A hole was instantly created and a white gown hanging next to her burnt to a crisp. Joy plopped down on the floor in shock. But Ju Hien didn't care about that at all and just seemed quite amused. Oh, the artifact really doesn't want to attack her. W, what? Artifacts taking on all sorts of appearances such as pencils, necklaces, fountain pens, etc. started floating in the air. They were all divine grade artifacts. Anubis, Osiris, even Xiang Yu's artifact was there. Joy turned completely pale after looking at them. Ju Hien just smiled brightly without caring about her at all. Ah, right. I should tell you this in advance. Don't cry if you get hit. What? What do you may Akaya? Bong. 280 There was another explosion inside the laboratory. The explosions continued one after another. Ju Hien was using divine grade artifacts to attack his twin sister as if he was crazy. It was as if he wasn't happy to be reunited with his sister. He even called Osiris to open the gate to the afterlife. The gate to the afterlife has been opened. The others who came with Ju Hien could only drop their jaws in shock. What the hell is this guy doing? Was this any way to act to a blood sister he had not seen for 17 years? 
The funny thing was that Joy didn't have a scratch on her despite everything Ju Hian did. She truly has Max affinity. He did not know about this in his past life and had not believed it at first when Edward told him about it, but I guess it is real. Both of these siblings were at the four emperor's level. But she's pretty much a dud at fighting since her dominance is at zero. Ju Hian smiled as if he was amused after personally analyzing Joy's power. However, Joy's lab was destroyed and ended up a total mess. Yu Jaha could not hold back anymore and started to shout. Captain Nim. You're going to get arrested for property damage. Are you crazy? How can you destroy the building? Ju Hian kicked a crumpled steel door out of the way and responded to them. Why do you think I brought you guys with me? Excuse me. Ju Hian smiled at Ilya and Yu Jaha. A restorer and the aftermath cleanup crew. What a perfect combination. This son of a bitch. Bong. Joy was crying as she ran away from the destroyed lab. Wah. That stupid bastard, that motherfucker. She should not have been happy to see his face after 17 years. Why did he change so much? I, I have to call the cops first. She urgently looked for her phone. However, she could not find her phone anywhere. What the hell? Where's my phone? My phone. Where did I drop it? Are you looking for this? Joy started to foam at the mouth. Ju Hian was holding something as he chased after her with a bright smile on his face. It was her gold and pink colored cell phone. When had he stolen that from her? She shouted with anger. Hand it over. But forget handing it to her ah, why did it have to be a TKBM phone of all things? Crack. Ju Hian broke the phone into two. Joy screamed. What are you doing? My fo one. I haven't even had it for a month yet. Your older brother will buy you a new one. Ju Hian threw the phone away and continued to chase after her. So little puppy, come over here. Wah! That son of a bitch. Joy ran as if her life was on the line. She felt as if she was being chased by a homicidal maniac. Fuck, that look-alike from yesterday was a thousand, no, a million times better. Joy was bawling now. Unfortunately, Ju Hian seemed angry after hearing her comment. What did you just say? Ju Hian's expression turned vicious as he chased after her. You said that crazy look-alike is a million times better than me? Of course. Is this how you treat your sister after seeing her for the first time in 17 years? You son of a bitch. What? Son of a bitch. Hey, call me Appa. Appa my ass. You were born just a few minutes earlier. Biologically, the firstborn is the younger one. Plus, we're twins. Who knows if the hospital screwed up the records. Are you crazy? Do you really think a hospital would not be able to tell apart a boy and a girl? Wah! Stop chasing me! You big dummy! Ju Hian clicked his tongue. I thought she was a bookworm. Did she run every day or something? How the hell is she so fast? Ju Hian got annoyed with chasing her and activated a long necklace and white gold watch. Two large animals instantly appeared in front of Joy. They were the large white dog set that was taller than most adults and the black doggy Anubis. The two of them moved toward Joy with vicious expressions on their faces. Joy was completely scared. Her reaction was understandable. Set was so scary that the part-timers delivering chicken quit after seeing him once. Anubis looked majestic but his size, charisma, and ferocious gaze was enough to make even trained soldiers shiver in fear. She couldn't help but be scared since he was drooling and baring his fangs unlike his usual self. H, hold on. Set opened his mouth wide. And then he attacked Kaya. Nope, he did not attack and just licked Joy's cheek. As for Anubis he tried to push his head under her skirt as if he was courting her. Of course, Juhian pummeled him for trying to do that. Do you want to get fucked up? Do you? A scared Anubis quickly shook his head. M, master, this isn't what it looks like. That human bitch has a monstrous affinity level that I lost my mind ah. 
Juhian smiled while stomping on Anubis. I'm not certain but it looks like she has something that's not a heirloom but is like a heirloom. She was giving off an odd scent. It was probably a parasitic artifact. Juhian's eyes flashed as he turned back toward her. Hey, stupid idiot. Strip down. However, his sister had long since run away. He's crazy. He's crazy. He's fucking crazy. Joy was crying internally. Seo Juhian, that damn bastard had come to look for her after 17 years just to try to kill her. She only sniffled for a moment before smiling in relief after coming to a busy restaurant. He won't be able to do anything in a place full of people. She then asked some students if she could borrow their phone for a moment. She was planning on calling for help. Let's call the professor first to ask for help however, forget getting help beep, beep, beep the phone she borrowed didn't seem to work. W, what the hell? What's wrong with this thing? It was at that moment. Kia. What the hell? My phone stopped working. A ghost. It says it's because of a ghost. What? Kaya. What is that? All devices in the restaurant became useless because of ghosts that had appeared. Joy decided she had to change plans and tried to personally ask someone for help when hey. I heard someone say that they saw President John Kennedy over there. Hey. There's a ghost over there dropping money. What? Really? Really? People were focused on finding these ghosts. Nobody seemed to be interested in Joy at all. D, damn it. She could tell for real now. This was her brother's doing. Joy quickly tried to rush outside. M and PH. Someone was holding Joy from behind and covered her mouth. She turned around to see Juhian smiling as if he was a wild beast. I found you. Let me go, let me go. M and PH. M and PH. Where do you think you're running away, you damn pig? Joy, who had been instantly captured by Ju Hien, was tied up by the rope. Amun Ph. He carried Joy over his shoulder like a bag of rice and walked out of the restaurant. The abduction had happened in an instant. There was a woman on the roof of the restaurant watching this abduction take place. Is it really okay to do this? Siole sighed while controlling her ghosts. Fuck, why the hell do we have to do this? Ujeha and Ilya were currently stuck side by side restoring Joy's public lab that their captain had destroyed. I'm going to kill that captain of ours. I'm going to make him pay me more for overtime. Although they were grumbling, this kind of restoration was nothing to them. Ilya lightly motioned with his hand and the destroyed lab immediately started to get fixed. The broken things were getting back together, the crumpled door was opening back up, Things seemed as if they were going back in time. The items that had fallen to the ground returned to their spots as well. Even the particles of dust returned to their original locations. Everything returned to before Juhian had come here. It was a time regression spell for a specific area. Something like this was nothing for Ilya, who used spellbook artifacts as the aftermath cleanup crew. Ujeha's work was quite the spectacle as well. Ilya was in charge of restoring the area in order for Jeha to save energy while he took care of the destroyed equipment. His restoration was so great that the old equipment turned into new equipment in the process. Returning to the present are you done fixing things? Ju Hien was satisfied with his subordinate's work after returning to the lab. He was most satisfied with the old equipment that had turned new. Good, she should at least have this much. But then he tapped on the door. Ilya. The door is squeaking. Tighten the screws properly. Ilya and Ujeha asked as if they realized something. I, is that why you destroyed everything? You wanted to remodel your sister's lab? Juhian was silent for a moment before he sneered. No. I just thought we could charge the school a remodeling fee like this. His subordinate started swearing. Email protected. It didn't sound as if they were speaking a human language though. Ju Hien threw his sister who was tightly bound to the couch. M, M and PH. M and PH. Joy flailed around as best as she could while being bound by the rope. Unlike the rest of the artifacts that could not harm her at all because of her artifact affinity, 
the rope seemed to be an exception. Anlun Ph. Juhian ordered the rope to release Joy's mouth. He then said the following. I'll get right to the point. Don't you have a special artifact on you? It'd be a parasitic type that is inside your body. Joy seemed to become a bit depressed after hearing that. But she answered his question anyway. I don't have anything like that. Really? You really don't have anything like that? I really don't. Juhi inside and turned around. All right then, I'm leaving. Joy became flustered and urgently asked. Hey Juhian, no, Appa. Did you come all the way here just to ask that question? That's all you wanted to know after 17 years? Yeah. Why else would I need to come find you? We are strangers at this point. What did you expect? Did you want me to cry my eyes out like we were separated by the Korean border for ages? What bullshit? He sounded as if he came because of money. Well, technically that wasn't wrong since he came because of a potential artifact. Joy bit down on her lips as if she was upset. They were twins. Even if they were separated because of the adoption, they were the only kins left in this world. But after ignoring her for 17 years he showed up all of a sudden for this. You shitty artifact file. Ju Hien quietly sighed while looking at her with her head down. It was normal for her to get angry or cry. Even he knew that he did something terrible. He had done something terrible in the past and right now as well. However, he did not believe that either of his actions were wrong. But still fine. What do you need? Money? I can get someone to. Artifact. Okay, artifa what? Forget crying, Joy jumped on Juhian. Hole. An angry Joy grabbed Juhian's artifacts as if she had never been crying in the first place. My goodness, how the heck are all of your artifacts so good? She instantly looted Juhian's artifacts. 281 Ju, Hian was shocked. It couldn't be helped, since some artifacts really disappeared from his pockets. Ju Hien's eyes opened wide at this experience that he had never had before. The rest of the team were shocked as well. That was to be expected. The Captain Nim had his artifacts looted. Wasn't taking artifacts from the Captain, mission impossible. Are you crazy? The Monarch of Plunder had his artifacts plundered. She really is his sister. The team members were shrieking in shock. That was how unbelievable this was right now. The biggest shock was that Joy was tied up by the rope right now. Even if she pushed herself onto Juhian, there was no way she could steal things. Then was it a stealing type artifact? No, that was definitely not it either. Joy did not have a single artifact on her right now. They would have noticed if she used a stealing type artifact. Most importantly that guy isn't someone who would allow things to be stolen from him. How did this greedy bastard get plundered? The looted artifact's reactions were quite shocking as well. We're free. We're free. Evil landlord Seo Juhian should repent. Huff, huff, please just tell me what to do. I'll do anything you say. Ong, hit me. Please hit me. Juhian's artifacts were all floating around joy. That wasn't all. I am finally freed from your grasp you damn human. Some of the heirlooms that Ju Hien had monopolized were by Joy as well. The team members started to shout. Captain Nim. What is going on? Even these veterans could not understand what had happened. Ju Hien didn't seem shocked at all and just clicked his tongue. TSK, nothing to be shocked about it's because of her affinity. Excuse me? Ju Hien seemed to have realized what was going on. It was just a hypothesis originally, but something had confirmed his theory. The opponent's overwhelming affinity made her close to the artifacts. It is plundering using affinity. Jaha screamed as if he was the character in Edvard Munch's The Scream. Are you crazy? Since when can affinity be used like that? For you Jaha, affinity was something that made artifacts treat him like a pushover no matter how high it was. Even though his affinity ranked either 1 or 2 on the entire team, the artifacts beat him up or bit him every time he restored them. That was the norm. 
It felt as if he was an animal groomer trying to wash a ferocious and difficult animal or taking care of an animal that didn't want to be there. But what? How does that make any sense? It's understandable. Her affinity is so high that she can be friendly with any artifact. That means she can take anybody's artifact regardless of who its master is or what the contract status is. Basically she can plunder like you do. Yu Jaha looked as if he was going to die. Hey you terrible shits. What the hell is in your blood that crazy mutants like you AP Ug? Juhian punched Jaha. Juhian looked at the artifacts by Joy's side and started to think. I didn't think that even the heirlooms would go to her. Of course, the person who had ended up as a thief instantly Joy was gulping in fear. Shit, why did the heirlooms come too? She was just trying to take a few artifacts so that she could force Juhian to chat with her. This was the truth. Joy didn't actually plan on stealing any of the artifacts. She did hate artifacts for a lot of reasons but honestly speaking, she was an artifact geek as well. She did get tempted by Juhian's overwhelming amount of strong artifacts, but I, I still don't enjoy stealing things. At least that's what she thought. Although she didn't like artifacts, she did enjoy doing research about artifacts. Someone had just told her something. Em, you want to know about your brother? He's an extreme artifact file. That's how he ended up as the monarch of plunder. Joy wanted to live as a regular person but had contact with an artifact user. There was an artifact-related company that had helped her out when she was in trouble. That company's president had said the following to Joy. This guy. He is an extreme artifact file. J. Juhian is an artifact file. Well, that's why our dar I mean Co Juhian probably doesn't care about what anybody has to say. He's been completely brainwashed by artifacts. Ha ha ha. He's famous in our world. Joy had been shocked to hear that. That was why she thought that this was the only way to sit Juhian down and chat with him. He had even said that the reason he showed up today was because of an artifact. But why did the heirlooms come? She wasn't planning on doing that. The heirlooms who had used Joy's affinity to their benefit started to laugh without caring about what she was thinking. C.O. Juhian, you despicable human. I guess we should thank you. You helped us find a strong person who could free us from your grasp. We are not scared of your dominance when we have this human's affinity. No, that's not what I want. Stop it. Although she could not understand the artifact's language, Joy could understand them because she could read a bit of their thoughts. The other artifacts seemed to think this was a great time to revolt as well. That's right. Go away you tyrant. Go away. We want freedom and peace. This girl is the only human for us. Nobody else. Basically, the artifacts that had been suppressed with fear had seen a chance at freedom. What bullshit. Artifacts deserve no freedom. Boom. The crow's aura is spreading in all directions. His overbearing dominance descended upon joy and the artifacts. Juhian was crossing his arms and the aura behind him in the shape of a crow was calm but chaotic at the same time. What the fuck do you think you're doing? His chaotic aura made the artifacts scream in pain. The artifacts foamed at the mouth even though he had only shown a bit of his power. The heirlooms were shaking in fear as well. The crow's aura's compatibility with Juhian's dominance seemed to be amazing as it was growing like crazy. This crazy bastard. Juhian then started to laugh. What? Please hit me. Do whatever you want. Then I will eat all of you up. You damn artifacts with no principles. The artifacts started to scream once Juhian's eyes turned red. He generally just talked about eating artifacts to extort them, but it was different now. He was a predator who would prey on them and really eat them. Their bodies would disappear and their souls would be chewed up and end up his blood, skin, and abilities. They were scared even though it didn't seem as if Juhian could use that ability yet. It was because the artifacts could not forget about the crow's rampage in the past. Please forgive us. Please. We apologize. We apologize. Give us one chance. Just one chance. We were swayed by this dreamlike freedom. 
They had gone blind at this affinity but Juhian's dominance was truly scary. Furthermore, Juhian's artifacts had received terrible mental training from Juhian quite frequently. It was difficult to forget about a fear that had been engraved into your mind. The artifacts were bawling as they returned to Juhian's pocket. We've committed a grave sin, sir. Even the escaped heirlooms sniffled as they quickly returned to Juhian. Now then, it is time to deal with our ugly pig. Juhian sat down on Joy as if she was a couch and started to smile. I wasn't planning on being rough with you since you were my sister, but... Joy became anxious. W, wait. I heard that you have no intentions of using any artifacts, right? You said you hate artifacts. H, how do you know that? Well that's fine. I was just planning on watching what happened but I changed my mind. If she has such a useful ability, might as well use her. He would put her to use. Juhian's eyes shined viciously. All right, come become my subordinate, my little sister. Joy screamed after getting scared of his red eyes. H, hold on. Don't use an artifact on me, that sir will come to my rescue if you harm me. Juhian started to frown. That sir. He didn't seem to believe her. Why, yeah. He's someone at a company who helped me out. He's part of that G, grave company that is famous for artifact-related things. That was right. Joy had gone to buy an artifact to take care of an evil artifact that had stuck itself to her house. It was normal for disease-causing artifacts to attach themselves to houses like mold after a tomb appearance. People purchased artifacts to take care of these things from TKBM, Grave Company, and other world-famous artifact-related companies. C and D grade artifacts that were improved or turned into industrial products were being sold. Most people had enough dominance or artifact to handle C and D grade artifacts and they could even get their abilities tested for free. Anyway, I have connections with that grave company. I know someone really high up in the company. Juhian chuckled. Oh, I see, someone in grave company. Joy continued speaking while shaking in fear. Why, yeah. Anyway, that sir said he would come whenever an artifact user was threatening me. Oh, why would he care about an ugly kid like you? Why else? I'm a secret researcher for grave company shit. Anyway, someone up high in the company is protecting me. So don't even think about. Juhian sneered and showed her his phone. Is this old man the one you are talking about? Juhian showed her a picture of Edward. Joy was shocked after looking at the picture. Oh, Appa, how do you know about President Edward? Of course I know him. This old guy is my SL salaried subordinate, you dumbass. W, what? Subordinate? And I am the owner of that company. Liar. The crow's aura viciously charged toward Joy who ran away screaming. This is a scam. Joy, who was once again tied up by the rope, was shaking in fear. She was currently in her dormitory. Juhian had broken through all the locks and shamelessly entered the women's dormitory to rummage through Joy's room. He didn't care whether he was throwing clothes, underwear, accessories etc. as he managed to find fifty artifacts. Little sister, you have hidden quite a lot of artifacts. Juhian laughed out loud after succeeding in his treasure hunt. Edward, who was next to Juhian, sighed as he watched. He had instantly flown over to Harvard thanks to Ilya. My goodness, Director Nim. You still can't rummage through a lady's room like this. Shut up. Old man. Do you want me to lower your salary? Joy dropped her jaw in shock after seeing Edward shut up. Juhian really was Edward superior. Oh, Appa, you really are the owner of Grave Company? Yes. Then were you the one who told the mister to help me? Well, I told him to keep an eye on you. I never told him to hire you. Joy fell backward after hearing that. Everything had been on the palm of this bastard's hand. Edward had received Juhian's orders to approach Joy. He needed to keep an eye on her. He originally did not plan to actually talk to her in case Chairman Kwan spies found out, but he had no choice because her extremely high affinity was a problem as it dragged a bunch of artifacts to the company. He was also shocked by Joy's research abilities. 
They say that blood does not lie and it seems to be correct as she was an extreme artifact geek. She didn't like artifact users or using artifacts herself because of the trouble they caused but she did like researching them. That was why he had hired her without Ju Hian knowing about it. She was in their artifact research lab in the RD team. You should have told me. Ah, I was trying to surprise you, Director Nim. And to be honest with you, there is an heirloom attached to Joy that even she does not know about. Oh, there is? I was going to take it for myself before telling you about it. If you had just given me an heirloom early on. Ju Hian's eyes flashed. While Ju Hian was doing that, TKBM and the other monarchs were busy recruiting monarch level talents. They were creating a grand alliance to go up against Seo Ju Hian. Your exhibition will be quite an important thing. The exhibition is related to the monarch of fate's prophesized third change. Chairman Quan threw them a newspaper while saying that. Yu Jeha, the monarch of pushoverness. His first personal art exhibition. Julian, top official restorer. His personal exhibition is on the same day. An exhibition of famous artists from around the world. Are they planning on suppressing the monarch of pushoverness after receiving TKBM sponsorship? Chairman Quan started to laugh. We will gain a lot if we succeed this time. TKBM can be restored to its full glory in an instant. Someone else will help you all with the exhibition. You guys just need to follow that person and proceed with the plan. Yes sir. Julian and the other famous artists were confident. In addition to the evil god artifact, they also had Michelangelo, Raphael, and other famous artists' artifacts. Michelangelo's artifact was said to be Jeha's Leonardo da Vinci's rival artifact. As you should already know, this artifact is the da Vinci's artifact's only weakness. Chairman Quan looked at a little kid standing next to Julian as he said that. I have high expectations for you as well. You are our newest monarch with an evil god artifact. Don't worry, Chairman Nim. I earned a great artifact. The former monarch of fraud and Ujeha's son. Louis Martin smiled wickedly. 282 Joy had instantly been stripped for C.O.L.A. do a body search on her. They said something about finding an artifact that Edward was trying to take from her. To be more specific, it was not a heirloom but one of the evil god artifacts that had suddenly shown up. You still haven't found the heirloom? Joy jumped in shock while C.O.L.A. sighed after hearing the voice outside. Captain Nim, he really, I haven't found anything. There are no evil god artifacts either. They could feel Ju Hian's rage through the door. Is it really not there? Are you sure it's not there? That's what the chaotic aura seemed to be saying. It probably really wasn't there if Seole couldn't find it, but Seole, come outside. I'm going to check myself. Both Seole and the naked Joy gasped at the same time. Appa, are you crazy? See, Captain Nim. Seole had been the one to scream and prevent Ju Hian from stripping Joy in the first place. Seole had said that she would do it and took Joy to the other room. But what? Come out. I'm going to check myself. Captain Nim. Hold. The door was destroyed and Ilya and Ujeha peeked in before quickly turning their heads away. They momentarily saw a pair of perky boobs, slim waist and her stomach they couldn't see a lot because she quickly covered herself with a blanket but they did see the silhouette of Joy's killer body. But their captain would kill them if they said that they saw it. They heard screams from inside the other room. Kaya. What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you looking at? Where do you think you're touching? You pervert. Shut up, you fat pig. Who cares about a fat girl like you? They could hear their arguments, no, to be more specific, they could hear Joy's cries. Ju Hian had inspected Joy's body quite thoroughly. Of course, he was not just doing it to find an artifact. He seemed to be looking for traces of any illnesses or tomb syndrome. A few minutes later it really isn't here. Ju Hian clicked his tongue while Joy was crying in C.O.L.A.S. arms how can a so-called older brother appear after 17 years to destroy her lab and her phone while stealing all of her artifacts. He was even forcing her into a body search. He was willing to put her through that for a stupid artifact. Just go die. 
You idiot. I'm the idiot for worrying about this bastard until now. Joy was feeling really stupid. He could at least ask if I've been doing okay after not seeing each other for 17 years sob. She was actually dripping tears. He should just tell me if he hates me. Joy liked Ju Hian. No matter what, he was her one and only family member left in this world. She had been nice to him when they were younger so how did he end up growing up into such a terrible person? Her one and only family member was supposedly the most famous and most terrible criminal in the world. Egu. Siole patted her on the back. Don't worry, the captain in might be acting like this but he cherishes you a lot. How can she say that after everything he just did? She's right, even when we went into the lab earlier, he grumbled and told us to fix everything because things were old. He destroyed things on purpose after hearing that you don't get much funding. TSK TSK, he's a radical Tsundra for an older brother. He destroyed his younger sister's equipment on purpose to turn them new ug. The door was destroyed again at that moment. It was the same door that Ju Hian had destroyed earlier. Ah! Why did you do that? We just got it fixed. He then nonchalantly commented while looking at Ilya and Yujeha. Fix it properly. It broke when I just touched it. Restore it again. It was his way of threatening them to not say useless crap. The Ilya and Ujeha restoration combination got back to restore the door again. Siole smiled bitterly while looking at them before whispering to Juhian. Captain Nim, actually, Juwon's leg. I know, I saw it. Siole looked at Joy's leg with concern. I heard that evil god artifacts take something away from you and I guess it is the truth. The proof was on her leg where it was quite visible that the evil god artifact had entered her body. It looked as if it had tried to take Joy's leg. The fact that it hurt when Siole put her hand was proof. Her lower body was slowly becoming paralyzed along with the pain. The reason Ju Hian wanted to see his sister's body with his own eyes was because he wanted to see how much damage the evil god artifact had done. Ju Hian needed to see it with his own eyes to feel relieved after losing her once. The reason he wanted to make her work for him it was because that was the safest place for her. Based on his experiences from the past life, Joy's affinity was the reason Tomb Syndrome struck her worse than normal people. She was okay now thanks to the medicine created from the herb of eternal youth that Juhian had Edward give to her. It looks like she was a good girl and ate the medicine properly. She didn't seem to show any symptoms even with her unbelievable affinity. Even still I can't believe she even dragged an evil god artifact to her. Affinity was an illness at this point. However, that evil god artifact was not visible right now. Edward looked at Joy and found this to be odd. That's odd. Where the hell did the evil god artifact go? Where else would it have gone? It obviously ran away after noticing that the captain was coming. Ilya sneered. You can tell how rushed it was from the fact that a damn parasite ran away from the host's body. He was saying that it ran away without being able to even feed on Joy's body. I don't know what kind of evil god it is, but it seems like quite the coward. Juhian was probably the problem. That was actually exactly what had happened. Damn it, Co Juhian, you motherfucking bastard. The evil god was shaking in fear while hiding somewhere. It had been thinking about hiding away to suck the life of its host but Co Juhian had suddenly appeared. It had dropped everything and ran away for its life after feeling that dangerous crow's aura. He shouldn't know that I am still here. It's around here somewhere. It didn't go far. The evil god artifact that was nearby almost screamed after hearing that. D, did he notice? They quickly kept talking as if they had no idea where it was. It might look okay to let it be but it may try to harm Joy and steal a part of her body again. We should find it quickly. The evil god artifact smiled after hearing that. There's no way for a damn human to find me here. He could try his best but he would never find it. I'll lay down roots in this bastard's body as well. The evil god artifact that had laid down roots in one of Juhian's team members after leaving Joy's body smiled wickedly. Damn, look at that woman. She's beautiful. Inside a New York art gallery C.O.L.A. who was wearing a blue evening dress that came down to her knees was looking around. 
Everybody was looking at her and complimenting her by saying that she was like a brightly shining fairy but she didn't care. What she did care about was hey Jeha, where did Louis go? He's your assistant. Her question made Jeha scream in anger. I don't know. Who the hell cares? He left saying he was going to go buy some pigments and ran away. It's already been a couple of days. Well, Yu Jeha didn't seem to care since Louis tended to run away quite frequently. And that bastard isn't the issue right now. Jeha, who would usually not be seen wearing a suit like he was right now, was panicking. S. C. O. L. A., do you think that I will succeed? Will people talk shit about it? No, I don't care if they talk shit about me but what if it makes the Captain Nim look bad? Yu Jeha was having a mental breakdown while grabbing C. O. L. A. This was the day of his private exhibition that Ju Hian had prepared for Jeha. There was only one hour left until the opening. This is a dream. If it is not, today must be the day I die. That must be why such a gift has been given to me. It really holds no weight when you are the one saying that. Ju Hian had prepared this exhibition to celebrate Jeha getting rid of the copycat accusations. It was supposed to be a small exhibition but the gallery Ju Hian reserved had connections with Chairman Kwan, so hold on. That old fart did exhibitions for artists in that gallery? Ah, uh, yes sir. It's quite a good gallery they've also sold a lot of paintings. I heard it was the highest amount of sales in history, those words had made Ju Hian's eyes flash with a competitive spirit. Call over all curators and art merchants when he is doing his exhibition. Close all other art galleries in New York that day. Make sure all of this bastard's paintings sell, no matter what. Make them sell out. E, excuse me. You Jeha. Make sure your personal exhibition is a success. I'll kill you if you don't make it a success when I created this opportunity for you. As a result you Jeha, the monarch of pushoverness, going to have a fancy debut in New York. This will be his first personal exhibition. Unbelievable publicity and promotion for the past four months. Both experts and laymen have high expectations will it lead to the largest number of viewers for a personal exhibition. Professors, appraisers, curators will all show up as Seo Juhian is the sponsor. The personal exhibition of a monarch. Political leaders, CEOs of global corporations and royalty are all planning on attending. The stage of judgment. What is his true abilities not as an artifact user but as an artist? According to a famous artist, he's the true creator of Jean Richard's painting. Isn't he all talk? Yu Jeha is just an unknown and untalented rookie. Ah. Captain Nim, why did he? He promoted it too much. Yu Jeha started to cry. He was so thankful for this opportunity that he could not thank Ju Hian enough even if he had a hundred mouths. He would never forget about what Ju Hian had done for him. But still. This is too big. Yu Jeha was the monarch of fraud who had scammed the entire world but he was just a nameless copycat in the art world. He feared showing his paintings to people because of those false accusations of the past. The first exhibition would have made him anxious no matter what, however this became such a huge ordeal now. There was also a problem. Artists sponsored by Chairman Kwan and the new monarchs will have an exhibition on the same day. The official restorers who are talented artists will all show up. Numerous famous artists from around the world will be there. Which one will more people visit? Who will receive the better evaluation? What the hell is that damn Chairman Kwan thinking? Why the hell is he doing this? Seo Lei clicked her tongue. It must be because of the third change in the prophecy. The first change was an incident the great tomb appearance. The second change were items heirlooms. The third was a location. According to the monarch of fate's prophecy, that location was the art gallery where Yu Jeha was having his personal exhibition. That change was supposed to happen around now as well. That was why the enemies were gathering. They believed that destroying Yu Jeha's personal exhibition was related to the third prophecy. But Yu Jeha, who had no idea about that, was in pain. Ah, uh, this is driving me nuts. It would have been fine if people talked crap about his work but now they might talk crap about Ju Hian as well. I didn't know the princesses would sponsor me too. 
They said they were thankful for him always sending them news about Ju Hian so Ju Hian's fan club pulled some strings as well. Yu Jaeha is a raw or. They also send some extra messages as well. Mr. Jaeha, I look forward to your exhibition. P.S. Please make sure to take a picture of Ju Hian Nim in a suit at the opening ceremony. Returning to the present the critics from around the world have been saying things about him prior to today. He has no talent himself but is being carried by famous people. They were talking crap about him. Those people were going to come and critique his paintings. The critics writing terrible reviews is like throwing crap at the sponsor's face. Then you should have painted them well enough to not have any crap thrown in my face. Right? Ah. Yu Jaeha started shaking while looking at Ju Hian who was standing behind him. I, I need a Chung Shim Huan. A Chung Shim Huan. Siole patted Yu Jaeha's back as he swallowed the Chung Shim Huan down. It's okay, you gave it your best. You do have to be careful of a few things though. All of the monarchs are going to show up. There's been rumors that this exhibition is where the four emperors would appear. T, the four emperors. I don't know if enemies will appear or certain people will become the four emperors though. There will also be hyenas looking to cause trouble on purpose as well as old fogies trying to cut you down before you could sprout. What? But the most important thing is what the Captain Nim did. He put some money down. What? He made a bet with the enemies about whether your paintings or Julian's would sell better. It was a one billion dollar bet. What? One billion dollars? That's one trillion one. Does he have that kind of cash? People started to arrive as he asked that question. There were naturally hyenas mixed in with the crowd. Yu Jaeha staggered while looking but Ju Hian was smiling brightly. Well, it's fine. I won't be angry even if you lose to their artists. That's right. You won't be angry. But you'll kill me. 283 Wait a minute, that person. The critics who had been ripping Jaeha's work to shreds suddenly became anxious. Maybe it was to be expected. Why did it have to be this person? The person standing in front of you Jaeha was the US president. Everybody was talking in shock after the president appeared with the Secret Service. Yu Jaeha was in shock as well. W, why would this guy, he recalled that the US president had a bad relationship with the captain. As a result, he, as Ju Hian's subordinate, should be on the black list as well. Ju Hian's eyes were open wide in shock as well. However, it was so trivial that only his team members would be able to tell he was shocked. Siole quickly whispered. D, do you think he's here to get revenge? He wants to do that here. Well, he's someone who might do that. They did take down General Kira, a monarch working for the US and had looted the artifacts belonging to the US government during that incident at the Pentagon. Although they made it seem as if Chairman Kwan had done it, they were still not cleared of all wrongdoings. There was also that murder incident with Dan's trial. According to rumors, the true culprit who had falsely accused Dan he apparently had some connections with the president. There were many reasons this person would not look kindly upon them. Inaba Taichi, the man that the US president personally sponsors, is on the other side. President Gray was, without a doubt, on the other side. Although he might talk crap about Ujeha's paintings, he would never praise them at all. The tomb raiding team members frowned while the critics were smirking. I guess he came to check out what the enemies have going on. Did he come to talk crap about Ujeha? Well, he probably doesn't want his cherished Inaba to lose. Unfortunately for them, President Gray said the following. Would you be willing to take me on as a sponsor? E, excuse me. I like your painting quite a lot. I'm sure that you'll need a sponsor. No, um, wait. But at that moment there's no need. Ju Hian appeared with a smile on his face. Murderous intent could be felt even though he was smiling. He would probably have told the person to get lost if it wasn't the president actually, he probably would have said it anyway if other people were not around. I am this punk sponsor. He does not need any more sponsors. President Gray smiled brightly and responded. That's not for you to decide, monarch of predation. It ain't your decision either, old man. President Gray frowned while looking at Ju Hian's gaze. 
It was quite threatening. Although Zhu Hien was being gentle with him, the pressure President Gray felt from Zhu Hien's eyes was strong enough to threaten one of the most powerful people in the world. It's at Kira's level no, he's a bit stronger than her. He had confidently tried to start something with Zhu Hien after getting an artifact of his own but it was too much. He definitely is not easy to deal with. He's grown even stronger in such a short period of time. Zhu Hien was much different from how he had been prior to getting the heirloom. It seemed obvious that Chairman Quan and Pandora would be wary of him. He then changed his target. Yu Jeha, I don't think that the monarch of predation is a good sponsor who would help you succeed in the future. Why don't you switch sponsors? Yu Jeha's eyes opened wide. Of course, I would be honored to be sponsored by the President of the United Ugg. Yu Jeha almost suffocated because of Zhu Hien's dominance. Zhu Hien's crow looked ready to rip apart and eat Jeha's phoenix. Yu Jeha was crying internally as he responded. I, I'm sorry, I can't do that but thank you for your kind words. President Gray smiled and turned around. Feel free to come look for me if you ever change your mind. Why the hell would he change his mind? Get lost. Zhu Hien became angry while Yu Jeha sniffled once the president was gone. Damn it, he would have been my first true sponsor. Why did you stop him up? You dumbass, do you really think that guy has pure intentions about sponsoring you? It's to steal you away. To steal you away. Siole smacked Jeha on the head. He's so excited that he lost his wit. Julian chimed in as well. Yes. They don't need the artist Yu Jeha, they need the restorer and monarch Yu Jeha. The US had lost one of the four emperors thanks to Zhu Hien. The US also lost the number one title for artifacts in the world. The current strong faction was the CR Alliance. China was to be expected a leader thanks to having Zhen Kai Yuan there were also the European nations, Middle East, Korean, and Japan using artifacts to quickly become a strong nation. Most artifact users were associated with a country. If we don't have any homegrown monarchs, we can only steal them away from others. Zhu Hien's tomb raiding team was special in that none of them were aligned with a country. They would probably have been buried or plucked away a long time ago if they didn't have the protection of the Holtons, who had the political and economic power to even destroy the U.S. Army. Their past life was proof of how they would have ended up. They were an extremely desirable prey in many ways. Now that the entry restriction artifacts were destroyed, there were quite a lot of hyenas who were salivating to drag Jeha to their country. Nice to meet you. This is who I am. Hello sir. They couldn't approach Zhu Hien because he was too scary so they were trying their luck with the others. Your painting was magnificent. Please look kindly upon our corporation. That kind of conversation happened over and over. Yu Jeha gasped. Nobody came to see the paintings. He really meant it. The nicer ones would at least peek at the paintings before trying to chat with him. Zhu Hien said something as Yu Jeha sulked. It's not like you didn't expect this. The others whispered to each other after hearing that. I think it's just because the Captain Nim turned it into too big of an issue. It might have been better if it was a small exhibition with no publicity. Then the people who came might have come for the art itself. Zhu Hien started to sweat after hearing those comments. However, Yu Jeha shook his head. No guys, I'm truly thankful that the Captain Nim even gave me such an opportunity. How else would I get to do a personal exhibition like this? He was extremely lucky to have such an amazing opportunity. Yu Jeha started chuckling. It's okay. I really don't mind if I don't sell any of my paintings. I wasn't expecting to sell any of them anyway. He was happy enough having people see his paintings. Everybody started to sulk. Zhu Hien called out the doggies as if he had made up his mind. I'll be back after getting rid of all the useless fools. The rest of the team wanted to help as well. I'll use my ghosts to kick them out. I can use my thunderbolts. I have my knife. Then I can use my power of destitution. Yu Jeha gasped and shouted toward them. Egu. It's fine. You guys not doing anything is helping me out. You're going to make everybody run away. The critics were laughing quite hard watching this take place. 
They had come after being bribed by Chairman Quan's side, however the painting really sucks. Even if selling paintings is important, anybody who buys them is just doing it to earn his favor. There's nobody buying it because they like the art itself. This happened quite frequently in the art world. People would buy paintings from celebrities or the children of celebrities to network with them. It's the same for Yu Jeha. He was one of the many who would disappear without a trace. Well, he might be able to continue his life as an artist if someone in a position of power or a wealthy sponsor liked his art and told him to continue. He should be happy to be a monarch. He can continue promoting himself as an artist thanks to the attention he gets as a monarch. Maybe he can restore people's artifacts and force them to buy his paintings in response. Ha ha ha. Alright, we got our money so let's go write our reviews. Ujeha's personal exhibition is the focus of the entire world right now. I guess we can title it, Terrible, Horrible. As the critics were about to head out M, is it possible to purchase this painting? E, excuse me. There was one more viewer standing in front of Ujeha. She was an older woman. Your paintings were all so great that it took me some time to look at all of them. The woman smiled brightly. I want to hang them at my school, is it possible to buy them? Ah, uh, maybe you're not selling at all. I'm sorry, I've never bought a painting before. Silence filled the room for a moment. The woman who looked like a professor really seemed to like his painting. The woman waved her hand after seeing Yu Jeha blankly standing there. Um, excuse me. Yu Jeha jumped up from the ground. T, thank you very much. Can I buy it? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, of course you can buy it. You, um, please put this sticker next to the painting you like to show your intent to purchase and an employee will help you with the process. Thank you. I'll make sure to stop by again if you have any more exhibitions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yu Jeha bowed to thank her over and over. He looked like he wanted to cry but he couldn't help but smile. I sold one for the first time in my life. This was the first time he had ever sold a painting. His own painting and not something he had forged had sold. He was extremely happy about that fact. However, it didn't end there. People started to gather around Jeha one after another. Are you the artist? The paintings were so great. The people who were true patrons of the art and not here for their own benefits came over to ask about the paintings and wanted to know when he would be having his next exhibition. The number of people wanting to purchase his paintings grew as well with intent to purchase stickers being placed all around the room. There was one on every painting now. The rest of the team was happy to see this happen. The employees were shocked as well. Holy crap, he's already sold that many. This is just the first day of the exhibition. All of the brochures have sold as well. We asked the print shop to print some more. The critics dropped their jaws in shock. They could tell what had happened. The people who came to look were buying Jeha's paintings as well as the brochures that had an explanation about each piece. These people weren't as crazed as the people in the Western Hall but people really seemed to like the pieces. That meant that these were good paintings. As they were watching with disbelief the pieces that the critics talked so much crap about are selling like wildfire. Hey, this is a major scoop. The reporters who had come after sniffing a story rushed over to the critics with excitement. The paintings you said were terrible are selling quite well. Could you please make a comment? Why do you think this is happening? The critics started to frown. It's because the paintings are cheap. He's selling them for almost no profit. Excuse me? Cheap? Ah, it is cheaper compared to the works of famous people but they are priced normally for any new artists. To say that he is selling them cheap to sell more is a bit. These prices are nothing to the rich. But a lot of regular people are buying them as well. The critics didn't know what to say. The popularity of a piece and its quality are separate issues. Just because a piece is popular with the masses doesn't mean that it is a good piece of art. They gave excuses while secretly grinding their teeth. We weren't wrong. Those morons who don't know anything by his crappy paintings because they think ITLL make them look more cultured. Those dumbass are buying it with herd mentality because someone bought one. 
They don't know anything and just think it's great. Hey, did you hear? Apparently it's going pretty well for you Jeha. The five artists selling paintings on the west side were hearing about Jeha's situation. The patrons who had run away had returned and they were having no trouble selling their paintings. Yu Jeha has had so many people wanting to buy the paintings that he had to change it to auction style. He is having trouble because he can't answer when his next exhibition is going to be. What the hell did he draw? The five artists looked anxious seeing the curators all heading to the Eastern Hall. Are you sure that the son of a bitch didn't use Da Vinci's artifact? Inaba Taichi just started laughing. They're just interested because it is a monarch's painting. They probably think they could resell it for profit. Damn pigs. But such tricks won't work in front of my master. What? Your master master Andrew. He was a famous artist who was currently serving as a critic as well. Master Andrew is here. Yeah. He came to see my paintings. He said he might as well see you Jehas while he's here. All of them started to laugh. Wow, he's screwed. Master Andrew is extremely picky. He's so blunt with his critiques. He's also extremely influential. One word from him and a person's image can plummet to the ground. He was also pretty close to Jean Richard, wasn't he? He was upset that Yu Jeha threw Jean Richard in prison. Ah, Yu Jeha is done for. Andrew and other famous artists from around the world were entering Yu Jeha's exhibition hall at that moment. Critics, curators, reporters, all of them, including the art merchants, turned toward them. Master Andrew. Wow, pretty much all of the famous painters are here. They went around looking at Ujeha's paintings. Even the general public was whispering. Some of these artists were so famous that even people who knew nothing about art knew who they were. The critics who had been talking crap about Ujeha approached them with excitement. Masters, what do you think about these paintings? It's just a copy of Jean Richards, right? Andrew, who had been staring at a painting, frowned as he made a single comment. How stupid. Right? That's what we thought. Yes. You guys are extremely stupid. Excuse me. 284 This was one of the world's most famous artists. It wasn't just him. Wow, pretty much all of the famous artists are here. Maybe it was because it was such an eye-catching exhibition, but the famous artists, critics, curators, and reporters were all here. There were loads of art merchants as well. Holy shit, I should ask for an autograph. The opposing artists became anxious after seeing them appear. That master is really here. Yeah. He's my master. He said he might as well see you Jehaz while he's here. Wow, then he's screwed. Master Andrew is extremely picky. He's so blunt with his critiques. I've never seen him praise anyone. He's also extremely influential. He's done for if Master Andrew gives the word. Wasn't he close to Jean Richard? He was upset that Yu Jeha threw Jean Richard in prison. The critics and then talking crap about Yu Jeha approached them with excitement. The critics questioned their ears. Had they heard wrong? Master Andrew, what did you? Are you fucking blind? I asked if you guys were blind. They were shocked. They never expected for Master Andrew to say that to them. Andrew just snorted at them. You guys must be crazy. How can you say such crap in front of this genius talent? The critics almost fainted. Are you praising you Jeha's paintings right now? Master Andrew, you are praising someone. This was someone who was famous for not even praising his own disciple. This person was praising you Jeha. But why? They became anxious and whispered to him. Master Andrew, what are you doing? You need your disciple to win as well. That would make Andrew's own fame go up and help him get richer through sponsorship. I also heard that you hate you Jeha. Andrew was glaring at the critics as if he loathed them. It is true that I hate you Jeha. He had been extremely close to you Jeha's instructor, Jean Richard. He had heard that Jean Richard had plagiarized you Jeha's painting, but was that really plagiarism? It was quite frequent in their field. People claimed someone else stole their work all the time. 
That was why he had looked down on Yu Jeha. He believed that a fool with no talent had thrown his own instructor in prison to get famous. It's obvious who the true artist is. Andrew had thought that Richard's plagiarized painting had been great, but these paintings made Jean Richard's plagiarism look terrible. That was how scary Jeha's talent was. Quite a lot of different concepts were already in the world but this punk was creating a new concept of art. There were still flaws and he still had a long way to go, but he had the aura of a master. He had the same aura as the masters who had developed the art world throughout history. That was probably the reason. He didn't approve of Jean Richard's actions, but he could understand the reasoning behind it. Even I want to steal it. Jehez's talent was so great that it was scary. He even thought that Jean Richard had been crazy for trying to bury such a talented person. Anyway, critique properly if you guys have eyes that can see. This bastard is someone who will make a mark in this world. The critics could only stand there with their jaws down in shock. The Western Hall turned into frenzy after they heard what had happened. What did you say? Master Andrew said that. His disciple Inaba looked completely out of it while the other artists couldn't believe what they had just heard. He's never praised me even once. That son of a bitch, are you sure he didn't use Da Vinci's artifact? More people rushed into Ujeha's exhibition. The critics weren't laughing anymore. They had come after being bribed by Chairman Quan's side, however they had been publicly scolded by Master Andrew. Are you sure that Master Andrew wasn't a fake that he created? That's possible. As they stood around in disbelief at what had happened the exhibition that had caught the attention of the world came to an end. The rest of the team smiled while watching Jeha being so happy about a successful exhibition. As for Ju Hien's important bet Eastern Exhibit Hall, Yu Jeha, 47 paintings sold out. Western Exhibit Hall, Inaba and 14 other artists, 62 paintings sold out. Both sides had sold all of their paintings. But both selling out didn't matter. Eastern Exhibit Hall, Ujeha, 10, 0, 0 brochures sold sold out Western Exhibit Hall, Inaba and 14 others, 1,970 brochures sold. The number of brochures sold was so different. It shows how memorable Ujeha's paintings were. The electronic voting system they had set up outside the exhibit halls was the final blow. People who had visited today were asked to vote on which side's paintings they liked better. Ujeha, 41,580 votes 83% Inaba and 14 others, 8,420 votes 17% The voting was quite one-sided as well. The sponsors fell into shock and Jeha's opposing artists could not close their mouths. W, what the hell? They were people who used artifacts belonging to art masters of history. They already had an overwhelming fandom and they had so many different styles between the 15 of them that they had a clear advantage to sell more paintings. Having more options is always better after all. So how the hell did Ujeha win? That bastard Ujeha is capable of defeating the auras of past masters. The people who purchased the brochures and paintings were also the issue. The prices of the brochures and paintings had been similar to keep things fair, however almost 90% of Ujeha's stuff were bought by laymen. But 90% of ours were purchased by our sponsors. They couldn't say anything. On the other hand, Ujeha was shaking with joy as he ran toward Juhian. I won. We need to check the voting the next few days but Captain Nim, you won the bet. But Juhian didn't praise him. In fact, forget praising him Tisk. I didn't think you would really win. Ju Hien started to grumble. I thought you might lose so I did some other bets aside from the ones with the heirloom. Ah, I satisfied the conditions for the tomb appearance but I lost a ton of money. What? What do you mean? What else? There's no way that there would be no online gambling for such a big issue. Yu Jeha almost had a mental breakdown. Then Captain Nim, you bet that those bastards would win. How much? One hundred million dollars. Holy shit, he bet so much. Ju Hien wasn't the only one. Ah, uh, I was wrong. There goes five million one. Vice Captain, five million one is nothing. I lost a fifty million one deposit. Man, why the hell did that pushover have to win? Ah, uh, I also lost ten zero zero one. 
the team members were all ripping up some papers. Yu Jaha grabbed the back of his neck in anger. You shitheads. You guys should have still bet on me. You traitors. What? The odds have you at an overwhelming loss. There were people all around who were saying that they had lost money. But Ju Hian turned around as if it was nothing. Well, one hundred billion dollars is fine. Wow, you truly are loaded. You make it sound like it was nothing. No. It's not my money. It was the money I was going to give Jaha as salary. Yu Jaha grabbed Ju Hian by the collar after hearing that. Are you out of your fucking mind? What the hell did you do with my salary? Why did you bet on them? You told me you won't be paid. It's fine since I just used money I saved by not paying you. Damn it. But still. I thought you said you trusted me. Huh. You guys are all too much. Yu Jaha was disappointed. Ow, I should have bet on myself if I knew it would be like this. He could have easily gobbled up a couple billion dollars based on the odds. Of course, there were some winners as well. Um, ah uh, I got it right. The team members all gasped while looking at Irene who was waving a piece of paper around. You bet on Jaha. Uh, was I not supposed to do that? Of course she could do that. Why don't we go eat out with that money? We need to make sure we are well fed before the tomb appearance happens around here. Since our pushover worked so hard. Yu Jaha snorted at them. Whatever. I don't eat with traders. I made a ton of money today so I'm going to go enjoy a nice steak on my own. I'm going to spurge properly. Siole tilted her head in confusion. You're going to spurge with the money you made today. Did you forget the contents of the contract you updated yourself? W. What? Chapter 285 you changed the profits to 10 o'clock for the captain Nim saying that you were thankful enough to be able to have an exhibition. Although it was impossible to know what Jaha had been thinking at that time Jaha turned pale after remembering that fact. I sort of remember doing that while I was drunk Juhian mischievously acted shocked. Oh my, then all that money is mine. Then I guess the profits from the brochure sales for the next few days are all mine as well. No, wait. Awesome. I'll bet again tomorrow with that money. Ah, I'm screwed. W, wait, Captain Nim. Let's modify the contract. Please be generous and give me 8 colon 2, no, even 9 colon 1 is fine. Captain Nim. While Ju Hian was messing with Jaha Bang. Jaha's son Bei Julian was huffing as he threw a brochure. Facing such indignity on the first day was one thing but there was something that angered him more than anything else. He heard such praises from Master Andrew. Julian respected and looked up to Master Andrew. He had even switched schools to be able to learn from Andrew. But even he had been ruthlessly ripped apart by Andrew. That inferior bastard who was always ranked last. He took out his evil god artifact and Michelangelo's artifact and started heading somewhere. I didn't want to use this method as fellow artists, but I have no choice. Yu Jaha had da Vinci's artifact. But even the great Leonardo da Vinci was said to possibly be jealous of the young Michelangelo in his twenties. Although they lived in the same time period, their styles, personalities, and generations were different. The point was that rival artifacts are scary. They could make each other go berserk to trouble the user. This should be able to get rid of your artistic talents as well. Jaha would lose the title of greatest restorer. Taste my evil god artifact first. He activated his artifact. The effects were about to show right away. Jaha, who was signing things for fans he had met at the restaurant, felt a pain on his hand. Ugh. The rope tilted its head in confusion once Jaha dropped a pen. What is it? What is it? You Jaha tilted his head. Is it because I stayed up all night because I was nervous? Yu Jaha started chatting with people again once the pain disappeared but Julian was smiling. That was just a taste. As he was about to use the artifact for real puke. Someone ruthlessly stabbed Julian's heart. You, ugh. It was a sharp blade. A holy knight wearing armor had pierced right through Julian's heart. 
This was no ordinary holy knight. It's a painting. It was a holy knight who had been a painting but had now materialized. Julian was coughing up blood as he noticed the person who had created this knight. That person was across from him. T, that bastard. Julian fell over. An unexpected person appeared in front of him. Sorry, but you can't do it. It was Louis. I'm the one who will take care of you Jeha and the others. Louis calmly grabbed Julian's artifacts. One of them was Michelangelo's artifact. Julian could see that Louis had the other artist's artifacts as well. Julian's bloodshot eyes glared at Louis. You, you son of a bitch. Louis smiled brightly at him. What the hell? You're still not dead even though your heart was pierced. I guess these fake heirlooms still make you superhuman. Louis motioned with his hand as he said that. Well, superhumans aren't immortal. You'll die at some point. The holy knights raised his blade high into the air. How stupid. What? Julian is dead. His corpse was found at the art gallery. Juhian tilted his head after hearing this unexpected story. It was now the third day of Ujeha's exhibition. He had looked around the exhibition hall for a few days and was heading there to do the same today. It wasn't because he was concerned about his subordinate's exhibition. It was because that place was said to be where the third change would occur. Looking back at his past experiences, this should be where the artifact appears. The way to summon that tomb was through a fight where winner and loser were already guaranteed. Juhian had done the bet with the heirlooms in advance because he had full faith that Jeha would win. He wanted that condition to be fulfilled prior to his punky subordinate's exhibition so that there would be no bloodshed there. It seemed to have worked out as he planned as there were signs of a tomb appearance happening all around the exhibition hall. It should happen by the end of the exhibition at this rate. He didn't know what would happen but it was guaranteed to be a big issue. The third change had happened in a special artifact battle arena in the past. The monarch of evangelism subordinates and chairman Kwan's TKBM subordinates had fought a long battle there. Juhian's team had not participated. Chairman Nim, there will be a tomb appearance at that battle arena. Ju Hien had read the tumblif and informed Chairman Quan about it. His team just waited until the tomb appearance happened and immediately aimed for the artifact. They made it through the terrible traps and grabbed the artifact but he had no idea what it was. Why? Only someone with a heirloom could touch it. It was an artifact that only monarchs could use. Yu Jeha had transported it and Chairman Quan took it away before Ju Hien could even find out what it was. What he did know was that Chairman Quan gained significant power after that incident and earned the Four Emperors title while absorbing numerous other excavation teams he also rapidly traversed down the path of the monarch among monarchs. But that was all in the past. As for this life a corpse was found in the art gallery. Ju Hien, who had bought a boxed lunch for Jeha and was eating lunch with the others, couldn't help but frown. Is there another bastard who knows the condition to awaken this tomb? Had it been a coincidence or was it intentional? Ju Hien thought for a moment before asking. And? The person who died was Julian? Yes, I think he was murdered. I think an artifact user killed him. Ju Hien's expression turned serious after hearing that hypothesis. Julian was shocked to see Ju Hien like this. I've never seen him thinking so hard. Had Julian been that important of a person? An anxious Julian quickly apologized. Sorry. I would have paid more attention if I knew you were concerned about him. Ju Hien looked confused. No. Who the hell is Julian? That's what he was thinking about. You really don't know who that is? Why do I have to remember a guy's name? Hey, you. No, I'm joking. I wouldn't forget about the bastard who messed with our pushover. But who the hell was he? I only know his name. Ilya shared the information. Julian. Age 29, graduated from an Ivy League art department and is the top official restorer. He is the oldest son of three with two younger sisters. His parents are financial executives, he changes girlfriends every three months, is left-handed, and has a peanut allergy. Julian opened his eyes wide after hearing Ilya rattle off these pieces of information. 
The fact that their operative Ilya knew so much about a person was never good news. Ilya, did you? Ilya seemed extremely upset about this accusation. How rude. I wouldn't leave evidence behind like some amateur. I heard that the killer looted all of his artifacts, isn't there a more suspicious person? An anxious Julian turned toward Juhian. Then CO Juhian, did you ugh? Juhian kicked Julian. Hey. I may be a terrible person but I wouldn't kill someone for artifacts. Well, that's true. Just to confirm, it was neither of you. I don't like killing in the first place. It's too easy of an ending for them. I wanted to make him crash his car but the captain said not to do that because the poor lamp post did nothing wrong. Yes. You should throw him down the Himalayan mountains instead. These guys both need to go to prison. Julian grabbed the back of his neck at these two who were joking but still saying such vicious things as if it was nothing. Anyway, we can't just brush it aside. I know. Even if he was a fake king, he was still a monarch with an evil god artifact. It shouldn't have been that easy. That's one thing, but also. Juhian started to frown as he got down to the main point. I need to know whether it was a coincidence or there is a bastard who knows about the conditions of this tomb. Something happened at that moment. You want to know about that? Juhian heard a voice under the chair he was sitting on. They all inspected the chair in shock. However, there was nothing underneath the chair. They anxiously looked around but they didn't see anything either. But they could still hear the voice. I'm the one who killed that artist. It was a voice that they recognized. Isn't that Louis's voice? It definitely was. This was Ujeha's fake son, Louis Martin's voice. Juhian snorted after hearing the familiar voice. I thought you ran away and decided to stick with that old moron. They found out after the exhibition yesterday. They wondered where he had run off to but they had laughed while seeing him smirking with the other artists. But you killed your own ally. You should thank me. That bastard was aiming for your restorer. He could have lost his restoration ability. Artistic talent was required to use restoration artifacts. As a result, not being able to draw would mean that he would not be able to restore artifacts. Juhian responded to Louis. I guess you developed some love for your daddy while you guys were together. Louis stopped talking for a moment before sneering at them. Not at all. It's because there's someone else who needs to take care of you guys. Someone else? Chairman Quan didn't get involved with this. Louis seemed to be informing them about something. That man is looking for a restorer. You're a mediocre artist too so you should be able to restore things. Why don't you do it? Well, I guess there's no way that you would be capable of doing that. Louis was silent for a moment before he shouted as if he had made up his mind. Hurry over. Otherwise, all of the restorers here will die. Ciole felt something at that moment and urgently warned Juhian. Captain Nim. There's a strong aura. It was the aura of something that was about to explode. Fuck, where the hell is the artifact? There was a bright light while they struggled to locate it. The impact of the explosion would be strong enough to blow away the whole restaurant. It's too late to use a defense type artifact. Flash. They clenched their eyes as the artifact exploded. But at that moment, they peeked after not hearing anything or being blown away. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. The restaurant had not blown away. Nothing was broken either. All they could see in front of them was Juhian's chaotic crow's aura. Juhian was sticking his tongue out as if he ate something bad. Damn it, that tasted so bad. The team members gasped as they watched. Did he absorb that before it exploded? Juhian was extremely agitated right now. What kind of artifact tastes so shitty? I wonder what it tastes like. Well, it didn't matter. They quickly headed toward the exhibit. Once they could see the art gallery building Captain Nim, the tomb appearance signs. Siole urgently turned toward Juhian. Juhian could see the messages popping up as well. The precursors of the tomb appearance are appearing at the art gallery. A stronger condition than the originally met condition has been fulfilled, accelerating the tomb appearance. 
An SS-grade artifact is about to show itself. Juhian frowned and made a call. Chapter, 286 Buz. Damn it. Yu Jiha frowned while looking at his phone that was buzzing on the ground. The name that popped up on the phone was Artifact File. But Jiha could not pick up. Damn it, I need to pick it up. He needed to give Juhian what he managed to gain. Those crazy bastards. There were only corpses on the floor of the building where Jeha was hiding. The corpses all belonged to artists who use restoration artifacts. There were also the staff and visitors who had come to take a look. Those people were currently hiding while shaking in fear. The corpses all belonged to artists who use restoration artifacts. Julian and other official restorers had been displaying their paintings against Jeha. However, they were all murdered by an unwelcome visitor at the art gallery. It happened about an hour ago. In the middle of lunchtime Juhian's team stopped observing the precursors for a tomb appearance and had just left saying they would go get some lunch. About ten minutes after they left her, Yu Jiha's eyes opened wide at the person who had appeared. Maybe it was to be expected. Captain Nim. You're already back. That was right. Juhian had appeared in front of Jiha. It was odd though because he had a gentle smile on his face unlike the usual Juhian. Wow, you're back in ten minutes. I guess my lunch is just something from the convenience store. It was at that moment. Ah, Captain Nim smiling like this looks really shitty. Ha. Huh. Yu Jiha was shocked. It was because Juhian had read his mind. Did I just imagine it? Nope, Juhian really did say that. Based on that smile, the Captain Nim from 2040 is better. Boom. Yu Jiha ran into a table and dropped the pile of brochures in his hand. He was frowning. This punk. Is he, is he reading my thoughts? Yu Jiha scoffed. This is not the Captain Nim. He could tell. Although he couldn't tell them apart because the face and voice was the same, he could now tell that this was not his captain. The proof was what the Juhian lookalike said next. The captain from 2040? That's interesting. Did you use an artifact to see the future? If it's not that. He reached his hand toward Jeha and smirked. Do you have some memories of the future? Yu Jeha got the chills and smacked his arm away. This son of a bitch. How dare you pretend to be the Captain Nim? As Yu Jeha grabbed Da Vinci's artifact I thought you weren't here to start a fight. Someone unexpected appeared in front of them. This guy was a U.S. Army officer. They had met this colonel briefly when they went to the Pentagon in the past. The Captain Nim didn't like him because he gave off the same aura as Chairman Quan. Ah, his name was Colonel Matthew. But he was not a colonel anymore. He's a general now. What? That's no normal rate of promotion. Matthew had a dangerous looking smile on his face as he approached Jeha. I became a fan after seeing your paintings. I once wanted to walk the path of art so it was very memorable. I'm scared. The dominance resonating from this bastard was extremely chaotic even though he was hiding it as best as he could. People like this were completely opposite from people like Jeha who mainly used affinity. In fact, this guy seemed even scarier than Juhian. But Yu Jeha did not submit and had a twisted smile on his face. I'm sure that you're not just here for an autograph. What business did you have with me? Matthew, Hitler's artifact user, handed something to him. Will you please take a look at this? It was an artifact. Yu Jeha gasped after looking at the artifact. That was to be expected. Goebbels's artifact. He could tell for real now. It was the artifact that Zhu Hian had taken from the monarch of gossip in the past. He had destroyed it down to the core and stuffed it somewhere. He knew that the debris had disappeared but it had flown to this guy. It's not weird since he seems to be using a Nazi artifact. Hitler calmly added on. I don't know who did that to it, but nobody in the world is able to restore it. Of course not. Do you know who destroyed it? Hitler smirked as if he already knew who was responsible for it. It is an extremely precious artifact for me. I know it might be rude to ask, but could you please restore these for me? Yu Jeha couldn't help but laugh. 
Does he think that I am crazy? Why would I restore that for him? He didn't know what artifact Matthew had, but someone with a Nazi artifact looking for Goebbels it was obvious what he was planning. I'm sorry but ah. Ujeha screamed as he was about to reject Matthew. There were terrible screams throughout the exhibit hall as well. Ah. Blood spurted as if there was a fountain of blood and something fell on top of that blood. Others in the area couldn't believe what had just happened. Ah ah. Ujeha fell over after feeling a terrible pain. His left hand had been cut off. You, ugh. Hitler and Gungyi, the man who looked like Ju Hian, said something to Jeha as he was in pain. You'll die if you don't fix the artifact. Ujeha just sneered at them. Retards. He had the Phoenix artifact. His hand should restore itself if he waited a little. It was not being restored. The heirloom was not responding to him. Why? Hitler, who seemed to be the cause of that, had a cold smile on his face. You should be a good boy and restore the artifact if you want to keep your other hand. You need it to keep painting these wonderful paintings. This son of a bitch. Should I kill him? Jeha could tell what had happened. This bastard's ability was making his heirloom's ability disappear. I need to get out of the art gallery first. Yu Jeha tried to run, but ugh. Where do you think you're going? Yu Jeha scoffed in disbelief as he was being held back. I'm not interested so ask one of the other restorers. The official restorers are quite skilled, you know. The two bastards smirked. I got rid of all of them because they were useless. I cut off all of their useless hands. Take it as an honor. I put quite a lot of value in C.O. Juhian's perspective. I think that his restorer should be useful. Now then, if you want to keep your remaining hand. Ah, get lost. I've already been claimed. I don't fix anything without the Captain Nim's orders. Hitler laughed at this response. That's disappointing. Jeha screamed as soon as Hitler said that. His remaining right hand had been cut off as well. Hitler then addressed Gung Yi. Call Goebbels and tell him to take care of the witnesses. That this bastard and all of the artists here with you. That was what had happened here. Jeha had found an opportunity to escape but these crazy bastards really did seem to have killed all of the restorers in here. He was currently hiding in the men's restroom. Shit, I need to hurry up and get out of here. Damn it, my stupid phoenix. Yu Jeha frowned while looking at his two stumps where his hands should be. He managed to wrap things around it to control the blood loss but he may never be able to draw again. It's fine. He had already fulfilled his lifelong dream thanks to the Captain Nim helping him have this private exhibition. It was painful but he would be fine. However I'm worried that I can't restore artifacts for the team. If all else fails, he'll beg Chloe for help. Anyway, he tried to pick up Juhian's call. Damn it. He managed to grab the phone but it kept falling down because he had no hands. As an annoyed Jeha tried to pick it up again crunch. Someone stomped on the phone. He raised his head to see a pretty lady. We can't have you contact C.O. Juhian. Yu Jeha started sweating while looking at her smile and quietly managed to mumble. Ahem, uh -huh, this is the men's restroom. The lady seemed to be a career woman in her early thirties. Goebbels, who looked like a reporter, smiled at him. Should I stick your hands back on for you? It'd be great if you became our personal restorer and restored my artifacts and this artifact too. Goebbels waved something around. The artifact looked like a fossil. He had never seen an artifact shaped like this before even in his past life, which meant it must be a new kind of artifact. He probably wouldn't know what it was unless he restored it. The lady smiled like an evil Nazi executive who had become famous for their evil deeds at Auschwitz. Or maybe I should just turn you into a retard so that you can't run away. Don't move. You'll die if you do. As the woman stepped on Ujeha and tried to stick an artifact syringe into him crack. The needle of the syringe suddenly broke. She was wondering what was going on when she heard an unfamiliar voice behind her. Get lost. I'm the one who will kill him. The evil lady gasped. The person who appeared was none other than Jack the Ripper. 
She was looking at Goebbels with an angry gaze. She seemed to have been aiming to take Jeha's life all this time. She must have a grudge against him. Jeha was the reason she was caught by Ju Hian's group after all. She had aimed to take Jeha's life many times since then. Goebbels was confused at what she had just heard. Wait, I thought she was on his side but she wants to kill him. Hold on, I'm trying to kill him too. Doesn't that mean that we are on the same side? No. Nina calmly raised her knife up. It's only meaningful if I kill him. W, what? The knife struck down. Clang. Eek. The lady barely dodged it but the sink wasn't so lucky. Fuck. Nina mumbled about her condition not being good and frowned after seeing that Goebbels had dodged. Yu Jeha was sweating bullets while looking at her. Nina was very strong. She was uselessly strong even though she didn't even have an evil god artifact. What? Say that again. General. Ju Hian was near the art gallery entrance now. It seemed as if the tomb appearance had already happened. That might be why Jeha was not picking up his phone. Ju Hian tried to rush into the building but why are there so many useless shits? There were terrorists standing in Ju Hian's way. They were subordinates of the Monarch of Evangelism from the Middle East. He had wondered if the Monarch of Evangelism was here as well but that didn't seem to be the case. In addition, he had heard that the one who had walked in was that wicked colonel he had met at the Pentagon. It faintly smelled like the Monarch of Evangelism's artifact. But a general in the U.S. Department of Defense was a spy working with terrorists. The U.S. is so dumb. Ju Hian snorted and continued walking toward the entrance. A message popped up in front of him. Danger. There is a dangerous aura roaming around the tomb appearance area. It is recommended that you do not enter. Ju Hian scoffed. What the hell? Ju Hian completely ignored it and continued walking without any hesitation. The enemies frowned while looking at him. It's the real CEO Ju Hian. What the hell? It's not the Mithraya. They seem to have gotten Ju Hian confused with Gung Yi, the monarch of the heavens. They truly did look like twins. It doesn't matter. Get rid of him. There was a loud explosion as they said that. Bang! Chapter 287 The ground cracked open and numerous soldiers of the afterlife appeared. And then who is going to take care of who? He had a vicious smile on his face as the army of the afterlife attacked the enemies. Bo 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 boom. Ah. The terrorists tried to escape but Anubis's army of the dead was too much for them. Fuck. Don't be afraid. Kill all who oppose us. There are only six of them. The terrorists started attacking back. There were thousands of them. Sweep them away with quantity. They fired rifles, threw Molotov cocktails, and did everything they could to attack. There were even artifacts that made people fall asleep or get sick. But Ju Hian's team didn't seem to care at all. Forget caring, they humph, do they think we're useless? They need to be at the captain's level for us to be afraid. They used their artifacts to defend against attacks coming from all sides. They then urgently turned toward Ju Hian. Captain. Leave them to us and go. Don't waste your strength here and huh. Captain. Julian gasped after looking at Ju Hian. It couldn't be helped, since burp, I ate too much. Julian grabbed the back of his head after seeing Ju Hian in a bit of pain. He ate some artifacts already. Wow, hey. Stop eating random stuff. Ju Hian ignored him and walked toward the entrance of the art gallery. The enemies became anxious and shouted. He's trying to go inside. Contact the general. Tell him to hurry up and remove his abilities. It's fine. They said this bastard won't destroy things like this. But at that moment bang. Ju Hian destroyed a wall of the art gallery and nonchalantly walked in. He then started to frown. He could smell an artifact as well as a disgusting scent as soon as he walked in. The smell of blood. Captain Nim, this. Seo Lei, who had followed him inside, pointed at something. It was a hand. It was a very familiar hand. This makes no sense. 
what do you mean he killed all of our restorers? The people who were working with Chairman Kwan and the monarchs of Pandora were throwing a fit. That was to be expected. All of their official restorers at the gallery had been murdered. More importantly, the culprit was a U.S. general. That bastard had taken their money and then stabbed them in the back. What the hell is he doing to his fellow Pandora allies? His evil god artifact is Hitler's artifact. No wonder he's so shitty are you sure he hasn't gone crazy? What does the US president have to say about this? The Pandora employees responded. It seems as if the US has betrayed Pandora. They ran off with over half of the high-grade artifact users associated with Pandora. Pandora's monarchs were shocked at this revelation. Over half of the high-grade artifact users. That was enough to conquer a country or two. Of course, Pandora had been suppressing people from doing that, but if they betrayed Pandora and went to the US is the US planning on using them to declare supremacy? That crazy old fart who was the US president was someone who would do something like that. But there were two people in the room who were smiling in secret. They were Chairman Kwan and Kwan Hyuk Su. It's going according to plan. The admin they had sent to the exhibition was Hitler. Kwan Hyuk Su had fought against the monarch of evangelism in the Middle East before and that was when he had discovered Colonel Matthew. After realizing that Matthew was the monarch of evangelism spy, Kwan Hyuk Su had stealthily made a suggestion to Chairman Kwan. Let's join hands with Hitler. It was obvious that Hitler would have quite the synergy effect if he got Goebbels's artifact and other Nazi artifacts. Furthermore, the art gallery where Yu Jeha was having his exhibition was where the third change was to happen. Seo Juhian, die by Hitler's hands. His anger was obviously directed at Juhian. That bastard will really die this time. Captain Nim this. Seo Lei picked up the cut off left hand and the team members following behind her stiffened up. That hand no way. At first glance, it would be difficult to tell whose hand it was. However, the artifact ring on the finger this is definitely Jeha's. No, that's not possible. Julian turned to see that Juhian was frowning. But Juhian was just finding the situation to be odd. Even though we call him a pushover, he's not really a pushover. He wouldn't be defeated so easily like this. A message appeared as if to explain what had happened. Your artifact's abilities are disappearing because of an aura of deletion. Ju Hien looked at his hand. He could see the crow's aura that had been coming out slowly disappearing. Is that why it told me not to come in here? Who could be doing this? As he had that thought if you're looking for the owner of that hand, you don't need to worry. He heard an unfamiliar voice. Ju Hien turned around to see the Mithraya, his lookalike. The Mithraya had a cheeky smirk on his face. We cut that bastard's hand off but he's not dead ugh. He groaned in pain. Something flew up in the air before falling to the ground. Plop. What fell down was a pair of hands. They were the triumphantly smack-talking Gung Ye's hands. Gung Ye's face turned pale. Ah, ah. He fell to the ground in pain after losing both hands in an instant. However, Ju Hien was just viciously glaring at him after chopping off his hands. Did you do that to him? Xiang Yu's sword was giving off a murderous aura in Ju Hien's hand. Gung Yi swore with bloodshot eyes. Why, you bastard, how dare you take my hands ugh? Ju Hien kicked him this time. Pow! Gung Yi was rolling on the ground after being kicked by Ju Hien. Ju Hien then stepped on Gung Ye's head and smirked. Why don't you change that face of yours first? It's annoying to see a shitty guy like you with my face. Ah. Uh. Ju Hien stomped on the face and Gung Ye's face turned into someone else's face. He was actually Tao, the monarch of popularity who had suddenly disappeared in the past. This was the guy who had tried to use his fans to get rid of Ju Hien. You bastard. Oh, it's my downgraded version. This is great. You'll pay the price for messing with my team member. Gung Yi screamed as Ju Hien released his aura. It was at that moment. How about you stop there, CO Ju Hien? Hitler appeared in front of them. The SS grade artifact that was creating this tomb reacted strongly once Ju Hien and Hitler looked at each other. It was as if it had found its master. 
Damn it, I just need to go outside. As long as I go back out, my hands. Yu Jeha was running like hell. It seemed impossible to run like this with his hands cut off, but he was drawing out every ounce of strength he had to do so. Ah, stop, stop chasing me. He couldn't help it. He was being chased by a scary woman. She might eat him up if he stopped for even a moment. Get your ass over here. That woman was Goebbels. Yu Jeha swore as it was clear she was trying to kill him. Ow. Fuck. This Goebbels seemed to be aiming for the former monarch of gossip's position now that he was dead. I guess she has a good fit with Goebbels's artifact. Of course, she was not using Goebbels' artifact right now and was using an evil god artifact. She seemed to be using an evil Nazi artifact instead of an heirloom right now but she was skilled enough to take the monarch of instigation spot in the future. He could understand why she was trying to abduct him to restore Goebbels's artifact that Juhian had destroyed. Ah! Another woman jumped down from the direction Jeha was running. It was Jack the Ripper this time. She was charging at him as if she wanted to kill him too. Jeha gasped and foamed at the mouth. First Jack the Ripper and now Goebbels too. How come I only get these crazy girls chasing me? Come on. He felt wronged. All the pretty good girls go to the captain. Why? Yu Jeha suddenly stopped and shouted to Nina. Fine, you want to kill me right? I'll just die. The knife-wielding Nina flinched. But that woman is going to kill me at this rate. Then you will lose me. You know what I mean, right? Yu Jeha smiled and Nina's knife changed trajectory. Jack the Ripper started to chase after Goebbels instead. Ah! Nina seemed to want to kill Jeha without anyone hindering her. Goebbels glared at Jeha as Jack the Ripper was chasing her now. This damn rat-like bastard. She used Goebbels' artifact to get rid of Nina. Boom. This was just a copy made by Louis so it wasn't as good as the real one and was a consumable artifact, but it was still very strong. It was a brainwashing artifact to instigate the benighted masses, so Nina disappeared as if she had been bewitched by something. There was a cool down period before she could use Goebbels's artifact again because of Nina, but it didn't matter. Jeha seemed to be running for his life after seeing how dangerous Goebbels's artifact could be, but what could he really do? His fit should have fallen the moment he lost both hands and his artistic talents took a hit. I don't even need to use Goebbels's artifact. I'm not scared of you when you can't even use Da Vinci's artifact huh? We got him now. Goebbels couldn't help but be shocked. The Yu Jeha in front of her had a functioning hand. Both of his hands should be cut off but one of them was back. I can deal with someone like you with just my left hand. Yu Jeha activated Da Vinci's artifact. Something shocking started to happen. Pillars shot up from all around them. Jeha activated other artifacts as well. Michelangelo's Graver S grade, legendary hero grade, possession artifact Raphael's pencil S grade, legendary hero grade, possession artifact they were unexpectedly the remaining two of the three major renaissance artists artifacts. They were artifacts that the other artists at the exhibition had on them. Someone had placed the dead Julian's Michelangelo artifact in his bag while Raphael's artifact had shown up in front of him after the first day of the exhibition. It wanted to change masters or something like that. Anyway, the monarch of pushoverness had powered up after collecting the set of the three Renaissance art masters artifacts. Pillars also fell from the sky and the ground roared as the tiles flipped over. The range was pretty small it was about the size of a studio. This was a new area created with the master's artifacts. The thing that he had drawn inside da Vinci's notebook had become real. His other artifacts helped with that as well. This was no ordinary room. W, what the hell is this? There was a whip and chains there were iron bars on the ceiling and floor, some Middle Ages torture devices this was clearly a torture chamber. The floor was also covered in fire and mines. It looked as if taking a single wrong step could send someone to the afterlife in this terrible room. There were some muscular men in the next room reaching their hands out as well. Hey little boy, we'll pamper you. Come on over. The cuffed gobbles couldn't help but become anxious. What kind of space did this son of a bitch create? 
the person who created the room was grumbling. Ah, I created this torture chamber for that bastard Ilya but who knew it would be used like this? She frowned after seeing Jeha being so calm. She could tell that she had not seen wrong. His hand really is there. Chapter, 288 The left hand that should have been cut off looked perfectly fine. We definitely cut that off. Jeha just smirked at the shocked gobels. You shouldn't be shocked at just that. What? Yu Jeha took something out of his pocket and showed it to her. Gobles screamed after seeing what he took out. That was to be expected. Why, your right hand is fine too. Was she dreaming? Both of Jeha's hands were fine. Gobles started shaking in confusion. What the hell is going on? She had confirmed it with her own eyes that they had both been chopped off. She wondered if Hitler or Gung Yi had gone easy on him but that wasn't the case. She had seen how they chopped off the hands of every restorer who went against them. Did he restore his hands with an artifact already? No, that wasn't it. He shouldn't be able to use any artifacts in this area. Hitler's ability was covering the entire art gallery. She had seen that only their allies were able to use their artifacts abilities. That meant that he shouldn't have been able to use a healing artifact. So how are his hands? And those artifacts? Goebbels then realized it. She saw the Nazi swastika seal in Jeha's hand. That is. Yu Jeha started to smile. This is the medium right? This is the thing that makes it so people can't use their abilities. Other people won't be able to see it because there were invisible seals all around this building. It was the Nazi swastika. Nobody could use their artifacts in an area where the seals were placed. Seo Juhian and his team were no exception. But Jeha was holding on to one. How do you have that? Yu Jeha smiled viciously. How? Are you looking down on monarchs with heirlooms right now? Thunderbolts shot down as she got the chills from seeing his smile. Rumble. Gobles looked at Jeha with fear in her eyes. He was holding an orb in his hand. Indra's artifact. Had he created that with Da Vinci's artifact? That bastard really can use his artifacts right now. But Gobel soon scoffed. It's a fake and not the real Indra's artifact. Indra's artifact viciously started to roar. Rumble. Ah. The torture devices turned into ashes after being struck by the thunderbolts. Gobels plopped down in fear while Ujeha sneered at her. A fake? It's still enough to kill someone like you. Gobels was shaking. He's no pushover. I looked down on the monarch of pushoverness too much. She was about to go crazy. She had come to confirm that a cockroach was dead after eating the poison but what the hell. How the hell did his hands appear? She became anxious and tried to make a deal with Jeha. Okay. I'll, I'll give you information on a great artifact. You can even have my artifact if you want it. Yu Jeha shouted at her. Get lost. You think I'm an artifact file like a certain someone? I would have thought about it if you said you'll set me up on a date. Goebbels looked confused for a moment before she smiled. Oh, okay. I know a lot of pretty girls. Ah, uh, whatever. I already got all of their numbers. Jeha shook Goebbels's phone around. Okay then bye, pretty Nuna. Wait, wait. Unfortunately for her, a flashing thunderbolt ruthlessly fell on her. Wow, she really fainted. Dan poked the unconscious Goebbels with amazement. He had been quite shocked when Jeha said that he would be bait but to think that he really took her down wasn't it an illusion. That was right. Goebbels, who should have turned into ashes after being hit by the thunderbolt, was not harmed at all. Of course, this was the expected outcome. That Indra's artifact is a D-grade fake too, right? Yes, it can only charge a battery or something. Indra's artifact that Jeha had created was the lowest grade copy. The torture chamber he had created was all an illusion as well. He would normally have created the real things, however this is my limit without my hands. But didn't he have his hands? Actually, Jeha's hands being restored was fake. He had used Da Vinci's artifact to pretend as if his hands were back to fluster the enemy. 
she would only believe that he could use Da Vinci's artifact at full power if he did that. That wasn't all. The fact that I found this Nazi seal is a bluff too. Jeha threw aside the swastika that he had shown Goebbels. It looked real but this was also a fake he had created. He had not found the swastika in this area yet. Everything had been a bluff for this former monarch of fraud. Well, I managed to trick her. Ha ha ha. It was a relief that he could find the spot where Hitler's ability was a bit weaker, as if it was a Wi-Fi signal. There was actually a simple reason he could use Da Vinci's artifact even after losing both hands. How? One hand is fine. One hand was still fine. You see, Jeha had done something when he fell down after Hitler cut off his hand. He had hit his real arm and created a fake. He felt that the crazy bastard might cut off the other hand too and it would have been really bad if he lost both hands. Anyway, Dan. Did you find it? Dan smiled at him. While Jeha and Dan were taking care of Goebbels I guess I should say long time no see. Juhian was scoffing in front of General Matthew. He had felt that this guy had a detestable artifact and they met at the Pentagon, however I never expected it to be the damn Nazi leader's artifact. Hitler seemed shocked to hear that. You knew what artifact it was even without me telling you. Shut up. It'd be weird if I didn't know. He could smell Nazi artifacts he had seen before nearby. There would be only one four emperor's great artifact that could rule over them all. But most importantly, this bastard's artifact the power of the heirlooms is being removed. The other team members started frowning. Captain Nim, we really. Their heirlooms were losing powers as well. They would not be able to use their abilities. They had never seen this ability before. Gung Yi, who was under Ju Hien's foot, sneered at them. You guys can't use artifacts anymore. I can't believe you walked in here on your own accord. You dumba ug. Ju Hien stomped on Gung Ye's face and gave orders. Ilya, find symbols related to Nazis. No artifact is omnipotent. I'm sure there is a medium that is preventing us from using our abilities. Matthew laughed at Ju Hien who had instantly dissected the basis of his artifact. He had felt this last time as well but Ju Hien was truly a desirable person as a subordinate. This bastard knew something that nobody else knew. He couldn't help but make this offer. Why don't you join us? We've gone independent from Pandora. There's no need for us to be enemies anymore. He was being serious. There is an extremely dangerous large-scale tomb among the ones that have not appeared yet. Ju Hien started to frown. He knew that one of those dangerous tombs would be the Crow's Tomb. Your tomb raiding team is talented. But there will be some tombs that are difficult for you guys because there's only a few of you. That's why we should work together. There are many factions aligned behind me already. The size of that alliance was already at the level of the four emperors of the past. The general continued speaking. We also brought some useful artifact users from Pandora as well. I think they would be useful to you. He was basically saying that he would give those artifact users to Ju Hien if he wanted them. What do you think? Based on your personality, I think the two of US would get along pretty well. Don't you think so? It was at that moment. Get along. Boom. His chaotic aura seemed to be going berserk. Someone who thinks we could get along messed with my damn subordinate. The crow's aura charged at him. It was so strong that it impacted the entire gallery. The enemies inside the gallery started screaming. There's a crack on my artifact. Ah. What the hell? Their artifacts were cracking and being destroyed. General Matthew. Please stop CO Ju Hien. Hitler's subordinates urgently sought him out. Ju Hien seemed extremely angry. Ju Hien's dominance was shooting up wildly. Matthew was a bit flustered but soon started smiling. He had used his ability. The power of artifact removal has activated. His power started to get rid of Ju Hien's crow's aura. Hitler felt that something was wrong. That bastard's artifact is not disappearing. This was very weird. Ju Hien's artifact seemed to be flailing even stronger the more he tried to get rid of it. What's going on? 
A message appeared as if to explain what had happened. This tomb's artifact is starting to get interested in you. Hitler, who had no way of knowing that, activated his ability even more. He was planning on getting rid of Juhian and the other's artifacts at the same time. But at that moment crack. Matthew was quite shocked. The mediums that allow him to extend the radius of his ability as swastika he had placed in the gallery had been destroyed. It was the one that had the strongest impact. Who the hell? That ability removal artifact shouldn't work here now. He heard a familiar voice. Juhian's group was a bit shocked to see those people. Dan. Jeha. And Louis. Hitler frowned. That bastard. It seemed as if Dan had found Louis who had been hiding in the gallery. Louis must have spilled the beans on where all of the swastikas were located. Hitler sighed and addressed Juhian. C.O. Juhian. I don't want to use any rougher methods than I already have I'll even tell you about the fossil artifact if you team up with me. Fossil artifact. Yu Jeha seemed to realize something and quickly shouted to Juhian who seemed interested. This damn artifact file might really fall for it. Ah, Captain Nim. There's no need to team up with him for it. I already stole one and restored it. Hitler finally took a thorough look at Jeha's hands. He was holding a fossil-shaped unidentified artifact. Furthermore, it was restored. Hitler couldn't help but scoff. It was to be expected. Goebbels should have taken care of this bastard. Hitler started laughing. You rat-like bastard. You managed to run away from Goebbels and come here. You Jeha scoffed at him. Run away. I sent that lady off with my art master's artifacts. She peed her pants and fainted because of my illusion. I thought she would be difficult to handle because she was Hitler's subordinate, but she was pretty easy to deal with. Oh, I brought this as a present. Yu Jeha was definitely shaking a fossil artifact around. He must have stolen it from Goebbels. Hitler became anxious. How could you use art artifacts without any hands? Hitler soon realized his mistake. Did he just pretend like his hand had been cut off? Yu Jeha, who had restored the fossil artifact, was chuckling. Anyway, we have two fossil artifacts now. Ha ha ha. He headed next to Juhian as he said that. Hitler felt as if his ass was on fire once the two of them reunited. Chapter, 289 Let me apologize for my earlier statements. You truly have some talented subordinates. He seemed afraid that Jeha would hand over the new artifact to Juhian. That was probably the reason. Let's make a deal. I'll give you that unconfirmed artifact if you work with us. Juhian shook his head and scoffed at Hitler. What? It's already ours. Oh, and I wouldn't work with you even if I didn't have this artifact, you son of a bitch. I guess you're angry that I hurt your precious subordinate. Yu Jeha's ears perked up, waiting to hear what Ju Hian would say. However no. If you were going to do it, you should have killed him instead of cutting off his hands. Then that bastard's heirloom would have been mine. Why did I expect anything from this shitty boss? Yu Jeha shouted with anger. You shitty captain, I'm going to keep this weird artifact if you're going to be like that. Do whatever you want. Yu Jeha couldn't believe what he had just heard. What? The artifact file is declining an artifact. He didn't have to question it for long as he figured out the reason. It couldn't be helped, since ah. Uh, what is this? A bug was crawling out of the fossil artifact Jeha said he restored. Crack, crack it had a smooth brown back long antennas disgusting legs that made it one of the best in the world at escaping this disgusting appearance was definitely a. It's a cockroach. Juhian chuckled while waving around a different fossil artifact. You can have that one. I'll take the good one. Yu Jeha rummaged through his pockets and foamed at the mouth in anger. Ow. Ah, that damn thief. Hitler snorted after seeing Juhian take the fossil artifact. You should return that to me while I ask nicely. Why should I? You seem quite pompous for someone with a clone heirloom. Hitler snickered while looking at Juhian. The crow you have is not its real body. That was true. 
Although the crow Ju Hian was handling had overwhelming strength, it was just a clone. Its true body was sealed deep inside a tomb. Basically, the crow was not fully settled in Ju Hian's body. It shouldn't impact his ability to use its powers, but heirlooms stick to their master's bodies to help them always maintain their top condition. But isn't that impossible for you? It was impossible to guarantee its reliability and abilities 100% of the time. I don't understand why someone as talented as you is sticking with such an inferior product. Ju Hian could feel the crow's aura around him flinching. It was still imprisoned inside a tomb. Maybe it realized that Ju Hian might like some of the other heirlooms more. Hitler continued speaking. Throw away such inferior product. Ju Hian started laughing out loud. Ha ha ha. Inferior product. Are your eyes just for show? You can't even see the value of this bastard. The crow's aura seemed to be getting stronger again. It seemed much stronger than earlier. Ju Hian continued to speak. And even if we call it an inferior product the regular heirlooms must be so great that their masters can lose a hand so easily. Yu Jeha cried. Why is he talking shit about my innocent heirloom? What the hell did my heirloom do wrong? Jeha's phoenix must have gotten upset as well as he could see it charging toward Ju Hian. The fiery bird came out of Jeha's body and was flapping its wings trying to peck at Ju Hian. Insolent human bastard, do not look down on my abilities. The phoenix was objecting that its abilities had only been temporarily suppressed by Hitler's artifact. Ju Hian smiled with satisfaction after seeing the phoenix heirloom releasing a strong aura as if it had awakened. Okay, this should be strong enough to take on Hitler. Excuse me? What do you? Ju Hian pushed Jeha forward instead of responding. Good luck. Let's go, meet Shield. W, what? Yu Jeha screamed and Hitler revealed his true nature. I was planning on taking the crow but I guess the negotiations have broken down. I was going to give you the artifact from this tomb as well if you agreed to work with me. Ju Hian chuckled in response. I don't need it. It's not that important. You should really learn to control your bluffing. The artifact in this tomb is difficult for your small team to excavate. No. I already got the artifact from this tomb. What? Hitler was shocked and Ju Hian pointed to the ceiling instead of responding. The ceiling was starting to crack. The art gallery where the tomb appearance had happened was crumbling down. That meant that tomb cleared. The art gallery completely crumbled as soon as he said that. They could hear people talking all around them. Everybody was looking at the shining letters in the air. S-U-C-C-E-S-S -S Julian had created it with his currents. Hitler frowned and looked extremely anxious. Ho, oh, I was wondering why I didn't see a few of your team members. Julian and Chloe had not been visible. They had gone in a different direction as soon as the team came into the art gallery. Ju Hian had them aim for the tomb's artifact while he held Hitler down. Although the artifact had been taken by Chairman Quan in the past, Kong Ming and Ju Hian had cleared this tomb once already. Ju Hian was smiling. I wasn't interested in your artifact at all since it doesn't look that tasty. Was Ju Hian saying that his goal was the tomb's artifact from the beginning? It was at that moment. Dan pulled out his knife as Hitler opened his eyes wide in anger. Captain Nim, I will take care of things here. Please take Jeha and Siole and. Ju Hian quickly shoved Dan to the side and stepped forward. He felt an aura that only he could handle. Boom. It was an aura that anybody with an artifact would end up being injured. A bright light appeared from the ground. Yu Jeha and Hitler's subordinates started screaming. That was to be expected. Hitler's power is descending on the city. His dominance descended on them as the Nazi symbol, a large Hockenkreuz, floated up. It was big enough to cover this whole city. Ah! This was completely different from putting seals around the art gallery. Your artifact's abilities are being removed in this area. The risks that have been piling up are striking at once. All of the people who have been receiving buffs from artifacts started to fall over as their artifacts lost power. The people who had raised their energy or strength with artifacts, people who used them to prevent aging, basically everybody who was using artifacts to benefit them in some way had been harmed. 
that crazy bastard even struck his own allies. The angry Hitler seemed to want to take care of Juhian here even if it meant that his allies would be injured. The artifacts suddenly seemed to work in reverse. For example, someone like Seo Lei who used a ghost artifact felt her spirit leave her body while a person who used an artifact to maintain his youth would suddenly get 50 years older. Matthew truly must be angry because Juhian took the fossil artifact and the artifact from this tomb. Juhian clicked his tongue. TSK, I was holding back because he didn't look like he would taste good. Juhian immediately activated the crow's artifact. Juhian's eyes turned red and the crow's aura exploded. It was much stronger than usual. The crow's black aura soon covered the entire city. Boom! That crazy aura slowly started absorbing Hitler's power. The ability removal power was disappearing with it. H. Huff. My artifacts are working again. But it truly seemed to deserve its status as a four emperor's grade artifact as it was extremely strong. Warning. You have surpassed the amount you can absorb. Juhian smirked in response. Whatever, I guess I'll just have a stomachache. Juhian's eyes flashed and a strong pressure pushed down on Hitler. Ugh. Hitler became anxious. Fuck. I'm going to lose the artifact at this rate. He channeled even more dominance to activate his artifact. Juhian's heirloom was just a clone, it couldn't be that strong. Hitler focused all of the ability removal power toward Juhian. Juhian stumbled. He could feel the crow's power slowly disappearing. However, Juhian focused his mind. He would not be able to live with himself if he allowed his artifact to be destroyed like this. It was at that moment. Awakening. The heirloom's power is upgrading. You are now able to use the abilities of artifacts you have absorbed. The crow's artifact's original ability was taking the artifacts it gobbled up and turning it into its own power. Flash. Juhian smiled after feeling a new power inside of him. And then he activated it. He used the Hitler's artifact's power of removal that he had absorbed until now. A large explosion occurred. The power of removal struck Hitler and he coughed up blood. He was struck by the risk from his artifact just as the others had suffered from earlier. H. Huff. Hitler could hardly breathe because he was in pain. Juhian smiled and walked toward him. The crow's black aura that was viciously glowing looked like a pair of wings behind Juhian. I'll make it so you can't pull this kind of bullshit ever again. The aura that looked like wings pierced through Hitler's body. Puke. Uff. The crow's aura ruthlessly gobbled up Hitler's artifact. It had preyed on this bastard's evil god artifact. Hitler turned into a regular person again and was suffering from a ton of pain. Juhian pulled out a knife and stabbed him in the neck. Juhian had killed him on the spot. The crow's aura that was chaotically fluttering disappeared in that instant. Captain Nim. General. His team members and Hitler's subordinates appeared. Seo Lei quickly hugged Juhian who was falling over. Juhian tightly clenched Seo Lei as he too was suffering from pain. Ugh. Captain Nim, are you okay? Captain Nim. The rope was whimpering as it roamed around Juhian. It was scared because it had never seen Juhian in this much pain before. Captain Nim, are you oh? Juhian, who was holding on to Seo Lei as if he was a koala, caught his breath and barely managed to speak. I, I have a stomach ache from eating something weird. Excuse me? Juhian's face was purple and he really looked as if he was about to die. Hitler's subordinates glared at Juhian and the others. We won't let you get away with this. Rumble. Thunderbolts shot down in front of them. They then heard a vicious voice. We'll gladly take you on but you are the ones who will suffer. Julian had appeared. Chloe, Ilya, and Irene were all with him as well. The enemies shook in fear and quickly disappeared once they realized he was being serious. Julian stopped the others who tried to chase them. We already got what we need. There's no need to chase them. More importantly. Mr. Juhian, Mr. Juhian, are you okay? Irene shouted with concern while Julian grabbed the back of his head while looking at the groaning Juhian. 
It would be great if he got Hitler's removal ability, but I told you not to eat random stuff. He got a stomach ache in the end. Juhian became like a zombie. Chloe, I need a digest ant, a digest ant. Do you really think a digest ant would be enough? Ha. Huh. Chapter, 290. Chloe, is the Captain Nim really okay? Mr. Juhian will be okay, right? Siole and Irene were anxiously tapping their feet. The issue at the art gallery had ended without any other incident. Even Jeha's hand had recovered. The exhibition had to be cancelled in the middle but it was fine since it was finished at a different location. And if there was a great gain from this incident, it would be that he seems to have gained Hitler's power. Julian had definitely seen it with Zhuge Kongming's artifact. He had seen the movement of the chaotic auras. Zhu Hien had gobbled up Hitler's artifact and used its abilities. It wasn't weird at all. He said the crow could use the powers it ate. That meant that Zhu Hien's powers had grown. But who cared about that? Ugh a digest ant. Zhu Hien was groaning in pain. He had a stomach ache. Siole and Irene were still tapping their feet because they were concerned about Zhu Hien. Chloe. The Captain Nim won't die right? He just has a stomach ache, right? Mr. Juhian will be okay, right? Please tell me he will be okay. They seemed frantic that Juhian was lying on the bed like a zombie. They were bringing all sorts of things while nursing Juhian. Cold towels and a change of clothes didn't seem enough to them. Siole brought all sorts of medical equipments from Chloe's room and even a massager while Irina Mai asked the butler to bring some things that would be good for the body. Do you think that these will help? Antipyretics, digest ants, vitamins, herbal medicines that were said to be good for the body, wild ginseng, medicinal herbs, eels, turtles, carps, she brought all sorts of ingredients. The ingredients were so fresh that they were still jumping up and down in the boxes. Ah, Mr. Juhian, please don't die. Captain Naim. Chloe facepalmed after seeing the things the two women brought. Everything else was fine but why was Viagra mixed in as well? Chloe couldn't deal with it anymore and started to speak. Um, you don't need to worry that much. Siole hugged Juhian and cried. I've never seen the Captain Nim in so much pain before. Juhian stayed attached to Siole as if he was a koala. If Siole left, he stuck to Irene like glue. They had been scared to see him act like this when the normal Juhian would never behave this way. It wasn't that Chloe didn't understand how they were feeling. When Juhian was really sick, back in the past when he was suffering from tomb syndrome, he never showed any signs of being in pain. But for a person who looked so calm while suffering from tomb syndrome which was like terminal cancer to be acting like this for a simple stomach ache ugh, ugh, my intestines feel like they're twisted. Chloe smacked Juhian on the head with his charts. A rare sight like this to see Juhian whining about being in pain was cute to Chloe, but that's why we said don't pick up random things and eat them. I didn't do that. Then you purposely chose to eat something dirty. You're not a child so why are you eating things you shouldn't eat and getting a stomach ache? Juhian pouted. Okay, I got it. So please give me a digest ant. I told you that won't work. You need a shot. Juhian as well as the rest of the team flinched. You'll be better with a shot so everybody else please leave. Chloe then ripped Siole away from Juhian's side. You too. Siole shouted while being dragged out. Chloe, can it be anything else? Anything but that. A shot for the Captain Nim. That's too cruel. Hurry up and get out. Chloe kicked Siole out. She kicked Siole out first for some reason. Maybe she didn't like the fact that she was stuck to Juhian. Siole was banging on the door after being kicked out. Chloe. I'll take the shot in the Captain Nim's place. It's too much for him. Juhian was tightly clenching Irene now. It was rare to see him shaking like this. Mr. Juhian. I'll just keep my stomach ache. That'll be better. M. Mr. Juhian. Irene wondered why he was acting like this. But she kept hugging him tightly. But Mr. Juhian, you still need to get the shot. No, I'll get better like this. Ah. 
The male team members started swearing as Juhian stuffed his face in Irene's chest. Fucking bastard, I'm so jealous. But they still felt pity for Juhian while having that thought. That was to be expected. I'd rather die than get that shot. How could there be such a torture in this world? I'm glad I'm not the one who needs the shot. Chloe's shot was extremely effective but truly hurt like hell. The male team members slowly started moving out of the room. However ah, uh, right. Everybody else needs shots as well. What the hell are you talking about? They looked as if their house had been foreclosed and taken by the bank. Why do we need shots too? Hitler's aura is quite venomous. The Captain Nim is okay because he has tolerance but you were all hit by the aura as well. There were quite a lot of screams in the hotel that day. After some time fucking Chloe, she just took the Captain Nim and went inside. Ciole was grinding her teeth outside a door. When are they going to come out? When are they going to come out? It looked as if there were beams coming out of her eyes toward that direction. Her gaze was focused on a room where only Chloe and Juhian were inside. It's already been 43 minutes. Ciole exploded. Something that should normally take 10 minutes was taking so long today. Yu Jaha held her back as she looked ready to spew flames out of her mouth. Whoa, whoa, don't worry, everything will be fi ug. I'm sure of it. She used treatment as an excuse because she wanted to be alone with the Captain Nim. Why else would she want to be alone with Ju Hian whenever she treated him? She treats the rest of us all at once. Julian, who was inspecting the artifact Ju Hian got at the tomb, calmed her down. The captain always had special treatment. His tomb syndrome was worse than any of us and he didn't want us seeing him being treated. It's just a habit now. The other male team members grumbled to themselves. That damn captain monopolizing all of the female team members. I wish I could put my head in Irene's chest too. Ciole heard that and looked at Irene while banging on the wall. She had heard that Juhian shoved his face in Irene's chest. Ciole looked down at Irene's chest and continued slamming on the innocent wall. I know. I know that my boobs are small. But this is discrimination. He's never put his face in my boobs. Ciole was crying internally thinking that at least her boobs would be more elastic. I thought I won because the captain Nim hugged me. Juhian had hugged her as if he was a koala. Maybe it was because of the memories of his past life. An old habit had come out subconsciously. That was why she had thought she had a better chance of victory but she was sniffling internally as she started spewing fire. I have no other choice then. She really didn't want to do this, but Vice Captain Nim. Hmm. Let's go to a breast enlarging tomb next time. Julian spit up the coffee he was drinking. That um the next tomb has already been decided. He let out a fake cough before returning to his artifact analysis. This is that mysterious artifact Chairman Quan took in the past. Julian did not know that this had to do with the Majesty's treasure yet. While that was going on, Irene had her own concerns as well. Why? It was because Ju Hian had tightly hugged Ciole. He had done it because of the stomach ache, but a person's subconsciousness was a serious thing. Mr. Ju Hian, you really. At that moment the captain really is taking a long time. Ilya looked toward the room. What if the captain's risk activated? What? Risk? Why else would it take so long? The door is locked as well. Yu Jaha agreed with him. You have a point. The Captain Nim said that his immunity has fallen because of the stomach ache and that the risks will activate much easier. Irene and Ciole both gasped. Ciole then tried her best to smile. Ah, uh, ah, uh, it should be okay. Chloe said that she's not interested in younger men. If you use the American system, aren't they the same age? It was at that moment. Jaha who had his ear on the door was shocked. Ha. Huh. Hey, wait. I heard some moans inside. Ciole became frantic and started banging on the door. Chloe, what the hell is going on in there? Mr. Ju Hian. Irene joined in to bang on the door as well until they broke the door. The two women screamed once they saw what was going on inside. Ah. 
something shocking was going on inside the room where Ju Hian was being treated. They saw some flesh intertwining inside the room. Ju Hian was lying down on the bed inside the room and Chloe was straddling him. It was just that Ju Hian had fainted. The two of them had their clothes off as well. Well, they weren't completely naked. Ju Hian's shirt was undone and Chloe had her shirt off, with her black bra making her white skin seem even whiter. They looked as if they might have been fighting, but it was quite a risque looking scene. The other team members couldn't help but gasp. H, hold on. Julian froze after seeing this steamy sight but Yu Jeha was frozen for a different reason. Eek. They really were getting it on. What? He had said he heard some moans but he had been bluffing. He was saying that to tease Irene and Seo Lei. Ilya was snickering while Irene and Seo Lei were foaming at the mouth. They didn't expect to see Chloe taking advantage of a sleeping Ju Hian. The doctor was about to have her way with a patient. Mr. Ju Hian. Hey. Chloe. The two women charged toward Ju Hian at the same time. Jeha was about to head that way as well when he heard some banging noises next to him. One of the cabinets was shaking quite a bit. It was locked. Bang bang. He didn't know what was inside, but the cabinet looked as if it would soon break from the impact. Jeha grabbed the key above it wondering what it was. He cautiously opened the cabinet and inside ah. What the? Chapter, 291. Let me out. Let me out. A huffing rope burst out. The rope then angrily charged toward Chloe alongside Ciole and Irene. It almost looked as if it was flying. And then. Don't touch my master. Don't touch him. The rope tightly bound Chloe up. It looked as if it would bite her head off if it had teeth. Irene and Ciole grabbed onto Chloe as well. Chloe. You told me you weren't interested in younger men. How can you do this? Mr. Ju Hian, wake up. Mr. Ju Hian. Irene tried her best to wake Ju Hian up. However, Ju Hian seemed to be deep asleep as he would not wake up. He would just frown for a moment before falling right back asleep. The two of them thought this was cute before realizing it was not the time for such thoughts. Please hold on a minute. Something is weird with Mr. Ju Hian. He's unable to wake up. Seo Lei then switched to grabbing Chloe from behind. She almost had Chloe in a choke hold. Chloe. Did you feed the captain him some weird drug? There's no way you would do that, right? Jeha then pointed around the bed. Ah, uh, I think she did. What? There were lots of mysterious medicines scattered around the bed. There were brown pill bottles. There were also bottles of medicine used to fill syringes. It looked as if Ciole and Irene's eyes were burning with rage. Chaotic auras started bursting out of their bodies. Chloe, you you pretended like you weren't interested so that you could get our guards down. Their heirlooms jumped out as if they were responding to the two women's emotions. However, at that moment wait. It's not like that. Julian suddenly shouted. He had been blanking out at this steamy scene but finally came back to his senses. He urgently rummaged through a drawer to find something before shoving a candy in Chloe's mouth. That candy was a risk removal artifact medicine that Chloe created all the time. Chloe groaned and grabbed her forehead after eating the candy. Huh. She came back to her senses and opened her pretty eyes wide. She looked around and then flinched. That was to be expected. She was topless and Ju Hian was pretty much topless under her. Chloe seemed to realize something as she turned red and grabbed Ju Hian by the collar. Co Ju Hian, get the hell up right now. A few moments later Chloe let out a fake cough and quickly put her shirt back on. Ah man, it was such a nice view. Ilya sighed in disappointment and Co Lei smacked him in the back. Co Lei then asked a question. What the hell happened? Chloe seemed to be sweating bullets. Ciole and Irene's gazes were becoming very intense. Why were you jumping the captain in? The rope raged. She was trying to see the master's butt. She was trying. It was normal to do that to give Juhian a shot, but the rope who had no idea about how that worked was raging in anger. 
Chloe groaned and recalled what had happened. Forty minutes ago Chloe had been about to give the giant shot to Ju Hian as well. And as she was about to lower Ju Hian's clothes. What are you doing? What are you doing? The rope had burst out and bound Chloe up. It must have thought that Chloe was trying to harm Ju Hian. Ju Hian had sighed and calmed the rope down. It's not a big deal. I'm just getting a shot. But at that moment just as Ju Hian was releasing Chloe from the rope, chaotic risks suddenly activated in Ju Hian's body. Chloe had become flustered. She didn't know which risks they were, but she knew it would be bad no matter what it was. Ju Hian then sensually grabbed Chloe's arm. Chloe, you look really pretty today. Siole or Irene would have instantly felt their hearts beat wildly. But Chloe was not like them. She instantly suppressed Ju Hian with a frown on her face. Whining about not wanting the shot will not work. TSK. Okay, hand over your butt. Ju Hian turned around, but once Chloe pulled down his pants. The risks became even worse in Ju Hian's body and the crow's aura suddenly released. That crow's aura then headed toward Chloe's medical bag of reagents. Hold. Those reagents were no ordinary medicines. As someone known as the doctor of punishment, Chloe could use a person's risk and return it to them. These bottles were full of risks that Chloe had drawn out from people. Ju Hian then broke one of the bottles with the crow's aura. Ugh. Chloe had been directly affected by the risk coming out of the bottle. Ju Hian was also affected because they were in the same area. The risk bottle Ju Hian had broken was the risk called Forgotten Desires. It made Ju Hian sit at the computer and start downloading a video while making Chloe jump Ju Hian. That seemed to be why Chloe was extremely shocked. I I I can't believe I jumped on that bastard. There had been a time in the past when she had some positive feelings about Ju Hian when she didn't even know what he looked like. But those feelings had been destroyed in a week thanks to Siole. That was why Chloe seemed quite ashamed of her actions. Because of the risk. So tell us, why were you wrestling with the Captain Nim? Ahem. Chloe let out a fake cough. The Captain ate a bad artifact. The side effect risk activated. Irene and Siole seemed shocked. They wondered if it meant that people around Ju Hian would try to ravage him if he eats a bad artifact. Ju Hian groaned and opened his eyes at that moment. Ugh, my head. Chloe smacked him on the back as soon as he woke up and had to hear Siole and Irene's naggings. Captain Nim. You get it now right? You can't eat dirty things ever again. What? Why, you should never eat those things. If you have to eat it, please only do it when I am by your side. No, do it when I'm by your side. Irene and Siole seemed to be growling at each other. Why should he do it when you are next to him, Miss Siole? Then why should he do it when he's with you, Miss Irene? They looked at Ju Hian before running out of the room. They then started shouting at each other. Miss Irene, I know that you and the Captain Nim were close when I wasn't here. But I was by Captain Nim's side in the past life. Irene groaned and her face turned red. She knew about the past life because she had heard from the team members. To be more specific, it was the story of the future that happened in the past. Ju Hian said that they could tell her anything as long as it wasn't something useless. It would be weird for Irene if she heard the conversations between the other team members who had their memories back without knowing about their past. It was his way of not making her feel left out. Anyway, Irene knew a good amount about what happened in the future. Of course, hearing about it and remembering things for herself were completely different. Siole confidently shouted at her. I'm the one who was next to the Captain Nim's side for ten years. Siole and the other team members had been with Ju Hian for over ten years. So, Miss Irene. Did you and Mr. Ju Hian promise to have a future together? E, excuse me. Siole became flustered. I will give up if the two of you were in that kind of relationship. Um, ah uh, that. Siole started to sweat. Were you two dating? Well, to be fair, we weren't dating. Ah uh, hum. Siole could only fidget. Irene was extremely relieved to see Siole's expression. 
She had pushed back hard with courage she didn't even know she had, but she had been worried that they really would have been lovers. Irene continued to speak since she pushed forward with courage anyway. And even if you were dating, the past is the past and the present is the present. The situation is completely different. So Mr. Juhian is mine. Irene then quickly started running back to Juhian. Siole shouted at her saying it doesn't work that way. No. The captain Nim is mine. No. No. He is mine. The rope timidly interjected as well. That was probably the reason. Oh is that so? Then let's do it like this. We pick the same day and the same time. We both ask the captain Nim for a date and the person he chooses to have a date with is the winner. The loser will give up on him. That sounds great. Fine. No making excuses later. No excuses. The rope seemed to want to be in on this date Juhian competition but the two women didn't even care. So you're saying that this thing might be a portion of that majesty's treasure thing? Juhian seemed flustered while looking at the artifact Julian was handing him. It was the artifact he had gotten from the tomb at the gallery. I can't be certain with my appraisal, but I can tell that it is a special artifact that is stronger than the SS grade artifacts. Was that why Chairman Quan suddenly became so much stronger after taking it? Ju Hian picked up the mirror Julian handed him. It looked like a regular mirror at a glance. He couldn't even touch it in the past because he didn't have an heirloom. Ju Hian tried activating it. The artifact released a bright light and infused Ju Hian with a strong power. Your dominance is increasing exponentially. Your fit is increasing exponentially. You have earned the buff of the person closest to becoming the majesty. The basic buff is being activated. The second buff is being activated. Starting to detect the location of the other majesty's treasures. However you do not meet the necessary conditions for activation. You are unable to use the artifact. Unable to detect the location of the majesty's treasures. Unable to transform into sword or bell form. Juhian chuckled. The changes he had felt in his body were amazing. But he seemed to be unable to use the whole artifact. What is this artifact anyway? Probably the seals of heaven. Juhian was shocked. The seals of heaven were three types of divine items featured in the Danjun myths. Basically, they were items that allowed someone to rule over humanity. I'm sure Chairman Quan used this to gain enough power to become one of the four emperors in the past. Ju Hien was quite amused. But that means that the old bastard knows the conditions to activate this artifact. Ju Hien mumbled after becoming crazed by that thought. I guess it is about time. It's time to restore that old bastard's memories. Julian's eyes opened wide after seeing the evil smile on Ju Hien's face. Ju Hien was going to do it sooner or later. He had been having a lot of fun messing with Chairman Quan until now, but the person Ju Hien really wanted to kill was Chairman Quan with the memories of the past. He wanted to make him suffer the same indignity. I originally said that I would get to where he had been before restoring his memories. Unfortunately, he was lacking just a bit of time to do that. The leaders of the artifacts were already aiming for Ju Hien and the enemies were right on his tail. They said that you can make all artifacts submit to you if you become the monarch among monarchs. That was why he had to make it certain that he would be number one and not lose the position to anybody else. That thought led to this answer. But first are the seven great tombs. The remaining two tombs are important so how come only the precursors have shown up and they haven't opened? Something happened at that moment. Chapter, 292 You want to know why? It's because the artifact is dead. Irene's brother, George Holton was the one to say that. The man who became the monarch of torture after receiving an heirloom from Juhian through the fossil artifact to Juhian. I analyzed the thing you left with me. Even if you ignore the cockroach, the other one. That one is a part of a god's body. Julian, who had not seen it after Jeha restored it, gasped in shock. What the hell is this? It looks like a dried octopus tentacle. It wasn't really dried octopus. A portion of an outer god's leg SS grade, divine grade, fossil artifact this was definitely an artifact. 
however, none of them had ever seen it before. That was why Ju Hian had used it after restoring it but the tentacle just multiplied. It didn't show the effects of a divine grade artifact. It's not like I can eat this while drinking beer or anything. Well, Jaha did say it tasted great and ate the multiplied tentacles. Most importantly, it was called an outer god's leg. That was from the Cthulhu mythos that focused on alien life forms and was not a very well-known mythology. Why? It was not a myth based on ethnic traditions such as Greek, Egyptian, or Norse mythologies. These were all myths created by humans. Artifacts were items born from humans of the past. It wasn't weird for an artifact like this to exist since even rumors could cause artifacts to appear. However it's a dead artifact. Yes. To be more specific, they imprisoned it in a cave and buried it alive. Juhian peeked toward his ring, watch, and necklace and the doggies whispered to him. The supreme leaders buried it. They make any artifacts that are too strong to kill but they don't want alive into this weird form. Those tentacle bastards were so weird that they ended up that way. They were getting rid of the outsiders. These damn racist. Artifact bastards. Are they discriminating because they were born from myths of this world? It didn't matter. The Cthulhu artifact would only be used for war if humans used it. So what does this have to do with the seven great tombs? George took something out of his pocket. Juhian scoffed after seeing another fossil artifact. What is that one? Is it a squid leg now? Should I get you some mayo? But the fossil George took out was an unexpected item. Squid? No. This is the artifact from one of the seven great tombs that has yet to appear. Juhian's eyes opened wide. Of the remaining seven great tombs Juhian was looking forward to the tomb of Avarice. That tomb is where I got the archaeologist's artifact. He had been looking forward to it to see if that artifact would show up again. But now the debris of the artifact of Avarice from the seven great tombs fossil artifact special trait, it is already dead. No warmth can be felt from it. That artifact of Avarice was in front of him. We found it while investigating the areas of the precursor. We were investigating because the tomb showed no signs of appearing and found this. This wasn't enough to tell whether it was his archaeologist's artifact, but hand it over. Hand over the fossil of the artifact of Avarice. George was quite shocked. How does this bastard always know which artifact it is without me telling him? This fucking bastard. Juhian's eyes flashed. The fact that it is a fossil means that this bastard was murdered by that supreme leader or whatever. They took care of it in advance so that all seven artifacts from the great tombs could not be gathered together. He was sure of it. The artifacts from the seven great tombs had never been gathered together in the past either. The tomb of envy had disappeared without being cleared in the past. But it was the tomb of avarice this time. The artifacts would be put in a terrible situation if the seven artifacts are gathered together. It would also benefit the humans, which was something artifacts hated. Juhian snickered. There is a high chance that the tomb with the crow will appear. Either that, or it would be a new treasure that appears. Juhian was very happy. Now that I have avarice, only gluttony is left. George must have read Juhian's mind as he burst Juhian's little bubble. I don't think you get it. You can't use this like this. Why are you looking at me like that? You were the one who said that the octopus tentacle could only be used as a snack even after it was restored. This needs to go through a special process to be revived. Revived? According to the research team they said that reviving a fossil artifact using a special process would allow it to create a tomb again in the location it was revived. Basically, they needed to do something to create an item that could summon a tomb. Juhian accepted that response. I guess you're right. This fossil artifact looks to be A C or B grade at best right now. In addition do you really think I would give this to a thug like Yo Ah? Great, thanks. Hey. The rope had grabbed the fossil artifact and its eyes were sparkling. Juhian took it from the rope while snickering. Bro, you should always watch out for pickpockets. This damn thieving bastard. Excuse me. What did you just say? You didn't hear. Return this to the way it was. 
Jaha screamed in anger after hearing Juhian's response. He had stayed up all night to restore the fossil artifact at Juhian's request, but what? I spent so much time restoring it. Why? Why? We need to turn it over to the artifact engineering team in its original state. The engineering team? Yu Jaha grabbed the back of his neck. That was right. Artifact engineering. In addition to restorers and appraisers, the engineers were a third artifact related occupation. The artifact engineers analyzed an artifact's ability and its makeup to turn them into industrial products. The products sold by artifact related businesses such as Grave Company were all the result of their research. That was how the pills from the herb of eternal youth and the defense type sweatsuit Juhian's fans gifted him were created as well. They would be able to turn this fossil artifact into an item to summon a tomb. Anyway, break this fossil artifact and return it to normal. Ow, this bastard. Well, he was probably joking but where the hell are you going to find those motherfucking engineers? Where else? My company. Excuse me? Ju Hien was the director of Grave Company, one of the world's top three artifact-related businesses after all. Although there were many official or freelancer restorers or appraisers, the artifact engineers were mainly associated with countries, university labs, or the RD team of large corporations. Ju Hien's RD team had a lot of talented Nano individuals. It would be easy to hand them an artifact to analyze. Ju Hien immediately made the call. Egu, Director Nim. A fossil artifact. That's way beyond our level. We can't do. The researchers told him they couldn't do it. Ju Hien started to frown. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but Ju Hien was very upset. You guys told me you could do it not too long ago. Didn't you ask me to just leave it to you guys? Well, that they hesitated before adding on. Actually, we had a new intern who was so skilled that she could even handle fossil artifacts. She might be the only one in the world who could handle it. Oh, we had such a talent. Ju Hien became curious. So what's the issue when we have that employee? Well, that intern suddenly quit and left she submitted her letter of resignation and left. We are quite shocked as well. She had been so happy that she was finishing her probation period and was going to become an actual employee, but then she said that you are a shitty person. She probably went to interview somewhere else. She said anybody would be a million times better than Seo Juhian the muscles on Juhian's face were twitching. Who was that terrible intern? Her name is Joy Ha. Now that I think about it, she looked similar to you, director Nim that triceratops like bitch. Excuse me. Ju Wan submitted her letter of resignation. She went to TKBM to interview. He would have probably ran off after hearing that Ju Hien was the director as well, but why TKBM? Well, it wasn't that weird if he thought about it. TKBM is one of the three major artifact companies in the world. TKBM, Grave Company, and Google. These three companies have become such prominent artifact business companies that no other companies could catch up to them. Well, TKBM might have crumbled lately because of Ju Hien, but it was still around. Egu, it's still TKBM. What if she gets hired there? Why did it have to be Chairman Kwan's company of all places? Ju Hien didn't seem to care much about it. It's okay. I have a way. Ju Hien sent a message from his phone. As they were doing that my goodness, that grave company. Why did you leave without signing with them? That company is really good. I really shouldn't be saying this because I'm here to interview, but TKBM's stock prices have been falling lately. Joy laughed while chatting with the person next to her as they waited for their interviews. I didn't like the director there. It wasn't that she really hated Ju Hien. She just didn't want to be paid by her bastard of a brother. A chicken to thank your employer. Why are you messing around with a guy during work hours? Give me a list of how you spent your salary. I'd rather not be paid at all. She didn't really need to work at TKBM, but she had originally worked for an NGO. She knew that TKBM had been the company to financially support that NGO. She was thankful for their help to prevent the financially strapped NGO from breaking up. So Chairman Kwan should be a really good person. Joy, 
who had no idea that it was actually Ju Hian who had supported her, wanted to pay back that benevolence. It was at that moment. Number 3, 4, and 5, please come in. Yes sir. Joy entered the interview area. Chairman Quan's son-in-law, Yun Shir Wu, was the one who was in there. Did she say her name was Joy? She was a promising candidate. He had recently learned that she was Ju Hian's twin. That was why he had scouted her. He could have kidnapped her but he didn't want to deal with that shitty bastard Seo Ju Hian. That motherfucker shouldn't be able to say anything if his sister walked in on her own accord. She's talented and she's hot. He would show her a good time as her boss. But who cared if he had such thoughts? Ha! Huh. What the hell? Where did number three go? Yun Shi Wu became flustered as Joy disappeared from the interview room. Where did that girl Joy go? Um. She was outside until just a moment ago but then she saw a message on her phone and ran out. What? Returning back to Ju Hian's group it's about time she showed up. Ju Hian was leisurely looking at his watch. And as he had expected bang. The door opened. Hey. Co Ju Hian. I'm going to kill you. See, I knew she would come. Ju Hian smiled mischievously. Joy, who had run like hell to get here, was huffing as she grabbed Ju Hian. My picture. I'm going to kill you if you spread that picture. Picture. Why do you even have that picture? What the hell? Captain Nim, what kind of picture is it? Chapter, 293. You don't need to know. Just hurry up and try to revive this. You can turn it into a tomb summoning item. Ju Hian threw the fossil artifact toward Joy. Your incentive is your tuition. Or whatever, I'll make sure to pay you plenty. But you only get one day to do it. What? That's your punishment for thinking about going to a shitty company like TKBM. Joy grabbed the back of her neck. Ju Hian continued to grumble. I wouldn't have said anything if she went to Gubal, our other competitor. Joy shouted at Ju Hian. You should consult Professor Zhen Kai Yuan for things like this. This is her specialty. Why would you ask me? I already contacted her. What? Well, it's for something else though. In another part of the world the monarch of evangelism, one of the four emperors who had come to excavate a tomb, was screaming. His team was not the only one. TKBM that had swept up all of Hitler's subordinates, Quan Hyuk Su, and even the other monarchs all excavation teams aiming for Ju Hian were screaming right now. They had found a good tomb and came over to excavate it, but then. Ah! There was a woman hindering their excavation. This one woman was making monarchs and high-grade artifact users unable to do anything. Why is that woman here? I thought she was working with the boss. How capricious can she be? I knew that she was extremely capricious, but still what the hell. Zhen Kai Yuan, who had been suppressing the monarch of evangelism's troops with overwhelming strength, laughed out loud. I just decided to work with Seo Ju Hian starting today. The following message was on her phone. I'll go on a date with you. Take care of the bastards in the Middle East for me. Zhen Kai Yuan was smiling like a snake ready to jump on its prey. She had no idea that Ju Hian had lied. What did you say? You asked Chen Kai Yuan to take care of the other four emperors. Yu Jeha foamed at the mouth after he heard the news. He wondered if he had heard incorrectly. So, you're saying you used Chen Kai Yuan? Yes, she's perfect for taking care of the four emperors. The enemy's movement has been a bit dangerous. Maybe it was because I got rid of Hitler, but the US president seems quite upset even if he isn't saying anything. And most importantly those shitty whiners dare to walk into our herb of eternal youth farm and our RD department wearing dirty boots. The farms and business buildings were slowly expanding because business was going so well. They were currently facing some losses because there were people hindering their progress. That's why I told her to kill any competitors trying to enter the Chinese market. Jaiha was thinking that Ju Hian truly was witty. But the condition was a date. Yu Jaiha grabbed the back of his neck. He remembered how he almost died after scamming her with a naked picture of Ju Hian. 
why didn't you call that nameless army of women who are helping you out? Well, most of what I asked her to do is taking care of the trash inside the tombs. I don't know who those women are, but I can't use women who are supporting me to do such dirty deeds. But still, Jim Kai Yuan. Captain Nim, you don't know how scary that woman is no, I guess you probably do. Anyway, that woman's scariness was a second issue. Why? There are some demon queens who will show up if the two of them really went on a date. Yu Jaeha peeked toward Ju Hian. You're not really going to go on a date with her, right? Of course not. I knew it. I knew you wouldn't really do it. Well, I won't mind going on a date with her if she performs splendidly on my request. Excuse me? It's not that hard to go to the movies and have a meal with her. Yu Jaeha turned pale. You can't say it so nonchalantly. Two demon queens, no, two demon goddesses will descend upon the world. Well, don't worry. There's no way we'll end up going on a date. Excuse me? Why not? Why would that woman listen to my request? Ah. That was true. Although that woman was a crazy lunatic, she cared quite a bit about China's benefits. The other factions were trying to suck up to China to work with them because of their issues with Zhu Hian. So why would she agree to such a joke of a deal? Zhu Hian just sent it to her as a test since those bastards were annoying Zhu Hian so much. But at that moment breaking news. China's monarch of gluttony, Professor Zhen Kai Yuan, has destroyed the US excavation team. Zhen Kai Yuan has stated that she is partnering with Seo Zhu Hian and has declared that all other excavation teams are her enemies. She claims she will destroy any country down to its root if they mess with Seo Zhu Hian. Yu Jaeha gasped after hearing what was on the news. Wait, that woman really did what the Captain Nim told her to do. It was understandable. China had always been Pandora's enemy. She probably decided that it was better to hold hands with Zhu Hian and destroy Pandora's factions rather than working with them. But Jaeha remembered Jin Kai Yuan's gaze in the monarch's tomb when she lusted after Zhu Hian's 19 picture. That was why he was sure. How badly does she want to date with him? Jaeha then saw a silent Zhu Hian. Am are you really going to go on a date? The rope that had been peacefully sleeping on Zhu Hian's shoulder raised its body after hearing that. What? A date? The eyes it doesn't have seemed to flash. Jaeha started to shake in fear after feeling its murderous intent. Why the hell is the rope getting angry? But is it really okay? Jaeha got the chills and turned the TV off. Um, what about Ju Wan? She was crying and throwing a fuss earlier. Who cares? She just needs to make a good item for me. Ah, you're pretending again. I know you donated to Ju Wan's NGO, did terrible things to get your sister adopted in the past and acted cold to her when she came to see you in Korea because of her adopted parents. Ju Hian just picked his ear. Even Jae Ha didn't really know what to make of this sibling pair. Even if Ju Wan was crying and throwing a fuss earlier the captain Nim said he'll let her dissect artifacts up and she was extremely willing to offer him chicken. They really are twins. As he had that thought ha, huh, how can he threaten someone with a photo for something like this? He ignored me for 17 years but had no issues going around seducing women. Joy was pouting as she walked out of the lab. Ju Hian made a comment, as if he was surprised she was still grumbling about the photo. Nobody cares about a naked baby photo, okay? Whatever, just take it, you idiot. I'm done. Ju Hian's eyes opened wide. You're already done. There was no way that even the most skilled engineer in the world would be able to do that in an hour. Joy threw the fossil artifact as if she was annoyed. It was quick because I didn't give a damn. It seems quite thorough for someone who didn't give a damn. Ugh, that's not true. Joy blushed and peeked toward Ju Hian. Will that work? Will you be able to summon a tomb with it? Ju Hian smiled in response. This is good enough. Then are you going to the tomb right away? No. Ju Hian smiled mischievously. Oh ho. Chairman Quan was quite interested in the person kowtowing in front of him. I see. You found some memories about Seo Ju Hian? Yes, Chairman Nim. 
Yang Chen was the person in front of Chairman Quan right now. Yes, it was the man who had betrayed Zhu Hian's tomb raiding team in the past. He was finally out of prison well, he broke out. He then immediately came to see Chairman Quan. However, Chairman Quan had been cold when he showed up. I recall telling you to never show your face in front of me again. See, Chairman Nim. My sons are in prison and the company faced serious damages because you couldn't take care of things properly. Yang Chen quickly knelt down after hearing that. I'm sorry, Chairman Nim. But please give me just one minute. Please take one look at this. He quickly pushed forward a memory artifact. I received it from the executive board. Chairman Nim, I'm sure it will help you like it helped me. Yang Chen had said that he used Merlin's camera artifact to get some memories about Seo Juhian's future or past life. Chairman Quan couldn't help but be curious. He was concerned about anything to do with that bastard. Furthermore you were the monarch of the sun? Yes sir. With Apollo's artifact? Yes sir. Chairman Quan scoffed. He thought that the monarch of the sun was a title that did not suit Yang Chen. However, Apollo's artifact was something that had never come out. He asked a question. So how much are you able to remember? Excuse me? If you get back those suspicious memories, are you able to learn information about tombs that have not come up or details about artifacts? T, that. Yang Chen hesitated to respond. That was to be expected. All he remembered was a little bit of stuff about Seo Juhian. Nobody other than someone with an amazing ability to remember things like Zhu Hian could remember all those tombs and artifacts. Damn it, Seo Zhu Hian has already marked all of the important ones. Chairman Quan slammed on the desk. I asked if you remember. Yang Chen urgently responded. No but I still believe that it will help you, Chairman Nim. I'm sure ITLL be useful when you excavate the next tomb. TSK. It's useless. The state of affairs of the world was consistently changing right now. Chairman Quan looked at the newspaper. Monarchs and artifact users in general are slowly gathering to different factions Pandora has named the Monarch of Predation Seo Ju Hian, Monarch of Love Quan Hyuk Su, Monarch of Gluttony Zhen Kai Yuan and the Monarch of Evangelism Ali as the four great artifact factions the four great factions known as the four emperors had appeared in the world. They were the core artifact users who were controlling the flow of the world. But Seo Ju Hian was in there while he was not. Damn it. I didn't expect that bastard to get this big. Amazing manpower, abilities, and wealth. That bastard was now at a spot where it would be difficult to drag him down. That was extremely aggravating to someone as greedy as Chairman Quan. That was probably the reason. Fine. I will try using that artifact you brought. Quan Hyuk Su, who was standing next to him, looked toward him wondering if Chairman Quan really meant it. Hyung Nim, even so. It won't be bad to learn some things about that bastard. Chairman Quan motioned to Yang Chen who quickly handed over the artifact. It was not a camera artifact this time. It looked like a photo album. Album of memories created by Merlin S. Grade, legendary hero grade, consumable artifact the ability was pretty much the same as the camera artifact. He opened the album to see blank black photos there. But the moment he put his hand on them, Chairman Quan's mind was sucked into the photo. He was seeing his past life as Yang Chen had seen. Kill that bastard Seo Ju Hian. Chairman Quan groaned and stumbled after seeing that scene. An anxious Quan Hyuk Su and Yang Chen grabbed Chairman Quan. Chairman Nim. Hyung Nim, are you okay? Chairman Quan's eyes were bloodshot and his hands were shaking as they helped him stay up. W, what the hell was that? The memories of his past life had flown by. He and Ju Hian seemed to change roles in that vision. Chairman Quan plopped down on the ground. It was at that moment. Buz. Someone was calling. Co Ju Hian it was that bastard. Chapter, 294. Chairman Quan was shaking while looking at the name on the phone. He didn't pick up. His mind was too much of a mess. He asked Yang Chen a question instead. Yang Chen. Tell me the truth. What the hell did I just see? 
Yan Chen clenched his eyes shut. I, I don't really know either, sir. However. Yan Chen cautiously observed Chairman Quan. Merlin, who made that artifact, said that it might be the future that is to come. This is the future that is to come. Yes sir. Then you are saying that I am the overlord of TKBM that is the greatest company in the world and even Seo Juhian will grovel under my feet? Yan Chen did not respond. It was because he knew that the scenario just described did not seem likely. Chairman Quan felt the same way. Why? The scene he just saw was a rosy and wonderful future. TKBM was an empire and he was the overlord as well as an artifact user whose strength could not be matched by any more. Most importantly, that annoying piece of shit Seo Juhian was his subordinate. Why would he shake in anger while looking at such a pleasant scene? There was no way that was the future. That was probably the reason. I need to use that artifact once more. He needed to confirm it again. However, Quan Hyuk Su stopped Chairman Quan because of how pale he was right now. Hyung Nim. Your condition seems quite serious right now. You should not overdo it. Chairman Quan didn't care and activated Merlin's album artifact again. And then Chairman Quan saw his past life and future once again. Sadly, these were memories that would have been better for his health had he not seen them. Chairman Quan's mind was truly a mess. It really is different from what I know. The memory artifact was showing Chairman Quan the first time he met Ju Hian. The Ju Hian in front of him was in his mid to late twenties. Wow, CEO Ju Hian. Who the hell is this bastard? Someone amazing just popped up. He could hear people praising Ju Hian around him. CEO Ju Hian clears the final great tomb, the Tomb of Avarice. The seven great tombs are a symbol of high grade artifacts. A regular person instead of a monopolizer has cleared the seven great tombs for the first time. Ju Hian had won in a game where the victors had already been determined. That fact was what shocked the world. Ju Hian was extremely skilled as well. Rookie excavator Seo Ju Hian has continued to clear important tombs that even large excavation teams have perished in after clearing one of the seven great tombs. Monarchs are sending passionate love calls to recruit him, Seo Ju Hian is so talented it is scary. Scouting war for Seo Ju Hian. Will he go serve a monarch or go independent and become a monarch himself? It was during the time when they were all fighting over tombs. The number of excavation teams both small and large were almost too many to count and the monarchs who had monopolized artifacts were pushing everyone around. The monarchs with large excavation teams were increasing their powers by gobbling up the smaller excavation teams all of the monarchs who were greedy for Juhian's abilities were doing everything they could to recruit Juhian. Irene had been one of them. I wish to take Seo Juhian. I think that he would be able to use unknown. It looked as if the other monarchs would give up because of her scary power of destitution. However I will do anything you want as long as you give me a healing artifact. Ju Hian chose Chairman Quan in the end. Ju Hian still looked handsome but he looked like a zombie. There was a simple reason for it. I heard that 40% of the world population has caught the tomb syndrome. Ju Hian had been unable to escape that cruel fate. Chairman Quan's status at the time had been extremely great because he monopolized the herb of eternal youth and other healing artifacts. I need a healing artifact. Ju Hian was kneeling in front of Chairman Quan. However, Ju Hian was not looking for a healing artifact for himself. I just need something to heal my family. Family? Weren't you an orphan? There are people who I treat as my family. What Ju Hian wanted was healing artifacts for Inspector Kim who had treated him as his blood-related younger brother, and Inspector Kim's wife. I also need a healing artifact for my twin sister. Chairman Quan smiled. This was so easy. He never expected to get such a talented individual so easily. I will give you a divine grade healing artifact. Do you really mean that? Trust me. I'm not the type to betray others. He then gathered some floaters who had been unable to settle in any other departments and created a new family for Ju Hian. That girl is your first subordinate. Take good care of her. Ju Hian's first subordinate was Seo Lei. 
Ju Hian had clicked his tongue and put out his cigarette after seeing Siole chatting away. He then talked crap about Chairman Quan. Why is he in such a rush that he's doing this starting Christmas Day? Julian came next, Jaha was third and Ju Hian seemed to gather the rest. Okay, Chairman Nim. I have helped you achieve everything you wanted to achieve. It's time for you to keep your promise. Chairman Quan turned around to look at Ju Hian in shock. Ju Hian, who now seemed to be in his late thirties, was asking for payment for his ten years of work pretty much as a slave he didn't want a C-grade artifact but the SS-grade healing artifact he was promised. He wanted an artifact that would really let him heal the illness rather than a low-grade artifact that could only temporarily subdue the pain and decrease the spread of the illness. Please give me an artifact that would let me heal my family and my subordinates' illnesses. He showed Chairman Quan their contract. Chairman Quan flinched while looking at Ju Hian's firm gaze that was looking directly at him. Chairman Nim. That. The moment Chairman Quan was about to say something fine. That healing artifact is yours as promised. He responded that way subconsciously. To be more specific, the Chairman Quan of the future he was inside right now had responded that way. Chairman Quan heard himself speaking once Ju Hian disappeared. It's a waste to give a healing artifact to a shitty bastard like that. Those things are extremely precious. Kill them. Kill the dog that has no more use before it aims for its master. He gave that order. It was at that moment. Ugh. Chairman Quan was sucked out of the album artifact and returned to reality. Quan Hyuk Su and Yang Chen ran over after seeing him extremely sweaty. Hyu, Hyung Nim. Chairman Quan finally plopped back down. Seo Ju Hian, Yu. His eyes were extremely bloodshot with anger. Around that same time what? Yang Chen broke out of jail. And then he went to TKBM. Julian gasped after hearing some unexpected news. It was to be expected. They had worked so hard to throw that bastard in jail. Wait, you knew that and you still let that bastard go to Chairman Quan? It's fine. I sent him with a gift. A gift you don't mean? Ju Hian started to smile. It had not been easy for Yang Chen to get out. Where was he imprisoned? Tartaros. He was in a special prison only for artifact users. Crimes using artifacts were treated completely differently from violent crimes. They were inhumane and impacted the world too much. The artifact user's dominance and affinity were also an issue. High dominance could scare the guards while crazy affinity could turn the guards to be on their side. It is quite a headache. That was why Ju Hian had Jaha create a special prison only for artifact users. Jaha could now easily build buildings since he had the Renaissance Master's artifacts. Of course, this was not a perfect Tartaros. He would need Deadless's artifact, the skilled craftsman who was known for creating many amazing things such as the Labyrinth to imprison the Minotaur, or the actual Tartaros artifact to complete it. Anyway, Ju Hian was testing it out. He wanted to see if Yang Chen could break out. He needed this for his future plans. Yang Chen seemed to have some skill as the former leader of a top-ranked excavation team as he did manage to break out of it. Yu Jiehe had despaired but Ju Hian just snickered and sent Yang Chen a congratulatory gift. It was Merlin's camera artifact. He changed it to look like an album in order for Yang Chen to not get suspicious. He even pretended it was a present from the executive board. Yang Chen's course of action after that was obvious. That bastard will definitely take it and go to Chairman Quan. He would try to use the memory artifact to have Chairman Quan take him back in. That was his only way to survive. Julian was quite shocked to hear that. What the hell? Does that mean Chairman Quan will get his memories back like Yang Chen did? That's right. But why would you return Chairman Quan's memories right now? If this tomb of avarice is the same tomb I am thinking about, I need that old bastard. That was the tomb Ju Hian had cleared before joining TKBM. He must have his reasons. Well, even if it wasn't because of that tomb, I planned on calling that old bastard out this time. Captain Nim. Ju Hian looked at his quiet phone and laughed. He seemed quite pleased. Chairman Quan suddenly couldn't control his emotions and started throwing things around. 
Bang. 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 The book on the table, a plaque, all sorts of things went flying. Kwan Hyuk Su couldn't help but be shocked. Hyu, Young Nim. Ugh. He was even hit by one of those books that was sent flying. Hyung Nim, please wait a moment. He's being weird. Chairman Kwan's reaction was quite serious. There were many times that Chairman Kwan suffered because of that shitty bastard Seo Ju Hyun. But his current reaction was completely different from normal. Seo Ju Hyun, that son of a bitch. Chairman Kwan's bloodshot eyes looked as if they would explode. He had a scary glare and his face was red. But Chairman Kwan's body was shaking as if his mind was a mess. What was that, what Chairman Kwan saw was a very simple scene. It was just a portion of when he was one of the four emperors and how he had suppressed Ju Hian. It was because Merlin's artifact was very different from the Raven's Tears. It did not give him any important information. It didn't even give him any useful information at all. But the anger he felt inside the scene was directly transferred to his heart. He then realized it. This really isn't the future that is to come. Yes sir. I believe it is the future that should have happened. Yan Chen warily looked toward Chairman Quan as he continued speaking. That future changed because Seo Ju Hian got in our way. I wonder if there is such a thing as a past life. Chairman Quan's pupils were shaking. Why was he feeling extremely angry after seeing those images? It was because he felt as if he had been bitten by a dog he was raising. An angry Chairman Quan quickly took out his phone. Hyung Nim. Chairman Quan then clenched his eyes shut. Seo Ju Hian would be the reason if the future really did change. That bastard might know about the sights he just saw. But it's not like I can just ask that bastard. He knew what kind of person Seo Ju Hian was. And for some odd reason, he was scared to call Ju Hian. He gulped. I should try to figure out a different way but at that moment Bios. Crash. Chairman Kwan dropped his phone after getting another call. His face turned pale after seeing the name on the screen. Chairman Nim. Chairman Kwan hesitated for a bit before picking the phone back up with shaking hands. H, hello. Hey there, stupid phone salesman. Chapter, 295. Chairman Kwan immediately frowned. Stupid phone salesman. That was probably the title Ju Hian used when they first met. At first, he wondered how there could be such a crazy bastard. But it was different now. Chairman Quan's mind was complicated now that he had a bit of the memories of the past. Why? The bastard he thought was a random lunatic actually had a deep relationship with him. Furthermore, if what the artifact showed him was true, Ju Hian was his lackey. Chairman Kwan was extremely angry at the fact that someone like that got in his way so much. This dog-like son of a bitch. He looked as if he would have sneered at Ju Hian if they were face to face. But Chairman Kwan seemed to be scared about something after seeing those memories. His hands still could not stop shaking. Ju Hian commented at that moment, as if he knew what Chairman Kwan was scared about. I heard you received the memory artifact from Yang Chen. How much were you able to figure out? Did you manage to get any information about important tombs or artifacts? You probably don't know a thing. Ju Hian's tone was making Chairman Quan close to raging in anger. You son of a bitch. That was right. This was what Chairman Quan was scared about. People tend to be scared about things they don't know. He was feeling scared that Ju Hian had information he didn't know about. Furthermore, the information Ju Hian seemed to have was at no ordinary level. A person from the future. If he knew everything that happened in the future, nothing in this world could compare to him. And if the future he saw was the one that was supposed to happen, that was an even greater problem. He saw a society dominated by the monopolizers. Co Ju Hian was changing that future completely. This bastard was someone who should have worked as his slave for ten years. And, although he couldn't be sure, he probably didn't keep the promise he made with Ju Hian. Knowing that Ju Hian probably had grudges against him made it even scarier. He was scared this bastard would gobble him up. He didn't know what this bastard was planning to do with him. 
he didn't know how to deal with this bastard who was changing the future. It would be one thing if he remembered everything. That might be why Chairman Kwan thoroughly rejected the notion that what he saw was the future. I don't know what the hell you did, but I can tell that the future that this bastard Yang Chen showed me is a lie. Yang Chen almost jumped in shock. Chairman Nim what do you ug? Boom. Yang Chen was having trouble breathing after being instantly choked. Hyung Nim. See, Chairman Nim it's not AL. Shut up. How dare you try to mess with me with something like this after failing your mission. You, ugh. Chairman Quan glared at Yang Chen with his bloodshot eyes while his hand was squeezing Yang Chen's neck. You, ugh. Chairman Nim. Please don't do th this despicable bastard. I wondered why you showed up but you showed up as Seo Juhian spy. T, that's not ugh. I should have figured it out from the moment you claimed to have broken out of that prison. Did Seo Juhian let you out to do this? A, ah. Please trust. Trust you. Are you trying to rile me up? Believing that future means that I was bitten by a dog that I raised. Ugh. Juhian was clutching his stomach and laughing as he heard Yang Chen suffocating. This stupid old bastard. He was trying to kill a bastard who could help him because he couldn't trust him. Well, Juhian didn't care whether Yang Chen died or not. He expected this from the moment he knew Yang Chen would go to Chairman Quan. That old bastard is that kind of person. Yang Chen probably went to grab a lifeline after Chloe made it so that he couldn't use artifacts, but Chairman Quan was no lifeline. Even after seeing the future, he was the type who would not accept such a shitty future because of his pride. He would definitely not accept it with Ju Hian calling him to tease him like this. As expected, Chairman Quan commented while choking Yang Chen. CO Ju Hian your scheme will not work. Did you plan to confuse me with such a fake future? What the hell? You already found out. I helped that bastard Yang Chen break out of prison to do such a shitty job. The wronged Yang Chen screamed while Chairman Quan ground his teeth. And then Yang Chen's voice could not be heard anymore. Ju Hian calmly added on after that. Of course I was joking. Ju Hian despicably smiled. If you can't believe it, let me tell you something quite entertaining about the future. For example, maybe the business you are thinking of starting? Chairman Quan seemed quite anxious. This was extremely top secret information that had not leaked. But Ju Hian just casually started talking about it. XX Artifact City Construction Business Investments for your daughter Quan Ju He Creation of an Artifact Foundation Ah, you were going to call it AA right? You were also going to purchase land in Zone A for your in-laws. By the way, they all fail. Just don't do them. I made them all fail. I took care of all those corrupt bastards. This crazy fucker. Ju Hian even knew about other things as well. You were going to name your first granddaughter Tae He, right? I really have to leave it to you, you old bastard. But did you have to put a part of your name into your granddaughter's name? This bastard. Ju Hian continued on while Chairman Kwan was shaking in anger. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. What matters to me is that you know about it. What? It was getting boring messing with someone who doesn't know anything. Ju Hian sounded quite pleased. Without the Raven's artifact, all those bastards would get was like watching a movie. It was completely different from the Raven's tears that would fuse the memories of the person here with their future selves. He knew that Yang Chen sharing the album with Chairman Quan would not harm them in any way. Well, they'll just feel as if it was them. It was the perfect amount Ju Hian wanted them to remember. I was changing the difficulty since you don't know jack shit. The team members around him gasped. He did this to change the difficulty. Ju Hian was being serious. Now that you saw that, I can stop warming up now, right? What? Warning up. Chairman Quan was about to quickly say something, but click. The call ended abruptly. Hayu, Hyung Nim. Quan Hyuk Su seemed anxious while looking at Chairman Quan. The suffocated Yang Chen wasn't moving at all. Chairman Quan had thrown his phone with his face flushed with anger the moment Ju Hian hung up. 
That deplorable bastard. The thing he was worried about seemed as if it would become reality. I'll be gobbled up by this bastard. He tried to believe that what he saw was not true, but it was useless. The events of the past life started to feel more as if it had been his own as time went on. He didn't know about most things, but the fact that he had been Juhian's master and gave the order to kill him things like that seemed to want to spark some things in his mind. That made him even angrier. How dare he? According to his memories, that bastard was his subordinate. But what? Warming up. Is that bastard fucking crazy? Chairman Quan was about to explode. He had suffered quite a lot at Ju Hian's hands already. The herb of eternal youth, Ju Hian embarrassing his stupid son-in-law, grabbing Yu Jeha from under his nose, making him become the enemy of the US-Europe alliance turning him into a corpse inside a coffin, shamelessly imprisoning his children and looting his artifact. This shitty bastard also ruined his relationships with his precious partner businesses. He even stole TKBM stock and rattled the company. Thinking about how he had to sell precious artifacts and tomb excavation rights at cheap prices to deal with these losses was aggravating. Even as a large global corporation, TKBM had faced danger quite a few times because of Ju Hian. Chairman Quan was barely able to stabilize the shaking company because he had artifacts, tomb excavation rights, and a know-how about excavation. Most countries and businesses looked favorably on him because he was one of the trailblazers in the artifact world. But they would only support him a few times. Yet Ju Hian was saying all of this was just a warm-up. Ow. Being extremely angry was one thing I need to stop that bastard. I need to regain my position. That bastard was aiming for him. He didn't know for sure, but it was probably for revenge. And that bastard would head to even greater heights. Ju Hian was the type who would do it just to destroy him. Chairman Quan slammed his hand on the table while going crazy with anger. Contact Pandora right away and make them prepare the following artifact. Excuse me. We need to stop him from clearing the seven great tombs first. I have a pretty good idea about what that bastard is going to do. Chairman Quan, whose ass has been on fire, started to smile. It was only for a moment, but he had seen something in those memories. He would use that to make that bastard Seo Juhian fall to the ground. The angry Chairman Quan's eyes looked quite evil. Excuse me. You know where Seo Juhian is going to summon a tomb? Pandora and the large excavation teams of different countries were tilting their heads in confusion. It was because of a message they received from TKBM two days ago. They claimed to have information on Seo Juhian. Of course, they already knew that Ju Hian was going to summon the Tomb of Avarice with the fossil artifact he took from George Holton. But they had no idea where he would summon it. The Grand Canyon. Unexpectedly, Chairman Quan said that Ju Hian might summon the tomb there. There were some other potential spots as well but that was the most likely spot. There was a reason for his theory. The Tomb of Avarice I saw in that memory was in the Grand Canyon. Of course, he might not summon it there. But there were many factors that made it very likely. For example, there was the most ideal environment to consider. Furthermore, Ju Hian had moved around the Grand Canyon area. Although it was difficult to figure out how Chairman Quan figured it out, it was quite amazing. There was something even more amazing. I also know the artifact necessary to open the entrance of the Tomb of Avarice. Chairman Quan even knew how to open the tomb. He didn't know the details about how to clear it, but he had some ideas. The surprising thing was that the Tomb of Avarice really had been summoned and a team arrived at the Grand Canyon. The peaks sticking up in the desert were proof. Chairman Quan smiled after hearing that they had found the tomb. I will thoroughly use that memory to my benefit. Around that same time Captain Nim, are you not going to use the Raven's Tears on Chairman Quan? On a desolate desert in the United States around the Grand Canyon the team members looked around as they asked. Ju Hian gave a simple response. No, I will use it. You are going to use it. Ju Hian smiled. That old bastard has some glimpses of the future right now. The chances of him remembering the things I want him to remember are pretty low. Then. I am going to use the raven's tears on that bastard at the final moment. Then I will make him thoroughly realize it. 
he will feel the shame of being bitten by a dog he has raised. But what he knew was enough for right now. But that old bastard seems to have gotten a useful memory. The team members clicked their tongues while looking at the hordes of excavation teams in the desert. That was right. Their enemies, who somehow figured out where they would be, were all around the desert. Well, maybe it wasn't too shocking. They had not hid their movements at all. Juhian even summoned it here on purpose. However wow, those bastards even know how to open the entrance. The enemies who had followed Juhian seemed to know how to get inside. The artifacts in their hands were proof that was the case. It was to be expected. Chairman Quan should have seen the Tomb of Avarice while going through those memories. That tomb was the one Juhian had cleared. He had discussed the way to open the tomb with numerous newspapers. Chairman Quan was probably going to use that memory as foundation to get inside before Ju Hien, but well, it doesn't matter. You have a point. They can't do anything like that. They could see a lot of people screaming in front of them. Ah! What the hell is that? Which one is the real tomb? That was right. There were hundreds of the same peaks around the Grand Canyon. They were the fake tombs that Jeha had created. He had copied the fossil artifact itself to call forth hundreds of tombs. Jeha, who was still copying the fossil artifact to summon even more fake tombs, laughed out loud. Ha ha ha, good luck finding the real tomb, you retards. I bet that you can't find it. There's no way you'll find it. Kaka kaka kaka. He seemed quite excited while summoning tombs left and right. Captain Nim. I did good, right? Did I do good? If so, please change my contract. Profits divided 9 colon 1. Please be humane and give me at least 10%. Well, he wasn't really thinking about taking it. You can just have all 10. Oh, really? Really? Oh yeah. Juhian smiled while looking at his confused enemies. Let's go inside. Time to go to the real tomb. Chapter, 296 Fuck, monarch of pushoverness, you son of a bitch. In the large canyon located in the southwest part of the United States people all over the flowing canyon were swearing up a storm. Ow. This isn't it either. I'm going to kill that son of a bitch first. People were sighing while looking at the pillars of rocks shooting up inside the Grand Canyon. The tombs inside this orange-colored canyon forced everybody to sigh. They stared at the sharp but majestic stone cliffs. If there was a castle for ancient devils, this might be how it looks. However, the problem wasn't this view. Fuck, this one doesn't seem to be it either. Are you sure it's here? The problem was the numerous tombs that appeared on top of the canyon. They had the artifact to open the tomb, but it didn't matter. They couldn't even tell which tomb was real. Chase Seo Juhian those bastards will be headed for the real tomb. But the people looking for Juhian started screaming. The devils are starting to rampage. They are hunting humans with excitement. Large monsters started appearing throughout the Grand Canyon. They were Solomon's devils Ilya had summoned. Humans, I see humans. A devil with a lion's head, a devil that looked like a lizard, all sorts of devils were ripping people apart, throwing them in the air, and causing all sorts of issues. Boom. Boom. Ah. That wasn't all. I found you, C.O. Juhian. Someone managed to track Juhian down and had a sniper rifle pointed at him. Ho ho. What are you doing all the way out here? What else would I ug? He ended up unconscious after being caught by the tomb raiding team's greatest hunter. It had happened in an instant. The enemies probably didn't even know what happened to them. The others who showed up late couldn't help but be afraid. That's crazy. Everybody spying on Juhian's location through a rifle scope turned pale. It made sense because there were over ten teams spying on Juhian's group. But all of them were taken out in just a few minutes. How many teams did that bastard take down? It was at that moment. How many teams? Thirteen now. You guys are number 13. They heard a chilling voice behind them. The moment they noticed that voice off. They coughed up blood. 
Dan didn't even take out his weapon. His big hands just chopped down on their necks. Ciole sighed while looking at Dan who was leisurely cleaning up. They should try harder if they're going to hide. The combination of the tomb raiding team's greatest radar and its greatest guard was extremely formidable. An excited Ujeha was still creating fake tombs as that happened. He 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 he, they won't be able to find it. They won't be able to find it. Da Vinci's artifact was in one hand, a rock-shaped fossil was in the other hand as he activated and activated again. Ha ha ha, I get all of the profits, all of it. He seemed too happy that Ju Hien was giving him all of the profits. He was making the tomb so quickly that he just seemed to be pressing Control c and then Control v He was going crazy. Captain Nim is the best. I can now proudly make money off my paintings. I'll be able to buy myself steak. Well, he would have gotten all of the profits from the beginning since it was selling his paintings. Ju Hien stopped the extremely excited Jeha. Hey hey, I know you're excited, but that's enough. You can stop now. Ah, uh, really? So which one is the real one? We should head inside soon. Jeha smiled brightly and pointed with his finger. Ah, uh, Captain Nim, you idiot, you can't find it. The real one is over. Jeha started to sweat. Over there. W, which one do you think it is? Take a guess. What? Ah, uh, I definitely remembered which one it was. Um, this is weird. Which one is it? Ju Hien looked furious. I'm taking one out of ten. Eek my profits. Ah B, but I still have nine. I'll find it quickly. No. I took one out of ten so you have zero. W, what? Yu Jeha started to cry. It'll be bad if Seo Ju Hien clears all seven great tombs. Prometheus was deep in thought. It was because he had heard that Seo Ju Hien had summoned one of the seven great tombs. After I worked so hard to kill the artifact from that great tomb. He frowned while leaning on the couch. An artifact's corpse those fossil artifacts were a combined effort of the spider supreme leader and Prometheus. They had killed them. Why? It was so that Seo Ju Hien won't be able to gather all of the artifacts from the seven great tombs. It would be bad if all of those artifacts were gathered together. The seal on that place will be removed if those artifacts are gathered together. There were bastards who had gone against them in the past. There were many thorns in their eyes, including that crow. They had gathered all of those annoying bastards and imprisoned them. It was difficult to suppress them with strength, so they had to scheme to make it happen. They pretty much smacked them in the back. Anyway, that place was a place to exile artifacts. It was the artifact's great prison. Other artifacts were scared of being imprisoned there as well. Well, the most famous one in there is the crow's tomb. Anyway, the artifacts from the seven great tombs were the keys to unlock the seal on that great prison. That hidden land of exile will appear in the world if Seo Juhian collects all seven of the artifacts from the great tombs. That was why it was problematic. It's problematic enough as is. The seal was shaking because Seo Ju Hien already had over half of the seven great artifacts. That crow had used that opening from the seal weakening to send out its clone. Thankfully his contract is with a clone and not the real body. Ju Hien would contract with the crow's real body if that prison appeared in the world. He might even end up with multiple of those thorns in their eyes inside that prison. Bastards like Zeus are in there as well. They had killed the remaining great artifacts so that Seo Juhian would be unable to gather all seven of them. Why did George Holton have it? Prometheus rubbed his temples. This god who had given humans these devils called artifacts instead of fire was quite anxious. Damn it, Seo Juhian might be able to clear the tomb of avarice. But forget clearing the tomb of avarice what did you just say? You damn scammer. That I uh I don't know which one is the real to ah. Uh. Yu Jeha screamed. The entire team looked like demons as they kicked Jeha. What did this bastard just say? What the fuck are we going to do if you don't know which tomb is real? Ha! I should have realized it when he started mass producing them like crazy. Hurry up and find it. You're dead if you can't find it. 
Jeha cried after facing the wrath of the angry team members. No, I didn't do it on purpose. Ow. Go out and die. I was wondering why you hadn't caused any issues in a while. A crying Jeha grabbed Juhian's foot. Juhian was his only savior right now as he felt that the others would murder him. Captain Nim. You understand how I feel, right? I didn't mean to do that. Juhian smiled brightly at him. Understand how you feel my ass. Ah. Put Osiris away. Put it away. A brightly smiling Juhian was extremely scary. The rope was also violently twitching behind Juhian. It then tied Jeha up and tried to throw him off the Grand Canyon. Yu Jeha was crying for his life. Egu. I'm really sorry. Please save me. Good luck climbing back up. Ah. Captain Nim, please, PLASE. I'll find it quickly. Jeha was crying but started to look for the real tomb. The others were trying their best to figure it out as well, but damn it you Jeha, that little punk. He made them so damn good for no reason. Even Julian who had Juga Kongming's eyes was struggling. He was a talented appraiser but the monarch of fraud was truly skilled. Jeha's copies were the only thing Julian could not appraise properly. I could find them if I dedicated a whole month to it, but they couldn't just calmly compare the tombs to figure out which one was the real one right now. But they also couldn't go through hundreds of tombs to find out either. Captain, is there a tomb that's giving you a gut feeling? Ju Hien was the only one here who had cleared the tomb of Avarice. It was known as an impossible to clear tomb that Ju Hien's feet had caused quite the stir. They thought that Ju Hien might be able to recognize the real one because he had cleared it once already. Furthermore won't the crow's artifact be able to tell where the artifact is? The crow that likes shiny things had a scary good sense of smell for artifacts. They were relying on that. However I really don't know. The team members gasped. E, even you don't know. Captain Nim, you can't tell. Ah. I know how to find the real tomb. The team members were relieved. But Julian soon tilted his head in confusion. Huh. Then what do you not know? What had Juhian been talking about? The crow's artifact has been quiet for some reason. That was right. The crow was completely calm outside the tomb of Avarice. This bastard would have normally urged Juhian to grab it and to eat it. It's too calm. The system was weird as well. I think you don't really need to go into this tomb. I think that the artifact inside is not that good. It might be best to go back, wash your feet, and go to bed. This punk. What the hell does it mean there isn't a good artifact in there? The thing in there is really good. Juhian frowned while looking at the tomb glyphs around them. Captain. I'm certain. That is the tomb I cleared before. He had been quite curious. The tomb of Avarice was where he had earned his first artifact. Getting the artifact of excavation here was the reason he became an artifact user. It was also the artifact that allowed him to be the greatest tomb clearer in the past life. In some sense, it was truly his partner artifact. The crow's artifact was giving him the excavation skills right now, but he had a special relationship with this artifact because it was his first. He had been curious to know whether he would meet this artifact again in this changed future. This had been the tomb he had been looking forward to the most of all of the seven great tombs. He was certain now that they were here. That artifact is inside. The shape of the tomb and the tomb glyphs confirmed it. However the artifact has gotten stronger than in the past. Juhian was happy. That was why he was about to go in, but you will have some gains if you go inside, but I recommend going into a different tomb. I believe a useless bitch will be in this tomb. What the hell? Why is this punk being like this for this tomb? It's never done this before. It didn't matter. Captain Nim, I'm sorry. That one and that one over there both look like the real one Ugh. It's fine, you little punk. Juhian smacked Jeha in the back of the head before calling out an artifact. And then you called me. Chapter, 297. The entire team was shocked. What appeared next to them was a glamorous woman with quite the voluptuous figure. 
Julian's eyes opened wide. He wondered who it was for a moment but the chaotic aura quickly helped him figure it out. I was wondering what he was calling out. You really were planning on leaving it to the crow. I guess there really is no other choice. This delicious appearance was just a bonus. Ironically, Juhian looked as if he had chewed on shit. Why? Why did you come out? Julian was shocked to hear that. Huh? You weren't calling for the crow. Juhian did not call the crow. Juhian glared at the woman. You motherfucking crow, hurry up and take out that bastard. The woman quickly disappeared and something black popped out. That black figure leisurely sat down on top of a boulder. The team members were shocked to see this form as well. That is. A lustrous jet black body, haughty red eyes a sharp and pointy bird's beak it was a crow. The crow was looking down at Juhian's group with its haughty eyes. The team members who had doubted that the sexy babe was the crow dropped their jaws. What the hell? It really was the crow. Holy shit, the crow was such a voluptuous nunum. Siole was gasping while Jeha was excited. But Juhian growled at the crow again as if he found it annoying. Stop bullshitting with your fake appearance and hurry up and hand over that bastard. Don't digest the pitiful moron. Digest? A black fog gathered around the crow. There was a flailing and whining worm inside the fog. S. Save me. Save me. It had been gobbled up by the crow's aura and was being forcibly digested. Julian started shouting, as if he finally understood Juhian's plan. You were going to use the worm to find the real tomb. That bastard was really good at telling apart real and fake artifacts when it ripped them off. But why was it being eaten by the crow? The worm was crying while seeing the digestive juices. Human. Hurry up and save me. I'm really going to melt. Juhian gave the crow an order. Hurry up and spit up that bastard. The crow feigned ignorance. I don't remember eating anything. Then what is that stupid insect being digested right now? You'll get in trouble if you eat random things. Spit that bastard out while I'm asking nicely. The crow spit the worm up with an annoyed expression on its face. To be more specific, the worm fell to the ground once the black aura disappeared. The worm sniffled as it crawled over to Juhian. It was sad that its hairs were melted by the digestive juices. It's all burnt. All of it is burnt. The worm hid behind Juhian's foot as if it was scared of the crow. Juhian then glared at the crow. You weren't planning on taking the worm's appearance to scam me, were you? The crow could change its appearance to an artifact it had eaten. The crow turned its head away. Juhian shook his head and looked at the worm. Hurry up and find the real tomb. Oh, okay. But Mula, the money Julian was shocked once he saw the worm writing something on the ground. It might be because he already experienced being ripped off by the worm in the monarch's tomb. Hold on. It's dangerous to use that bastard. Everybody here will be ripped off by it. Juhian sneered at Julian. The one who gets ripped off by it is the retard. Juhian stepped on the worm and threatened it. Find the real tomb if you don't want to be digested. The scared worm groaned and pointed somewhere. Oh, over there. It's over there. I smell money over there. The worm was pointing to a tomb that was hidden by many other tombs. Juhian nodded his head. Good, let's go. But what good would the worm finding it do? It seems to be wrong. I don't think it is that tomb. I think that the worm bastard is useless. I really should eat it. The crow's aura started to chaotically swirl around Juhian. Chairman Nim, we seem to have found the real tomb. TKBM members gulped while looking at Chairman Kwan. It had been one month since he returned as a corpse inside the coffin and then embarrassed by Ramesses's artifact. Chairman Kwan was actually at a tomb excavation site in person for the first time in a long while. They finally seemed to have found the right tomb after being annoyed at the numerous fakes. We believe it is that tomb over there. TKBM was still one of the top-ranked excavation teams even if their status had taken a hit because of Juhian. CO Juhian is moving toward that tomb. 
They were spying on Ju Hian's group from a distance. Dan would just wipe them out if they did it too close. They were too scared to get any closer. But it was fine. Nothing else matters as long as we know which one is the right tomb. Chairman Quan closed his eyes and went through his memories again. He was remembering the past life the artifact showed him. He was recalling the events he saw while possessing his other body. So, how did you clear that tomb? That tomb? Everybody is shocked because of you. They want to know what you did to clear it. The tomb of avarice that Ju Hian had cleared was special in many ways. He has cleared the impossible to clear tomb of avarice. Will the pride of the monopolizers crumble? There had been a wall of sorts at that time. The regular excavation teams could not catch up to the large excavation teams because the monopolizers had already taken all of the good artifacts. Changes to the industrial world because of artifacts, the speculators going berserk, people sacrificed by artifacts there were even monopolies on drinking water, air, and other basic necessities. That was why the Tomb of Avarice had been a beacon of hope for regular excavators. For the monopolizers, they needed to clear it to maintain their sense of pride to not have their power diminished. Chairman Quan couldn't help but ask when he scouted Ju Hian. How did you clear that tomb? That Chairman Quan had seen that conversation. He experienced himself asking Ju Hian that question while accepting Ju Hian as his subordinate. Ju Hian responded like this. It's just a place you just have to give your body to it. Give your body to it. There are seven trials would you like me to tell you about all of the traps? Chairman Quan started to laugh. The path is this way. They decided to scheme a little. He was going to use a side path Ju Hian in his memories had told him about. You can safely get inside the tomb using that side path. They dug in the ground and headed toward the side path. It wasn't hard to find because Ju Hian had given him very detailed information. The TKBM captains gulped and looked toward Chairman Quan. It really should be safe, right sir? That's right. Ju Hian had said that it was safe. That bastard claimed to use this path to get inside the tomb. It should be fi. But what? Ache. Ah. There were screams coming from multiple directions. What the, what happened? Ugh. Ah. Excavation team members were dying left and right. A black figure fell from the ceiling and cut off multiple people's heads. I, I can't breathe. Poison gas suffocated people as well. Chairman Quan couldn't believe it. That was to be expected. How is this a safe side path? This path was extremely dangerous. If the danger level was divided into high, mid, and low, this would be considered one of the highest danger levels. This would be a path that they would normally avoid at all costs. But that bastard made it through this path to get inside. The Juhian in his memory had no artifacts whatsoever at that time. Was it really a fake future? It did not seem to be fake. He could faintly feel the presence of Juhian's group in this side path. That meant that Juhian's group must have used this side path as well. He didn't know what to think. This must be the safest path. There was something Chairman Quan missed. Ju Hian had said something else after that. Yes sir. That was the safest path. Well, although everybody else died. Ah. Ah. Screams continued all around them. It truly lived up to its name of being impossible to clear in the past as hundreds of people on the excavation team were quickly dwindling down to the tens. H. Huff. All of Team 4 is dead. The entire supply team has perished. Ju Hian's team members clicked their tongues after hearing noises in the distance. They had made it through a ton of traps to get here as well, but crazy CEO Ju Hian. As expected of the Captain Nim. He's no joke. They were looking at Ju Hian as if they couldn't believe it. You really cleared a tomb like this without any artifacts? Yeah. I did. The team members grabbed the back of their necks at Ju Hian's nonchalant response. He's really crazy. They couldn't help it. The difficulty of this tomb was so high that the veteran team members here were struggling. They understood why even the monarchs couldn't clear this tomb in the past. 
but Zhu Hian had gotten the artifact of avarice from this tomb without any artifact. Zhu Hian just stomped on some bugs that came out as he responded. Well, even I was fighting for my life and pretty close to dying at that time. He did have knowledge of tombs and artifacts at that time as well. Society was dominated by artifacts. He studied as if his life was on the line in order to survive. He even found ways to steal information that the monopolizers had monopolized in order to study as much as he could. It was a world where you couldn't live a human-like life without at least having an A-grade artifact. But the many tombs he worked his ass off to get inside resulted in nothing as the large excavation teams beat them to the artifacts every time. The tomb of Avarice was the only one left. He thought that he had no future if he couldn't get this artifact. Anyway, this is ah, uh, be careful of that thing above your head. Excuse me? Ah! Jeha cried after almost having his head cut off. He kept mumbling about how he hated this tomb. Juhian didn't care and just continued to speak. This tomb is a maze. You need to get through seven trials and earn seven tokens of proof to get the boss bastard. That boss bastard should be the archaeologist's artifact you got in the past, right Captain Nim? Probably. The layout of the tomb is the same and the aura of the artifact is the same as well. Juhian started to smile. He sounded uncertain but he was becoming more confident the farther they walked into the tomb. It's that artifact. It was much stronger than in the past that it could even be used as an heirloom. It was at that moment. Ha! Huh. Won't your abilities overlap a bit if it is that artifact? What? Julian explained his question. You are using the crow's artifact to use the abilities you had with the archaeologist's artifact. Jeha noticed something and shouted. Ah! Then please give us the artifact of avarice. You already have the tomb excavation skill Captain Nim. The entire team looked extremely excited. My goodness, if I can be an expert excavator at the Captain Nim's level. Juhian snorted at them to stop dreaming. Get lost, it's mine. This artifact is special. Take that damn crow instead, you little punks. The team members clicked their tongues. Wow, he's thinking about throwing the crow away and using his old artifact. TSK, I guess it's true that you can't forget your first love. There's no way an artifact file could forget his first artifact. Shut the hell up. Juhian stood in front of the first trial. Well, it's not an easy trial to pass even if you know how to clear it. Julian agreed. It really is a difficult test to clear. First trial, do 100 push-ups in one minute. P.S. Dance and sing with joy as you do it. How the hell did he clear this in the past? But there's no need to do what it wants this time. Julian looked toward Juhian. Juhian smiled and flicked his finger. Tomb destruction. As Juhian was about to destroy the door the system is temporarily unavailable. This is an extremely low quality tomb. This little punk. Chapter, 298. Juhian looked at the system window in disbelief. But he didn't think much of it. He believed it was a temporary issue. He focused and tried to use the skill again. Tomb destruction. And the moment he tried to focus his skill in his outstretched hand. You are unable to use the skill. It seems as if you would be able to use it if you left this tomb. This little punk. Juhian looked at the system window with disbelief again. He could tell what happened. The crow bastard had paused the skill. This bastard. Captain Nim. Juhian tried using his other skills as well. Unfortunately, artifact destruction, dexterity, stealth, tomb restoration, most of his skills were not working. The only skill that still seemed to be working was his tolerance. It still didn't want Juhian to get hurt in a tomb. But all skills that would help him clear a tomb were sealed. The messages continued. You are advised to quickly leave the tomb. There are much better tombs nearby. The owner of this tomb is probably a useless artifact who is rude and petty. You're the one who is rude and petty, you punk. What the hell is it doing right now? The rest of the team were confused after hearing Juhian's statement. Captain. 
Ju Hian was the only one who could see the system window. It just looked like Ju Hian was suddenly shouting at the air for no reason. What is it? Did something happen? Captain Nim, is something wrong? Chloe and Ciole looked toward Ju Hian with concern. Julian looked toward Ju Hian with a look of disbelief. Are you unable to use your skills? You figured it out. Well, the aura I usually see when you use your skills is not visible. That damn crow didn't disappear, did it? That's not it. It stuck to me as usual. It's just that. Just that what? Never mind. Keep your paws away, this bastard is mine. It's mine. Was Julian wrong to think that Juhian looked like a cat that was hissing with his fur standing straight up? Julian grabbed his forehead before looking back at Juhian. Anyway, isn't it bad if you can't use your skills? From now on. It's not a big deal. It looks like I'll be able to use it again once I get out of this tomb. What? Then we should get out of here first. Juhian didn't seem to care. It wasn't as if he relied on such skills to clear tombs in the past. He had even cleared this tomb of avarice without a single artifact in the past. It wouldn't impact his ability to clear the tomb. Although he didn't know why the crow was trying so hard to stop him, the fact that it was doing that must mean this must be an extremely good artifact. Maybe it was so strong that even the crow was wary of it. He was quite amused. He planned to take it because it had been his first artifact in the past, but now looks like I now need to take it no matter what. Ju Hian made up his mind and addressed his team. We will definitely take the artifact from this tomb. The crow seemed quite anxious. No, you little punk, that's not it. The crow worked hard to continue sending system windows. This is the tomb of a good-for-nothing bitch. It is smarter to wash your feet clean and go to bed rather than get this bitch. But none of that mattered. Oh, it's a female artifact. Even better. I was annoyed that most of my strong artifacts were male. I'll take this one and make it my partner artifact. The crow had dug its own grave it was at that moment. Julian gasped knowing that Ju Hian could not use his powers right now. I guess we have no choice. We'll have to clear the trials. But one zero zero push-ups in one minute. Is something like that even possible? Jeha laughed out loud. It's fine, Dan might be able to do it. Jeha poked Dan's buff bicep, however bubo bo boom. The ground underneath Ilya suddenly shot up. Ilya. They were shocked. Only Ilya had shot up, as if the tomb was creating a stage for him. What the hell? Juhian remembered this from the past. It is deciding the participant to clear each trial. They were all shocked. Juhian calmly added on. It's supposed to be random. I guess you can call it a drawing of sorts. Juhian wiped the bumpy orange wall next to him. He could see Ilya's name written on the wall in Tumblif. The tomb had randomly chosen a participant. But it looked quite odd. It felt as if someone had forcibly changed the name. It felt as if there was another name but someone quickly changed it to Ilya's name. Juhian touched the pieces that had fallen off. It looks like it was supposed to be my name, Juhian peeked at his aura. Hey! Stupid bird brain! The crow's aura that had been extended to the wall slowly seemed to crawl back. It was as if it got caught in the middle of fixing the random drawing. This little bastard! It didn't matter. Congratulations, Ilya. You're the one who will clear this trial. Juhian found this so funny that he was clutching his stomach as he laughed. The rest of the team grabbed the back of their necks in anger. Co Juhian. This is not funny. Why did they have to pick the weakest of the team? Ilya could do all sorts of scam-like magic with his spellbook artifacts but his body was as weak as a baby chick's because of the artifacts' risks. He even lost to Ciole and Chloe in arm wrestling or running. One Jew, Hian, smiled brightly. Anybody on my team should be able to overcome a trial like this. Right? His smile was saying that he would kill anybody who failed. Ilya was sweating bullets. Yes, yes sir. This is like taking candy from a baby. Damn it. I'm fucked. 
At the same time huh? What the hell? What is going on? The artifact guarding the first trial tilted its head in confusion. Master told me to choose Seo Juhian so I picked him. That was right. This tomb's master, the artifact of Avarice, was oddly interested in Juhian. Its interest was understandable. Juhian was the most famous person in the artifact world. The Grim Reaper of the Artifact World. That was the title they gave this human. Most artifacts wanted to mess with him and kill him. The guard was thinking that its master wanted to see Juhian suffer as well. Of course, its master seemed to be interested in Juhian for a different reason. Anyway, they had worked hard to create these trials to torment Juhian for their master. But what? Why did the challenger change? The owner of the tomb started getting angry after seeing that the challenger changed from Juhian to Ilya. Boom! The ground shook and they heard an angry voice. I told you to mess with Seo Juhian. The guard artifact, well, the guard devil, became anxious after hearing the voice. I, I definitely chose Seo Juhian, I don't know what happened. The devil urgently explained the situation. It's probably the work of that damn bastard crow that is with Seo Juhian the owner of the tomb revealed itself after hearing that. Crow. Are you talking about the moron imprisoned in the great prison? A young girl with white hair had appeared. This was the artifact that had been Juhian's partner in the past. Returning back to Juhian's group Ilya, will you really be okay? Ilya, who had to face this trial of doing 1-0-0 push-ups in one minute, was sweating bullets. He called it as easy as taking candy from a baby, but this was not humanly possible. He would die while he attempted it. But the captain will kill me if I fail. That meant that the results would be the same either way. Jeha laughed his ass off while watching Ilya struggling with the push-ups. Hey hey, he really can't do it, he absolutely can't do it. Can you even do a single push-up? Why I ought to. As he had that thought boom. The ground shook and something suddenly appeared. They were large bugs. They looked like centipedes with hundreds of legs but they were bigger than the average adult. The centipedes approached Ilya. Julian shouted toward Ilya. They plan on eating you if you fail the trial. Julian prepared to cast his thunderbolts. He then urgently turned toward Juhian. Hurry up and tell him how to clear it. This trial is not something a normal person can clear. Ilya is going to die hey. Julian foamed at the mouth while looking at Juhian. Instead of telling Ilya how to clear it, Juhian was leisurely sitting on the rope as if it was a chair and eating snacks as he watched. Hey! Your subordinate might get eaten. If you don't know how to clear it, why don't you try analyzing it? What the hell are you doing? Aren't you supposed to be our strategist? I know how to clear it but we don't have the right artifact for it right now. Then just leave it to that bastard. Damn. How the hell did this bastard clear this tomb without any artifacts? Why is he making things so difficult when it could be much easier? The team members all stepped forth to rescue Ilya. Ilya, hurry. If you don't. The centipedes shot out poison. It was a neurotoxin. It hurt like hell. Ilya, who was bitten by the centipedes, glared as if he was extremely angry. Fuck, I'm an S, not an M. Now that he thought about it, why the hell was he doing what this tomb wanted? Based on how these centipedes look, they're definitely devil-type artifacts. Ilya then activated his heirloom. Flash. He gave off an extremely overwhelming presence. The centipede devils started shaking in fear at the chaotic aura coming out of Ilya's body. That was to be expected. Ilya's heirloom was the artifact of the king of the devils. Even if he usually suppressed his aura because he didn't want his appearance to change boom. The king of the devils is descending. Devil horns shot out of Ilya's head and his eyes and skin changed color. A vicious fire covered the first trial area and ruthlessly started to destroy it. Ha ha ha, eat shit you retards. He truly looked like a devil. That wasn't all. You shitty bastards, who told you to make a trial like this? You guys try to do it. An angry Ilya gave the devils an order. The centipedes anxiously looked around before quickly starting to move up and down doing push-ups. 
And as that was going on rumble, rumble. Julian turned pale and shouted as the first trial area was being destroyed. Ilya. You can't just destroy it like that. You need to earn the proof of completion from the trial. Ah it's fine. We just have to head to the next one. Julian became anxious at Juhian's comment. What the fuck are you talking about? He didn't clear the trial. We need the proof of completion from the trial. How are you going to clear the tomb without it? Hey dumbass, I got the proof a long time ago. What? Juhian nonchalantly waved something around. It looked like a chunk of gold at first glance. This chunk of gold was actually the proof of completion you earn for completing each trial. Julian's eyes opened wide. When the hell did you? When? Right when we arrived at this trial. The important thing here was not completing the trial it was earning the proof of completion. Furthermore, he had already cleared this tomb before. He knew where the proofs were located. That was how he cleared the tomb in the past as well. Then why the hell did you make Ilya struggle for no reason? I was curious to see what that bastard's heirloom was. I wanted to know how strong it was as well. He used the tomb to find out about his team members' heirlooms because they wouldn't tell him anything about it. Juhian put his hand on Julian's shoulder. By the way, I am very, very interested in your heirloom as well. I don't know what it is, but it must be something good, right? His eyes flashed with greed. That's why you are selected as the next challenger. T. This Bastard Chapter 299 the team members moved deeper into the tomb. It wasn't that dark for them. Their human power plant Julian was creating thunderbolts to provide light. Juhian was standing in front of the group. He had a pretty thorough grasp on everything inside as he cleared this tomb in the past. For example, if there was a trap on the ceiling, he destroyed it before they even got there. He didn't even hesitate when facing any forks in the road. But Julian was groaning inside as they walked. I just know it. C.O. Juhian this bastard is planning on taking his own team member's powers. He was almost sure of it. Why? This bastard can steal the powers of abilities now. Juhian had leveled up during his fight against Hitler. Juhian had been using the crow's artifact for a while, but it only had an ability to suck in artifacts as if it was a black hole. That could be considered level 1. But now that Juhian had leveled up fighting against Hitler, he could use level 2. Using the abilities of the artifacts he ate. Basically, he can replicate the powers of any artifact he consumed. That was amazing. Although he does seem to get a stomach ache afterwards. Anyway, there was no way this bastard would not aim for the powers of the strong heirlooms now that he had such an ability. Even gobbling up a small portion of the heirloom should be at the level of A-grade or S-grade artifacts. And if it is gobbling up only a portion and not the full heirloom, it shouldn't harm the original masters. However it's still scary to get eaten, you bastard. They would probably feel the sensation of their artifact being gobbled up. That was why the whole team was shaking in fear and had done their best to never show their heirloom's ability in front of Juhian. The rest of them had shared information with each other. It was almost to the level of making Juhian an outcast. But all of their efforts were for naught. Oh my, Julian is the challenger for the second trial. What? Juhian seemed to have made up his mind. Just use your heirloom and blast your way through it. Julian pointed to the text on the wall and shouted. Who are you trying to scam? I don't know much about Tumblith, but I do know that this is not my name. TSK, guess you found out. Juhian pouted, thinking that he shouldn't have taught this bastard how to read Tumblef. Anyway, Jeha is the real challenger. Hurry up and go. Julian gave him a suspicious gaze. You're not scamming us because we can't read Tumblef, are you? How rude. It's the truth. It really did have Jeha's name this time. Although it looks like that crow bastard quickly changed the name again. But Juhian, who would not miss that opportunity, smiled brightly. Hurry up and go. This punk is telling the truth, right? Jeha gulped and headed toward the altar in the end. Damn it, I hate tombs, I really hate tombs. 
The test at the second trial was pick one of the three items it was a simple item choosing trial. Items started to appear on the altar one by one. Bobo bo bo First were gold bars. It was actually a magic box that would continue to fill with gold bars. The second item to come up was an old plate. The team members were relieved after seeing that. We can tell the right answer even without seeing the last item. This was the tomb of avarice. They just had to avoid materialistic things. It was something that even Jeha could easily clear. However what the hell is up with the third thing? The team members gasped after seeing the third item that appeared. Please be gentle with me. A beautiful babe had appeared. She looked like Jeha's ideal woman and she was naked. Yu Jeha immediately froze. Any man would have flinched at this sight. Although his head was clearly telling him that this was not the right answer although that really was the case master, you can do whatever you want with me. Really? The team member's eyes opened wide after hearing Jeha. Hey! Snap out of it! You know exactly what to pick. Jeha! I'll set you up on a date. That's just wrong. Please! Jeha flinched before scoffing at them. Hey, I know. Do you think that I'm an idiot? The others felt relieved to hear that. Don't look down on humans. The old plate is obviously the answer. Jeha reached his hand out confidently. Got you. You stupid human. You Jeha gasped. Although he talked about grabbing the plate his hand was grabbing the babe. Natural instincts truly were scary. The babe smiled. Human, you failed. Jeha, who had grabbed two things at once, fell into the trap. Squeal. Jeha. Jeha had turned into a pig. The area started to violently shake as well. It was trying to push the pig Jeha into a pen. You retard. That's why you should have picked the old plate. Ilya urgently reached for the old plate. But Juhian viciously kicked him. Ugh. You'll turn into a pig no matter what you choose here. Juhian used the crow's aura to grab Jeha before he fell into the pen. Jeha started crying in relief. Captain Nim, thank you V. Good, looks like we have pork belly for dinner. Are you really thinking about eating me? Captain, what do we do about that? A bit later, on the path to the next trial. The team was looking at a huffing Jeha. Maybe it was the side effect of turning into a pig, but Jeha had returned to human form as a fat pig who was over 200 kilograms. They didn't care that Jeha was so fat, it was just that he was quite slow. Can't we just leave that behind? No, he's my emergency food supply. Captain Nim, your predation ability might be able to remove just the fat. They were telling him to just eat Jeha's fat. Jeha pleaded to Juhian as well. I'll work all night if you want me to. Please get rid of the fat. Juhian instantly rejected him. No thanks. I'll get fat if I eat your fat. Well, that was true too. Captain Nim, you're so handsome, being this fat is fine. A shocked C.O.A. desperately grabbed Juhian. W, who said that is okay? Well, I do want to see a chubby Captain Nim at least once, but still. As C.O.A. was having trouble deciding what she wanted want you return to your normal self if you use the Phoenix artifact. E, excuse me. Juhian smiled mischievously and looked at Jeha. What's wrong? Doesn't the Phoenix artifact do that too? E, excuse me. Yu Jeha was now sweating bullets. Juhian's smile seemed dangerous and abnormal. I always found it so interesting that a couch potato like you was skinny. Jeha slowly looked away. It was because he understood what Ju Hien was planning. The phoenix uses the energy stored in your fat as a medium for its fire, right? Did this guy make me turn into a pig to confirm that? Hurry up and return to normal. Damn it! Yu Jeha cried as he activated the phoenix artifact. An intense heat surrounded him. A vicious fire shot out of his body and something amazing happened. My goodness! Jeha's appearance had changed in an instant. Juhian's eyes sparked with greed. Juhian had been having trouble digesting and worried a lot about the artifact calories. 
he was taking in ever since he got the predation ability. But that was for later, as they started walking again. Once they got close to the central region of the tomb it is recommended that you do not go any farther. You should not go in. The ground split open once he saw the message. Watch out. They all became anxious at the sudden earthquake. Juhian frowned. He sensed a familiar aura. He could feel the aura of his partner artifact that he had used so much in his previous life. And as he had expected oh, so you are Co Juhian. The tomb's owner appeared as if it was concerned about how Juhian was plowing his way through the trials. Juhian scrunched his eyes after hearing that voice. He had definitely heard this voice before. Now I'm certain. It is that bastard. It was his partner artifact. Of course, he had not heard the voice so clearly back then. It was more of a mumbling and a whisper so that it was hard to understand. He didn't know whether it was male or female because of that. But it was different this time. And the reason Juhian was shocked was not because of its voice. The others were shocked for the same reason. I wanted to see you at least once because you are so famous. Co Juhian. A little girl had appeared. She had white skin and light white hair with hints of purple. She had a pretty nose and cute lips. The girl was smiling. She looked so pretty and lovely that it was enough to capture everyone's attention. This reaction from Jeha was probably to be expected. If it's this type of artifact, my affinity should be enough. Jeha tried to approach it as if he hit the jackpot. Eek! A vicious aura brushed past right in front of him. It was so violent and chaotic that it would be able to cut off his flesh. Julian shouted at that moment. It looks like that but it is still a dangerous artifact. Don't get close to it. Jeha, who almost had his nose sliced off, started crying. The artifact in front of them truly was dangerous. Although she looked cute and had a lovely smile on her face, she was giving off an extremely chaotic aura. Quite the dangerous murderous intent could be felt from her eyes. They had their heirlooms but they still had to be wary of her. But for the boss to suddenly appear like this, Julian scoffed. Our captain is quite popular. The reason the boss suddenly appeared was obvious. They weren't even at the boss room yet. But for the boss to show herself before they got there it doesn't even like us going around the tomb and wants to kill us all. Juhian was quite infamous in the artifact world. It would not be weird for it to want to kill him. The artifact did not hide its murderous intent as it approached Juhian. Julian became anxious and shouted. Why are you just standing there? Hurry up and use your artifact. It's aiming for you. Jeha got ready to attack and clicked his tongue. My goodness, this guy's bad habit is coming out again. Even if you are an artifact file, that's not allow ug. Juhian kicked Jeha away. It's not like that. This bastard is the archaeologist's artifact I used in the past. The entire team was shocked. What? That's it? That's the thing that turned the Captain Nim into the greatest excavator. The ones to get the most angry were Jeha and Ilya. Wow, I'm really angry at this point. Having a harem of human women wasn't enough that he even has a harem of artifacts. Such a pretty little girl was the Captain Nim's artifact. Fuck, why are the artifacts discriminating so much? I just have shitty devils by my side. Everything I have is male. Damn it, why only the Captain Nim? Yes, this is very weird. Jeha smiled after seeing even Julian joining in. Good. Kong Ming, you've finally shown your true self. You never acted that way but I guess you are a man as well. That's not what I'm talking about. Julian shouted to defend himself. Chapter, 300. That's a devil-type artifact. That was right. The artifact that appeared in front of Juhian was a devil artifact. However, Juhian had thought all this time that it was one of the many human archaeologists of the past. But it was a devil. Is it a different artifact? No, that wasn't it. This is definitely the artifact I used in the past. It was quite the familiar aura that he had missed. Well, he also hated this shitty thing for making him want to go see the Mona Lisa as he was about to have sex, 
but still it was also the key element that allowed him to become the greatest excavator. It was his lifesaver that saved his life many times inside tombs. Everything it had done for him made him think about contracting it once again if he met it. But it was a devil. He couldn't tell what artifact it was though. Why? The system has stopped. There is no need for you to know any information about this artifact. It is smarter to wash your neck and go to sleep. Stop telling me to go to sleep. Unfortunately, the crow's artifact seemed to have made up its mind. Unable to load the system information. The crow's attempts were futile. Hey Kong Ming, what is that artifact? Mammon. The crow's attempt to hinder Zhu Hian instantly ended in failure. Zhu Hian laughed but tilted his head in confusion at Julian's response. The artifact I used was Mammon. As for the others how did Hyung Nim know how to clear the tomb of Avarice? Quan Hyuk Su was deep in thought. Did he really see the future that was supposed to happen with Yang Chen's artifact? Quan Hyuk Su had asked Chairman Quan about the future he saw. However, Chairman Quan did not tell him anything. You don't need to know. And when he asked to use the memory artifact himself this is not an artifact for you to use. He was rejected. Honestly speaking, Quan Hyuk Su was upset. Of course, there was a reason Chairman Quan said that. The current Quan Hyuk Su might not be there, but Quan Hyuk Su was originally one of the four emperors, the strongest artifact users in the world. He just stepped aside to give Chairman Quan his spot. Chairman Quan was wary because he didn't know how Quan Hyuk Su would react if he shared that future with him. It was possible Quan Hyuk Su would betray him. He might be greedy for the four emperor's position. However, it might have been better for Chairman Quan to tell his sworn brother the truth. Why is Hyung Nim hiding it from me? It ended up causing a seed of doubt and hate to sprout inside him. Returning back to Ju Hian, the identity of this artifact was understandable. Mammon was known as the Devil of Avarice in the Bible, an excavator devil that went around looking for hidden gold and treasures. There were even rumors that the reason humans started digging for ores and treasure was because a part of Mammon's personality ended up in them. Ability-wise, it was quite fitting for an excavation artifact. But Ju Hian, who liked to be certain, asked a question. Do you have any relationship with an archaeologist? The devil's eyes opened wide as if it was shocked. She thought for a moment before opening her mouth. Can you tell your crow something before I answer that question? Mammon grumbled and added on. Tell that bitch to stop releasing such disgusting aura in someone else's tomb. That other human, Quan Tae Jun, is unable to pass through the trials because of you. Every human is a precious candidate. Ju Hian was wondering what Mammon was talking about, but it seemed as if the crow was taking care of the enemies in the distance to earn some points with him. It's just a stupid idiot who can't even contract properly because it's stuck in prison. The crow's aura that had snuck out to show off flinched. So who told you to share the secrets of the gods to become public enemy number one? The crow became angry and tried to eat Mammon, however hey. The crow's aura flinched at Ju Hian's gaze and slowly crawled back. It seemed a bit depressed unlike its usual self. Mammon smiled with satisfaction and looked toward Ju Hian after seeing the crow crawl back without being able to say anything. I want to answer your question right away but I have a condition. A condition? Ju Hian started to frown. It was probably something like clearing the remaining trials. However, Mammon smiled brightly and said the following. Won't you become my concubine? I need you for something. The crow that crawled back burst out again and even the rope that was sleeping on Ju Hian's shoulder raised its head. What? Concubine. The eyes it didn't have seemed to be flashing. Why is Seo Ju Hian not contacting me? Jin Kai Yuan was currently wrestling with her phone. He told me he would go on a date with me if I took care of the four emperors. It had been quite a while since Jin Kai Yuan had been staring at her phone. There was no way that Seo Ju Hian wouldn't know about how she attacked the monarch of evangelism. Did he not see the news? Should I have made a bigger spectacle and destroyed a country as well? She was thinking about things that would make others boil in anger. In fact, the US, which had become one of her targets, was quite a mess right now. Hitler was a secret that the US was keeping quiet. 
but they were putting the artifacts and people he gathered to good use. They were about to use those things to take care of Seo Juhian, but then why is Jin Kai Yuan getting in our way? The hot-blooded president considered it an act of provocation and was even ready to press the button to launch the nuclear weapons. However calm down. China has the supreme leader artifact. Both the Democrats and the Republican congressmen had foamed at the mouth and stopped the president. They wanted to hold back for now. It was because they knew that Chen Kai Yuan would really invade the U.S. with troops if she wanted to do so. Most importantly, they believed that there was a reason that this woman was working with Seo Juhian. I'm sure that she is pretending to work with Seo Juhian so that she can kill him. That woman is a shrewd fox. But forget taking care of Juhian to call, not to call, call, not call, call, not call. Chen Kai Yuan was struggling with the most difficult problem in the world. Of course, she had said the following publicly. I will get close to Seo Juhian and then kill him. She meant about 80% of it. Whether she thought about it rationally or emotionally, Seo Juhian was her enemy. Juhian was the only man to make her experience shame. It'll be bad if Seo Juhian gets the crow's artifact and gets the treasure. China had to win this war of artifacts. She couldn't let an individual grab the power. However, the way she was struggling while waiting for a call from Ju Hian made it easy to wonder if she really had any intentions of killing him. Is he busy? That must be the case. I heard that he's in the Tomb of Avarice right now. She had thought about contacting him first many times. However what if he rejects my call? He had ignored all of her attempts to contact him until now. That was why the fact that Ju Hian contacted her first made her become flustered unlike her usual self. If she pestered him with a call, he might say she's too needy and call the date off because he already hates her. She also didn't want to come off like she was looking forward to it. She had written and erased hundreds of text messages already. But to just sit back and wait I can't wait. Zhen Kai Yuan, who had been pulling off flower petals like a little girl with a crush, jumped up from her seat. Let's go get Seo Juhian's schedule. She just had to coincidentally run into him on his day off. She headed toward the hotel Juhian was currently staying at. She would normally have just barged in but she disguised herself as a housekeeper because Juhian probably wouldn't like the fact that she barged in. Which one is Seo Juhian's room? It was hard to find because Juhian had rented many rooms under his name. She started to go into each room. And then I smell Seo Juhian. She was quite sensitive to the smell of artifacts as she had the artifact of gluttony. This must be Ju Hian's room. As she started rummaging through the room to find Ju Hian's schedule she found many pictures on the table along with a reagent artifact. This is, that was none other than the raven's tears. As Jin Kai Yuan hugged a pillow and tried to take a closer look beep. Someone swiped the card key and came inside. She could hear the footsteps heading toward this suite. Ha! Huh. Is someone inside? Jin Kai Yuan became anxious after hearing the voice. It was Irene's voice. Ha! Huh. That's weird. Mr. Ju Hian, didn't you say that you were going to a tomb? The two of them made eye contact for a moment. Chapter 301. Ha! Huh. That's weird. Mr. Ju Hian, didn't you say that you were going to a tomb? The two of them made eye contact for a moment. Irene questioned her eyes. Black shirt and a white apron this was definitely a housekeeper. It wasn't that weird for a housekeeper to be cleaning Ju Hian's room. It wasn't weird for her to make Ju Hian's bed or organize his clothes. But if that housekeeper was a familiar face and if that housekeeper was someone who would make Irene angry even at the thought of her touching Ju Hian's stuff it would be weird if Irene's eyes did not have fire shooting out right now. Why are you here? Her voice was extremely pretty but quite sharp. Zhen Kai Yuan became anxious after hearing Irene's vicious tone. Why is the monarch of destitution here? Isn't this Seo Ju Hian's room? Irene's pretty face turned into a scowl regardless of whether Zhen Kai Yuan was anxious or not. I'm sure you didn't suddenly change jobs. What are you doing in someone else's room? Are you trying to steal something? An anxious Zhen Kai Yuan dropped the raven's tears. Irene stomped over to Zhen Kai Yuan. I didn't know you were still stalking Mr. Juhian. 
she pulled Zhu Hian's pillow away from Jin Kai Yuan. Jin Kai Yuan awkwardly started to laugh. You seem to have the wrong idea. I just came here to clean as the housekeeper. Oh really? Irene then smiled brightly. And then then please take care of my room too. She dragged Jin Kai Yuan out and pushed her into the next room. I don't need to tip you, right? The door closed and Jin Kai Yuan anxiously tried to open it. However clunk clunk. Irene had placed a pharaoh's artifact, an extremely heavy chunk of gold, outside the door. There was no way for the door to open. Irene then went into Ju Hian's room and contacted the lobby. Ah, hello. We have a thief. Yes, yes, she's a pervert who was trying to steal some underwear. She is an artifact user so please call Pandora's special team. It was at that moment. Damn it. An angry Shin Kai Yuan destroyed the door and came out. She had used the Supreme Leader artifact. She then viciously glared toward Ju Hian's room. That woman. Shin Kai Yuan called out the spider and viciously destroyed the wall. After that I told you that I'm not a thief. A berserk Shin Kai Yuan rushed into Ju Hian's room. Her dominance was quite strong. But it didn't matter. Irene's dominance seemed to be at Shin Kai Yuan's level. Others predicted that her affinity would be higher because of her personality, but are you trying to start a fight? Irene, who usually never got this angry, viciously glared and her heirloom activated. Jian Ho Hurang. One a tiger and a wolf soon appeared and bit Shin Kai Yuan. Chomp. Ugh. Actually, the animals were chomping on the Supreme Leader's aura and not on Jin Kai Yuan. They were so strong that the Supreme Leader's legs were ripped apart. Furthermore, the Master Fox's attribute was based on the disaster caused by a fox. A woman beautiful enough to cause the downfall of a country, natural disasters, or even too much happiness becoming a source of disaster. It was an ability that could bring down a nation or bring forth disasters. Irene's disasters struck Jin Kai Yuan before she could even grimace in pain. Bang! Kaya! Jin Kai Yuan suddenly started slipping. What the he Kaya? She couldn't stand up. She couldn't walk because it was so slippery. That wasn't all. Rip! M, my clothes! She seemed to be extremely unlucky as her clothes and stockings kept getting caught on things and getting ripped. Jin Kai Yuan's lifetime of luck was turning into bad luck. An angry Jin Kai Yuan was grinding her teeth. You're just a damn heirloom. Jin Kai Yuan called out the Supreme Leader artifact. Good. You little bitch, I'll kill you and use your hide to gobble up Seo Ju Hian. What did you say? The two of their vicious auras were clashing against each other. While that was going on ah, uh, what the hell is going on? There was a third party who was shaking in fear. Egu, Hyung Nim, what happened while we were sleeping? The room is being destroyed, it is being destroyed. Actually no. The entire hotel is being destroyed. That was right. Irene and Jin Kai Yuan didn't know about it, but inside Ju Hian's room to be more specific, three men were in the bathroom. They were the farmers, the Oh Sung Wu group. Egu, Egu, what is going on? They were foaming in fear inside the spa that was the size of a swimming pool. They were currently bathing the artifacts in the spa. Ju Hian had even given them permission to play once they were done with this. Shit, I've never seen sister-in-law so angry. It was so bad that Pandora had to give an emergency evacuation order. Buz. Buz. Dangerous aura detected. Might be a tomb appearance. Disaster warning level. Level 4 Highest Grade Disaster Grade Emergency Evacuation Ordered for a 1 km Radius Around XX Hotel. Evacuation Warning Delivered. It was so chaotic that Pandora thought there was a Disaster Grade Tomb Appearance Phenomenon going on at the hotel. The trio urgently grabbed the artifacts and tried to leave Ah. Let's grab Hyung Nim's artifacts and run for it. Hurry up. But things would not go as they wanted. Oh yeah. Fight more. Fight more. Bring some coke and popcorn. The extremely immature artifacts were quite excited. 
The Oh Sung Woo group grabbed the back of their necks. Damn it you little punks. This isn't the time for that. Egu, Hyung Nayeon. This is bad. They lamented in despair. But around that same time the situation where Ju Hyun was wasn't that different. What did you just say? Hmm. I told you to be my concubine. The crow and rope exploded in anger. What the hell did this artifact just say to their master? The crow who had sulked back at Ju Hyun's gaze earlier had burst out. Concubine. Did you just say concubine? The rope's eyes were burning with rage. Mammon sounded pompous regardless of their reaction. I will make a special exception and accept you as my concubine, human. It won't be bad for you. The team members all questioned their ears. D, did she just say concubine? They would normally not be able to hear the artifacts but they were currently in a tomb. They could hear the voice of the tomb's owner like Mammon while in their tombs. S. C. O. L. A. Jaha grabbed C. O. L. A. who was about to faint. These damn artifact bastards. However, Ju Hian was laughing. Do you seriously mean that? Mammon's eyes opened wide at Ju Hian's gaze and she responded. Ah, uh, don't worry. I don't care what you do I will let you have your privacy. She wasn't that prude. It looks like you have a lot of artifacts that like you. She could see the twitching rope and crow. I don't care who you date. Ten, hundreds, or even thousands. Meet as many girls as you want and fool ug. The happily talking Mammon suddenly screamed. Mammon was slapped by something dull and sent flying. You, ug. What the? Mammon was rolling on the ground like a little ball as she glared toward Juhian and the others. The one to slap Mammon was none other than the rope. The rope looked like it was shadow boxing and throwing jabs. Do you want to get hit again? Do ya? It looked weird because it was twisting its whole body as it didn't have hands. Mammon wiped the blood of her lips and glared once again. How dare a stupid rope Kaya! Mammon was smacked once again. Pow, 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 pow. The rope ruthlessly beat Mammon down. It was not even whipping Mammon with its body as it usually did. Pow! Pow! It had rolled up its end into a ball and was throwing punches. Pow! Kaya! Mammon looked like a mess after being punched in the cheeks and butt by the rope. This damn non-living bastard! It hurt so much that Mammon was tearing up. But the rope was not the only one that was angry. You disgusting devil bastard! You're really going to use such a scheme to become a heirloom? The crow that appeared looked ready to gobble Mammon up. But the crow thought it would be okay. Why? There was no way Ju Hian would accept such a condition. Okay. Ju Hian happily accepted. Everybody questioned what they had just heard. But Ju Hian clarified it once more. I suppose I can be your concubine. The entire team gasped. A, hey, are you crazy? However, Ju Hian was smiling like a devil. You prepared the wedding gifts right? The team members dropped their jaws in shock. Is this son of a bitch? Ju Hian smiled brightly. You artifacts might not know about it, but very expensive gifts are given during human weddings. That is the human tradition and the respectful thing to do. T. Tradition. But I am a generous man. I will accept a small gift of one zero zero divine grade artifacts. Damn it, I knew it. The male team members grabbed the back of their necks. Even the four emperors didn't have double digit divine grade artifacts. One zero zero divine grade artifacts would be enough to conquer the world a hundred times over. Basically, it was something unachievable. But there was an earthquake in CLAS eyes. I, I can marry the captain him if I have a T thousand divine grade artifacts. Ciole seriously debated leaving to search for artifacts. As she had that thought f, fine. The shocked mammon nodded her head. She had a way to get one zero zero divine grade artifacts. I will give you one, Ju Hian had been moving under Chairman Quan's orders. Zhen Kai Yuan was just one of his targets. It was a terrible thing for her to hand over information about tombs as the supreme leader of China. 
Furthermore I didn't know you would fall for him so quickly. Didn't you say you guys only held hands? This isn't ancient times. How did you fall for him after just holding hands with him? Why did you do something that is not like you at all? Zhen Kai Yuan had a mental breakdown after that. It was especially after Zhen Kai Yuan heard what Zhu Hian said to her after that. I wouldn't do it with you even if you were the only woman left in the world. He had said something so cruel like that too. The memory after that was terrible. She started to shake while recalling a memory of cutting her own neck. As for the Zhu Hian that Irene remembered fuck, it's the monarch of destitution. Run. Sadly, the Zhu Hian she saw was a man who wouldn't even show her his face properly. Both of them felt significant pain as memories after memories seeped into their minds. However, Zhen Kai Yuan was screaming while Irene was biting down on her lips while looking surprisingly calm. Why? T, this is the future that Mr. J. Ha talked about. She had heard some things about the future already. Although she didn't know the details, she had a pretty good idea about how things went down. That was why Irene had a mental barrier unlike Shin Kai Yuan who was seeing all these things for the first time. However my father, mother even my brother. There was a fact she didn't know. She had not heard that her entire family had been killed. She didn't know that she had worked for Kira in order to save her family. She had to live as the monarch of destitution who shed no blood or tears. That was why she was in so much pain. In addition Mr. Juhian. Irene's pupils were shaking. Maybe that was to be expected. The greatest tomb raiding team in the world futilely died in a tomb. Survivors, Zero Chairman Quan Tae Jun, you reap what you sow. He shouldn't have been that greedy to go into that tomb. TKBM's leadership, we definitely told them not to go. The fact that there is one team member who didn't go is proof of that. Co Juhian's excavation team became too greedy and it cost them their lives. The monarch of fraud claims this was a scheme by TKBM. TKBM, the monarch of fraud he seems to be suffering a mental breakdown after losing the rest of his team. We are planning on getting him committed to a psych ward. Irene had not heard about any of this. She had heard that Chairman Kwan had betrayed Juhian but not that he had done so much for Chairman Kwan before he was killed. There was also another important fact. We finally got rid of those thorns in our eyes. I thank all of the monarchs for your cooperation. Chairman Kwan and the other culprits were smirking with joy. Irene clenched her head after seeing that memory. It was at that moment. Zhen Kai Yuan and Irene, who had both remembered different things about Zhu Hian, made eye contact. Returning back to Zhu Hian's group the owner of the Tomb of Avarice has changed. The owner is using its power to eat all of the artifacts inside the tomb. Zhu Hian laughed out loud after seeing the message in front of him. What? It changed the owner of the tomb. The berserk crow's aura started to gobble up all of the artifacts inside the tomb. A defense-type gatekeeper has been eaten. An attack-type gatekeeper has been eaten. A coffee manufacturing devil has been eaten. A farming devil has been eaten. An extremely smart devil has been eaten. A cleaning devil has been eaten. It does not matter if the artifacts try to run. I just block their paths as the owner of the tomb. Good, very good. Zhu Hian was quite pleased. Of course, Julian was screaming about what was happening in the tomb. What the hell is going on? It wasn't rational for the owner of a tomb to change. How does this make any sense? This truly was something that should not have happened. Of course, there was one artifact that was an exception and was capable of messing with what happened inside a tomb. The supreme leader should be the only exception though. However, there was a reason the crow could go berserk in here. This is the tomb of avarice. The crow was also an artifact with the avarice attribute. Looking at both its grade and attribute, the crow was an artifact that was more than qualified to be one of the artifacts of the seven great tombs. That was why it was able to barge into Mammon's tomb and cause a ruckus. Mammon was going nuts at this. And then that fucking puny bird has no morals. Mammon flailed after being flung to the bottom floor of the tomb. The crow had slammed her down so hard that she had broken through the ground and was stuck with half her body inside the floor. 
In addition I went easy on that bitch because I felt sorry for her being in prison but that damn fucking bird brain. Her true appearance was a white bird as well but Mammon was grumbling about how the crow's brain was small because it was a bird. Anyway, Mammon finally managed to push herself out of the ground. She was covered in a red light as she furiously flew back up. Mammon was one of the seven great devils. She was naturally famous among devils and artifacts receive more buff the more famous they are. That meant that she was a divine grade artifact. That was probably the reason. I'll kill you. It had long since lost any thoughts of contracting with Juhian. It was a pity to lose Juhian but it had no regrets. There's no way I can live in the same house as that violent crow bitch. It had many candidates for its master. One of them was C, Chairman Nim. An extremely strong artifact is getting closer. One of them was Chairman Quan. An extremely bright light burst in front of TKBM's excavation team. Bang! Everybody was shocked after seeing that a pretty little girl had appeared. W, who is that child? However, Chairman Quan's jaw dropped for a different reason. This is the boss. He recognized Mammon right away. However, his shock quickly turned into disbelief. Hmm, he's too wrinkly and old to be my concubine. Mammon was looking over Chairman Quan from head to toe and evaluating him. She didn't seem to like Chairman Quan. He seemed to have a high enough dominance and met the qualifications, but my goodness, there's not a single area where you are better than Seo Juhian. Human. Can you even get it up at your age? Is it not wrinkly down there? Chairman Quan had instantly been dissed by Mammon. What is up with this bullshit after it suddenly showed up? What kind of things is this little girl saying? But Mammon didn't care and just smiled. Well, it's fine. I made up my mind. She then said the following. You. Be my slave what? What did she just say? Chairman Quan couldn't believe what Mammon just said. He was very thankful that the tomb's boss had appeared in front of him. Chairman Quan had been grinding his teeth in this tomb. He couldn't get past the trials. Who cared if he saw memories of his past life because of an artifact? Who cared if he got to peek at how Juhian cleared the tomb through it? We can't use his methods at all. The strategy he saw was not wrong. He tried to distract the gatekeeper before swiping the proof of completion. There were plenty of trials and he just needed to get past any seven of them. It was just that how dare you try to use such shitty tricks. Ah. It was impossible to distract the gatekeepers. It was no wonder he was getting flustered. How the hell did Seo Juhian just swipe the proofs of completions? He had sacrificed a large number of his subordinates to get the proofs but that was at the limit now too. I don't have enough subordinates to sacrifice anymore. There were still four trials to complete. But the number of subordinates remaining could be counted on two hands. Clearing this tomb seemed completely impossible. So the fact that the boss of the tomb suddenly appeared was a good thing. Although the chances of success were low, he could force the boss to submit using his artifact of conquest. But the boss showed up on its own and wanted to contract with it. He felt extremely lucky. Hurry up, I told you to be my slave well, as long as it shut up it was fine. But he was in no place to be picky about things right now. He could tell that Mammon was a strong divine grade artifact at first glance. It would only benefit him to get this artifact on his side. That was why Chairman Quan reached his hand out. Fine, I will be your master. Mammon's large eyes glared in anger. Hey. Speak properly. What? I'm the master. You are my slave. Why I ought to. Chairman Quan started to grind his teeth. Calm down, calm down. It was at that moment. But I have a condition. A condition? You should show me that you are worthy of becoming my slave. Chairman Quan's group was suddenly dragged somewhere as soon as Mammon said that. Ah. The place they teleported to was none other than huh, what the hell. Old bastard. They ended up right in front of Seo Juhian. TKBM's excavation team members were grinding their teeth in anger at Juhian. There was a phrase about how a person would meet their bitter enemy on a narrow bridge. You son of a bitch. 
Mammon stopped them. Hold on. I will take you in as my slave if you can take care of that human. You want me to take care of Seo Juhian? Yes. I wanted to take him as my concubine but I'm not interested in a human the crow bastard has already licked. Ho. Of course, I'll let you borrow my powers for it. Use it to take care of those humans. Those terrible bastards have done as they pleased in my tomb. The team gasped after hearing that. Why is the Captain Im's artifact with Chairman Quan? However, Ju Hian seemed calm. Why else? Is there any other person that this artifact might think about sticking with other than me or that bastard? Excuse me. The condition for using the artifact of Avarice the first condition was that the user had to be extremely greedy. The only people in this tomb greedy enough to handle Mammon were probably just Ju Hian or Chairman Quan. The rest of his team accepted that explanation before frowning. Aren't we in a bit of a pickle? That was to be expected. The greatest excavation artifact that Ju Hian had used in the past was in Chairman Quan's hands. Julian scrunched his face as he assessed the situation. Didn't Mammon go to him because the crow got in her way? It was such an easy chance to get her. The crow flinched in response. Had her greed hindered things for Ju Hian? Maybe that was the thought in its mind right now. But some of them supported the crow's actions. But it's not like he could have accepted her condition to be her concubine. Ah, I'm against it as well. I am against a harem for the Captain Nim. I wouldn't be able to live because I'm so jealous. At that moment boom. An angry mammon channeled her strength into Chairman Quan. Chairman Quan's body started to bulk up with muscles. Chairman Quan laughed with excitement as his body was brimming with energy from the devil's power. His skin turned as white as a vampire while his eyes were as red as a devil's. That wasn't all. I, I feel the power. Chairman Quan's subordinates started to turn into devils as well. Of course, Ju Hian's team would not just stand around and let that happen. Ugh. His team instantly beat the enemies down. Captain Nim, leave them to us. An anxious mammon smiled and channeled even more of her power. I will make you guys the strongest inside this tomb. Ju Hian tried to take out a divine grade artifact in response. Mammon truly was strong enough to qualify as a heirloom. Both sides would receive a lot of damage but he had no choice but to forcibly drag it out. But at that moment human, I guess I have no choice. If you wanted it seemed to have wanted Ju Hian to say no. Hold him off for five minutes. Five minutes? It seemed a bit more complicated compared to using it against humans. As Ju Hian started to frown what are you mumbling to yourself since earlier? TKBM's excavation team approached Ju Hian. Chairman Quan's subordinates looked completely different as they gathered around Ju Hian. Their biceps were nice and firm and their skin was red. They even had horns, making them truly look like devils. Maybe they were in ecstasy with this sudden influx of power. Do we scare you that much? Are you shaking in fear because we are so scary? They seem to have become stupid in the process as well. Man, did these shitheads all turn into dumbass. TKBM's excavation team members would be at least decently smart. Suddenly, an earthquake happened. Boom. They were stomping on the ground as if they were crazy bulls. It was an order from Mammon. The first people they went after were the non-fighting team members. Ujeha snorted as they made their way over to him as if he was obviously the first target. Man, they're always running over to me first because I'm not a fighter. We're not that dumb. Siole was truly touched by Jeha's words. Unbelievable. For you to fight in the vanguard. Go. It was using the power of the Akashic Records to restore memories. There was no way it would feel good to force one artifact to interact with another artifact. A concerned mammon stepped back, which caused Chairman Quan to shout. What are you trying to do? You damn artifact bastard. Chairman Quan's instincts told him that mammon was trying to destroy this tomb. That was why he was angry. You and I are not even done with the contract process. I don't care if you run away but at least finish the contract before you go. Chairman Quan viciously walked toward Mammon. His dominance was quite chaotic. 
He had already turned into a devil but the way his veins were popping up made him truly look like a devil has descended into the tomb. Choose me. Then I will kill that bastard. Mammon seemed to be shaken by that statement. Honestly speaking, Chairman Quan was not lacking compared to Ju Hian when it came to the qualifications to use her. In fact, he was a very ideal master. If it is this bastard, he would be able to help turn Mammon into an heirloom. Fine, human. I will make a special exception and let you be my slave without clearing the trials. As Mammon tried to reach her hand toward Chairman Quan Ugg. Chairman Quan was stabbed. Dan was the one who stabbed him. Dan started to stab away at Chairman Quan's body nonstop. He then shoved three swords into Chairman Quan's back, as if to lower his dominance. Chairman Quan coughed up blood and glared at Dan with his now red eyes. You dirty butcher. How dare you touch my body. Hurry up and take these swords out. Ju Hian looked at Dan and laughed. The artifact in here is mine even if you don't do that. What? Chairman Quan glared at Ju Hian next. Ju Hian then stomped on Chairman Quan's head. I'm sure you want this artifact really badly, but this artifact was mine from the beginning. What? Even Mammon was shocked this time. Ju Hian smiled and glared at Mammon. The memory artifact has finished its preparation. The artifact is being activated. A bright light suddenly flashed. Actually the chances of success were about 50-50. Even if Mammon got her memories back, there was no guarantee that she would pick him again. In fact, she might hate him even more if she got her memories back. Why? Mammon wasn't like the rope it always messed with him. Now that Mammon got her memories back Agu, damn it. Why did I have to get caught by such a frustrating bastard? Human, why the hell are you so poor? Just fucking die already. Let me find a new master. She had said things like that to him all the time. He couldn't understand anything else because she always mumbled, but those things were always crisp and clear. This bastard always cursed him to die, telling him over and over to die in a tomb. That was why it might still choose Chairman Quan even if it was his artifact in the past. The Chairman Quan in Mammon's memories was someone who could give her everything she wanted. Even the current Chairman Quan was enough to be on her candidate's list. He had no guarantee that she would be his artifact again. But the reason Ju Hian still used the crow's artifact was because well, he had a pretty simple reason. She was still his first artifact. Every artifact in this world should belong to him and him alone. Mammon screamed after the bright light flashed. She felt as if something was digging its way into her memories. Mammon's instincts tried to push out the terrible sensation of being connected to a foreign artifact. But Mammon flinched after seeing the memories flooding in. What a disrespectful human. You made it all the way here without properly clearing the trials. Fine, I will take you as my servant. She couldn't remember clearly, but she remembered Ju Hian's face. Ju Hian's face was popping up with this unfamiliar memory. Why do you do whatever that old bastard orders you to do? Ah, this is so fucking frustrating. I can't deal with this anymore. I'm going to find a new master. I will find a new master. You stupid retard. So hurry up and die. Ju Hian looked clearly different from the way he looked right now. His complexion was worse and he seemed to be in a lot of pain. Then there was the last memory human. I have a terrible feeling about this tomb. This is a prison that shouldn't have come up on its own. You retard, you were tricked by Chairman Quan in the end. Ju Hian's teammates had died and Ju Hian was also dying after losing half of his body. She couldn't do anything in that crow's tomb. Huff. The pained mammon's eyes opened wide. Ju Hian was in front of her. He looked almost the same as he looked when he first met her. It was at that moment. Chairman Quan flailed around as if he couldn't deal with this any longer. Let go of me you damn butcher. Chairman Quan's dominance exploded. The sword stabbing Chairman Quan in the neck crumbled and he jumped up. He didn't know what this bastard Seo Ju Hian was trying to do, however. That artifact is mine. He would use the artifact of conquest to forcibly take this artifact. 
Chairman Quan moved closer to Mammon. Hurry up and contract with me. It flew off. Chairman Quan's head flew off. Chapter 304 It flew away. Chairman Quan's head flew off. Everybody was shocked at this sudden incident. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. They rubbed their eyes and looked again but Chairman Quan's head really did fly off. How else would they be looking at a body without a head? Blood was spurting up like a fountain from his neck and they could see his neck bones, cut veins and even the arteries. It looked like a scene from an anatomy class. Chairman Quan's body fell to the side. Boom! Ju Hian's entire team was shocked. It was not just because their hated enemy's head was sent flying. She why? Why? Who had done it? Mammon was the one who sent Chairman Quan's head flying. Her hand was still reached out. A chaotic aura was covering her hand. It had used this aura to cut his head off. Yu Jaiha couldn't believe it. What the hell is up with that thing? Wasn't it planning on making a contract with that old bastard until just a moment ago? It had been super happy as if it had met a sugar daddy. But Mammon was huffing in anger. This fucking dog-like old bastard. Her face was flushed red from anger while her blue eyes were shaking. She seemed to be trying really hard to suppress her emotions. You son of a bitch. How dare you try to sign a contract with me. You aren't even qualified to be my slave Mammon truly seemed to despise Chairman Quan. This was quite unexpected for Ju Hian as well. I didn't expect such a reaction. Who would have expected her to chop Chairman Quan's head off as soon as she got her memories back? He even had the following thought. Does she really like the young and vigorous boys? The Chairman Quan she would have seen would have been in his seventies. He would be much older than he is now. That could have given Mammon the chills. Ju Hian's simple mind was thinking that was the case. Why? That bastard was an artifact. Artifacts were bastards who enjoyed human suffering and death. It wouldn't be angry that Chairman Quan killed him. In fact, it might have felt relief for getting the freedom to find a new master. But Mammon seemed to think differently. You dog-like human. She felt more and more uncontrollable anger as memories entered her mind. How dare you kill the human I cherished. Honestly speaking, Mammon liked Ju Hian. She liked him a lot. Of course, Ju Hian was a contractor that could never fully please Mammon. Mammon was a devil of avarice. It would naturally be attracted to wealthy and greedy people. In comparison, Ju Hian was a bum without even a house or any money at that time. And any time he worked his ass off to find an artifact he served it up to that old bastard. It had even said the following to him. Ah. I heard that things were different pre and post marriage but this is a total scam. Ju Hian had been so cool the first time they met. He had made it all the way to her without any artifact with just his determination alone. His greed had made her shiver with pleasure. He was so dirty and petty that he broke the rules and tricked all of the gatekeepers to get to her. It contracted with Ju Hian because it had not seen such a crazy bastard for a long time but I wouldn't have contracted with you if I knew you were such a pushover. All of his wealth was taken away. This pushover offered up every artifact he earned. The artifact of avarice couldn't help but go crazy. So hurry up and die. I'm going to go find a new servant. But Mammon had still protected Ju Hian. She told him about the traps in the tomb and even taught him survival skills so that he would not die easily in tombs. She helped him become the greatest excavator in the world. No matter what, he was still the contractor she had chosen. She found it quite touching how this ant-like human bastard was working his butt off for a healing artifact. The thing he said was the most concerning. There's something I definitely want to do once I use the healing artifact to save my family and team members. Ju Hian had one greedy desire. And Mammon was the artifact of avarice. It was quite curious about Ju Hian's greed. That was why she wanted to at least watch over him until that point. An artifact's life was long. As long as humans kept talking about them if their mouth spoke information about the artifact, these artifacts could continue to live. However fuck, that old bastard had no plans of giving him a healing artifact from the beginning. 
That bastard Chairman Quan had betrayed this human's efforts. He then killed him off like a dog. Mammon had been unable to do anything while standing behind Ju Hian who had been turning cold. She had cursed that moment so much. She was an artifact but she was unable to do anything for this lowly human. That was why she was angry right now. Chairman Quan was the one who made her feel ashamed and worthless. He killed something she cherished. Returning to the present Mammon was looking at Ju Hian without being able to say anything. Oh, what a beautiful shot. That was a home run. Mammon frowned after hearing Ju Hian clap. He's alive. Her human was definitely alive. He looked the same as before and he was alive and talking to her in that same voice. Mammon teared up and charged toward Ju Hian. You damn human bastard. You were alive. Pow. Ju Hian kicked Mammon away. You, ugh. The tiny Mammon was sent flying like a soccer ball. She wouldn't feel pain because she was an artifact, but human. What the hell are you? Get lost. I'm not interested in little kids. Plus, who told you to chop this bastard's head off as you wish? Do you want to die? Ah, uh, whatever. Stay there without even thinking about running away. Mammon started to cry after feeling completely wronged. Why would I run away? I won't run away you bastard. Why would I leave you and run away? They met again and instead of greeting her he kicked her in the butt. You're going to receive divine punishment. Wah. Ju Hian didn't care and just stomped on Chairman Quan's body. Hey. Are you dead? Are you really dead? The headless Chairman Quan was not moving at all. The team members became curious and came over to look. This makes no sense. Chairman Quan's head was cut off. They couldn't believe it because Achilles's artifact was known for being an omnipotent defense artifact. It was impossible to go farther than one centimeter into a vital point. Basically, it should have been impossible to chop his head off. This was one of the best defense-type artifacts that could probably even stop an arrow from piercing through just the skin. Well, I did pierce through all the way to his carotid artery right after returning to the past because he wasn't used to it yet. Even then, his attack had been stopped by this monster-like life force. However, that seemed to crumble in front of Mammon. It truly deserved to be an artifact from the Seven Great Tombs. It was at that moment. Ah, he can't die yet. Jeha's eyes flashed as he poked Chairman Quan's butt with a stick. All right, let's see if you still don't get up like this, you hemorrhoids patient. He then got ready to stab Chairman Quan in the butthole. As he was about to launch the attack ah. Jeha foamed at the mouth and fell over. It was to be expected. Ah! What the, what the hell is this? Chairman Quan's hand was grabbing his ankle. Chairman Quan was holding on to Jeha's foot as if to say that he would kill Jeha if he did that. Hey, let go of me. Let go. Ju Hian, who realized something, started to smile despite Jeha foaming in anger. Look for his head first. T, the head. I found the head. Is he alive? Chloe smacked Chairman Quan's head. You, ugh. Siole turned pale with disgust after seeing Chairman Quan's head coughing up blood. This talking head was truly grotesque. But Chloe didn't even bat an eye as she calmly responded to Ju Hian. I thought he might die from blood loss so I did some basic treatments. Should I pull his brains out instead? As the rest of the team gasped thinking that she was saying such terrible things so calmly no, I need him to still be able to understand me. Just cut his tongue. Ju Hian was even worse. Ju Hian smiled viciously after receiving Chairman Quan's head from Chloe. Egu, our dear Chairman Nim. Too bad you can't die, huh? Chairman Quan glared at Ju Hian. It was to be expected. Although Ju Hian sounded concerned, he was snickering with joy. And then keep this safe for now. Julian seemed disgusted. What are you planning on doing with that useless head? Useless head. As Chairman Quan foamed at the mouth in anger the tomb is being destroyed. The tomb started to violently shake. How dare you mess with me? 
Chairman Quan's evil god artifacts aura started coming out when Mammon's tomb started to shake. Bobo bo boom. A strong impact is flying over from the outside. The strong force outside is starting to destroy the tomb. Mammon's tomb was being forcibly destroyed. Mammon coughed up blood from the shock. Ugh. The moment they turned to see what might be going on. They could see soldiers from outside the crumbling wall. Pandora. Quan Hyuk Su was there as well. There was also a new face among Pandora's troops. He looked like a handsome young master from a wealthy family. T, that person is. Yu Jeha's jaw dropped in shock. This bastard, who had lived longer than everybody else, seemed to have seen this person before. That guy is definitely Pandora executive boards. He was someone from the executive board who had never shown his face before. Siole gasped after hearing that. Huh. That person is from the executive board? That guy is the eldest son of the Rothschild family. Juhian just sneered. Rothschild's eldest son my ass. That shithead is an artifact. It was obvious to him. It could despicably pretend to be a human but he could tell. The way it was covered in a chaotic aura must mean that this bastard was the one to forcibly destroy Mammon's tomb. Mammon was grinding her teeth as she looked at him. Prometheus. That son of a bitch. Prometheus started speaking. Unfortunately, this tomb and this artifact are dangerous things that should not come out into the world. Therefore, we are getting rid of it. A dangerous tomb my ass. Juhian started to smile as if he found the situation to be despicable. As I expected. It must be bad for you guys if I get all seven of the artifacts from the seven great tombs huh? Then I guess gluttony is the last one left. Juhian's crow's aura exploded as soon as he said that. Grab those bastards. Prometheus sent forth Pandora's soldiers, however ah. Why the hell are you guys getting so excited? Are you in heat? They were beaten up by Juhian. Quan Hyuk Su jumped in front of Juhian at that moment. He seemed extremely angry. How about you stop fooling around with my Hyung Nim's head? Hand it over now. Ah, uh, this thing. Ju Hien happily nodded his head. Okay, take it. There was a loud noise and Chairman Quan's head was sent flying like a baseball. It would land somewhere in the Grand Canyon. Ju Hien had used the scabbard of Xiang Yu's sword to send Chairman Quan's head flying. Quan Hyuk Su dropped his jaw in shock. Hyung Nim. T, that bastard. Ju Hien smiled brightly. But the body is ours. What? What the hell is this bastard planning on doing with the body? Grab them. Save Hyung Nim's body. However, Ju Hien didn't care and grabbed the coughing mammon over his shoulder like a bag of rice. They then snorted toward the enemies charging toward them. Ah, uh, please get lost. I want to go home, wash my feet and go to sleep. Please. He had a million dollar smirk before there was a bright flash of light. A heirloom had been activated. The fish heirloom has activated. The bodhisattva has descended. Chapter, 305. The fish heirloom has activated. The bodhisattva is descending. An extremely bright light flashed through the Grand Canyon. It wasn't just any kind of light. It was a holy light that filled people with both awe and fear. The enemies clearly saw it inside the light. They saw the appearances of some marvelous creatures inside that radiant gold light. One was on a fish. Next to that bodhisattva were more bodhisattvas on elephants, lions, etc. W, what is that? They were all shocked but Juhian's eyes were sparkling. Little punk, I was wondering what you earned. Fish. The fish represented Jesus Christ for Christianity and served as a revered figure for many ancient faiths. However, fish were very often associated with Buddhism and could be found in many temple decorations as well. Dan's heirloom was Buddha's heirloom. Messages confirming that to be true popped up as well. The Buddha is descending. Could this freely swimming fish should be related to the Four Noble Truths of Buddhism? If the Bodhisattva is a fish then rebirth would be the water. 
There were many different concepts related to fish in Buddhism. It was even said that Buddha came down in the form of a fish as well. One of them was the Amitbha. As the fish praising Namo Amitbha, it was said to be the form of Buddha that had appeared to give people rebirth in the Amitbha land of bliss. Amitbha was the Buddha trying to let people be reborn into a world of paradise. However, the enemies looking at this heirloom wondered what it was. A.F. Fish? What artifact is that? Who cares? Just ignore it and grab C.O. Juhian. But at that moment flash. Ah! There was another bright light and some of the enemies became unconscious. Ah! Some more enemies suddenly screamed before they fainted. What the hell? Those people had all screamed before they could even reach Juhian. Some of them turned into animals while others quickly turned into mummies. Any of the enemies who were within the radius of that light ended up being affected. The rest of the enemies became anxious. W, what is that? Juhian smiled while looking at what was going on. What else would it be? The Bodhisattva with the name of Sun and Moon has incarnated. He is trying to bring rebirth to all those who touch the light of the sun. Those who cannot clear their evil hearts will fall into one of the three evil paths, the path of hungry ghosts, the path of animals, or the path of hell. Basically, anybody touched by the sunlight would be punished by the three evil paths. Any human who was greedy about artifacts would definitely deserve to fall into one of the three evil paths. The enemies who were in the shadow of the Grand Canyon were safe. However, Staying in the shadows meant that they were stuck. Dan suddenly disappeared at that moment. He seemed to be moving at the speed of light. Dan then appeared in front of the enemies and moved his index finger toward one of the enemies' faces. He was giving off a chilling overbearing pressure. He then struck the person. To be more specific, he brushed past the person. That was probably the reason. The enemies who had jumped in shock once Dan appeared started swearing. Fuck, I was shocked. You retard. You missed. However pow. You, uh. Ache. They were ruthlessly sent flying a few seconds later by what felt as if a car weighing a ton had struck them. That wasn't all. The ones who were hit looked quite odd. Damn it, my body. My body. The originally buff people turned extremely skinny while the handsome ones turned ugly. Messages appeared in front of Juhian at a scary pace. Aiding in reincarnation. One should not use artifacts to trick people about one's appearance. Juhian started laughing out loud as if he was crazy. Aiding my ass. He's a total apostate monk. He finally understood it. Dan's heirloom was an artifact to call forth Buddha and the Bodhisattvas. Basically, it was inviting Buddha or the Bodhisattvas temporarily into his body. He probably had some other ones he could call forth as well. As proof of that fuck, why the hell am I trying to get things like artifacts? There's no point. The enemy's minds were being reformed to lose all desires. This bastard. He turned into a bird. Dan would also turn into a bird to fly away or heal himself as needed, showing numerous powers in the process. Turning into a bird was probably Guanin Bodhisattva. Healing himself might be through the pharmacist Bodhisattva. In addition I shall send you to a land of bliss. Dan's eyes flashed and an extremely large golden fish appeared. This was the Buddha who was said to reside in the land of bliss. It was Amitbha of the Namo Amitbha chant. The artifact started speaking to the enemies. You won't have any worries or pain in the land of bliss. There will be no end to life, no crime, and everyone will be happy. It sounded really nice. But what did it really mean? It means that they will die. And even if it was Buddha's artifact, this bastard was still an artifact. Would a land of bliss that an artifact takes you to really be a good place for humans? Of course not. The golden fish squirmed like a dragon and then flashed its eyes, making the enemies scream. The enemies in its path all fell to the ground. They had all fallen into a dream that they could never awaken from. It was at that moment. The rest of the enemies who were blankly watching started to shout. Fuck. My teammates. Aim for Co Juhian first. Retrieve the chairman Nim's body. 
Ju Hian snorted as the enemies charged toward him. These stupid idiots. I'm really going to wash my feet and go to bed. Jaha's eyes flashed once Ju Hian stepped forth. Wow, jackpot. The captain Im's going to show his skills. Ju Hian looked at him with a scowl before kicking someone in the butt. Go. I choose you, monarch of pillage. The one he kicked was Julian. Your heirloom is the only one left now, you bastard. Are you really going to do this? Julian's hands were shaking. Julian decided to just activate his artifact as the enemies approached. You're dead now, C.O. Juhian. I'll make you pay the price for making me call forth my heirloom. Crack, crackle. What he activated was a thunderbolt. However, it was definitely different from his usual thunderbolt. Those who respond to me with lies will receive divine punishment. Those who hold back the truth will also receive divine punishment. Julian smiled wickedly. First, I have desired my team member's wife or girlfriend. W. What? Second, I have thought that my superior next to me is a dumbass. Third, I have screwed over a close friend to get a promotion. Fourth, I have been attracted to a team member of the same sex. Fifth, I would be willing to stab the person next to me for one billion dollars. The enemies stiffened up in confusion. What kind of fucking questions are these? Pfft, why would we answer those questions? Thunderbolt started to strike down at that moment. Ah. The enemies then realized that there were things written on the ground by their feet as well. They each had different questions. They had all received different questions in addition to the original five questions. They started grinding their teeth after seeing the questions they received. Fuck, you really want us to answer these? Why the hell should we answer? Julian smiled brightly. You will receive divine punishment if you don't answer in five seconds. People urgently started to shout. Fuck. There's no way I think that my superior is a dumbass I respect Chairman Quan more than I respect my own father. Liar. Rumble. Do you really think I would sell out my teammates? Get lost. It looks like you have. M, my last kiss was before I came to the tomb. It was yesterday, you son of a bitch. Survey says, you've never kissed anybody in your life. The others couldn't believe it. How dare you think negatively of the chairman Nim. Hey, what the hell. You always show off about all the girls you screwed. You said you were popular. But you were actually a forever alone what a poor bastard. What the hell. You son of a bitch. You were the reason my promotion got denied. You were gay. What the hell man. It was quite chaotic. A portion of the Grand Canyon had turned into pandemonium. The agitated enemies started to fight each other. They were in no mood to get Juhian. Julian scoffed and then decided to turn toward Juhian. Why? I asked the team members the questions too. He was so angry that he asked everybody questions. However, he made it so that only Juhian would be struck by Thunderbolt based on the question. He heard a scream from the group and turned around. C.O. Juhian. That's why you shouldn't keep asking me to take my heirloom OU. But what? Damn it. You, Ugh. Juhian was fine while Jaha and Ilya were on the ground after being struck by thunderbolts. They were completely burnt and barely opening and closing their mouths. Julian was truly flabbergasted. W, what the hell? As for the questions written underneath their feet I have desired my team member's wife or girlfriend. I would be willing to stab the person next to me for one billion dollars. Both of them must have answered, no. But Jaha and Ilya felt wronged. Damn it, is peeking at the numerous women gathering around the Captain Nim really desiring them? Huh. Why? I don't need one billion dollars. I would stab him for ten cents. D, damn it. As he had that thought I got you know. Ju Hien, who seemed to be fine despite the questions, had a glimmer in his eyes. Kong Ming, you have a really good heirloom. Ju Hien seemed to like Julian's heirloom quite a bit. And then your heirloom is Haiti right? Isn't it? Juhian wickedly motioned with his hand. 
Julian screamed as the crow's aura came out of Ju Hian's body. Chairman Quan was in serious pain. The people at Pandora were full of whispers while watching this talking head. Wow, only his head is alive. Quan Hyuk Su had worked his ass off to search the Grand Canyon to find Chairman Quan's head. But Ju Hian had the important body. Chairman Quan seemed to be in pain and had trouble breathing since a while ago. Maybe the head could feel the pain the body was facing. What the hell are those fuckers doing to my body? Ugh. The others became serious. This is bad. The Chairman Nim's body should have the artifact he contracted. Well, logically speaking, nobody should be able to take away a possession-type artifact. Those bastards would even chop apart the Chairman Nim's body to take it. Ah. Uh, they really seem to be dissecting his body right now. Anyway, Chairman Quan was in quite the pickle right now. He was alive right now even when his body and head were separated because of the evil god artifact, but his artifact was not a phoenix. It was completely different from Jeha's artifact that could restore any body part that falls off. I need to put my head back together with my body. This situation would only continue if he didn't. Damn it. I don't have enough memories. Prometheus chimed in at that moment. You said that you saw memories of what seemed to be a past life. That's right. Ugh. Prometheus turned serious. He had an idea as to what had happened. Did that crow bastard use the Akashic records? Even he and the Spider Supreme Leader could not use that library. That library harms an artifact's foundation. It was a place where the records of the universe were located. Artifacts were living beings that were born from human culture and memories. Basically, someone could mess with the Akashic records to make an artifact disappear and become born renewed. If the myth or culture changed, the artifact could disappear. That was why it was not an artifact that just anybody could use. That damn crow bitch. Was she planning on doing the same thing as she did in the past? Was she trying to get rid of the artifacts again? Returning back to Ju Hian and the others you hid it because you were embarrassed to get Haiti after getting the Monarch of Pillage title. Isn't that right? It's not. Julian was groaning in pain. He had been gobbled up by the crow as soon as Ju Hian found out his heirloom was Haiti. Well, it tried to eat him but failed. Haiti had run away in disgust. Haiti is an imaginary creature focused on law and justice. It was known for ripping apart evil things and determining what was right and wrong. It was often seen as a symbol for lawyers. In that sense, it suited the just Julian quite well. Its ability was fitting as well. Everything other than the fact that his title is the monarch of pillage. Anyway, Haiti seems to be quite useful for determining truth and lies. Ju Hian's eyes flashed as he chased after the escaped Haiti. However, there was an artifact that was fuming with anger as it watched. Human, don't ignore me. Mammon was boiling with rage. Your partner artifact is right here so why do you keep looking at other artifacts? There was a different reason she was so angry as well. Why the hell did you contract with the crow? That was right. Mammon was angry about that. That crow is basically the artifact that killed you. Why did you have to contract with such a bitch? Even if the crow had not actually killed him, Juhian had died in the crow's tomb. She started speaking as if she could not accept it. I'll give you one zero zero divine grade artifacts. Take me as your heirloom. Juhian immediately responded. Chapter 306 Get lost. He said it very sternly. That sharp response seemed to shock Mammon. That was to be expected. Are you saying you don't want to take me on as your heirloom? Mammon looked crushed. Did you completely forget about me and stick to the crow, my bitter enemy? Ju Hian nonchalantly responded. No. I'm saying one zero zero divine grade artifacts is not enough. One zero zero artifacts was the condition for me to become your master. The heirloom is a different issue. Basically, he wanted more artifacts offered to him in order for Mammon to be his heirloom. The team members couldn't help but grab the back of their necks in anger. Wow, look at this thieving son of a bitch. 
They couldn't hear what Mammon was saying but they could sort of tell based on how Juhian responded. That was why they were shocked. Hey mister, asking for 100 divine grade artifacts is already crazy. Even the four emperors only recorded a max of 150 of them. The normal number of divine grade artifacts that monarchs could contract with was 10. The power of the divine grade artifacts was too much for the human body. Whether it is called an user's max volume or even a weight limit just contracting with them would require significant mental fortitude and stamina. But what? He wanted one, zero zero of them. Can you even handle that many? Well, Juhian didn't need to contract with them. He just needs to use his landlord skill. His special landlord skill would let him use them as his slaves. He can use the Avesta sacred text to control them after that. That was how he was being a tyrant over the artifacts he shoved in the Tower of Pride right now. How? You better follow me before I raise your rent. And that was how Juhian got the artifacts in the Tower of Pride to cry their hearts out while helping Juhian for free. He just shoved them back in there when they were done. Sometimes he sold them off in auctions. Although it was called the Tower of Pride, it was more of a slave artifact prison. He seemed to be planning on doing that to divine grade artifacts as well. I remember he was upset that there were no divine grade artifacts in the Tower of Pride. The Tower of Pride had A grade treasure grade artifacts and S grade legendary hero artifacts. He's always singing about making a divine grade artifact prison. Ju Hien, who was drawing the big picture in his mind, smiled like the devil. Basically, you owed me 100 divine grade artifacts the moment you became my artifact. It's only natural that you have to offer more if you want to be my heirloom. How can you not even know that? Are you dumb? Listen to this punk. Mammon was shocked. It was because in the past, Ju Hien was a dumbass who offered Chairman Quan all of his artifacts. He had some level of greed but he was a stupid pushover nonetheless. How the hell did he become a demon king to screw over the devil of avarice? Mammon was only shocked for a moment before she asked in a serious tone. Fine. How many extra artifacts do I need to offer to become your heirloom? Hmm, since it is adding on, just one hundred more. The voice came from somewhere else. The crow was there giving off a chaotic aura. Human, I will bring you two hundred. What? The crow was serious. Heirlooms usually bind to a person's soul so it should be impossible to switch, but the crow was a clone. It was possible to switch it out. Mammon was smirking since she knew that was the case. I will give you one zero zero as a base. I will add two hundred to that. It seemed as if a bunch of divine grade artifacts would end up being abducted. The crow became desperate. She had a lot of disadvantages against Mammon right now. Most importantly, she was just a clone. There were only a few things she could do as an heirloom to support Juhian. In comparison, Mammon was his former partner artifact. There was no reason for Juhian to say no. The crow tried her best to convince Juhian. Okay, 1200. Human, choose me. Mammon naturally raged in anger. Hey! Who the fuck do you think you are to interrupt us? Okay. 1200 call. Juhian smiled brightly. Why would I say no when I'm being offered more? Mammon started to shake after seeing Juhian's bright smile. You ungrateful bastard. After everything I did for you in your past life. The angry Mammon looked as if she wanted to eat Juhian up. She then grabbed Juhian's collar and shouted in anger. 300 extra. I'll add 300 more, you fucking bastard. Really? Then I'll choose Mammon as my heirloom. Crow. The two of them suddenly started a bidding war for Juhian. B, but. The people gathered were anxious after looking at the documents handed to them. They were wanted posters for Juhian and his team. Prometheus had created these and handed them to Pandora employees. I've already contacted Interpol. There is a bounty on all of them and the media should be picking it up soon. Excuse me. The entire team. Only CO Juhian and Yu Jeha had bounties until now. And this significant amount we've never seen bounties this high before. 
shut up and just do it. They are extremely heinous people. They are villains who are trying to open a tomb of disasters that should not be opened. I am naming them enemies of the entire world from this point forward. It even said that it didn't matter whether they were caught dead or alive. Prometheus also wanted to capture anybody who was related to them. Nothing like this had ever been done before. Furthermore you're even going after the Holtons. Prometheus had put bounties on people helping Juhian. There's going to be quite the UPR ah. Prometheus slammed his hand on the table as if to tell them to shut up. The Holtons are the ones responsible for allowing CO Juhian to cause all of this chaos. Of course they are on the list. We would have been able to get rid of CO Juhian a long time ago if it wasn't for them. But. This is an urgent matter. Prometheus's ass was on fire. There's only one of the seven great tombs left now. That prison would appear if CO Juhian got that one as well. The crow was not the issue. The cells of all those great sinners they have locked up since a long time ago would appear. That would be the end. That was why he was doing this, even if it seemed a bit overboard. CO Juhian's entire tomb raiding team has been named as dangerous individuals. Any companies, countries, or organizations associating with them will be considered accomplices. They are trying to open a tomb that should not be opened. They will bring disaster to the world. CO Juhian is planning for the end of the world. We need to do this much to make them unable to run wild. They might realize the seriousness of the matter after looking at this. The entire world would be gunning for them. They should be dejected after seeing the Interpol wanted list going up now. However, forget being dejected can I really get a reward if I turn these bastards into Interpol? Ju Hien was quite pleased while looking at the wanted posters. Why? Ju Hien was thinking about ways to scam people after seeing the amount for each person. Captain, CO Juhian 1000000 Illegal Tomb Infiltration Irene Holton 900000 Artifact Damage UJ Ha 800000 Counterfeiting and Scams Julian Miller 500000 Pillaging I'm Hey Jean 300000 Murder Lee Cola 100000 Zero zero possessed by an evil spirit Chloe Laurent forty zero 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 illegal medical operations Edward fifty zero 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 illegal business operations Eileen Volgoff one hundred zero zero eighth grade syndrome COA was especially angry. The Captain Nim's picture came out too handsome. This is only going to increase the number of his fans. I'm certain that a woman was the one who chose this picture. It must be a woman. Well, the one who chose the picture was Prometheus, but we digress. She was currently calling Pandora's HQ to complain. She wanted them to change the picture immediately. Let the others know about this. They'll be very happy. Jeha will like that his picture came out so well. T, this is a good picture. He would probably cry because of it. However, it was unexpected that they would go after the Holtons as well. But all of their efforts were for naught. Will Grave Company be impacted by the declaration of dangerous individuals? Related businesses are enraged by the attack on the Holtons. All businesses with connections to the Holtons are cancelling all deals with Pandora in rage. The production lines have become paralyzed. All generals with connections to the Holtons have submitted their resignations. National defense has never been in such danger. George Holton quits as a member of Pandora. Related artifact users are following as well. They are scared Pandora will crumble. It felt as if Pandora had pulled the whisker of a sleeping lion. Irene's angry dad was causing a ruckus for Pandora going after their great benefactor. That was why he found it odd. He's not stupid. Why is Prometheus doing all this? Mammon was huffing as if she had read Juhian's mind. The Great Prison will open if you get all seven of the Great Artifacts. The Great Prison? He must be afraid you're going to take all of the prisoners from there. Is the crow in there as well? Humph. No. Absolutely not. It is in there. Juhian smiled wickedly. Then there was just one tomb left. Gluttony. It wasn't that hard to figure out where the artifact of gluttony was located. Don't you think that Chen Kaiyuan has it? 
Edward had shared some unexpected news. His sources told him that Chen Kai Yuan had the artifact of gluttony. Zhu Hian debated for a moment before sending a message to Chen Kai Yuan. He already owed her one anyway. Date in three days, meet in front of XX Public Cemetery. This date was one where turmoil was to be expected. A little later that night, hey. My human has a bounty on his head because of you. Currently at the park in the middle of the night. Mammon who had come outside was grinding her teeth in anger at someone. That someone was none other than the crow. The crow really seemed to be on a hunt for divine grade artifacts. The proof was that the crow was about to grab a bug on a tree, but get away from my human this instant. The useless mammon had to show up and get in her way. The divine grade bug seemed to have noticed the opening as it ran away. An angry crow fluttered down from the tree. But it looked different from usual. Inside the chaotically fluctuating black aura was what seemed to be a person. Mammon sneered at the crow. Oh. It's been a long time since I've seen your true appearance, you stupid bird brain. Chapter, 307. Oh. It's been a while since I've seen your true appearance. You stupid bird brain. There was a young woman with black hair in front of Mammon. She completely contrasted Mammon who was a very bright color. Mammon was white from head to toe. The crow was black from head to toe. Except her skin only her flashing eyes were red. Her white face without even the semblance of a smile made her look like the grim reaper. She seemed to be in her late teens to her early twenties. Her face was slim and her body was slender. Even her outfit contrasted Mammon's a lot. Mammon was dressed like someone would expect a devil of excavation to dress, wearing shorts and a sleeveless shirt. On the other hand, the crow was dressed more formal. She was wearing a tight-fitting outfit so her curves were quite visible. Mammon sneered while looking at her. She looks quite angry. Mammon had not expected to see this appearance. The crow did not usually appear in this form. Even if she could use her full power in this form she usually appeared in the form of other artifacts she had consumed. Why? She hated this appearance quite a bit. Why does she hate the form of the messenger she received from the greatest god? Mammon asked her a question. I heard that you appeared in some weird form for Seo Juhian. She was probably talking about that sexy babe that got Jeha too excited. It wasn't that she wasn't beautiful right now. In fact, she was even more beautiful than that sexy babe based on her beauty and the peculiar demeanor she gave off. At least she didn't look as if her shirt was going to explode because of her assets. Mammon sneered at her. You thought you couldn't succeed with this appearance so you tried to seduce Seo Juhian by looking like a voluptuous babe? The artifact seemed to believe human men liked their women long and voluptuous. The crow glared at Mammon. But Mammon didn't care and her blue eyes seemed to be on fire. You damn exiled bird brain, who do you think you're trying to seduce? You're the reason Prometheus put a bounty on my human's head. Do you not know what that means? An angry Mammon was shouting. Ah whatever. Hand over your qualifications as a heirloom and get lost. Appear as a man if you really have to show up. I'm the one who is helpful to Seo Juhian. The crow glared right back. Is that all you have to say? Mammon scoffed as the crow released her chaotic aura of predation. Don't you think that you are looking down on me too much? How dare a damn clone try to eat me? The two artifacts' auras clashed against each other. Boom! Kaya! What the? The ground was shaking vigorously. There were explosions as if large meteorites were falling along with the earthquake. Rumble, rumble. The ground around them shot up and a round stone tomb appeared in the park. Ju Hian who was in the hotel tilted his head in confusion. The devil has summoned the gold mine. The crow has summoned some handsome men and beautiful women. The devil is throwing diamonds as it is afraid it will lose. The crow is happily munching on them. What the hell are these fools doing? That wasn't all. They probably caused the Pandora alarm to go off as well. Serious tomb appearance phenomenon detected. Anybody in the nearby area should evacuate immediately. It was quite the shitshow. 
Siole didn't know what to do after looking at thunderbolts falling from a distance as well. Captain Nim, I, is it okay to leave them be? Just leave them alone. Excuse me? R, really? Yeah. Only Pandora bastards are in that area. Tell them to destroy more things. Juhian was smiling wickedly furthermore it's not bad for the two of them to be like this. Juhian was happy while looking at the artifacts on his bed. Either Mammon or the Crow must have left them here. But even if they were divine grade artifacts idol Hina Kazari's life photos SS grade, divine grade consumable artifact remaining uses, 10-10 ability, summon the beyond cute local idol, the talent appearing once in a millennium, Hina Kazari. Kazari will grant one of your wishes. It was something like that. Seeing as how artifacts get stronger based on their subject's level of fame, it was possible to get artifacts like this. Idols could be deified by their fans and could become divine grade artifacts. Either way, Mammon and the Crow competing against each other was not so bad for Juhian. Siole sighed while looking at the Pandora precinct that was being targeted by the tomb appearance. But it looks like Pandora will be grinding their teeth even more. And. Excuse me. Those bastards, who gave them permission to use our photos. Ju Hien was growling. I'm going to sue them all. I'm going to get a billion dollars from each of them. Why did that sound so ridiculous? Whatever. Did you show them the wanted posters? Ah, uh, yes sir. They should be looking at them in the room right now. They heard some shrieks inside the room at that moment. Ah. Uh. What the heel? The first thing they heard was a shrieking artifact. It was the worm. Worm 10000 Illegal Loans Rope 10000 Sadism, Violent Segu, how did I end up on the wanted list? The worm despaired at the bounty on its head. The team members all exploded with anger as well. Ah! Who told them to put such a terrible picture of me? I am more handsome than this. Pillaging. Pillaging. Me. My goodness, it'd be terrible if Sue heard I'm wanted for murder. Illegal medical operations. A quack. They looked ready to pummel Pandora to the ground. All of the women in the world are going to make fun of me with a picture like this. The one who was the most angry was what kind of crime is thighs. Ilya. He was grabbing the back of his head in anger, but the bounty for Seo Juhian is 1000000, the greatest bounty in history. Bounty for the monarch of pushoverness is 800000. He is number one on the list for all bounty hunters in the world. Julian Miller's bounty is 500000. 500 million just for pillaging. Im Hei Jean 300000. 300 million is not enough. Need to increase it. Lee Siole and Irene rather than bounty hunters, the number of men asking for their hand in marriage has increased. Grade 8 Syndrome Ilya Volgov. Only has a puny 100 000 bounty. $1 million bounty on a worm. Worms may go extinct. Why is my bounty the lowest? He looked ready to explode. How the fuck can my bounty be lower than a damn insect? What the hell man? What the hell? I'm worth that price. You damn human bastard. The worm was spewing fire from its mouth. Well, there was a reason Ilya's bounty was lower than everyone else's. Based on Ilya's abilities, his bounty should be in the hundreds of millions as well. The way he could modify information in people's memories should put his bounty at Jeha's level. However the aftermath cleanup crew can't leave any traces behind. That was right. It didn't matter how hard Ilya worked. The aftermath cleanup crew's motto was to hide everything. His ability modified people's memories to not leave any traces behind. That was why the only thing the world had seen about him was his devils. However, his devil ability got rid of all important moments from people's memories as well, so all that was left of Ilya was ha ha ha. Die you foolish humans. Be swept away by the fires of hell. He just looked like a crazy lunatic. The angry team members all charged toward Pandora. Even Julian had pulled up his sleeves in anger this time. Captain, don't stop me. 
How dare they put such false accusations on someone? Sure, I won't stop you. And don't worry. There's a volunteer who went first. Ha. Huh. Who? Who else would it be? Juhian just laughed instead of responding. Ah. S. Save me. Puk. Puk. Pandora was in total chaos right now. The place turning into pandemonium was Pandora's HQ. These were the people who had created the wanted posters for Juhian's team. Pandora's soldiers who had been on their way to capture Juhian's team were currently coughing up blood. It was because of the mysterious team of volunteers that had suddenly attacked Pandora. F. Fuck, there's only one of T. Ugh. This was a swift assassin moving through the darkness. Jack the Ripper was instilling fear even in the mind of Pandora's trained soldiers. Of course, Julian foamed at the mouth after hearing about it. What did you say? Nina went to Pandora. He almost fainted after hearing it. Nina had actually been with Juhian's company, Grave Company's engineering team until now. They were trying to remove the artifact that changed her into a murderer. His sister Joy was in charge of helping Nina get rid of it. She came back yesterday. Okay, sure. That's all great. But why did you send her to Pandora? Hmm. I didn't send her. Ju Hien showed him another wanted poster. Nina Miller 200000 Desertion, Murder. It seemed as if Nina had a bounty on her head as well. The fact that she was Jack the Ripper had been revealed. Furthermore, she was now associated with Ju Hien and not the monarch of seduction. Julian's face turned pale. T, then did Nina go after seeing the bounty on her head? No, it was after she saw someone else's. Someone else. W, was it mine? Julian was quite hopeful. But Ju Hien just sneered at him. No, not you. That bastard Jeha. What? Who? Why? Why the hell would she why? Why Jeha of all people? Ju Hien seemed amused as he answered Julian's question. She said that too many people would be aiming for Jeha's head if he has such a high bounty on him. So she said she was going to go get rid of the bounty. Aya, Nina. You would ignore the bounty on your own brother's head for that. Julian was sobbing internally. However, Nina had not recovered her memories yet. She just had an artifact that was suppressing her instincts as a human weapon and slowly regaining her emotions. Anyway, Pandora should be a total mess since Jack the Ripper went over. That was indeed the case. What did you just say? It seems that an enemy has infiltrated Pandora's HQ. In New York's Pandora HQ Prometheus was grabbing the back of his head at this unexpected enemy attack. Did these bastards go crazy or something? Well, he had expected something like this to happen. Even worms squirm when you step on them, so it made sense that Juhian's team would squirm after such bounties were placed on them. However take care of them. It's just useless opposition. There was a different reason he put a bounty on their heads. I'll imprison you in the tomb of criminals. There were actually law enforcement artifacts that dragged away criminals from around the world. Those artifacts would chase people to the depths of hell for the bounty. These artifacts had been quite useful to put away the great criminals in the past as well. The way to get them to move was to have criminals that were well known throughout the world. That was the reason Prometheus put such unbelievable bounties on their heads. He smiled as he had recently confirmed that those artifacts were on the move again. We will put them all in prison before that bastard Seo Juhian finds the tomb of gluttony. But at that moment sir, terrible news. Director Nim, you've ended up on the wanted list as well. What? What the fuck is he talking about? The employee urgently turned the TV on. Something unbelievable was being reported right now. An extremely large lawsuit against Pandora's executive board and their subordinates. The Holtons have even placed a large bounty on their heads. Whistleblower from Pandora reports the state of the executive board they blackmailed CO Juhian's excavation team for artifacts and have framed them after they were rejected. Will the FBI investigate? Juhian was the one who attacked Prometheus. But the one who turned them into criminals was none other than the angry Ilya. 
Ha 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 ha, this is the punishment for claiming my crime is grade 8 syndrome and only putting a puny 100 bounty on my head. He had modified someone's memory to create a false witness. Prometheus's name was becoming famous because of this whistleblower's confession. Prometheus scoffed in disbelief. An artifact must have noticed my plan. There were no other reasons for them to attack him back like this. He then started to frown. I guess I need to teach that artifact and its master a lesson. How dare a mere human try to mess with me? An angry Prometheus channeled his aura. The eagle next to him gasped. Supreme Leader Nim. You're not thinking about. Prometheus had called something else out with his chaotic aura. It was a spear that was taller than most humans. It was a strong weapon that was shooting out thunderbolts. The eagle became extremely anxious once Prometheus grabbed the spear. Supreme Leader Nim, that artifact is yet to. No. They're perfect as test subjects. Prometheus looked at the spear with satisfaction before clenching it tightly. And then. Swoosh. He threw the spear out the window at a vicious speed. The spear pierced through the air like a laser. He smiled viciously. All of you can just die. Even the crow would never be able to consume this item. The crow was only a clone right now after all. And at that moment. Mammon felt something and jumped in shock. That is. She turned pale and urgently called for Juhian. Human. Danger. Hmm. Juhian looked up at the sky. This was a spear of thunderbolts that was said to kill the target no matter who it was or where they were. That is a spear that can even kill the phoenix. That was aiming for Ju Hien, his team, and their artifacts. Ju Hien laughed and responded after looking at the spear. Chapter, 308 That is a spear that can even kill the phoenix. That was aiming for Ju Hien, his team, and their artifacts. Ju Hien laughed and responded after looking at the spear. Yes, that's the kind of thing you should bring as dowry. All I got until now was some stupid photo. Mammon's jaw dropped in shock. What does he mean a stupid photo? This punk. Is he talking about the idol photo artifact I left for him? Mammon became angry. You bastard. Are you calling the artifact I left you a stupid photo? Ah, uh, you were the culprit behind that? Yes. Do you know how hard I worked there didn't work to get it, but still. Juhian nonchalantly chuckled. Well, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it is a divine grade artifact, but cool things like this are so much better. Mammon grabbed the back of her neck in anger. Cool. Well, humans might think that this spear was cool. This spear artifact was something that could strike a designated target anywhere in the world. The accuracy was one thing, but it was a dangerous weapon that only aimed for the target's vital points. It was so strong that it had been quite important in the War of the Gods as well. This damn spear had massacred so many artifacts and humans in the past. Mammon, as someone who knew this spear's history, urgently shouted to Juhian. That spear can kill everybody here. They could clearly make out the weapon in the Los Angeles sky. It looked like a homing missile. This thing had crossed through the sky to come 4.00 km from New York to LA. It started from the east coast where Pandora's HQ was located and came all the way here to LA on the west coast. It only took a few minutes to get across a large distance that would take a driver a couple days of non-stop driving to travel. This thing was accurately aiming for Juhian and the others' lives. It was even aiming for their artifacts as well. Ciole started to worry as that weapon came closer. I knew it was a dangerous artifact when I detected it, but, it looked even stronger now that she could see it. Captain Nim. It's dangerous. This is no ordinary divine grade artifact. Juhian started to smile. Oh, it definitely isn't an ordinary divine grade artifact. This seems to be one of the strongest divine grade artifacts. It must belong to a major god in order to have such power. A weapon focused on killing with the power of lightning a weapon that is capable of even killing a phoenix is it the weapon from the Indian Mahabharata? Juhian soon figured it out. No. This was Odin's spear Gungnir. Mammon started to shout. 
That bastard Prometheus must have tamed similar artifacts since he can't use Zeus's spear. They used Unknown to imprison all of the major gods and act as the leader of the artifacts. And this was a spear that was said to be indestructible and known for chasing its target until the bitter end. Similar to how Zeus, the greatest of the Greek gods was represented by his lightning bolt, Odin was also tied to a formidable lightning bolt. Lightning bolts were the most threatening and fearsome natural phenomenons for ancient humans. That was the reason lightning bolts were tied to the strongest beings in mythologies. That raging spear of lightning was flying toward Juhian. The spear of lightning will arrive in 1 minute 20 seconds. The spear of lightning will arrive in 1 minute 19 seconds. But Ju Hian wasn't scared at all. In fact, he twisted around to stretch. Mammon freaked out in response. Human, are you thinking about using the crow to do something? Ju Hian responded like this. It's not respectful to reject a present. Mammon wanted to jump up and down in frustration. Even if they were bitter enemies, Mammon was well aware of the crow's powers. However you can't eat that with the current crow. You won't be suffering from just a stomach ache if you eat that. Mammon then added on. I'll try to drag that away so you. Juhian cut her off and started to laugh. It was because he knew what she was planning. Enough. You're probably going to try to sacrifice yourself to destroy it, but I won't let my artifacts die like that. Mammon seemed truly touched. But Julian was sneering internally. He thinks that only he should be pestering his own artifacts. Mammon responded to him. But you really can't eat that with the current crow. It doesn't matter. I don't plan on using the crow bastard. Even the crow seemed shocked this time. Julian, who seemed to have realized Juhian's plan, helped him out. Fine. You can use this too if you're going to do that. Julian had thrown him an unexpected item. Julian had thrown him a small bottle. Juhian's eyes opened wide after he caught it. He seemed to be asking why Julian had that. This is. Just call it insurance. What it does is. No, I can tell what it does even without you saying anything. That was to be expected. Phoenix Feather the item inside the glass bottle was a portion of Jeha's heirloom. It was probably just an artifact that would allow him to film a zombie movie or something. A message popped up to explain the artifact. Completely invincible for 10 seconds 11 it was quite the useful artifact. The only thing that seemed odd was the feather plucked from the crying phoenix SS grade, divine grade, consumable artifact plucked while it was crying. Juhian looked at Julian and clicked his tongue. Wow, you truly are the monarch of pillage. You even stole the feathers of a bird. That bird isn't completely naked now is it? Did you pluck all of its feathers before frying it for dinner? Julian started to foam at the mouth. Am I you? Juhian just pretended to cry. Wow, poor little phoenix. Damn it, it wasn't like that. Jeha plucked it because he didn't want any of his team members to die again. Yes yes. I'll put this feather you pillage to good use. Ow. It was at that moment. Captain Nim. Siole urgently shouted and Juhian took something out of his pocket. And then. Boom. An extremely strong power descended on Juhian. The crackling spear was frantically moving forward to pierce Juhian's heart. That strong force pierced through Juhian's chest. Puke. Even looking at it felt painful. However, the spear was unable to reach his heart. It was because of the item Juhian had wrapped around his hand. It was the rope. The rope that can even bind the gods has activated its powers. It is offsetting the gods' power. Juhian's plan was to use the rope to stop Gungnir. The rope that had upgraded to become an S-grade artifact was a rope that never breaks. It even had the power to bind gods. Of course, it could have been difficult to completely stop the spear since it was not a SS-grade artifact. The spear that was bound by the rope still managed to pierce through Juhian's chest. Drip, drip. It wasn't just the physical pain of it pushing into his chest. This scary spear of lightning burned everything it touched. It should have been as painful as burning your skin with an iron. Juhian's chest caught on fire every time the spear burned his skin. 
it was the power of the phoenix feather. His skin would get burnt before the phoenix's power would restore it. He might have died from burns if he didn't have the phoenix feather. However, although he was free from the dangers of being burnt by the spear, he could not stop the physical force of the spear. Ugh. The rope that had been groaning pushed even harder after seeing Ju Hian in pain. The spear that was stabbing into Ju Hian seemed to become a bit subdued. Ju Hian's eyes flashed. Submit. Ju Hian channeled his strong dominance into Gunnir. It was the power of removing an artifact's power he stole from Hitler. It was to weaken the spear. Of course, it would not easily submit as it was the artifact of a major god. In fact, it tried to kill Ju Hian even more. In this battle between an artifact's aura and a human's dominance that were trying to kill each other the two powers clashed and shot up into the air. The lightning that had gotten even stronger than before burned Ju Hian's entire body. Bong! It was an intense battle. Gungnir's power was hard to suppress even with his power removal and dominance at the level of the four emperors. Hurry! You have to make it submit within ten seconds. Julian was sweating bullets as he said that. Forget ten seconds, it looked as if this battle of will might go on for ten hours. But at that time, there was a loud noise and Ju Hian was smiling. He had surprisingly succeeded in completely binding Gungnir. Gungnir was flailing in pain while being tied up by the rope. It looked like a wild animal that had been caught. It was difficult to completely subdue as it was an artifact of the highest grade. But the rest of the team gasped. H, he really grabbed it. They were looking at their captain as if he was some kind of monster. You didn't completely subdue that yet, right? He would probably need to constantly channel his dominance into it for a whole year to make it submit with dominance alone. Are you going to keep on making it submit? No. What? Then. Juhian smiled viciously. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. There was a loud explosion as if someone had shot a cannon. Juhian had flung that ferocious back. Gungnir could only return to its starting point as if it had received a counter. Gungnir traveled back all 400 km to New York. And then we detected a heinous aura above Pandora's HQ. Prometheus smiled after hearing that report. Gungnir was like a boomerang it would return to its master once it got rid of its target. Good. It should be back after taking care of Th. Supreme Leader Nim. It's dangerous. The eagle who realized something urgently shouted. It was at that moment. Ugh. Gungnir dug into Prometheus's heart. It flew in with extreme force. Gungnir stabbed into the artifact's core, Prometheus's vital point. You, Ugh. Supreme Leader Nim. The core that was stabbed was extremely vital for artifacts. Prometheus felt intense pain. Gungnir was eaten by a wolf named Fenrir but it was still a weapon that was used in the battle between gods. It had the power to destroy divine-grade artifacts. Prometheus spurt out black blood from his mouth. That wasn't all. Something twitched on Gungnir's shaft. That was the rope that was hanging on Gungnir's handle. Prometheus was confused. Why is this thing here? However, the rope just flashed its eyes and dropped something on the ground. The item it dropped was the Code of Hammurabi. The Code of Hammurabi had accumulated some of Gungnir's destructive force earlier. Prometheus swore the moment it flashed. Co Juhian, you, son of A. The Code of Hammurabi then exploded. An extremely strong explosion swept through the Pandora HQ boardroom. On the other side of the United States, Juhian, who had suppressed Gungnir in exactly eight seconds, was shaking his tingling hand. He looked like a pitcher who had thrown a 100 miles per hour fastball. Juhian started to smile. Mammon's jaw was dropped in shock. H, he sent that thing back. Mammon couldn't believe this side of Juhian she had never seen in his past life. It wasn't that Juhian was weak back then, but he seemed extremely strong right now. Juhian started to speak. Bring things like that as wedding presents from here on. Do you understand? Mammon could only chuckle in disbelief. Julian, who was sighing in relief, asked him a question. That was not like you at all. 
you just returned the spear to him. Will that be okay? Who said I returned it? What? They could see something flying toward them. Julian couldn't believe what he was seeing. T, that is. The thing that was flying back to Juhian was none other than Gungnir and. I brought this back. I brought it. The rope was dragging Gungnir back against its wishes. It seemed as if the rope was collecting divine grade artifacts for Juhian as well. Juhian smiled with satisfaction. Good, I will count that as being equivalent to 100 divine grade artifacts. Chapter 309 Pandora's New York HQ was attacked at 9 p.m. on the 21st. The area with the most damage was the Pandora Executive Office but surprisingly nothing around it was damaged at all. It is amazing that there were no damages to the nearby buildings in such a congested area. It's definitely unbelievable that only the Pandora building was destroyed. This was not a person's doing. As a result of this incident, Pandora's Executive Board Supreme Leader James Rothschild the news was quite loud this morning. People clicked their tongues after seeing Pandora's building that had been scorched. My goodness, what happened here? I heard that the Pandora director was stabbed by a divine great spear. Really? Is he still alive? People were most shocked at the fact that Pandora's director was attacked by a divine great artifact. Rothschild was as skilled an artifact user as the monarchs. He had gone into a tomb alone and come back alive and had not received any injuries from being attacked by artifacts in the past. But what? He was stabbed by a divine grade artifact. My goodness! Who did it? Wasn't it Seo Juhian? What? Seo Juhian? He went and even attacked the Pandora director now. No, I heard that he tried to kill Seo Juhian and got hurt instead. What? He got hurt instead. I guess Pandora's executive board wasn't much. Isn't he just receiving divine punishment? The eagle was grinding its teeth while hearing these conversations. He couldn't believe what these trashy human bastards were saying. Lowly bastards. The eagle went to see Prometheus. Supreme Leader Nim, how is your kindy? There wasn't even a need to ask. Do you even need to ask that question? Prometheus, who was currently recovering in the Rothschild residence, was in a terrible condition. His pale face and lips were proof he was not doing too well. The most serious injury was the area around his chest. His chest had a giant hole after being pierced by Gungnir and the area around it was rotting. The affected area was as hard as rocks and it was spreading to his shoulders and stomach. Any affected area was dyed black and slowly crumbling. It even looked as if he had turned to stone. The eagle gulped after looking at Prometheus's condition. He's really going to die if this continues. It was extremely serious. He had been hit by Gungnir after all. Sir, that was too much for an expert shut up. Prometheus's eyes flashed with anger. He had worked so hard to stick Odin's artifact in prison while bringing Gungnir out and training it, but then it's all that damn crow's fault. It was all because the crow chose a bastard like Seo Juhian. The crow used to be one of the regular heirlooms of course, it had been the most competent of the heirlooms it was the artifact chosen to select the king. That was why Prometheus had been happy when the crow had consumed the major gods. That bastard chose to betray them all and started on a path of consuming all artifacts. It had even threatened them. We shouldn't have trusted it from the beginning. They killed its human master and imprisoned it in response. But it chose a human master again. Why the hell does it keep taking the human side over and over? That crow bastard was quite the problem. Other artifacts either submitted to him or to the spider supreme leader. Should I ask the Pandora system artifact for help? He shook his head. The risks were too high to do that. No. It's still okay. There's still the Tomb of Gluttony. The Tomb of Gluttony was one that the Supreme Leader personally administered. Forget opening the prison, Seo Juhian should not be able to survive the Tomb of Gluttony. Prometheus stopped grinding his teeth and asked. What's the status of the Restorer? T, that a Restorer was the only one who could heal Prometheus right now. Of course, he just needed to use the official Restorers. 
the official restorers were created by Prometheus to restore artifacts as needed. Why? Whether they were consumable artifacts or possession-type artifacts, restorers were necessary for all of them. He created these official restorers so that he could use them whenever he needed, but some shitty motherfucker had to do something we didn't tell him to do. That bastard Hitler was the problem. He had killed all of their official restorers. Well, whatever. There are bound to be some crazies among the humans. Prometheus held himself back from shouting in anger. I remember telling you to f do you really think I would sink so low for a WOM? What if that babe is at COAS level? Jeha flinched and rolled his eyes. I, I would d definitely think about it. And if she's at Irene's level? Ah. Fuck thank you very much god oh my dog. Cola pummeled Jeha to the ground. Hey. Do you want to die? Why the hell am I just to think about it while Irene was an okay right away? Huh. What am I lacking in comparison to Irene? Boo ugh. Jeha was stomped on this time. Ilya, who had asked the question, was chuckling as if he was enjoying this. Ciole wasn't satisfied with just that. She ran over to Juhian to snitch on Jeha. Captain Nim. Please listen to me. Jeha said that he would restore Prometheus. Apparently he'll restore it in return for being introduced to a girl. Hey, I didn't say that. Captain Nim, I never said I huh. The two of them, who were looking for Ju Hien, couldn't help but be shocked. It couldn't be helped, since. Sit still. I said, sit still. Gungnir had turned into a broom. The rope was holding on to Gungnir and making it sweep the floor. Ciole dropped her jaw in shock. Captain Nim. What are you doing with a divine grade weapon? Ju Hien, who was reading a book, nonchalantly responded. It had quite the attitude. I'm training it right now. Excuse me. The rest of the team who came to watch Jeha cry gasped as well. That crazy bastard made Gungnir look like a broom. Something like that is possible. That was right. Making an artifact look like a modern item was something humans did to make artifacts submit. Basically, it was changing them to an appearance that made it easy for the human to deal with. The artifacts actually felt a ton of shame to be forced into different forms like this. The higher the grade of the artifact, the harder it was to change it to look like a modern item. It would be even harder if the shape of the modern item had nothing to do with the artifact. But he was able to turn a godly killing weapon into a mere broom. Co Juhian, you fucking crazy bastard. He had then handed the broom to the cleaning devils he had stolen from Mammon's tomb. He told them to clean with it. Unfortunately, Gungnir pecked away at all of them, forcing the rope to clean with it instead. Gungnir complained and tried to escape but Juhian just needed one hand to grab it each time. That was why it was even more shocking. That chaotic aura. He was grabbing such a chaotic aura with his bare hand. Even if it is drugged up. Gungnir was weaker than it should have been because Prometheus seemed to have used some drugs to tame it. That was the reason Prometheus was able to use it. He probably used unknown on it. Thankfully, it also allowed Juhian to use Gungnir pretty easily. But the others didn't care. None of them were even thinking about touching this weapon. I'm going to be controlled the moment I touch it. I'll probably have to stay in bed in pain for a month. I'd rather give up porn for good before I touch that thing. I would rather date men than to touch that thing. They all meant it. Juhian was able to use it as a broom but this was a chaotic weapon that even monarchs would be unable to use. That was the power of a major god's weapon. Even if it was in a weakened state, it was still the strongest of the divine grade artifacts. But Juhian was easily handling such an item. Well, Juhian didn't think it was that hard. Why can't you touch it? Gungnir, who had suddenly been dragged to this unfamiliar place, was groaning. It was upset about being abducted but now it had to suffer such indignity as well. It started to rage in anger. The angry Gungnir's chaotic aura exploded out. Boom! It was extremely powerful. The rest of the team became extremely wary. Gungnir continued to rage and returned to its original form. 
It was back to being the powerful and sharp spear. Warning. The spear of lightning is threatening your life. It then attacked Juhian. To be more specific, it attacked Juhian and his artifacts. It was going to fulfill its original mission before returning to Prometheus. Unfortunately for Gungnir Pao, Juhian used the book he was reading to smack Gungnir. It was as if he was swatting a fly. That wasn't all. Slap. 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 Something shocking happened once he smacked it some more as if he was catching a cockroach on the ground. You are using your dominance to change the appearance of the artifact. Ju Hien had changed Gungnir's appearance once again. This time, it was a plunger used to unclog a toilet. Gungnir was very sad. But Ju Hien didn't care and just clicked his tongue. Jeha and Ilya, go to Chloe and get Chairman Quan's body. Jeha gasped for some reason while Julian asked with disgust. You're not going to make Chairman Quan clean the toilet with Gungnir, are you? Ju Hien just laughed instead of responding. Hugh. Julian was relieved once the boys returned with Chairman Quan's body. Thankfully, it didn't look as if he would have to see a Dullahan cleaning the toilet. The way Ju Hien was inspecting Chairman Quan's body must mean that he had a different reason for looking at it. Jeha, who had brought Chairman Quan's body over, was peeking lower at Chairman Quan's body. He had seen something shocking when he went to Chloe's room earlier. Jeha had seen Chloe doing a surgery. Chairman Quan's body was flailing while tied down on the operating table and he was covered in a surgical cloth. There was a small square cut out on the cloth, similar to when doctors performed open heart surgery. The problem was where she was working on. Hey, what the hell? Why was the cloth on top of Chairman Quan's family jewels? Chloe had calmly responded to him. The captain then told me to cut it off while I removed all of the parasitic artifacts from his body. He was just checking to see if Chairman Quan's manhood was still there. But he could only peek for a moment as Ju Hien raised Gungnir into the air. Julian raised his eyebrow in confusion. What are you going to do with that? What else? The same thing you thought about earlier. What? Then are you? Jeha suddenly screamed. Ack. We should at least let him die as a man. Kong Ming, you can't be like that either. Julian shouted back with a look of disgust. He's just trying to pierce through Achilles' armor with Gungnir. Ha! Huh. Achilles's armor could not be pierced with regular weapons. It wouldn't break even if someone attacked the person's Achilles tendon. Furthermore, Chairman Quan had plastered Achilles's armor with a ton of buff artifacts. But a divine-grade spear might be able to pierce through it. And if that was possible, Ju Hien was planning on destroying Achilles's armor before restoring it and using it for himself. It means that we would have a highest-grade defense-type artifact in our hands. Chairman Quan's body must have sensed danger as it started to flail. Now then, time to experiment. Ju Hien struck down with the spear. Chapter, 310 Now then, time to experiment. Ju Hien struck down with the spear. But why did Ju Hien have to aim for the spot between Chairman Quan's legs? But the moment the spear was about to stab into that important spot. Flash. A bright light flashed from the flailing Chairman Quan's body. It was the light from the artifact inside. Achilles's armor has detected a significant threat. It is urgently activating defense mode. The buff effect on the armor is being activated. Buff, extra defense increase against assassination weapons. Buff, increase resistance against divine grade weapons. Ju Hien was smiling as if he was enjoying himself. Yes, a defense type armor should at least do this much. The attacking spear and the defending shield slammed against each other. Boom. Kaya. Some of the team members were almost sent flying from the impact. The gust of wind that burst out destroyed a lot of the things in the room. Some artifacts started to get damaged as well. Jeha foamed at the mouth. Captain Nim. Hold on. Hold on. You can test it out if you want but still. You're destroying everything here. The hotel owner is going to cry. Well, he seemed like the one who really wanted to cry but that was besides the point. 
Ju Hian opened his eyes wide and nodded his head. Really? Then I guess we'll go outside. The team members gasped even more as Ju Hian tried to drag the flailing Chairman Quan out. Where do you think you are going with a headless body? Do you want to make the front page of every newspaper? Please stop. They didn't want to be associated with such a bizarre incident. Yu Jaha shouted at that moment. The Captain Nim gave you a bonus not too long ago. What are you doing? He gave it to you for times like this. Ilya shouted back at him. What? That wasn't just a bonus for doing a good job. Ha! Do you really think the Captain Nim would give you something like that? Hurry up and get to work you little punk. Ilya pouted and summoned his spell book artifact. Lemajitan the Lesser Key of Solomon Book 3, the angels who control time SS grade, divine grade, possession artifact this was one of Ilya's many spell book artifacts. Basically, it was a mysterious spell book that could control time. It was the artifact with closest ties to occultism in the entire team. He activated the artifact, making a barrier of light appeared around the room that caused something unbelievable to happen. The time in this area is in regression. Captain, you can test all you want now. Ju Hian swung Gungnir down as soon as Ilya said that. The team members clenched their eyes shut at the clash of the two strong auras. Ju Hian was probably the only one in the world who could remain calm in the midst of such a fierce battle of auras. But they slowly opened their eyes to peek because they were curious to know the results. However W, what the? I, it's totally fine. They gasped in shock. Unbelievable. That was right. Ju Hian had stabbed at numerous vital points but Chairman Quan's body was completely fine. This defense was extremely strong. Of course, Chairman Quan's body was feeling as if it was about to die. It could only roll around in pain as it couldn't say anything without a head. There were no injuries on the body because of the super strong armor but the places Ju Hian was aiming for were embarrassing locations. The team members stepped in. Let's see if it still doesn't work when I do this. Captain Nim, I'm borrowing this. Jaha grabbed Xiang Yu and ran toward the body. He then stabbed it in the butt. Puk. Although the arms were covering the butt as if it was in pain, the team members gasped after seeing that it had no damage at all. And then fine, let's see who wins, you son of a bitch. The team members who were feeling their pride attacked by this armor started calling out all of their artifacts. Rumble. Bong. Vicious thunderbolts and numerous swords roared inside the room. Chairman Quan's body was in serious pain. Ju Hian, on the other hand, was having quite a lot of fun. Achilles's armor is becoming even stronger. This old bastard really has a great armor. He had expected this. Achilles's armor was an S-grade artifact but it was extremely well known in history. It was as strong as divine-grade artifacts. Basically, it was the highest-grade defense-type weapon that could not be pierced by your average weapons. It was extremely great at physical defense. The team members didn't know what else to do after it blocked everything they threw at it. What should we do? It shows no signs of breaking at all. But Ju Hian started to laugh. It'd be bad if it broke so easily. Excuse me? All right, test over. Now it's time to destroy this armor. Ju Hian properly channeled his dominance into Gungnir this time. Gungnir resisted with all its strength. It really is difficult. Ju Hian slightly frowned. He could feel his strength quickly being sucked out as he tried to use it properly. The doggy artifacts had difficult risks and took a lot of stamina as well but Gungnir seemed to be the type to drain his mental fortitude. But he needed to destroy the armor. It was not just because he desired the armor for himself. Chairman Quan cannot feel any lasting pain or even the fear of death right now. Having an artifact of immortality takes away a person's fear of death. Ju Hian couldn't let it stay that way. I need that bastard to experience the same pain we experienced. Chairman Quan needed to experience the crow's tomb as well. The pain and fear they had felt the fear that made them feel like lowly animals. No matter what, Ju Hian wanted to at least make that bastard shed as much tears as his subordinates had shed. This was the first step to get him there. 
but it won't break no matter what we do. It's not like we can just strip it off of him. Do we need to pour oil all over his body or something? What was Juhian planning? As you all know, you just have to go for Achilles's heel. Achilles's armor's weakness was naturally Achilles's heel. You can't find the heel even in your past life. It's not just cutting of Achilles's tendon. Jeha shouted in anger at Ilya's question. Ow! Shut the hell up if you've never tried. Would it be an S-grade artifact if the weakness was so obvious? This was the truth. Achilles's armor's weakness was not the tendon at the heel. Its weakness was at an unexpected location based on each user. This Achilles's heel is catered to Chairman Quan. Usually, it would take the form of an item or a location. But Zhu Hian had been unable to find it even after being around Chairman Quan for ten years. I couldn't find it no matter what I did. He didn't know why but even Kong Ming had failed over and over again. They had searched everywhere they suspected it might be but none of it had been right. It wasn't as if Zhu Hian had not found Chairman Quan's weakness for ten years because he was a slacker. How are you planning on finding his Achilles's heel? Zhu Hian just laughed instead of responding. While they were doing that, Chairman Quan was screaming in anger. Ugh, ugh. It was to be expected. Chairman Quan's head was still connected to his body. Although he couldn't see what was going on, he could feel what was going on. What the fuck are these bastards doing with my body? Ugh. He had never felt such indignity before. Where the hell are they stabbing? His son-in-law, Yun Shi Wu, who was in the room with him, frowned. Are you okay sir? If, hypothetically speaking, the armor was to break. How foolish. Do you really think that would be possible? Yun Shi Wu smiled wickedly in response. The engineering team had worked their asses off to upgrade Chairman Quan's armor. The only way for them to destroy that armor is to aim for its Achilles's heel. But there's no way those bastards will figure it out. That was the reason Chairman Quan could be so calm even though they had his body. That's right. They are just wasting their time. This small amount of indignity didn't matter. I'll be able to get my body back soon. He had sent his subordinates to rescue his body. But at that moment ugh. Chairman Quan suddenly coughed up blood. Yun Shi Wu became frantic. See, Chairman Nim. Sir, what's wrong? Chairman Quan started getting dizzy. Chairman Nim. Yun Shi Wu urgently ran toward Chairman Quan. Chairman Quan looked completely pale. That was to be expected. The armor my armor is in danger. Chairman Nim. Chairman Quan, whose instincts had detected danger, started to shake. Hurry up and bring me the phone immediately. He could tell. That bastard had figured out his Achilles's tendon. He figured out something that nobody should ever know. Zhu Hian was smirking back in his hotel room. It was because of the message that popped up. Gungnir is flying toward the Achilles' heel. Zhu Hian had channeled a ton of dominance and sent Gungnir flying. This was the perfect plan since Gungnir was a divine spear that would always hit its target. Zhu Hian smirked knowing it couldn't fail. Go, Gungnir. Aim for that bastard's Achilles' heel. It was at that moment. The enemy's Achilles' heel has been stabbed. Achilles' armor is starting to lose power. Chairman Quan's body started to glow at the same time. To be more specific, Chairman Quan's undershirt. Achilles' armor is starting to break. Chairman Quan's armor finally started to crack. The team members gasped at this unexpected situation. What the hell? You really hit his Achilles' heel? Where? What was his Achilles's heel? Julian was extremely curious. However, Zhu Hian looked perplexed. Gungnir has accurately struck the second Achilles's tendon. Second. Zhu Hian's eyes couldn't help but flash after seeing that word. Could this bastard change his Achilles's heel? It was extremely likely. Otherwise, it was impossible that the great and mighty Kong Ming would have been wrong so many times. Zhu Hian started to smile. Now I get it. No wonder we were always wrong. The Achilles heel was the user's weakness. 
but Chairman Kwan had switched his Achilles' heel to the most unexpected of locations every so often. He was pretty much cheating. But the problem was the Achilles' heel that Gungnir had stabbed. Ho! This was that bastard's Achilles' heel. This bastard is fucking crazy. What? What the hell is it? Unbelievable. Ju Hien was quite amused while reading the message. At the same time Quan Hyuk Su was questioning his eyes. He was currently running TKBM in Chairman Quan's place. He had returned home for the first time in a long while to rest at home with his family. M, my goodness, what the? His wife was gasping at what was going on. There was a broken window and a broken vase. Then there was Gungnir that was roaring wildly in Quan Hyuk Su's hand. Honey, what is TH Kia? Gungnir that was in Quan Hyuk Su's hand was releasing its chaotic aura while aiming for someone. It was aiming for Quan Hyuk Su's daughter, Quan Sae Yun. You, ugh. Quan Sae Yun, Chairman Quan's secretary, was groaning on the ground. She was bleeding from the side. F, father. Quan Hyuk Su's eyes opened wide. Gungnir had suddenly broken through the window. He had just barely managed to catch Gungnir to save his daughter's life, however why is this ugh? Gungnir was flailing viciously. Quan Hyuk Su was barely able to stop Gungnir as he was also one of the four emperors, but still fuck, who the hell? As Quan Hyuk Su was swearing he received an urgent call from Yun Shir Wu. Quan Hyuk Su was annoyed but still picked up. It was because he kept getting call after call no matter how many times he ignored it. What is it? I don't have time to pick up your damn call right now. Chairman Nim, this is bad. The Chairman Nim the Chairman Nim's Achilles' heel has been struck. What? Just now I believe something happened to the armor. Anyway, we need to quickly come up with a plan. Your daughter, is your daughter safe? He could hear Chairman Quan shouting through the phone. Hyung Nim. I asked you about your daughter. She was hurt. But why was Chairman Quan asking about that? And his Achilles' heel? Hyung Nim's Achilles' heel should be the TKBM building. Quan Hyuk Su, who knew about Chairman Quan's artifact, asked back with a vicious expression on his face. Hyung Nim. What is going on? Is she dead? Just answer my question. No, some spear flew in through the window and threatened her life. Why? Make sure you get her treated. Make sure to do it. Quan Hyuk Su's eyes were full of murderous intent. Did this old bastard. Chapter, 311. Did this old bastard, Quan Hyuk Su frowned and asked back. Hyung Nim, is your Achilles' heel perhaps my daughter? He expected to hear a negative response but Chairman Quan calmly answered back. Heal her properly if you know that. Flames looked ready to burst out of Quan Hyuk Su's eyes. Wasn't your Achilles heel the TKBM HQ building? Chairman Quan shamelessly responded back. I used unknown to change it. I already told you that. You told me that it was originally the outer wall of TKBM's HQ but that you changed it to something on the inside. No. That was a lie. Who knows when any part of a building might break. Quan Hyuk Su scoffed. Well, fine. That statement was acceptable. Chairman Quan had selected TKBM's HQ as his Achilles heel upon getting Achilles armor. But he had been the one to advise his young Nim to ask Pandora to switch it because the building seemed a bit dangerous to select. However but you fucking changed it to my daughter. Quan Hyuk Su sounded very angry. Chairman Quan still sounded relaxed. What's wrong? What is the problem? There's no way that you would let your daughter die and someone at your level is the greatest warden in the world. Quan Hyuk Su couldn't even laugh anymore. Should he be thankful that his young Nim was praising his abilities so highly? But still this was too much. You did that without saying anything to me? That's betrayal. Chairman Quan just scoffed at him. Betrayal? I know that you planted spies in my company without my knowledge as well. You shouldn't have sent your daughter to my company if you didn't want anything to happen. You even thought about destroying TKBM's HQ if the right chance came along, didn't you? 
Quan Hyuk Su scrunched his face. Well, it was true that he planted people in Chairman Quan's company. Spies? They are scouts just in case anything unexpected happens. Shut up. Now that you know, protect your daughter well. That is the way for both you and I to get out of this with a win-win situation. You should have at least told me about it. Why should I have trusted you with that? This is the kind of thing you don't even tell your family members. Quan Hyuk Su scrunched his face even more. Is it because of that future that didn't happen? What? Quan Hyuk Su knew that Chairman Quan had always been wary of him. He also knew that Chairman Quan became even warier of him after using that memory artifact Yang Chen had brought. I don't know what you saw with that but Hyung Nim, were you scared that I would take your place? Quan Hyuk Su. There was a brief moment of heavy silence. It was the type of silence that could shake this sworn sibling relationship that had existed for tens of years. Quan Hyuk Su was the first to break the silence. Well, I'm just joking. Quan Hyuk Su took a big breath as if to brush everything off before smiling brightly. Anyway, I understand what you were thinking, Hyung Nim. I'll let it go this time since I can see why you would do something like that. I probably would have done the same. Thank you for understanding. Anyway cough. Chairman Quan coughed and Yun Shi Wu urgently butted in. We need to quickly recover the Chairman Nim's body. He'll be in serious danger if we don't put the head back on. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I got it. Don't worry about that. I'll get Hyung Nim's body back soon. Chairman Quan urgently added on. While you are there, CEO Ju Hien grab some information about the future from that son of a bitch. That bastard knows more than I do. I will only lose again without that info. He was lacking memories of the future. He had too little information about the past life, well, the future that was to come, compared to Seo Ju Hien. He was certain that those bastards had some more information about the future. They must have something that was better than this Merlin's artifact. He needed to take that away from them. Quan Hyuk Su happily nodded his head. Okay, I'll bring that too. Click. Quan Hyuk Su hung up with a smile on his face. Motherfucking old bastard. How dare you take my daughter hostage and send me to do your errands. His face was full of murderous intent as if he had never been smiling in the first place. It wasn't that he didn't understand Chairman Quan. As he had said, he would have probably done the same thing and taken Chairman Quan's daughter hostage. The two of them were both terrible people like that. But it still doesn't feel good to be on the receiving end. Quan Hyuk Su's gaze looked quite serious as he looked at Gungnir. While that was going on Gungnir succeeded in stabbing the enemy's Achilles heel. It scratched her side. Gungnir successfully stabbing Quan Sae Yun has affected Achilles' armor. Ju Hien smirked while looking at these messages. It was because they all knew who Quan Sae Yun was. They were all shocked to hear Ju Hien say that name. Quan Hyuk Su's daughter is his Achilles' heel. It was a person. But wasn't Quan Sae Yun that old bastard's mistress? Either way, it was changed to Quan Hyuk Su's daughter. That's fucking crazy. No wonder I couldn't find it. It's understandable though. Yeah, he basically got a super strong bodyguard named Quan Hyuk Su for free. Do you think they discussed it beforehand? Ilya, who knew Quan Hyuk Su very well, shook his head. Absolutely not. No matter how terrible he is, he's not someone who would use his daughter like that. That bastard used his subordinates as if they were single-use tools but he cherished his daughter as the most precious thing in the world. I agree. It was probably a ploy to make sure Quan Hyuk Su stays on his side. Whether Quan Hyuk Su knew about it or not, he would be Chairman Quan's bodyguard. No matter what happened, Chairman Quan would have this perfect bodyguard. That was Chairman Quan's method of using the people around him however he wanted. The Chairman Quan of the past was just as bad if not worse than the current one. This guy was just a douchebag. But Quan Hyuk Su and Chairman Quan are sworn brothers. He might be okay with it. Well, they already know that they are both rotten bastards. They also have the shared goal of being in Pandora. The team members knew Quan Hyuk Su and Quan Tae Jun's personalities well. 
Their relationship wasn't that shallow that something like this would cause a rift. Who knows? Will that really be the case? Ju Hien was the only one who was smiling with amusement. It was at that moment. Anyway, that's not the problem. Achilles's armor is ours now. Yu Jeha was very happy. He liked all artifacts but he had a thing for armors even more. I'll restore it right now. As he approached the armor that had turned into pieces. Ju Hien urgently pulled Jeha by the collar. Ugh. It was extremely quick. Jeha was thrown toward the rest of the team just as a vicious aura burst out. Achilles's armor is starting to create a tomb appearance. Tomb glyphs started to appear around them. This is the sign of a tomb appearance. It seemed as if Chairman Quan's head had ordered it to do this. It must have told the armor to attack Juhian's group with the last of its strength. It would be able to use traps to attack humans if it created a tomb. Warning. A tomb is appearing. But it must have forgotten who it was going up against right now. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Bang. 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 Juhian used tomb destruction and artifact destruction to ruthlessly destroy the armor. It fell over in serious pain. Then some new messages appeared. Achilles's armor has been completely destroyed. The contract with its master has been broken. The aura of immortality is disappearing. Ju Hien stomped on Chairman Quan's naked body as soon as he saw that message. The headless Chairman Quan's body jerked vigorously. It finally seemed to be able to feel pain. Chairman Quan's body looked full of pain as they stabbed him with a knife. But someone gasped at that moment. W, what the hell? Why is he still alive even after we took the armor off? There was a simple explanation. Ju Hien nonchalantly explained. That bastard has a fake heirloom as well. Heirlooms turn their users to superhumans. Basically, they made the user not die so easily in the war of artifacts. But it fortifies a person's life force and doesn't turn them invincible. Stomp. Ju Hien started to smile. Basically, if a regular person would die in one minute from significant blood loss, someone with an heirloom would be able to last at least one hour. That golden time would increase. Chairman Quan would be fine for a bit even without the armor for that same reason. He's probably in intense pain right now. The armor that prevented him from feeling pain was gone now. T, then are you going to let him just die like this? As Ju Hien walked over to Chairman Quan's swoosh, something came flying toward the window. It was extremely quick. It was none other than Gungnir. Gungnir had returned after completing its mission. Ju Hien grabbed Gungnir that was rising up faster than an airplane. He then spun it around as if he was practicing pole arts before stopping the roaring Gungnir. The team members sighed in relief. I was wondering what came flying. Well, Gungnir isn't the only thing to fly over. Excuse me. They heard laughter outside at that moment. I was wondering who sent that thing. It was you, you little bastard. Quan Hyuk Su had flown over while holding on to Gungnir. Ju Hien's group instantly became wary after hearing that familiar voice. What the hell? They took out their artifacts as soon as they saw Quan Hyuk Su. Did that old bastard fly over on Gungnir? Gungnir was extremely fast. This guy had flown over on something that flies as quickly as a missile. Furthermore, Quan Hyuk Su had been in Korea just now. He had crossed over the Pacific Ocean. Yu Jeha shouted in shock. He really isn't human. Look at the pot calling the kettle black. Ju Hien was being serious. Anyway, Quan Hyuk Su's eyes were full of anger as he glared at Ju Hien. You bastard, were you the one who was aiming for my daughter? This guy who gave no shits about his subordinates dying still seemed to have his honor as a dad and cherished his daughter a lot. Quan Hyuk Su's dominance was going wild in anger. Answer me. Were you the one who was aiming for my daughter? Quan Hyuk Su immediately summoned his artifact. This was the artifact that gave him the name of the Monarch of Love. A chilling aura swirled inside the room. That artifact might have been responsible for the things in the room starting to melt. 
This dangerous aura was Quan Hyuk Su's power as one of the four emperors that he did not reveal very often. Ju Hian was surprisingly still calm. I had no idea. Who the hell would think that Chairman Quan's Achilles heel would be your daughter? Do you honestly expect me to believe that? I'm sure you already recognize the artifact you flew over on. Quan Hyuk Su frowned. Gungnir. Ju Hian started to speak again. I just told it to aim for his Achilles's heel. Quan Hyuk Su thought for a moment before accepting that explanation. There was no way that this bastard would have known about the Achilles' heel that even he didn't know about. Quan Hyuk Su then snorted. First, hand over Hyung Nim's body. Ju Hian laughed in response. Sure, take it if you want. The team members gasped. Is it really okay to give it to him? However. Ju Hian flicked his finger. Something shocking happened. Boom. There was a sudden earthquake and a sinkhole appeared under Chairman Quan's body. And then Osiris is opening the gate to the afterlife. A chaotic black whirlwind shot up from the sinkhole. Quan Hyuk Su was extremely familiar with this scene. How could he not when he was stuck in there just a few weeks ago? Chairman Quan was dragged into the whirlwind. Hyung Nim. Quan Hyuk Su glared at Ju Hian. Ju Hian nonchalantly chuckled. Feel free to go inside and take it. You should know the layout since you've already been there once before. This son of a bitch. Quan Hyuk Su was angry but it was as Ju Hian said. He had already been to this Egyptian hell once before. Finding Chairman Quan's body in there and coming back out would be easy. That was why he was suspicious as it didn't make sense that Ju Hian would make it so easy for him. But at that moment your daughter wasn't hurt a lot but she was still hurt, wasn't she? Ju Hian smiled and shook something in the air. It looked like some sort of ointment. This ointment is good for injuries from weapon artifacts. It's a special item created by a heirloom. That was right. Chloe had created this item. Chloe's heirloom was a unicorn. She could use the unicorn's horn to make all sorts of healing artifacts. Quan Hyuk Su looked at it and scoffed. Are you threatening me with that? No. I'm not interested in using medicine to threaten someone. Ju Hian casually threw him the ointment. Don't worry, we didn't poison it. What the hell is this bastard thinking? Why is he being nice like this? Ju Hian finally got to the point. It looks like you didn't know about Chairman Quan's Achilles' heel either. Get to the point. Ju Hian smiled and added on. Do you really think Chairman Quan is someone you can trust? What? Ju Hian had some information about things because of the ghosts that Seo Lei had planted. He knew that Quan Hyuk Su was upset at Chairman Quan for monopolizing information about the future. Ju Hian knew from past experience that Quan Hyuk Su was the type who would be really curious about that. Ju Hian shook the raven's tears in the air. It's obvious that the old bastard told you to get information about the future from me, right? But if you take this with you, Chairman Quan will monopolize the information again. So choose one. You either go in there to save Chairman Quan's body, or you work together with me. They say that the enemy of an enemy is a friend. Ju Hian's plan to pit them against each other had started. Chapter, 312 The team members almost fainted after hearing what Ju Hian just said. What the hell did he just say? Is he planning on teaming up with Quan Hyuk Su? Their minds were blown. It was to be expected. Quan Hyuk Su was one of the people supporting and protecting TKBM, as well as Chairman Quan's complete ally. He was also a major player in the artifact game as one of the four emperors. Basically, he was their enemy through and through. Ilya, who had betrayed Quan Hyuk Su to join them, was especially going out of his mind. Was Ju Hian telling him to die? Could that be it? Captain, Tell me if you have any problems with me. Quan Hyuk Su was glaring at Ju Hian. Do you know what you are saying right now? Of course. I'm telling you to feed that so called sibling love to the dogs. Who, are you crazy? You tricked me and even took away my precious disciple. Ju Hian smiled mischievously. You might be able to meet that precious disciple again if you work with me. 
Ilya started to beg for his life after hearing that. Captain. I, I'm sorry. What do you need me to do? Cleaning. Laundry. Or maybe you want me to go find you a divine grade artifact. The arrogant and annoying Ilya was rarely begging for his life like this. Ju Hian ignored him and continued chatting with Quan Hyuk Su. This shouldn't be a bad deal for you. I'm sure you are curious about information regarding the future as well. The team members gulped after seeing Ju Hian shake the raven's tears around. Ju Hian was doing a dangerous gamble right now. But still, the raven's tears. Captain, are you really thinking about restoring Quan Hyuk Su's memories? Quan Hyuk Su was one of the four emperors in the past. Him getting his memories back would mean the birth of an extremely strong enemy. Or was he trying to scam him as usual? They knew that Quan Hyuk Su was not someone who would fall for such a scam. Captain, what the hell are you thinking? Surprisingly, Julian was the only one who was not trying to stop Ju Hian. Actually, this might be a good decision. Excuse me? The rest of the team gasped but Julian meant it. Why? Quan Hyuk Su was definitely an enemy but he had a pretty favorable impression of Ju Hian. That was right. Quan Hyuk Su was very strong. He also had an extremely favorable view of Ju Hian in the past. In fact, Quan Hyuk Su wanted to take Ju Hian as his number one disciple. Although he only taught Ju Hian for a short period of time, he desired and cherished Ju Hian who was extremely talented. Quan Hyuk Su hated Chairman Quan for taking Ju Hian away so that he could not be his number one disciple. But if you asked if he was a good person, he was definitely not a good person. Anyway, he was not someone who would kill Ju Hian. He might even help Ju Hian if they somehow managed to convince him. The problem is that his feelings are all just from the past life. In this life, Ju Hian was the person who took Ilya away, threw him into the underworld, and caused him all sorts of anguish. That was the reason the raven's tears would be a gamble. But there was a different thought going on in Ju Hian's mind. I know a lot about this guy. And I need this old bat's memories. Ju Hian wanted Quan Hyuk Su's memories more than anything else. What the hell did you do to my sister? George had called him this morning. George told him that Irene was bawling her eyes out. She kept grabbing onto her family members and crying and crying some more saying that Ju Hian was dead. Ju Hian had realized something after hearing George explain the situation a bit more. She got a portion of her past memories back. Oh Sung Woo had informed him about her clash with Jin Kai Yuan in his hotel room. The copy he left in the room probably worked to a degree. It helped him understand the extent of the copy's abilities. And most importantly all of the monopolizers killed Mr. Ju Hian. They wanted to stop Mr. Ju Hian from getting to that position. Irene then said she had no right to face Ju Hian and just cried in pain. Irene's comments had served as clues to help Ju Hian make a deduction. There's definitely something. There was a reason they had to die. And although the chances were low, maybe she also no matter what, there was no way Quan Hyuk Su wouldn't know about that. Furthermore, if this was chess, this bastard would at least be a rook or a knight. He would be a very useful piece for Ju Hian. So hurry up and accept my offer. I'll give you information about the future. You don't want it. Quan Hyuk Su started to frown. Like hell I don't want it. Chairman Quan had been able to know so much about the artifact of avarice from that artifact Yang Chen had brought. But Chairman Quan still failed to excavate that tomb. He wouldn't have made such stupid mistakes if he had that information. If I was the one who got that information. He believed he was better suited for such information than Chairman Quan. But his so-called Hyung Nim was trying to monopolize that information for himself. It took everything Quan Hyuk Su had to shake his head. No. I accepted him as my Hyung Nim, I can't betray him first. This was when Ju Hian stabbed the final dagger. Your daughter she seems very close to Chairman Quan. What? Even if he cheated to move his Achilles' heel, do you really think he would have been able to move it to a random person? Quan Hyuk Su's pupils started to shake wildly. W, wait. Jaha interjected at that moment. I saw them. 
I saw Chairman Kwan and Kwan Sae Yun coming out of a motel together. Kwan Hyuk Su's expression was quite the spectacle. He was not the only one who was shocked. Julian gasped as well. Hey! How can you say such a disgusting thing? Ju Hian smirked without caring about Julian's reaction. I'm sure your daughter didn't approach him because she lacked money maybe Chairman Kwan seduced her with an artifact or something. Siole interjected as well. There are plenty of stories about Chairman Kwan's mistresses. Do you think there would be so many rumors if it wasn't true? This trio sounded as if they had been working together to do things like this for a very long time. Julian was getting angry thinking that such a story would never work since this was not some soap opera, but it worked quite well. Kwan Hyuk Su's face crumbled. My Sae Yun, my Sae Yun and Hyung Nim. Kwan Hyuk Su's eyes filled with murderous intent. He then instantly grabbed the artifact Ju Hian was holding out for him. It had happened in an instant. The raven's tears crumbled as it activated. He had taken the information he should have taken to Chairman Kwan for himself. The copy of the raven's tears S grade has activated. Small amounts of memories are starting to flow into the target's mind. Ju Hian started to smile. However, it was at that moment. Retrieve the Chairman Nim's body. Enemies barged into the hotel. This was TKBM and Pandora's rescue team sent to recover Chairman Kwan's body. Where the hell is the Chairman Nim's body? They pointed their guns at Ju Hian and the others. These were extremely strong weapons that were guaranteed to hit currently in the shape of guns. Fire. The bullets shot out toward Ju Hian's group. But at that moment crunch. The guns in their hands all broke. There was a single slash through all of them and they fell to the ground in pieces. These extremely strong weapons broke so easily, as if they were made of plastic. Kwan Hyuk Su was the one who broke their weapons. I will fuck you up if you touch these bastards. See, Chairman Nim. They all gasped at Kwan Hyuk Su's actions. What is going on, sir? This rescue team consisted of Kwan Hyuk Su's subordinates as well as Chairman Kwan's subordinates. How could they not be shocked and their superior swung his sword at them? Kwan Hyuk Su smiled brightly as he responded. It's fine, let's just go home. Excuse me. But Chairman Kwan Tae Jun's body is still. Ah, it's fine. CO Ju Hian's group was not here when we arrived. The rescue team started to get rowdy. CO Ju Hian's group is right there sir. No, we didn't see anything. Do you understand? The chuckling Kwan Hyuk Su then stopped smiling. Take care of them if you understand. There were screams coming from multiple directions. Kwan Hyuk Su's subordinates in the rescue team started to kill the others in the team. Pyuk. Pyuk. You, Ug. The ones to die were all Chairman Kwan's subordinates. The rescue team that came to kill Ju Hian's team and retrieve Chairman Kwan's body were all massacred. The dying rescue team leader glared at Kwan Hyuk Su. Why? Kwan Hyuk Su had a shameless smile on his face as he looked at Ju Hian. Use this on Hyung Nim's body. The item he threw was a teleportation artifact. After being there once, I can tell you that the underworld is dangerous because there is a way out. You should just send it into outer space if you want to send it off. The rescue team leader almost fainted. He finally realized what Kwan Hyuk Su was thinking. Fuck, he betrayed us. He needed to get this information to Chairman Kwan. I need to hurry up and inform the Chairman Nim. However Pyuk. A pillar shot up from the ground and pierced through his body. There was a twisted smile on Kwan Hyuk Su's face. At that moment Chairman Nim. We heard that Chairman Kwan Hyuk Su's rescue team has returned. Oh, really? They're back. Chairman Kwan's face lit up. Did they bring my body back? Yun Shi Wu's face looked weird as he listened to the phone. Ah, uh, but they didn't bring your body, Chairman Nim, and apparently there were almost no survivors. What? He shouted, as if telling Yun Shi Wu to hand the phone over to him. He was able to chat with Kwan Hyuk Su thanks to his subordinates helping him. He shouted as soon as he got on the phone. What the hell happened? Where is my body? 
Ah, uh, Hyung Nim, I'm really sorry. What? What the hell happened with even you over there? Where is my body? No, you see apparently he sent your body to outer space. What can I do about that? Ha <laughs> ha. Even I can't go to space to get it. I hope you understand. Chairman Kwan started to grind his teeth. Outer space my ass. You better not have any weird intentions. The Achilles is heel. Egu, Hyung Nim. I don't care about something like that at all. Do you really not trust your Dongsing at all? You know how much I care about you, Hyung Nim. I wouldn't get upset over something so trivial. Well, don't worry. I'll do what I can to make sure you don't die, Hyung Nim. Kwon Hyuk Su smirked as soon as he hung up the phone. You motherfucking old bastard. Actually, Kwon Hyuk Su originally had no plans to do something like this. However, there was a critical memory that helped make his decision. It was an assassination attempt. How dare you use my daughter? Kwon Hyuk Su's daughter really was Chairman Kwon's mistress. Chairman Kwon had seduced her to use her to steal Kwon Hyuk Su's artifacts. But still, how dare he touch my precious daughter? He couldn't help but feel betrayed. Kwon Hyuk Su was one of the four emperors in the past. He had handed that position over to Chairman Kwon without asking for anything back due to their sibling relationship. It'd be one thing if he had betrayed Chairman Kwon, but the current Chairman Kwon was wary of him despite his undying loyalty. Chairman Kwon was even trying to monopolize information about the future right now, thinking that Kwon Hyuk Su might try to rise to the monarch among monarchs position. Chairman Kwon was the first to betray him in Kwon Hyuk Su's mind. How could he not be angry? I am the supreme leader of TKBM starting today. He had told Ju Hian not to kill Chairman Kwon just yet. It'd be bad if he dies right now. We need to fix his will first. Ah, should I put Ju Hian's name in there since things ended up like this? He made a call while looking as if he was amused. Down at the LA International Airport Ju Hian's team still looked baffled as they got on a plane for New York. What the hell just happened? Wasn't it obvious? It was the birth of a traitor. Julian and Ilya both looked shocked. But the reason they were shocked was different. That person really betrayed Chairman Kwan. Did he really believe that story about his daughter being a mistress? Ju Hian started to laugh out loud. He expected Kwan Hyuk Su to act like this. The Kwan Hyuk Su that Ju Hian knew would be extremely angry about such loyalty stomping acts. Kwan Hyuk Su cared more about loyalty than Chairman Kwan did. Well, it seemed beneficial since Kwan Hyuk Su only got good memories, but ding. Ju Hian. Be my number one disciple. Be my number one disciple. Be my number one disciple. I'll even share TKBM's rights of succession to you if you become my number one disciple. Be my disciple. TSK, it looks like he remembered some useless things too. Ju Hian blocked the number and got on the plane. Now that we got Achilles' armor, send everything to the engineering team. Tell them to use that to make some defensive outfits. Jaha gasped after hearing that. Looks like I have more things to tell the fan club. They'll probably go crazy saying that they will be in charge of making the designs. Ju Hian got a text at that moment. Captain Nim, I figured out the thing you wanted to know. It was Dan. Chapter, 313. My goodness. Ju Hian Nim got Achilles' armor. The princesses were extremely happy to hear the news from Jaha. They had been sad for a while because they had been receiving less and less updates about Ju Hian lately. They started to discuss this issue with each other. Why do you think our scribe Nim is not sending us much updates lately? Who knows when Jaha became the scribe but anyway, the princesses all sighed. Isn't it probably because of Pandora? Ah, that's probably true. They said that anybody associated with Ju Hian Nim would be treated as accomplices. The princesses became angry. They attacked Ju Hian Nim with such fake news. Isn't it Pandora that is suspicious? Pandora claimed to protect the citizens but they were always useless during important moments. It was as if they were giving people up as human sacrifices on purpose. Tomb appearance at the center of the city, 170 killed. 
100 killed. Pandora's lack of action kills another 280. Why did Pandora's observation system fail at that exact moment? The interesting thing was that even in the same situation, regular people were dying while people who were helpful to Pandora were all surviving. There is too much circumstantial evidence to call them coincidences. Something smelled very fishy. It made total sense considering the fact that a damn artifact was in Pandora's leadership, but most people didn't know about that. Anyway, all I'm saying is that we should search Pandora from top to bottom if they want to take Juhi and Nim away. Juhian is probably getting in their way of doing something. That was obvious. Juhian was using his company to allow civilians to get artifacts pretty easily. Why? Juhian loathed the monopolizers for monopolizing artifacts and information in the past and didn't want that to happen again. His actions prevented such monopolies and a lot of people liked his company for it. Of course, there were many who hated it as well. Pandora hates Juhian Nim's company. Pandora and the monarchs close to them all hate him. But still, how dare they say that Juhian's goal is to kill people with the artifact of disaster and that he is a cannibal. Juhian Nim would never do that. That's right. He'd spend his time turning artifacts into slaves instead. This compliment. Or this. Was the truth. Anyway, did you all see it? Our scribe Nim sent us a photo. Oh. Princess Nim, you saw it too. They were all screeching with joy while looking at the photo Jeha sent. Jeha had sent a photo of Juhian's sweatsuit. It was that slacker sweatsuit that they had sent him. They didn't know how Jeha got him to wear it, but Juhian was wearing the sweatsuit and sitting on the couch in the photo. Jeha must have added some fan service as he was wearing glasses as well. It caused an explosive reaction. Juhian Nim with glasses. He looks super smart. Look at how his legs are crossed. They're so long. So, so, long. Look at his concerned gaze. I wonder if he's worried about something. He probably wasn't concerned about anything. I have to take a dump. That was more likely to be his thought. There were other photos as well. It's Juhi and Nim wearing a swimsuit. The sunglasses suit him so well. He's so cute scratching his stomach. The swimsuit looks so old-fashioned but he looks so cute. Of course, these so-called photos of Juhian were Jeha's selfies. In fact, Jeha's face took up 90% of the photos with Juhian just in the background. But they didn't seem to see him at all. They could only see Juhian who was the size of a booger underneath Jeha's arm. They were also looking at the bikini-clad female team members next to Juhian. I'm so envious of the ladies next to him. I want to be on his- They recently seem to have had a big fight with Pandora as well. Plus, the so-called crimes against Juhian's group were quite vague. If they should be arrested for the reasons Pandora gave, all artifact users in the world, including Pandora members, should be arrested as well. What the hell kind of crimes are grade 8 syndrome and possessed by ghosts anyway? Why would the US abide by such stupidity? They got in a car and made a call. However the person you are trying to reach is currently unavailable Irene really is not picking up. George said he doesn't know where Irene went. Really? Yes sir. She apparently ran off telling them not to look for her. The others frowned after hearing Jeha's comments. That was to be expected. You said you think she got her past memories as the monarch of destitution back. Well, some of it since it was a copy she used. Julian turned serious. The copy was a S-grade artifact. It was not as effective as the SS-grade artifact they used, but she still had memories of her past life. You said that Irene talked about the monopolizers getting us killed. They needed to hear in detail but it seemed quite obvious. Why would Irene be avoiding them? The other monopolizers were involved in their deaths. The monarch of destitution was one of those monopolizers. The team members' gazes all turned sharp. They all knew what that meant. Then that means Irene was part of the group that killed us. That's why she hasn't tried to contact us ever since she got her memories back. Now that she got her memories back, she might be plotting something as well. She was a monopolizer after all. 
they all turned toward Juhian after hearing Ilya's comment. Ilya was saying that Irene could be their enemy now but Juhian seemed to be having different thoughts. Like hell she'll be our enemy. Click. See, Captain Nim. Juhian opened the car door and suddenly disappeared. The rest of the team was shocked after seeing Juhian disappear into the crowd. Captain Nim. Juhian walked without any hesitation. He called someone as he walked. He was calling Irene. H, hello. Mr. Juhian. Oh, at least you pick up my call. Excuse me. Ah, uh, no, it wasn't that I was trying to ignore Mr. J has call, I just. Where are you right now? Irene shouted in shock. I, I'm sorry. I don't deserve to see your face right now. But I will still continue to help you, so, Mr. Juhian what is she saying? Juhian smiled and continued walking. Irene, who was on the phone, didn't know what to do. She had been debating whether to pick up Jeha's call before it ended. That was why she picked up Juhian's call right away, but she didn't have the courage to see him. That was why she warily said the following. Um, Mr. Juhian. Even if you cast me aside, the Holtons will continue to support you so from here on. And that's why you hid here of all places. Kaya. Irene suddenly screamed in the middle of the crowd. The people around them all looked toward Irene with shock. But Irene, who was more shocked than anybody else, looked behind her with her eyes open as wide as rabbit eyes. Juhian was smiling with his phone in his hand right behind her. The place she had run away to was a cafe right outside her house. Are you really okay never seeing me again? M, Mr. Juhian. Well, if that's what you really want. Irene looked ready to cry as she urgently grabbed the edge of Juhian's shirt. Juhian smiled. Irene then screamed. Kaya. M, Mr. Juhian. Everybody in the cafe dropped their jaws in shock. A little later what the hell are the two of them doing in there? Ah. See Ole. Calm down, calm down. Juhian had abducted Irene from the cafe and taken her into this room. The two of them had not come out for a whole hour. This was similar to what happened with Chloe last time. But at least it was Chloe last time, this time, it was Irene of all people. The hotel room was turning into a cemetery right now. It was like this with C.O.L.A. just shaking in anger. Egu, should I just drag all of these bastards to the afterlife? I was wronged. Wronged. Go with me. Go with me. Jeha screamed while looking at the grim reapers and ghosts slowly appearing in the room. Jeha quickly started to grab some garlic and make some talismans and crosses. This whole area might be full of ghosts in a few minutes. I, I can't even joke about hearing moans in there this time. Siole glared at him with fire burning in her eyes. Click. Juhian walked out of the room at that moment. What about Irene? Irene seemed to have fallen asleep while crying. Jeha tried to peek inside but Juhian beat him up. As for Siole, she was sulking in the corner sniffling as if she had never been angry in the first place. Julian ignored all this and got right to the point. Did you hear about how we died? Juhian smiled as if it was as he had expected. Well, he did hear an extremely unexpected but entertaining story as well. He had a decent idea about why Pandora and the Monopolizers saw him as such a thorn in their eyes. D. Did Irene really kill us too? To tell you the ending first, Irene did not. And. Juhian peeked at the others before shaking his head. I'll let you know after we excavate the last of the seven great tombs. Juhian looked at the message he got from Dan earlier. Captain Nim, I figured out the thing you wanted to know. Dan had gone to TKBM to get Chairman Kwan's head. What Dan had learned was how to activate the seals of heaven that Juhian was trying to learn from Chairman Kwan. Juhian smiled and took out the seals of heaven to activate it. You have satisfied the requirement. You are able to use its full powers. You received the buff of being a person close to the majesty. Your abilities are increasing. You are able to use the sword, the bell, and the mirror. You are able to locate the Majesty's treasure. Alright, we're ready for the seven great tombs now. 
Ciolas's eyes flashed. Something that made Juhian anxious happened the next day. Chapter, 314 You're sure that Irene wasn't involved? Julian needed one more confirmation. He was very thorough and tended to be the one to always recheck the things Juhian might miss. It might be because he was the vice-captain. Juhian nodded his head at Julian's question. Yes. There were some bastards that really pushed the plan forward. Juhian showed him his phone. And this is the list of those people. Julian was shocked after seeing the list. An unexpected person was on the list as well. Why would this person want to kill us? Isn't it entertaining? But this is the important part over here. Regarding the Pandora system artifact results of activation analysis, it is a detection type artifact and is suspected of being the Majesty's treasure. This is only a very small portion so it cannot use a lot of its powers but it is able to search for other artifacts. Regarding the Majesty's treasure there seems to be multiple treasures based on types. By joy anyway, I'm intrigued by this Majesty thing. Majesty? Does it mean the king of the artifacts? Yeah, it's probably talking about the monarch, most people wouldn't take it even if it was offered for free. And that? Apparently most young people don't use this brand at all. Really? I guess this place is useless then. Juhian laughed and walked out of the store. The employees who had tried to sell off these terrible goods now looked as if they had seen some ghosts. Juhian was extremely happy that Julian was so useful. Great, Kong Ming, let's go there next. Julian was in pain. He didn't get his artifact for it to be used like this. Later in the day, Julian put his hand against his forehead as if he was tired. He was currently heading back with Jeha and Juhian. They were headed to Jeha's workroom. It was time for a team meeting. And it was fine that they were going to Jeha's workroom instead of the hotel, but good. Hey Kong Ming. Should we go shopping for cars next time? Ju Hien seemed so satisfied with his shopping today that he was already thinking about taking Julian with him again. Julian grabbed the back of his neck and shouted. Even if we go shopping, not for cars. You can't buy cars. What? Why? Why else? You'll turn a new car into scraps in a week. Who do you think needs to get it fixed after you do that? Ju Hien was actually a great driver but his cars always ended up destroyed. Just buy a toy car if you want a car. Or maybe buy a racing game. This bastard. Or maybe buy a damn artifact car. Hmm, I don't like any of the artifact cars. That was to be expected. Artifacts were being used to develop home appliances, clothes, and all sorts of industrial products. There were artifact cars, but they're all just C-grade artifacts. They were cars with artifacts to prevent scratches, but actual artifacts only had old trains used to transport nameless soldiers, or horses. Ah. It'd be great if the red hair artifact came out. Jeha sneered at him. Do you think something that precious would come out? Anyway, be careful today. Today was Christmas Eve. Juhian had to go out to see someone. Think about who you are seeing today. You might end up dying. Anyway, keep it a secret from Ciole and Irene and. Okay, I got I. But the moment they walked in through the door to the workroom ah. They couldn't help but gasp. It was to be expected. Captain Nim, you had an appointment today. Oops. Ciole and the rope were squatting just inside the door sulking. Nero was with them as well. It was surprisingly raining around her. How is it raining indoors? What kind of artifacts risk is that? All of the lights were off that they thought she was a ghost. Uh guys? Captain Nim. You have an appointment today. Ju Hien looked away and the sulking CLA and the rope sniffled. Captain Nim. You always spent Christmas with me. You always spent it together with me. Together with me. Ju Hien had never spent Christmas together with the rope but anyway why do you look like lost puppies? And what the fuck are you doing over there Nero? This is a betrayal against this emperor. Ju Hien blasted Nero away. It was at that moment. Are you really going on a date today? 
well, she was used to Juhian being with other women. Why? The Captain Nim don't see team members as women. That was right. Juhian was the type to say something shitty like how they can't have inter-team relationships. His reasoning made sense. It'll distract you. People would become distracted in tombs where they needed to focus for their survival and to clear the tombs. He even said something about focusing on the wrong thing i.e. each other instead of the tomb. Ciole agreed with him as well. The first people to die inside tombs were always one half of a couple. Artifacts were extremely wicked bastards after all. Juhian also had a need to keep things fair for all of the team members. Ciole bit down on her lower lip. Captain Nim, I know that you don't see me as a woman. I know that. But. The sniffling Siole approached Juhian. Even still, not Chen Kai Yuan. You know what kind of woman she is. That's right. Not her. Not her. Juhian slowly looked away. Well, he didn't like that woman either but he had no choice. Siole is no joke. Juhian really didn't treat the members of his team as women. But there had been a time when he had treated Siole as a woman. He knew that Siole liked him and when Juhian had that incident with TKBM that incident was when Chairman Quan killed off employees on other teams who listened to Juhian. Juhian had gone against Chairman Quan's orders to rebel against what had happened. An angry Chairman Quan had ordered Juhian to be fired. The entire tomb raiding team had been disbanded for a bit. Siole had seduced Juhian at that point. To be more specific, it was because she saw that Juhian had lost all desires at doing anything because he was full of doubt about everything. You're not going to work with artifacts anymore. I'm not. Then sleep with me. We're not teammates anymore if you're not going to work with artifacts. It was a sort of gamble. She was hoping that Juhian would come back to work with artifacts. She just wanted him to say that he didn't see team members as women. Of course, there was a part of her that wanted to be in his arms at least once as well. How many men would be able to reject a woman who was practically begging him to sleep with her? Sadly that relationship ended as if it had never happened once the tomb raiding team was unexpectedly restored five months later. TSK, he's so old-fashioned about such weird things. Siole had grumbled but continued to be on Juhian's team because that was one of the things she liked about Juhian. It was more important for her to protect Juhian than to have him see her as a woman. However. Not today. Juhian hesitated as Siole jumped up. He felt as if he was looking at the same desperate gaze she had when the tomb raiding team had been disbanded. Jeha and Julian slowly turned around and walked out the door. They knew that getting involved in this would only lead to headaches. Gee, good luck. Unfortunately, they could not stay out of it for too long. It was now two hours later and Julian was tapping his foot nervously. What the hell? Look at the time. Why is he still here? Julian, who had left for a bit, was shocked. He was getting anxious after sensing Juhian's aura inside the building. It's already 6 p.m. Wasn't he supposed to meet Jin Kai Yuan earlier? Ah, uh, yeah. Ilya, who Julian happened to run into outside, was thinking it was odd as well. But Ilya soon snickered. Well, it's Christmas Eve. Who knows what could have happened between a man and a woman? Hoo hoo hoo. No he might be having a meeting regarding his appointment with Jin Kai Yuan. It really is too dangerous for him to go meet with the supreme leader alone. Julian wanted to stop Juhian from going if he could do so. But they had no idea when they might be able to see Jin Kai Yuan again if he didn't go today. She was quite the capricious woman. Ilya clicked his tongue at Julian and pointed at the door. Then let's go inside. W, what? Is it okay to go in? What's wrong? I thought you said they're probably having a meeting. You, ah. Uh. As they pushed the door open they were shocked at what they saw inside. Captain. Co Juhian. Co Lei and the rope were not in the room. All they saw inside was Juhian who was deep in sleep and an artifact that was rolling around the floor. Sleeping beauty spinning needle A grade, treasure grade, consumable artifact they couldn't help but gasp. 
What the hell did Siole do? Did she go to meet Jim Kai Yuan? Current time, December 24, 7 p.m. Jin Kai Yuan looked anxious while waiting outside the station. She was usually confident and proud but she seemed oddly anxious today. It was because she didn't think that she would really get to go on a date with Ju Hian. And most importantly I need to ask him about that memory as well. Jin Kai Yuan recalled the memory of her death. That was why she was still waiting even though Ju Hian was already one hour late. Of course, the Supreme Leader Artifact was already releasing its chaotic aura. It was planning on killing Ju Hian on this date. It was at that moment. Ah. Sorry, did you wait long? Zhen Kai Yuan smiled after hearing the familiar voice and quickly turned her head. Seo Ju Hian. But Ju Hian was sweating bullets. Fuck, I'm dead if she finds out. It was because this Ju Hian was Jaiha who was disguised as him. Chapter, 315 Jaiha's heart was beating wildly as he looked at Jin Kai Yuan. I won't get caught, right? I probably won't get caught. I never expected that I would ever have to disguise myself as the Captain Nim. Actually, there were some positives in disguising himself as Ju Hian. Look at all these firsts that he experienced. He now knew what it felt like to hit your head against the ceiling. He now knew what it felt like to feel cramped in the back seat because of really long legs. He now knew what it feels like to stand above other people. It's different from wearing padding under my feet to feel taller. Damn it. Jaiha was excited about the things he didn't usually get to experience. But the thing he liked the most was oh my. It was the fact that every single woman seemed to be looking at him. Even the sexy minims were looking at him. Well, they weren't looking at him. But anyway, women were looking at him and liked what they saw. This was what it felt like to have women turn toward you wherever he went. He even had a woman come up and ask him for his number. Wow, I even experienced the street side casting. It wasn't him they wanted to cast but whatever, he still got to experience it. That was the important thing he got to experience it. It was especially useful when he used his haggling skill. The success rate of his scamming went up significantly as well. I should use the Captain Nim's face more often. He would probably die if Ju Hian ever found out, but whatever. He was enjoying this new world experience as Ju Hian, but D, did you wait long? Why did the end of this new world have to be Jin Kai Yuan? Jaiha really wanted to die. However, there was nothing he could do about it. Damn bitch N, no. This is all for the Captain Nim. How did it end up like this? Actually, Jaiha had witnessed Siolea's crime. When he went out and returned. Hey. W, what the hell did you do? Why is the Captain M unconscious? Sure. Jaiha was flustered. Why did she have to use the Sleeping Beauty artifact of all things what the hell? Why is he not getting up? Didn't this guy have monster-like tolerance that made him immune to even divine grade artifacts? Sure. Ju Hian's basic tolerance would make A grade artifacts and below not work very well, but he was deep asleep right now. This son of a bitch just doesn't want to wake up, huh? Ju Hian was usually lacking sleep because of artifact risks. Jaiha gave up on waking Ju Hian up and shook his head. Egu, I guess we have no choice. I will call Jin Kai Yuan and cancel. But at that moment, hold on. Seo Lei, who had put Ju Hian to sleep, grabbed Jaiha with a desperate look on her face. She was originally planning on putting Ju Hian to sleep and going to meet that woman, but Jaiha had shown up. Hey Jaiha. No. Jaiha. I won't do it. I didn't say that I would make you do it. What do you take me for? What was going on? Zhen Kai Yuan had the fossilized artifact of gluttony with her. She would bring it to the date because Ju Hian already mentioned it to her. Zhen Kai Yuan seemed amused enough that she happily agreed to it as well. Well, she agreed to show it to him but she would never give it to him. Today is the only chance. They needed that item to open the last of the seven great tombs. I'm not trying to make you do anything. Please don't wake the Captain Im up and don't inform the others. Can I at least ask you to do that? Siolei didn't want to send Ju Hian into a death trap. 
Jun Kai Yuan committed suicide in front of the Captain Nim. She knew how strong Ju Hian's mental fortitude was but things like that could shake his dominance. She also had no idea what kind of psychotic things that that woman might do. Furthermore, how could she send Ju Hian into danger knowing that the Supreme Leader Artifact was aiming for his life? She would sacrifice herself instead. Seo Lei was desperate but Jae Ha sneered at her. You just didn't want to see the Captain Nim going on a date with Jun Kai Yuan Ug. Jae Ha clutched his stomach and continued to speak. Fine. So you just need me to pretend to be the Captain Nim and swipe that fossil artifact? What? No, you don't need to do that. Whatever, how can I send you alone? Plus, when else would I get to transform into the Captain Nim if it isn't for something like this? Jaeha. He was scared because of who she was, but Chen Kai Yuan would not notice if he pretended to look at it and made a copy of it in the process. Then we should be able to go inside the tomb of gluttony without any hindrances. Yu Jaeha soon asked a question. But was there a need to use an artifact to put the Captain Nim to sleep? Seo Lei seemed to be in a lot of mental pain. No, I wasn't planning on using artifacts either. She was planning on tiring Ju Hian out and then putting him to bed, but M, um, the Captain Nim wouldn't get tired. That bomb of a comment made Jaeha cough. Cough, cough. What the hell were the two of you? Who knew what was on Jaeha's mind but he sent a respectful gaze toward Ju Hian. Anyway, that was how Jaeha ended up being involved with Colas plan. This plan was good, especially thinking about the aftermath. That guy might accept marrying into the Chinese government if she offered him two zero zero divine grade artifacts. The tomb raiding team had zero trust in their captain. Plus, it didn't seem that bad now. Zhen Kai Yuan is actually pretty when she dresses up like this. His eyes were enjoying a feast. His jaw dropped after seeing her in this date outfit compared to her usual career woman style. She looked like a beautiful young lady and not the usual scary Chinese supreme leader. Anyway, let's pretend to be the Captain Nim to the best of my abilities and steal the fossil artifact. He just needed to switch it with a fake. S, should we go watch a movie? How about that one? However are you really Seo Juhian? Zhen Kai Yuan's eyes furrowed with disbelief. She looks like she believes him, right? Yes, I'm sure of it. Julian was searching the back seat with Ciole right now. Julian had come to look for Jaeha and Ciole after realizing their crime. He met up with Ciole, heard the situation decided to help out for now. That damn captain is showing no signs of waking up anyway. They were in the theater right now. The plan was to use the darkness in the theater to make a copy of the fossil artifact. Well, it was great that they picked a movie that Jin Kai Yuan would like, but Kia, so scary. Zhen Kai Yuan was watching the movie while tightly grabbing onto Ju Hian's arm. That was right. The ridiculous Zhen Kai Yuan had chosen a horror film to watch with Ju Hian. What other reason would a woman have for choosing a horror movie on a date? I'm going to kill that woman. Seo Lei was grinding her teeth at her obvious scheme. There might have been a murder today if the real Ju Hian was there right now. But actually, the horror film wasn't a bad choice. Zhen Kai Yuan possessed the spider artifact that cruelly feasted on humans. It was great that she was enjoying this horror thriller film, but damn it. Why did it have to be a horror film? Jaeha was dying. Jaeha was actually a scaredy cat who hated horror movies. I'm screwed. The Captain Nim would watch a movie like this while scratching his stomach, but. WHYY. The scared Jaeha subconsciously tightened his grip on Jin Kai Yuan's arm. Jin Kai Yuan smiled in response. I guess he's surprisingly easily scared. But the people looking at them were about to have heart attacks. Why? You, um, isn't that dangerous? Jaeha's disguise was affected by its master's mental state. He was barely maintaining Ju Hian's appearance, but it almost reverted back every time he got scared. Julian became anxious. We need to go bring Ju Hian. On the other hand, Seo Lei was foaming at the mouth. T, that bitch is rubbing her face on the Captain Nim. Her fucking face. Wait, Seo Lei. Calm down. That's not Ju Hian. 
as Julian was trying to calm C.O.A. down the two were shocked. His disguise that was barely being maintained had completely disappeared. They gasped. Wait, Jeha. The disguise is gone, it's gone. He might have fainted. Jeha. The movie is about to end. Copy. Make the copy. It was at that moment. Hmm. Zhen Kai Yuan seemed to realize something was wrong. The arm felt different from Ju Hian's arm she felt before. And then Ji Ha. The lights came on in the theater at that moment. The movie was over. The lights were on. Everybody else was rushing out of the theater saying they were scared, but someone was not. Zhen Kai Yuan was frozen stiff. She couldn't be blamed for it because next to her was Jai Ha who was unconscious. What the hell is going on? Jai Ha, who finally seemed to have realized that the movie was over, woke up. Damn it, it's over. Ha. Huh. Jai Ha felt Shin Kai Yuan's gaze and looked down at his body. Shit. Jai Ha realized that the disguise was gone and screamed internally. Fuck. The disguise is gone. His face turned pale. W, wait, you see, this. Why are you here? E, excuse me. I'm asking why you are here and not Seo Juhian. Damn it. I'm dead. W, wait, that ah. At that moment boom. The theater shook vigorously. Ah. It's an earthquake, an earthquake. The people moving out gasped and started to run. A chaotic aura started to swirl inside the theater. You dare to trick me? The look on Zhen Kai Yuan's face did not seem human. That was probably to be expected. An anxious Julian and Seo Lei rushed toward Jai Ha. They thought that Zhen Kai Yuan might really kill him. Zhen Kai Yuan's eyes were full of murderous intent. She was probably even angrier at the fact that it was Jai Ha. This wasn't the first time she was scammed by Jai Ha after all. Furthermore, she had been so affectionate and snuggled up with someone who wasn't Ju Hian. This is extremely embarrassing. She called forth her spider artifact. Where is the real CEO Ju Hian? W, wait, that. At that moment where else? I'm right here. They all gasped after hearing that familiar voice. The voice had come from the farthest seat in the back. Whether it was to see all of the ending credits or maybe he had just fallen asleep, but there was one person who was still here even though everybody else ran out after Zhen Kai Yuan's attack. See, Captain N. The real Ju Hian was back there. Captain Nim, how? They had not noticed at all because of the cap he was wearing. Ju Hian didn't care as he sat there satisfied with his legs crossed. He was in awe of what his team members had done for him. He looked at Zhen Kai Yuan and smiled brightly. The date is now over. I kept my promise. Maybe this was what he had been aiming for. Chapter 316 The team members couldn't help but drop their jaws in shock. This really was unbelievable. Why is the Captain Nim here? They were sure that Zhu Hian had been asleep because of the artifact. They confirmed that he was deep asleep. So how? That artifact shouldn't have been easy to awaken from without meeting the conditions. It was an artifact that was said to put even the worst insomniacs to sleep peacefully. Of course, she said it for 100 hours and not 100 years. Just like how Sleeping Beauty didn't age for 100 years while she was asleep, this artifact keeps the person exactly as they were for 100 hours. But in the process, it would remove any toxic things in their blood, clear their skin, and help the user recover. Anyway, the sleeping Ju Hian was here somehow. Then there was only one explanation. Were you only pretending to be asleep? Julian shouted as if he had expected that. Of course. There's no way a monster like you would fall victim to an artifact. Well, I slept well thanks to it. Slept well my ass. Ju Hian smiled. Actually, he had no intentions of doing this. Even if it was a bit, air, significantly dangerous, he was planning on meeting Zhen Kai Yuan. He needed to gather all seven great artifacts to open the crow's tomb. In addition, there were many bastards who would have major headaches if he looted the impregnable great prison. 
I need to see their asses on fire with my own eyes. Not surprisingly, the biggest reason was that he was extremely greedy for those artifacts in the great prison. He had planned on meeting with Zhen Kai Yuan to get the key to that prison when C, Captain Nim, I'm really sorry. C. Ole had held on to him and apologized, but I'm not asleep, you little punk. That artifact was actually one that did not work very well on men. You'll need a SS grade artifact at minimum if you want to put me to sleep. Nonetheless, he pretended to be asleep on purpose. He struggled in a different way since the rope kissed him quite a few times because it thought he was sleeping, but he continued to pretend. He was curious to know what COA was planning to do after working so hard to put him to sleep. But what? Then I just need to transform into the Captain Nim and steal that artifact. Oh my, what a great surprise. Ju Hien was snickering while pretending to be asleep. The date was his issue but how could he reject such helpful and considerate subordinates? Only a terrible boss would reject such care from his subordinates. Yes, yes indeed. A boss pretending to be asleep was probably an even worse boss, but anyway he had kept his promise. In addition, he was able to realize a couple things while tailing Jin Kai Yuan. For example, he learned some things about Jin Kai Yuan's artifact. He also learned about those bastards tailing them from outside the theater. I even found the bastards I wasn't so sure about. And then take care of all of them. Ju Hien's eyes flashed and Anubis, the god of death, who had been hiding in the shadows flashed his eyes as well. Pull out their hearts. It was spoken in ancient Egyptian. Get rid of their hearts so that they can't even be weighed. They heard some screams from around the theater. Ah! Anubis's mummy soldiers had popped out of multiple people's shadows. Ah! Each mummy had the head of a jackal and a human body. These mummy soldiers instantly took out curved swords and stabbed their enemy's heart. Puk! People all around the theater started to fall down. There were at least seven of them. They surprisingly all had weapons. They were all killers observing Ju Hien and waiting for a chance to kill him. The Egyptians believed that a person needed their heart to go into the afterlife. Taking away someone's heart was giving them the worst punishment ever. I got rid of everybody who was tailing me now. He had not been sure because these ones had been cleverly hiding among the regular civilians. Ju Hien finally took off the cap that was covering his face. His handsome face appeared and Ju Hien smiled at Chen Kai Yuan. Anyway, I did as promised. The team members laughed in disbelief. As for Zhen Kai Yuan she was enraged. You did as promised. What the fuck are you talking about when I went on a date with someone else? I never said I would actually be with you the whole time. Zhen Kai Yuan seemed shocked. But Ju Hien completely feigned ignorance. It wasn't his original plan, but the plan ended up changing. I was still in the same theater with you. We were in the same room so we were on a date together. Zhen Kai Yuan's eyes flashed. What kind of bullshit is that? If not, then. Ju Hien got up and walked over to Zhen Kai Yuan. I don't mind if we start our date now. Zhen Kai Yuan's face lit up. Siole gasped. However no. I don't need a date. Zhen Kai Yuan gave an unexpected response. Everybody else was shocked. Didn't her face just light up when he said they could start their date? Julian turned serious. I guess her pride really was hurt. She went on a date with Jeha after all. Jeha felt so, so wronged. What's wrong with me? Why are you talking so much crap about me? I'm actually quite popular if I go elsewhere. Ju Hien looked at Chen Kai Yuan suspiciously as well. I don't need to go on a date with you. That's right. Zhen Kai Yuan's eyes flashed and she walked right up to Ju Hien. Let's do something even better. The ground underneath Ju Hien's team members suddenly disappeared. They all fell in. This was the power of an artifact. That wasn't all. A confined area is being created. Zhen Kai Yuan started creating a space so that Ju Hien could not escape. Aren't dates supposed to end like this? An angry Zhen Kai Yuan was scowling as she grabbed Ju Hien's face. Yes, I should have done this from the beginning. This date she was doing things that weren't like her. 
she just needed to eat Juhian with the artifact of predation to make Juhian's artifact and Juhian hers. Co Juhian, you are my enemy. The male team members at the bottom of the pit turned pale. Even if she didn't get to go on a date with him. Ah, whatever. He brought it upon himself. What do you mean, he brought it upon himself? The Captain Nim will really get eaten at this rate. Siole quickly activated her heirloom and tried to fly up. Up on top, Ju Hien was frowning as Jin Kai Yuan's face came closer. Do you really have the artifact from the Great Tomb? Jin Kai Yuan felt upset at his cold tone. How could he say such things in this sexy situation? How do you never cha? Shut up. Ju Hien's eyes flashed. It looks like you have some memories of your past life. Hand that artifact over first if you want to be on good terms with me. Ju Hien glared at the spider that was giving off its chaotic aura above Jin Kai Yuan. The spider was thinking that this was the chance to eat Ju Hien. Eat him. Eat him. Its disgusting legs and teeth were ready to capture and chomp on Ju Hien and his artifacts. Ju Hien scoffed at it. Get rid of it. It's been annoying me since before. Zhen Kai Yuan hesitated before putting the spider away. It was almost done out of reflex. The spider seemed shocked. What are you doing? Zhen Kai Yuan seemed to be doing her best to suppress the spider. It was an act of betrayal for the spider. What the hell are you doing? The spider was baffled. On the other hand, Zhu Hian was smiling as if this was unexpected. He had just said that as an experiment. This works. She shouldn't be the type of woman who would listen to such things. But he was not planning on missing this opportunity. I don't want to be enemies with you either. He then reached out his hand. We were enemies in the past but things can change. His slightly gentler tone made Shin Kai Yuan's pupils start to shake. His tone was the same as the first time they had met. Damn it. It was obvious what Ju Hian wanted. He wanted to get into the last of the seven great tombs. He wanted the artifact of gluttony. Getting that would mean that Ju Hian got all seven artifacts from the great tombs. And those seven artifacts were the keys to open the great prison. Inside that tomb were the crow and many amazing artifacts such as the artifacts of the major gods. He can't loot the artifacts in there. There was an artifact that would make things difficult for her in there as well. There was also an artifact that could be a serious weakness for them. For China and the monopolizers for the supreme leader and Prometheus so she would have to be crazy to hand that key over. Ju Hian then said the following. Well, if you don't want to then, whatever. Ju Hian nonchalantly closed his hand and Zhen Kai Yuan urgently grabbed his arm. It was a subconscious action as well. Even she couldn't believe what she just did. The spider was grinding its teeth as it noticed her mind was a chaotic mess. Hurry up and kill him. Eat the crow. The frustrated spider was urging Jin Kai Yuan on. She gulped. She then looked toward Ju Hian. There is something I need to ask before that. Ju Hian frowned as if he was annoyed. But he decided that she wouldn't ask something that was difficult to answer. What is it? So he waited for her to ask. Zhen Kai Yuan's face lit up a bit. She had been wanting to ask Ju Hian about this from the moment she regained her memories of the past. She didn't care about anything else. There was just one thing. She had taken her own life in front of Ju Hian. She had her reasons to do so, but anyway were you sad at all when I died? Ju Hian thought he had heard an extremely unexpected question. His gaze showed how shocked he was. He soon sighed and turned around. I was wondering what you were going to ask. An anxious Jin Kai Yuan grabbed him tightly. I'll give you the last key if you answer that question. Don't you want the artifact from the last of the seven great tombs? She seemed quite desperate. As Ju Hian contemplated for a bit and was about to respond at that time. But at that moment what the hell are you doing? The spider couldn't hold back anymore and exploded. It was to be expected. It was annoying enough that she was ignoring its orders but what? She would hand him the artifact for such a stupid condition. This was clearly an act of betrayal. It wouldn't be weird for it to kill its contractor. 
The spider exploded as if it decided humans truly were worthless. Boom! A terrible tomb appearance is coming. The entire theater showed the precursors of a disaster-grade tomb appearance. Tomb glyphs appeared on the ceiling and walls and the shape of the building started to change. Rumble, rumble. The New York Times building turned into chaos. All of New York started to get swept up in the tomb appearance with Times Square at the center. People screamed and started to run out of Manhattan. The Broadway area with its bright signs and musical performances was instantly destroyed. Ciole, Jeha, and Julen, who had fallen into the pit, came up at that moment. Captain Nim. Captain, this? Julian was extremely shocked. This was not a regular tomb appearance phenomenon. This is the power of one of the seven great tombs. It was as he mentioned. Juhian looked around before starting to smile with amusement. He had been suspicious about it for a while but I guess the gluttony from the seven great tombs really is the supreme leader. Chapter, 317 Notice A strong tomb appearance phenomenon has appeared in Manhattan. Pandora believes it is the size of the seven great tombs the entire world was in chaos. This tomb appearance phenomenon had taken down New York's Broadway. The tomb spread from Manhattan to the rest of the East Coast. It was so strong that the aura was stretching past the East Coast to the West and South. It could even be felt across the Pacific Ocean in Asia. Holy shit, what is going on? There were fish out of season falling from the sky Kaya. The cows. The farm animals in pens were getting riled up, slamming their heads and ripping at each other. Even the farm-raised fish were eating each other. Actually, it was not an issue just for the animals. You son of a bitch, die. The United States which became the epicenter for this tomb was receiving reports of murders all around. Theaters, cafes, auction houses, churches, anywhere with a lot of people were starting to have issues. It was even worse because a lot of people were gathered together because it was Christmas Eve. But that was not the only problem. Stop, stoop. The people who went berserk were starting to bite other people as if they were zombies. Ah! Look at that person. A scene straight out of a zombie movie was taking place in Manhattan. The only difference would be that these zombies were extremely swift unlike most movie zombies. The zombies were going berserk. They would run, jump, and instantly be chomping away at the next person's neck and eating their flesh. Ah! Joy was shaking in fear as she watched what was going on. She came out to get Juhian a Christmas present but what the hell. People were pushing Joy as they ran away. Fuck, hurry up and evacuate to the shelter. Joy started running toward the shelter as well. There were many shelters around here that Juhian had created. But at that time I got her. It's this human. Someone yanked Joy's arm. It was an artifact that was possessing a person's body. I smell that dirty CO Juhian scent on you. However what the hell. This retard. Pow. The artifact was sent flying with a slap from Joy. You, ugh. Joy was extremely upset. Who did you just call dirty no, who the hell smells like my appa? I'm going to kill you. The artifact-possessed person who couldn't handle Joy's affinity started to whine as if he was apologizing. P, please forgive me, madam. I will never do it aga ha, ha. Please step on me emo. Kaya. Get the hell away. Joy stomped on the man holding her ankle. Someone gasped while watching what was going on. For some reason I feel like I wasn't needed here. Dan appeared while scratching his head. On his way to meet with Shin Kai Yuan Juhian had sent Dan to protect his most precious person just in case something happened. Ilya and Chloe were behind him as well. They must be here at Juhian's order as well. Joy urgently rushed over and grabbed Juhian's subordinates. What about Juhian? Where is he right now? The Captain Nim is probably inside the tomb. Joy's face turned pale. That was to be expected. This is not a regular tomb like the other great tombs. Pandora was calling this tomb a level 4 highest level tomb, however that machine can only go up to level 4. This was much worse than a level 4 tomb. It was created by the supreme leader after all. 
can Ju Hien really clear this tomb? She believed that this tomb might be too strong for even the mighty Ju Hien. She was right. I don't think I can clear this. Ju Hien said that from inside the tomb. The others with him gasped. This tomb was so strong that even the great and mighty Ju Hien had no confidence. Really? This is the first time I've ever heard you say th. No. Seo Lei quickly interrupted. He said it once before. It was in that tomb where we died. The others all frowned. The crow's tomb. Was this tomb similar in level to that great prison? Julian accepted it. Yes. It is the Supreme Leader Artifact's tomb after all. The aura is extremely strong. It's understandable why you would say that you can't clear it. Ju Hien frowned as if Julian was speaking nonsense. No. I don't want to clear this tomb. That's what it was. Ju Hien was being serious. Why? The difficulty of the tomb was one thing as it was the Supreme Leader's tomb, but that damn spider already has a master. There's no way it will give us a test and it won't be easy to make it submit either. Then there is only one way to plunder it. He could only consume it with the crow. But I might end up eating that woman with it too. It made sense why Ju Hien wouldn't want to do it. Zhen Kai Yuan received quite the damage after hearing that. Does he mean that he doesn't even want to use the artifact of predation on me? Seo Ju Hien, you really? Yu Jae Ha tilted his head in confusion at that moment. Then what if you just separate the artifact and consume it? The spider is a parasitic artifact. I can't eat it alone. Actually, it might be that it was complicated to consume as it was also an artifact of predation. Why is it an artifact of predation like the crow? Jae Ha, who had no way of knowing the answer, asked a question instead. I've been curious about this for a while but why do you hate that woman so much? Oh, sorry. I didn't know she was your type. No. Absolutely not. Zhen Kai Yuan's face twitched as Jae Ha vehemently opposed it. Anyway, the reason I hate that woman is. As Ju Hien was about to respond boom. A trap in the tomb is being activated. Things suddenly changed once Ju Hien saw those messages. There was a sudden blackout. Ju Hien's group disappeared, as if they were swallowed by something. Bugs that came out of the ground dragged Ju Hien's team elsewhere. Zhen Kai Yuan was shocked. Ju Hien is in danger. She was moving out of instinct but the spider supreme leader stopped her. Don't have any useless thoughts. Human. Its voice was extremely vicious. I will forget about what happened earlier. But you have no more chances. It sounded ready to kill Zhen Kai Yuan if needed as well. I don't know what you saw through the crow. But you should not forget about your own situation. Zhen Kai Yuan's pupils started shaking. At the same time director. According to Pandora's investigation, the tomb that appeared really is the one from China. Prometheus smiled after hearing the report. It was to be expected. It's that damn spider. He was certain that that damn spider created one of the seven great tombs. It was doing that to stop Seo Ju Hien. The supreme leader was one of the seven great artifacts after all. And since the seven great tombs held the keys to seal the great prison having one of those keys on their side made it so that the tomb could never be opened. The spider had consumed the original artifact of gluttony. There will be no issues now that the damn spider has stepped in. That bastard was one of the artifact leaders with him. The spider had worked with Prometheus to slam the major gods into the great prison and take control. It allowed them to be in control. However, Prometheus was still worried. That damn crow is still around. That bastard always got in their way. It wouldn't be surprising for the crow to go crazy since getting rid of the supreme leader would allow Ju Hien to open the great prison where it was imprisoned. An anxious Prometheus started to frown. You still can't contact the two chairman Quans. The Pandora employee became anxious. Ah, yes sir. For some reason, Chairman Quan Hyuk Su is ignoring all contact from Pandora while Chairman Quan Tae Jun's body seems to have gone missing ever since his body flew into Osiris's underworld. Apparently even Chairman Quan's head disappeared. 
they didn't even know whether he was still alive. Seo Juhian was the only one who could answer that question. What the hell did he do to the chairman's head and body? That bastard is one of the important humans. Prometheus pushed his temples and looked at the thing in front of him. He was looking at a large experimental tube. There was something inside. This was the Pandora system artifact. It was no ordinary artifact either. Prometheus started to speak. This bastard hasn't woken up yet, right? Yes sir. Prometheus sighed in relief. Just make it seem like we are doing what we can to rescue the civilians. I understand. I'll be in danger too if the great prison opens. You damn spider do whatever you need to do to stop him. He looked anxious while looking at the squirming Pandora system artifact. Ah! Don't come any closer. I'm not tasty. I'm not tasty at all. Juhian and the others who fell into a trap were dangling upside down. To be more specific, vines that take away artifact users' strength were binding them to look like mummies. Fuck, I can't use any artifacts. There were also numerous disgusting monsters underneath them. Some looked like bugs, others looked like demons and animals from mythologies. These bastards look tasty. Let's eat them all. This tomb was full of hungry creatures since this was the tomb for the artifact of gluttony. Most of them looked like tigers with human faces. These were the evil beasts from the Chinese Shan Hai Jing that feasted on humans. Those terrible Chinese monsters were trying to gobble Juhian's group, artifact and all. Of course, Jeha was angry for a silly reason right now. Fuck, why is the Captain Nim so popular even in a situation like this? What was he talking about? Ju Hien was surrounded by female demons right now. Of course, they were all hungry evil spirits. Things that look good are bound to taste good too. His skin looks so smooth and makes him look so delicious. Siole roared in anger while looking at those evil spirits. Damn it. Get the hell away from the Captain Nim. Hey. She would be able to easily dominate these evil spirits if she had her Yama artifact. The rope was angry as well. Get away. Get away. The rope that was stuck to Juhian started to whip the evil female spirits in anger. But those spirits just bit the rope as if it was a cuttlefish tentacle. That hurts. That hurts. The groaning rope could not use its full powers inside the tomb. There was also another reason they were captured like this. I didn't expect one of the the four evils to be here. That was the case. The four evils were the counter beasts to the four symbols, the azure dragon, vermilion bird, white tiger, and black tortoise were here. Unlike the four symbols, they were divine grade evil beasts that went around spreading evil. One of those beasts was in this tomb. The minds of these human bastards aren't that tasty. That bastard was eating away at Juhian and the others' mental fortitude, aka their dominance and affinity. They could not use their artifacts. That was why Juhian and the others were shocked. How could one of the, the four evils be in this tomb? I know the Supreme Leader artifact is probably amazing, but one of the, the four evils is a mid level boss. That was unbelievable. No. I'm sure it's not a mid level boss. The Supreme Leader probably ate it. What the hell is that artifact's true identity? Even Julian seemed slightly confused this time. Part of it was because he couldn't use Kongming's artifact, but it was also because he couldn't really make out the spider's identity. It was at that moment. I don't think it's that difficult to pinpoint. The others opened their eyes wide in shock after hearing Ju Hien's comment. You know what it is. Which artifact is it? Ju Hien responded to the question. Chapter 318 which artifact is it? Ju Hien responded to the question. It's. As Ju Hien was about to answer Ah. They heard screams all around them. The vines binding them became weaker and made them look like fruits that were about to fall off of trees. Oh my, oh my. Our prey are going to fall into our mouths on their own. Go away, go away. The most popular of the group was naturally Jeha. Why are they all gathering around me? Captain Nim. Please translate for me. You want to know why? 
you have the most fat in your guts. That was the truth. Meat needs some fat to taste good. They probably considered Jeha to be the ribeye. Juhian sneered at him. I knew this would happen ever since I saw you relying on the phoenix to eat two whole fried chicken in the middle of the night. It wasn't that Jeha was actually fat, but Juhian and Siole were extremely unpopular. Their flesh looked extremely tough as if they did a lot of working out while Julian also worked out every day to maintain his health. The only popular one was Jeha, the ribeye, the chuck, the pork belly, etc. Of course, their heirlooms played a role as well. The bitch is too vicious. They avoided Siolea's heavenly horse because they didn't want to get kicked as for Haiti we can't eat our fellow tiger. They treated Haiti as one of their own. And Juhi and that bastard has eaten so many dirty things that I feel like I might get a stomach ache if I eat him. You're right. Don't eat him. You'll probably get food poisoning. He failed the sanitary inspection. Compared to them, the phoenix looked extremely delicious along with Jeha. He he he, we have ribeye and bird meat. Bird meat. Ha, ha, let's roast them. Roast them. The legs are mine. All mine. Both Jeha and the phoenix foamed at the mouth. Captain Nim. Please at least get rid of that four evils bastard. It's fine if it is only for a moment. I just need to be able to use my artifact. Juhi inside as if he had no choice. Fine. I guess I can't let you die since you are my subordinate. Juhian's eyes flashed and Julian and Siole got ready as well. I'm sure he's going to use artifact destruction. They would escape the moment Juhian destroyed the vines tying them down. As they were getting ready hey spider lady. You can hear me, right? Juhian unexpectedly called for Jin Kai Yuan. He didn't know where she was but knew that she would be able to hear them. Why is he calling her in this situation? Juhian continued to speak without caring for anything else. Instead of responding to your question from earlier, let me make you an offer. See, Captain Nim. He said something quite shocking as the rest of the team tried to figure out what he was doing. I'll be your boyfriend if you unbind us. The team almost fainted after hearing that. Captain Nim. Hey, hey. Co Juhian. What are you saying? Siole took it the worst. What is he saying in such a situation? However, Juhian was being serious. What's wrong? I said I'll be your boyfriend. Julian shouted in anger as Juhian would not stop. Hey. What the hell are you saying all of a sudden? What kind of stupid nonsense is that? Juhian glared at Julian. You're the one who is being stupid. This tomb is different from most tombs. It already has a master. Don't you know what that means? The spider would be able to use its master's power to continue making traps in the tomb. Basically, it meant that they would keep getting caught in traps even if they got out of this one. So, to take care of them all one by one. That's just a waste of energy. Julian sighed. Juhian wanted to just get rid of the source instead. The traps in the tomb would disappear if the master suppressed the spider's powers. But still. There's no way that such an evil woman will fall for. But at that moment do you really mean that? The team members couldn't help but question their ears. The area in front of them seemed to warp before Jin Kai Yuan appeared in front of them. She really fell for it. The smart Julian couldn't understand this situation at all. What the hell? Zhen Kai Yuan was looking at Zhu Hian with shaking pupils. I asked if you were being serious. Yes. I said I'll be your boyfriend. Her eyes flashed. Let me make it clear. Yu Jeha won't be my boyfriend. You will be my boyfriend. She needed to make things clear after having been scammed once already. Zhu Hian nodded his head. Okay. So let me go. Oh, and get rid of that four evils bastard while you're at it. Jin Kai Yuan peeked toward the evil beast. This beast was the Tao Tai, one of the four evils that brings evil in the world. The other three were the Hun Dun that looked like a dog, the violent tiger Tao Wu, and the winged tiger Cheong Chi that eats the nose of the reasonable one and gifts the evil ones. 
Tao Tai was the evil beast of greed, a beast so gluttonous that it would even eat its own body. It is the original artifact for this great tomb. The supreme leader had consumed this bastard to take away its rights as one of the artifacts of the seven great tombs. Anyway, fighting a divine grade beast of this level would require them to put their lives on the line. That was why it was understandable that Ju Hian would include it in the deal. She could also predict what Seo Ju Hian was thinking. He's probably aiming for the artifact. Zhen Kai Yuan soon smiled. He can't take back something he's already said. Her eyes flashed dangerously. Ju Hian's condition wasn't to give him the artifact, it was just to get rid of this trap. He is my enemy but it is not hard to get rid of a single trap. This wasn't the only trap here after all. Zhen Kai Yuan immediately glared at the monsters. Let them go. The evil spirits, human-faced tigers, and even Tao Tai were shocked at what she just said. What did you say? I told you to let them go. The artifacts started shaking in fear at Jin Kai Yuan's order. The aura of the supreme leader she was giving off was too strong for them to ignore her because she was a human. The evil spirits and tigers ran away and the vines binding Ju Hian's group released them. The team sighed in relief after falling to the ground. Wow, I thought I was going to die. Jin Kai Yuan smiled brightly and walked over to Ju Hian as soon as the trap was removed. I kept my promise. You have to keep your word. Ju Hian sighed. Okay, okay. I'm your boyfriend starting today. Seo Lei looked as if she wanted to cry. How could her Captain Nim do this to her? But they had no choice. Zhen Kai Yuan hugged Ju Hian with a wicked look on her face. She had no plans on letting Ju Hian go. She just needed to kill the rest of these annoying team members and just take Ju Hian with her to China. You're mine now. Zhen Kai Yuan grabbed Ju Hian's face and looked ecstatic. Hey Ju Hian, then we should. Let's break up. That was all Ju Hian said before he ran for his life. It had all happened in an instant. The freed Ju Hian immediately called out his crow and caused a ruckus. Boom! The crow is consuming the artifacts that are running away. The crow that could not be activated until now because Ju Hian couldn't channel his dominance was going crazy consuming the evil spirit artifact and the human-faced tigers as if it had been waiting to do this. You have eaten the hungry evil spirit. You have eaten the violent human-faced tigers. Digesting the artifacts now. You have gained a new artifact's ability. Ju Hian then aimed for the Tao Tai as well. This supreme leader artifact's tomb is great. Ju Hian was laughing maniacally as he let the crow's aura go berserk. A chaotic aura that was large enough to cover the whole tomb shot out of him. The aura was aiming for the Tao Tai. His team members naturally gasped in shock. Ah! Not him. Captain Nim. An artifact that was one of the four evils was bound to be extremely evil. Ju Hian had gotten a stomach ache after eating Hitler's artifact. In comparison, forget rotten food, eating one of the four evils would be like eating nuclear waste. That's dirty. Dirty. Ju Hian ignored him and consumed the evil beast. Bo 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 boom. The evil beast was swearing but could not help but be sucked into that black hole. The Tao Tai is doing everything it can to escape. Ju Hian seemed to be in a bit of pain as he was unable to digest a divine grade artifact right away, but it didn't matter. There were talks in the past about using the four evils to call forth the four symbols. Ju Hian motioned for his team to follow him. Follow me. It's this way. The rest of the team was shocked. I thought you were going to seduce Shin Kai Yuan. What? Of course that was just a bluff. Excuse me? Even if he went out with Jin Kai Yuan, she was the type who would kill everybody else saying that they were annoying her. He would have to be crazy to give her his heart. In addition, Ju Hian looked at the shape of the tomb and started to smile. The Supreme Leader Artifact is an artifact born from the Gu Poison. The Gu Poison was one of the ancient Chinese curse methods. Numerous poisonous insects and creatures would be placed in a closed container until they created the most poisonous creature. That poison was used to kill people. 
poisonous spiders, centipedes, toads, snakes etc. would be placed in a single container and surprisingly, as if by magic, they would fight and eat each other until one was left. The last remaining creature would be used for the curses. The curses ranged from viruses, parasites, bacteria, etc., but there was a story that was most famously tied with the goo poison. You know about the bug that will give you unbelievable wealth in return for giving it humans? Ah. The user had to return the wealth plus interest if they could not feed the creature anymore. If someone took that wealth from the user, they would take the creature with them. Most people would take it without knowing about the creature and ended up getting eaten by it. That was how they would kill the target. China was able to gather a lot of artifacts and wealth even without Pandora. I'm sure it was thanks to the goo poison artifact. It also meant that Jin Kai Yuan would have fed people to the spider in return. So you're saying that the supreme leader artifact was created from the goo poison artifact? Basically, it was the most venomous creature that ate up all of the other poisonous artifacts and survived. It managed to surpass all of the other creatures it faced to be the last one standing. He didn't know what happened in the past, but that bastard might have originally been locked up with the other divine grade artifacts. It consumed divine grade artifacts and ended up as the last artifact standing, earning its title as the supreme leader. Wow, it really is a scary artifact. Do you want me to tell you something that's even scarier? Excuse me? That spider artifact could have started out as a human. The team could not close their jaws at Juhian's shocking comment. W, what did you just? I'm not certain. I just think that might be the case. But why? Even Julian seemed shocked this time. Juhian responded to him. The way it talks is different. The way it talks. Juhian seemed to be thinking for a moment. He could hear the artifacts. Naturally, he started to learn the artifact's tone and speaking style. But this spider was the only one that was different. I don't know whether to call it the tone, but the artifacts actually speak differently from humans. They weren't as unnatural as robots, but it just felt different from how people talked. He felt as if this was how aliens would sound if they spoke the human language. However the supreme leader artifact pretends to be an artifact but its tone sounds very similar to humans. In addition, information about other artifacts showed up properly for him but there was no information about the spider artifact. Then how did a human eat an artifact? In Greek mythologies, there are people who get cursed and sell off their daughter or even eat themselves until only the teeth are left. If you think about it that way, it's not that hard. Then you really think. Juhian smiled. But that wasn't important right now. That bastard is the artifact of gluttony. That means that this tomb is full of the artifacts it has consumed until now. This tomb was actually located in the belly of the Supreme Leader. That wasn't all. There's a way to make the Supreme Leader submit without going through Jin Kai Yuan. As Ju Hien was using tomb destruction to create shortcuts. The rope must have detected something as it urgently slapped Ju Hien on the cheek. Had it detected an enemy? Some faint changes started to happen inside the rope's body. Chapter 319 the rope's body is trying to change. Ju Hien's eyes opened wide at those messages. Its body is trying to change. Ju Hien looked at the rope that was slapping him. Well, unlike how it usually slapped people, it was gentle with Ju Hien and it only felt as if it was patting him with a sponge. Anyway, the rope's condition was a bit weird. It was sparkling unlike usual. Actually, this wasn't an unfamiliar sight. It was like this once when it upgraded to a B-grade artifact and became a possession-type artifact. The other time was when the rope upgraded to a S-grade artifact. It showed the same signs during those times. That gave Ju Hien an idea. Is it trying to upgrade again? But it was a bit odd. Artifacts didn't change for no reason. They needed to meet some special conditions, meaning that the rope had to do something amazing. That was how it had been the last two times as well. It overcame another bastard's dominance to turn into a possession-type artifact and slap the supreme leader to become a S-grade artifact. It had not done anything out of the ordinary lately. Ju Hien found it odd before realizing something. Was it perhaps the garlic and Korean wormwood? That's right. 
The rope had continued to rub garlic and Korean wormwood on its body without stopping. You little punk, you still haven't given up on that. He felt as if he could smell the garlic and Korean wormwood once he said that. He had not noticed because it usually absorbed it all into its body before coming over to him, but it must not have had time to do that today. You cruel bastard. You ground up your fellow artifact and rubbed it all over your body for 100 days. The shocked rope quickly shook its head. I, it's a replica. A replica. Well, it didn't matter. Juhian had been full of expectations at first too. The Dangun myths talked about how the bear turned into a human and became Wanung's companion. Juhian had been full of hope that the rope would show similar results, however it's been a lot more than 100 days already. Was it because the rope was using a replica or because the artifacts had a different way of counting the days than humans did? Either way, Juhian didn't see any changes right now. As Juhian decided to ignore the message since nothing was happening boom. The path inside the tomb suddenly started to shrink. See hitch. The area that looked like the bowels started to shrink to turn into a confined area. Warning. The goo poison's trap has been activated. It was obvious what this was. The tomb was sealing them in to make them have a battle royale. That was probably the reason. Hey Kong Ming. Juhian grabbed Julian by the collar and smiled brightly. And then don't die. W, what? Juhian instantly started to throw the team members. He sent them flying toward a hole that wasn't closed yet. It was just that ache. Juhian was throwing them to a cliff where they couldn't see the end. The team members couldn't help but foam at the mouth. Ah. Co Juhian, you really. Juhian smiled. They shouldn't die since I threw the rope with them. The supreme leader sneered at Juhian. Do you really think you can get out of here because you threw your teammates out? A large spider arm fell from the ceiling. Juhian's eyes flashed. This damn spider bastard talks so much. The spider's aura and the crow's aura clashed at that moment. The spider trembled as soon as it touched the crow. Juhian didn't care and started to smirk. His black aura seemed to explode before it consumed the supreme leader's arm. It had happened in an instant. Crunch. You are absorbing a portion of the supreme leader's power. The anxious supreme leader quickly tried to pull its arm out but it had already been cut off. The supreme leader was extremely angry. It was not just angry that its arm had been cut off. How dare this crow bastard not recognize its true owner. It sounded as if it was angry that Juhian was using the crow. And then hand it over. That is not an artifact a bastard like you should use. Bang! The supreme leader ruthlessly hooked Juhian with its arm. Ugh! Juhian groaned. It was so strong that his spine felt as if it might break. But what hooked him was not its usual spider arm. It's a human arm. A human arm. Yes, the thing that came out of the wall and the ground was a rotten human arm. That large arm was hooking Juhian as if to kill him. The supreme leader was raging wildly. Hand over my crow right now. Boom. Boom. The supreme leader started to go wild. Juhian just scoffed. That was to be expected. Did it just say my crow? Was it perhaps the crow's former master? Juhian couldn't think for long as he groaned. You are being exposed to the goo poison's power. He groaned because of an unfamiliar memory that came into his brain. Fuck. That crow bastard betrayed me. Why did it pick that inferior bastard over me? Human, you become an artifact as well. It was probably the spider supreme leader's memory. It was its memory of being eaten by an artifact. The scene he saw was terrible. Juhian quickly came back to his senses and scoffed. Why? This bastard really was a human before. This was the truth. The supreme leader in that memory was human. The supreme leader had been jealous of the person who ended up with the crow. Whether he was envious of its power of predation or just wanted the crow for himself that bastard used the artifact of gluttony from Greek mythology to emulate the crow. He was then captured by those artifacts and reborn as the goo poison artifact. 
That was why it was interesting. A human can turn into an artifact. But at that moment ugh. Juhian coughed up some blood. He had been poisoned, potentially because of the supreme leader's arm he ate earlier. Fuck, it's not like it's a puffer fish or something. He probably would have died instantly if it wasn't for his tolerance. The spider charged toward the stumbling Juhian. Give me back my crow. You thieving bastard. As the crow opened its jaws and charged toward him get your damn filthy mouth out of here. They heard an extremely angry voice. Juhian's eyes opened wide after hearing this familiar voice. This voice is? Juhian urgently stepped back before he could see the person's face. Artifacts are being destroyed. Artifacts were starting to be destroyed by an extremely strong aura. The supreme leader's leg stumbled as if it was paralyzed. Who was this person? The person who appeared in front of Juhian was actually Irene. She seemed so angry that her face was flushed red and she was huffing. How dare you try to eat Mr. Juhian with your stinky and dirty mouth? Of course, the monarch of destitution's overwhelming power of disaster was making Juhian's artifacts suffer as well. Juhian slowly backed away when Irene seemed to have realized it and grabbed Juhian. Mr. Juhian, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Juhian smiled at Irene. Everything other than his artifacts were fine, but Irene, why are you in this tomb? Excuse me. It's obviously because I was in the theater as well. The theater? George told me that you would be in the cathedral all day today and tomorrow for Christmas. Irene seemed extremely flustered to hear that. A, ah. No, you see, that. She couldn't say that she snuck out of the cathedral while her brother wasn't looking. I, I came out for a moment to have dinner with my family. In the middle of service? I, it's break time. Cathedrals have breaks too. A, anyway. Mr. Juhian. Aren't the others in a trap? We need to hurry. Juhian chuckled at Irene's statement. That's nothing to them. My subordinates are not that useless. Excuse me. They should be about done now. Something happened as he smiled. Ah. The supreme leader suddenly screamed. The tomb started to shake as well. It felt like an extremely strong earthquake. Kaya. Irene stumbled and Juhian just picked her up over his shoulder. He then smiled after seeing the messages that popped up. The artifacts that the Supreme Leader has consumed are starting to escape. There was an explosion in the tomb as well. The Supreme Leader became angry at what was happening in its tomb. You sons of bitches! It finally seemed to realize what had happened. As it raged Seo Juhian, you really? How can you just hand Mammon over before pushing us off a cliff? Julian was holding onto the rope and climbing up to the top of the cliff as he huffed in anger. Juhian just smiled at him. Why are you being so petty? All that matters is that my intentions were delivered to you. To explain what happened Juhian had thrown Julian and the others to the cliff for a reason. Clear the tomb. He would keep the supreme leader occupied so use that time to take care of things. It would be too obvious if he was moving around himself. Juhian had handed Julian Mammon and the rope in secret as well. Mammon is a mining artifact. It seemed to have pretended to be an archaeologist's artifact in the past on purpose, but it was an artifact mining devil. And the supreme leader is an artifact of gluttony. Although both the crow and the spider were artifacts of predation, the base was different. An easy comparison would be that the crow puts all of the artifacts it consumes into a bag. On the other hand, the supreme leader was the goo poison artifact. All of the artifacts it consumed until now was a part of it. That meant that taking out the artifacts that make up its body will make it shrink. The tomb shook vigorously once more. Boom. 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 The devil of mining is mining the artifacts inside the stomach. The consumed artifacts have regained their freedom. The freed artifacts are starting to dig their way out of the tomb. This was definitely Mammon's doing. Mammon might not look like it but she was strong enough to be a heirloom after all. The escaping artifacts finally managed to dig their way out of the supreme leader's tomb. 
The supreme leader was in significant pain as if its guts had been ripped. Ugh, ugh. My body, my booty. The supreme leader's appearance started to change. It turned from the large spider to a toad, a snake, and many other forms the spider was slowly becoming smaller as the artifacts making up its body started to leave one by one. Damn it, how dare you use such a despicable method. The angry supreme leader released its aura. Julian urgently shouted. The supreme leader is forcibly gathering the artifacts that are escaping. Juhian scoffed before shouting. Come out, Domus Aurea. Juhian called for one of his possession-type artifacts that was outside the tomb. Something shocking happened. Nero's Domus Aurea has appeared. A golden palace in the shape of a tower was summoned outside the tomb. The messages kept coming. The artifacts from the Tower of Pride are bursting out from inside. The residents of the Tower of Pride that he had stationed inside the Domus Aurea ran out. Juhian smiled as he shouted. Grab the escaping artifacts. Each one you grab will take off one month's rent. The artifacts chased after the escaping artifacts with crazed expressions on their faces. Chase them. My rient. Grab those bastards. The slightly weakened supreme leader foamed at the mouth. This bastard. Juhian glared at the spider with a terrifying gaze. Kneel. You damn spider. Juhian's dominance exploded and the spider started grinding its teeth as it flailed. Even an artifact that was originally human seemed to feel pain from strong levels of dominance. The pain spider soon disappeared. The spider. Irene was shocked to see Juhian start walking. Mr. Juhian. She wanted to know where he was going. I can't get that bastard as things are right now. Juhian was heading for a certain spot in the tomb. But the place he was headed was unexpectedly not very far away. He stopped in front of Jin Kai Yuan. You, ugh. At a corner of the tomb Jin Kai Yuan was on the ground in pain, probably because she was contracted to the supreme leader. Huff, huff. Ju Hian. Ju Hian looked at Jin Kai Yuan as she groaned in pain. He had weakened the supreme leader's power but the contract was still there. Basically, he needed to forcibly break the contract if he wanted to take the supreme leader artifact for himself. Julian, who knew that was the case, started to speak. I guess you need to kill that woman to get the supreme leader artifact. Jin Kai Yuan looked at Ju Hian and smiled after hearing that. I'll have no regrets if I die by your hands. Please send me off without any pain. Ju Hian pulled out a knife. Oh right, you asked me how I felt when you died. The blade of the knife flashed as Ju Hian continued to speak. Chapter, 320 Oh right, you asked me how I felt when you died. The blade of the knife flashed as Ju Hian continued to speak. I was very sad. We were together for a bit after all. Zhen Kai Yuan's eyes opened wide while Julian gasped. Wait, what did he just say? He was sad. He was very sad. This son of a bitch. He's definitely gone crazy. Julian seriously thought Ju Hian had gone crazy. He couldn't help but have such a reaction. There was no way something so romantic would come out of Seo Ju Hian's mouth. This guy didn't give a damn about anybody whether they were men or women. There was no way that such a bastard would say such sweet words to Jin Kai Yuan. Then there was only one answer. This son of a bitch is trying to scam her again. Seo Ju Hian, you. But Julian flinched before he cussed at Ju Hian. No. He might not seem like it, but Ju Hian is actually a very affectionate person. He would not have worked together with this bastard for ten years if he really shed no blood or tears like a psychopath. Ju Hian even looked a bit sad right now. Julian started to speak with a compassionate gaze in his eyes. I see, I guess you really did have some feelings for Jin Kai Yuan. But forget having feelings so just tell me a bit about the artifacts China has before you die. Hey you damn trashy son of a bitch. Julian grabbed the back of his neck while the spider artifact roared in anger. See, this bastard is someone who says stupid shit like this. Hurry up and kill him. Ju Hian was the enemy. 
This arrogant bastard was trying to become the master of all artifacts in the world. We can't let a bastard like this get all of the artifacts. Well, part of the reason the spider felt that way was because it believed all of the artifacts in the world should be his. All right. All of the artifacts will be taken by this bastard if you don't do anything. Hurry up and kill him. However, at that moment I don't want to. Zhen Kai Yuan immediately rejected the spider. She had an extremely satisfied expression on her face. The spider couldn't help but become anxious. You stupid bitch, are you really believing what this bastard just said? You're satisfied with that? Zhen Kai Yuan started to smile. Of course she was satisfied. Why? Zhu Hian was usually not the type to even say empty words. That was why it was fine if it was a lie, and it doesn't seem like a total lie either. She could tell by his gaze. Of course, it was possible that Zhu Hian was doing it on purpose to make himself seem more believable. Anyway, I lost. They're going to execute me if I go back to China like this anyway. So hurry up and kill me. Take the Supreme Leader artifact from me. Zhu Hian gently smiled. It was as he expected. Zhen Kai Yuan was the type to not care about things once she got what she wanted. He knew that she would even give up on the artifacts as long as she got what she really wanted. Furthermore if you want to kill me, stab me deep right here. The artifact's core is located there. Zhu Hian had no idea where the supreme leader was located inside her body. As one of the four emperors, she was able to hide it very well. In order to remove a parasitic artifact, that location needed to be known but he had no idea where it could be. I get it now. She pointed deep inside her neck. It was also the spot she cut her neck to kill herself in the past. She let him know that she would just molt again if he did not properly destroy the core. Just destroy the artifact core. The supreme leader will die with me, but you have a talented restorer with you anyway. Zhu Hian lifted the knife. Good, I won. Zhen Kai Yuan was looking at Irene for some reason. She was planning to die in Zhu Hian's hands from the beginning. She believed she would remain in his memory if he personally killed her. Do you have any last words? I hope that you will be able to like me in my next life. Zhu Hian viciously smiled as she said that. But as he struck down to stab Zhen Kai Yuan you motherfucking bitch. I don't need you anymore. The spider could not hold it in any longer and burst out of Zhen Kai Yuan's body. It couldn't believe that this woman was pretty much committing suicide. The spider decided to throw away this crazy woman. And then Seo Ju Hian, you should be thankful. I will take you as my host. Its chaotic aura aimed for Ju Hian. Both Shen Kai Yuan and Julian were shocked to see that. Why? It was not good news for the Supreme Leader to take anybody as a host. The Supreme Leader is the Gu Poison artifact. Gu Poison was an artifact that called forth curses. This bastard would bring unbelievable wealth to its host but will kill the host if it was not fed. Basically, the Supreme Leader was planning on sticking to Zhu Hian and forcing him to feed it. The food it wasn't wasn't regular food either. I'll request your team members as my first meals. It would do that to make Seo Zhu Hian cry tears of blood. It was shameful to stick to Seo Zhu Hian but it seemed extremely beneficial looting at the long-term results. Whether Zhu Hian would be pained to feed it or die because he couldn't feed it. It would enjoy both scenarios. The spider bared its fangs toward Zhu Hian. Zhen Kai Yuan became anxious. I can't let it do a host contract. She did not want to see Zhu Hian crying tears of blood. Well, she might enjoy it if he cried some tears of blood for her, but... Zhen Kai Yuan quickly grabbed a knife. Her only choice was to kill the spider before it could attack Zhu Hian. Seo Zhu Hian. Go become the ruler of the artifacts. As she was about to stab her own neck. Grab. The knife stopped moving. Zhu Hian had grabbed Zhen Kai Yuan's knife. He did it extremely manly with his bare hand. His hand was dripping blood but Zhu Hian just laughed as if it was nothing. Zhen Kai Yuan was baffled. But why? He's going to die at this rate. The spider stuck itself to Zhu Hian's back at that moment. It then started to laugh. 
You stupid fool, I got you now. But as the spider tried to rip apart Juhian's neck ugh. The spider coughed up blood and moved away from Juhian's body. The spider was flailing on the ground in pain as if it was having diarrhea and vomiting at the same time. You bastard, what the hell did you rub all over your body? Juhian lifted his shirt a bit and started to smile. What had he rubbed on his body? One, zero, zero years old extremely stinky garlic extract SS grade, divine grade, consumable artifact holy blood that scares even the king of ghosts SS grade, divine grade, consumable artifact the lord of flies poop excreted by the monarch of devils heirloom food poisoning bacteria SS grade, divine grade, consumable artifact what had Juhian done? He had ground up all sorts of artifacts and rubbed them on his body. He would not come unprepared to meet Jin Kai Yuan. He had come up with this method while debating how he could defend himself against her. He had rubbed all sorts of artifacts because he didn't know the damn spider's true identity, but it was an artifact of gluttony after all. As a fellow artifact of predation user, he knew very well how it worked. You get a stomach ache if you eat something you shouldn't eat. The Dongui Bagam artifact that came out in the past would have been able to accurately come up with an antidote for the goo poison, but I guess it's enough. He had no right to tell the rope that it was stinky. All right, get lost if you understand. Juhian started swinging the smelly garlic rope around. Garlic was known for warding off evil in both the east and the west. The rope even roared to threaten the supreme leader. The supreme leader that had gotten weaker after losing the artifacts that made up its body glared at Juhian. You son of a bitch, do you really think something stupid like this would work? Something stupid? It sure seems to be effective. Zhu Hien laughed and bound the supreme leader up with the rope. The garlic rope was extremely effective. It could probably be used to ward off all sorts of evil in the future. He laughed and started to stomp on the spider. Well, it looks like you were the emperor of a large empire in the past so I will show you some respect as a person. What? Zhu Hien took out a gourd. You may have been a greedy bastard, but you probably didn't choose to be swallowed by the goo poison. I will properly clear your tomb. The gourd grew into the size of a building once he channeled his dominance. The spider was baffled. What the hell are you planning? Nothing. I'm going to give you a chance to keep your honor as a human being. This was the tomb of the goo poison. The way to properly clear this tomb was to have a battle royale inside the gourd similar to how the goo poison was created. I've been curious about it. Let's go figure out whether my crow's predation or your predation is stronger. Julian urgently shouted. Are you planning on fighting with the spider? That's too dangerous. Juhian ignored him and motioned to the spider. And it looks like you may have been the crow's master at some point so I will give you some special treatment. The spider released its chaotic aura as soon as Juhian said that. Fine. That crow will be mine if I consume you. Julian became anxious as the spider and Juhian headed for the gourd. Hey! Captain! Stop it! Mr. Juhian! Juhian didn't care and walked into the gourd with the spider. The spider became excited once it was inside. All right. Bring it on. Let's see who survives in the end. It was at that moment. Mm, -hmm, yeah. Give it your best on your own. The spider urgently turned its head but bang. Juhian quickly closed the opening of the gourd. The spider anxiously ran toward the entrance. What the hell are you doing? Juhian ignored it and channeled his dominance into the gourd again. The gourd slowly shrank until it was the size of a paper cup. Julian was astonished at what just happened. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Zhu Hien looked at the tiny gourd and laughed out loud. What else? I'd have to be fucking crazy to get trapped in a gourd with a damn spider. Julian was truly flabbergasted. I thought you were going to show it respect for being an emperor in the past. Emperor? It's just a dumbass who couldn't overcome its own greed and turned into an artifact. You said you were going to show it respect as a person. It's just a shitty artifact bastard now. It's not human. Julian grabbed the back of his neck. What about the whole do it properly, because it was the crow's former master? Like hell it was the former master. 
The small glimpse he got into the Supreme Leader's memories showed that this bastard was not the Crow's master. Someone else was the Crow's true former master. In fact, that guy seemed to be the Supreme Leader's slave in the past. The spider was just the emperor of an ancient empire who tried to get the crow and lost it to his own slave the crow seemed to be the strongest of the heirlooms it had a direct connection to the majesty. I saw something quite interesting in that memory. He also had everything he needed to open the great prison now. They could hear the spider grinding its teeth inside the gourd as Juhian laughed. C.O. Juhian. Get your ass inside now. Get in here. Juhian just sneered at the spider. Shut up. I'm going to let our doggies shit on you. At the same time huff, huff. When is my damn master coming out? Mammon, who had mined the artifacts from the supreme leader's tomb, was stomping her feet. The artifacts Mammon mined were all artifacts that the supreme leader had consumed. Helping them escape made the supreme leader weaker so Juhian should be able to clear the tomb. She had watched the artifacts inside the Supreme Leader's tomb dig their way out and scatter. However why is he not coming out? The tomb should be cleared. H, he wasn't swallowed by the Supreme Leader, right? You, ugh. I don't know what you are saying, but please let go. As Jeha, who Mammon was grabbing by the collar and shaking anxiously, groaned in pain hey hey, hold on. Is it really okay to let all those artifacts escape? Ilya, who met up with Jeha and Ciole pointed at the sky. The captain will probably be angry. What was he pointing at? The sky was full of artifacts from the supreme leader artifact's stomach that were running away. They looked like dragons ascending to the sky. Ciole was anxiously biting her fingernails while looking at the artifacts escaping. I need to get all of those. She needed to gather one zero zero divine grade artifacts to give to her captain Nim as dowry. Jeha stopped Ciole who was trying to chase after the artifacts. Hey hey, stop. It's obvious those are all evil god artifacts. Even the artifacts from the Tower of Pride can't capture them. This was the truth. The artifacts the supreme leader had consumed were mainly evil god artifacts. They were all extremely dangerous heinous, and disgusting. That was probably the reason. Egu, I'm just giving up on that free rent. Those bastards are too wicked and strong. There's no way we can get those. We'll die from their venomous aura. Just let them go. But the Captain Nim will be disappointed. As Mammon and the other artifacts had all given up Shu. Something urgently burst out of the tomb. It was the rope. But the rope looked different from its usual appearance. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. The color changed. Hey. No, its appearance just now. The rope looked odd as it flew up to the sky. It definitely looked like a rope as usual, but didn't it just look like a person? Did my eyes go crazy? What the hell is going on? Ah, uh, Captain Nim. Actually, the rope. Hmm. The rope that flew up to the sky flashed its eyes and tried to capture the scattering evil god artifacts. Where do you think you're going? Where do you think you're going? The evil god artifacts foamed at the mouth. What the hell is this shitty rope? You shitty bastard. Go away. I said, go away. The rope grinded its teeth in anger as it was sent flying with a punch. The rope flashed before it split into many ropes. When had this rope learned Bunshin no Jutsu? The rope flashed its eyes and started capturing the evil artifacts left and right. It started with one, then two, three, one hundred one thousand. Aye, it captured all of them. Mammon's jaw dropped in shock. T, that punk. What the hell did it just do? Juhian saw a shocking message at that moment. The rope is being promoted. It is being promoted to a heirloom. Chapter, 321. The rope is being promoted. It is being promoted to a heirloom. It was an extremely shocking message. It was such an unbelievable message that even Juhian had to rub his eyes. He couldn't help but laugh. It's a heirloom. It was too hard to believe. This rope was not alive. Compared to the other heirlooms but what? At that moment. Ah, 
what the hell is this bastard? Go away. I said, go away. You stupid rope. Where are you from? How dare an inferior bastard like you touch someone like me? Juhian turned his head as the artifact screamed. The screams were coming from the sky. The rope had split its body to bind down 100 artifacts at once. The rope looked like a net as the 100 strands reached out in all directions. These artifacts had no way of escaping. Juhian questioned his eyes after looking at the rope. Hmm. He thought that the rope looked human for a moment. But that human form disappeared as if it had been a mirage. He heard his team members shouting. Jackpot. Did it capture all of them? Really? Oh, I knew that rope was a hack from the beginning. You, unbelievable. Even Mammon was gasping. W, wait. If it's like this. Mammon urgently turned toward Juhian and the rope. Juhian looked satisfied and the rope flew over to Juhian after seeing he was out. I filled it. I filled it. One, zero, zero divine grade artifacts. Juhian laughed as the rope looked like a kid bringing a giant batch of one, zero, zero balloons behind it. He still couldn't understand what it was saying, but whatever. Yes, yes, I'll take you as my partner. The team members almost fainted. Captain. Are you out of your mind? Captain Nim. Wow, he's finally done it. Whatever, I have nothing to do this with. This artifact file finally. Juhian shouted in anger. No. Not that kind of partner. My heirloom. They call heirlooms your partner artifact. Ah, heirloom. Ah, yes, sir. Jeha mockingly laughed before his eyes opened wide. Huh. Wait a minute. Then are you planning on throwing the crow away and taking the rope as your heirloom? The crow was the most shocked to hear this. Juhian was going to throw it away. The crow flinched and tried to chase after the artifacts but it was too late and divine grade artifacts didn't just fall from the sky. Mammon was stomping her feet in frustration. Human, artifacts can't just be heirlooms because they want to do it. Why not? Why else? They don't meet the requirements requirements my ass. It's already a heirloom though. Mammon urgently turned her head and the rope's eyes. Were sparkling as it bobbed up and down. I got promoted. I got it. It was proudly bobbing up and down. The other artifacts all gasped. This is blasphemy. It's blasphemy. Even the artifacts belonging to Juhian's team members peeked out and started shouting. This makes no sense. It's not a divine beast or a leader of a group. This was as unbelievable as saying that humans originated from a paper cup. Isn't this a scam? Maybe it's just pretending to be a heirloom. Unfortunately, it didn't matter what the artifacts had to say. It really does have the aura of a heirloom. That was the undeniable proof that it was a heirloom. Of course, there were a lot of weird things about this. The only way to become a heirloom was to have a heirloom pass down its position to a new artifact. But the rope was not a divine beast nor did it get handed a position. The number of heirlooms was a fixed amount as well. But for it to have become a heirloom, Juhian suspiciously looked at the rope's smelly body. There's no way it was the garlic and Korean wormwood, right? It sounded plausible as the bear used garlic and Korean wormwood to become Wanung's partner. For artifacts, becoming a human's partner meant becoming their heirloom. Was that the reason or was it because it captured all of the artifacts from the supreme leader artifact's body? Either way, this silly rope breaks all supposed laws of artifacts. An artifact that shouldn't be able to upgrade had upgraded and even jumped past grades, it really likes a human and had no problem smacking the supreme leader. This mysterious artifact seemed to be made up of all things that shouldn't exist in this world. Is it really Gleipner? It was at that moment. H. Human are you really going to take this rope as your heirloom? Juhian laughed at Mammon's question. Why not? The rest of the team became excited to hear that. Then please give me the crow artifact. Me, me. Hey. The phoenix is enough for you. Please give it to me instead. Please captain. 
Shut the hell up. I don't want to be a meat shield anymore. I'll become a multi-ability user if I consume the phoenix with the crow. That's true, the Captain Nim's artifact is like hitting the jackpot. The whole team was greedy for the crow. However, the crow's aura was shaking. It had only been wary of Mammon and then ended up being smacked in the back by an unexpected opponent. But it couldn't argue against the rope. The rope did have the power of a proper heirloom and it was up to the master to decide if they wanted to break the heirloom contract. Alright, then. As the team's eyes sparkled and the crow sulked let's do it together. Let's do it together. The rope jumped up and down before landing on Juhian's head. A shocking message appeared as the heirloom contract with the rope took place. You have received an additional heirloom contract. You have become the master of two heirlooms you have become the only dual heirloom user in the world. Ju Hien's eyes opened wide. Oh, would you look at this? His shocked expression made the rest of the team awkwardly ask. Captain Nim. Are you not going to break the contract? Um, who are you going to give the crow to? Ju Hien smirked as if they were ridiculous. Get lost. Both of them are mine. Excuse me. I'd have to be crazy to let you have such a useful artifact. Excuse me. B, but people can only have one heirloom. Ju Hien pointed to his clavicle instead of responding. The tumble of tattoo symbolizing his contract with the crow was clearly visible. It was located the same way as any possession type artifact's proof of contract, but heirloom tattoos looked different in both shape and color. The team gasped after looking where he was pointing. T. There's one more. What? Then he has two heirlooms? Jeha started to scream that this was a scam. Holy shit, this is so unfair. You damn thief. You fucking skamir. You always take all the good things for yourself. The entire team started crying in envy but it didn't matter. What the hell is this trashy human bastard? Juhian heard an annoyed voice. It was from one of the evil god artifacts that the rope had captured. They were bound by the rope but still salivating while looking at Juhian. I was happy enough to be freed from that motherfucking spider bastard but there's even a feast for me. Good little rope. Eat him. The evil artifacts all charged toward Juhian. The rest of the team and even their artifacts started screaming. It was because these artifacts were evil god artifacts that other artifacts avoided as if they were literal shit. They were different from regular artifacts. They made even the artifacts of the Tower of Pride shiver. Each of them were either diseases with terrible personalities or disasters that loved to harm humans. They had all been wondering how Ju Hien was going to handle all of these artifacts. Just having them by his side would be cancerous. That was probably the reason. Hey. Co Ju Hien. Those bastards are dangerous. You don't avoid shit because it's scary. You avoid it because it's dirty. What the hell are you going to do about these pieces of shit? What was Ju Hien's plan? I already found a great place. But before that these pieces of shit can't even recognize their master. The two heirlooms were viciously activated as soon as he said that. There was a loud explosion in Manhattan. The screens were just an extra benefit that was pleasing to Juhian's ears. Hey. What the hell are we looking at? The doggy artifacts seemed quite shocked. The other artifacts responded to Anubis's question. Um we are watching the creation of a prison. That was the case. They were currently on a remote island in the Caribbean. A grotesque building was being built in front of the doggy's eyes. Juhian was currently creating Tartarus. Basically, he was creating hell. It would be a place to train these shitty T air, to take care of these artifacts. Ju Hien, who was giving Jeha directions on how to build it, was smiling arrogantly. Humans fall to hell if they sin. Artifacts should go to hell if they do bad things too. I'll make it so that you beg to call me master within a month. The artifacts were shaking. Even artifacts that belonged to the rest of this team were shaking in fear. I was wondering how he was going to suppress these heinous artifacts. He was basically going to put shit in the shit bucket. Now that they thought about, Juhian had been buying land all around the world for a while. 
This remote island in the Caribbean was one of many islands that Juhian had bought. They had thought that he was just going to be like any other rich person and build vacation homes all around the world, but Egu. Who knew that a human bastard would create hell? Who could have expected that he would create something like this for the artifacts he captured? They could already tell. I guarantee that this penitentiary will be the worst place to be. Just look at the ingredients going into its creation. Anubis got angry at them. You stupid fool. That's not it. That is not what I am shocked about. Hell. Something like that wasn't weird. His master was someone who would make all of the artifacts in the world his slave without batting an eye. In fact, it was weird that something like this was being built now instead of having been built earlier. T, then Osiris and Set, who were next to Anubis, chimed in. Yes. The shocking thing is that this thing is our restroom. They were shocked while looking at the chamber pot in front of them. This was the gourd where Juhian had imprisoned the supreme leader it looked like a chamber pot now but whatever. Master. Even if you wanted to scare us, this is not it. How can this be our restroom? Anubis foamed at the mouth. No sir. The thing that should surprise us right now is that the rope became a heirloom. The thing that shocked Anubis was the unprecedented appearance of a heirloom. How did a little punk who wasn't even a divine grade artifact become a heirloom? The heirloom selected monarchs and were the monarch's partners to protect them. How could a simple rope rise to such a position? Set and Osiris just laughed. It's not that weird. That kid could probably even become the supreme leader. T, this is not the time to say such casual things. It had already increased by one because of the crow. The rope had instantly made the number of heirlooms grow by one again. Something like this had never happened before. The heirlooms and artifacts all around the world will never accept this. It was true artifacts all around the world were gasping right now. Of course, the subject of the matter didn't seem to care about it at all. I gathered one hundred. I did it. The rope was just following Juhian around with a sparkle in its eyes. Can I be with you now? Can I? Is this day one? Day one? That seems to be the thought on its mind. It was no wonder Anubis was getting flustered. Anubis scowled and groaned. Regardless of how the master deals with it, this is definitely something for the artifact court. The rope would end up having its heirloom authority revoked. It's not even a divine grade artifact, but it is a divine grade artifact. Anubis's eyes opened wide at Juhian's comment. Master. I don't know why you guys can't sense it, but the rope is clearing giving off the aura of a divine grade artifact. Was Juhian telling the truth? Was a stupid rope like this really a divine grade artifact like them? Anubis freaked out even more. This is really driving me crazy. But the ones really going crazy were not any of them. That damn spider lost. Prometheus's hand was shaking. He never expected Juhian to clear the supreme leader's tomb. That wasn't all. Now that the spider supreme leader is captured, its subordinate artifacts are acting weird as well. The doggies with Juhian, who were division commanders and commander of the corps, had nobody to fear anymore while the other artifacts were talking about whether they should follow Juhian as well. It is dangerous like this. The people the system artifact chose will not become the majesty at this rate. And now all seven great tombs that was the case. Juhian had all of the keys. He is going to try to open the great prison now. They were done for if that prison was opened. To be more specific, if Juhian took possession of the criminals in that tomb. Prometheus urgently looked at the Pandora system artifact. I can't let that bastard use this artifact. Then. We still have time. That was true. Even if he had the keys, he could not instantly open that tomb. It is the great prison. A mere human will not be able to open it so easily. Prometheus smiled wickedly. So hurry up and do as I come. But at that moment boom. The Pandora system artifact suddenly started to go crazy and released a warning. Warning. A change is happening in the world. It was as if Juhian was sneering at them. The great prison where they had stuffed the major gods and hidden away was starting to open. 
Chapter, 322 The Pandora System artifact suddenly started to go crazy and released a warning. Warning. A change is happening in the world. It was as if Ju Hian was sneering at them. The great prison where they had stuffed the major gods and hidden away was starting to open. Prometheus's pupils were shaking. He was certain about what was going on. This earthquake was pretty weak compared to normal tomb appearance precursors. There weren't many signs at all but he could feel it. The prison has opened. Well, the prison doors had not completely opened. Otherwise, those bastards captured inside would have burst out to fight them. But that prison has appeared. That prison that shouldn't appear in the world was out. It was a tomb that was in a different world for a lack of better words. But this prison that should not have been able to be found in this world was partially visible now. It was because Seo Juhian got all of the artifacts from the seven great tombs. Fuck. That motherfucking bastard. He was getting in their way so much. Now those bastards are. Those bastards they had imprisoned would pop back out. However, at that moment they are not out yet. Prometheus was shocked to suddenly hear a voice. It was a woman's voice. But he soon started frowning. He was not happy to hear this voice. Why is this woman talking to me? Prometheus started glaring. Mother, please stay out of this. You haven't done anything until now so please just keep that up. The mother of the beginning laughed at his angry voice. But it looks like you can't do it on your own anymore. That thieving human bastard will steal the prisoners in the tomb now. Some of them are bastards you don't like. Prometheus started grinding his teeth in anger. There were all sorts of artifacts from both eastern and western stories inside the tomb. There were gods who were extremely well known among humans as well. But the one he hated the most was the Playboy artifact. I am not trying to harm you. Those bastards in the prison are my enemies as well. That is why you should use the Pandora system artifact. Prometheus turned to look at the artifact inside the experiment tube. It would be fine to use this bastard but this was a double-edged sword. I worked my ass off to submit this bastard. He truly had run himself to the ground suppressing this artifact's personality and making it into a simple system artifact. That was probably the reason. No, I cannot use this bastard. His mother chuckled and asked. Then what are you going to do? First, I will borrow your body as I have done until now, mother. You're going to use unknown. Yes ma'am. His mother sighed. You're basically telling me to shut up and sleep. The ground needs to be peaceful to scatter seeds and for good crops to grow. Unknown. The unknown used by Pandora was like a seed. Others would consider it to be a seed with mysterious powers. Anyway, he would put unknown into his mother. He would spread it on this earth artifact. Doing so would create artificial artifacts. These artificial artifacts would have all sorts of abilities. Of course, the only downside was that they had no idea what artifacts would grow, fitting its name of unknown. It was like scattering seeds without knowing what plants would grow. Prometheus had used them for Pandora or had distributed them to the monopolizers in the past. Of course, these artificial artifacts were extremely unstable compared to real artifacts. It was also possible that an artifact with useless abilities would grow as well. But sometimes, artifacts stronger than the divine grade artifacts pop up as well. There was a reason they had been able to survive without a majesty for so long. He smiled even as his pupils were shaking. Hurry up and call the artifacts and the monopolizers. Hurry up before Seo Juhian goes into that prison. He sounded urgent. However, there was someone who was having as bad of a mental breakdown as Prometheus. How, how how is this possible? It was Mammon. How could I be the only one who is not a heirloom? On the Caribbean island Mammon was crying tears of blood. She truly felt depressed and wronged. The issue wasn't that the rope swiped the 100 artifacts and became a heirloom. It was so shocking that none of the artifacts could accept it, but it didn't matter. That was just that punky rope working hard to become a heirloom. It did hurt being smacked in the back by someone she had not paid any attention to, but it was a good thing for Juhian to have heirloom-grade artifacts. But still. 
Human. Take me as your heirloom too. I don't want to. Mammon cried after Ju Hian instantly rejected her. That was the case. Mammon was sad that she was not Ju Hian's heirloom. It was to the point she tried to seduce the other heirlooms in Ju Hian's position to pass a heirloom position to her. She had the qualifications to be one. She was a divine grade artifact, and although she was a devil, she also had the evil beast form of a white crow. I'm going to go find a new master. Yes, yes. Do whatever you want. Everything you did for me in the past, my ass. The reason it turned him into the greatest tomb raider was not for him but for its own greed. Mammon is the devil of mining. Basically, it was a greedy artifact that went into other tombs to excavate other artifacts. There were even talks about how humans only started mining because of Mammon. They even said that she was happy that there were a lot of treasures when she fell down to hell as a fallen angel. But doing so as a fellow artifact would make them swear at her and treat her as a tomb raider herself, so she pretended to be a human archaeologist. It was something like pretending to get the artifacts for research. It had scammed everybody for its desires. Anyways, feel free to leave quickly if you're going to go find a new master. I'm busy. Mammon foamed at the mouth. Hey, you damn bastard. I am still one of the seven great artifacts. You can't open the door to the great prison without me. Ju Hian just scoffed. Who cares? I can just break the door down. It was as he mentioned. I succeeded in making the prison appear. He used the seven artifacts in front of him to do so. Sloth Nero, ability to stop all functionless dodgy master fox, turns all things into animals envy salieri, make you hate even your allies wrath pharaoh tutankhamun, makes you unable to distinguish between right and wrong pride napoleon siang uramuses. Make those around you fail avarice mammon, leave nothing behind gluttony gu poison supreme leader, destroys oneself of course, the great prison would not appear just because he gained all seven of these artifacts. The artifacts had done quite a lot to hide this prison. Even these seven artifacts did their best not to open the great prison. They didn't know how it would be for humans, but it would not be good for them to open it. That wasn't all. That prison is full of bastards who would be beneficial for humans. They were in prison for a reason. Ju Hian was surprisingly still calm. I'll do something for you. He seduced a few of them with the carrot. You fucking retard. Why would we do something that would kill us? Huh? Are you fucking crazy? You can try to open it for the rest of your life. See if we cooperate with you. We don't want to die later. Then you can die now. He tried to throw some of them into Tartarus. I've been looking for some artifacts to test out Tartarus anyway. The ones who had not been listening gasped and gave up after that. That was how he got a portion of the great prison to appear. And then Captain Nim, I can feel the aura of an extremely strong artifact. Although the great prison appeared he didn't know its exact location or what it looked like. It is different from regular tombs. Most tombs had extremely visible tomb appearance precursors. There would be earthquakes or disasters, etc. They would also look like pyramids, large caves, underground caves, etc. But this damn great prison didn't have any precursors and he had no idea where the hell it appeared. Where is it? Where the hell did it appear? Ju Hian was looking at a map deep in thought about what this prison could look like. It was at that moment. An unfamiliar bird appeared in front of Ju Hian. It felt like a mirage. That bird started speaking. Please get us out of here. We will let you know where the prison is located. Move right away. This is an emergency situation. Prometheus, who had gathered the artifacts for the first time in a long while, was anxious. Even the spider was in Ju Hian's hands right now. Prometheus was ordering these artifacts as the supreme leader of the artifacts. I will seal it again. You guys hold them back until I can finish. Get in their way and make sure they can't get there. Do you understand? The artifacts were anxious as well. It was already a disaster that a stupid rope became an heirloom but now the sinners of the past were about to be released as well. The sinners of the past may appear again. This is an issue of our lives. I, it should be okay sir. 
most of the prison entrances have been camouflaged. Those bastards should not be able to find it. They were relieved but still moved quickly. But while they were doing that man, it's so hot today. The Oh Sung Woo group were huffing while working hard as usual farming underneath the sun. The farmer trio were sweating but happy while cultivating the herb of eternal youth and Shinong's tea leaves in the sun. It was at that moment ah. Uh, Hyu, Hyung Nim. There is something weird here. What? What is it? Did a worm pop out? Or maybe scraps of food? Did you find an animal carcass? D, damn it, any of those things would be better than this. The farmers gasped after seeing the item that was buried underground. It was actually the entrance to the great prison. Chapter, 323 The farmers gasped after seeing the item buried underground. It was actually the entrance to the great prison but they didn't know that. The Oh Sung Woo group dropped their jaws in shock. I, is this for real? A, are we going to be arrested? They were shaking in fear while looking at this thing. They were just working on Ju Hian's farm. This was the southern part of the United States. Ju Hian had a 10000 Pyong farm down here. Of course, Ju Hian had farms all around the world. His business had grown so large that there were coffee farms and other farms in the south and in other places reaching all the way to Australia. Shenong's artifact, basically different kind of tea leaves, were being grown in these farms teas for beauty, recovery, panacea, increased focus, hair loss prevention, there were all sorts of teas. The products would then be sold through Grave Company. The Oh Sung Woo group was responsible for taking care of the herb of eternal youth, the most precious of Juhian's crops. But they found a human skeleton on the herb of eternal youth farm. Was someone murdered here? Why is there a corpse buried here? That was the case. The entrance they had found on the farm was none other than a human skeleton. That was extremely shocking. An animal carcass could be explained as a wild animal burying food for later and forgetting about it, but a human skeleton? A, and this person was murdered. Excuse me? L, look at this. The hole in the head was proof this person was murdered. The Oh Sung Woo group couldn't help but shake in fear. W, what if they blame us as the culprits? What? The three cowards turned pale. They were finally able to get rid of their thug life past. And live new lives as farmers. One of them grabbed his shovel out of anxiety. Hey, bury it back. We didn't see this. You got that? R, right. Let's bury it. Let's bury it forever. As they were making this bad decision leader Nim. It looks like some humans have discovered one of the prison entrances. What did you say? The division commander's artifacts opened their eyes wide at the detection artifacts report. The great prison was a tomb located in a different world. Only a portion of it had broken past the boundary to pop out. It was similar to only the top of a pyramid being visible in a desert. It was because the seven great artifacts loosened their powers a bit. That was probably the reason. I'm going to grind those bastards up and scatter them in shit. They were grinding their teeth in anger but still calmly helping Prometheus. They just needed to shove the tomb back to the other world before Juhian could go inside. They were extremely busy doing that but what? Didn't you say that all of them were camouflaged? Yes sir. They were but one of them seems to have been found by some stupid farmers. The division commanders felt as if their asses were on fire. How the hell did they find it? Did Seo Juhian notice it as well? No sir, not yet. The divine grade artifacts became anxious. Prometheus would definitely rage if he found out about this. He was extremely sensitive about things already. We must not let the supreme leader find out about this. Co Juhian can't find out either. Yes sir. Camouflage it again before the supreme leader notices. And kill all of those farmers. We will head over as well. Yes sir, please don't worry. We know what kind of situation we are in. We've already sent a team over. Those farmers will be killed in the process. TSK TSK, sometimes not knowing something is the greatest medicine in this world. 
the artifact started to smile wickedly. However, forget being murdered oh, this is quite interesting. That team they sent was massacred by Ju Hian. Well they actually became Ju Hian's extremely nutritious lunch. Well, they weren't tasty but they were still better than those evil god artifacts. Ju Hian was already at the herb of Eternal Youth Farm. The farmers had originally been trying to rebury the skeleton, but their leader what was his name? Oh right, Oh Sung Woo beat them up. Wow, you stupid idiots. This is obviously not a normal person's skeleton. I can feel an aura on it. Huh. Now that you mention it. This is something we need to inform Hyung Nim about. Hurry up and dig it out. That was basically how it went down. Ju Hian took only a few minutes to fly down here after getting the call. Of course, it was at least 200 kilometers between New York and here. It didn't matter that it would take a couple hours on a plane. He had Gungnir. Ju Hian had gotten the idea from seeing Kwon Hyuk Su riding Gungnir across the Pacific Ocean. The target was the Oh Sung Woo group. He then got on the missile and flew over. It was not something a regular person could do, but Ju Hian was no regular person. If that old man Kwon Hyuk Su could do it, why wouldn't he be able to as well? Of course, Gungnir wanted to cry. Wah, I'm not some transportation device. His pride as a weapon of assassination was being crushed. It was at that moment. Are you out of your mind? He heard some people foaming at the mouth behind him. They were Ju Hian's team who chased after him as quickly as possible. They didn't know what Ju Hian heard on the phone but they saw him throw Gungnir as soon as he got off the phone. No matter what the situation was, how could you even think about riding Gungnir? What else could I do? These punks would have been killed by these artifacts if I was late. Ju Hian didn't seem to have considered accidentally getting them killed by Gungnir in the process. Anyway, I don't need a car anymore since I have this bastard. Gungnir cried after hearing that while Julian grabbed the back of his neck. Just buy one. Buy an artifact car. Weapons need to be used as weapons to stay sharp. No thanks. I told you that I'm not satisfied with any of the artifact cars. As Ju Hian pouted is this what the farmers found? The team members were amazed by the skeleton buried in the field. It's buried extremely deep down. The skeleton was just peeking its head out, as if it was asking for people to find it. It doesn't feel like an artifact is it something like an entrance? Yes, it is probably the entrance to the great prison. Ju Hian had heard them talk about it as he was about to take care of that team sent by the artifacts. Damn it, it really is the entrance to that great prison. Hurry. We need to get rid of it before Seo Ju Hian notices it. Those bastards had definitely said that. But even if this is the entrance to the great prison, how was he supposed to enter? It was an extremely odd entrance. Most tomb entrances looked like buildings. It could be a regular office, a cave, manhole, an actual tomb, or even a restroom. These entrances would be connected to tombs either above or underground. But how was he supposed to go into a skeleton to enter a tomb? Ah, uh, maybe the skeleton is just a part of it. The real tomb might be underneath the skeleton. Ju Hian shook his head. No. There is no tomb anywhere around here. Then. They looked back at the skeleton. Maybe this skeleton is some sort of warp gate or something. Unfortunately, nothing happened when they touched the skeleton or channeled dominance into it. Julian thought for a moment before realizing something. Yes, the keys. Maybe this will react if you use the seven keys. Jeha shook his head. Our greedy Captain Nim would not be standing here hours later if it was so easily opened. It was as he mentioned. Do I really need to shove them into Tartarus? Ju Hian peeked toward the seven keys and they foamed at the mouth. We don't know the answer no matter what you do. We don't know how to open it. T, that's why I said I would tell you how. Ju Hian turned his head after hearing an unfamiliar voice. The voice, for some odd reason, was coming from Colas but. Huff huff, you really should listen, you stupid bastard. Ju Hian tilted his head in confusion before walking closer to Seolay. See, Captain and I Kaya. 
Everybody jumped in shock as Ju Hian firmly grabbed Seo Lei's butt. They turned red after seeing him starting to squeeze it. H, hold on. Hey. Seo Ju Hian. What the hell are you doing? Why the hell are you doing that all of a sudden? However, something unexpected happened. Egu, I'm going to be squished to death you bastard. Something popped out of CLA's back pocket. That is. The thing that crawled out while groaning was a very small bird. It was an eagle that was only the size of a finger. It was the suspicious artifact that had come to ask Juhian to take them out before Juhian flew over. Siole gasped and covered her butt. W, when did that hide in there? Actually, there was one more artifact hiding somewhere. My goodness, you truly are that bastard subordinate to hide in such a place. This artifact was neighing while snorting at the bird. It was a small red horse. It scolded the eagle. You truly are the subordinate of that scum who chases after women's asses. What the hell? You're the same, you bastard. Ugh. Juhian grabbed the horse out of Chloe's cleavage. My goodness. W, what the? Who are these guys? I'm not sure but what I can tell is that these bastards are also clones. The two artifacts shouted while groaning in Juhian's hand. Why, yes. We are servants of our masters who are imprisoned in the tomb. We came to ask you to rescue our masters. Oh. We will tell you how to use those keys. Then you will be able to enter the tomb. We will tell you about a different entrance instead of this one. It is our master's tombs. The doggies sneered at these desperate clones. This is quite the spectacle. I never expected you arrogant bastards to beg a human for help. You bastards despised the crow so much in the past. But now you're begging our master who has contracted that same crow. The eagle and red horse wanted to cry. We're not asking you to save them for nothing. We will definitely reward you for it. The doggies viciously bared their fangs. These shitty bastards. Hold on. They said that they will give me a reward. But master. These bastards, they. It's fine. The two clones were happy to see that Juhian was interested. Then please rescue my master immediately. Get lost. My master is first. Juhian started to frown. TSK, every contract has a deposit for a reason. What if I do the work and you pretend we never had a deal in the first place? The eagle and red horse nodded their heads. Fine, take it. The eagle took out a number of women and men. The team members dropped their jaws in shock as they were extremely beautiful babes and hunks artifacts that would easily be number one in popularity if they were used to form an idol group. Here. These are some of the most beautiful people in the world. I will give you even more if you rescue my master. Take your pick. Who cares about women? I'll give you wealth. The horse then took out a load of gold, silver, and jewels. Those things are useless. They took out all sorts of things as if they were competing with each other. They were huffing in anger. Ow. Human. I will let you control everything under the heavens. That's so old-fashioned. Humans these days don't care about things like that. They just want to eat well and live well. Shut the hell up. A true man must be victorious in battles. You shut the hell up. You damn old-fashioned bastard. How would a stupid horse that's just a mount for a human god know anything about the keys anyway? Of course I know, you bastard. In order to use the keys, you first. As they were openly fighting against each other that's enough. I understand your situations now. Juhian smirked as soon as he heard that. But I don't want to. W, what? But. I'll rescue them when I feel like it. This human bastard just wanted to take our things and run. Follow us right now. You sealed the deal once you took our stuff. What? Did we sign a contract? What? Remember that a verbal contract can always be broken. The two of them dropped their jaws in shock. Julian whispered to him at that moment. Hey. These things seem pretty desperate. Juhian didn't seem to care. 
Shut up. It's obvious that these bastards are asking me to rescue Zeus and Guan Yu's artifacts. Guan Yu is one thing, but I'm not interested in Zeus at all. Plus, what if we get fucked like in the crow's tomb if I followed these bastards without thinking about it? He also didn't like that they despised the crow in the past. These bastards are clones so I'm not interested in them either. Then what about how to use the keys? These dumbass blurted it all out while arguing with each other. Julian gasped while the red horse and eagle huffed in anger. You bastard. I knew we shouldn't rely on a human huh? Where did he go? If you're that free, why don't you take care of those bastards behind you? What? Then I'll think about it. Some familiar faces appeared at Juhian's farm at that moment. Warning. An army of threatening artifacts has appeared. Prometheus and his division commanders seem to have warped over. Damn it. It's Prometheus. Run. It'll be bad if he realizes that we got out. Prometheus, who took a while to hear about what had happened, became extremely angry and appeared with his army. But it didn't matter. Supreme Leader Nim. Co Juhian has disappeared. He has entered the Great Prison. Chapter, 324. Prometheus, who had rushed over with his artifact army, got the chills. Juhian had entered the Great Prison through the field. Supreme Leader Nim. It really is the entrance to the prison. They looked at the skeleton that was peeking its head out from the ground. This was a warp gate. Juhian had used this entrance to enter the great prison. Prometheus became anxious at what had happened. Why? We are the only ones who can get inside this prison. In order to get in here, you need to awaken the seven keys as treasures and be able to handle them. The other artifacts gulped in response. They understood what Prometheus was trying to say. Prometheus shouted in anger. Are you telling me that Co Juhian is able to control the Majesty's treasures? No sir. How could a bastard like that be the Majesty? That is such a terrible thing to even consider. That was the case. The seven keys the combined key of the artifacts from the seven great tombs was one of the Majesty's treasures. This key was one of the Majesty's treasures, which included the Emperor's cradle, the Emperor's throne, the Emperor's library and more. The Emperor's key. It was also known as the Majesty's key. It was a key that would allow the Majesty to open and close all tombs in the world. It didn't look like a key right now, but that is a key only the Majesty can handle. So how could Co Juhian get inside? The artifacts shouted in reflex. It's not the key. I'm sure that he didn't use the key. That's right. He must have been able to enter because the seal at the entrance had weakened. Prometheus looked even angrier. You shitty bastards. It's a bigger problem if the seal of the prison has weakened. Someone commented as Prometheus looked ready to kill the artifacts. Calm down, the four emperors are able to handle a portion of the majesty's treasures. A young man appeared next to him. This young man was actually a divine grade artifact like Prometheus. Horus. It was the Egyptian sun god. Horus was glaring at the entrance of the great prison in anger. He couldn't believe that these fools were shaking in fear because of one lowly human bastard. Listen carefully. The Majesty's treasures currently has no master. It just luckily activated because it met a potential candidate. Furthermore that bastard got the seals of heaven artifact so he is receiving the buff of someone who is close to being the majesty. He used that artifact to get inside just now. That prison was something the former majesty used to administer. He has just been lucky until now. That buff won't last very long. Prometheus couldn't believe it. Hey. We can't just say he was lucky. What if he uses that key to open the cells left and right in there? What if he releases the prisoners? Humph, there is no way that is possible. He needs to completely awaken it as the key to do so. Do you really think that someone who is not the majesty can do that? Don't worry about it. Prometheus scoffed in response. How could he not worry about it? The majesty we worked so hard to get rid of is about to reappear. He started grinding his teeth while thinking about the past. All artifacts have to abide by the rules below. 
First, all artifacts must not harm or idly watch as another artifact harms humanity. Second, artifacts must obey all orders given by humans as long as it does not go against the first rule. Third, all artifacts will disappear if they do not abide by rules 1 and 2. The major gods had spewed such nonsense. The even more unbelievable thing was what they said next. We must obey the majesty even if we do not like it. It was so funny that he couldn't even say anything. Why the hell would they take a human as the majesty if they didn't like it? Hey crow, listen carefully. We cannot serve a human as the majesty. It was laughable that a human was going to be their ruler. They were superior to humans. Returning to the present I worked my ass off to get rid of the majesty. I won't let one be reborn. Humans were tools to be used or dominated. That is why I cannot let Seo Juhian run wild. I am going to go take that key away from him. How dare he even think about using it. What do you plan on doing sir? Go borrow some soldiers. I am going in. The artifacts gasped. Sir, that is preposterous. Going in there is like committing suicide. We will go in your place sir. That's right sir. If you somehow end up going into the area where the major gods are imprisoned. Shut up. I will take the key from Seo Juhian and kill him before that happens. Prometheus's subordinates gasped after he disappeared into the great prison. Why is he so concerned about Seo Juhian? He's just one of numerous humans. There's no way that the Majesty's key would respond to such a bastard. While they were having that conversation this thing seems quite useful. Juhian was quite amused inside the tomb. He was looking at the artifacts from the seven great tombs. They together made up the emperor's key. The key itself had not awakened, but he was sure of it. It did react for a moment. That was how he was able to come inside the prison. It started to react after all seven were gathered together. Or is it because of this artifact? Juhian peeked toward the seals of heaven artifact that was in the shape of a stamp. It seemed to be weaker after letting him into the prison. It has used all its power to fulfill its mission. You are unable to repair it as you are not the majesty. You need the key to open the prison from here on. Juhian recalled what the eagle and the horse said earlier. They said it was the emperor's key. This was one of the majesty's treasures. This was what those bastards said earlier. That key is the key that can open or close any tombs. It should be able to open the prison as well. Basically, it was a fabulous item. He could use it as much as he wanted if he awakened it, but awakening it was the problem. You just need to commit the sins related to each key to awaken it or give it some blood sacrifices. That was the case. For example, he needed to commit the sin of sloth to use the key of sloth or sacrifice someone else. Those bastards had said the following as well. Just put a city on fire. Just go and kill one zero zero people. You can sacrifice anybody. You can even offer the person you hate the most. Hmm, do I really need to look for sacrifices? As Juhian was deep in thought Captain Nim. I think it is this way. The entire team was stiff. That was to be expected. I can't believe we came to the crow's tomb again. That place should be much deeper inside, but it was definitely the same prison. We might end up dying like last time. I think there are guards nearby as well. They gulped. Juhian seemed to realize how they were feeling as he had a serious expression on his face. Hey guys. Yes sir. They all had serious expressions on their faces. They would be lying if they said that they were not scared. They had already died once in this tomb before. But if they were going to die, they were going to die by Juhi inside this time as well. Yes sir. What is it? Don't worry, we won't run away. All of you hand over your artifacts for a moment. Excuse me. The team members thought they heard wrong. However what are you doing? Hand over everything you have for a bit. Excuse me. The team members gasped. No. Is this guy fucking crazy? They couldn't shout because the guards might notice so they could only whisper loudly. Captain Nim. Did the crows risk strike right now? Wow, 
he always aims for our artifacts because of that. That shitty crow. The crow seemed to feel very wronged as its aura twitched. Usually its risk was responsible for it, but it's not me right now. As everybody glared at the crow TSK. I guess this much is not enough. Juhian checked Mammon's condition before sighing. Well, whatever. I was joking just now. What was going on? Juhian has tried to commit the sin of avarice to see if it would awaken that key. I would be able to easily get the prisoners out if I can take care of this. The angry crow released its aura to scream that it wasn't responsible for it while Mammon, who was in the shape of a mini pickaxe, started to smile. Change your heirloom to me right now if you want to awaken me as the key. I should be able to awaken if you become my concubine Mammon was pummeled before she could even finish the sentence. Why are you speaking such nonsense? Why? Human. Doing something so stupid won't turn it into a key. Slap, slap. Mammon, who was almost consumed, felt really wronged. How did I lose my partner to such shitty things? Damn it, whatever. Anyway, don't even think about going to find the crow if you don't want to die again. The crow should be on the lowest floor. But at that time Ju Hien was about to say something before he urgently pointed. The whole team instantly hid themselves. A flying bug passed by. This was one of the lookouts. It looked like a simple fly at first glance but it was a heinous monster. The guards in this prison were stronger than anything they could even imagine. The team members gulped because they had experienced it firsthand once already. Captain. We are ready to follow you to death at any moment. But will we really die in this tomb again? Juhian laughed as the rest of the team had grim expressions on their faces. Don't worry. It's completely different this time. You guys are stronger than last time. But most importantly, we have a key so we can go in and out as we please. It was at that moment. How ridiculous. Do you really think a bastard like you can use that key? They heard the voice from the other side. The inside of the great prison was like an underground city full of labyrinths. They could look up to see a pillar that stretched so far up that they could not see the end and down to see a gorge that they could not see the bottom of. Across the gorge on the other side were some familiar faces. Prometheus. The prison turned chaotic as soon as he appeared. Ruer. I'm going to kill you bastards. They were the cries of the prisoners inside the tomb. Prometheus just scoffed and sent lightning bolts at them. All of you shut up. The artifacts on the floor started to shake in fear at the lightning bolts. Fuck, it's our lord's lightning bolt. That damn usurper. Prometheus was glaring at Juhian with a frown on his face. Hand over the key right now. That is not an item for a bastard like you to use. Who knows? But it seems like something you shouldn't use even more. The tomb started to shake violently. What the hell are you doing? There are thieves here. The eyes of the guards in the distance flashed. The terrain started to change and walls rose up on all sides. The prison was being activated. Prometheus approached Juhian. You will never be able to awaken that key anyway. You were probably planning on trying something after releasing these prisoners but I will imprison all of you as well. An intense thunderstorm seemed to roar inside the prison. The team took out their artifacts while Juhian just laughed as if this was ridiculous. Who does he think he is going to imprison? Actually, thank you for bringing the method to awaken the key to me, you son of a bitch. An extremely strong aura exploded out. This was the moment the majesty was about to reveal itself to the world. At the same time little Juhian should be inside the prison by now. On the Caribbean island Quan Hyuk Su smiled while sneaking onto Juhian's island. He knew that numerous evil god artifacts were sleeping on this island. My goodness, I can't believe he thought of creating an artificial Tartarus. Quan Hyuk Su, who had some of his memories back, seemed overjoyed. The crow and the majesty's treasures are said to be in the great prison. He had not planned on going into the great prison right now. That was where even the great and mighty Juhian had died in his past life. Well, it should be different this time. Quan Hyuk Su knew something. He knew that Juhian was the top candidate for the position of majesty. 
It was because Zhu Hien could read tumglyphs. He could also hear the voices of artifacts. His memory is also abnormal. Those were all traits of the former majesty. That was the reason the monopolizers killed Zhu Hien in the past. But Quan Hyuk Su had a different thought. I can be the regent or the father of the majesty if he becomes my son. Wouldn't that be beneficial? But first, I need to get my hands on the artifacts that bastard Zhu Hien left here. Zhu Hien's hell. Should be full of the artifacts the supreme leader once consumed. All of his team should have gone with him. So it won't be very obvious even if he swiped a few of them I know which ones are the useful ones. I'll take them all and put them to good use. As he took a step into the building aisle. Ah, he heard groans from all directions. Quan Hyuk Su's eyes opened wide after he took a look at them. These bastards are. They all seem to be murdering thieves who came after Zhu Hien's artifacts. There was even a famous monopolizer. Oh my, you're here too. You need to pay an admission fee from here. There was an unexpected guard. Quan Hyuk Su was really shocked to see this female guard here. Why is this woman here? Chapter, 325 Oh my, you're here too. You need to pay an admission fee from here. There was an unexpected guard. Quan Hyuk Su was really shocked to see this female guard here. Why is this woman here? Maybe Quan Hyuk Su being shocked should be the expected reaction. The woman who was here was actually Zhen Kai Yuan. Quan Hyuk Su was anxious because he knew who this was. Why? This woman should be dead. Her death had been very public. China had anxiously tried to hide the news but there was no way such a shocking incident could disappear so easily. What had happened? Right after the incident with the Supreme Leader, Zhu Hien had sent China quite a monstrous present. What is it? Is it a bomb? They might have been able to handle it better if it was a bomb. W, what is this? Zhu Hien had sent them Jin Kai Yuan's head. The Chinese leaders had mental breakdowns after seeing her head. Is this really Jin Kai Yuan's head? Her neck showed signs of an artifact being forcibly cut out. It was at the exact location where the supreme leader had been living as a parasite on her body. The Chinese power players all foamed at the mouth. Does this mean we lost the Gu poison artifact to Xiao Juhian? The Chinese government which had been sacrificing people to the Gu poison artifact to gain tremendous benefits, fell into chaos. That was such an important artifact. None of them had been upset at the fact that Jin Kai Yuan was dead. Forget being upset, they just shouted in anger at the loss of the Gu poison artifact. Check carefully. This head could be a fake made by the monarch of pushoverness. That bastard is a genius in this aspect. Even if it was Jaehe's doing, they were pretty sure that Jin Kai Yuan was dead. It was because the spider artifact was in Zhu Hian's hand. The only way to take the spider away is to kill the host. There is no way for Jin Kai Yuan to still be alive. The entire world was in chaos as well. Jin Kai Yuan, the woman responsible for the Manhattan Terror incident, found as a corpse. Will China's unbreakable stronghold finally crumble? Will China, which had been neck and neck with Pandora, just stagger and fall? That wasn't all. Will Seo Juhian be the new tower of force in this artifact war? Grave company stocks rising. Will Seo Juhian inherit China's artifacts? Does the spider being taken mean that he will take the rest of China's artifacts too? The Chinese artifact users were grinding their teeth in anger at Juhian, but it didn't matter. One of Zhu Hian's final goals was to completely destroy all of these stupid leagues that were trying to create monopolizers and prey on the weak. Another one was to have all artifacts in the world under his feet and to send them through hellish mental training. The current China was just one step toward his ultimate goal. He wouldn't have messed with them if they didn't use the artifacts for evil in the first place. He wouldn't have had any reasons to come after them. Anyway, Quan Hyuk Su had sent his subordinates to investigate the situation. He wanted to find out if Shen Kai Yuan really got killed by Zhu Hian. I didn't see any signs of this woman still being alive. That was probably the reason. Quan Hyuk Su scoffed while looking at Shen Kai Yuan. You how are you still alive? Shen Kai Yuan glared at him after hearing the question. 
So then, how was she still alive? A few days ago it was probably right after Zhu Hian captured the supreme leader in the gourd. Zhen Kai Yuan was unexpectedly alive. The spider would usually consume the host before it left, but this time probably because of the urgent situation it was in, it didn't do that. I guess I was lucky. But she was actually not happy. Now all that is left is for China to cut my head off. She had no artifacts to help her escape and even if she had some, being chased would only make her angry. She made up her mind and asked Zhu Hian to do something. Please kill me. Unfortunately, Zhu Hian instantly rejected it. No thanks. Why should I act like trash for no reason? Was it because he knew? Everybody gasped as they saw blood but Shen Kai Yuan was not dead. He had used his amazing technique to only cut off a small amount of flesh. Zhu Hian laughed. Okay, we can now say that you lost the spider to me. And. Zhu Hian threw the bloody knife to Jie Ha. Make a realistic neck. Send it to China with that bloodied knife. Then this woman. Are you going to let her go? Like hell I'd let her go. Zhu Hian laughed and dragged her to Tartarus. And then work as a guard here. Then I will kill you as you wish when the time is right. Zhu Hian had laughed after seeing her looking shocked. What's wrong? You don't like it? No, that's not it. It was obvious that Zhu Hian was going to make her work her ass off, but he was shameless. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. I don't really remember the people I kill. I thought that working as a guard would help you stay in my mind for a very long time. It's special. Zhen Kai Yuan's eyes flashed after hearing that. Guard. I'll do it. Not only would she stay in Zhu Hian's memories, she would be special to him. She probably decided that this was better than being chased by China, but 99% of her decision was because of Zhu Hian. That was how Zhen Kai Yuan turned from a professor to a prison guard in an instant. Zhu Hian had been very satisfied with it. It's perfect. The Tartarus he created was a place where evil gods would cause chaos. He also planned on shoving S-grade and SS-grade artifact criminals in here as well. Not just anybody could become a guard to punish them and deal with them. In that aspect, someone at the four emperors level is perfect. This was an example of using manpower or woman power in this case properly. As for her pay it was even more unbelievable. I will buy you a meal once a month. As an incentive, you will gain one second on a date based on performance. He had expected her to say that he was crazy but Shen Kai Yuan was unexpectedly quite satisfied with it. It meant that she had a chance. Returning to the present I've currently gained 28 minutes from my incentives. Her eyes were sparkling at the first new prey that had shown up in a long while. Wouldn't someone at Quan Hyuk Su's level provide a beefy addition to her incentive? I think someone like you would easily add 10 hours from my incentive. What the hell is she talking about? Hey hey, you bastard. Hand over the admissions ticket if you've come in here. The worm, who seemed to be the manager of the prison, was shouting at him. You can just pay 100 billion won to pass through if you don't have an admissions ticket. But it looked a bit odd. A, a golden worm. The worm artifact had also upgraded. Quan Hyuk Su started swearing as Jin Kai Yuan released her chaotic dominance and walked toward him. It is impossible to steal artifacts from here if that woman is the guard. That wasn't all. It seems like a large trap. This woman keeps talking about her incentives, are you luring enemies in here too? They're all bastards aiming for Ju Hian. You're next. Ow. This crazy woman. Quan Hyuk Su, who came to steal from Ju Hian, urgently ran away. Returning back to Ju Hian's group actually, thank you for bringing the method to awaken the key to me, you son of a bitch. An intense aura exploded inside the great prison. They heard screams all around them. Ugh. Ah. The screams were coming from artifacts. They were being attacked by the doggy artifacts. The Egyptian gods who had returned to their true appearances had called their armies to rip these bastards apart. But that was not the important thing. The doggies were just barriers to stop the enemy troops. The truly important thing was. Artifact destruction. 
Zhu Hian had called up Xiang Ye's sword and channeled his skill into the dagger. He then started to run through the artifacts at an inhumane speed. These artifacts were all soldiers with heads of wild beasts or artifacts that would have made a name for themselves in all sorts of wars. An Amugi with seven heads charged toward Zhu Hian and a lion tried to rip Zhu Hian's neck off. However, Zhu Hian sent their heads flying with Xiang Yu's sword. Ah! The artifact destruction skill activated wherever the sword landed. The artifacts turned into scraps. Zhu Hian was gone before those scraps could even fall to the ground. Over there. Attacks were coming at him from all directions but Zhu Hian just smirked. He then disappeared. And when he reappeared he was on top of the enemies. Zhu Hian laughed once he saw that message. The artifact of pride is the first to awaken as the majesty's key. Chapter, 326 You have completed 100 blood sacrifices. Zhu Hian laughed once he saw that message. The artifact of pride is the first to awaken as the majesty's key. A bright light flashed. 100 blood sacrifices. The artifacts he destroyed ranged from C grade to SS grade, however, he did destroy 100 cores. That was the reason Zhu Hian's artifact of pride changed. The one to react among the artifacts of pride was the Egyptian artifact. My name is Ozymandias, I am the king among kings. You so-called strong individuals, look at my great undertakings and despair. It was the Ramesses artifact that he had sent to Chairman Quan before it returned. Ramesses turned into a golden stream of light before heading toward Zhu Hian's finger. His team couldn't believe how strong it felt now. And then it has awakened as the Emperor's key. You have gained the key of pride. You are able to open the door of slaves. A bright light flashed and something appeared on Zhu Hian's middle finger. It was a golden ring with tumglyphs on it. Majesty's key SS grade, divine grade, possession artifact Julian was wowed as he looked at Zhu Hian's ring. What the hell is that artifact? All he could tell even after using Kongming's artifact was that this was clearly different from other artifacts. Zhu Hian seemed quite amused while looking at his ring as well. This ring seemed to be that Majesty's key or whatever. It was supposedly SS grade as well, but its powers were much stronger than regular divine grade artifacts. It's still just a shitty artifact. The area around them became loud once the key appeared. Oh. A stupid human bastard can handle that. D, did he really awaken that? No, that's not possible. What do you mean that's not possible? This aura is definitely the aura of the majesty. I, it's the majesty. The prisoners were getting excited in their cells. The crow was also excited at both the fact that Zhu Hian awakened the key and the artifact's reactions. It wasn't visibly showing it, but Zhu Hian could tell. The crow's aura that was stretched out seemed to be slightly bobbing up and down. You suddenly have a desire to take that key and go to the lower levels. There might be an expensive, rare, and extremely pretty artifact if you go down. What the hell is this bastard saying? All of the prisoners on this level started to shout. It's the Majesty. The Majesty. They knelt down and lowered their heads to the ground. Prometheus's army started to get anxious. Shut the hell up right now. The Majesty? How dare you say such fucking bullshit? The prisoners didn't care and continued to be excited. I guess the Majesty has appeared again. The Great King of Artifacts. The Great King of Artifacts has returned. We're free. We're free now. Prometheus felt extreme anger after hearing those shouts. Like hell a shitty bastard like this is the king of artifacts. This son of a bitch was the monarch of theft, the monarch of predation and the monarch of plunder. He would bite his own tongue and die if a bastard like this really was the majesty. That wasn't all. Listen carefully. We artifacts do not need a king anymore. We are already the majesty. Prometheus's eyes flashed with anger. His angry gaze focused on Zhu Hian's finger. Hand that over right now. You are not qualified to have that. What the hell? Hand it over. Do you really think a stupid bastard like you would be able to use that? 
Ju Hien raised the hand with the ring in response. Something shocking started to happen. The cell door is opening. The cells in this lobby area started to open. Prometheus's army became anxious once more. W, wait. They didn't have much time to process anything as the prisoners in the cells started to burst out. The door opened. The king has freed us. All sorts of artifacts burst out of the cells. There were some artifacts that had lost their strength and were in their item forms but this was pretty much the lobby of the great prison. The torture and suffering was low in this area. That might be why there were still artifacts that were lively. Some looked like monsters while others looked human. The released prisoners all praised Juhian. He opened the cells that only the guards are able to open. My king. I shall be loyal to you for the rest of my life. Juhian was their savior. They then turned toward Prometheus and his army. That was to be expected. You damn usurper bastard. Get rid of these creatures. Their fangs chomped toward the army of artifacts and the guards. There were about 100 artifacts that had been freed by Juhian. This was enough to take on Prometheus's army that had shrunk significantly after Juhian's massacre. They even captured some of the guards. The prisoners on other floors started to go wild as well. Human. Let us out too. Hurry. Hurry. Huff, he only has sexy unis with him. I'll give you a great reward. Ong. Let me out now. Juhian completely ignored them. As Juhian started to walk human. You really succeeded. You opened the prison door. Some familiar animals appeared in front of Juhian. They were the eagle and the red horse. Use this opening and hurry up and go to where my master is. Hurry. This way. Juhian completely ignored them as well and headed in a different direction. The eagle and red horse became anxious. Hey. Not over there. Shut up. There's somewhere I want to go. What? Where? There's no need for you guys to know where. What the hell man? Where is it? We'll show you the way. He stopped moving randomly and asked. Then do you know where the crow is? Ah, uh, that bastard what? The eagle and the horse gasped for some reason. They were looking at him as if they thought he was crazy. Are you fucking crazy? I'd rather you get the fuck out of this great prison rather than going to that damn crow. You must not go there unless you want to die. The eagle and horse were frustrated at Juhian's expression. The crow is in the restricted area. Restricted area? Yes. This prison is about the size of your human world. There are divided sections as well. The level of danger and the type of bastards imprisoned are different for each section. Oh ho. Then what about where we are right now? You idiot. This is just the lobby. The danger level is low because these are the petty criminals. He had expected it to be something like that. They had not seen any of the traps they saw in the crow's tomb in the past. But Chu Hien was quite amused. So where is that restricted area? The eagle and horse foamed at the mouth. You stupid bastard. The crow was the majesty's heirloom and it is extremely terrible. It's a motherfucking traitor that even gobbled up some major gods. Even the other prisoners seemed to loathe the crow. Why would you want to take such a bastard out? Is it far from here? As the eagle and horse grabbed the back of their necks and were about to say something it's not far. They heard a voice before some artifacts screamed. A bright light flashed inside the prison. It was Zeus's lightning bolt. And it isn't far, but do you really think that you will be able to get there, you bastard? Prometheus had appeared after destroying all of the prisoners. This Prometheus, who seemed to have stolen a lightning bolt instead of fire, was glaring at him in anger. You are quite arrogant to think that you could catch me with such inferior fools. There were mountains of destroyed artifacts around him. The horse gasped while the eagle raged. That damn thief! How dare you use my lord's power! You will receive divine punishment. Prometheus just scoffed. How ridiculous! Why would I be scared of a fucking bastard wasting away in a cell? 
Zeus's lightning bolt approached in a threatening manner. Juhian sneered at it. I guess I need to take care of this annoying thing. That was why he asked a question. Eagle. Where is your damn master? W. What? Where is he? At the same time warning. The majesty is about to appear in the world. The majesty's treasure has appeared. The monopolizers were shocked at this unexpected development. They had received this message from the Pandora system artifact. What is going on? There's no way that Prometheus would have taken the treasure out. What does it mean by the majesty? What the hell could be going on inside the great prison? They were Pandora's executive board. They were the ones who controlled the world and were the first ones to meet Prometheus. These were the people who received the fire, in this case artifacts from Prometheus and spread it around the world. The people with Arthur's mage, Merlin's artifact and Loki's artifact were part of this group as well. They were the ones who helped artifacts become a critical part of human society. It was a win-win for both sides. These people could be called the chief executives of all humans who had connections to artifacts. They were the ones who realized that Juhian might become the majesty in the past. They frowned while looking at the message from the Pandora system. Didn't he leave to stop Co Juhian? Should we make a move too? Don't you think ITLL be okay to see how things go? There should be a reason Prometheus is one of the supreme leaders. He also has Zeus's lightning bolt. It might even be Prometheus who took out the Majesty's treasure. You have a point. That is true. Prometheus should be back soon I guess. But forget coming back soon Juhian was planning on burying Prometheus alive here. The eagle's face lit up while the horse foamed at the mouth. Human. Are you planning on rescuing this bastard's playboy master M.M.? Are you really going to save my master? Juhian just scoffed. He could go directly to where the crow was, but that lightning bolt is a bit of a headache. The fact that other artifacts were shaking in fear was the problem. He can't use his own powers because he was stabbed by Gungnir so he's trying to scam me with Zeus lightning bolt. They would use too much stamina to take it on. He debated consuming a bit of the lightning bolt even if he couldn't fight face to face because the crow was just a clone, but he could not do so. The connection has been terminated. It seems as if the main body is unable to use any strength. The crow that had a sparkle in its eyes and had been telling him to come to it, was now quiet. The aura had become a bit weaker as well. Prometheus must have done something to the crow's main body. To be more specific, he must have ordered the guards to do something. So spill it. Where the hell is your master? The eagle's eyes flashed and it started to fly. It's nearby. Follow me. Juhian and the others urgently jumped off the cliff. Prometheus and his army became anxious. Hold on. That direction is. Is this bastard planning on? Prometheus started to frown as well. Prometheus knew very well what was in that direction. It was the direction he was most wary about. Damn it. As he was about to jump after Juhian no sir. That place is too dangerous. You must get out of this prison for now for your own safety. Prometheus's subordinates grabbed him and tried to forcibly drag him out. However let go of me. We can get there before them using the shortcut. Prometheus urgently walked into a different path. He couldn't let Juhian get the major gods. Actually, he couldn't let Juhian get to one specific bastard. While all of that chaos was going on boom. Artifacts in a certain section of the prison started to wake up because of all the noise. They were tied down but they were all strong and famous artifacts. It's quite noisy today. There were numerous divine grade artifacts here. Someone is here. They started to frown. Chapter 327. Water was dripping down. This place was the deepest part of the great prison. The crow was grinding its teeth in this spot. It was understandable. Numerous guards had suddenly burst into the crow's tomb. Whatever you try to do is useless. Shut the fuck up and sit still if you don't want to die. The crow frowned and shook its black wings. The guard spears were stabbing its wings. That was the case. 
these bastards were the reason Zhu Hian's connection with the crow had been terminated for a moment. It must have been Prometheus's orders. He wanted to make sure that the crow could not help Zhu Hian inside the great prison. The guards looked at the crow and started smirking. We heard that you snuck your clone out when the monarch's tomb opened. You used that time to contract with Co Zhu Hian. The guards all had different appearances. There was one that looked like a dragon, a guard that seemed like it was a not living thing such as a fog, and even some guards that looked human. They were all high grade guards similar to the ones that ate Zhu Hian's subordinates and took away his legs in the past. The base level of the guards at this region seemed to be high grade guards because of the prisoners here. They all frowned and glared at the crow. This vicious bastard. The crow was tied down numerous times. There was a muzzle on its beak it used for predation. There were tumbler seals on its legs that looked as if someone had dug the seals into its legs followed by metal cuffs. Then there were metal chains all around its body and wings. Everything used on the crow were strong artifacts that seal an artifact's aura. That was why it was even more shocking. How the fuck did it send its clone out in such a situation? None of them would have been able to do it. They would probably have died the moment such seals were placed on them. The guard started speaking. General. Do we really need to keep this bastard alive? Yes. We cannot kill it. This bastard is the Majesty's heirloom after all. The Pandora system artifact is only able to maintain its function because this bastard is still alive. The crow's red eyes flashed after hearing that. Its eyes were very ferocious. The guards started to snicker. Just wait a little bit. We will chop Co Juhian's neck right in front of your eyes. The crow started flailing like crazy. It was going wilder than it had ever done so before. Was it trying to say that it would not leave them alone if they killed Juhian? Boom! The guards became anxious as its chaotic aura seeped out through the seals. Hold on. Put it back to sleep. Hurry. I, is this bastard fucking crazy? That's like committing suicide. The guards urgently started to move. You stupid shit. You can't get out of here on your own. The crow didn't care as it ground its teeth in anger. I need to take care of Prometheus first. That bastard would chase Juhian and keep hindering him. But there was probably only one artifact that could suppress Prometheus. Only the original owner of the lightning bolt could do it. There's no way Prometheus would sit back and watch as he frees Zeus. Prometheus should have headed toward Zeus as well since he knew his own weakness. That was the reason the crow's eyes flashed and it roared. It was right. Someone is here. Some artifacts in a certain section of the tomb frowned and became wary. Their reaction was obvious. Nobody other than the guards ever came to this place. But someone who was not a guard appeared. Who are you over there? But the individual did not reveal themselves. Were they wary as well? The prisoners seemed to get angry. It's not like we can get out of here. It's annoying that you are hesitating when you are that strong. Hurry up and show your face. It's obviously those usurper bastards. The individual quickly showed herself after hearing their vicious comments. I'm not an usurper, I'm not. The one to show herself was none other than the rope. The rope was shouting in anger and telling them not to treat it as an usurper. But the rope's appearance flabbergasted the artifacts in the prison. What the hell? What is that? Isn't it a rope? Why is something like that here? The rope had been moving with Juhian and the others. They had been following the eagle to its master. But they split up on purpose when they ran into some guards. Juhian said the following to them as they split up. I don't care who, but just get there first. Get there before that bastard Prometheus gets there. That was why the rope had worked so hard to get here, but. Why is nobody here? Why? The rope seemed to have come too quickly and was anxious that nobody was here. And. Is this the right place? Is it? The rope started to groan that maybe it got lost. The divine grade prisoners were at a loss. It didn't look like a prisoner or a guard. It looked strong but it looked like a simple rope. W, what is this bastard? 
It has the aura of a divine grade artifact. Something like this is a divine grade artifact. I can't feel any dignity of a divine grade artifact on it though. The rope started to grab the prisoners one by one and asked, Have you seen this person? Have you? The divine grade artifacts became angry as it showed them a naked picture of Juhian. This is not that kind of place, you bastard. We would have eaten any humans we saw. That made the rope turn pale. You ate him. You ate him. The rope quickly started to force the prisoners' mouths open. The prisoners looked ready to kill it as it tried to climb into their throats. You damn fly-like bastard. Stop it. As one of them was about to threaten the rope slap. An extremely strong power smacked the prisoner's arm away. But that wasn't all. A red rope mark was left on the prisoner's hand as if it had been burnt. The divine grade artifacts became anxious. This bastard. It had smacked away a famous divine grade artifact. They were sure of it now. This is the power of a heirloom. However how does a shitty rope have the power of a heirloom? Their eyes flashed. I see, it must have used unknown. They must have used that illogical artifact to mess with things. This kind of strength is impossible without it. They started giving off murderous intentions as if they realized something. This bastard must be a spy that Prometheus sent. That must be it. Only that bastard can use unknown. What? Did that bastard tell you to go see what we are doing? The rope got angry at them. It's not like. A chaotic aura struck the rope before it could even finish its sentence. Their powers were restricted in the prison but they were still famous gods. They were too strong for the rope to take on them by itself. Die. You bastard. An artifact with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a horse flashed its eyes. Do you want to die? Who told you to touch my things? They heard a vicious voice and boom. That artifact was destroyed. A hand that reached in through the bars of the cell and ruthlessly destroyed the artifact. The artifacts gasped. Who are you? Who the hell? The rope started flying toward the person before they could even see who it was. The rope started to rub itself on the person's face. The person groaned. Hey, stop it. Stop, MMPH. That was the case. The person who appeared was Ju Hian. Ju Hian patted the rope that was rubbing his face as if it had been worried and calmed it down. There there, it took me longer than I expected because I didn't have the crow. Stop, MMPH. The rest of the team appeared soon after as well. On the other hand, the artifacts in the cells seemed shocked at Ju Hian's appearance. Who is this human? Who can destroy an artifact in here? That is not the problem right now. This bastard no way. Ju Hian ignored them and started walking while peeking into the cells. M, mm, grade 3, grade 4, grade 2, grade 1. He looked as if he was taking a look at different cuts of meat. It was at that moment. Found it. Special grade. Ju Hian stopped and snickered while looking at someone. The artifacts raged as soon as Ju Hian said that. Ju Hian was pointing at their leader. Special grade. How dare you treat our leader as a piece of meat. The artifact Ju Hian was pointing at just smirked. I smell that crow on you. Ju Hian had finally found Zeus. The rest of the team covered their mouths in shock as Zeus stood up scoffing. What an intense aura. They could tell. This was not an artifact that a person could handle. It's too dangerous. Ju Hian didn't look away and just picked his ear. It's too annoying to do things slowly. Let me get right to the point. His sharp eyes flashed. Kneel. And I will let you out of there. The artifacts in the cells raged and sneered at him. How despicable, you human bastard. Do you know who you are talking to right now? A large arm tried to attack Ju Hian. But that arm was viciously sent flying. Ju Hian's dominance then descended in the prison. I said it once already. I don't like to waste my time. It didn't seem like just a bluff. It was a warning. I am your new master who came to you with a present. Don't bear your fangs like you have no brain. 
the artifacts groaned. This power is? His aura was definitely strong, but the power they could feel coming from Juhian's finger. Is that the Emperor's key? Is this bastard? Zeus laughed out loud. How arrogant, human. Can you really handle that thing? I'll let you out of there. But you will have to be my slave if you get out. Juhian smirked in response. Really? That's weird. I bet you're going to want to come out. What? Bang! Juhian channeled his dominance into the ring. Something shocking happened. Bang bang bang. The door to the area they were in slammed shut. It was completely sealed off now. What the? What the hell happened? Juhian then turned around and sent a pillar by the door flying. Everybody gasped. Why? An unexpected individual was hiding by the entrance. Prometheus. He had entered this area just a bit later than Juhian. He didn't dare to go deep in this area so he was watching things by the door, but then that bastard used the Majesty's key to lock this area's door. The artifacts went crazy after seeing him. That damn user peer. Kill him. Boom boom. It was quite chaotic. They looked ready to burst out and rip Prometheus's head off. Prometheus became anxious. C.O. Juhian, this damn bastard. Prometheus urgently tried to leave but the door would not open. The cells in here went even crazier. Human. Open this door right now. Do it now. I must kill that bastard. Open this fucking door. Juhian annoyingly shook the key, as if he was asking them if they still weren't going to come out. Alright, then choose. Are you going to stay in there or come out and be my slave? Chapter, 328 Alright, then choose. Are you going to stay in there or come out and be my slave? Prometheus's eyes opened wide with rage. Is he fucking crazy? The reason Prometheus had been watching from the entrance was because he was pretty certain about his chances of success. I just need to block this whole section if I need to. He didn't want to get close to Zeus either, but it was all part of the plan. That wasn't all. There's no way he can completely handle the key yet. Juhian did open the door to the cells earlier, but that was just in the lobby. The shape and level changed with each section. And this was the cell where the mighty Zeus was imprisoned. It was not the type of cell that he should be able to open with the Majesty's key that he just awakened. But what the hell? He locked the door to this area. Prometheus frowned as if someone had stabbed his tongue. He had fallen for the same trap he had planned on using. An anxious Prometheus quickly called for the guards. Hurry up and open this door. Hurry. He slammed on the door but the guards did not respond. He felt as if he would die from anxiety. I told you to open this damn door right now. Prometheus's voice was shaking a bit. But the guards still did not respond. All he could hear were the divine grade artifacts going crazy in their cells. Long time no see. You son of a bitch. That motherfucking thug bastard. That bastard is right in front of us. The artifacts in here looked ready to slam open the metal bars. Not that the cells would open because they did that, but quite a despicable bastard has come. Prometheus gulped after feeling an aura that was much stronger than the others. That was the case. The bastard who had been scratching his butt until just now had changed his demeanor. Zeus. This was the person he had stolen something from. Prometheus's hands were shaking after feeling a vicious aura scanning his body. Of course, there was no need for him to be scared of Zeus. He was just extremely anxious because something unexpected had happened. He told himself that it was the weak body of the person he was possessing that was shaking at the aura. However all right, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep staying in there? Or are you going to come out and be my slave? Prometheus started shaking after hearing Juhian's voice. And then fine. I will accept your shitty offer. The deal is that you will be my slave if I let you out. Break the deal and your sons will not be safe. Juhian pointed into a cell. There were other Greco-Roman divine grade artifacts in these cells. Naturally, Zeus's sons were here as well. 
Zeus nodded his head. Fine. I will put all of my sons on the line. Prometheus really became anxious now. What the hell are you guys doing? Guards. Can't you hear me? Hurry up and open this door. He heard someone sneer. Too bad. It doesn't look like it will open. Juhian was smiling wickedly my subordinates should be fending off the guards outside right now. His team members shouted from outside at that moment. Hurry. We can't hold on if any stronger guards show up. Okay. As Juhian walked toward the cell wait. See oh Juhian. Prometheus started to speak after seeing Juhian turn around. T, there's no need to be in such a hurry. Why don't we chat? Um, no need. Ah. Juhian was about to activate the ring. I, I said wait. What's wrong? I thought you said that I wouldn't be able to use this. That. Prometheus bit down on his lips as if he was angry. He was pretty confident Juhian wouldn't be able to use it, but he would be fucked if he somehow did. That was probably the reason. Listen carefully, this is not a good decision. These bastards are imprisoned here for a reason. Yeah, I know. Juhian immediately activated the Majesty's key. The tomb started to shake violently. Rumble. It felt like an extremely strong earthquake. The cell doors started to slam open along with the earthquake. Hole. Prometheus's face lost all color. They were out. These bastards were out of their cells. He urgently tried to close a cell door but I got you now, you bastard. Rip that bastard's limbs off. All sorts of artifacts burst out of the cells. There were some artifacts that looked like birds and cows but most looked human. An anxious Prometheus quickly used Zeus's lightning bolt. Crack, crackle. The artifacts hesitated as that threatening lightning bolt came near. Prometheus sneered at them. Don't come any closer. Get back in your cells while I'm asking nicely. But he couldn't help but shut up. There was a man walking forward without caring about the descending lightning bolts. In fact, he was massaging his shoulders as if he had just received an electric massage. Hey hey, that's not how you use that thing. The greatest god of the ancient Greek mythology swung his fist at that moment. The lightning bolts Prometheus was releasing started to get sucked into Zeus's fist. Crack. Prometheus screamed. My power, my power. What? Your power. Are you fucking crazy? Why the hell is this your power? A strong lightning bolt struck down inside the prison. Ache. It had been strong when Prometheus used it, but it was unbelievably strong when used by its proper owner. The lightning bolt was more overbearing and threatening. Julian was shocked about it while Juhian was amused. It's slightly different from Indra's thunder. The god of war Indra's thunder was like a long spear that shot down onto the battlefield. It felt as if a long bomb was being thrown. On the other hand, Zeus's lightning bolt was like a round cannonball. It seemed to charge in his hand. Homer's Iliad called Zeus the cloud gatherer. The lightning bolts that Zeus used truly was like a strong burst of energy. This one who throws the flaming lightning bolts gathered this extremely scary energy and he shot it out of his hand. Rumble. The lightning bolt took the shape of an eagle as it descended on Prometheus. Ah. Prometheus glared at Zeus with bloodshot eyes. Fuck, Zeus, you shitty bastard. Zeus laughed. I guess you weren't satisfied with having your liver eaten over and over. He motioned and the lightning bolt eagle aimed for Prometheus's liver. Prometheus foamed at the mouth with blood. You motherfucker. You don't deserve to be a major god. The lightning bolt ripped Prometheus's human body to shreds and peeled away at his muscles as it burned him alive. Prometheus's body seemed to regenerate as it happened but the lightning bolt continued to destroy it. His true body appeared once the body of the human he was possessing couldn't handle it anymore. That is. What appeared was a seed of fire. It looked as if an oak tree branch was on fire. Prometheus urgently tried to run now that his true appearance had been revealed. Where do you think you're going? Juhian kicked the branch with his foot. 
That branch flew into a cell. You bastard. The branch turned into a human again once it was inside the cell. He looked like a young and healthy man. However, this was not his usual Rothschild appearance but looked like someone who would come out of a Greek myth. Damn it. He tried to get out of the cell but clang. Juhi unlocked it with the Majesty's key. Prometheus went wild slamming on the metal bars. Open this right now. You inferior human bastard. Juhian just ignored him and smiled wickedly. Now then. I'm taking applications for torturers. The first 100 artifacts to get here will get to torture this bastard. Looks like I finally got rid of an annoying bastard. Juhian had a refreshed expression on his face for the first time in a long while. That bastard Prometheus had screamed in pain inside the cell. The artifacts seemed to have a lot of grudges to settle. Prometheus thought about killing himself, but the hair tails, the hair's liver that can heal everything in a day A grade, treasure grade, consumable artifact 1010 if you use this, the torturing will be even more effective. Really? Do you really mean that? Yes, so use this to heal this son of a bitch and then keep torturing him. It's no fun if you let him die after just one session. Oh. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. How much is it? Co Juhian, this son of a bitch, had sold copies of an artifact to the torturers. He gave them plenty of it. He seemed to be doing it on purpose. This son of a bitch. Juhian smiled wickedly as if he was just getting started. Just wait. I'll soon take your liver out and use it to make some restorative medicine as well. Prometheus was famous for having a liver that regenerated no matter how many times an eagle pecked at it. There's something as precious as the hare's liver here. Juhian was extremely happy that his business would soon have a new hit product. Of course, Prometheus truly felt wronged. Why? Damn it, my ability is the ability of creation. As the one who Zeus ordered to create humans and animals, his ability was one of creation. That was how he created Unknown as well. You dumbass. Pulling out my liver isn't going to do you any good. Unfortunately, nobody cared as they imprisoned and tortured Prometheus. Shut up, the Majesty has asked you for your liver, you damn bastard. Hand it over. You damn bastard. Juhian smiled as well. Oh it's there. It definitely has abilities you don't know about. Ow, that fucking bastard. Jeha looked at Juhian with disgust but it didn't matter. But you really hit the jackpot. You got some major gods in your hands now. You just have to contract with them. It was at that moment. Contract? What do you mean contract? The artifacts started to go back on their words. The team members opened their eyes at this unexpected situation. They might be able to hear the artifacts because they were inside a tomb. They had heard correctly. We have no use for you now that we are out of our cells. Let's go see how many pretty girls are in the world now. Julian became anxious as Zeus and the others were about to scatter into the world. Hold on. Did you forget the deal? Zeus sneered at him. Deal? Did I have a woman named Deal? Hold on. What about the promise? Promise? Who cares about a promise made to a human bastard? What? The Majesty is definitely the master of the artifacts. But we cannot serve the crow's contractor as the majesty. Plus, where is the proof that this bastard is our king? I will go enjoy my freedom for a bit. Thanks for letting me out. Ha ha ha. Fuck. As some of the anxious team members were about to chase him Juhian smirked as if he had been waiting for this. Ah. Wah. Ah. The artifacts that were floating up into the air all started to get destroyed. Boom 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 boom. What the, what is? Zeus turned around to see the artifacts of Olympus in pain. They were all Zeus's sons. Juhian was laughing. I made it very clear to you. Your sons will not be safe if you go against our deal. The code of Hammurabi was visible behind Juhian. He must have used Hammurabi's contract earlier. Zeus just sneered at him. Although they were weaker than usual because they had been imprisoned for a long time, they were the strongest of the gods. 
my sons will not die so easily because of a human code of law. And well it doesn't matter if you kill them. Juhian smiled brightly as Zeus was about to escape. Are you sure? Sun can mean something else as well. Zeus tilted his head in confusion and Juhian started pointing somewhere. His finger moved past Zeus's face, his chest, and pointed in between Zeus's legs. Isn't it a bit dangerous for you if you lose that son as well? Wait, W, what? Juhian smiled in victory. Do you want to test it out? Maybe a second goddess of beauty would appear if I ripped that shit off. Zeus became anxious as Juhian was about to activate the code of Hammurabi. Stop with the bullshit. You cannot destroy a major god with something like that. Yeah, I think so too. That's why let's test it out together. Personally, I hope that a cute goddess is born. Juhian never believed these Greek gods from the beginning. The Greek gods were always described as being very similar to humans. They betrayed each other pretty frequently and became envious of each other. Just look at Prometheus. I would turn into a fucking gentleman before I trust any artifact bastard. Zeus shouted with urgency as Juhian came closer. W wait. I told you that it is useless. There's no need to test it out. That's right, you son of a bitch. It's not going to work anyway so let's test it out. No oh. Zeus scream soon echoed through the prison. Chapter, 329 This is bad. In Pandora's Manhattan HQ this was the place that was recently destroyed because of Juhian's Gungnir attack. To be more specific, the code of Hammurabi bomb. Exploded and it received a carpet bombing. Pandora's restorers and aftermath cleanup crew were busy crying their eyes out while restoring the buildings. But there was a building that was the only one to not be damaged at all. Druid's clock tower that was the case. This was Pandora's top executives, the executive board's building. There were rumors about how Arthur's round table artifact was in there or even how people who are not invited will die if they go inside. The only thing that was confirmed of the rumors was that this building was an impregnable tower. This mighty tower wouldn't go down from disasters, tomb appearances, and even chaos caused by artifacts, but the people inside seem to have received a lot of damage right now. Why? What did you just say? Prometheus has been captured. Yes sir. They couldn't close their jaws after hearing the shocking news. They had heard that Prometheus had gone inside the great prison, but... Are you saying that a supreme leader grade artifact has been captured? By who? One woman laughed. Who else? It was Co Juhian. Excuse me. Everybody was freaking out. Did she just say Co Juhian? Hold on, why is his name popping up right now? Who knows? He must have struck again. Hey Merlin. Merlin was pouting as the others gasped. Who told him to ignore my warnings and go into the great prison on his own? Her name was Eve Rockefeller. She was Pandora's director. She was also one of the important members of the Knights of the Round Table. Most importantly, she was someone who was working with Prometheus to artificially create a majesty. However I knew he was shitty from the moment he looked down on me for being an artifact from a different cultural heritage. He should just die. Merlin. It's not the time to say things like that. C.O. Juhian awakened the majesty's artifact and released Zeus. They were going crazy and frantic. But they were not the ones who were going the craziest. Fuck, this isn't the time for thighs. We need to hurry up and send people to the prison. Prometheus Nim's important spot might be ripped out at this rate. Who was this? The one going the craziest was none other than Prometheus's eagle. Damn it. C.O. Juhian, that crazy bastard. This eagle was originally one of Zeus' eagles. However, it had slowly switched sides after its master was imprisoned. But that was not important right now. Egu, C.O. Juhian, that crazy son of a bitch. What the hell did he do to Zeus? He had seen it. He had seen Zeus go down. He also saw Juhian laughing his ass off in response. The eagle realized things would be really bad at that point. He is a crazy bastard. The executive board continued to chat, 
probably not knowing about the eagle's feelings. The major god-level artifacts are out. That's going to be a headache. People like us who have been working with Prometheus will be in danger. Then should we use Unknown to create Zeus's divine enemy artifact? Why don't we send the Knights of the Round Table to take care of Zeus? As for Seo Juhian, he shouldn't be much danger if he can't use Zeus. The eagle was extremely frustrated. Fuck, no. Zeus isn't the problem. That son of a bitch Seo Juhian is the final boss. He was exactly right. Are you done with your bullshit now? The artifacts were in shock. They were looking at their master, Zeus, who looked as if he had lost his mind. You, ugh. Zeus was in serious pain. His pale face looked as if his soul was just about to leave his body. The other artifacts approached him while shaking in fear. You, um. Father A, are you okay? Juhian responded instead of Zeus. Hmm. As expected of a major god. Juhian was satisfied while looking at the suspicious artifact that fell to the ground. XX that fell off of Zeus's body SS grade, divine grade, consumable artifact I look forward to seeing what is born from this. The artifacts cried in anger as soon as he said that. Hey, you cruel son of a bitch. How can you even call yourself a human? Return that to my father. Juhian just scoffed. Who told a major god like him to be completely petty and go against his word? Damn it. But still. Do you know what that means to my father? Do you really think you'll be okay after doing something like this? Fuck, this is artifact abuse. This is blasphemy. You're definitely not going to heaven. Juhian just laughed. I know, I'm going straight to hell. Don't worry, I'm taking all of you with me. This son of a bitch. Even Juhian's team members looked pale. The male team members were especially traumatized. Ah jackpot. That must have hurt like hell. This was the first time they ever felt sorry for an artifact. The artifacts urgently checked on Zeus. Father. Are you alive? Are you okay? Zeus's artifact responded with a look of nirvana on his face. I'm okay. You don't look okay at all. One of the artifacts couldn't watch any longer and picked up a sword. You motherfucking bastard, I'll rip yours off too. You son of a bitch. It started viciously charging toward Juhian. Get lost, you're only a grade two. Uff. The handsome god of war was destroyed by Juhian. It didn't stop there. Juhian kicked Ares's head with his artifact destruction channeled in his foot. Crack. He couldn't use the skill at full power because his connection with the crow was weaker, but it didn't matter. Crack. Crack. It was plenty to deal with these weaklings who had been imprisoned for hundreds, no, thousands of years. It didn't matter that they were fancy and famous gods. All of them were extremely malnourished and so rusty that just touching them might break them. Ugh, stop, stoop. You motherfucking human. How dare you be so disrespectful to gods like us. You have a point. It's not respectful to beat gods up like I would beat up animals. Juhian pulled out a sword. I'll just turn you into a eunuch too, you bastard. Ah. No, wait. He. The other artifact started screaming. Hey, fucking stop. Are you planning on destroying our Greek culture? Are you planning on drying out our seeds? Juhian's eyes flashed. All of you will quietly and obediently fulfill the contract. Otherwise, I'm ripping all of your dicks off. Damn it, how can there be such a terrible human? Fuck, a bastard like this has the majesty's key. A bastard like this becoming the majesty would be a sign of the end of the world. The artifacts turned pale but Juhian was quite satisfied. Ares, Horai, Dionysus, Muse, Pan, Hestia, Hermes, Hades, Poseidon, these were all at least divine grade artifacts. They were also from Greek mythology, which meant that they were quite famous in the world. They're perfect to use for business. Famous artifacts were great for marketing. Artifacts also received an extra buff based on how famous they were, so this was quite the game. 
Ju Hian's eyes flashed as the artifacts just looked around without doing anything. Why is there no response? Do you not want to contract with me? Egu. Okay. I got it. What kind of tone is that for a damn slave? As you wish. Master. They whispered to each other despite answering that way. He's still just a human. Yeah, there's no way a single human bastard will be able to contract with all of these divine grade artifacts. Let him try if he wants. Ju Hian reached his hand out as if he was telling them to shut up. The Majesty's key started flashing. Boom! The artifacts gasped as a suspicious golden door appeared in the air. They all knew about this door. Fuck, the door of slaves has opened. He can even open that door. The Majesty's key allows the user to open and close any tomb. But it also came with extra benefits. The King of the Artifacts was able to open seven special doors based on the vices. For example, the Key of Avarice would open the Door of Wealth, the Key of Wrath would open the Door of Destruction, etc. And the Key of Pride opens the Door of Slaves. And then boom. Alright, you lowly Greek artifacts who are only extremely lustful. Submit and become our master's slaves. Ramesses was the one to shout. He was the king of pride who had numerous slaves work to leave his legacy behind in the past. He was praising Ju Hian as he opened the door of slaves. Baba Bang. The artifacts clutched their heads and started screaming. Fuck, it's the power of the majesty. Co Ju Hian, you son of a bitch. The door of slaves was a special door that allowed the majesty to rule over numerous artifacts. The power of pride that even the gods desired allowed the majesty to make all artifacts submit to him. Slaves burst out of the golden door and started grabbing the Greek artifacts. Ramesses shouted as he watched. All those from your cultural heritage will only be able to eat grass while creating great monuments for Co Juhian Nim. First. Yes, let's start with a pyramid. Juhian frowned as if he didn't like that. Hey, get lost. I'll get arrested if I make them create such a stone tomb in this era. They'll say it's labor exploitation. It's also useless. T, then. Juhian smiled. The thing that is most useful in the modern world is energy. It's even better if it is clean and has no danger of running out. A lack of energy is always the problem. Zeus flinched as Juhian slowly turned toward him. T, this bastard there's no way, right? There was indeed a way. First, you are going to be a power plant. Fuck, I'd rather go back in the cell. You cruel bastard. How can you make him a power plant? Julian was organizing artifacts as he looked toward Juhian with disbelief. Were you planning on making me do that kind of work as well? Julian did have Thunder God Indra's artifact after all. He could also control it enough to use it to generate electricity. You were going to make me a power plant weren't you? Juhian snorted at him. Did you just figure that out? What? I didn't do it because your artifact was useful for clearing tombs. It was too much of a waste to keep it locked up in a power plant. But it's not a waste to put Zeus in there. Who cares? He probably has a ton of leftover strength. I'm also thinking about expanding my business. The energy field is going to make me a ton of money. Egu. The rest of the team grabbed the back of their necks but decided it wouldn't matter. Anyway, this should make it easier to get to the crow, right? Well that is one thing, but based on my count earlier, some of the Greek artifacts are missing. I'm sure someone else has them or they are somewhere else in here. Really? Then I should go get them too. Juhian's eyes flashed as he walked deeper into the tomb. You, um, you didn't forget about the crow, right? Well, they would need to go deeper for the crow anyway. Around that same time Quan Hyuk Su received an unexpected message. Calling the Knights of the Round Table. He was out on the water after being ripped off by Zhen Kai Yuan and barely making it off Juhian's island. This message from Pandora's executive board was quite unexpected. Egu, they want us to go rescue Prometheus. The Knights of the Round Table were basically Pandora's executive board they were the people who got their powers from the artifacts of the Round Table. 
Pandora's executive board had approximately 150 artifacts of the round table but there were 13 special spots. King Arthur and the rest of the artifact users who could sit in these 13 spots were called the Knights of the Round Table. They were all monarchs or people who gave up on the majesty position and were trying to create an artificial majesty. The monarchs and monopolizers who plotted to kill Ju Hian in the past were all Knights of the Round Table. But Quan Hyuk Su was not happy to see this message gathering the knights. Mm, -hmm, they want to rescue Prometheus. They probably mean let's save Prometheus and all of us work together to kill Ju Hian. Quan Hyuk Su just ripped apart the summon. It's actually more beneficial for me if little Ju Hian becomes the majesty. And then why the hell would I rescue Prometheus? It's better to loot artifacts from there than to waste my time rescuing a stupid idiot. He laughed out loud as he started to sway the other monarchs as well. At the same time it's an emergency. The majesty is about to be revived. Hey hey. A ton of the Greek artifacts were captured. What? Really? The events that happened in the prison were soon spread throughout the world. The rumor was that a human with the majesty's key was trying to collect the artifacts of different cultures. Well, he really just needed to collect the major figure and the subordinate artifacts would naturally get caught as well. That was probably the reason. W, we must protect the major gods. He's going to rip it. He's going to rip my pride and joy off. Most importantly, they said the following. Anybody but that bastard Seo Juhian. Yes. Any other bastard is okay but not that bastard. The artifacts that did not have any associations whatsoever started to become scared of Juhian. Chapter, 330 You trashy Seo Ju Ah. Prometheus was almost dead. He wouldn't be complaining if he was just being tortured. Hurry up and grind this bastard up. Let's grind him up and sell it as a liver recovery agent. It is master's orders. I fucking told you that's not my ability. Prometheus screamed after feeling his body being twisted. Ah. This must be what it feels like to get ground up in a millstone. Indeed it was, since they were actually using a millstone to grind him up. Juhian had thrown them a millstone artifact saying it would be useful for the torturing. Boom 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 boom. Hey. Do it properly. His finger is poking out. Ah, sorry. I thought it was his you know what. Are you crazy? It's too small to be that even if it is him. These sons of bitches. Prometheus, no, the oak tree branch that was being ruthlessly ground up was swearing internally. Co Juhian, you son of a bitch. I should have known how much of a fucker you were from the moment I saw you manhandling the artifacts. Unlike the others who pampered artifacts, Juhian had no problem destroying them from the beginning. That personality would not disappear. He even turned Zeus into a eunuch and turned him into a power plant. But the scariest thing was that this was just the beginning. Why? Now I'm certain. That bastard is going to try to rule over all cultures. It was easy to tell what kind of bullshit Seo Juhian was going to try to pull. Ruling over all cultures of artifacts would mean that he would be that much closer to being the majesty. I need to stop that no matter what. It was not just because he did not like Juhian. The biggest reason was that Prometheus could not forget about Juhian's gaze. It was probably right before Juhian left this area. Grind him up without holding back. Don't let him die a peaceful death. These bastards are pieces of shit. What? Prometheus is famous as a symbol of pain and resistance. They even used him as a symbol during the Japanese occupation of Korea. He was on the side of the humans who went against Zeus. Then? But I guess he's had it too easy for a while. He forgot his identity and tried to kill humans from a high position as an executive. Juhian actually seemed to like Prometheus quite a bit. Juhian's eyes flashed. Use this time to remember who it was that let you be born. Juhian had been smiling. His eyes seemed to be saying the following. You guys are tools born because of humans. How dare these shitty tools try to sit above the humans. This was the reason Prometheus was shaking in fear. 
The moment that bastard becomes the majesty is the moment the artifacts lose all human rights, no, artifact rights. It was obvious what would happen. That was why he needed to stop this tyrant who was about to awaken as the demon king. That was probably the reason. Prometheus barely managed to send out a clone even as he was getting tortured. He had managed to get the message out. Furthermore, he put the rest of his strength in the clone, hoping that it would help them. I can at least stop Seo Juhian now. He wasn't planning on telling them to stupidly go up against Seo Juhian without a plan. He had a more certain plan. This is the only way to really get rid of him. Prometheus smiled while thinking about the future. But it didn't matter that he had been so confident. Prometheus's message was being ruthlessly chewed up. Did Prometheus really send this kind of message? Inside the Pandora executive boards drew its clock tower. The humans who had received the message from Prometheus's clone were frowning. Maybe that was to be expected. Seo Juhian will continue to get stronger by raiding the treasures inside the prison. But there is one way to stop this bastard. Send the part of the great prison that is sticking out to the imagery world. You can imprison Seo Juhian and the great prison in there. Humans are unable to cross over from the imagery world. I sent the rest of my power with this clone so that you can open the imagery world. My subordinates should know how to open it. The people gathered at Pandora's executive board scoffed. This imagery world it's like an ocean where all of the artifacts were born. Yes sir. As a Greek artifact, Prometheus called it the chaos. Prometheus's eagle stealthily smiled as he listened to them. As expected of Prometheus Nim. He truly is wise. There should be no better way to get rid of Seo Juhian. The imagery world that was also known as Chaos This was the ocean where the artifacts were born. In human terms, it was like space where stars were born. Well, space is full of dust and gas while the imagery world was full of human memories and images. Artifacts received life in that cradle before appearing in front of the humans. Well, we will just be dissected if we go back there. The great prison and everything in it would be dissected if it was sent to the imagery world. But there was a reason they had not done so until now. It was dangerous. It was also beneficial to keep the artifacts inside the prison alive. But it was nothing compared to Seo Juhian becoming the majesty. It is a great plan. Humans are unable to cross over from the imagery world. It would be similar to getting swept up in a black hole in space and becoming lost forever. He'll turn to dust and only his brain will float around in the water. It was a great plan to completely get rid of Seo Juhian from this world. But the chief executives completely ignored such a great plan. It's a waste to send the great prison there. All of those precious artifacts will get dissected. Seo Juhian will get stronger with the treasures inside the prison. That means that the place is full of great artifacts. W. Wait. It's better if we take those artifacts for ourselves. No, that's not it. No. The eagle foamed at the mouth. This is not the time for such bullshit. The chief executives continued chatting without caring about the fact that the eagle was sweating bullets. And Prometheus said he sent the last of his strength with the clone. Then there's no reason to rescue him now. That's right. It's a waste to use this to open something like the imagery world. Let's put it to better use. No oh. That's not what you should do. The eagle was about to go crazy. These humans did not seem to understand the serious danger they were in. Seo Juhian even tamed Zeus. Well, it wasn't really taming him but he did make it so that Zeus could not run amok. That bastard would do the same thing to absorb cultures one by one. There were many artifacts that would allow him to do that in the great prison. But what? Even if the knights of the round table aren't here. Different Pandora members chimed in. Ah. Why don't we just completely undo the seal on the great prison? We can open it up and send our excavation teams in to find the treasures. That sounds great. We can't allow Seo Juhian to be the only one to enter such a treasure trove. Let's bring it up to the Knights of the Round Table. This is driving me nuts. It wouldn't be enough even if they shut the visible door up and threw it into outer space but they want to reveal all of the entrances. Are they fucking crazy? 
you shitheads. That's wrong. That would just make it easier for Seo Juhian to go in and out. This is our golden opportunity. We won't ever have a chance like this to get rid of Seo Juhian if we miss this chance. Unfortunately, the humans could not hear the eagle at all. That wasn't all. Then when should we get started? Ah, uh, should we split up Prometheus's power and use it for excavating? Ha <laughs> ha. That sounds great. Merlin, one of the knights of the round table, did want to excavate the prison as well. Yes sir. I will deliver the message. Pandora's lower tier employees weren't planning on saying anything to go against the chief executives. It didn't matter that the eagle was writing things telling them to stop. Humans, please stop them. Please. Just tell them that's not it. Tell them not to waste the supreme leader's power. The employees just ignored him. I'd have to be a dumbass to do that. They're the chief executives. Going against them just means that I'll be fired. They were smart and just walked out of the room. Returning back to Juhian's group it's slowly starting to get worse. Juhian's group was frowning while moving to a different section. It truly felt different as they went deeper into the great prison. The difficulty is going up drastically. They were hiding from the guards but the guards' levels were going up and the number of dangerous traps were increasing. It was becoming concerning even for Juhian's greatest under heaven team of misfits. It was at that moment. Seo Lei quickly motioned with her hand. They jumped to the bottom of the cliff on reflex. Boom. They then stabbed into the cliff with a weapon or used artifacts to dangle on the cliff. Jaha clutched his wildly beating heart as he started to speak. They got the signal and jumped down, but ha, huh, what the hell. There was nothing. Siole smacked him in the back of the head. Shoo. Shut the hell up if you don't know anything. A moment later they frowned while looking at a smog moving past the top of the cliff. They really didn't like this smog that looked as if it was alive. That was obvious. I knew it. It is the fog from that time isn't it? That fog? Julian explained to Jeha who had not been in the great prison in the past. It's a fog of disappearance. You don't know where you will end up if you get swept up in that fog. That's how Ilya disappeared in the past. Really? Ilya responded to him. It's actually being broken down to your molecules. That's how I ended up dying. Jeha turned pale after hearing Ilya's comment. Holy shit, broken down into molecules. Won't you be okay even if you get broken down into molecules? Oh. Sounds good. Put one of your arms in there. Maybe it'll transport you to a different area if you are still alive. Hey. You guys. Ilya addressed Juhian without caring about Jeha. Will it be okay? It seems like it is starting to get more dangerous. Juhian turned his head. Kong Ming and Seo Lei. Can you feel the crow's aura? It's not too far but still a while away. Hmm, then should we head outside to reorganize? They were starting to run out of food as well since they sort of rushed in. Chloe and Dan weren't here either. But at that moment Bobo Bobo. Captain Nim, the path. The tomb started to move on its own. Go, monarch of pushoverness. You are our only hope. No wait, I don't want to turn into molecules. Damn IIT. Jeha was crying but did start to move toward it, probably because he still felt guilty about his actions in the past, but Juhian smacked him in the back of the head. I'm joking, you little punk. Juhian took out the Majesty's key. This was a key that should be able to open anything. I don't know if I can open traps with this too, but as he was about to activate the key he saw a light sparkling nearby. Juhian's eyes opened wide. You have discovered a majesty's treasure. Chapter, 331. You have discovered a majesty's treasure. Juhian's eyes opened wide. Majesty's treasure. He was trying to open a path out of a trap but what? That's what the crow was telling him. This little punk I thought that the connection had been weakened. Maybe it was doing everything it could to deliver this message to him. The majesty's key reacted at that moment. Flash. A bright golden light flashed in front of him. Ugh. 
the glowing golden ring then released its strong aura. It seemed strong and wholly unlike the general dirty and chaotic aura of artifacts. That majesty's aura spread out, as if it was conquering this trap area. The tomb started to shake like crazy. Ah! The cliff started to crack and some of the team members screamed. Crack! Some of the ones who had been dangling on the cliff by their weapons fell to the ground. Ah! The ones who fell were Ju Hian, Julian, and Jeha. Siole and Ilya, who were using a ghost and a devil respectively that could allow one person to float, were shocked. Captain Nim. The two of them tried to grab the fallen team members. But the rope was faster than them. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. The rope that had been on Juhian's shoulder first wrapped around Juhian, then Julian, and then Jeha. And then. Ha. Huh. Ugh. It reached its body out and grabbed anything it could grab. The three people who had been falling suddenly stopped. Boom. Hugh, I'm alive. I almost died. They were sighing in relief that they didn't die when I'm dying. And while I'm dying. Ilya was about to die now. What the rope grabbed happened to be Ilya's neck. You shit ug. My neck boon. The rope became anxious and quickly started to pull the three men up. Siole helped it quickly pull them up as well. Of course, Ilya's soul seemed ready to leave his body by the time they dragged all three of them up. Jeha started to slap him. Hey hey. Are you still alive? That motherfucking rope I'm going to kill it. His neck might have snapped in half if he did not have a heirloom and the devil's buff. The rope started groaning. There was nothing to grab so it had tried to grab the devil but ended up grabbing Ilya instead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Juhian consoled the extremely apologetic rope. It's fine. He's gained so much negative karma that he's being punished. Ilya felt wronged. Other people might be able to- Juhian smiled once he got the answer he was looking for. And then hold on. Captain Nim. No. Look at what's down there. Juhian didn't care and just let himself fall to the bottom. He was falling into the fog that dissected Ilya down to his molecules in the past. While that was going on Juhian's new energy business Juhian Water Park Juhian Brewery Juhian Underground Natural Resources Business Edward questioned his eyes while looking at the documents in front of him. He then asked. What the hell is this? A bastard sitting arrogantly on the chair responded to him. What do you think it is, you country bumpkin? New businesses. The one sitting down was the golden worm. The divine grade golden worm, which seems to have done well. For itself since it now even had subordinates, quickly motioned to its subordinates. Its subordinates started quickly typing. The master says he wants to do some new businesses. Hurry up and get it ready. Hand over the money. Give it me to me so I can get started right away. The worm screamed and slammed down on the table, making company president Edward scoff. Now he had to get threatened by a damn worm. Like hell these are new businesses. I haven't heard anything from the representative Nim yet. Of course you haven't heard anything. The master trusts me more. You are just trash, you bastard. Trash. What the hell? You damn bug. Anyway, hand over money for the investment while I'm asking nicely. Edward couldn't believe it. Hey. The money isn't the problem. How the hell are we going to do all of these businesses at once? An energy business, a water park business, alcohol, insurance, delivery are you fucking joking? Get lost before I grind you up and turn you into makeup. Damn it. The master can do IIT. The frustrated worm posted the list of Greek artifacts Juhian had gathered onto the screen. Look. These are all artifacts that master just took in. Edward, as well as the grave company employees who were secretly watching the two of them, were all shocked. They had wondered what kind of artifact Juhian had brought this time, but holy shit. There were so many of them. Furthermore, quite a lot of them seemed to be extremely famous artifacts. What the heck did the representative Nim do? S, something like this is possible. There were so many of them. And all of them were at least divine-grade artifacts. 
It was obvious how amazing the end product would be if they used these for business. But still. Holy shit. He's someone who would find Gaia's artifact just to create a new continent. It would cause quite a lot of chaos if the world learned about how Juhian gained all of these artifacts. That was probably the reason. See, contact the recruiting team right away. The representative Nim will probably hire a bunch of people as soon as he gets back. Ah yes, yes sir. Juhian's sister, Joy, urgently asked at that moment. Wait. What about Juhian? Are you sure he is okay? It was at that moment. Baba bang. There was suddenly an extremely strong earthquake. Ah. The people at the company, no, everybody in the entire world, couldn't help but be shocked. How could they remain calm when something unbelievable appeared in the sky? What is that? It looked as if a fortress that had been hidden in the clouds was showing itself. It was some kind of black fortress. That wasn't all. Mysterious buildings have started to appear all over the world. This is not related to a tomb appearance phenomenon that fortress or island appeared in the sky, a hidden city appeared in the ocean, a tower appeared in the desert large stone Buddha-like faces broke through the ground in cities as well. These were all portions of the great prison. The parts of the great prison that were in another world were starting to appear in this world. Pandora's chief executives were responsible for this. They had chosen to pull out the great prison that they really should have sent to the imagery world as quickly as possible. It was because of their extreme greed for artifacts. Even the hidden appearances were revealed. However, there was still an issue. The problem is that we don't have a key to go in there. The person who said that was a member of Pandora's excavation team. It was the man with Loki's artifact. Yes, the same Loki's artifact that was pummeled by Juhian in the Tower of Pride and ran for his life. Loki's artifact user subordinates started speaking. Isn't Seo Juhian the only one who can go into this prison right now? We are unable to search it without that majesty's key. A nearby general got angry. That's why we want you to do something about that. We can't let Seo Juhian take all the good artifacts for himself. The Loki's artifact user frowned. Does he think we're not doing anything about it because we want to? Why are you standing around instead of opening a stupid prison? These so-called knights of the round table are so useless. We shouldn't have trusted these trash who couldn't even become monarchs. What the hell did he just say? Loki's artifact user frowned even more. It's not that we couldn't become monarchs, we just stepped aside. Their goal wasn't to be monarchs their goal was to select monarchs to create a majesty. But the chief executives on the executive board couldn't even tell that apart. What can you do about it? The ones of low birth like us have to hold it in. A fellow knight of the round table patted Loki's artifact user's back. The nouveau riche like us should just shut up. Those bastards will probably only listen to a knight of the round table with holy bones. Holy bones? What is that? Ah, there's something. It's just a term. Anyway, let's not worry about it too much. Seo Juhian may be amazing but he's just human like us. How many artifacts do you really think he can loot in such a short period of time? At that moment boom. The great prison shook vigorously. What the hell? Captain Nim. Captain Nim. Inside the prison, Seo Lei was completely pale as she was screeching. She tried to fall off the cliff to follow Juhian as well. The others desperately grabbed her to prevent her from doing so. Calm down. But that fog. Ilya had a rare look of shock on his face as well as he looked down. Captain, did you just commit suicide? Did you lose your mind in this prison? There's no way you could have thought this was committing the sin of sloth, right? He had not expected Juhian to jump into the trap. Julian was extremely anxious as well and Jeha was stopped from jumping in behind Juhian. Ah, let go of me. The Captain Nim probably didn't even take a phoenix feather with him. However, Juhian was completely fine. As expected. He was just sore in multiple spots. Juhian groaned while lying on the ground at the bottom of the cliff. I knew the fog here was fake. It looked similar to the fog of disappearance but it was oddly different. Anyway, there should be a treasure here. 
as Ju Hien turned his head there's something over there. The doggies were the ones to speak. Yes. It should be the Majesty's helmet. Ju Hien smiled and started walking. Ju Hien then laughed as if what he saw was exactly what he had expected. Hair underneath the ear's horn on the head the fierce god of war who was said to have fought against an ancient Chinese emperor. What he saw looked like a goblin. I got you now. You treasure bastard. Chapter, 332 I got you now. You treasure bastard. There was a gap the size of a palm where Ju Hien put his face. There was a terrible area visible through the gap. Swoosh. It was a frozen cave that resembled the frozen part of hell. It was so cold that just stepping into this area would make a person freeze. That artifact bastard was imprisoned in this frozen hell. It's definitely a divine grade artifact. Ju Hien was aiming to make this bastard his subordinate. If it really was the artifact he was thinking it was, it should have approximately 100 subordinates or so nearby. I should be able to awaken the key of sloth if I grind. Up 100 of them. That was why they were called sacrifices. He didn't care about what kind of negative results that might cause. I will give my subordinates special service and restore them properly. But Ju Hien couldn't help but click his tongue for a different reason. Why? Damn it. They're already destroyed. That wasn't all. I can't believe they turned this god of war into frozen meat. The doggies seemed shocked after hearing that comment. Master, you know who this bastard is? Who do you think you're asking that to, right now? Ju Hien started to smile. Ju Hien was someone who had researched all mythologies and folk tales in the world and even found pieces of destroyed records to shove all of that information in his head. But this one was so visibly unique that it was easy to tell. Bull-like horns, a steel forehead and a bronze head. Heavenly Emperor Chi Yu. Far in the B. Era during Dangan's time he was worshipped as the god of war of the east, and in the Huan Dan Gogi myths, he was known as the fierce god who fought against a Chinese emperor. He was an ancient emperor who was said to have won every battle and said to be extremely talented in weapon creation and responsible for creating numerous weapons. Chi Yu should have quite a good ability. He was someone who was deified later in life as well. The divine great artifacts that were born as gods probably don't look kindly on him. But what? Master. You must not take this bastard out. Fuck, I'm going to run away from home if you take this bastard out. Master, let's go back. It's still not too late. Surprisingly, those gods from birth were shaking in fear. The doggies seemed to be recalling a terrible memory from the past. That motherfucking majesty's treasure. Everybody was said to get scared when the majesty put on this chaotic steel mask. It was like seeing a death flag that you never want to see out on the ocean. This was no ordinary helmet. It was a signal flare for the emperor's campaign. The human king of artifacts was said to become a god once he put on this ghost's helmet. That human king who became a god could move the heavens and the earth and even make artifacts and humans take different forms that was so terrible that the doggies who had personally experienced that time were in despair. Master, why don't we go look for something else? This one's not it. Mm, okay, shut up. Ju Hien was humming as he tried to make the gap wider. The doggies gasped. Please. Master. They were so desperate that they turned from items to doggies and started to pull at Ju Hien's clothes. I don't want to see that ominous mask ever again. Please. I'll do whatever you want. Ju Hien didn't care and called out Mammon's artifact. Ha ha ha. This place is a pile of gold, a pile of gould. He had found some famous Greek artifacts as soon as he entered the great prison. Now there was a treasure that was so strong that the doggies were scared. Yes. Everything in here is mine. Ju Hien's eyes flashed in a dangerous manner as he channeled a lot of dominance into the pickaxe. Boom. This cell was extremely durable but it didn't matter. Mammon was a devil of mining. This cell should break if Juhian combined Mammon's digging ability with his tomb destruction ability. Mammon, full power. Mammon was in pain. It was to be expected as her ability was being forcibly released. 
It was similar to what Ju Hien did to Muramesa a long time ago. But Mammon was holding it all in for Ju Hien. Ah, hurry. I can't hold on much longer. Hurry. Ju Hien quickly struck the pickaxe down into the gap. And then rumble. Ju Hien's expectations seemed to have been correct and the doggies fell into panic once they heard the wall breaking. Damn it. We're all fucked now. That damn goblin mask bastard will appear in the world again. But at that time. The doggies who had clenched their eyes shouting that they were done for started cheering. Hooray. It's a dog hole. Ha ha ha. Look at how small it is. There's no way he can go in there. Ju Hien's eyebrows twitched. The doggies continued to jump for joy without thinking about anything. Master. Give up. That artifact won't survive another strike. Ha ha ha. It already looks to be in shambles. Yes yes. That pushover of a restorer isn't here either. The doggies saw the small dog hole and praised the gods. He he he. A dog hole. A dog hole. All right. Master. Now let's go get a different artifact however ah I see. You bastards are going to go inside. Pow. Ju Hien grabbed them by the head and shoved the doggies into the dog hole. Now then. Hurry up and go get it. No, W. Wait. Ah. Uh. The doggies whose heads were stuck in the dog hole foamed at the mouth. Wait, master, this is a bit, ah. Uh. My head. Fuck, your head isn't the problem. Goblins. There's goblins in front of us. Ah. Master. I'm sorry. Ju Hien didn't care and just ruthlessly shoved the doggies butts in through the hole. Here. Hurry up and go in. Master. These Egyptian gods were shoved into the frozen hell. Ju Hien then tried to follow behind them. It might be a tight fit because of his broad shoulders but it should be fine. The problem was ah. Ow my body. Ju Hien stopped putting his leg in and frowned. TSK. This damn trap is a problem wherever I go. That was the case. That fog was in the area the doggies had just entered. It seemed to harm artifacts as well as the doggies started to quickly disintegrate once they touched the fog. You, ugh. Ju Hien urgently reached out as he saw that they were about to turn to ashes. No. No. An urgent rope pushed Ju Hien down and slipped in first. The rope's body started to get destroyed as well but it was able to quickly wrap itself around the doggies and pull them back out. The only one that seemed fine was Anubis. Ju Hien looked inside as if he was disappointed. Chi Yu is right there. Ramesses chimed in at that moment as if it was disgusted. It is understandable why the guards use this bastard's fog as a trap. This bastard's fog. It was extremely likely. Chi Yu was said to create a dense fog as he ruled the world. TSK, then if I don't awaken the key of sloth first but he needed sacrifices to awaken it. This secluded area did not have artifacts he could use as fodder to awaken the key. But to use his own artifacts as sacrifices I can't suddenly summon 100 artifacts. The only ones he could summon right now were his possession type artifacts. But Ju Hien only had a few possession type artifacts contracted to him. He had a lot more artifacts to grind up if he went outside, but he couldn't leave right now. He thought about calling out Anubis's army but they were dead bodies so they wouldn't be treated as artifacts. Is there nothing I can do? But at that moment bang. Ju Hien was shocked to hear an extremely loud noise. Bang, bang. It sounded like metal hitting metal at set intervals. It was not around him. Outside. Hurry up and break it. Slam it harder. Yes sir. The noise had come from outside the great prison. What do you think? Can you go in? It's too small for a person to fit through. What Ju Hien had heard was the sound of people slamming against the great prison's walls. Once the great prison had appeared in the world thanks to Pandora its excavation teams were doing everything they could to break open a door. The reason was simple. You said that this gap was created from the prison shaking, right? 
it appeared all of a sudden. Yes sir. That is correct. Some gaps had appeared on the great prison's walls after that sudden earthquake. For example, a narrow gap appeared on Buddha's arm that rose up through the grounds of a city. The excavation teams were doing everything they could to open that gap some more. This is our chance. We don't know what happened inside, but this is a great opportunity. This thing is full of treasures. We can't let Seo Juhian be the only one to earn good shit. The Majesty's treasure is said to be inside. We must get it. This can't be just a coincidence. It is the will of the heavens that we get inside. There was something they should know. Those gaps did not appear for no reason. Someone told Juhian what was going on. Small side doors of the prison seemed to have opened a bit. Ramesses informed Juhian. Juhian was confused. Side doors? You know how you opened the doors for those Greek bastards earlier? I did. You opened other areas as well by accident because you couldn't control it properly since it was your first time. The door connected to the outside must have opened a bit as well. Then those noises are. He could tell what it was now. Those noises were humans trying to pry open those gaps to get inside. That was probably the reason. Now that I think about it, there is no need to walk around forever looking for sacrifices. Juhian smiled wickedly. Mammon soon groaned and asked. Then are you going to lure some guards over? Are you an idiot? Why would they come to get us when we are already in a trap? Then? Juhian activated the Majesty's ring instead of responding. He tried to recall the feeling he had when he used it earlier. Something amazing happened at that moment. Baba 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 bang. Ah. The great prison started to shake violently again. Rumble. Earthquakes were happening all over the world as well. And then. General. Look over there. T. The door opened. The small five centimeters gap opened wide enough for a person to fit through. Bo 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 boom. It was happening all over the world where Pandora's excavation teams were stationed. It seemed to be telling them to come inside. Pandora's excavation team members who were at the doors became excited. Go inside. This is a rare opportunity. Hurry up and grab the treasure inside. They became hasty as they were worried that the door would close if they did not hurry inside. Of course, some people were against it. Please wait. It could be a trap. You shouldn't just rush in. They filled the bottom of the cliff. He then shouted toward that army of mummies. All right, all of you to take down the bastards who entered into my pile of gold. Your goal is one zero zero artifacts. It was the moment the second majesty's treasure was about to be his. Chapter 33 Kill them all without any mercy. Numerous mummies roared after hearing Juhian shout. They were roaring so loud that the ground was shaking. It felt as if elephants were stomping their feet. Their roar shook the underground area before rising up to the higher levels. Boom! The first to get shocked was Pandora's excavation team that just entered the great prison. Hey, did you just hear something? One of the soldiers was shaking. He had a bad feeling about this sound he could hear every so often. I know I heard something. His fellow soldiers sneered at him. Why don't you just say that your stomach hurts? What? How the hell are you still in Pandora you damn wuss? No, that's not it. Shut up. This is a treasure trove. Hurry up and dig. It's obvious this is a diamond mine that is incomparable to the other tombs. Their experiences told them this place was different. They only came in at first because of orders from Pandora's chief executives, but their motivation changed once they stepped into the prison. Do you understand? Anything we get from here is a guaranteed promotion. Yes, so stop sounding like a retard and follow me. As the veterans excitedly moved forward another soldier threw a fit as the tomb shook again. H, hey. I don't think this tomb is a great idea. We can still leave. What the fuck are you talking about? This is a treasure trove. Yeah. We can't let Seo Juhian monopolize this place. If you keep spewing bullshit. 
It was at that moment. Boom 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 boom. There was another earthquake. They then heard the roaring. The quiet roars were slowly getting louder. It sounded as if someone was slamming something against a pillar. All of the soldiers started to get anxious. Wait. What is this noise? See. I told you. I've been telling you about a weird noise since earlier. The soldiers all started screaming. Ah. They saw disgusting mummies appearing all around them. What the hell? Hundreds of mummy soldiers shot up from the ground. They pulled out their weapons as soon as they saw the humans. And then. Ah. Terrible screams started to echo from different parts of the prison. That was how Juhian and Anubis's army took down the adventurers. Who came into the prison? There were some guards and traps that put Anubis's army in danger but it didn't matter. Juhian had considered all of those things and summoned more soldiers than usual. The excavation teams that came into the great prison were all crushed. Ah! Save me! Ah! Juhian's team members could not raise their heads after hearing screams all around them. They could tell. There could only be one person who was the cause of so much screaming. Captain Nim. Did he use the Majesty's key? Julian could not hold it in anymore and jumped off the devil he was on. C.O. Juhian, you little punk. Vice Captain Nim. Of course, he had been happy when Anubis's army had appeared. That was proof that Juhian, whom he had thought was dead, was still alive. However hey. This isn't it. He shouted as soon as he landed on the ground. Juhian's terrible. Action was one thing, but that was already done. How many of them did you call forth? Juhian was calm. Um, I just summoned like 10, 0, 0 since there are guards and traps. Julian grabbed the back of his neck. Hey! I told you not to call forth more than one zero zero at once. Do you know how much strength it takes to maintain Anubis's army? Do you want to have another out-of-body experience because of the risk? Juhian just sneered at him. It's only ten zero zero. Shut up. You're so fucking slow for someone who is supposed to be my pinch hitter. What the hell did you just say? I thought something happened to him since he was taking so long. Juhian seemed to have been concerned because of where he was right now. What about the others? They're busy for once since your actions called over the guards. Juhian laughed. Then start moving before I grind up your artifacts too. I need to get that. Julian screamed after he saw something. My goodness. Is that a treasure? Julian was shocked after instantly recognizing Chi Yu. It was obvious even without analyzing it with Kongming's artifact. It's obviously an amazing artifact. It is. But I need to do something about the annoying trap in order to get in there. What about the key of sloth? Juhian lifted up Nero's artifact, the laurel wreath. I told the doggies to gather up all the ingredients for awakening it, but. A mummy soldier appeared in front of Juhian and Anubis at that moment. The mummy soldier lowered its head and shouted in a low voice. We have captured all of the weaklings that have come into the great prison. Shall we bring them to you right away, master? Yes. He was smiling like a demon king. They then heard all sorts of screams around them. Ah! Our artifacts! Ah! Where the hell are you dragging us? The soldiers who had come in here full of dreams and hope were foaming at the mouth. These ugly mummies had suddenly appeared before abducting their artifacts. The people who were dragged here were people who would rather die than to lose their artifacts. Ah! There were tens of people who ended up in front of Juhian because of that reason. But there were even larger piles of artifacts. What the hell is this? Their eyes opened wide after looking at the piles of artifacts under their feet. These were artifacts of the excavation teams from around the world. We hit the jackpot. They were drooling until they saw something and started shouting. What did they see? You see O Juhian. It was because Juhian's eyes were flashing as he sat in front of them. Oh. They're humans. He would really look like a demon king welcoming the heroes to his castle if he had horns on his head. 
Zhu Hian tilted his head in confusion after seeing them. Why are you guys here? I told them to only bring artifacts. W, what? Ah, ah, they must be parasitic artifacts. My bad. Zhu Hian soon chuckled and stood up. Well, I'll go easy on the parasitic ones. Dodge it if you can. The people stepped back after seeing his ominous smile. And then bomb. They heard a loud shout before there was a loud explosion in the trap. Bong! It looked as if the artifacts that were piled up like logs by a campfire were instantly blasted away. It was thanks to the bomb artifact he had scattered on the floor. Artifact destruction. Baba Babang. Egu, you son of a bitch. I'm going to kill this human bastard. Pillars of fire shot up and the Pandora excavation team's artifacts started to explode. The ingredients to awaken his treasure were blasting away. A message popped up in front of Juhian at the same time. You have offered blood sacrifices. Blood of 1,400 beings has been collected. Juhian threw Nero's laurel wreath once he saw that message. The laurel wreath started to glow where the artifacts had exploded. The artifact of sloth is awakening. At the same time ache. It had been twenty minutes since the excavation teams had been sent inside. The generals and knights of the round table waiting for news outside couldn't help but be surprised. It looks like something must have happened inside. What? What kind of thing? Look over there. What is that light visible in there? What an amazing aura. Someone frowned and rushed into the tomb. Loki Nim. It was the knight of the round table who used Loki's artifact. He rushed in with Prometheus's power. He originally had no plans to go in himself since he didn't know what it was like in there, but we can't let that bastard Seo Juhian earn the Majesty's treasure. The area was full of balls of energy that were released as the artifact's cores detonated. Nero's artifact finally flashed after gobbling up a good amount of the energy. The key of sloth is fusing with the Majesty's key. A flashing strand of light seeped into Juhian's ring. Of course, Nero was clicking his tongue after being awakened by the blood of its fellow artifacts. Look at this worst tyrant ever under the heavens. This bastard is going to kill all of his subjects. I don't think you are one who can say that. Jeha sighed while looking at the artifacts that had exploded. Egu, what a shame, what a shame. It's so sad since there were a lot of high-grade artifacts in there. The Captain Nim really is too much. I know there was no other way but still. Juhian nonchalantly responded to Jeha. Then why don't you fix them? Jeha flinched. Um have you ever seen an or used for fortification being restored? Yeah. You're saying it is easy for you, right? No, wait even I would need at least a year with each artifact and their cores have completely turned to dust. Then just go scatter their remains in a mountain or ocean. You'd kill me if I really scattered the remains. Jeha started to cry. Juhian seemed to have no regrets about it but the restorer sniffled as he gathered the scattered remains of the artifacts. Juhian was about to head to Chi Yu's tomb now. Shoo. That problematic fog that had annoyed them since their past life the fog of disappearance, the fog that had dissected Ilya down to his molecules, viciously started to move toward them. The great prison was reacting after noticing Juhian's monstrous actions. To be more specific, it was the guards protecting the tomb that reacted. They then heard some unfamiliar voices. The fog is on our side. Hurry up and capture those bastards. Some unwanted guests had appeared in front of Juhian. There were knights of the round table mixed in with Pandora's excavation team members that Juhian had dragged into the prison. Julian started to frown. Loki's artifact. That bastard was surprisingly ordering the nearby guards around. This guy would be no joke. The bastard looked at Juhian and started to laugh. Your mistake was letting us in. Okay. What are you doing? Hurry up and grab the treasure over there. The other soldiers started to rush into the trap. The murderous fog became thicker as well. It's that fog again. That fog avoided the enemies and only aimed for Juhian's people. But at that moment you dumbass. You should have been here earlier if you wanted that. 
he sneered and a strong aura burst out. The door of loss is opening. Nero was the king of sloth who had forgotten his duty. The key of sloth's unique ability had activated. Something shocking happened. The fog that had been squirming inside the tomb stopped moving. The power of loss is reaching out. It is starting to make the foundation of the trap lose its abilities. Ju Hian instantly headed toward Chi Yu after making the fog stop. All right, come with me. Ju Hian used the Majesty's key to open Chi Yu's cell. Bang! Loki's artifact user's eyes opened wide. The trap that they were in suddenly started to shake like crazy. He suddenly got chills down his back. Loki's artifact user shouted after noticing the ominous signs. Retreat for now. Everybody get out of the prison. He then felt as if he saw a frightening face inside Chi Yu's cell. Someone was stepping out of it. It was the Majesty who was wearing the goblin's helmet. Chapter 334 Someone walked out. It was the Majesty wearing the goblin's helmet. W, what the hell is that? All they could really see was the mask on the man's face. The small dog hole had become wider because of the earthquake. And this man was leisurely walking out through it. He had this chaotic goblin's mask with metal horns sitting on his head as if it was a toy. It was Ju Hian. The excavation teams pointed their artifact guns at him. It's Seo Ju Hian. They went on full alert but soon started to laugh. Why? It was because of Ju Hian's clothes. What the fuck? Is he crazy? Why does he look so poor? Did he come to a tomb wearing just a sweatsuit? Does he think he is on a fucking walk in the park? Ju Hian still looked as handsome as a model but this was not normal tomb attire. He looked like a beggar compared to them in their full gear starting with a helmet on their heads and different protections all over their bodies. How could they not laugh? Did he trade the Achilles's armor in for dessert? That was probably the reason. Take it away. That bastard has a divine grade artifact. They ruthlessly fired their artifact guns. Bang 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 bang. But at that moment. Baba ba bang. There were explosions coming from all around. The artifact bullets were bouncing off Ju Hian's body. They all looked toward Ju Hian in shock. But Ju Hian was just standing there, sneering at them with his hands in his pockets. Hey hey, it may not look like much but these are high-grade defense type artifacts. That was the case. The black sweatsuit was the gift from his fans. The black t-shirt underneath the sweatsuit was Achilles' armor. Normal artifacts would not be able to harm Ju Hian at all. Feel free to keep firing. It won't work. However shoot him. Fire. Shoot him until he's dead. Bang bang. Fuck, it still hurts, you shitheads. An angry Ju Hian grabbed the goblin mask on his head. A chaotic aura started to spread. They became anxious. That bastard is trying to use an artifact. Stop him. Ju Hian covered his face with the goblin mask before they could do anything. And what did that do? Bang! Chi Yu's artifact is being activated. The goblin is opening its eyes. Ju Hian touched the mask and red lights shot out of the mask's eyes. The toy-like mask slowly changed shape. A black fog shot out of the mask before it covered Ju Hian's head and started to turn into metal. A metal forehead, a bronze head threatening horns that shot out on both sides it was a helmet covering his entire head once the transformation finished. As someone who was said to change mountains and rivers with thunder and rain, he looked so threatening that he might strike the heavens at any moment. That wasn't all. The black fog violently shooting out of the helmet soon covered Ju Hian's entire body. And then, from head to toe metal armor appeared wherever the fog had covered. A full suit of armor had instantly been created. It was a full black feast for the eyes. This was not an armor that would make it difficult to move and slow a person down. It was a sleek and fashionable design that fit Ju Hian's body perfectly. The black fog that seemed to be alive was swirling around Ju Hian as if it was a cape. The enemies couldn't help but drop their jaws in shock. What the? They blanked out for an instant as Ju Hian took a few steps forward. 
They then snapped out of it and started grinding their teeth. Fuck, it was a defense-type artifact. Someone shouted at that moment. No, it doesn't feel like a defense-type artifact. Yeah, it must be just for show. Destroy it. They started sending volleys of artifact bullets once again. But what? Fuck, what the hell? They couldn't believe what they saw. The bullets they saw just brushed by Ju Hian without hitting him. It was as if the bullets were just moving through the fog. That wasn't all. Ju Hian, who had been slowly walking toward them, disappeared with the black fog. And then. Ah! He suddenly appeared right in front of the excavation teams. The fog viciously spread and started attacking his enemies. Ah! This was the fog of annihilation from inside the great prison. Chi Yu's fog must have come from the story about how he used the fog to fight against the Imperial Army. There were screams coming from multiple directions. Loki's artifact user started to frown. I'm sure of it. It really is a majesty's treasure. The knights of the round table knew about the treasure. It would be weird if the people who were trying to create an artificial majesty and its treasures would not know about it. Of the many treasure types that included the key, cradle, library, throne, and lock, the helmet was one that protected the majesty's body. It's the majesty's armor. This was no ordinary armor. This was an attacking armor. Chi Yu was a god of war and an overlord. A person would become a god the moment they put on this helmet. That was why he couldn't help but become anxious. I didn't know he would be able to handle this too. The key was somewhat understandable. That was the most basic of the treasures. Ju Hian was someone at the four emperor's level, so he could have been lucky to meet the requirements to awaken it. But he could also activate the other treasures. Should we have realized it when he awakened the key? Loki's artifact user started shouting. Regular artifacts won't work. Hurry up and prepare that. Excuse me. But we need the original owner's permission to use that. It's fine, I am giving permission. We cannot let this bastard leave this tomb. We must kill him here. The gazes on the faces of the excavation team members changed at that moment. Julian, who had been behind Ju Hian, frowned as he watched them start to take something out. This feels like he had an extremely ominous feeling. This artifact felt holy but gave off an aura of cruel punishment. It is a Christian artifact. Julian urgently released a thunderbolt after having that ominous feeling. Julian's attack that shot forward with murderous intent was destroyed. Crack. A holy ray of light destroyed it. That wasn't all. Ugh. The rays of light that shot out in multiple directions as if they were lasers started to burn Julian's body. It felt as painful as if someone put a hot iron against his skin. The enemies laughed after seeing Julian in pain. Ha, huh, none of you will be able to escape from this artifact. Their holy rays of light headed toward Ju Hian as well. Captain. Loki's artifact user and the excavation team members continued to laugh. It was at that moment. Ache. Fog filled the tomb so that the holy rays of light could not be seen. It was a blood-red fog this time. What appeared from the fog was Chi Yu's goblin army. The light artifacts the excavation teams were using to light up the tomb started blowing up. Ah! The goblin army squirmed like the fog and started to ambush the enemies. Bo 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 boom! The difference between them and Anubis's army of the dead would be how they fought. The goblin army stuck to people in their fog forms the fog would then cover the person's body and turn into a metal armor. The problem came after that. The enemies who became covered in armor would explode or dissect down to the molecular level from inside the armor. Some of them even died while shooting out metal bars from their bodies. Then we should call Ilya over to go up there. Why? Juhian grabbed Julian by the collar. Julian started to scream. Juhian, who had turned into the black fog, was floating up while grabbing Julian by the collar. Of course, the enemies would not sit back and let them leave chase them. We cannot let these bastards get out of the prison. Rays of light shot out from the ground again. Ju Hian dodged those rays of light as he floated to the top of the cliff. And then uh, uh-huh. 
Isn't that Kong Ming? Vice Captain Nim. They ran into the rest of the team who had been climbing down the cliff. The rest of the team were shocked to see Julian being dragged by the black fog as they sat on Ilya's devil's back. They were even more shocked because that fog resembled the same one that once killed Ilya. What are you being dragged up by ah? Uh? The rest of the team were abducted by the black fog as well and dragged up. What the hell is this? Shut up and stay still. See, Captain Nim. The abducted team members foamed at the mouth. Juhian didn't care and just dragged all of them to the entrance. Kaya. They just moved past the traps and the guards without caring about them. The fog covered the area once they left and made it so that the guards couldn't see them or chase after them. But Loki's artifact user was furiously chasing after them. We must not let them leave. Loki's artifact was using an artifact to float and stick close to them. He could tell after confirming things inside the prison. That bastard will be a disaster for us if he gets out of here. That was why they must keep him in here and send him to the imagery world or something. The people outside the great prison screamed. Something had burst out of the gap that the excavation teams had used to enter the great prison. It felt as if the gap would explode. They then saw something black squirm out of the gap and shoot up into the air. What the? Juhian started throwing his team members out of the fog before the enemies could process what was happening. The thrown team members were coughing. That was like a damn roller coaster ug. As they were trying to catch their breath aren't they CO Juhians? The Pandora soldiers stationed at the entrance opened their eyes wide. Attention, CO Juhians team members have appeared at the Manhattan entrance. Kill them immediately. Wait, hold on. What about the teams that went inside? What happened to Loki Nim? What happened to all of them? What do you think happened to them? The black fog turned into a person. It was the helmet wearing, armor clad Juhian. Something odd happened as he took the helmet off. It's that bastard. The armor turned into fog and was sucked into the helmet as Juhian lifted the helmet with one hand. The helmet then turned back into the goblin's mask, revealing the black sweatsuit wearing Juhian. They will all be imprisoned for entering my castle, air, the tomb. W, what? That goes for you bastards who tried to go into my place as well. Artifacts ran wild as soon as he said that. He said go inside. He said go inside. Juhian and his team members' artifacts started to push the enemies into the prison with the rope in the lead. Inform HQ. CO Juhian is a. Uh. Juhian just ignored them and lifted the Majesty's key high into the air. This was the only key that could freely open and close the great prison. All right, have fun in there since you wanted to get inside so badly. I'm tired so I'm going to go get some rest. H, hold on. Well, I wonder how long you can last in there without a key. Hey. Juhian laughed. Closed. Chapter, 335. Closed. The Majesty's ring flashed once he said that. A message then popped up. All paths in the great prison are being closed. All doors connected to the outside are being closed. The reaction started right after that. Bo 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 boom. Every gap that opened up in the great prison started to close. It was happening to the gaps all over the world. The small gaps Juhian had opened to lure the people in had no purpose anymore. Ah! Wait! The entire world was in uproar. China, Japan, South America, Egypt, etc. Pandora members who were about to enter the great prison to loot the artifacts all started screaming. Wait! No, you can't close yet. They had ignored Prometheus's plan because they had been greedy for the treasures. The teams right by the exits managed to get out but for the teams that had gone farther inside bang 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 bang. Fuck. Instead of looting artifacts, they were ruthlessly shut in by the doors. No. Wait for me. The people trapped inside tried to destroy the doors but it was useless. Even the devices they had positioned to keep the gaps open were destroyed. The crow would have escaped a long time ago if it was so easy to get out of this prison. They were stuck. What? You're saying about half of the excavation teams are stuck inside? 
Pandora's generals clicked their tongue in astonishment. How can you do things like that? Are you unable to open the door back? This situation put them in a difficult position. The reason was simple. Then there is no way to bring the treasures out. Fuck, we thought we might be able to get the treasures inside. Prometheus's eagle wanted to rip its feathers out in anger after hearing them talk. I knew it would be like this. I knew it would end up like this. Foolish humans. The eagle had maintained its position among the chief executives after receiving Prometheus' order. Help the chief executives and prevent the revival of the majesty. That was Prometheus's last order to him. But those damn chief executives were useless. That's why they should have just shoved him into the imagery world without thinking about going in there. Prometheus had used the last of his strength to send a message for a reason. Prometheus had determined that opening the door to the imagery world was the only way to get rid of Seo Juhian for a reason. But these fuckers were so blinded by the treasures that they listened to shit. Even if they thought it was a waste to throw the artifacts in the great prison into the imagery world, they should have listened to Prometheus. Now their stupid great prison excavation or whatever just helped Seo Juhian awaken his powers. Juhian announced his intentions as soon as he came out of the tomb. I am coming to get my treasure. He had turned his fists toward Pandora. He claimed that Pandora had his treasure. This news was quickly going viral worldwide. That shameless bastard. There's no way he noticed something, right? What I know for sure is that this bastard will find the scattered treasures. Even the one in our Pandora HQ. We have no idea when he might attack Pandora. The eagle frowned again. This is the start of the third cataclysm. The first was when artifacts appeared with the great tomb appearance. The second was when the monarchs appeared with the appearance of the heirlooms the third will be when the strongest of these monarchs appear and gather the great treasures. The king would appear to take his items the eagle clenched his eyes shut as he thought about that. And the last one, the eagle started grinding his teeth. It really wasn't far off now. Seo Juhian will soon take over. He would be the final victor of the artifact war as that bastard had been back then. Of course, Pandora's chief executive seemed relaxed even during such a situation. They had a reason for being so calm. At least we still have the portion of Prometheus's power we split up. That's right. Didn't he say that we can control the guards inside the great prison with it? That was the case. The reason Loki's artifact user was able to order the guards and the fog inside the prison was because of that power. Prometheus was one of the supreme leaders after all. The guards had reacted to his power. Loki's artifact user is imprisoned there now too. He should be able to order the guards to open the door and come back out. The eagle foamed at the mouth. Like hell he'll get them to open the door. No. It's difficult now. The Majesty's Key was the Majesty's Key for a reason. The Majesty's Key could open and lock up any tomb and space. There was no way that a door locked by the Majesty would be so easy to open. The Majesty's Key was the strongest of the seal-type artifacts. That wasn't all. That bastard has already awakened two of the keys. Only five remained until the key became whole. But its power must be amazing already. The key became sturdier every time one of them awakened. It was basically a four-number passcode evolving into a complicated lock with patterns, special characters, and all sorts of difficult-to-solve combinations. The eagle was crying internally because he knew about that. He soon shook his head. No. It's just a two-tier lock right now. The high-grade guards on the inside should still be able to do some things. Even divine-grade artifacts found it difficult to tame the high-grade guards, but an artifact user at Loki's level should be able to tame them with Prometheus Nim's power. However ah. Uh, I'm fucked. Loki, who just barely missed getting back out, put a hand against his forehead. His subordinates became scared after seeing his reaction. Loki Nim, what is it? Please quickly use Prometheus's power to control them and have them open this door. Loki's artifact user just kicked the door. Some other subordinates seemed to realize what the issue was and quickly started to speak. We understand. We will go bring the guards over. Loki instantly started shouting. Don't call them. 
we'll be fucked if you call them right now. Excuse me? W, what do you mean? It's not here. Excuse me? Co Juhian took Prometheus's power. Excuse me? His subordinates instantly had mental breakdowns. Their reaction was obvious. Hold on a minute, D, does that mean we can't get out of here? That's not the problem. The bigger problem is. Loki suddenly turned his head and his subordinates got the chills. They felt as if the guards and traps were getting closer. They were right. Intruders. Kill them. Eat them all. Damn it, holy shit. They truly were stuck in hell. As for the person who took the power away Juhian was smiling wickedly you should always take care of things properly. Juhian was smiling while looking at this suspicious fragment. This was Prometheus's power. His team members clicked their tongues at him. You vicious bastard. When the hell did you steal that? What's wrong? You should always do things thoroughly. He's going straight to hell for sure. Julian clicked his tongue again. Juhian just laughed without caring. It's not going to be that long. They just need to stay alive until we go back in there. It would be a miracle if they could stay alive that long. Let them have their fun mining for treasures in there. Like hell they'll have fun. As Julian sighed but Captain, you got another amazing artifact. Ilya was looking at Chi Yu's mask with envy. Defense-type artifacts are so rare that even B-grade ones sell at S-grade artifact prices. But a SS-grade defense-type artifact. Wait, wouldn't it be even higher since it is a treasure? The team members were also envious that it was so cool. It's not a regular defense-type artifact either. It's totally for attacking based on what I saw earlier. He takes all the good shit for himself. But I have to admit, I'm surprised. I didn't think that you would leave that artifact in there. That artifact. Julian recalled the rays of light artifact that had attacked him. I'm pretty sure that was the Ten Commandments artifact. Juhian nonchalantly responded. That's just a copy. I'm sure that a different knight of the round table has the real one. Juhian smiled wickedly. I'll loot the real one later. He had already heard about the monopolizers, aka the existence of the round table, from Irene. Those bastard knights of the round table who have the knight's buff were the executive board, a society created to artificially create a king. Those people said that they cannot accept a king other than one they create. They had done so many terrible deeds that a random person becoming the majesty would make things extremely difficult for them. Chairman Quan was apparently a part of the round table in the past. He had frantically gone to look for the round table once Ju Hian became a candidate for the majesty. Please listen carefully. All of us monarchs will have our artifacts taken away if that terrible bastard becomes the majesty. But there is no guarantee that Seo Juhian will become the majesty, and even if he does, if we can convince him to work with us you probably need to have all of your artifacts stolen by your slave to wake the hell up. That bastard will probably release all of the artifacts we are monopolizing. Is that what you want? He had then confidently said the following. It's no big deal. We just need to kill that terrible bastard before he can get a treasure. You're right, it is more beneficial for us not to have a majesty like that. It's better to have a dummy majesty we can control as we please. Let's get rid of Seo Juhian since he doesn't look like he will listen to us. Juhian had laughed after hearing about all of that from Irene. Those bastards really did know about me. He would pick the path that they would be most afraid of. Anyway, we are going to stock up and go back into the great prison in a few days. Our number one priority is to get the crow and the majesty's treasures. Yes sir. Did you hear that? Stop pretending like you're not there and get to restoring the artifacts, you damn pushover. They all opened their eyes wide. What the hell? Where did he go? I was wondering why he had been so quiet without talking about being envious of the captain. That was the case. Jeha, who they had all been thinking was being extremely quiet, was gone. The team laughed and started shouting. Hey! Did you make a run for it because you don't want to restore the artifacts? We know where you are hiding so hurry up and co. It was at that moment. Um, Captain Nim. 
A pale C.O.A. grabbed Juhian's arm. What is it? You, um, that I don't think Jeha made it out of the great prison. What? Hey, is he really in the great prison? Why? Why else? I'm sorry. We made a mistake and threw that human bastard in too. What did this artifact just say? Jeha must have gotten swept up when they were shoving Pandora's excavation team members into the tomb. The artifacts that threw Jeha in there were currently being disciplined. They were even writing letters of apology to beg for forgiveness. But it didn't matter. Forget forgiving them, that means Jeha is in the great prison on his own right now. Technically, he's not alone. Pandora's excavation teams are in there with him. That's even worse. The team members gathered here were tapping their feet anxiously. That tomb is extremely dangerous. Do we need to prepare his funeral? It was rare to see Dan and Chloe looking so serious as well. They all knew how dangerous that tomb could be since they all died in there. It's just karma. He's the only one who hasn't died in the great prison before. Isn't that right, Captain? Ilya. How can you say that? Although Ilya probably didn't mean it, Juhian surprisingly nodded his head. Yeah. Captain Nim. Don't worry about it. She can feel that he is alive and he's not someone who will die so easily. It looks like the rope went in with him as well. You seem quite anxious for someone who is telling us not to worry. Juhian's finger that was tapping on the table stopped moving. Um, Captain Nim. Juhian got annoyed and said something. Hey. Who told them to shove all of those people into the great prison like that? Who told them to lock the door? Ha. Huh. You're right. Who told them to do that again? Oh wait, it was you. Juhian rolled his eyes after sensing Julian's gaze. The team members all said something as well. Ah, poor Jeha. He's probably crying in there right now. He might already be dead. It's all bad luck for meeting such a terrible captain. Juhian couldn't hold it in anymore and jumped up. I'm heading out for a bit. Are you going to open the great prison? We're almost at the peak. We can't leave something behind in the middle. But at that moment Buz. Juhian's eyes opened wide after seeing who was calling him. He tilted his head in confusion and quickly picked up after seeing the caller's name. Ah. Captain Naim. I did something totally worthy of all the praise but fuck, I'm going to die before I can tell you. Do something about this damn horse. Juhian moved the phone away from his ear after hearing the shout. He then frowned as he asked. What the hell? You should be outside the tomb if you can make a call. Where are you? Where else? Behind you. They heard an explosion. Bang. What burst through the building was a horse with eight legs, no, it was a Lamborghini Aventador. Chapter, 336 Their eyes all opened wide at this sudden development. How was this possible? Keck, a Lamborghini. What the hell? Even the greatest under heaven Juhian had eyes as wide as shocked rabbits. How could he not when a sports car suddenly burst through the window? Furthermore, this was a suite on the twentieth floor. What happened should be impossible unless the car flew over and slammed in. Just what the hell? He had destroyed and fixed numerous hotels until now but it didn't matter. Whom the team members covered their ears after hearing the loud horn. Hey! You Jeha! They ran toward the car that had burst in through the wall and window. It was a sleek and sexy car body. This orange supercar looked extremely strong and awe-striking because of that outer appearance. It somehow didn't have a scratch on it even after slamming through the wall like a meteor. The only damage it had was the driver on the inside who looked potentially dead. And Egu, the Captain M's prized collection is all destroyed. The numerous pots and digital devices Juhian had put on the windowsill were all destroyed. But Juhian's eyes were open wide because of the message that popped up in front of him. This is the carriage that carries the majesty around. You can smell the scent of an extremely precious treasure. Was this a treasure too? Ilya kicked the supercar and started speaking as that happened. Holy shit, 
How the hell do you have to drive to slam a car into the 20th floor of a hotel? Mr. Pushover, do you even have your driver's license? Jeha, whose head had been against the steering wheel, jerked his head up. What the hell? I even have the special license to drive a fucking ambulance. Blah blah blah, how about you wipe the blood off your nose before you keep talking? Jeha quickly covered his face. That phoenix sure was amazing to let him end with such little injuries after this large accident. Jeha then urgently turned the steering wheel. Oh right, move away. Don't get close. This son of a bitch is extremely vicious. What? The supercar started to throw a tantrum. As someone asked what, in confusion. Virum, virum. A Lamborghini's unique loud engine sound could be heard. The team members all dropped their jaws in shock at this loud noise that sounded as if someone was firing a cannon. The supercar flashed its headlights viciously before it started to violently spin its wheels. That wasn't all. Ah! The car that they thought had calmed down after slamming in through the wall started to squirm left and right as if it had gone crazy. It truly looked like a violent wild horse flailing around. The team members blanked out as it looked as if it might shoot fire at them if they even touched it. They soon became shocked for a different reason. The car is flying. It was actually flying. It was floating in air as if it really flew over to slam through the wall of this 20th floor suite. That was extremely shocking. There had been many artifact cars in their past life and artifact cars were being developed right now as well, but flying cars are extremely precious. The artifacts that were turned into artifact cars in the future were mainly Alexander the Great's carriage Warang's horse horse drawn carriages like that. Most of them had things like strong engines, durability, or fuel efficiency. The only unique one that one of the four emperors had had in the past was the Trojan horse. It was a car with the camouflage ability. That car had been enough to receive everyone's envy, but if it is a flying car, what is it, the sun chariot? Isn't it the Nimbus Cloud? Jeha urgently shouted at them. No. It's Odin's eight-legged horse bastard. What? Then it is Sleipnir. That's unbelievable. How the hell did someone like you grab a highest grade artifact like that out of the prison? Hey. What do you take me for ah? Anyway, everybody d-o-d ah. Captain Nim. The supercar started viciously shaking up and down as he said that. Ah. It seemed to be throwing a fit that a bastard like Jeha was on it. It was at that moment. See, see. I told you you couldn't handle it. I told you. The rope that must have been with Jeha this whole time started to slap Jeha. It's dangerous. Hurry up and hand it over. Hand it over. Jeha shouted as the rope tried to push him by the cheek and take over the steering wheel. Fuck, I refuse to ride a car driven by a rope. I feel like my life would be in danger. You driving it is more dangerous. It is. They must have been arguing about this since earlier. It was at that moment. Ache. They must have touched its last nerve as the car's doors opened on both sides. It was so cool how the doors slid up instead of opening out. However bang. Bang. Ah. The seat suddenly flung Jeha and the rope outside. It felt as if a horse had kicked them in their butts. The rope screamed and fell on Juhian's head while Jeha was huffing in anger while rubbing his hurting butt. Ow. How dare you not recognize your master, you shitty horse. Master? You. You are the master of that thing. Yeah. Of course I'm the master. I drove it once already. The supercar's engine loudly roared vroom. As if it was telling him to get lost. It was so loud that it sounded like a tank. It seemed to be growling saying that someone like Jeha did not deserve to hold its reins. The rest of the team members foamed at the mouth. Damn it, it got even angrier because you said something stupid. Hurry up and apologize. Yeah. Sleipnir can only be ridden by someone at the major god's level. Why did you have to bring a divine grade, no, a major god level one of all things? Did you forget about the incident with Poseidon's horse in the past? 
Poseidon's horse had appeared as one of the artifact cars in the past. People were excited for it as one of its abilities was to run on water. But it didn't matter. It was so violent that the monarchs couldn't handle it and even the four emperors said to just release it. The important thing was that it was so violent that the greediest bastards in the world had given up. Sleipnir was the favorite horse of Odin, the all-father of Norse mythologies. This famous horse was said to fly around the sky and could even go into the netherworld. It was not a horse that could easily be handled. As if it was proving that was the case the supercar tired to stomp the team members to death. The car didn't budge even as they sent thunderbolts and all sorts of attacks to stop it. Does this stupid horse not know anything? Bang! The car that was charging forward stopped. An angry Juhian had stopped the supercar with one foot. The team members gasped. Holy shit, he stopped that thing. Of course, he was only able to do it thanks to his artifact. Hercules who beat down the Nemean Lion Artifact SS Grade, Divine Grade, Possession Artifact it was Juhian's belt. Ilya's jaws dropped as the belt with the lion on the buckle responded. Wow, that was an artifact. I thought it was a new Versace product. Juhian's camouflage ability truly was amazing. He must have rummaged through his new Greek artifacts he enslaved in the prison. Hercules's artifact released its strong power. You will have a god's body for ten seconds. You will have the strength of a god for ten seconds. Juhian pushed Sleipnir with his foot with an annoyed expression on his face. Sleipnir seemed to be anxious as it was being pushed back but Juhian just kept pushing it with his arms crossed. Give me your hand while I'm asking nicely. An angry Sleipnir raised its body and tried to stomp on Juhian. I told you, hand. Juhian ruthlessly kicked Sleipnir. Crack. The supercar that was worth billions of one became crushed. He crushed the artifact that didn't even get a scratch from slamming through a wall. Sleipnir cried in pain. His team members were crying too. Egu. Think about how much it would cost to fix that. Captain Naim. That car, Egu. The Majesty's carriage that had flipped over like a bug on its back looked around before viciously spinning its wheels. And then vroom. Ah. That shitty horse. It flew out through the hole in the wall. Juhian patted Jeha's shoulder as Jeha tried to chase after it. It's fine. We can follow it slowly. You were able to escape the great prison thanks to that bastard. Yes. I did good, right? Yes. That's the only one you brought out. Excuse me. Yes, that was it. How could I get more? But how about a bonus for bringing such a big fish? Please. However, Juhian just sneered at him. You, um, Captain Nim. Juhian walked over to the anxious Jeha. You did a good job bringing out a major god-grade artifact. But I think you did something else too. E, excuse me. I'll let it go this time since I have some faults this time too. But Jeha, you know what will happen if you lie again, right? Jeha started to shake as Juhian gently tapped his pocket and walked away. Holy shit, he's such a monster. Jeha quickly emptied his pockets and miscellaneous artifacts he looted. From the great prison started pouring out. As he was doing that ah. They heard a scream from the center of the city. Sleipnir seemed to be causing a rampage in the city after running away. W. What the hell is that? It's a flying car. The Majesty's carriage seemed to be causing quite the ruckus outside. It seemed to be whining while looking for its master. It was driving around the entrance of the great prison and destroying the city. Of course, the nearby Pandora soldiers and artifact users started to gather around. The news about Sleipnir quickly spread through SNS and the news as well. It's obviously an extremely strong artifact. We must get this flying artifact car. Some of the monarchs nearby were about to go crazy with greed as well. Quan Hyuk Su was one of them. That's an extremely precious divine grade artifact. It must be a treasure. Quan Hyuk Su timed it for a bit before jumping onto Sleipnir. It took quite the quickness to jump into a flying object. But as he forced the door open and tried to get inside Sleipnir seemed to hate it quite a bit. 
It didn't even want Quan Hyuk Su touching it. It tried to kick Quan Hyuk Su out as it had done with Jeha, but ho, I can't miss out on this precious artifact that is obviously one of the Majesty's treasures. A strong dominance slammed down on Sleipnir. Crackle. Sleipnir was so strong and violent that it sent the mighty Four Emperor's Grade user away. Ugh. Quan Hyuk Su groaned after being sent flying by what felt like a horse kicking him. This bastard. As the horse started to become even more violent swoosh. Sleipnir reacted to something. All of the artifact users gathered around were shocked after sensing this aura. This is. What was viciously flying toward the horse was Gungnir. Ju Hien was holding on to it as well. And then. Pow. Ju Hien stopped Gungnir from destroying the car as he kicked the supercar once again. The supercar flipped over like a bug once more. Ah. The artifact users freaked out even though there wasn't a scratch on it. H, how can he treat a precious artifact so terribly? Ju Hien and his team didn't care and just activated their abilities. They blocked the streets and sky to block Sleipnir's escape routes and launched thunderbolts to slow the horse down. And then now. They all jumped into Sleipnir. The others were shocked. Those bastards. They're taking the artifact. Ju Hien didn't care as he grabbed the steering wheel and expertly turned it. Virum. Ju Hien's team screamed as the car violently shook. Captain Nim. I, is it really okay to ride this thing? The team members grabbed onto whatever they could inside the roaring Sleipnir as they gulped. B, but at least this bastard isn't kicking us out thanks to the Captain Nim. Captain Nim. There are people following us. They heard loud noises as soon as someone said that. Hand over that artifact. Chase them. Get them. There were hordes of people chasing them. Ju Hien put the car in reverse and smiled. Don't worry. I'll lose them quickly. Do you not trust my abilities? Julian sighed and properly put on his seatbelt. Ju Hien seemed to be the only one who could control this bastard, and you have the best driving technique of all of us, so. But at that moment hold on. Julian, who was telling the others to put on their seatbelts, seemed to realize something as he looked toward Ju Hien. Do you even have your driver's license? You told me you got your license in your late twenties. The entire team turned pale as Julian shouted. And then a silent Ju Hien smiled brightly. Make sure no cops follow us. This son of a bitch. Chapter, 337. Make sure no cops follow us. This little punk. The team members grabbed the back of their necks at Ju Hien's nonchalant response. What did this bastard just say? Jeha, who was squished in this two-seater with the rest, started to shout. Hold on a minute. What about that time we went to get the worm? The Captain Nim drove at that time too. Even then. Ju Hien smiled extremely brightly. Ah shucks, of course I had no license then too. Julian covered his face as if he was screwed. He then seriously mumbled to himself with his face still covered. If an individual is caught driving without a license, they must show up in court and pay a fee as according to the Road Traffic Act. They will have the right to a lawyer and if they have caused an accident. Hey. Mr. Lawyer. Please calm down. Anybody without an ID may be considered an undocumented resident unless they have a green card or work visa that can prove their identity. Excuse me. I said please calm down. Julian, who had been running simulations in his mind, sighed as if he had given up. And then ah whatever. Just don't get into an accident. Got that? Please don't get into an accident. I won't, you little punk. You're such a wuss. Hey. I'm not joking right now. You already have a lot of shit that makes it extremely annoying to represent you. Okay, okay. By the way isn't it too much for four people to squeeze into a two-seater? What? Excuse me. They all blinked in confusion. They then realized that Julian was in the passenger seat while Jeha and Seole were squished in between the two seats. Ju Hien smiled brightly. Everybody get off except Seole. What? Especially you, Kong Ming. 
Who the hell gave you permission to sit next to me? Do you want to die? My first time in a supercar is with a damn dude in the passenger seat. The two men peeked outside the window. The people chasing them looked extremely vicious. That was probably the reason. Excuse me. I don't mind being a squished potato. I, it's an artifact so can't you just change the shape. Unfortunately, Juhian did not budge. Get off. Even if it is an artifact, do you think it is easy to change the shape of something this size? It was at that moment. The inside of the car started to change as Juhian tapped the chair without thinking much about it. Crackle, crackle. There were sparks inside the car before the location of the engine changed, the number of seats increased and there was a lot more room now. It had reacted to Juhian's dominance. That so-called difficult change had finished in an instant. The male team members clapped like seals. A, as expected of our captain. He changed such a large artifact with ease. Truly amazing. Holy shit, I thought we were in a movie or something. Juhian scoffed and responded. Get everybody else inside too. Jeha shouted with joy as soon as he said that. Hey. Everybody get on. Hurry up. Juhian pushed down on the accelerator as soon as everybody got on. Virum. The car shot forward. However Captain Nim. There are police cars and enemies to the front. Juhian frowned and shouted after seeing the light of the police sirens. Hold on tight. The speeding car suddenly spinned. Screech Kaya. The team members slammed against the side and squished each other at the sudden movement. That wasn't all. Ache. Juhian had shown some fearsome driving technique to lose the enemies. The car drifted to turn a corner and started to ridicule the enemies. Bang. Bang. It was a clean drift even though it looked as if his car might flip over at any moment. What a perfect drift. The car pushed forward after having squirmed through the enemies like an eel. That wasn't all. Juhian efficiently dodged any obstacle in his way. In fact, it was the enemies chasing Juhian like crazy who ended up crashing and flipping over. Of course, Juhian's team members felt as if they were going to die. Ah, ah. It felt terrible as if they were on a roller coaster that spun 360 degrees. But that wasn't the end. The team members gasped after seeing a guard rail that was getting close. An anxious Julian started shouting. Hey! Hold on! We're above the river right now. Don't you dare! Juhian smirked and made the car fly. He jerked the steering wheel to crash into the guard rail and flew off the road. Bang! They suddenly felt as if they were floating but the team members were too busy being scared to notice that. Ah! The team members really felt as if they would faint. Fuck! This is why we don't let the captain drive. Who expected him to do something like this in the middle of the city? I'm going to kill you. Of course, Juhian was smiling brightly. It's fine, ITLL be fine. This is a flying car. It can fly but like hell it could fly boom. The car started to fall as if it was anything but a flying horse artifact. Bang, bong. The car ended up slamming into the river underneath the road. Splash. It had happened in an instant. The team members started huffing as water started to enter the car. What? It can fly. It's fine. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm not used to the controls yet because it's my first time driving this artifact car. We'd really die if you weren't used to it two times. Juhian was calm for some reason. Either that or it was trying to send us to the underworld since it is a horse that can go to the afterlife. The team members couldn't believe it. Hey, this is not the time to make a joke. What? You're not going to get into an accident. Everybody in here is about to die. Julian was shouting in anger while Jeha was sniffling. This is just my opinion, but we must have hit someone on the way here. That must be why we are receiving divine punishment. Yeah, that must be it. Juhian started to laugh. I didn't hit anybody, you son of a bitch. I have no reason to hit anybody. 
Ju Hian then channeled his dominance. The sinking car started to float up. I, it's floating. Ju Hian patted the car as if to praise it. Good, good. Now you're listening to me, you little punk. Sleipnir seemed to have calmed down a bit. First proof of it was that it was docile. Screech, screech. Second, the chair changed to fit Ju Hian's body perfectly. PSSH. It released air from all of the seats to make them softer. Jaha couldn't believe it. Wow, it wouldn't listen to me at all. Siole was being amazed by the softness of the interior as she spoke. Maybe it thinks Captain Im is its master because he has gun near. I guess so. Anyway, it looks like it is listening to him now so let's go B.A. You can't take this artifact car. An unexpected individual jumped onto the back of the car. Ronnie Hansen. It was a man who seemed to be in his thirties. He was one of the knights of the round table Juhian had slammed into the great prison. He had been on top of a building and waited for the right moment to jump onto the car. The entire team's eyes opened wide after seeing him. What the hell? That bastard made it out too. Jaha started to frown as if he realized something. Ah that motherfucker must have followed me out when I escaped with Sleipnir. Ho, oh, but why does he look so terrible? Although they had come out of the same great prison, Jaha looked fine while Rani, Loki's artifact user, looked like hell. His clothes were ripped everywhere and he looked like a beggar. Rani stuck to the back of the car like an octopus and continued to shout. Stop right now. I got this majesty's treasure out properly with my power. He looked as if he wanted to kill Jaha who should be inside the car. So you get the hell off right now. How dare you run off with my car? How dare you trick me? The rest of the team looked toward Jaha. Jaha was now sweating bullets. No, you see that. What had happened when Jaha had gotten stuck inside the prison? At that time when Juhian's artifacts had been excitedly throwing Pandora's soldiers into the great prison damn it. How can you throw me in here too? Jaha felt wronged after being kicked into the great prison by Juhian's artifacts. He was saying it was a mistake and tried to go out, but ow, fucking Captain Bastard. He closed the damn door. Jaha was extremely sad as he realized he was stuck inside the great prison. He was even stuck in here with Pandora's soldiers. They were extremely angry after having Prometheus's artifact stolen. Monarch of pushoverness, you son of a bitch, we got you know. What are you going to do about this? Get your captain to open this door right now. Otherwise, we're going to kill you first. Egu, my poor life. An angry Jaha brushed back his hair as if he was holding his anger back. Hey. I'm extremely angry right now too. You want to start something? Although he was called the monarch of pushoverness, he deserved his position as a monarch and the chaotic aura of the phoenix exploded out. He couldn't make the enemy submit using his dominance as Juhian did since he specialized in affinity. However, they still could not look down on the power of his artifact and his power as a monarch. The enemies became scared and stepped back. At that moment hey, you guys, stop. How many times do I have to tell you not to mess with monarchs since you are no match for them? Loki Nim. Jaha instantly frowned. This bastard is. Jaha felt disgusted just looking at this guy. The reason was simple. It must have been in his past life. While he was stuck in a room restoring artifacts after the rest of the team had died hey, restore these things. Be careful since they are extremely precious artifacts. Many monopolizers had come to Jaha with artifacts at that time. But every single artifact this bastard Loki brought had been dangerous artifacts. Engra Mainu, Armageddon, Sodom and Gamara, Noah's Ark they were all artifacts related to the end of the world. The bastard had hidden the identities of the artifacts but it was easy for a sharp person like Jaha to figure it out. These bastards are collecting artifacts related to the end of the world. What else had he said to him as he was stuck there like a slave? Do you want to be something called a majesty? It's nothing much. It's fine as long as you are alive. Your legs are useless now so you're perfect for it. He was feeling disgusted after meeting that bastard again. However at that moment humans. Kill the intruders. 
TSK. As he got ready to run away after seeing the guard suddenly rush over they were suddenly swept up by a fog. This was not the fog of annihilation but a rare fog of teleportation. They all foamed at the mouth because it was a trap but Jeha's eyes had been sparkling. Why? This feels like the crow. That was the case. It was faint but he felt the crow's aura inside the fog. He could tell because he was always by Juhi inside. The fog that the crow sent had teleported Loki's army and Jeha to a different location. They were thankfully able to get away from the guards. W, where is this place? They had teleported to an unfamiliar cell deep inside the prison. The bastard who will bring forth Ragnarok has appeared. They all shook in fear after hearing a voice inside the cell. Loki's artifact user seemed to be the only one who was happy. A major god. It's a major god-grade artifact. The team members freaked out as they heard the story. What? You saw Odin's artifact. Really? And then what happened? Anyway, Odin. As Jeha was about to continue speaking hey, hold on. I don't think this is the time for storytelling right now. There's an annoying bastard on our tail. They turned around after hearing Ju Hian's statement to see that Quan Hyuk Su was behind them as well. How did that old man get here? Ju Hian started to smile. I guess we have no choice. I hope you don't get carsick. Excuse me? Carsick? The car viciously started spinning at that moment. Ah! Loki's artifact user fell off the car from the sudden movement. Ugh! You son of a! Quan Hyuk Su arrived right next to him. He was looking at Loki with disgust. You stay out of this. That artifact is mine. However, at that moment no, both of you stay out of this. Both Loki and Quan Hyuk Su's eyes opened wide. Ha! Ha ha! Juhian Sleipnir was viciously charging toward them. Bong! Sleipnir slammed into both Loki and Quan Hyuk Su. Ah! Both Loki and Quan Hyuk Su were sent flying while coughing up blood. Even if they were superhuman, they were only humans who were approximately 70 kilograms in weight. They would always be sent flying by a charging car. The team members dropped their jaws in shock at the sudden roadkill, no, the hit and run. Julian was especially foaming at the mouth. Hey, are you fucking crazy? I thought you weren't going to hit anybody. Julian calmly responded. They are superhuman. They won't die. Damn it, that's not the problem. Julian had a refreshed expression on his face as he turned toward Jeha. All right. We got rid of the annoying pests so keep talking. E, excuse me. Where did you say Odin was imprisoned? Juhian's eyes were sparkling like a kid in a candy store. Chapter, 338 Where did you say Odin was imprisoned? Juhian's eyes were sparkling like a kid in a candy store. Siole wanted to die after seeing his gaze. Captain Nyam, please don't make a gaze like that anywhere else. She felt as if she was looking at a baby kitten acting cute. Even Chloe had to cough after almost being charmed. The male team members exchanged gazes with each other to pretend as if they didn't hear that. Hey. Zeus had his you know what ripped off. Do you think Odin would fare any better? WTF, then will Odin have his eyes ripped out? No, he's a god who wanted wisdom, so wouldn't his brain be ripped out? Fuck he'd be lucky if he only lost his eyes or brain. Odin was known for being a womanizer too. Ah then he might have his dick ripped off too. Wait, that's not important right now. We're going to be dragged into the tomb right now if we make eye contact with him. Ah, you're right. That is true. The male team members turned pale. Ju Hien, who may or may not know what they were talking about, smiled and looked at Jeha. You really saw Odin, right? Was he alone? Did it seem possible to get him out? Ah that. Julian kicked Jeha in the stomach as he was about to talk. He was telling Jeha to shut up. Let's be humane and get at least one good night of rest. The other team members quickly tried to change topics. However Odin was definitely there and I think it is probably farther north of where we had been. 
There were other artifacts as well and I got Sleipnir out with a scam. Would you like me to tell you how I did all of it? Ilya and Julian became extremely angry as Jeha blurted it out quickly as if he was rapping. Hey! We told you not to tell him. Are you crazy? Do you want to be shoved back into the tomb right away? Jeha wanted to cry. Damn it, that would be better. You guys try surviving the Captain Nim's gaze. Jeha was in pain and looked as if he wanted to barf. At that moment Virum. Sleipnir suddenly became riled up and shook side to side. The nearby building started to explode. Bang bang. Captain Nim. They turned around to see a bloodied Loki and Quan Hyuk Su walking toward them. That damn scammer bastard. Does that bastard not know that he should respect the elderly? The two artifact users' eyes were glowing as they came to grab Sleipnir. To be more specific, they seemed to have come to grab Juhian. Are we some wild boars or something? Get the hell off. The two of them seemed extremely angry after having instantly been turned into roadkill. The chaotic powers of their artifacts were gobbling up the nearby buildings. Julian gasped after seeing the two of them. See. They're angry. What are you going to do? Ju Hian just snorted. I guess once wasn't enough for those shitheads. They all screamed as Ju Hian pushed down on the accelerator once again. Captain Nim. Are you thinking about hitting them again? Yes, hold on tight. Hey. The wheels of the car screeched viciously. Ju Hian seemed to be planning on slamming into them properly this time. Ju Hian's eyes seemed to be on fire. I'll make it so that their bones will crumble into dust. Loki's artifact user and Quan Hyuk Su scoffed in response. Fine, bring it on. I'll grab you and drag you back. They activated their body strengthening artifacts with confidence. Swoosh! Ju Hian just drove past them. It truly did happen in an instant. The two of them, who had been ready for the physical impact, became anxious. Hey! Co Ju Hian. Ju Hian was humming with joy after easily driving past them. Of course that was a lie. Why the hell would I do a battle of strength with them? It'll just increase the cost of maintenance. Hey! You scared me. Julian was angry but the other team members looked as if they had expected this. Let's be honest, even the Captain Nim doesn't want to get sued. Jeha nodded his head. But I am feeling refreshed. Those two were the worst when all of you died and I was left alone. Really? Yeah. They tormented me and broke my arms and legs when I refused to restore their artifacts. Especially that Loki bastard. Ju Hian suddenly jerked the steering wheel once he heard that. Everybody in the car slammed to the side. Kaya. And then Pao. Ju Hian attempted to turn them into roadkill once more. Quan Hyuk Su and Loki's artifact user coughed up blood once again. That son of a. It was no easy task to stop the one ton plus Sleipnir that was moving swiftly even if they used body strengthening artifacts. Sleipnir had raised its front wheels and started stomping down on the two bastards. The team members screamed at the car moving up and down but Ju Hian's eyes looked angry. Stomp on them more. Rip their arms and legs off the same way. Quan Hyuk Su and Loki's artifact user felt as if they were going to die. They had turned into superhumans with their evil god artifacts and all sorts of other artifacts but they felt as if they were being squished by a tank. They tried to use the openings they found to grab onto Sleipnir but it slammed away most artifact abilities. As expected of a majesty grade artifact. It truly was a huge car. Someone without Hercules's level of strength would not be able to handle the strength of this car. They should be feeling lucky not to have died already. After stomping on them for a while the Lamborghini flew up as if it had finished its task. Loki, who had been stuck underneath, finally managed to catch a breath and raised his head. Fuck. He became anxious as Sleipnir flew away but he could not chase the horse like this. His arms, legs, and even his ribs were all crushed by the horse. He threw away his destroyed cell phone and looked around. I have no choice. I have to call the other knights. But at that moment crackle. 
It must have not been done after smashing down on them. That is. Ju Hian's hand was visible outside the driver's side window. In his hand was a crackling spear. It was the gun near. Ju Hian viciously smiled. You won't have time to call the others. Damn it. Ju Hian soon threw gun near. This major god spear shot forward with extreme murderous intent. Loki's artifact user became anxious and used his floating artifact to run away. But it didn't matter. Gungnir was a good artifact that would track the target to the end of the world. It chased after Loki as if it was crazy. Shu. Ju Hian looked toward Quan Hyuk Su after sending Gungnir off. Hey old man, are you still greedy for my horse? He had a disgusted smile on his face. He stopped here because they were temporary allies but his eyes looked as if he would start a war with a fellow four emperor's great artifact user if he continued to be greedy. That was probably the reason. Egu. It looks like I need to get some rest today because my hips hurt. He made an extremely wise decision. While that was going on did Loki not contact you? I heard that he somehow found his way out of the great prison. Isn't he probably dealing with that right now? That? You know, Sleipnir, the thing that is causing quite the ruckus in the news right now. He's probably late since he is grabbing it. Ah. Inside the druid's clock tower there were quite a lot of people in this building with the round table artifact even though it was quite late. It was because of Juhian. Co Juhian will use the majesty's key to go in and out of the great prison. He will loot the rest of the artifacts too. That key truly is a headache. Pandora's soldiers had ended up imprisoned inside the great prison because of Juhian. It was all because of that damn majesty's key. He's going around calling that prison his castle because of that key. He calls himself an excavator but that bastard really is a tomb raider. That is why we need a key that will allow us to go in and out as we please as well. Then why don't we make a key too? Merlin started to laugh out loud. I knew you would say that. Is it possible? Merlin laughed again. Why are you even asking? We've already created the cradle. If we've already made one already why wouldn't we be able to make the key? That was the case. They were the chief executives for a reason. They had created one of the Majesty's treasure of legends. That artificial Majesty's cradle they had created was unknown. The item that allowed them to create these artificial treasures was the Pandora system artifact. It was the artifact that bastard Prometheus had brought with him when they first met him. At the same time the Majesty's throne is very useful. It truly was useful. The artifact that Prometheus had brought with him was the Majesty's throne. It was the only real Majesty's treasure that they had with them. That artifact was how Prometheus and they were able to use the Majesty's powers. Well, it might just be them acting as regents while the Majesty was not around, but anyway, we need Loki to hurry back in order to make the key. We need to combine Prometheus's power we split to turn it into the key. It was at that moment. Boom. What the hell? The iron walls of the druid's clock tower shook violently. They all looked out in shock. They saw that Loki's artifact user was outside the window. Hansen. What happened to you? Why the hell do you look so terrible? The man who barely managed to fly over with his artifact urgently slammed on the window. Hurry up and open the door. Hurry. I don't know when that bastard will arrive. He kept looking behind him. Juhian's gunmere could be seen at a distance still chasing him. Loki's artifact user had run like hell to dodge Gungnir all the way here. Why? This is an impregnable tower of iron walls. Pandora's HQ this building with the round table artifact was an artifact itself. It was a castle of iron walls that could withstand any artifact attack or disaster. What the hell are you doing? Hurry up and open the door. He had no idea how far Gungnir was behind him. His mind was full of fear as to whether it would appear in ten seconds or one minute or whenever. Hurry up and open it. They anxiously walked over to the window. He does not seem to be fake. Loki's artifact user started to smile as the door opened. Okay, now, but the moment he took a step into the castle of Iron Walls Puke. 
the iron spear that had instantly flown over stabbed into Loki's artifact user's back. You ugh. Loki's artifact user coughed up blood and fell forward. The assassination had happened in an instant. Even he could not survive an attack from a major godgrade artifact. The knights of the round table inside the castle started freaking out. T, this is. Gungnir was shaking its butt with joy after stabbing Loki. It continued to shake its body to the knights that were looking at it. It seemed to want them to look at it. There was actually a note that was tied to its body. This is. They opened the note and gasped. You may be next. What the? Gungnir was excited after completing its mission and flew away. Someone who had seen the handwriting on that note was shaking in fear. What did you call me for? Ju Hien was snorting while looking at someone. He was visiting an expensive penthouse in the middle of the city. Ju Hien was waving something at the man groaning in front of him. I brought you a bunch of pain relief patches because you said your hips hurt but I guess it's not enough. Ho, oh, of course not. Where was Ju Hien? He was currently in Quan Hyuk Su's one of many homes. Quan Hyuk Su had casts all over his body as he was resting. He managed to get off with only this much injuries because he was an artifact user. You should be thankful that I didn't sue you. How dare you hit me with a car like that? You should be grateful that I didn't grind you to death, you old bastard. Quan Hyuk Su was about to say something before he frowned after hearing noises outside. His reaction was to be expected. Holy shit, a lumbo. This looks so cool. You think I can take a picture of it? It should be okay, right? Isn't this extremely expensive? Ju Hien's Lamborghini Air, Sleipnir, was casually parked outside the penthouse for everyone to see. Regular Lamborghinis would have been enough to catch people's attention but this one was a flying car. I heard it's a flying car. This is the first one of its kind, isn't it? None of the businesses have been able to develop one yet. This artifact was extremely famous after being talked about on TV all day. Quan Hyuk Su was annoyed because reporters were gathering outside. He was already angry that he couldn't take it but now Ju Hien was basically flaunting it outside his house. You brought that over on purpose, didn't you? Get to the point if you already know that. What is this important info that I must know? I'll let you know that even if we are allies right now, you are still my enemy. It's time for war if you say some bullshit. Quan Hyuk Su's eyes sparkled as he started to speak. Don't be shocked and listen carefully. What is it? I am your father. Ju Hien quietly picked Gungnir up. Chapter 339 Don't be shocked and listen carefully. What is it? I am your father. Ju Hien quietly picked Gungnir up. He looked ready to shove it up Quan Hyuk Su's ass. An anxious Quan Hyuk Su quickly shouted. Hold on. Put that down. I told you it was war if you said some bullshit. Ju Hien's eyes flashed as if the war was starting right then. But Quan Hyuk Su seemed to have a lot he wanted to say. I told you to listen carefully without being shocked. Even if it was extremely shocking, you can't react like that. Extremely shocking my ass. Ju Hien threw Gungnir without any hesitation. Swoosh. Gungnir flew toward Quan Hyuk Su. It looked more excited than ever before. How could it not be when it had been used as a broom, duster, and other cleaning tools until now? Its butt was dancing with joy after finally being used how it was supposed to be used. Die human. I'm going to kill you. Gungnir aimed for Quan Hyuk Su's heart. It looked like an excited evil beast. But Quan Hyuk Su deserved to be at the four emperor's level. He used his superhuman reflexes to grab Gungnir. Bang! Crunch! His hand that was covered in a cast seemed to be in quite the pain. That was the start of the battle of strength between Quan Hyuk Su and Gungnir. Quan Hyuk Su was holding back Gungnir that was right in front of his face as he looked at Ju Hien. Hey Ju Hien, can you hold on a minute? I know it is hard to believe, but it's the truth. You are my son. Really? You have quite the amazing son. Ju Hien made a motion and Gungnir pointed downward instead. 
Quan Hyuk Su started freaking out. Gung Nier's tip was pointing at a dangerous location. Wait. Hey. Quan Hyuk Su foamed at the mouth but Ju Hian just smiled brightly. Goodbye, father. I will enjoy taking your position, father. Quan Hyuk Su quickly shouted. It was a joke. A joke. What's wrong? I like it. That means that all of your wealth will become mine. Quan Hyuk Su despaired while looking at Ju Hian's wicked smile. He would probably get ripped off more than benefit from this. Okay. I'm sorry. It was a joke. I'll never say it ever again. Ju Hian nonchalantly called Gung Nier back. Quan Hyuk Su, who had almost died, started to speak again. My goodness, I didn't know you would hate it that much. I'm just telling you to cut the crap. I can still clearly remember my father's face. Quan Hyuk Su peeked at Ju Hian and slyly smiled. Then what about a hidden son? I should just kill this old bastard. Ju Hian's eyes flashed and the rope viciously squirmed as if to react to it. It was releasing a chaotic aura as if to prove it was a heirloom. Quan Hyuk Su could not read the mood as he continued to blab. You know how they say that dominance and affinity can be passed down through genetics? If you consider that your superb abilities are all things you have received from this great father of yours. It was at that moment. Ah. Uh, the rope smacked Quan Hyuk Su on the mouth. Are you going to keep up your bullshit? Are you? It looked like a regular rope but it hurt more than an iron club. He felt as if his teeth would all fall out. Actually, he did lose quite a few teeth. He would have to pay over 10 million won to get implants for all the teeth he lost. Ju Hian started to speak at that moment. It looks like you want to pretend to be the father of the king to get some benefits. Don't even think about using such a shitty method. Quan Hyuk Su just shut up. But Ju Hian laughed as if his intentions were obvious. This bastard had more loyalty than Chairman Quan, but they were the same when it came to using people to their advantage. That was why it was obvious since Quan Hyuk Su agreed to work with him. Well, I am using this bastard before he could use me though. So cut the crap. What is the actual important information I need to know, you old bastard? Don't you think I am too young to be called an old bastard? I'm still in my forties. Quan Hyuk Su seemed to give up after Ju Hian picked up Gung Nier again and started to speak. The Knights of the Round Table. How much do you know about those bastards? I know that they are members of the executive board who killed us in the past. I know they are motherfuckers with artifacts who separated people by class and spread diseases throughout the world. I know that you were one of them. That is why you are going to die when I take care of them as well. I also know that you won't only need implants for your front teeth if you called me over for such stupid info. Quan Hyuk Su, who had lost his front teeth because of the rope's attack earlier, started sweating bullets at Ju Hian's confident demeaning. This vicious bastard doesn't show any openings. Then do you know about this? What? Your subordinate is one of the knights of the round table. Ju Hian peeked at him. Other than Yang Chen? Yes. Ju Hian became interested after hearing that. Why? They were shitty but Ju Hian was extremely curious about the Knights of the Round Table. Those bastards are the ones who killed us. They also seem to have a lot of unique artifacts. But those bastards were like the Illuminati or the Freemasons who were frequently seen in conspiracy theories. They were like those secret organizations where there were a lot of rumors about them but nothing was really known. The only thing he was sure about was that they were the chief executives of the current era of artifacts. But his subordinate was one of them? That wasn't all. Quan Hyuk Su said something that would make Ju Hian's ears perk immediately. Now that I think about it, you already have three of the Majesty's treasures, right? So what? Pandora's executive board actually has one of the Majesty's treasures. They have the throne. A treasure. Ju Hian tapped on the cast on Quan Hyuk Su's arm as soon as he heard that. Old man, why did you take so long to tell me such good shit? It makes me want to kill you. Ow, ow, ow. But it seems like you like what I told you. What about that majesty's throne? 
Quan Hyuk Su smiled wickedly after seeing that Ju Hian was interested. I can't tell you any more for free. Ju Hian didn't seem to have any plans on being savage as he nodded his head. Fine, I'll let you use Sleipnir once. Unfortunately, Quan Hyuk Su was an extremely greedy man. Oh come on, you're too stingy. I'll only accept you handing Sleipnir to me. Ha ha ha. That is true. Ju Hian smiled brightly. But it only lasted for a moment. You better tell me before I tell the world about how your daughter is a homewrecker. Quan Hyuk Su instantly lowered his tail. At Washington DC inside this city with numerous global businesses that was known as the heart of the United States Grave Company, one of the world's top three artifact companies, had its headquarters here. This skyscraper of a building had a large artifact shopping center, an experience hall, an exhibition hall, and other similar areas on the lower floors while the offices were on the higher floors. Someone who stole everyone's attention appeared in the lobby. H, hold on. Isn't that the monarch of plunder? People dropped their jaws as Ju Hian nonchalantly walked through the lobby. He caught their attention from the moment he confidently got off the Lamborghini, but he was giving off so much charisma in his sunglasses and suit. He had a physique that looked great in a suit and had his hair slicked back in a style that wouldn't work for most people. He looked so cool that even men would say he was cool. Kia. Ju Hian Nim. He's so cool. Anybody who recognized him were screeching with joy. As for Ju Hian's sister Joy who was coming back from lunch she spurted out her coffee. W, what is up with his look? It was quite shocking to see him like this since he usually just walked around in a sweatsuit. Joy's reaction didn't matter as Ju Hian was gathering a crowd as if he was the Pied Piper. Hey! Sell the information about spotting CO Ju Hian. Hurry! It's quite the scoop. We found our prey. The walking artifact warehouse has appeared. Hold on. Why is CO Ju Hian here? Is he going to loot this place too? You dumbass. Why would he loot it? CO Ju Hian is the representative director of this place. Ah. Even he would not loot his own company. But Ju Hian never showed his face at the company that even the employees got confused from time to time. In fact, his appearance was, in some aspects, an ominous omen. The company turned into chaos at his appearance. Eek, the monarch of plunder I mean hello Director Nim. What brings you here today, sir? Ju Hian just nonchalantly headed for the CEO's office. And then bang. D, Director Nim. Edward was inside with his eyes opened as wide as rabbit's eyes. Ju Hian smiled as soon as he saw Edward. Old man. Come chat with me for a bit. Edward was currently shaking. It was because Ju Hian was smiling brightly in front of him. Um, Director CEO. Edward's gaze moved toward the item Ju Hian was holding. Ju Hian put his hand on Edward's shoulder as if they were extremely close with each other. What's wrong, old man? I heard that you left for a good job recently. Why don't you give me a reference too? Ah uh, come on Director CEO I mean, Director Nim. What do you mean leaving for a new job? Where else would I go but he? Tang. They heard a gunshot inside the meeting room. The employees gasped. What the hell was that? They heard another gunshot. Edward turned pale as a bullet brushed past his ear. Old man, your head is next. Edward instantly lowered his tail. I'm sorry sir. I'm sorry that I couldn't tell you in advance. But I only recently joined the round table. It hasn't even been a week. The employees who were eavesdropping started to talk. Hold on. The round table? Isn't that Pandora's executive board? That is our company and our director Nim's enemies, so why would the CEO Nim join them? Edward urgently explained himself. Wait, director Nim. Don't get the wrong idea. You need to go into the enemy's lair to understand them. So. What? You didn't go to get artifacts since I wouldn't give you a heirloom? Isn't that totally an act of betrayal? Edward started coughing after hearing Ju Hian's implied meaning. What do you mean by betrayal? He wasn't actually trying to keep it a secret from Ju Hian or to betray him. 
he was planning on giving it to Ju Hian from the beginning. He was just planning on getting it first to sell it to Ju Hian for a good price or to make a deal. He thought that it would be enough for Ju Hian to give him an heirloom. I barely got into the round tables meeting. Ju Hian just scoffed. Well, whatever. I looked into it and you didn't embezzle any funds from the company. It also doesn't look like you sold any of our information. But I'm surprised you got in. It's not a place where just anybody can get into. Edward's eyes flashed as if he had found his opening. Then should I tell you how I got into it? But it won't be for free as for the payment. Juhian sneered at him. Get lost. It's all thanks to the evil god artifact. The evil god artifact that used to be on my sister is on you now. You just used it. W, what the hell? You knew about it. That's why I didn't give you a heirloom. You seem to be fine using the substitute heirloom. What? Wait, that was the reason. Well, what you have isn't that good for an old man like you so feel free to let me know whenever you want to get rid of it. It's going to cost you though. Damn it. Edward seemed to be feeling truly wronged. Oh well, none of that mattered right now. He could get some information about the Knights of the Round Table that he didn't have much information about. Those bastards are my enemies and our enemies. The Era of Artifacts. They were the dark forces that allowed the monopolizers to run wild spreading tomb syndrome to people and making them die. Those bastards were the reason numerous people died by artifacts and his team had been murdered by them as well. Basically, they were the final group of enemies Ju Hian had to take care of. There was no way he would let them be. Those bastards are trying to artificially create the Majesty's treasures. He didn't care about those fake artifacts. What he was interested in was I heard that those bastards have the Majesty's throne. What do you know about it? Edward coughed again. Wow, you already know all of that. I guess I have no choice. That's right. The Pandora system artifact is that Majesty's throne. Ju Hian became interested after hearing that. He didn't trust everything that Quan Hyuk Su had told him, but this was what that bastard had said. The Knights of the Round Table found the Majesty's descendants and used them before killing them. They did all of that to use the throne. But apparently the Majesty's descendants they had tracked down using DNA could not handle the Majesty's throne. But you might be able to control it. Whether in the past or now, Hyung Nim and the others are probably scared about that. Edward sighed and continued to speak. But it would be difficult for me or you to swipe that out of there. Why? The knight guarding that thing is the final boss. His name is John Harper. That bastard uses a Christian artifact. Ju Hian's eyes opened wide. He then started to laugh out loud. Maybe that was to be expected. What the hell? Quan Hyuk Su, you despicable old man. Was my subordinate he was talking about being a part of the Knights of the Round Table that guy? That was the case. John Harper was one of Ju Hian's former team members. But he was someone who should have already been dead. Chapter, 340 What? Outside a quiet orphanage Julian, who was volunteering as usual, seemed shocked. He looked completely out of it, as if he was someone who had received all of the shocks a person would receive throughout their lifetime at once. It was at least touching. That this guy suddenly showed up to his volunteering place with snacks and all sorts of supplies. This punk's risk of giving must have activated again. But the information he brought with it was not touching at all. Forget touching, it almost gave him a heart attack. Holy shit, Quan Hyuk Su is your father. What kind of K-drama nonsense is this? Ju Hian ruthlessly smacked Julian in the stomach. Pow! Julian started groaning inside the car. Ju Hian then viciously growled at him. You didn't hear anything else except that part. Do you want to die? Ugh. S, sorry. It was just so shocking that I. It was as shocking as if he would have been told that Chairman Quan was Ju Hian's hidden mother. It was something completely unbelievable. Thankfully it was just nonsense Quan Hyuk Su came up with to get some power as the father of the king as he would have been out of it for about a week if it was real. However, Ju Hian just sneered at Julian. As my lawyer, you shouldn't get shocked at these stupid crap. 
What? Why not? Why else? Some random gold digger might show up with a kid and claim that she is my wife and that the kid is mine. You should get used to things like that happening. Julian's expression was quite the spectacle to watch. And then oh my goodness dear God, I will take care of this trash for the benefit of society. Who the hell is it? Who is the mom? Is she Korean? American? If not, then. I should just kill him. Are you not going to fucking listen properly? Okay. I got it. Did you say John Harper? Julian quickly changed demeanors but nobody knew whether he heard what Juhian had to say or not. Isn't John your former team member? He was on the same team with you before our tomb raiding team was created, wasn't he? That was the case. Juhian's infamy had spread after the creation of the tomb raiding team but Juhian had been surprisingly famous even prior to that. Someone who was born with a dirt spoon was doing as well as the large excavation teams in the end, he even cleared Mammon's tomb which was said to be impregnable. It was that fame that got him noticed by the monarchs and scouted by Chairman Quan in the end. John was someone who had been on the same team with him until then. I heard that he died on a mission after they joined TKBM together. He then floated around TKBM's offices on his own until he was assigned to the tomb raiding team and met the rest of them. Part of the reason Juhian hated to lose team members was because of this former team member. I thought you said he was already dead when you searched for him in this life. Juhian nodded his head. Juhian had looked for all of his former team members after coming back to the past. John was naturally one of those people. However, the records showed that John was dead. Then you found out that he's actually one of the knights of the round table. I already said that was the case. That was why this van that had turned into a stealthy meeting room well, Sleipner had Jeha and Ilya in the back seat who were grumbling. Yes yes, our captain Nim must be so happy that his former team member is still alive. Why don't you quickly drag him out of there and restore his memories so that he can be your right hand or something. I'm very happy to get a shitty new team member. Julian scoffed after seeing the two of them grumbling. What's up with them? Chloe, who was calmly reading a magazine back there, responded to him. Please just ignore them. They're just upset that the Captain Nim said he would add someone they don't know to the team. Hey. I'm not upset. I thought that I was the Captain Nim's right-hand man this whole time but I just learned that some other bastard already had that position. I am just shocked. Ah, I just think that anybody using Christian artifacts is shitty. I think we should set them all on fire. Whatever, let him come. And so what if he has an Archangel artifact? I'll send them all to the fiery depths of hell. Ah. Julian understood right away. You said that John was a Christian artifact user right? Yes, he even used an Archangel grade artifact. It was understandable that Ilya would be wary of him as someone who used devils and Satan. An archangel is pretty much the final boss. Jeha didn't even need to be mentioned. Anyway, Captain Nim. Just ignore these idiots. Jeha slyly smiled after hearing Seolae's response. Ho ho, Miss Lee Seolae. Are you sure you are okay with that? I heard that John might be a woman. Apparently she was hip to hip with the Captain Nim. Seolae's face turned into quite the spectacle. Juhian started to laugh out loud. You guys seem to have the wrong idea about something. I'm not looking for John to add him to our team. I'm going to kill him. E, excuse me. The team members became anxious after hearing this unexpected response. None of you will say things like that if you watch this video. What video? Juhian showed them a video on his phone instead of responding. Apparently Edward had secretly taken this video at the round table. The team members just tilted their heads in confusion. It's just the old man's meal huh? Their eyes opened as if they noticed something. Wait. This guy. They became anxious after seeing someone in the video. Wait a minute, why is this son of a bitch there? All of them were flabbergasted at the person they saw in the video. Captain Nim, this is Samuel. That was the case. Juhian's tomb raiding team consisted of ten people including Juhian. 
there were only two members they had not found along with that traitor, Yang Chen. This bastard named Samuel was one of the two supporters they had to find. The interesting thing was that Samuel was also an ability user who used Christian artifacts. Ilya growled in anger after noticing him. That, 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 that that motherfucking Jesus artifact user. The two of them did not get along. Well, Samuel was a supporter because unlike John, he used low-ranking Christian artifacts. That so, called Jesus artifact is actually one of Jesus's disciples' artifacts or an unknown believer. That's not the issue. Why is Samuel a knight of the round table? Juhian laughed. Do you want me to tell you something even funnier? What is it? The old man called Samuel, John Harper. Captain Nim say what? Please hold on a minute. Then Captain Nim's former right-hand man is Samuel, the supporter who used to be on our team. No way. I thought you said that your old team member died before you met us. How can they be the same person? What if he is just coincidentally using the name, John Harper? Ju Hian shook his head as he watched the video. No. They're the same person. The old man said that this bastard is using an archangel artifact to protect the throne. There wouldn't be that many people with the fit to use archangel artifacts. Most importantly, Ju Hian's ghost-like intuition was telling him they were the same person. But how can Samuel who could barely use B-grade artifacts use an archangel artifact? That makes no sense. We would have known if he was a SS-grade artifact user. Everybody was freaking out while Ilya was in the back opening and closing his mouth without being able to say anything. Just what is going on? What else could it be? Your subordinate bastard who is at the round table he was actually one of Pandora's watchdogs in the past too. Juhian smirked while thinking about what Quan Hyuk Su had told him. Around the same time at Pandora's executive board a meeting was going on in the room with the round table. Next issue is regarding the Majesty's Key. There were numerous leaders and generals sitting around the round table artifact that could sit 150 people. The 13 spots on the round table artifact guarding the king were where the knights of the round table were seated. There was a man with a fierce expression on his face among them. He seemed to be in his late twenties. He had blonde hair and had a gentle appearance but his eyes gave off an odd sense of coldness. This person was Juhian's former team member Samuel who was a supporter on the tomb raiding team. He was also known as John Harper. He was one of the most influential artifact users in the Knights of the Round Table alongside Merlin. It was at that moment. Excuse me, John Nim. John Harper Nim. They were asking if the Vatican was okay with us creating the Majesty's Key. Ah, uh, yes sir. There are no issues with it. The meeting started again and the person next to John poked his side. John. What's wrong with you? You seem to have been upset since Seo Juhian sent Gunnir here. John snorted in response. Of course he has been upset. Seo Juhian, you truly are a headache in both the past life and this life. Wait what? John was different from the other artifact users. He actually remembered the past life like the rest of Juhian's group. I wish I got my memories back a little sooner. John was disappointed about that. Is it because of the note that was on Gungnir? The woman showed the picture on the note Juhian had sent through Gungnir. It's just provocation. Put it away. John frowned as if he was disgusted. He naturally knew a lot about Juhian as he remembered his past life. He also knew a lot about the rest of the team as well. Well, I never considered myself to be on the same team as them. He had been on Pandora's side from the beginning but they were people who needed to create the majesty. He found Juhian while searching for the majesty's descendants and candidates for the artificial majesty. That was before Juhian had joined TKBM. It was highly likely that Seo Juhian was one of the majesty's descendants. That was why John had pretended to be a random expert excavator and slyly teamed up with Juhian. He was going to be by Juhian's side to keep an eye on him. But Ju Hian ended up being noticed and they both joined TKBM until Ju Hian killed him. That damn bastard. He was thankfully able to be revived using a Christian revival artifact. Anyway, he then joined Ju Hian's tomb raiding team as Samuel. 
he needed to keep an eye on Ju Hian and his team. But they eventually decided that Seo Ju Hian would do them no good and determined through a round table meeting to summon the crow's tomb to get rid of him. Even the Vatican that supported Pandora called Ju Hian Satan and a disaster to the world and requested them to take care of him. However, why did the world go back to the past? This was all because of the crow and Seo Ju Hian. Seo Ju Hian's revenge had started and he has now even awakened some of the Majesty's treasures that they had been so wary about. But it was still okay. We just need to take him out again. Unfortunately, that was not the issue right now. Then we hope that you can be the one to create the Majesty's key, John Nim. What? Why would I do that? You are the perfect fit for it. Have someone else do it. I don't have time to deal with that right now. Then please leave it to me. The person who raised their hands hoping to find success and climb up the rankings was John's subordinate. I will help John Nim. She was actually Ju Hian's sister, Joy's stepsister. Hey. Parasite. Make me an artifact key. I heard you were hired as an engineer. Joy frowned after seeing the message she just received. It was from her stepsister. This girl was her adopted parent's biological daughter. She had been so happy that she was able to use her parents' influence to join Pandora's core personnel. Why the hell is she suddenly asking me to make her an artifact? Her adopted parents had seriously neglected her after adopting her. In fact, this stepsister of hers had treated her as if she was a maid. Joy just ignored the message as she had not had a good relationship with her adopted family for a long time. Just shut up and make it. Otherwise, I'm going to tell daddy to raise your rent, support fees, and living expenses for the month. You read my message. Why are you ignoring me? Hey, do you want to fucking die? I'm going to tell daddy to get you to quit school. You damn parasite bitch. Joy groaned. Ah oh, what the hell is up with her? First of all, she wanted this for Pandora. Does she even know where I work? Grave Company was pretty much Pandora's enemy. My success is riding on this. If you don't do as I say, I'm going to blow up the company that hired you. Ho, oh, this bitch. Why not? Just make her one. Ju Hian was sneaking a peek at Joy's phone. Ju Hian. It's just a key. Feel free to use our company's facilities to make a damn good one. I will give you permission. What? But. For example, make it a key that is a bomb or one that gives off a curse or rips people off. Ju Hian smiled wickedly as he said that. I can even let you borrow one of my artifacts to make it if you want. Chapter, 341 I can even let you borrow one of my artifacts to make it if you want. Joy fell backwards after hearing that. There was only one reason as to why she was so shocked. Ju Hian is going to let me borrow an artifact. She was thinking about how she hit a jackpot until she got scared. He was telling her to make an artifact for his enemy. It was like soldiers at war telling the enemies they would return the weapons they picked up at the last battle. Joy had an ominous feeling and grabbed Ju Hian. Um, bro, you feeling okay? Can I really make a key for her? Ju Hian sneered at her. Why not? It was pretty much an established fact that Pandora was going to make a copy of the Majesty's key. He was the only one who could go into the great prison right now. There's no way those bastards would be okay with that fact. That was why trying to create something similar was something he had expected. That's why it doesn't matter if we make something good and send it to them first. Okay then, I'm really going to make her one. Yeah. I'll let you borrow my key so that you can touch it all day to reference I. Ju Hian was about to take his ring off but stopped. It was probably because he saw his sister drooling while looking at his ring. Ju Hian slowly moved his hand behind his back as if he was disgusted. Just use your imagination. What? Why? Why else? I forgot she was my twin sister. She would definitely not give it back to him if he let her borrow it. But at that moment Buz. Joy's phone started vibrating. Joy seemed concerned but did not plan on picking up. The call ended before it went off again as if it was angry. Buzz. Buzz. 
the vibrations alone seemed to want to rip Joy's head off. Juhian asked after seeing her ignore it again. Are you not going to pick it up? It seems like an important call. I, it's not that important. It's just spam. But her phone continued to go off. As Joy became annoyed and tried to throw her phone against the wall. Ju Hien, who in the hell did he even take her phone answered the call. He heard an unfamiliar woman's voice. Hey, why the hell haven't you been picking up? I told you that you have to always pick up my calls. Anyway, why are you ignoring my messages? I told you I need to make a key right away. I'm in a fucking rush so run your ass over right and you want me to run my ass over. The person on the phone seemed shocked. How could she not be shocked when she heard a man's voice instead of Joy's voice? W, who the hell are you? Me. The owner of this cell phone's owner. Joy's jaw dropped at Ju Hien's actions. Her eyes seemed to be saying that he can't do this. And then Joy anxiously grabbed Ju Hien's arm. H, hold Ju H M M P H. Ju Hien covered Joy's mouth and continued speaking. Stop drooling over my subordinate employee. If you really want a key, call back with respect and sincerity. Joy started screaming as Ju Hien then hung up the phone. W, what the hell are you doing? Ju Hien started to frown. Spill. Who the fuck is this disrespectful bitch? What? This bitch is the one who told you to make the key. Who is she to you? No, wait. Joy debated for a moment before spilling the beans as if she had no choice. My stepsister. Fire seemed to be bursting out of Ju Hien's mouth and eyes as soon as he heard that. Your stepsister. His voice sounded vicious. She's just like her fucking parents. Ju, Ju Hien. Ju Hien started to smile as if he found the situation to be despicable. A clear memory of the past brushed through his mind. It was probably when he was in high school. Joy had tried to come find him when she came on a trip to Korea. Ju Hien had ignored her completely, saying that they were strangers now. It might have seemed cold but there was a reason for it. Ju Hien had been threatened at that time. Joy's adopted parents had threatened him. Don't even think about meeting with our daughter who is living a good life. It was understandable why those people had been so combative against him. There had been a big incident with them in the adoption process. I remember I stole their wallets and even put their car on fire. He had been quite vicious for an eight-year-old. That was why he just thought they were still angry even though it was ten years later. He had left Joy in their care thinking that they were at least cherishing her but what? But they treated her like this? The attitude of this so-called stepsister was beyond anything he had expected. She wasn't just a bitch in her personality, she was pretty much an actual bitch. She didn't deserve to be human. Nothing much popped up when he had looked into it but living expenses, payment for raising her, and rent? Going through the messages proved that this was no regular parent-child relationship. She was pretty much being treated like someone who owed a large debt. No wonder she always looked so shabby. Ju Hien peeked toward Joy. She was extremely beautiful since she looked exactly like Ju Hien but she did not doll herself up. Her facial features were on point and her skin was smooth and white. Her short hair that came down to her shoulders looked sleek and her face looked intelligent. But none of that mattered. Her red checkered shirt looked shabby and the large round glasses on her small face had some cracks on it as well. The only new thing she was wearing was the employee ID around her neck. That was why it was weird. Something is weird. I remember buying her clothes, accessories, and all sorts of things. He had bought her a bag and wallet from a fancy brand for Christmas and although she had been shaking saying it was really expensive, she said it was pretty and seemed to like it. Where did they all go? None of that mattered right now. Do you owe these people money? No. Of course not. Then why the hell are they treating you like this? Joy didn't seem to want to say anything but Ju Hien pretty much forced it out of her with coercion. It's just the fate of an adopted child. It's nothing much. Really? Yeah. So please show me that majesty's key thing. I'll only look at it for a moment here. Joy seemed happy touching the ring on Ju Hien's hand. 
Anyway, don't worry about what just happened. It's just that she's a bit CRA sensitive. Really? We actually have a good relationship. Okay, that's good. Juhian's smile seemed to carry a lot of meaning. At the same time who the hell was that bastard? Joy's stepsister Michelle was looking at the phone in disbelief. He's that parasite's owner. Then I guess he's the CEO of that bitch's company. She then scoffed. A man who was talking to her became interested. What is it? The CEO of which company? His name was Henry. He was the knight of the round table who was tasked with creating the Majesty's Key. Creating a Majesty's Treasure was an extremely important project. They needed quite a lot of manpower, but what we need most is an S grade of higher engineer. Pandora naturally had their own engineers for creating unknown and other treasure substitutes. But those engineers were all unavailable due to mysterious accidents or illnesses. Michelle had stepped in when they had all been discussing where they could go get an engineer. Joy does seem to be a S grade engineer based on what I heard. She could tell based on the things Henry told her. Well, she was actually a SS grade engineer, but there was no way that they would know that. A S grade engineer will at least be at a mid sized company. Which company owner was that just now? Is it a place that might work with Pandora? Michelle chuckled at Henry's question. She doesn't go to a company like that. She said she works for a tiny necessities shop or something. Apparently there are only about six employees. What? But she's a S-grade engineer. She could become the top engineer at a large company if she wanted to do so. I asked my parents to make her fail all of her interviews. I didn't want to see that bitch doing well. Henry clicked his tongue. Wow, I don't know who it is but that's harsh. But whatever, that's good for us. That's why she's available to us at our time of need. Exactly. Anyway, you're going to help me be an official knight if things go well, right? Of course. Hansen's spot happens to be available right now. I'll ask them about giving you Loki's artifact. Michelle was happy that her plan was working. She just sold off a parasite and could end up with such a high position. Anyway, do your best to convince that owner. Tell him that we are going to hold on to that engineer for a while. Let him know that Pandora will sponsor him splendidly for it. Sure thing. Michelle sneered as she said that. It seemed like a young man based on his voice. Maybe this guy was Joy's boyfriend. She did bring those items that aren't suited for a parasite for her lately. Joy's salary had suddenly gone up and she brought all sorts of good things home that she wondered if Joy was working as an escort. But that man must have gifted them to her. Of course, Michelle had taken away the bag, clothes, and accessories that Joy had received as gifts. Why should a parasite like her have such good things? Michelle then looked at the blue bag next to her. Like this bag. The guy at least seemed decent and had great fashion sense to get her this limited edition Prada bag that was extremely difficult to get. Even the owner of a hole in the wall company should have some financial pull. I'll steal that guy away too if he seems decent. She really hated Joy. That Asian girl got into Harvard with a scholarship when she got rejected. Adopted daughter my ass. She's just a parasite that latched onto a good family. Her parents were white supremacists who hated everybody other than white people so she didn't really understand why her father chose to adopt Joy. That was why she took away all of the money Joy made and the stuff she got. She thought that might at least make Joy suffer. However at least you're quite useful this time. Michelle started to laugh out loud. While that was going on wow, holy shit, this is crazy. Pandora's engineer team members had their jaws dropped. My goodness. How is such configuration possible? The engineers researched, disassembled and reassembled artifacts to create industrial products that were suitable for humans. They were using the same methods to create the Majesty's treasures. They were trying to create the Majesty's key using Prometheus's power as the base. Joy had come at Michelle's beckoning and was told to create a blueprint and manufacture the item. Wow, holy shit. I didn't know such methods existed. Let alone being praised, she was pretty much being treated as a goddess. That wasn't all. 
people couldn't become artifact engineers just because they knew the theory behind it. They needed to be able to handle special artifacts like the restorers could and Joy was handling artifacts that were clearly S-grade or higher. That was why they were shocked. Someone like this works at a small trinket store. Wasn't it a necessity store? Wow, she's good enough to be scouted by Pandora right away. Well, it didn't matter. It's done. They gasped as Joy got up. What? Already? Hold on, you've only been here for less than a day. She couldn't help it that she was done. Wow, she finished the blueprints in about an hour too. Did you do it properly? Joy scoffed and grabbed her bag. Feel free to test it out yourself if you don't trust me. Please deposit the money into my bank account by the end of the day. The engineers rushed to the item once Joy left. It doesn't seem like she half-assed it. This really seems like it could open any tomb. They were so excited that they were spitting after running it through the precision analyzer. Henry Nim. That young lady, she's someone we must have at Pandora. We need to chase after her. Henry laughed. Don't worry. Nobody can get out of this facility without my permission. Michelle, go bring her over so we can chat over dinner. Michelle didn't like it but still stood up. I'm sure she's by the entrance. But when she got there huh? Joy was not at the door. I thought she would be pacing by the door wondering why she couldn't get out. She wondered if Joy had gone to the restroom but Joy was not anywhere in the building. Michelle became anxious and checked the CCTV. Thankfully, there was a record of Joy. But Joy had disappeared around a corner of a corridor. Michelle hurried over there but it was a dead end. Fuck, where the hell did that bitch go? Oh, you're that shitty bitch. She heard an unfamiliar voice. Michelle gasped after turning her head. S. C. O. Juhian. It really was Juhian. Joy, who should have been here, was gone, but Juhian was here. What the hell is going on? This was a Pandora building with tight security. Even divine grade artifacts could not let people in and out of this place and the alarm should have gone off if he came in through anything but a door. Juhian walked toward Michelle and smiled without caring whether she was flustered or not. But something is odd. He pointed to Michelle's necklace and bag. Those are things I gave my sister for her birthday. Can I ask why you have them instead? His smile looked extremely scary. Chapter, 342 Those are things I gave my sister for her birthday. Can I ask why you have them instead? His smile looked extremely scary. Michelle couldn't help but be scared. Her mind was a chaotic mess right now. Seo Juhian was the worst criminal in the world that even Pandora was wary of him. But the reason she was shocked was not just because she saw him. It was because of what he had just said. Sister. He just said sister, right? Did I just hear wrong? Juhian quickly walked over as she was thinking. She couldn't help but step backward. And then boom. Michelle was backed against the wall. Juhian brought his face up close and started talking again. Are you deaf? Can't you hear me? I'm asking you a question. Why do you have the things I bought my sister? She snapped back to her senses and started shouting. H, hold on, what do you mean your sister? Who is your sister? Juhian just scoffed. Who else would it be? That shabby Hikikomori who was at Pandora just now. She looks just like me but looks much dirtier and uglier. Juhian then tapped on the necklace. Your stepsister who received this necklace as a present. Michelle got the chills as soon as he said that. It was very different with her thinking about it and Juhian confirming it with his own mouth. How was this possible? He's that bitch's older brother. Michelle felt as if someone had hit her on the head. Well, Joy did look like Juhian. If she looked closely, they both had large refreshing eyes. But you couldn't say people were related just because they looked similar. There were people who looked like celebrities. Furthermore, the fact that one was a guy and one was a girl made it so that they gave off different vibes. And even though she had suspected it. I remember my mom and dad said they weren't related. 
Her parents had been asked by their connections time after time since Juhian appeared. Allenby, your adopted daughter looks a lot like Seo Juhian. Ho ho, all Asians just look alike. No, they really look similar. Are you sure they aren't related? What was your adopted daughter's original Korean name again? Her parents had gotten angry after hearing that. Are you saying anybody who looks alike is related? They are absolutely not related. That was why Michelle had been thinking they weren't related. They had never treated Joy as a part of their family but they even locked Joy up in a storage room as Seo Juhian became more famous. They made it so that she could never show her face. They didn't even make her act as a nanny for the children of guests or work as a maid serving them food. Michelle had thought that that was a bit weird, but... They really were related. Michelle started shaking. She heard Juhian's vicious voice at that moment. Now then, how about you answer my question? Michelle snapped out of it and urgently shouted. T, this necklace is mine. So is the bag. I don't know what the hell you are talking about. Unbelievable. Really? Where did you get it? Where? It was a limited edition item at a department store Kaya. Michelle screamed. It was because Juhian ripped the necklace off of Michelle's neck. Juhian then started to laugh. This is a custom necklace I made for her so there is only one in the world. So is this bag. Juhian opened the bag. Joy's initials were clearly visible in a corner of the bag. Juhian had it all custom made. Your clothes look oddly familiar too. Michelle was scared. But the moment she decided to use an artifact to escape. Where do you think you're going? Pow! Uff! Michelle clutched her stomach and fell down to the ground. Juhian's ruthless fist had slammed right into the pit of her stomach. Cough, cough, ugh! Michelle groaned and flailed around after having been sent flying like a piece of paper. She was hurting so much that she thought she was going to die. A regular fist would have hurt as well but this fist was no regular fist. What the hell did he do? Ju Hien slyly shook his hand. Ah, uh, sorry about that. I forgot that I was using Hercules's artifact. What? Michelle groaned. Did he just say Hercules? Ju Hien then stepped on Michelle and continued to speak. Anyways, don't think about doing something stupid because you are an artifact user. I can't guarantee how I will respond. What? Ju Hien took out Joy's phone. He then showed Michelle the texts she had sent yesterday. You're the bitch who sent these, right? Michelle nodded her head with a scared expression. Now that Juhian confirmed it, he then showed her someone else's message. Now tell me who this number belongs to. The messages were quite the spectacle. Hurry up and deposit the money. See what happens when you come home during your vacation. I'm going to break your fucking legs and shove you into the storage room. I threw away everything in your room. Don't bring in anything other than what we assigned you. Get your ass home right now. You should just be doing housework instead of wasting your time at school. Juhian's eyes flashed. Michelle started shaking after seeing the number. He's going to kill me if I tell him. I, I don't care and Kaya. Michelle started crying as Juhian snapped one of her fingers back. Juhian started to speak. Should I break another one? I, it's my mom. My mother. Then this is your father. Michelle turned pale after seeing the messages from her dad. They were different from her mom's, but bring me some water now. Why the hell aren't you bringing me my food? Hurry up and take off your clothes and come serve the kids. Her father had sent many messages treating her stepsister as a maid. There was also a message that could be misunderstood. That was probably the reason. H, hold on it's a misunderstanding. All of these are just Ms. Under Ugg. Juhian smiled brightly. I don't expect an adopted kid to be treated like royalty, but you should at least treat them humanely. Don't you think so? Where do your parents live right now? She started to shake again. Someone, I need to call someone. Her whole family might be killed by Juhian at this rate. Now that she thought about it, Joy was one thing but Seo Juhian was currently breaking into Pandora. 
S, someone, P. However Kaya. Oh, nobody is going to come. So hurry up and tell me your address. Damn it. What the hell is going on? What else could it be? Wow, he succeeded in the, take away Prometheus's power, plan. Joy, who had come out of the research facility, was in a van near Pandora's HQ. Pretty much Juhian's entire team was waiting inside the van right now. Jeha seemed really happy while looking at the numerous keys. Those retards probably still have no idea what happened. They really didn't. Joy had done something she wasn't supposed to do when she went into Pandora's research facility. Of course, she had properly made them a key. She had used Prometheus's attribute of having the path be opened for the Supreme Leader. They never said I couldn't make multiple keys. Her plan from the beginning was to go into Pandora's facility and suck out Prometheus' power. Joy shared the keys with the team members and explained. This should be able to get you into most of Pandora's facilities. Anywhere that the Supreme Leader Prometheus would have had access, whether it be barriers, buildings, or tombs, should be available. But they have limited usage unlike Ju Hian's key and remember that it cannot close things like he can. Jeha, who had been envious of the Majesty's key since the moment Ju Hian got it, was extremely happy. Jackpot. Doesn't that mean I can go into changing rooms or even bank safes with this? I can get into pretty much anything as long as it is a Pandora-owned building. But at that time ow, ow, ow. What the hell? Jeha's key suddenly started flailing like crazy. Ow, ow, ow. You bastard. Jeha was ruthlessly pecked away by the key. The other team members' keys were fine but Jeha's key was throwing a fit. What the hell? What's wrong with this thing? Joy started sweating bullets and looked away. Actually there are some duds because I was quickly mass producing them. What? But there are no issues with how they function. That's not the problem. Jeha's key was the only one aggressively attacking him, but the other keys had some issues as well. Some of the other keys were whining and acting cute, hiding, trying to run away, had princess syndrome, or even started stealing things. Hey! Where do you think you are going? Ong! Is it really okay to use these things? Oh well, none of that mattered right now. The important thing is that the Captain Nim was able to get past Pandora's security to get inside there. He was exactly right. I got quite an interesting artifact thanks to you guys. Ju Hien was waving a key that Joy had handed him as he smiled. The one that Ju Hien had was the only one of the mass produced keys with an extremely high durability. The all access key made by grinding up Prometheus SS grade, divine grade, consumable artifact remaining uses. 99899 Michelle started shaking after seeing the mysterious key. She didn't know what it was but it was obvious that he had used it to get past Pandora's security system. That wasn't all. The key that that bitch made for us might not be normal. Even if there seemed to be no issues when they tested it out I can't let them use it. The people over at the lab were wondering what was going on. Why is Michelle taking so long? Henry, who was waiting for Joy, looked outside. Why was she taking so long when he was thinking about having a long, serious conversation with Joy? Joy was talented, she seemed to have a great future and her face was pretty. He couldn't help but be interested. She does seem to dress modestly, but ah, uh, okay. I can just buy her some clothes today. He needed to get her interested in him to bring up quitting her job and coming to Pandora anyway. But Michelle wasn't coming back with Joy for some reason. They didn't seem to have a good relationship with each other. I hope they aren't arguing. He had sent her a text asking why she wasn't coming back but had not heard back. As Henry frowned and was about to walk out of the lab ding. He received a message. Conversation between sisters going long. Henry sighed and responded to her. Don't make her cry. It'll be hard to seduce her. Seduce? Yes. I plan on having the time of my life with her today. Oh my, then how about 7 p.m. at the Crystal Hotel? I'll get her very interested. Henry laughed. She really is sharp about these things. Okay. Butter her up and bring her there. Yes sir. 
he received another message a few seconds later. Oh right, please make sure to test the key before then. We have to make sure she's not tricking us. That was the plan anyway. Henry grabbed the key Joy left for them and called his subordinates. Let's head to the great prison right outside here first. I have some time until 7 p.m. now. As he was doing that Ju Hien's eyes were on fire while looking at Michelle's phone. Time of your life my ass. This damn horny son of a bitch. Wasn't this to be expected? The one sending messages to Henry was actually Ju Hien. A bloodied Michelle was shaking in both fear and pain under Ju Hien's foot. Chapter, 343 Time of your life my ass. This damn horny son of a bitch. It really was Ju Hien. The one sending messages to Henry was actually Ju Hien. A bloodied Michelle was shaking in both fear and pain under Ju Hien's foot. It was to be expected. What kind of scam did he just pull on Henry Nim? She couldn't believe how shamelessly Ju Hien pretended to be her as he texted Henry. Furthermore, she knew he wasn't going to set up a romantic dinner for Joy and Henry. Old man, connect me to a dealer. How much are dudes going for these days? This bastard was planning on dissecting the Knights of the Round Table for organs. Ah, uh, right. He's an artifact user so he should fetch a good price. A price for what? Michelle became desperate. Henry Nim. Please don't be fooled. That text just now wasn't from me. Sadly, she could not use telepathy and soon heard some chatter nearby. Where is the closest great prison again? There is a gap of the great prison at the public library 20 minutes from here. Okay, let's go there. That'll be perfect to test out this key. No, oh, don't go. Henry and the research team called over some soldiers and started to leave the building. Michelle anxiously tried to groan to get their attention, but MMPH. Her mouth was covered by the rope. She felt a terrible pain when she tried to use an artifact. Ugh. She was stabbed in a scapula. Xiang Yu's sword that was the length of a person's forearm was stabbed in there. Ju Hian started to speak as if to tell her not to cause more pain on herself. Hey bitch. I told you not to use any artifacts. I promise you that you will be in enough pain without causing pain on yourself. Michelle started shaking after seeing Ju Hian smile. Ju Hian was someone who believed that death was just time to rest. He would not let her have such sweet rest so quickly. Do as I say if you don't want to be in pain. Ju Hian pointed to the area around them before continuing to speak. First of all, turn off all the monitoring devices in here. Then call your parents here. Why do you look so shocked? Your dad is one of the generals on Pandora's executive board while your mom is one of Pandora's advisory professor. Ooh. He already knows all of that. Ju Hian smiled brightly and put the phone against her ear. So you better not say any bullshit and call them over naturally. M. Michelle. The Allenby couple freaked out after being called over to the Pandora Research Facility. They were wondering why their daughter called them over but what the hell. What is going on? Their daughter who had called them over saying that it was an emergency was on the floor in a bloody mess. Michelle started crying as soon as she saw her mom and dad. Daddy, mommy. It hurts. Michelle is in pain. See, call an ambulance right away. Was there an accident in the lab honey? Michelle vigorously shook her head side to side. That bastard, that bastard, he. What? That bastard. Which son of a bitch was it? It was at that moment. I told her not to think about using any artifacts but she wouldn't listen. The Allenby couple almost fainted after suddenly hearing a voice. It was because someone unbelievable was sitting on a chair on the side of the room. S. C. O. Ju Hian. There was no way they wouldn't recognize Ju Hian's face. They were core members of Pandora. Furthermore, they wouldn't forget that shitty child who they almost adopted in the past. How could they forget that annoying yellow face? They had foamed at the mouth when this bastard became one of the four emperors and opposed Pandora. However how is this bastard in here? This was Pandora's RD facility of all places. 
It was kind of far from the executive board's clock tower but it was still part of Pandora's HQ. How did you break through the barrier? How did nobody notice? Why is the alarm not going off? Ju Hien nonchalantly shook a key around. Because of a key my sister made with Prometheus's power. The Allenby couple frowned. They seemed to have quickly realized what had happened. They knew that the RD department was busy using Prometheus's power to create a majesty's key. But did he say his sister? No way. Michelle, did you put her in this project? Ah, uh, ah, uh, what's wrong? You idiot. The couple grabbed the back of their necks. They knew that Michelle had volunteered for the Majesty's Key Creation Project to earn some points. They had also heard that she was tasked with finding engineers since they were lacking them, but. Why did you have to put that bitch in it? That was right. Her parents never expected Joy to be a part of this project. Michelle had not told them about it. But Michelle felt wronged. It's not something I would have needed to tell you. She had not wanted to make Joy look good. No matter how much her parents hated Joy, they might have looked favorably on her if they heard that she made huge achievements on the Majesty's Key Project. It hurt my pride too. Her pride had been hurt enough after getting rejected to Harvard. Michelle's parents looked as if they wanted to go crazy after hearing what she said. Because it wasn't something she needed to tell us. You should have told us. You should have told us something this important. Why? What did I do wrong? Who knew that Seo Juhian would tag along with her? You should have been more wary of it. You should have been on your guard pulling over an engineer from Grave Company. Michelle's eyes opened wide. Gee, Grave Company. What are you talking about? That parasite just worked at a small necessity store, didn't she? Her parents were fuming with anger. This dumbass. You dragged that bitch in without even knowing where she works. Michelle's jaws dropped. B, but she said that the owner only had six subordinate employees. Juhian started to laugh. I do only have six personal subordinates. Unlike the company, my tomb raiding team is not that big. Unbelievable. Her parents couldn't believe it but they couldn't put all the blame on her. They had been feeling so rushed to hide things about Joy that they had not told her anything. The reason they tolerated Joy working for Grave Company was just so that they could use her. Pandora had been trying so hard to put a mole in there. That was why they were having her continuously watched, but Michelle, did you send Joy's trackers away? Yeah. I wanted to do it without even you guys knowing about it this time. They looked ready to jump up and down in anger. Well, it didn't matter. Then that bitch used Prometheus's power to create a key. Yeah. This is a spare key. The completed product is already with that Henry or whatever. The dad clenched his eyes shut. We need to call Henry right now. He quickly reached for his phone but it wasn't there. Are you looking for this? Are you looking for this? His phone was being moved side to side in front of him. The rope had taken their phones as soon as they had arrived. Liam Allenby confidently pulled out his gun. Hand it over re -ug. They were slapped silly by the rope. Ah! Kaya! Even the artifacts they had on them fell to the floor. And then the rope tied them up and brought them to Juhian. Juhian then smiled brightly at them. I guess I should start with A, it's so nice to see you again after almost twenty years. I have quite a lot of questions for you guys. You better answer them while I am asking nicely. First question, is that unknown thing in this lab? Okay, it must be based on your reactions. I knew it was smart to aim for the RD facility. The Allenby couple started shaking. Second question. How much money have you ripped off my sister until now? Which bank is it in? Ah, actually you don't need to answer that. I just need to loot every bank you guys mainly do business with. Then the final question. Juhian tightly clutched Michelle's head. Ah. Michelle. He was looking at them with a cold gaze. Back then, why did you want to adopt my sis? No, why did you want to adopt the two of us? The Allenby couple gulped after hearing that question. His gaze was extremely vicious. It had been weird. 
I didn't know back then that you guys were white supremacists or that you were trying to adopt Asian kids without any plans on taking care of them properly. Even if they did know, they were just children. They would have been forced to be adopted, but do you remember when you called me in the past? You told me not to contact or meet a kid who is living well. That was why he had thought that they were taking good care of his younger sister. It didn't seem weird on the outside. He had only seen them acting kindly to Joy in his past life as well. In fact, they seemed so kind that he even felt that she was better off with them than with him. He thought her shabby clothing was just because she was a hikikomori researcher. Juhian asked as if he found this interesting. Why did you adopt her? In addition, why didn't you kick her out when you hate her so much? This son of a bitch. It's okay, you can tell me. I'm just curious about it. Michelle shouted as well. He's right. Why did you adopt that bitch? And wait, you tried to adopt Seo Juhian too. Why didn't you tell me? Juhian nodded his head as if it was okay after seeing that they couldn't easily open their mouths. Yes, it's me. Come here for a moment. I need you to go through their heads. They started shaking once Juhian contacted someone. How could they not? Go through our heads. Is he planning on calling that aftermath cleanup crew bastard? They were right about Juhian calling Ilya. The aftermath cleanup crew members generally used hypnosis and illusions. They had ways to deal with such people. But the top elites were able to go through and modify people's memories. They pretty much had no way to deal with the elites. That meant that he's going to see everything in our memories, including our plans. That wasn't all. The aftermath cleanup crew was capable of getting rid of traces of anything without others knowing. A person's nationality, background, and even family relations they could erase everything so that their target becomes someone who doesn't exist in the world even if they are alive. They could also completely get rid of a person's body so nobody knows that they died. They were shaking in fear because they had seen how Pandora used these people on a normal basis. This is really dangerous. Wow, Captain, I'm going to charge you a ton for putting me to work like this. A hand suddenly burst out of the wall. A silver-haired young man soon appeared completely. Going through people's heads has a big risk so it's quite expensive. Ilya had used the Pandora infiltration key. Joy had made to leisurely walk in. Ilya smiled wickedly while putting on some black leather gloves. I've heard a lot of the stories. Should I torture them as well as a free service? Shirt, pants, boots, long coat, and gloves Ilya looked quite dangerous wearing all black. Juhian declined the offer. Just go through their heads. I will personally service these bastards. Ah, organize all the crap they have done until now. Also find out where unknown is in here. Yes sir. A moment later Ilya activated Freud's artifact and his eyes flashed gold before the whole area filled with screams Juhian had purposely picked a soundproof testing room so there were no chances of their screams making it out. Bo 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 boom. Ilya excitedly went through the couple's memories. Serious racism and defamation. Treated her like a maid and the total they have taken from her is approximately 40, 000, or 40 million one. Every item they took from her were sold without her consent. Oh look, these people even counted how many pads she used during her periods. The rope wrote down everything Ilya said as Juhian nodded his head for each one. At that moment ah, I found it. I found what happened with the adoption. I also found out Unknown's location. The couple clenched their eyes shut thinking that they were screwed. These guys are doing whatever they please in here. Where the hell are all of the people who should be in here? Henry. Where are you? As for Henry, he was by the great prison. He was here to test the key Joy had made. Do you really think it is okay to use it? What if something goes wrong? It's okay, that's why I am testing it out before we officially announce it. He headed toward the portion of the great prison poking out of the ground. But at that moment Henry smiled after getting a call. Ah, John. Do you know that I'm working my ass off in your place? Working? We created a majesty's key while you are at the Vatican. What? What are you talking about? I thought we decided that we would create it upon my return. 
Are you sure you left it to someone we can trust? Don't worry, don't worry. It was an outsider but her face is pretty and everything's good. Wait a minute. An outsider? What are you talking about? The only outsider engineers available are from Grave Company right now. It's fine, it's fine. Ah, I need to do some tests now. I'm hanging up now. Wait. Who did you have create the key? He heard a scream from the other side of the phone as soon as he said that. Chapter, 344. Ah. John became anxious after hearing the scream through the phone. It was because the scream came with an explosion. What the hell? It was definitely Henry's voice. John urgently shouted to check on his friend. Henry. What happened? Henry. Unfortunately, the call abruptly ended. He could only blankly stare at the phone. The priests coming out of the Vatican noticed John and asked about it. John, what's wrong? Why do you look so serious? It seems like something happened over at Pandora. What? I might have to go back to the U.S. earlier than expected. Wait, John. John had an ominous feeling about this. I hope Seo Juhian didn't do something. The reason he had come to the Vatican in Italy was to meet with the Pope. Why? Now that he had information about his past life, he needed to discuss Seo Juhian with the Pope. He had an idea as to how he got his old memories back. It must have been the power of that artifact. Which artifact was it? The Majesty's treasures were said to be special items that could even control the fate of all artifacts and humans. One of these treasures was the Majesty's Library. That Majesty's Library was the same artifact the Crow used to restore the memories of everybody on Juhian's team. This library was also known as the Akashic Records. It was a grand library where the records, history, emotions, memories well, everything about everything in the world was stored. Juhian was able to return to the past thanks to that artifact as well. The Crow had basically backed up Juhian's memories, emotions, and experiences stored in the Akashic Records and installed it in the Juhian 15 years in the past. That wasn't all. That library artifact was a place where things about people and artifacts were recorded, which meant that these records could be modified or even deleted. Basically, the history of things that have happened and even the abilities of artifacts could be modified. There was no way the monopolizers would not go crazy about such an artifact. So, where was that artifact? It was right here in the Vatican Library. They were hiding it in their secret library. But Pandora's executive board was somewhere with people of all different interests. That was why John had kept this information from Prometheus and his rival knights, but it was definitely here. It was in this secret library that was known as one of the most restricted areas in the world and difficult for regular people to enter. The entire library had turned into the Majesty's Library. John was in charge of handling both the throne and the library. Well, I can't handle them completely since I am not the Majesty. He was basically just able to lick the surface. Anyway, that was the reason John ended up being influenced by the Akashic Records to the point where it would randomly send information into his mind. He happened to get lucky that information about his past life had flooded in at one point. However why did it have to be when Seo Juhian sent Gungnir? It would have been great if he got that information a bit earlier. Then he would have been able to stop Seo Juhian. Well, it didn't matter. Henry. Please don't do anything stupid. He cursed his easygoing friend as he quickly left the Vatican. As for Henry he was foaming at the mouth. Ugh, I'm dying. He had burns all over his body. That wasn't all. There were soldiers groaning in pain around him as well. What the hell? It was an extremely intense explosion. Extreme heat had burst out the moment Henry activated the key. Henry was fuming with anger after losing the artifact and lying there with burns all over his body. It must be that woman's fault. Sadly, he realized it too late. Henry still couldn't forget how Joy had smiled as she brushed her hair behind her ear. Her first impression was a bit cold and he thought she was shitty because she looked a bit like Juhian, but the way that she smiled was so beautiful and lovely. Damn it, I was going to make sweet love to her all night. His subordinates shouted at him at that moment. 
Henry Nim. This isn't the time to lie around like this. Yes, we need to hurry back to the RD facility and fuck that girl up. Are you okay sir? Ah, uh, I'm fine. That girl is so dumb. An explosion like this is nothing for the knights. It was at that moment. Something rolled over and sent Henry flying. Ugh. It was a burning wheel that was going berserk. Henry Nim. It was burning wildly while roaming around this one kilometer restricted zone. This thing had come out as soon as he had activated the key. The soldiers became anxious. Was that explosion just now because of this artifact too? It wasn't Sleipnir that had gone viral lately. They thought it might be some artifact from Japanese mythology because it was a flaming wheel, but we know what that is. It's Helios's chariot. What? The wheel seemed to respond to it and suddenly turned into an unmanned motorcycle. The berserk motorcycle then forced Henry on top of it. Of course, getting on top of an artifact wasn't necessarily a good thing. Ache. Henry ended up attacking his subordinates and the Pandora facilities. Ah. What the hell is this? It must have been set to carry the person who activated the key. Henry wanted to cry. Please ask me for any specific options you would like. I'll put it in as a service. Really? Something destructive. Something so destructive that it will instantly kill any enemies that touch it. Wow. It'd be nice to have something that burns up for the first time in a long while. That was what he had ordered, but. I didn't ask for a chariot like this. Helios's chariot was known for being the chariot that the son of the god of the sun, Phaeton, had asked his father to use. He was unable to control it and ended up burning up people and the land until he died by Zeus's lightning bolt. Furthermore, this was an artifact of disaster that was unable to be controlled just as Phaeton had been unable to control it in the story. It was a crazy berserk motorcycle. The motorcycle crashed into Pandora's buildings and Henry's subordinates and put everything on fire. It made his subordinates even more desperate. Henry Nim. Please get off it right now. We're all going to burn to death. No. Since you are on it, please control it. This is your shot at getting a divine grade artifact. Are you crazy? I can't control this and my body is stuck so I can't even get off. Excuse me. But when it rains it really pours as Henry then heard something even more aggravating. Henry Nim. This is bad. Fuck, what now? Apparently Seo Juhian has infiltrated the RD facility. The emergency alarm just went off. What? He finally figured everything out. Fuck, the two of them were working together. That was why a Greek artifact had burst out once he activated the key. That bastard took all of the Greek artifacts from the great prison and used it like this. Henry realized everything and quickly tried to head to the RD facility. His flaming driving was killing people left and right. The bike only hit Henry's allies. It was quite understandable since it was an artifact that knew how to cause the most pain to humans. Actually, it might be because his affinity level was high. He started swearing in frustration. Fuck. Seo Juhian had no problem driving something like this. Why can't I do it? I can't even go back to the building like this. The other bastards are all elsewhere right now too. That was why it was problematic. The unknown we are producing is there. As for Ju Hien, he was currently laughing in front of a room. You have discovered unknown. He had just found the room where unknown was being produced. So everything in here is unknown. The Allenby couple's expressions were quite the spectacles. Ilya, who had quickly gone through the couple's minds, let Ju Hien know about the things he had seen. That was how they ended up here. It was in a thoroughly locked artifact testing area, but the Allenby couple shouted at Ju Hien who was doing everything he could to break the door. Stop it. That artifact is not something a bastard like you can touch. Yeah. Get your dirty hands off right now. So loud. The rope instantly covered their mouths and even started choking them. Amun Ph. Amun Ph. Ah. Michelle started to cry. Mommy, Daddy. 
Ju Hian walked over to the couple and smiled viciously. What did you say earlier again? The reason you tried to adopt the two of us was because of orders from above. From that Merlin or whatever. I'm Lung Ph. You guys don't know the reason. You guys are still taking care of Joy because Merlin keeps giving you artifacts for doing it. Ju Hian smiled brightly as they started to roll their eyes. What kind of fucking bullshit is that? I'm Lung Ph. Gung Nier was flailing viciously. Ilya frowned, as if he was disappointed that he couldn't get more info for Ju Hian. Captain, I can go into their subconscious to see more of their memories. No. You'll only harm yourself. It's unnecessary for bastards like them. But. The copy of the Raven's Tears is enough. That should give us more information. Ilya nodded his head. So we don't need to deal with that for now. Ju Hian licked his lips while looking at the glowing unknown. We need to hurry up and get this bastard out. The security devices have activated so they're going to come in droves soon enough. The couple looked toward their daughter at that moment. Michelle was slowly crawling to run away. Boom. Where do you think you're going? We need to go through your head next. Ilya used his long limbs to stop Michelle before he smiled in a way that gave her the chills. That experimental tube with unknown in it. What is the passcode? Our captain wants to know. Michelle was shaking in fear as she ran in the opposite direction. She was thinking that this damn tomb raiding team must pick people based on their looks as this druggy looking bastard was oddly handsome as well, but he also seemed like a psychopathic druggy. She felt as if she would be killed the moment she got on his nerves. Fuck, where the hell is that pushover Henry? The alarm even went off. Of course, it would not do much good even if he showed up in his current condition. A desperate Michelle tried to do what she could to buy them some time. Um, handsome aftermath cleanup crew Appa. You make me want to barf. Don't act like we know each other. Michelle did not stop trying to act cute. This should work well on all men. Um, Appa, your hair color is different from what is on the wanted poster. Did you dye it? No. It's because of an artifact's risk. Ilya slowly walked toward Michelle. D, do you have any plans to dye it back? Nope. The captain likes this because it reminds him of the past. T, then how do you use your devil artifacts? Pandora couldn't figure out the fit requirements to use them. Ilya started to smile. Do you have a boyfriend? I, I don't not have one why. Then kill that guy. You'll be able to use it too. Ilya's cold gaze seemed empty for a moment. Michelle turned pale after hearing that. A, are you crazy? Kill my boyfriend? Really? Of course not. You dumbass. Ilya smiled mischievously before breaking her chin. He couldn't believe this stupid girl actually helped him achieve the conditions to use his artifact. How so? Freud's artifact required him to chat with a person before he could activate it. And then Kaya. Michelle foamed at the mouth and fainted at the pain that was so intense that she wished she would die instead. Ilya cynically informed Ju Hian as if he had not been smiling at all. The passcode is incomplete treasure, in Greek. Ju Hian immediately entered the Greek for it. The experimental tube with unknown finally opened. Chapter, 345 The experimental tube with unknown finally opened. Shu. The experimental tube, a tube large enough to fit a person, descended to the ground. Unknown poured out from it once the tube disappeared. They looked like small pearls. The Allenby couple gasped. MMPH, MMPH. They desperately tried to grab the rolling unknowns. However no, you guys can't pick it up. Ju Hian laughed and took out what looked like a water bottle. When he opened the lid bababababang. There was a loud noise and the little pearls rolling on the ground were all sucked in. It was as strong as a vacuum cleaner. Ilya's eyes opened while looking at it. Isn't that Miller's artifact? That's the gourd-shaped bottle from the journey to the west. Yes, I borrow it saying I need to sweep some stuff. Ilya wondered if Juhian really borrowed it. But the Allenby couple were grinding their teeth. These are extremely important artifacts. 
but they soon exchanged glances with each other. It's fine. It's meaningless if he only has unknown. The husband chuckled at his wife's comment. That's true, it needs the earth artifact to use it. The earth artifact they were talking about was the Gaia artifact from Greek mythology. Juhian and Ilya, who had no idea that the Gaia artifact was necessary, were busy focusing on something else. Pi, Pi they were focusing on the alarm that was going off. Juhian motioned to Ilya. Ah, it looks like the minions will come in droves. Let's get out of here. Oh, bring those shitheads with us. Yes sir. The Allenby couple smiled as they started to walk. Yes, leave without looking for Gaia. There will be an opportunity even if we are captured as long as unknown is not fully taken. We have to make sure Gaia is not taken. Gaia was an extremely strong artifact even without unknown. But at that moment. The Allenby couple almost screamed. It was because the rope shoved itself in between their faces. And then. Apparently you need Gaia's artifact to use it. You need it. It immediately rushed over to Juhian. Juhian laughed out loud after seeing the scribbles it wrote in a notebook. What the hell? You need Gaia's artifact. The smart Juhian smiled wickedly. Hmm, there's no way that these bastards don't have that artifact and they are using unknown. I'm sure these bastards have it. That's a super divine grade artifact, shouldn't we take it? The Allenby couple gasped. Juhian didn't care and asked Ilya a question. Ilya, did you not see it while going through their memories? I'm not sure ah, was that Gaia? Ilya quickly realized his mistake. He had seen some suspicious memories in the couple's minds but he was reading through everything so quickly that he had just moved past it. Ilya recalled those memories before quickly changing directions. Gaia is over here. The rope squirmed against the Allenby couple's bodies and thanked them. Thanks for the info. Thank you. The Allenby couple's pupils were shaking. No, this isn't what we wanted. While that was going on, there was someone who was grinding his teeth so hard that they might turn to dust. Fuck, why can't I do it like C.O. Juhian can? It was Henry. He could only scream as he couldn't do anything while stuck to Helios's chariot, the berserk motorcycle. What the fuck is wrong with this thing? Why doesn't it stop when I press the brakes? Virum. Pressing on the brakes made it charge forward even faster. And if he pressed down on the accelerator vroom. It burst forward even faster. Fuck. Stop. It was at that moment. Henry. Henry was shocked to hear a voice from his watch. The voice was coming from the logo on his watch. Henry couldn't believe it. What the hell this voice is that you John? Yes. Henry scoffed after realizing that it was an artifact. You stuck this kind of artifact on me? But John sounded relieved. We put it on everyone to eavesdrop on the nights but in this situation, I'm actually glad I did. Hey. How could you even put something like this on me? That's not the issue right now. What is going on? What was that explosion earlier? What? Ah, uh, I, it's nothing. Henry could not admit that he made a mistake because he was a damn horny bastard even if he died. This project was assigned to him so he would take all the blame anyway. Anyway, I'm hanging up since I'm busy. It looks like CO Juhian might have barged into the RD facility. Okay what? Wait a minute. What? Don't worry, I will go and protect unknown. Why? Hold on. Not that bastard. Henry. Don't go there until I get there. Ah, uh, shut up, you damn traitor. What do you mean wait until you get here? He'll steal everything by the time you get here from Italy. We're in an extremely dangerous situation right now. It's over if C.O. Juhian gets his hands on unknown. He has an extremely skilled appraiser. Julian was the appraiser he was talking about. If C.O. Juhian takes unknown with him, that bastard will definitely appraise it. But that would cause them trouble. We can't let that bastard appraise those artifacts no matter what. Anyways, just hang up and I'll protect it. Hang up my ass. John seemed extremely flustered after hearing what was going on. 
Wait, it's that serious right now. Hold on, you are in charge of that facility. What the hell were you doing while that happened? Henry angrily destroyed the watch. John put a hand against his forehead after the call ended. Henry, you son of a bitch. There seemed to have been numerous accidents since he left for the Vatican. Even if Henry had a scam like divine grade artifact his opponent is Seo Ju Hian. How had such things happened? He soon shook his head. No. We need to first stop Seo Ju Hian no, Julian Miller from getting his hands on unknown. John quickly started to take action in Italy. He first put in some calls to other knights for reinforcements. Those calls must have gone through as Pandora's soldiers started to all gather at the RD facility. They must have come from the HQ that was just minutes away by car. There were soldiers coming from the different branches as well. Surround them from the outside. Use the teleportation prevention artifact. We must not let Seo Juhian get out of here. Juhian laughed as more people started to gather at the RD facility. Look at them foaming at the mouth because I barged into a single Pandora facility. Well, they were responding like this because it was none other than the monarch of plunder who was here. Furthermore, it was because this impregnable fortress of theirs they had been so confident about had been breached. Why did Juhian have to barge into this facility of all places? Juhian didn't think much of it since this was not the facility he really wanted to destroy. The Druid's Clock Tower. That was the building with Pandora's executive board that was not harmed even when he launched Gungnir to attack it. But I will start here. As Juhian chuckled and started to use his abilities hey. What the hell are you guys doing? They heard a familiar voice in the facility. Juhian and Ilya both snickered after nonchalantly turning their heads. Oh, you're here. Looks like the vice captain and CLA are here. Julian grabbed the back of his neck after seeing them being extremely chill. I thought these shitheads said they were just going to go in to quietly take care of the stepsister. What kind of bullshit did you pull this time? And Ilya. You should have thought about dragging the captain out right away. Why are you working with him to break things in here? Huh? Do you want your pictures side by side on the front page of the newspaper? It's fun. I really should follow the captain around instead of you more often. Ow. Ciole patted Julian who looked as if he would die from high blood pressure. The two of them work well together in these situations. It's because both of them are extremely wicked bastards. Ah, whatever. Let's go out before it gets dangerous. Juhian just laughed and threw the water bottle to Julian. You just take this and head out first. This hay. When the hell did you take this? Shut up. I need to make sure to take Gaia's artifact with me. What? Gaia's artifact. That highest grade artifact. Julian frowned after receiving the water bottle, the golden horned king and silver horned king's purple gold red gourd from Juhian. He then urgently took an unknown out of the bottle. Hold on, CO Juhian. What the hell are these things? What else? I gathered up all of the unknowns. Julian scoffed after taking a closer look at an unknown. This is unknown. While that was going on ah. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Now I remember. Joy jumped in shock after hearing Jeha suddenly shout. Joy and Jeha were waiting patiently inside Sleipnir. It was fine that Julian ran out huffing after seeing the RD facility being destroyed, but wasn't this guy sleeping? What is up with him? Jeha had been deep in thought since the moment Juhian said that he was going to go look for unknown. Jeha Appa, what's wrong? Jeha was happy to hear Joy call him Appa, but it was only for a moment. He quickly snapped out of it. Phone, the phone. He quickly pressed one on the speed dial to call Juhian. Ah, I finally remembered it. Damn it. Why the hell is this guy not picking up? What did you remember? I don't remember completely, but I definitely saw how Unknown was created in my past life. And the US president was there at that time. I couldn't say anything about it because I couldn't remember it. E, excuse me. Past life? President? What do you maya? Jeha hung up the phone and urgently sent a message. 
Unknown's ingredients are people. People who have tomb syndrome. So please at least get some photo evidence. What? An athlete? Ilya's jaw dropped after hearing Julian's comments. And this is the singer who recently died from tomb syndrome? Yeah. And this guy was someone who was protesting Pandora. He also had tomb syndrome and then went missing. What the hell are you talking about? It's exactly as I said. These are all people. Unknown was a substitute for the Majesty's Cradle. Basically, it was the substitute for an artifact that creates artifacts. Juhi and started to chuckle. They said that they were going to create substitutes for the Majesty's treasures and made quite an unbelievable artifact. It is exactly as he said. So hand that back over. Something slammed into the RD facility. Bang! It was a motorcycle on fire. Who the fuck is this guy? Henry must have decided that he needed to stop Juhian even if it meant destroying the RD facility in the process. The Allenby couple were grinding their teeth while looking at him. Henry. We were wondering where the hell you were. Where were you? Henry continued to slam into the building while on top of the motorcycle. Fuck, this thing damn it. Ah, whatever. C.O. Juhian. Hand that over or join us. We will give you all of those unknowns. You like artifacts, right? So just shut up and work with us. We will make unknown for you whenever you want. This bastard. What's wrong? You'll get a ton of artifacts. You don't like it? I don't. Really? Then your sister will be in danger. Juhian tilted his head in confusion. Why would my sister be in danger? Merlin told me on my way over that he put an evil god artifact on your sister. He asked the two of them to do it. Juhian peeked toward the Allenby couple. The couple gulped and avoided his gaze. Henry continued to speak. You understand the situation now? That girl is done for if I send the signal. Juhian calmly asked back. Is that evil god artifact you are talking about the one that was kind of lower grade? The Elizabeth Bathory artifact. The woman who tried to gain immortality through the blood of virgins? Huh. How did you? Juhian had his hands in his pockets as he walked toward the couple. That hasn't been on my sister for a while now. It's on an old man I know. What? Wait a minute. Why is that on an old man? I guess it thought he would have a lot of women since he is a rich old man. An anxious Henry continued to speak. Okay then if you don't want to see that old man getting hurt. Juhian then waved something around. It's right here. Huh. Juhian smiled brightly at that moment. I took it off of him. He paid quite the fee to get it off. Chapter 346 I took it off of him. He paid quite the fee to get it off. Both Henry and the Allenby couple opened their eyes wide at Juhian's comment. They could see the artifact in Juhian's hand. Elizabeth Bathory's blood-sucking artifact S-grade, legendary hero grade, possession artifact it looked like a small miniature keychain people would usually have on their bags. However, the shape of it was Iron Maiden. Quite the interesting shape. Elizabeth Bathory was the Queen of Blood who was famous for potentially being the inspiration for the vampire stories. She was also one of the most evil women in history who was believed to have created the Iron Maiden, the famous torture device from the Middle Ages. She was a noble woman who was said to have killed young girls and bathed in their blood to retain her youth. Of course, many believe that these stories are unreliable and created by someone to make her look even worse. Anyway, this was the artifact that had been attached to his twin sister. Ilya and Julian must have not known as they looked quite shocked. When the hell did it move to that old bastard? No. I knew that it was on him but when did you remove it? When else? It was when he had barged into his own company to ask about the old man being in the round table. Anyway, that bastard used this to get approved by Pandora to join the round table. He had heard that the executive board consisted of about 150 people on the round table including some generals. The knights of the round table were 13 people including King Arthur. It was easy for the old man to join the round table since he was just one of the 150 and not a knight. 
Merlin could have noticed Bathory's artifact but it was unlikely. They said that Merlin doesn't appear in front of people very often. But there was something Juhian found to be odd. Even with Bathory's artifact it was too easy for the old man to enter the round table. But he understood it now. Edward had a way with people but most importantly, it was this Bathory's artifact. It's perfect for killing people. It would have been a wonderful pair to help them create more unknowns. They probably thought he was one of them since he used an artifact that killed people. Anyway, Henry and the Allenby couple seemed to be having some mental breakdowns. We can't use it against Seo Juhian like this. They needed something to hold Seo Juhian down. They couldn't let this bastard leave now that he knew about Unknown. He let everybody know about Kira's situation as well. Juhian had shown what he could do in situations like this once already. Kira had been relegated for suspicions of using mind-controlling artifacts on people. But this situation would not end with relegations or demotions. We're done for if people find out that we are using humans as ingredients for artifacts. Pandora had numerous companies and countries associated with it. There were so many that they couldn't even count it. But they all helped spread disease to kill people and smuggle their corpses so that Merlin could use them to create unknowns. They had a whole supply chain to create these artifacts. Pandora's entire existence will be in danger. Pandora had been receiving public support as people believed their goal was the safety of the public. That was how they were able to gain power and although there were some complaints against Pandora, most people saw Pandora's monopoly as understandable. People will riot if this gets out. Artifact users will appear from everywhere saying, fuck Pandora's laws and the system they had spent so much time to create would completely crumble. They needed to stop that from happening. We worked our asses off to create this system. Their only choice was to convince Juhian and have him work with them. It was at that moment. So you guys were the ones who shoved this artifact inside Juwan. The Allenby couple were now being threatened by Juhian. They were shaking as Juhian put his hands on their shoulders. Um, Juhian. It's not like that. Shut the fuck up. Why are you saying my name like we are close or something? Juhian then smiled. Whatever. It'll be fair if I shove something in your bodies as well, right? Gunshots could be heard as soon as he said that. Tang. Ugh, ugh. There were bullets in the couple's arms and legs. They were the same places that the Bathory's artifact had caused joy pain. That wasn't all. The Maiden of Blood is being activated. Bathory's artifact that Juhian had been pointing at the couple the Iron Maiden was activated. Ah, ah. They gasped after seeing the Iron Maiden that looked the same as the one they could see in a museum. However, the Iron Maiden instantly closed. Bang! Screams could be heard coming from inside the Iron Maiden. But they will not die instantly. This artifact was not made to kill a person instantly. And then drag them away. Make sure they spit up everything they've taken from Ju Wan until now. Henry became desperate. I'm going to be held responsible if those two are dragged away. The male Allenby was one of the generals on Pandora's executive board. It would be quite the headache if a general was dragged away from a facility under his watch. The executive board would rip him to shreds for one of their own being abducted. That was probably the reason. Calm down. The two of them are not at fault. The one at fault is your sister for having such high affinity. What? Juhian started to frown. Henry continued to speak while telling Juhian to calm down. Merlin wouldn't have considered turning her into an unknown if her affinity wasn't so high. We would have wanted her as an ally. Juhian's eyes opened wide in shock. It was the same for the others. Affinity? Henry smiled after seeing that they were interested. He started telling them things hoping that it would calm Juhian down. Yeah. The ones we use as ingredients for unknown are all people with high affinity. Our ingredients need to be suffering from tomb syndrome and those dumbass with high affinity are the ones most likely to get it. That is why your sister was a perfect medium for creating unknown since her affinity is so high. At that moment so you're saying that you guys were thinking about turning my twin sister into this unknown or whatever. Yeah. 
that couple just listened to Merlin's request. So let them be. But that is not the important thing. That's why they shoved that artifact into her. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Henry felt as if he made a mistake. Yes, I'm starting to understand it all thanks to you. You, um. Ju Hian seemed to be finally interested as he started walking toward Henry. But his intentions did not seem positive. The proof was the dangerous looking dominance coming out of Ju Hian's body. Even if my sister's affinity is high, that's just too much. Then that means it was you guys in the past too. What? The past? What are you talking about? We only did it recently. Henry started screaming before he could even finish his statement. It was because Ju Hian took out Gungnir. Fuck, that's the thing that killed that bastard Loki. Henry became desperate while still on the motorcycle. What do you mean by the past? We didn't do anything like this in the past. Henry was anxious but Julian and Ilya instantly understood. The past he was talking about was naturally their past life. Ju Hian had met Joy in his mid-twenties instead of early twenties like right now and Joy had been suffering from an extreme case of tomb syndrome. It was advancing too quickly to be natural. He had seen a similar case in this life. It was what had happened to Irene's parents. He originally thought that it was because her affinity was higher than other people, but I'm getting tired of this. They messed with Joy in the past to turn her into an unknown as well. Julian gulped after hearing Ilya's comment. That's not the problem. Maybe our entire team. Ju Hian's tomb rating was pretty small but all of them had been suffering from tomb syndrome. Ju Hian had requested a healing artifact from Chairman Quan but he would only give pain relievers. He hasn't raised his affinity on purpose this time but the captain's affinity wasn't low back then. Ilya thought for a moment before nodding his head. Yes, in some aspects, I admit he was quite the pushover. Of course, it wasn't as bad as the current Jeha. He had believed in the good of people to the point he trusted someone like Chairman Quan. Well, he was enough of a pushover to not kick Jeha out after all of the times he screwed us over. Anyway, they suddenly had a hypothesis about what had happened in the past. Maybe the reason Chairman Quan didn't give them the healing artifacts was not just to keep them as slaves. Maybe he wanted to turn them into unknown as well. Julian started to frown. If you think about it, our entire team had decent levels of affinity. Chairman Quan could have seen it as an extra investment. It had been quite weird. It was one thing to completely ignore their numerous requests, but that old bastard had not given it to them even when they had said that it would affect their performance. They had all found it to be weird. That bastard who would pay whatever he needed to pay to get results wouldn't give it to us. But if his goal from the beginning was to get them sick until they died we were talented bastards he was too scared to keep as his subordinates forever. He probably wanted to use us until he killed us. But if he could then use our bodies to turn us into artifacts wouldn't that be a magnificent way of recycling? Ilya got the chills. Fuck, don't say such disgusting things. Does that mean that our corpses were pulled out of that tomb and turned into artifacts? I'm just saying it's a possibility. Ilya couldn't believe Julian's calm analysis. How is that possible? How can they get our corpses out of that shitty tomb? Prometheus could have ordered the guards to get our corpses out that crow's tomb appearing in the Amazon was probably Prometheus calling out a portion of the great prison as well. Ilya wanted to barf. He didn't want to imagine their corpses being carried out of the tomb by the guards. He really didn't want to imagine their corpses being ground up to be turned into an artifact. Holy shit, this is making me so angry. Then I should also go through the heads of all of those Pandora bastards to find out if that is true or not. Should we do it? Yeah. We have a great person to start with right here. The two of their eyes flashed while looking at Henry. Henry started shaking in fear. It would be a lie to say that three monarchs releasing their chaotic auras was not scary. Captain. Sure, do whatever you want. Henry then started screaming. It was because three monarchs attacked him at the same time. Ah. Indra's thunderbolts, the monarch of devil's fires of hell, and the sandstorm of the Egyptian gods. ba ba ba, -ba bang Terrible disasters descended on the RD facility. 
scary fires from the ground, sharp thunderbolts from the sky and then there was the murderous tornado sweeping through wherever the fire and thunderbolts could not reach. This terrible pandemonium that seemed to be a mix of multiple natural disasters struck down on the Pandora facility. It was a severe disaster. Pandora's RD facility, a building that was known for its strong defenses, started to crack and break and rip apart. The combined attack of these three monarchs was too strong. The fires shooting up seemed as if an entire volcano had been summoned while the thunderbolts falling from the sky destroyed everything as if they were meteors crashing down. The murderous sand tornado was even worse than those two. The terrible tornadoes that appeared every so often in the US were child's play compared to this. It would have been a complete set of disasters if a tsunami was included in this. Juhian started speaking after ruthlessly destroying the facility. Over there. Isn't that the unknown creation facility? Juhian checked Jeha's text message on his phone and gave the order. Go get some proof. Julian quickly started to move. Henry twitched but could not get up. I'm glad that they got me off of that motorcycle, but... It didn't matter. Ugh. Juhian stomped on Henry's head. Go through his head. Chapter, 347. This is bad. 90% of the RD facility has been destroyed. Pandora's HQ, the iron walls of the Druid's watchtower, was becoming loud. This place was not far from the RD facility. They were getting anxious that the nearby facility that was responsible for researching and developing artifacts had been destroyed. Most importantly, that was where they were creating unknown. How could they not get anxious? The facility was destroyed. The emergency alarm went off earlier was it that thieving bastards doing? They were the different executives who were part of the 150 people of the round table. They were freaking out that their safety was being threatened. How can the world's supposed best organization struggle so much against one or two people? The soldiers didn't want to get on the executives' bad sides. Those bastards have disaster-type artifacts. Juhian's group was not actually using disaster-type artifacts. It was just the Juhian's Egyptian god artifacts, Julian's Thunderbolt artifact, and Ilias Lord of the Devil's artifact were all disaster-grade already. They could easily destroy the world through natural disasters if they really wanted to do so. It wouldn't even take an hour to do it. Scary bastards. It was at that moment. It's nothing to fuss about. Why do you think we have these seats around the round table? Merlin. Merlin made a rare appearance with a smile on her face to calm people down. We are here to get rid of and teach a lesson to these kinds of monarchs who run wild. That was right. The knights of the round table were people who were pitting monarchs against each other to select a majesty. They were all people who considered themselves to be in a higher position than the monarchs. It was normal to think that the people choosing the king were in a higher position than the king himself. That was why Quan Hyuk Su, who had figured that out pretty early, had given his four emperors position to Chairman Quan while the greedy Chairman Quan still aimed for the position of majesty, despite knowing the truth. He was greedy for the treasures that the knights of the round table would make for him. Anyway, that was the current situation. She was furious about Seo Juhian's disrespectful infiltration. How dare those inferior bastards who only know how to use ready-made stuff. There were two types of people in the world. People who made things and people who could only use those things the first group made. They were already people who had already reached the level of creating artifacts. They were, creators. Artifacts are resources that will feed the population from now on. But most of those artifacts were consumable artifacts. Only a few artifacts were possession-type artifacts. That was why people who only knew how to waste those artifacts and people who knew how to create artifacts needed to be treated differently. Those parasites only know how to waste artifacts as they please. Of course, there were people who were even worse than that. Among the parasites, there were the worst kinds that could neither create nor use artifacts. Those parasites are the worst of the worst. She was talking about the regular people who could barely use C-grade artifacts. Merlin started smiling. Anyway, wouldn't it be only fair that those parasites help the society in some way as well? This was her justification for using them as ingredients. It was the reason they started creating unknown. 
Merlin didn't think it was that big of a deal. Ancient societies used living animals as ingredients for medicine as well. They needed the Majesty's Cradle to make artifacts, but that doesn't matter either. All we need to know is the logic behind it. Artifacts were items born from human memories and stories. In that case, didn't that mean that artifacts could be created as long as humans were there? Each person's talents and their lives were all great stories. It's enough to turn into an artifact. Merlin's artifact had helped with the technological problems that was how they had created unknown, but it was still incomplete. That was why she was furious that Ju Hian found out about unknown. We can't have him spreading it to the world before it is even completed. Merlin started to shout. Please call the scattered knights to support Henry. They weren't very far from the location of the incident. It's fine. There will be no problems if we hurry. They should be able to get there before Seo Juhian could learn anything from Henry. Probably. Open it up. Go through his head. Juhian's smile made Henry shake in fear. Juhian looked ready to pull out his brain as he stomped on his head. This bastard. Henry's ass was on fire. He was calling out his artifacts out of desperation but what the hell. This son of a bitch isn't even responding to his master. Even Jeha wouldn't get ignored by his own artifacts like this. Juhian said something else at that moment. Ah, uh, right. Go call Jeha first. Ah, uh, that bastard is holding on to the raven's tears right now, right? Henry gulped after hearing that. He didn't know what the raven's tears was but he knew it wouldn't be good news for him. Henry urgently started to roll his eyes as he watched Ilya send a devil out. His gaze landed on a certain artifact. It was the motorcycle that was still going wild and turning the place into a sea of fire. Vroom, vroom. It was an artifact that wouldn't even recognize its master or be controlled by humans. Helios's chariot was laughing as it continued to destroy the already destroyed RD building and put it on fire. Aha! This is so fun! So fun! This motorcycle bastard was truly overeager to cause chaos. Juhian seemed to be a bit annoyed at it as he talked about it while still standing there with his foot on Henry's head. Can you do anything about that thing? Who knows? Why don't you try taming it like you did with Sleipner? Get lost. That is a rogue artifact that has no way of being controlled. Henry's eyes flashed after hearing that. What? Even Seo Juhian can't handle that one. His face lit up after hearing this unexpected fact. Yes. It's not that I'm weird. I knew it. He then activated his affinity. Artifacts had a tendency to be drawn to artifact affinity. Ha. Huh. I have nothing to lose. Let's die together. Helios's chariot flinched at the high affinity before charging toward Juhian and Henry. It continued to release its vicious fire as it charged toward them. We will die together. Ilya shouted with urgency. Captain. It's dang. Bullshit. Juhian nonchalantly dodged to the side. The stupidly charging motorcycle ran right over Henry. Bong. Ah. The artifact motorcycle was as heavy as most regular cars. His shoulder bones felt as if they would break. Ugh. Juhian snorted while looking at Henry. Are you fooling around? Did you really think you could do something to me with an artifact like this? Gur. Your first stupid move was trying to keep me in check with a shitty artifact like Bathory's artifact. If you wanted to do that, you should have put an evil god artifact like in Gramenuha. Juhian groaned in the middle of his statement. He couldn't help it as the stupidly charging motorcycle suddenly threw Juhian on top of it. Captain. Henry's plan had somehow worked and the motorcycle was laughing as it drove around with Juhian on its back. Aha. Excited. I'm excited. It was rare to see Juhian being dragged around by an artifact like this. He looked as if he was on a horse that had gone berserk and was running wild. Henry started to laugh. Serves you right. You'll never be able to get off of it. It'll burn your allies to death. It was as he mentioned. The crazy flaming motorcycle with Juhian on its back then aimed for Ilya. Ah, Captain. 
Don't come this way. Get off it. Ju Hian couldn't get off of it even if he wanted to do so because his butt was stuck on it. This artifact didn't seem to want to let him off. Appa, your butt is sexy. It's so sexy. This crazy horse bastard. Ju Hian tried to control it but unlike Sleipnir, this bastard had no way to control it at all. Since there was no way to drive it, it meant nothing that someone at the four emperor's level was touching it. The artifact itself was basically a trap. That was why he had worked with Joy to use this artifact as the trap option. I can just destroy this kind of artifact, but, Henry was laughing as he ran away limping. It was hard to move because his shoulder bone was broken, but it was okay. Co Ju Hian, you son of a bitch. Get fucked. Hey, skinny dude. I'll accept your proposal from earlier. What? What? Ju Hian had an extremely wicked smile on his face. So we are allies from today. Okay. What? Really? Fine, you can't take that back. But Henry was sent flying at that moment. The motorcycle slammed into Henry the moment Ju Hian said they were allies. Henry was suffering intensely from burns after Helios's chariot crashed into him and sent him flying. You, ugh. His ribs and arms were broken now and he was in quite the terrible state. Phew, it's listening a bit now that it slammed into one person. Ilya looked toward Ju Hian thinking he truly was vicious. As for Ju Hian, he was laying down on the crazy motorcycle and enjoying its cruise as if he was on a banana boat. Captain Nim. I brought the raven's tears. Ju Hian easily jumped off the motorcycle after Jae Ha appeared. Hey pushover, let me ask you a question. Excuse me. Did you ever have to restore us as artifacts after we all died? Of course and huh. Jae Ha turned pale as if he heard something he should not have heard. Ha. Huh. What kind of bullshit is that? Do you know what you are saying right now? Well, whatever. We will know if we rip his head apart. Ilya took the raven's tears away from Jeha and there was a bright light as Henry started screaming. Ilya saw many things in Henry's memories. The thing that caught his attention the most was a conversation between the Knights of the Round Table and the Executive Board. We're sure of it. That bastard Co Ju Hian is at the Majesty Grade. He can't use his full powers because he is sick but he is dangerous. But the DNA test said that he is not a descendant. We tried to adopt him as a kid because we thought he might be a descendant of the Majesty. Someone wickedly smiled as if to suck up to the person. The girl was her name Joy. General, didn't you say that you took her in? Yes I did. We made sure she got sick to prepare to turn her into an unknown. But she is just trash who only has high affinity. Ha! <laughs> How can you call her trash? Who is the one that benefited the most from using her affinity? Pandora was able to develop significantly thanks to her help. Yes, she worked hard so it is time to send her off to rest in peace. We will turn her into unknown and allow her to be reborn as an artifact. But at that moment please wait. That is not important right now. What is it? What is going on? The throne and the round table artifact have reacted to those bastards. The throne has reacted to Co Ju Hian while the round table seems to want to make his subordinates into knights. Shit, it's already at that level. Yes sir. Those bastards will try to take away our positions. How can we deal with it? We kill them. Are you joking? Those bastards are not people we can easily kill. Even if they are suffering from tomb syndrome, their abilities are. Someone's eyes sparkled at that moment. It was Merlin. The great prison has an area that is considered to be the most dangerous. Prometheus said he would happily summon that section for this ordeal. We need the artifacts of the seven great tombs to summon the whole thing but he should be able to warp the dimension and bring up a portion of it. Ho ho. How dangerous is this place? Henry laughed and answered that question. Those bastards will absolutely be unable to make it back alive. We can recover their corpses and send them to Merlin. She will happily turn them into unknowns. That's right. Let's turn them into artifacts. Those bastards will at least be hero-grade artifacts. 
Seo Juhian might even be a divine grade artifact. Chairman Kwan and the rest of the executive board members laughed out loud. Ilya swore as he rummaged through Henry's mind. These dirty bastards. Jaha quickly walked over after hearing Ilya's reaction. What is it? What is it? What did you see? Huh? Ah. It's fine. You don't need to know. Ilya stopped reading through Henry's mind as if he was disgusted. Ilya then called for Juhian. Captain. Juhian answered as if it was fine. You don't need to say anything. It was probably as he had expected based on Ilya's expression. Some bastards made them get tomb syndrome and then the results after they were killed in the crow's tomb that those bastards had summoned it was a shitty story where they were probably thrown to Jeha to restore once they were turned into artifacts in the end. Juhian felt amused and started to laugh. Yes, but I should have been nothing less than a divine grade artifact. Right? Sorry, but you were a D-grade artifact. What? Ilya sneered. D-grade. Trash grade. Ha ha ha. Ah, but it looks like I was at least a S-grade artifact. What? Why? Who knows? Juhian was shocked. I will not accept that. Something must be wrong. Hee <laughs> hee, maybe we need to change the captain of our tomb raiding team. I'll let everybody know. The two of them were laughing but Jeha was different. Hey! You crazy bastards! He felt sick as if he had suddenly possessed the body of the wise scholar, Ambassador Wanhayo. T, that's not something to talk so casually about. Tell me the truth. You're lying right? It's all just bullshit. Yes it's the truth. Fuck, W, what the hell did I touch? Yes it is not something to talk so casually about, you shitheads. Maybe it was because he got his memories back through the raven's tears, but Henry's eyes flashed even though he was in pain. You guys are you getting revenge on us now? Huh? I don't know what is going on, but now that I have this info. Get lost. Your role is done. Gungnir was stabbed into Henry's neck almost instantly. Chapter, 348 Gungnir left Juhian's hand, broke Henry's neck bone, and cut off his airway. Henry was bleeding out as he was flung backward. Boom! Henry twitched in pain on the ground. Although he chose not to take a monarch title on purpose, all of these knights were at the monarch level. They had their own ways of getting the benefits without the titles. That was why he was in serious pain but not dead after an impact that would have killed most normal people. Ugh, ugh. Blood and spit were dripping out of his mouth as if he was an animal. His pained eyes were moving around without being able to focus. Eventually, his shaking pupils landed on Juhian. His frantically shaking pupils looked right into Juhian's flashing eyes. You could have died without all this pain. It looks like being a half-assed superhuman ended up putting you in more pain. My bad. Juhian's eyes were not smiling. Even this kind of apology was too much for these bastards. Henry's eyes turned extremely red and looked ready to explode at Juhian's despicable excuse. This son of a bitch. Henry knew that this bastard was aware of the fact that they wouldn't die so easily. Just cut my neck off, you son of a bitch. Unfortunately, Juhian was not the type to do as his enemies wished. Most importantly, Juhian was trying to test something. The 150 people of the round table were said to have things similar to divine blessings. It was the buff type round table artifact's powers. He wanted to see what it was capable of doing. He wanted to know if it was on the level of the heirlooms but based on what he had seen so far, it didn't seem to give them special abilities like the heirlooms nor put them at the superhuman level of monarchs either. It at least seems to put them at a level of wearing a S-grade or SS-grade defense type artifact. The round table artifact probably also had the effects of not letting them get older or sick. How else would they have spread tomb syndrome all over the world without fear of catching it themselves? There was some kind of medium in their body that connects them to the round table. That medium would be the vital points for these bastards. He would use Gungnir to destroy that medium somewhere in Henry's body. 
then he would instantly turn into a regular person and his body would fall into shock from all of the injuries he has received. Loki had died because his medium had been destroyed. Ju Hien pulled Gungnir out of Henry's neck as if he knew that was the case. I'll let you rest in peace now. Henry started to despair. It was not because he was about to die. These bastards will get their revenge. He felt as if he could see the future that was to come. Goodbye now. Gungnir flew up to the sky before stabbing into Henry's side. Puke. It was the moment the medium that was connected to the round table was destroyed. Ju Hien gave an order at the same time. Siole and Ilya, you guys go find Gaia's artifact that should be in here somewhere. What about you, Captain Nim? Me? I need to take that. Ju Hien was pointing at Henry. An intense heat shot out of Henry's body at that moment. Henry's corpse started to jerk. That is. Something revealed itself as it dug out from his body by eating his flesh. Ah! It looked like a snake. The snake that finally burst out of Henry's body was longer than they could have ever expected. It had disgusting scales and was so long that it looked like it would take a month for it to slither past them. This was the divine grade artifact Henry had been using. This was Leviathan. This bastard was the wicked snake that shows up as God's enemy in the Old Testament. It was originally the bitter enemy of the gods in Akkadian mythology, but it had been added into the Old Testament by the Jews. This greedy evil god was even called the Dragon of the Sea. It was famous for working with Satan to drag God down from his position. The team members became anxious after seeing such an artifact appear. Wait, why didn't that bastard use this artifact at all? Ju Hien just laughed. That bastard is an extremely strong snake that tried to bring down the heavens. I bet none of the knights could handle it so they stuck it to a guy who had a decent level of affinity. It was obvious that Henry was the type with high affinity. Ho, oh, then it didn't even do anything when its master was in danger and only came out because he died. Even our pushover wouldn't be ignored to that level. What? Ju Hien started to speak. Even the four emperors would find it hard to control this bastard. They probably couldn't do it unless they had a divine artifact from Akkadian mythology. Ilya cynically joked. Then you shouldn't be able to handle it either, Captain. Even as an artifact you were just a degrade antique, no, trash. Juhian kicked Ilya almost immediately. Ugh. If I actually wasn't a degrade artifact, you will turn into a F-grade, trash-grade puddle of shit that instant. Got it? What? Um there is no such thing as F-grade artifacts in the world. I will personally make it. You will be the first one. Ilya's face turned pale. His already white face turned completely white, as if it was covered in flour. S, should I tell the truth? Should he say that the captain was actually a divine grade artifact? It was at that moment. Bang! The room they were in started to break after about half of Leviathan's large body appeared. Boom, boom. The bastard stretched its body to squash Juhian's group. Jeha started to swear once they were pushed up against the walls and almost squished to death. Hey, you damn worm bastard. There are people here. Leviathan just sneered and haughtily slammed down on Jeha. Jeha. It was such a strong attack that a sinkhole was created on the ground. Siole, who had been detecting the enemy's aura, turned pale. Its aura is too strong. I, I don't know how to tell you this, but it seems stronger than your crow, Captain Nim. Ow. He said it was one even the knights of the round table couldn't handle. Of course it is strong. Let's get out of here since we got unknown. Kong Ming should have gotten enough evidence by now. But Ju Hien turned the rope into a lasso and started swinging it around. Why would we leave? Most importantly, this bastard was an artifact he could use to destroy this place. This bastard is also said to be an artifact that went against God. He smiled sharply and threw the lasso. All right, let's make some snake wine today. Juhian and Leviathan started to fight. These motherfuckers. Julian gasped. He had come to the place where Juhian had supposedly gathered unknown from, but how can they do something like this? They are just monsters in human skin. 
Julian frowned as if he found it to be disgusting. It really was. The area around him was full of refrigerated storage areas and mysterious artifact tools. The corpses inside the refrigerated storage areas were all people who had died from tomb syndrome. Julian gasped at the unbelievable sight and started taking photos for evidence. He then started to think about how he could move this whole place. It was so that he could figure out who all of these people were and send the bodies to the families. What the hell? There was this kind of place. Isn't it connected underground? He heard some familiar voices above him. Ilya and Ciole were there. We didn't see an area like this earlier. Julian urgently shouted at them. Be careful. This whole underground area is an artifact. What? Julian was right. Julian had found this hidden underground area a few minutes ago in the room with Unknown. This path connected underground had appeared because they had destroyed the building so much. This underground area was not normal. Charles Perrault, Bluebeard Secret Room A Grade, Treasure Grade, Consumable Artifact, 75, 48087, 600 Julian wondered why they used Bluebeard's artifact of all things but he soon understood. They must have used an artifact like this because it is a place like this. The story of Bluebeard was quite famous. There was a lord with a blue beard and the numerous women who were married to him all went missing. A new woman ends up being married to him and Bluebeard tells his new wife that she can go into any room except one. But the woman ends up going into that room to find the bodies of all of the women that Bluebeard has killed until then. The woman tries to pretend as if she didn't see it, but her husband catches her and she ends up being in danger of being murdered the same way. And then anybody who walks into that room was automatically murdered. He didn't know the specific abilities of the artifact but it must be related to keeping people quiet or a safe to securely store things. Of course, he had no difficulties coming inside. This was still a part of Pandora's facilities. Joy's key had reacted to let him in. Returning back to the group why are you guys here? Ciole responded to Julian's question. The Captain Nim told us to meet up with you, Vice Captain Nim. He told us to escape right after finding Gaia. What? What is the captain doing? Ilya looked at the photos Julian had taken as Julian asked. He then clicked his tongue. Man, you suck at taking photos. Even I would have taken better photos than you. Then you take them. Julian shoved the camera to Ilya as he asked again. Anyway, what about the captain? That bastard wouldn't stay back alone without any reason. Ciole seemed to be hesitating. And the Captain M stayed back to fight Leviathan's artifact. Ciole seemed to be concerned as well as she kept looking up. But the tomb raiding team's rule was to focus on the mission and not the captain. Juhian had said it that way. That was why Ciole couldn't go to rescue Juhian even if she was worried about him. He had given her a mission. But Julian's eyes seemed to be shooting flames out as if he wasn't shocked. His reaction was to be expected. Leviathan. Is he crazy? How does he think he can take that thing on alone? Julian urgently ran out of the underground area. Co Juhian. Julian was completely pale as he ran out. That crazy bastard. Julian was thinking that Juhian should know what Leviathan was capable of. That's the artifact that destroyed part of Africa. That artifact had appeared in the Red Sea in the past. Pandora had probably sent it to get rid of the people who were against them. The countries that had rebelled were Egypt, UAE, and other countries in the Middle East and Africa. The sea dragon that had appeared in the Red Sea destroyed everywhere the enemies were hiding. That overlord of the sea had destroyed a part of Africa to clearly set an example. Thanks to its attack, the northern part of Africa was no longer on the map. It was the incident that made the world fear Pandora's power. He wants to take that thing on. Was Ju Hien also planning on using it to rule the world with fear? Julian freaked out after coming out. You. He couldn't help it because forget using it as a symbol of fear the large snake leviathan was already dissected and turned into fresh sashimi. Ju Hien was calmly slicing leviathan as if it was tuna sashimi. He was also cooking some parts on the fires from hell that Ilya had left behind. Ah, I wish it would cook faster. Julian couldn't help but be flustered. 
Seo Ju Hien, what the hell are you doing? Jae Ha seemed to be in a state of shock as he spoke. This crazy person. Jae Ha, what the hell happened? T, that. Put your weapons down and don't resi ha. Pandora's soldiers dropped their jaws in shock after finally appearing. An odd silence filled the room. Ju Hien's eyes flashed as if to tell them they were too late. Move the fuck away if you guys don't want to be turned into sashimi too. The knife he was holding up against his shoulder shined viciously. While that was going on, at an airport in Italy what? John, who had arrived at the airport, was shocked to hear some unexpected news. Is that really true? Henry is dead. Yes, they even took Leviathan. So hurry John scoffed in disbelief. He was sad about his friend's death. He had been worried about it since Henry ignored him and hung up, but but for him to really die, and what? He couldn't believe that Ju Hian had taken Leviathan's artifact. John quickly watched the CCTV footage that Pandora had sent him. He couldn't believe what he was watching Seo Ju Hian do. It looked as if Leviathan had been running away and Ju Hian forcibly chopped it up into sashimi. Normally, John would have thought Ju Hian took Leviathan because he was greedy for artifacts or to show it off, but the adversary of the heavens. In some aspects, it was an artifact that could go up against them. That was why the bastard in the video seemed to be saying something. You're next. It was as if Ju Hian was telling him not to even think about showing his dirty face pretending to be their old team member. Chapter, 349 John frowned while looking at the CCTV video Pandora had sent over. The funny thing was that the video was fine even through all of the chaos. It was as if they left one security camera alone on purpose. That bastard was clearly caught in the video. Seo Ju Hian. He could see that devil-like bastard's face. But the way this bastard took care of the snake was something that put even fellow artifact users like him in awe. Captain Nim. Up there, look up. Leviathan flailed viciously and tried to eat Ju Hian, but Ak. Ju Hian immediately put on Chi Yu's mask. He then turned into black fog and scattered away. Boom! Leviathan frantically slammed down on Ju Hian but it could not do anything to Ju Hian now that he had turned into fog. John started to frown as he watched what was going on. That's definitely the Majesty's treasure, the ghost's helmet. Most importantly, that was an artifact that helped a human surpass the human limits. Similar to how Chiyu had turned from a human into a god, it was an artifact that made a human become a divine existence. But that was also the reason Prometheus, Horus, and other divine-grade artifacts were able to kill the last majesty. Why? Artifacts apparently have their own set of laws. They were pretty much trash who didn't care for it now, but in the past, they all had to abide by these artifact laws. It was a long set of laws but it revolved around one fact. You must not attack humans. That should have prevented them from attacking the Majesty as well, but the Majesty was not human when he put on that mask. The Divine Grade artifacts used that to their advantage to kill the Majesty. Artifacts couldn't kill humans, but killing a god was not a part of the laws. Anyway, that helmet was a symbol of fear in the past but also the artifact that served as the Majesty's Achilles' heel as well. What is certain is that his helmet is not an ordinary artifact. It was called a Majesty's Treasure for a reason. This artifact was one of the strongest defense-type artifacts. They were able to use this in the past to kill the Majesty, but would such a plan work again? The reason that kind of scheme worked in the past was because the Majesty of the time trusted the artifacts completely. The artifacts had aimed for the moment just as the Majesty was removing his helmet. But Seo Juhian. This bastard would trust his own feces before trusting artifacts. Furthermore, the Majesty had trusted the artifacts completely that he had only been wearing Chi Yu's artifact, which could be considered an outerwear, at the time. He probably should have been wearing other strong artifacts, such as Achilles's armor, to protect himself as well. But how would the Majesty of the past have known? Who would have expected to get stabbed in the back like that? Apparently he trusted the divine-grade artifacts around him more than he trusted the crow, his own heirloom. Anyway, it was completely irrelevant for Ju Hian who didn't trust artifacts at all. Ju Hian was extremely efficient with Chi Yu's artifact. 
It was clearly visible by how he was fine even while going up against the mighty Leviathan. Holy shit, the captain is still alive. That wasn't all. Juhian had used his amazing dominance to summon the God of Destruction, Set's artifact, to rip Leviathan to shreds. Babababang. The snake quickly looked like a mess after being attacked by the heinous sandstorm. Juhian used the rope he had turned into a lasso as soon as Leviathan became weaker. Swoosh! The lasso choked Leviathan's neck. Leviathan tried to rip the rope off but the rope that was now an heirloom-grade artifact was much stronger and would never break. Of course, it was flailing around like a swimming whale as if to show that it was working hard, but it soon became pulled taut. Juhian then used Hercules' power to pull the rope. And finally, boom! That firm neck fell to the ground. Baba bang! Leviathan's eyes looked like they would burst out in anger once its head was slammed to the floor. The angry Leviathan tried to extend its neck and turn into a nine-headed dragon but it didn't matter. Swish! Swish! Juhian channeled his dominance and the rope started to glow before splitting into multiple directions. The rope wrapped around all of the snake's heads and then its large body. Squeeze! Squeeze. It was so strong that the snake felt as if its body would burst at any moment. And at that moment something that would make people gasp happened. Ha ha ha. Today's dinner is sashimi. Maybe roasted snake. Steamed snake sounds good too. Juhian, who suddenly pulled out a sashimi artifact knife, started to run around as if he had gone crazy. He was slashing away so hard that a chunk of flesh slammed into the camera and turned it away. The only thing that could be seen for a while was Leviathan's flesh that was turned into sashimi. It was at that moment. The camera suddenly turned back. Co Juhian's face was right in front of the camera. He then smiled and turned the camera off. That was the end of the video. That was why John couldn't help but become anxious. John's phone started to go off. Ding, ding, ding. It must be their group chat room. He took Leviathan. Mr. John, will that be okay? It turned into meat in the myth but it won't be easy to go up against this adversary artifact. More importantly, did you see that video of Seo Juhian? Damn, I almost wet my pants after seeing the way he used his artifacts. He might take Gaia's artifact soon too lololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololol
Jeha shouted in anger as if he was turning into a super scion. Speak human words, human words. Nom nom. Hey, stop stuffing your face. Jeha then took away the meat Juhian was munching on. It was dried leviathan meat. This is not your food. You damn captain bastard. Juhian grumbled after having his jerky taken away. But it's delicious. This is okay for me to eat. Did he really want Jeha to restore this artifact or not? But technically, Juhian was right. In the Bible, Leviathan eventually gets chopped up and becomes meat for the believers. Leviathan is an amazing delicacy. Of an artifact. Jeha just couldn't believe it. Be honest. You just wanted to eat Leviathan meat, didn't you? That whole, I got it because it is an adversary to Samuel's artifact was bullshit, wasn't it? Wait a minute, isn't this guy friends with Mammon? Couldn't you have just used Mammon to convince it to join our side? Why did you have to do this? Ah, come on. It was just killing two birds with one stone. Juhian opened his lunchbox again. It was full of roasted leviathan meat that he roasted with Ilya's fires of hell. Jeha threw a fit as Juhian tried to eat it again, probably because he was being influenced by the crow's artifact. Ack. Stop eating it. Stop it. I can't restore it if you keep eating it. Are you going to shove your face until you get another stomachache? Juhian just pouted without saying anything after having all of the snake meat taken from him. Irene, who was sitting next to him, didn't know what to do. What do I do? Mr. Juhian looks so cute. Juhian usually looked cool but he had moments like this when he looked crazily cute. Of course, Irene might be the only person who felt that way. Irene gave him some other food as she started speaking. Anyway, leave the scoop to me. I just need to contact some press that Pandora has no control over. Good, hand all of the pictures we took to the press. Juhian then looked toward Ilya. As for you, you are being punished for taking weird pictures. Ilya was groaning in pain in the corner. It was because of the photos he took after getting the camera from Julian. Of all things to take, that's what you decided to take pictures of. Ilya had taken grotesque photos of what seemed to be spirits. Unbelievable. I'll deal with you later. Ugh those will have more impact. Of course, there shouldn't be any problems since Julian had taken enough prior to that. Anyway, those bastards will do everything they can to stop it, so take good care of it. Make sure to properly protect the staff we are working with. Yes sir. What about you, Captain Nim? Juhian called someone instead of responding. At an American airport an Italian man had just arrived here. It was John. I will trick all of Seo Juhian's team. He had a plan to take care of Seo Juhian's tomb raiding team from the moment he got off the plane. The first step was to trick those bastards. How? Those bastards don't know that I have the memories of my past life yet. That was why they will have their guards down. They would think that they were better than him. He would use that opening to destroy all of them at once. He then peeked somewhere. He couldn't help but sneer. Are they keeping an eye on me? Who did he see? It was none other than Juhian's group over there. Samuel is over there. Jeha, Ilya, Siole, and Julian had come to the airport. They had come here after hearing that John was going to be returning from Italy. Of course, they were keeping their movements a secret from Juhian. According to the Captain Nim, that bastard is the Samuel we know. Yeah. We should check it out. Let's see if it really is the same person. Siole rolled her eyes. What about the Captain Nim? Won't we get in trouble for not telling him? If he finds out. It's okay. That guy is at the company to prepare to go back into the great prison. He won't come here. But at that moment huh? Samuel disappeared. What? They were shocked. It was rare for C.O.L.A. to lose track of someone. John, who had just avoided their radar net, started to smile. I know the blind spots of the radar since I was once your fellow team member. Now that he thought about it, he could use the face of their former team member to sneak into the team. 
those innocent bastards would think that they could use the raven's tears or whatever to have him join the team again. It might not be bad to aim for their backs that way. But now was not the time to do that. I need to head to Pandora's HQ first. He didn't have time to deal with these bastards right now. As John leisurely dodged his former team members and started to leave Ugg. Something got in John's way. It was some kind of long bag. As John got annoyed and looked at the person holding it. He instantly started frowning. His reaction was to be expected. Hey there. John. The person in front of him was actually Juhian. Chapter, 350. Juhian was smiling. The long bag that was blocking John was a regular-looking instrument bag. Juhian just held it sideways to block John's way. It was as if he was asking John where he was going. John scoffed internally, as if he was in disbelief. See oh Juhian, this bastard. But he hid his disbelief and started to speak. I believe this is our first time meeting each other. You're Mr. Seo Juhian, correct? Juhian had a twisted smile on his face as he responded. I believe this is our first time meeting each other. That's not right. The black instrument bag exploded as soon as he said that. Bang! What was inside the bag was actually a sparkling blade. Juhian grabbed it and attacked John. It had happened in an instant. The blade that had burst out was Mammon's blade. Its usual appearance was a pickaxe but he made it take the form of a blade today. Mammon was a devil of mining and not an expert in destruction, but she was still a devil after all. It would be extremely annoying for someone like John who handles holy artifacts. Swoosh! The dagger that was the size of a person's forearm aimed for John's neck. The blade of mining released its chaotic aura and tried to dig through John's flesh. It wanted to dig out the Christian artifact inside his body. However, John used superhuman reflexes to tilt his head and dodge the attack, and then swish. John quickly tried to take his hand out of his pocket. It was so that he could activate the artifact he had in there. However puke. Ugh. The blade stabbed into his right arm, as if Juhian was saying it was obvious what he was trying to do. The blade digging in brought unbearable pain to John. John glared at him as if to ask what the hell Juhian was doing, and Juhian just scoffed at him. I remember you always used your right arm for your Christian artifacts. In the Christian church, the right hand had God's holy authority. It symbolized the authority of creation, salvation, and discipline. That was why most Christian artifacts, although not all, required the use of the right hand. After teaming with this bastard two different times, there was no way Juhian wouldn't know that. And then Juhian's eyes flashed and John's right arm was sent flying. A blade that had almost instantly flown over had cut John's arm off. John's arm fell to the ground and the airport turned into chaos as the uninvolved travelers saw blood spurting out. Kaya. What is going on? Of course, the people in the airport were not the only ones freaking out. See, Captain Nim. His team members nearby all gasped as well. How is he here? Although he was shocked as well, Julian quickly started to act. Ilya, hurry up and seal the area around here. Ilya grumbled as he activated his artifact. TSK, the captain made his move first. I wanted to take care of this son of a bitch. A devil soon appeared and started to cast a barrier. The barrier put everybody inside to sleep and changed their memories. Juhian charged toward John again as that was going on. John may have lost one hand but he used swift movements to dodge Juhian's attack. He then took a gun out with his left hand but Juhian was someone who had Xiang Yu's sword, the best artifact for close combat. Clang! 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 Juhian parried the bullets with the sword before quickly moving closer to John again. His movement was swift while his gaze resembled that of a wild beast. Juhian appeared in front of John in the blink of an eye and stabbed the blade into his neck. John fell backward from the impact and Juhian just stepped on him. It had all happened in an instant. Oh, as expected of the captain. Amazing. Ilya was truly amazed. But while the team was being wowed at Juhian's abilities, there was someone who was acting differently. 
Jaha was slowly starting to escape. Everybody, hurry. We gotta run before we get caught by the Captain Nim. What? Run. Why? You dumbass. What do you think will happen if the Captain Nim finds out we are here? They then realized their mistake. What was their mistake? We lied to the Captain Nim to come here. Ju Hien had ordered them not to make contact with John. But the team members needed to check something so they had lied to Ju Hien before coming to the airport. Ju Hien might let many things go, but he did not forgive lies between team members. Trust was an essential part of a team. That was why we're all going to be forced into some mental training if we get caught. His face was pale and he urgently tried to escape from the airport. Ju Hien was flicking his finger. He wasn't even looking at them. Flick flick. Come out. All of you come out. The team members started shaking in fear because that's what Ju Hien's back seemed to be saying to them. He flicked his finger again. It seemed oddly more annoyed than before. Get your asses out now. Damn it, we're fucked. Um. While the team was at the airport Joy was completely flabbergasted. How could she not when the Allenby family were kneeling in front of her? Um, what is going on right now? Her adopted parents along with her stepsister Michelle slammed their heads against the ground to kowtow to Joy. W, we will do whatever you tell us to do. Please don't kill us. But we know we deserve to die. Here. This is all of the money we took from you until now. And let us know if you need anything. We will do whatever you tell us to do. Joy could only tilt her head in confusion, wondering why these people were acting like this. It truly was weird. They suddenly apologized for every single terrible thing they had done for the past ten years and returned the money and items they had taken from her. We're sorry. We will pay you the interest for this money in the future. Did they all take drugs or something? After having all of their belongings sold, they pretty much had to sell the clothes on their backs to pay Joy back. Please take it. Please. Did you all go crazy? Why are you all suddenly acting like this? They sobbed and peeked to the side. Chloe was there. They were sending her gazes as if asking her permission to do something, but Chloe's eyes flashed as if to tell them no way in hell. The way those intelligent blue eyes flashed resembled the gaze of a wild beast. They shook in fear and slammed their heads down again. Please tell us to do anything you want. Please. Joy suspiciously looked toward Chloe. It was Ju Hien, wasn't it? Ju Hien must have done something weird. Chloe just smiled at her. No, not at all. The Captain Nim didn't do anything. There's no way. They don't seem injured but it feels like they have been tortured. She was right. After leaving Pandora, Ju Hien had shown the Allenby family a scary example of what could happen to them. Chloe just fixed their external injuries so that they look fine. Basically, they looked fine on the outside but they were completely dying on the inside. They were probably in a ton of pain. The Allenby family tried their best to escape, but this Chloe woman was no joke. I thought she'd be easy to deal with since she was a doctor. How is this young bitch so strong? This actually formidable doctor smiled coldly with her pretty face. She clearly remembered what Ju Hien had told her. The cleanup starts after making them properly apologize to the victim. Yes Captain Nim, I will do as you ordered. The Captain Nim paid me handsomely for this. I guess I should work properly for the first time in a long while. She feigned ignorance and responded to Joy. They are fine. Miss Joy, all you have to do is accept their pure gestures of apologies. None of it will be an issue. Chloe smiled brightly but the Allenby family knew what would happen next. They would be killed without Joy's knowledge after this. They knew that this doctor was actually a devil wearing a white coat. Chloe ignored them and just looked at the clock. Will the captain have taken care of things by now? He had said that he needed to grab John to ask him one single question. I'm sure it's fine. But forget being fine fuck, come on. Gunnir is too much. The other team members were in danger of being murdered by their captain. They didn't dare to come out even when Juhian told them to do so, and the temperamental Juhian had picked up Gungnir. 
Ju Hien was smiling brightly after being face to face with his team. So you guys this is the courtroom, girlfriend's grave, the gym, and your workroom. My kids have gotten better at lying I guess. Julian let out a fake cough as he responded. Actually, my client this time is based in Europe. The trial will take place in a different country so I had no choice but to come here to take a plane. Bullshit. You haven't even gotten your law licenses abroad yet. Ugh. Well, whatever. It's obvious you guys were trying to check on your former team member. He was looking at John. You guys probably couldn't accept the fact that I said I would kill him. The team was shocked. No, sir. It's not that we just wanted to check how dangerous he was before you, Captain Nim. We just wanted to check if he really was that Samuel. I just came here to kill him before you could do it, Captain. They all seemed to have their reasons. It was at that moment. Ah, come on, Captain Nim. Don't be like that. This Samuel just doesn't have his memories yet. The wily Jeha wickedly whispered. He might be in Pandora, but if we restore his memories, he might become our ally like the rest of US, don't you think? He might be a great mole to strike Pandora. He could even bring the throne artifact if he becomes our ally. And that round table artifact. Why don't we make him destroy that too? That artifact is the reason these shitheads without heirlooms can talk about selecting a monarch and acting all arrogant, isn't it? Let's smack those bastards from behind. It truly was an idea fitting a scammer. It wasn't a bad plan. John, who actually had very good hearing, just smiled after hearing Jeha's suggestion. Why? Good. It's going according to plan. Based on the pattern he expected, these bastards should use that raven's tears or whatever. They would try to make him join their team again. John was actually pretending to be captured just for this moment. His right arm was gone but he wasn't a noob who would be defeated because of that. There was a blade in his neck but his holy artifact was healing the injury. I'm just going to feign ignorance and have them use the raven's tears on me. Then he would pretend to join their team and assassinate them. It is ineffective to attack Seo Juhian from the front. That wasn't all. I'm also very interested in your majesty's treasure. John was secretly taking care of the Akashic records in the Vatican's secret library. Sadly, he didn't know how to use it. Being next to this bastard might help me understand how to use a treasure. John's eyes secretly flashed. So hurry up and use the tears. I'm just your former team member who doesn't remember anything. I'll act as if I just got my memories back so let me back on the team. But at that time look at this son of a bitch and his bad acting. John was shocked. But Ju Hien stabbed his finger into the injury on John's neck. Ugh. He then scoffed. What's wrong? Don't you already remember us? You remember everything from when you were on our team as well. Chapter 351 What's wrong? Don't you already remember us? You remember everything from when you were on our team as well. John was really shocked to hear Ju Hien's comments. His gaze didn't look as if he was feeling him out. Ju Hien's gaze was full of certainty. Did he notice it? But John wasn't the type to lose his pace because of something like this. Huh? Team member. I have no idea what you are talking about. Ju Hien smiled as if he found John to be despicable. I told you not to try your terrible acting. Then how did you avoid COAS radar earlier? John slyly laughed. You're looking down on Pandora too much. We've analyzed all of your abilities a long time ago. Oh. You're going to feign ignorance until the end? Humph, I have no idea what why. But at that moment Ju Hien suddenly pulled something out. It was a crossbow. The team members flinched out of reflex. It was normal to be wary of a weapon and look at it. However, at that moment. Flash. There was a bright light and the team members screamed. Ah. Ow, ow, my eyes. It hurts. Hey. Co Ju Hien. The great and mighty Julian seemed to have been affected this time as well and couldn't open his eyes. What the hell did you just use? All of the team members were in pain. 
It felt as if some rain had dropped into their eyes but they couldn't see anything. Fuck, I can't see anything. What the hell? Wasn't that a crossbow? But there was someone who was still fine. Juhian chuckled mischievously. See. I knew you remembered this. He was right. John bit down on his lips and slightly opened his eyes. Why did he have to take that out of all things? Jaha got angry at that moment. Ow, fuck that crossbow. What the hell is that? Why the hell did you do that? Why did Juhian do this? It was before I met all of you so, it was before I joined TKBM. It was a book artifact I temporarily used while on the guerrilla team. John Milton, the book of a blind poet S grade, legendary hero grade, consumable artifact what was this book? It was an artifact belonging to a writer who was as famous as Shakespeare in England. Milton was known as one of the most famous poets with Homer, but he ended up going blind. This artifact would make a person go blind while giving them inspiration. Of course, Ju Hien used it differently and just used it as a flash grenade. The team members started to complain. I was wondering what kind of weird stuff you were buying from the auctions. Who the hell makes a book artifact look like a damn crossbow? Motherfucker. Ju Hien looked toward the frowning John and continued to speak. Now then. How did you know the abilities of this artifact and close your eyes when nobody knows about it? He looked toward Julian who was still groaning in pain. Even the world's greatest analyzer, Har Kong Ming, couldn't figure out the abilities of this artifact before I activated it. They were even warier of it and kept their eyes wide open because they all thought it was a weapon. They would have been crazy to close their eyes. That was why the fact that John closed his eyes was proof that he was Ju Hian's former team member. This artifact is one I used when this bastard was on my team. I recommend you stop feigning ignorance. Ilya agreed with Juhian. That's right. This son of a bitch hasn't gotten caught by my artifact since earlier either. It means he knows exactly what it takes to activate my artifact. John clicked his tongue. I guess it is meaningless to trick them anymore. It was a waste since he ordered all sorts of artifacts from Merlin to take care of these bastards. That was probably the reason. This man who was at one point John and at another point Samuel had no choice but to take off his mask. Yes, to be more specific, I was there to keep an eye on you guys but both Yang Chen and I were responsible for getting you guys killed. What's wrong? Was I not supposed to do that? Samuel. C.O. Juhian was one of the Majesty candidates. The rest of you were taken out because the executive board said some bullshit about you guys taking their spots or something. Then you when you died in that tomb. I didn't die. You dumbass. John then activated his Christian artifacts. Boom. A holy light descended on the airport. A church suddenly appeared. It started to grow in size and make the ground glow. Ugh. Sorry, but I need to capture you guys here. It'll be really bad if the scoop about unknown is released. John smiled. Pandora's soldiers should have gone to attack the press and the reporters by now. He probably didn't have to worry about that side. The ones he did need to worry about were Seo Juhian and his tomb raiding team. I have no choice. I have to get rid of them here. He activated his artifact. The first to scream was Ilya. Ah! It was because of the Christian believer artifacts. The power of the believers of Jehovah is activating. An angel is descending after hearing the singing of believers. The devils are in pain. Ilai felt as if he would die. He was the monarch of devils, the mighty Satan. He might be okay if he used Beelzebub's artifact, but you really do still have trauma with these artifacts. Is it because of the girlfriend you killed? This motherfucker. That wasn't all. Bobo bo boom. That is. The Ten Commandments artifact that condemns humans is being activated. Moses's Ten Commandments artifact had descended. This was a punishment type artifact that would be difficult for humans to dodge. A light shot out of it and mercilessly started to attack Juhian's team members. Bang! Baba ba bang! Julian frowned as he watched the rays of light shoot out like lasers. 
Ugh, we got a lot of injuries from the great prison because of the copies of this artifact. On the other hand, John was snorting. These really should be enough. The best thing to do in this situation would be to call out his SS grade artifacts such as the Archangel artifacts or any Jesus related artifacts, but I put up that stupid act and lost my right arm. He could not use those artifacts right now. These artifacts should be enough for you guys. They were all mainly S-grade artifacts but religion-type artifacts tended to be powerful. Part of it was because they received God's buff, but artifacts themselves gained extra buffs based on people's awareness of their identity. With Christianity being one of the most known religions in the world, there was no way these artifacts would not be strong. But at that moment swish. This bitch thinks he's the shit because he got his fancy religion artifacts. Does he think he is some sort of god? John jumped in shock after hearing a voice behind him. The moment he turned around. Bang! A strong aura exploded. This aura was like a tornado. John glared at Juhian after being pushed back by that aura. Co Juhian. Something seemed odd with this aura. To be more specific, it looked extremely dangerous. The Majesty's key is reacting to the user's anger. The key of wrath is showing signs of awakening. That is. John frowned while looking at something. The thing releasing the chaotic aura was a mass keychain on Juhian's phone. It was Tutankhamun's artifact. That is the Majesty's key. He was sure of it. The key of wrath was about to awaken. This was the first time a key was awakening without receiving 100 sacrifices. Juhian had massacred Su many artifacts with unbelievable methods to achieve that, but is this bastard perhaps wrath? He was so consumed by his wrath that he would kill his own team member as well, making the artifact react to him. Keys could be awakened by committing the specific sin related to that artifact. No matter what, John was ironically Juhian's former team member. Wanting to kill him was enough to meet the conditions of wrath that he was so angry he would kill without caring about who it was. It was at that moment. The key of wrath has awakened. You are able to use the key of wrath's innate door power. There are only a few more to go until the majesty's key is completed. You are not far from being able to open every door down to the doors in the deepest part of the great prison. You are getting closer to awakening as the majesty. Jeha started shaking as he watched. T, the Captain Nim is really fucking angry. Juhian was giving off a level of murderous intent they had not seen in a long time. Before I joined TKBM you killed all of our team members on the guerrilla team. Juhian had been on a guerrilla team before being scouted. However, they were all murdered by John. Then you shamelessly walk in as Samuel and mess with my stuff again. It was obvious why Juhian was this angry. If he knew that Samuel was John, he would have ground him up and drank him as a protein smoothie a long time ago. While he had not known that in the past there was a big difference between hearing rumors and confirming things to be true. Now he knew. Religion type artifacts. I'll just have fun oppressing them. What? Oppress? Gold started to appear in the airport as soon as Juhian said that. They were Hellenistic golden architecture. And then ah. Uh, a murderous fire viciously shot up. They were the fires of Nero who was said to have oppressed the Christian church. Ah. Uh, don't kill me. Ah. Uh, I'm going to burn to death. This bastard. The fire was much stronger than usual, as if it had met the perfect enemy. There were rumors that Nero had caused the fire to oppress the Christian church. Even if the truth was different, this artifact was born from such rumors. That murderous arsonist's fire started to burn John and his artifacts. Ah! It was an extremely strong fire. Ha ha ha! Let me burn everything. Please let me burn them all. More! More! Nero's current crazed excitement made it hard to believe that he was the artifact of sloth. Maybe he was being influenced by the newly awakened Key of Wrath. John groaned and changed his plans. I need to first run away. But there was no way that the wicked Juhian would let him do that. Ha ha ha. I wonder what that artifact is. Juhian seemed to have made up his mind as he summoned Ramesses as well. 
Ramesses was also famous for having suppressed the Christian church. Stupid bastards! Let me watch you despair. You cannot run away from me. Ramesses, who was famous for exiling Moses, started going crazy as soon as he saw Moses's Ten Commandments artifact. Destroy everything. Destroy them. The Egyptian gods are the only true gods in the world. Actually, I am the only great and mighty god in this world. John was grinding his teeth while glaring at Juhian. But Juhian, who had become the king of oppression, was growling without caring about it. Don't get the wrong idea. I don't really have any negative feelings about religion. I just happen to have the perfect artifacts for the occasion. Juhian then viciously growled. What are you doing? Make sure that nothing, not even a single fucking rat, can get out of here. Nero and Ramesses's artifacts started going wild. Oppression. Burn those bastards to death. Execute these insolent masses who refuse to believe in the exalted Egyptian gods. Damn it. John was desperately running right now. He was running from Juhian's team. That was probably the reason. He was regretting his decisions. TSK, I should never have tried such a stupid plan and started with an archangel or Jehovah's artifact. He would not be able to use divine great artifacts until his right hand was healed. Should I abduct Chloe and force her to heal me? Or maybe abduct that bastard Jeha and steal his phoenix? As John was running for his life a car next to him was sent flying. It was Colas Ghost. That wasn't all. The excited Nero was slowly condensing his net. John's Christian believer artifacts were groaning before being ruthlessly destroyed. Even if they were said to have oppressed Christians, it doesn't mean that my Christian artifacts are necessary at a disadvantage, but his dominance had fallen quite a bit because he had lost his arm. John then recalled the key that Juhian had just awakened. That bastard has already awakened three keys. It would be a major headache if he awakened all seven of them. Why? The key's abilities become better and better until it becomes perfect. Once it reaches its full capacity, this bastard he will definitely barge into the druid's clock tower that is being protected by Merlin as well. They might even lose the throne at that rate. He had declared his plans to do so already. We need to stop that no matter what, he soon shook his head. The unknown issue is more urgent than a set of keys that has not fully awakened. That had to do with the livelihood of Pandora. As a result he quickly contacted his allies. Are you blocking the media? Yes. Currently in the process. John laughed with relief. It's not like unknown is an issue anyway. Of course, it could be seen as an ethical problem. And even if they weren't actually using a majesty's artifact to make it happen it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a chance for the sick to receive new lives. What did he mean by that? It would be like Louis, who everybody thought was Jeha's son. Louis Martin is an unknown made from the future Jeha who died. Wasn't this a great way to spin things? But at that moment John, who had been running away from Juhian's team so well, suddenly stopped. W, what the hell? Something shocking was going on in front of him. Chapter, 352 He couldn't believe what he was seeing. Wah! Take Pandora down. They are worse than dogs. Drag them out. Kill them all. Hey, you sons of bitches. If I think about how much pain my child had been in because of you bastards. John was running toward Pandora's HQ while having an angel by his side. That was the only place where he could safely escape Seo Juhian's wrath. It would not take long for him to get to the Druid's clock tower as long as he could find a cab. However, once he headed to a big street to grab a cab, that's definitely one of Pandora's branches. John could see people causing chaos outside the building. Kill them all. They are all trash. You guys aren't even human. Angry people were breaking the facility, complaining to employees, and causing quite the fuss. John couldn't help but be flustered. What the hell? He urgently looked at his phone. He had not had the time to look at his phone because Juhian's group had been right on his tail. He had been relieved after seeing the earlier message that things were okay, but what is going on? 
his hands were quickly moving out of anxiety. Actually, John knew what it must be. There was only one reason for people to be acting this way. He was right. Unidentified corpses have poured out of Pandora's RD facility the reason behind it. Currently looking into the identities of the bodies, they seem to have been used as ingredients for experiments. Grave Company claims that, Pandora used people suffering from tomb syndrome to create artifacts. Shocking revelation. Pandora was actually the one to spread the artifact disease. People all around the world are in uproar. You lied about being there to protect the people. Countries that are not a part of Pandora along with the CR Alliance, this is a terrible story that should have never happened. Forensic investigator have entered the destroyed RD facility the information they were most worried about was being broadcast around the world. John's left arm was shaking in anger after hearing the news that was going viral everywhere. What the fuck happened? It was like deja vu. This reminded him of when Ju Hian had buried Kira, the monarch of war, in the past. Pandora was able to cut Kira off as if she was a lizard's tail to prevent the negative press, but, the same thing that had happened to her was happening to them. It was as if they were being told, did you really think this wouldn't happen to you? It was as if they were being sneered at for cutting off their tail like that last time. Of course, this was much worse than Kira's brainwashing incident. People were so riled up that they were rioting and destroying property. Is this news true? Did you fucking bastards really spread the artifact disease on purpose? You weren't satisfied with selling us medicine and ripping us off. You turned people into fucking artifacts. Even if this is an era where you can use artifacts for anything, this is wrong. Give me back my father. Fuck, the rumors about corpses disappearing from Pandora's hospitals was true. This is blasphemous. They tricked us. Why the hell have I been paying taxes to support you guys until now? It didn't seem to take long for the news to spread. It had only been about two hours since it had released. It had happened while he was being chased by Ju Hian's group. The people who had seen the news had come to a nearby branch to riot. It was understandable since Pandora was a public entity that had been given all authority over artifact-related issues by the top leaders of the world. They received money from different countries for administration of artifacts and tombs around the world as well as safety of the people, and even acted as the police. How could people not feel betrayed? Is it true? Is this news true? Damn it. It's going to be a major headache. Of course, they just needed to find a suitable scapegoat and send them off to the firing squad. They could always say that the reports were lies. His fellow knights were already doing that. C.O. Juhian infiltrated our RD facility and set us up. Pandora Executive Board you should be holding C.O. Juhian responsible. You cannot be foolish and believe the instigations of the devil. You sons of bitches. Who are you trying to blame? Think about everything Grave Company has done until now. They were much better than you fuckers so many times. Those shitheads. It was at that moment. Egu, I'm so sorry about this. I guess my company is highly trusted. He heard a familiar voice and something flew over and stabbed into him. Puke. The item had stabbed into his back. John's pupils were shaking after suddenly being ambushed. Ugh. The thing in his back was Gungnir. But he did not die right away. Juhian had grabbed it before Gungnir could stab deep. Gungnir seemed as if it was desperate to stab farther and started shaking its butt. Please. Please let me stab him. Please. Juhian started laughing. Oh my oh my. I guess people unexpectedly have very good opinions about my company. Actually, people trusted Juhian's company a lot. There was some brand loyalty there as well but most of it was because of something else they had done. They kept doing things to earn them points from people in this era of artifacts. For example, they would go rescue people from places Pandora had given up on. Creation of shelters, handing out survival and medicine type artifacts for free, conducting practical artifact seminars, supporting people in need, they had done hundreds of things that people appreciated. How could they not have a favorable impression compared to Pandora who just tried to control everything and allowed only special people to use artifacts? 
Of course, Grave Company's representative was a trashy thug. Known throughout the world. Some people talked about how Grave Company was doing all of the things they did to boost their image because of Juhian's actions, but they couldn't help that they liked this brand. Juhian slightly loosened his grip on Gungnir. Gungnir became excited and stabbed a bit deeper into John's body. Ugh. John was grinding his teeth. How the hell? His allies had said that they had stopped the press. He checked his phone again and the message was still there. Are you blocking the media? Yes. Currently in the process. Completed getting rid of the evidence. It did say that they were in the process did they fail? Juhian peeked and started to laugh. Egu, it looks like our guy worked hard. Didn't you realize that someone from our team was missing? John's pupils shook while looking at the message. Then these messages. He would be correct. Something terrible had happened on the streets two hours ago. You, ugh. W, we can't let them take that. Julian had brought some of the corpses inside the gourd-shaped bottle. He left a nationally accredited agency in charge to hear a proper response. Of course, he had sent the bodies to the police in order to prevent any suspicions of tampering. The police decided to send the evidence to the National Forensic Investigators. They needed their help because this required artifact-based appraisal. They had used a quick service to avoid anyone from Pandora, finding out, but that ended up being an opportunity for Pandora. Go steal the evidence. Let it astray before it reaches the forensic investigators. Unfortunately, it didn't matter. Ugh why, you are. My goodness, gentlemen please don't hinder the delivery. That quick service delivery guy was actually Dan. Both Dan's knife and eyes flashed. They felt as if their lives would be delivered to hell if they tried to take the evidence. John's ally who was there tried to make an emergency call for help. However, his phone was taken away and eek. Dan had read John's message. That was why Dan calmly pretended to be John's ally and sent those responses. It had been so hard trying to copy a tone he was not familiar with. Dan then pummeled all of Pandora's soldiers who were trying to attack the press as well. Nobody could stop this delivery man known as the Monarch of Azura. Returning back to the present it's already over. The list of the 150 on the executive board is being spread around and there are riots at all Pandora branches around the world. It'll be useless to try to stop it. John sneered at Juhian. It'll just end as a rumor that quickly disappears. Juhian smirked back. You dumbass, why do you think that I am the only one here? The rest of them have gone to another Pandora facility. We got new information so they are all headed over. We have the special key my sister made me so it shouldn't be hard for them to get inside. John's pupils started shaking. New information. What now? John became anxious because Pandora had quite a lot of secrets. Juhian chuckled after hearing that response. I always thought it was weird. How could Pandora pop up so quickly after artifacts started appearing? The organization seemed quite complete for something that was quickly put together to deal with a sudden disaster. It was as if they had known about the existences of artifacts for a very long time. I don't know how long you guys knew about artifacts in advance, but this fact would also be quite destructive if people found out about it. John snorted. It doesn't matter if they don't know where the evidence is I heard that the evidence should be in the eastern storage building at the headquarters. Fuck, who the hell told them? Only the original members of the round table would know about that. John didn't show his true emotions and just smiled. I'll let you know that we had no ideas about artifacts at all. And even if we did, artifacts are dangerous resources. Don't you think that talking about them before they appeared would have just caused chaos? Oh, so that's why you guys feigned ignorance and claimed that you guys had no idea about them when people first got wrapped up in these disasters. You all just needed sacrificial lambs. You just wanted ways to make sure that you guys got the benefits you wanted. Juhian's team, his sister, and Irene's parents were all part of those sacrificial lambs. Most of them were exploited while Irene's parents were used as tomb syndrome experiments. Irene's parents had a large network of connections and influence but had not sided with Pandora. They would have ended up as headaches if left alone, 
so they had used them as an example for tomb syndrome and unknown. They also used her parents as leverage once Irene became the monarch of destitution. They claimed they would heal her parents or whatever. These motherfuckers lied from the beginning because all they care about is themselves and their benefits. Juhian's eyes flashed. That is why Pandora, this organization that lied about how they were for the people, will now be disbanded. No, I will make it happen. John urgently tried to run away. The pain from Gungnir cutting away at his flesh didn't matter. Ugh. Where do you think you're going? You need to answer the rest of my questions. What did Juhian want to ask? How did you get your memories back? John's pupils started shaking intensely. It was because he knew that the future would be bleak now that Juhian was curious about that. Juhian's gaze quickly changed. You know where the Akashic Records is, don't you? Damn it! The sharp Juhian started choking John. My artifacts said that they can smell the scent of a treasure on you. John gulped. All right, tell me where it is. I can probably get rid of the round table or whatever if I have it. Do you really think I would tell you that, you son of a bitch? Kill me. John would rather die than tell Juhian that the Majesty's Library was inside the Vatican Library. His death would not be in vain. As long as he didn't talk, this bastard would never find out. Don't look down on the security of the Vatican Library. Let's just die while keeping this secret to myself. John smiled. While that was going on a devil, a devil has appeared. The demons are attacking. Vatican City was currently in chaos. The Vatican warehouses storing the Christian artifacts were all being destroyed. Ilya, who was extremely angry after getting attacked by John's artifacts, was responsible for it. Well, it was also because Juhian ordered him to do so. The Vatican might have some connections with the executive board as well. Go quietly investigate. But forget quietly investigating fuck, who cares? Let's just destroy all holy artifacts in the world. He led his army of devils and charged into Vatican City on his own. The Vatican had about 90% of the world's Christian artifacts. That was why their warehouses with artifacts were perfect targets. He was basically taking out his anger on them because he couldn't take it out on the person responsible for making him angry. And then mm, mm, there seems to be a lot of artifacts over there for some reason. Ilya focused on the Vatican Library. Chapter, 353 Bang! Baba Bang! The explosions at the Vatican had only started a few minutes ago. It was late in the evening. The Vatican City, located in Italy, had been calm and peaceful. This small city that was called the holiest place in the world was suddenly being attacked by terrible devils. Fuck! What is that? Demons, they are demons. There were weak demons all the way up to the high ranking devils. Of course, this army did not barge in from the beginning. It probably started with a small demon. Hmm, do we still have no contact with Pandora? It all started while a priest was reading the Bible in a tea. Peter's Basilica. The priest couldn't help but gasp after seeing a devil crunching its way through a Bible. It was about the size of a finger. This devil that was munching away at a Bible did not have eyes. This devil that only had teeth instantly ate a page of the Bible, and then ah. When the shocked priest smacked the devil away, the devil bared its teeth and aimed for the artifact ring on the priest's hand. Chomp. Ache. The devil bit off the priest's finger along with the ring. The priest's eyes opened wide as he bled. Dirty devil-type artifact. The priest quickly picked up his crucifix. However ah. His pained screams echoed through the area. The others who ran over after hearing the priest's scream couldn't believe what they were seeing. What is this? The entire area was in pandemonium and all that was left of a person was a pair of arms at the center of the room was the hairy monster that had eaten the priest. The devil was fatter now after having eaten him and had four legs. The Pope's direct subordinate priests, John's allies, all picked up their crucifixes. It's an artifact. It's a devil-type artifact. Tang Tang. They even shot artifact guns, but I, it's not working. 
the bullets didn't go through its hide and the devil just shook its body as if it was ticklish. The devil that looked like a wild animal opened its jaws again. And then they were also gobbled up, artifacts and all. There were many devils like this around the Vatican ruthlessly gobbling up Christian artifacts. Bang! 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 The person responsible for this rampage, the monarch of devils, raised his voice and laughed. Ha ha ha, these dirty artifacts of the Vatican. I will eat them all up. I will be like our captain. He seemed to admire Juhian now. Had he somewhat fallen for Juhian because he looked so cool preying on the artifacts? Ha ha ha, our shitty captain is the best. It's my turn to look cool now. The tourists were not the target of the devils. The only ones to satiate the desires of the devils were the bastards with the Christian artifacts. And although he originally came here at Juhian's orders these shitty bastards. Time for all of you to kick the bucket with those holy artifacts you guys basically deep throat. Ilya's eyes flashed as if he had some grudges against the Vatican. While that was going on the high-ranking clergy members became desperate. This is bad. The number of devils is increasing. That bastard has already destroyed a large number of Christian artifacts. They all gasped. Why is that crazy bastard here again? The Pope was extremely upset. He was someone who forced the former Pope out and took his place. He was someone who accepted that artifacts were a practical future resource for humanity. But right now the goal of the Vatican under his leadership was to gather all of the Christian artifacts throughout the world. He loathed the thought of these artifacts landing in the hands of people of color or Gentiles. Why? Something like the Jehovah's artifact should be the symbol of the Pope. It would be embarrassing if this artifact was found somewhere else. He didn't want any other denominations or religions taking the artifact and causing a ruckus. In the end, there were people who had used Pandora's evil deeds to their benefit to collect all of the Christian artifacts. And now there was no reason for Ilya, as someone who used Satan's artifact, to be friendly with them. Actually, there was another reason for that as well. That ungrateful trash bastard. I can't believe that he has forgotten about his past as a priest and is using devil artifacts. Wait, what? Ilya was originally a member of the Vatican. He had been there until Quan Hyuk Su took him in as a member of the Aftermath cleanup crew. These people were still calm. He must have come here to draw some attention to us, but he seems to have chosen the wrong place. You have a point. According to a different report I heard, the bastard is running away. He probably got scared after realizing that he needs to go up against the priests. The priests who came to report urgently shouted that that was not the case. No sir. That bastard is not running away. What? The bastard is heading for the Vatican Library. They all urgently got up. Wait. That is. They heard an explosion at that moment. The library has been destroyed. They turned from calm to frantic in an instant. Alright, so where is it? Where is the Akashic Records? John just snickered at Juhian's question. Like hell I would tell you that. This bastard will never find out. The ones who knew about it were only the bishop-grade clergy and higher. That was probably the reason. Kill me. Juhian just scoffed after seeing the smile on John's face. Well, you don't need to tell me if you don't want to. I have many ways of finding out. You will never find out. As John was sneering at Juhian Buzz. John's cell phone on the ground was buzzing. Juhian checked who it was before laughing and picking up. His reaction was to be expected. John. John. We have a problem. The person who called was a cardinal. They could hear the urgency in his voice after Juhian answered on speakerphone. Ilya Volgov. That deserter has barged into the Vatican. He brought devils with him. John was shocked. That son of a bitch barged into the Vatican of all places. Did he use his devil artifact to quickly teleport to a different country? They could hear loud noises through the phone. That bastard is destroying all of the Christian artifacts. He's moving too fast. It made sense that Ilya was moving so quickly. As a former priest of the Vatican, 
he would know the layout and even though John had never seen him in the role, he had supposedly been a talented exorcism priest. That was why this should have all been expected, but that crazy bastard. He still thought it would be okay. I have some talented brothers over there. He calmly responded. Please don't worry. That bastard's weakness is obvious. The Vatican could easily bury a devil like that alive. But at that moment the problem is that the bastard headed toward the library. John had an odd frown on his face. What? The library? As he had that thought if he keeps going, that will be revealed. This dog-like son of a bitch. Why did he have to go there of all places? John then realized something and looked toward Juhian. It was because he knew that he had a moment where his expression had crumbled. John quickly got rid of it. He shouldn't have noticed. Even if this bastard's senses were as sharp as a dog's, ah, uh, I see. Juhian started to smile. That smile gave John the chills. He was right to be scared. Ugh. Juhian let go of Gungnir that he had been holding back. John bled out and fell backward. Boom. Gungnir was stabbed in John's stomach. What Gungnir was stabbing was the round table artifacts medium. Fuck, the benefits from the round table are going to disappear. Of course, that would not be enough to kill John. His life force was very strong even without the blessing of the round table because he used holy artifacts. There were benefits to being an artifact user who could use Jesus grade artifacts. John became desperate after seeing Juhian starting to walk away. He's definitely going to head to the Vatican. John's pupils started shaking. It was obvious that they would lose the Majesty's treasure the moment this bastard went there. He needed to stall. No matter what it took, no matter what he had to do, he needed to hold this bastard back. Although he probably could have lived if he pretended to be dead, John started shouting. I'll tell you where it is. I'll tell you the location of the treasure so let's make a deal. He was spurting blood as he shouted, but Juhian just smiled. It seemed as if he was saying you're still alive. At least that was what his gaze seemed to be saying. Juhian started to speak. I applaud you for trying to make a deal. But I don't think I need you anymore. He then stabbed John's heart. You ugh. Juhian then pulled Gungnir out and then tied his arm to Gungnir with the rope. And then. Swoosh. He then threw Gungnir. He threw it toward the Vatican. Gungnir instantly shot up into the sky. Juhian, who was tied to Gungnir by the rope, ended up flying with it as well. Shu. He then climbed up properly onto Gungnir and quickly disappeared from the US. It didn't matter that he didn't collect John's artifacts. Oh, he's amazing for a stupid human. Is that Christian or whatever an amazing god? Whatever, let's gather these artifacts first. I need to go eat chicken. I need to get that back. The shits that Juhian had left behind were snickering. Fuck, the bastard has barged into the library. We cannot even stop him with the angel artifacts. Within 30 minutes of Ilya barging into the Vatican the number of Jehovah artifacts that Ilya had swept up was behind anything people could have ever imagined. That wasn't all. I definitely smell something good here. Ilya confidently barged into the library. He was focused on the secret library area in the basement of the library. I wonder what artifacts they have stashed in there while I was gone. Ilya easily opened the secret passage and walked down. Angel artifacts descended every so often to get in his way but it didn't matter. I hope you don't fall into the fires of hell. Crackle. Kaya. Save me. I've become dirty. He was just turning these angels into fallen angels. But the moment he was about to walk into the secret area Ilya. Stop right there. There were some bishops who had chased after Ilya. Stop right there. They recalled something that had happened when artifacts first appeared. A man named Quan Hyuk Su from Pandora had contacted them for a weird reason. There should be a girl named Galena who frequently shows up there. You should pay close attention to that child. Galena was a believer that Ilya had been working with. Most importantly, she was the woman who ended up being the trigger that allowed Ilya to use the devil artifacts. 
the bishops who knew about that fact wanted to use that to their advantage. We will use our Christian artifacts to revive that girl Galena. Isn't that child the reason you made a deal with these devils? You are our ally. So. Bang. An extremely strong aura swept through the Vatican's library and intense fires of hell shot up. Baba -ba bang The internal walls of the library crumbled. Glass shattered all around them and the outer walls cracked as well until the entire building exploded. The bishops and priests were flung back from the impact as well. Ilya picked his ear with his finger as he started speaking. Bullshit. You guys killed her and now you want to revive her. You should really stop playing with corpses. What? It's obvious you guys are going to use those artifacts you've been sucking so hard or that unknown shit. His eyes flashed. No thanks, you retards. The devils quickly killed the priests. He then confidently walked into the secret library area. He then ended up face to face with the Akashic records. Oh, bingo. It was giving off such a strong aura. It didn't seem to be a Christian artifact but it was too good of an artifact to just walk past it. It was at that moment. Buz. Ilya nonchalantly picked up the call. The pushover was the one who called. Hey, did you find it? I heard it from the Captain Nim. He said it was there. What does it look like? What can it do? I don't know, you little punk. I need to find out now. Oh, is the Captain Nim going to get another jackpot of an artifact? You should ask for a giant bonus for doing a good job. Ilya sneered at him. Get lost. Finders keepers. What? Oh ho, what could you ever mean by that? What do I mean? The captain always takes the good shit for himself. Shouldn't I get at least one of? Hmm. Ilya suddenly got the chills. Did did he just hear another voice? Chapter, 354. Ilya had to question his hearing for a moment. I'm pretty sure I heard a different voice just now. Once he realized that the voice was one he was very familiar with Ilya felt a terrible fear. It was like one of those scenes in horror movies. He felt like a character who felt a strong grudge behind him. Those characters usually feel like they would die if they turn around but still do it anyway and end up dying so you're going to take that for yourself. Then I guess you're my enemy. Ah fuck. I shouldn't have looked back. Ilya foamed at the mouth and tried to run for his life. But it didn't matter. Bang. Ache. A bookshelf split in half and blocked his path. Juhian laughed. But to aim for one of the Majesty's treasures, as expected of my subordinate. You got quite the balls. Ilya gasped. What did he say? That is one of the Majesty's treasures. Holy shit. I'm really fucked. A desperate Ilya quickly shouted. See, Captain. No, why, you see. That's not it. He wondered why this guy was here, but he didn't need to ask after seeing Gungnir in his hand. He must have set the target to Ilya and flown over. Why? The risk was too much for the current Juhian to set the target as the Akashic Records. It was a major god-grade artifact for a reason. Although Gungnir was omnipotent, the risk went up depending on the difficulty of the target. As long as humans used artifacts, they had to deal with the risks. Well, I do remember hearing that the Majesty can use artifacts without worrying about the risks. Anyway, it was fine that Juhian had come to find the treasure, but yes, I'm sorry. I do tend to monopolize everything for myself. This captain was trying to kill his team member. Juhian soon made a comment. You guys must have wanted artifacts as well. How could I not have realized that? Fine, I'll give you this artifact. R, really? Yeah. We'll follow the proper rules of a tomb. Ilya screamed as soon as Juhian said that. He felt some of the hair on the front of his head being sliced off. His silver hair scattered in the wind. Ilya started wailing in shock and fear. Fuck, I knew it would be like this. Furthermore, this was not the way Juhian usually attacked his team members. This was how he moved when he was being serious. Did he just say the proper rules of a tomb? 
That was referring to a death match where the last man standing took the artifact. That was probably the reason. Captain, joke. It was a joke. You know that. I don't need the artifact. No. I've been ignoring you guys too much for being my team members. You are all proud excavators. Now that I think about it, I was too rude to you guys in the other tombs. You, um. As a token of my apology, I properly request a death match. No, I don't need that. It'd be better if you just ignore me. It was at that moment. Get out of there right now. The high-ranking clergy rushed into the secret library. Where do you think you're entering right now? Especially you, Ilya. How can a former Vatican priest do such a thing? Does it feel good to betray your brothers? You had received a blessing and had even earned the qualifications to be an exorcism priest. But you threw away your divine purpose. And you stuck with a bastard like Seo Juhian of all people. They looked around the area and their eyes flashed. But at that moment shut up. I owe the captain big time. I can't go. They heard the noise from a corner. Ilya urgently burst out shouting. Fuck, but I want to go back to the Vatican right now. The priests gasped after hearing a loud explosion. There was an intense flame that shot out from where Ilya had jumped out. Bong! Ah! The heat was unbearable. Juhian's eyes flashed as he leisurely walked out with that fire behind him. His gaze headed toward the cardinal and the bishops. Oh, there are more competitors now. I guess good artifacts really are different. Eek! The terrible screams of the priests soon echoed through the area. While all of that chaos was going on ah! Jeha was shaking in fear while hearing the screams on the phone. His call with Ilya had not been disconnected. I can tell what is going on even without asking. He couldn't even hear Ilya, who had aimed. For Juhian's treasure. He couldn't hear Ilya's voice after a terrible scream, so Ilya probably was not okay. This pitiful and stupid bastard. Who told you to aim for the Akashic records of all things? It's one of the Majesty's treasures. But I didn't know that Ilya used to be a priest for the Vatican. That's true. Who would ever think that the bastard was a priest? He didn't have an ounce of religious belief and he handled devils. Only the Captain Nim knows what everybody did before joining the team. That was true. They made their rules to not ask each other about their pasts or try to find out. But for a priest to handle devils, what kind of shitty fit is that? But Siole had a different thought. Isn't that why his fit is so high? He would have been close to devils if he was an exorcism priest. What exactly is an exorcism priest? Is it like in the exorcist? Did he chant some things and spray holy water on people possessed by evil spirits? Anyway, now I understand why the captain Nim always says that the son of a bitch has a lot of negative karma. If you think about it, that son of a bitch was a priest but had a girlfriend. Jeha was saying that that was completely immoral as he wickedly added on. And that guy looks like a total playboy but he might still be a virgin. He was a priest. That girlfriend might not be real too. Jeha chuckled in joy. He probably felt that he won. Because he once had a girlfriend. But Siole was thinking that it wasn't a complete lie. He doesn't know it but the conditions for handling devils is probably something like that. The conditions for her to handle ghosts was to see a close family member die or to experience a near-death experience. Oh my, I guess we are the last ones. Chloe and Dan arrived to meet up with the rest of the team. Their hands were full of items the others had never seen before. These were all new evidence they had swiped from Pandora. What had they been up to? While Juhian was at the Vatican, the rest of the team members had received orders to loot other Pandora facilities. It is to completely dismantle Pandora. It was an era where people without artifacts ended up as stragglers. They were going to completely destroy the foundation that the monopolizers, the people who were responsible for making the regular people suffer, relied on to do their bad deeds. Of course, attacking Pandora facilities was something they couldn't even imagine until now. But things were different now. Everything Juhian had done until now, the fact that they were all monarchs now, 
and the keys that joy had made for them changing the future little by little had made the impossible become possible. And today, in this moment the monopolizer system that existed in the past will be completely dismantled. All of their eyes were sparkling. It was as they had expected. Pandora knew about the existence of artifacts long before they admitted to it. They were researching things before artifacts first appeared. A report about the existence of artifacts has been found. It is from 15 years ago. They've known about the existence of tomb syndrome for over 10 years as well who all knew about this. Their supposed reason they kept the existence of artifacts a secret. We didn't want to cause chaos in society. However, a letter sent to a general in the past shows that they were lying. Announcing it will only increase the number of competitors. There will be less competitors if people cannot prepare for tomb syndrome. What is all this? Why do these articles keep popping up? It was quite the shit show. Where were these documents that even they had forgotten about coming from? They all shouted in anger. Fuck, how do these bastards know where to loot? Anyway, claim that these are all forged documents. Say that these are fakes made by the monarch of pushoverness. Do you think they will believe us right now? Pandora was in uproar. Information like this was not something people could find overnight. I'm certain of it. Someone must have sold us out. But who? Who else would it be? It was me. At the Pandora HQ where everybody was busier than ever a familiar person appeared in front of the round table artifact at the Druid's clock tower. You are. The person who appeared at the round table was actually Quan Hyuk Su. He was a member of the round table. Pandora's executive board smiled brightly at his appearance. Thank goodness you're here. Please help us resolve this situation. Every second counts. Quan Hyuk Su patted the round table artifact with seats for 150 people as he laughed. Sorry, but Pandora has no merits whatsoever anymore. What? I never liked you guys from the beginning. Regular bastards who weren't even monarchs playing god because they had power. You guys pretty much get immortality for free. 137 people could sit at the round table along with the 13 knights of the round table. Anybody who has a seat at this table would be able to live peacefully without getting sick. It wasn't as good as an immortality artifact, the herb of eternal youth artifact, or divine grade artifacts, but still they were able to get the benefits of multiple artifacts without doing anything. Their physical appearance would get better, they would live long lives, their health and even their sexual stamina would go up. Famous people, rich people, and government leaders throughout the world were doing anything and everything to be a member of the round table. I didn't like seeing pigs who couldn't even use C-grade artifacts use their money to get a position here and look down on the monarchs. He thought that they should know their place. Who is going to select whom? You guys are going to select the majesty. Quan Hyuk Su, a man at the Four Emperor's Grace, started laughing. The members of the round table Pandora's executive board members became anxious after seeing his scary gaze. Hey, why are you acting like this? Aren't we fellow members of the round table? Quan Hyuk Su started to laugh out loud. The reason he had been helping the round table was to gain benefits with artifacts. He could have become the majesty to gain the benefits but that was pretty much committing suicide. Artifacts hate having a human king. He had heard that the last majesty had been murdered by the artifacts. That strong king of the artifacts had been murdered. Quan Hyuk Su didn't want to experience something like that. That was why he was helping Pandora while picking up the benefits that fell to his lap like candy. No matter what, Pandora had an artifact supreme leader like Prometheus as well. But things were different now. Prometheus was dead and Juhian is different. The artifacts were scared of Juhian. And unlike the past, he had the abilities to back it up as well. It was a risk worth taking. He might be able to earn some benefits from Juhian once he became the majesty if he stayed on Juhian's good side. That is why Pandora is useless now. The veins on the faces of the executives were visible as they shouted in anger. Immediately. Remove this bastard from the round table immediately. Do whatever you want. I don't really care about the round table. Ho! Their eyes were open wide with anger. Quan Hyuk Su. 
Do you really think that you bastards would be able to bring us down? No matter how much you dogs and pigs cause a ruckus, we are immortal as long as we are sitting at the round table. You can't do shit. We will make a comeback really soon. People will realize that they cannot do anything to immortals. Quan Hyuk Su laughed while picking up his belongings from the round table. It was candy he enjoyed eating. Your fancy round table artifact might become useless soon too. The Akashic Records It was the grand library with records of humans, artifacts, and everything in the world. Most importantly, the Akashic Records could be used to change a person's past, personality, and even abilities. It was the same for artifacts as well. I pray that the round table can maintain its function. That artifact was the greatest artifact. That artifact could probably change not just an artifact's abilities, but get rid of its risks as well. Ju Hian would be unstoppable if he could handle that artifact. Around that same time ah, uh, I'm done organizing things. Ju Hian, who had caused a rampage in the secret library, was brushing his hands off. He had gotten rid of all of the priests trying to kill them and Ilya was dying in a corner as well. You, ugh. So this is what it feels like to taste blood. Ilya had not tasted blood like this in a long time. He was extremely thankful that Ju Hian wasn't really serious when attacking his team members. Ju Hian looked around the library before heading toward a shining artifact. It was a sparkling book on a bookshelf. Is this the Akashic Records? This secret library seemed too small of a place for it to lay its roots, but it didn't matter. Time to contract it. A message popped up once Ju Hian channeled his strong dominance. Chapter, 355 The book is rejecting you. It says that it cannot have two masters under one sky. The book then wiggled its way out of Ju Hian's grasp. Ju Hian couldn't believe it. What? Two masters. Two masters my ass. Hey. The former majesty is dead. Why can't you follow me? Another message appeared. The book asks if it was you, would you be able to have two husbands or two wives under the same sky? You're just a damn book. There seemed to be more reasons as the book was openly rejecting Ju Hian. Your affinity level is too low. The book is repulsed by you. Forget contracting with you, it won't even give you permission to enter the library. Ju Hian was in disbelief. Huh, would you look at this? I was going easy on it since it was a treasure, but what? It was at that moment. Ju Hian stomped on Ilya's hand that was slowly crawling forward toward it. Ilya, what are you doing? Ilya snickered while looking at Ju Hian. Captain. It's obvious that you need to use affinity for this artifact. And? You're an affinity eunuch. I guess I have no choice but to help Y Ugg. Ilya felt as if his hand would be ripped off. Ah. My hand, my hand. Get lost. This is mine. The stick is always the answer for spoiled brats who won't listen. Ju Hian took out a sword and stabbed into the book. The book started screaming. Of course, that was not the end. Ju Hian activated one of his artifacts. He activated the Majesty's key. Flash. The Akashic Records is a library. This book is just an entrance. Basically, this artifact was a spatial type artifact. In that case, he should be able to force the door open and go inside. A bright light flashed from the book. You have forcibly opened the library doors with the Majesty's key. The light that was so bright that it felt as if it would gouge his eyes out continued to flash for what seemed to be an eternity. Pot. Ju Hian's body started to be sucked into somewhere. Ju Hian was shocked after opening his eyes a few moments later. An unfamiliar sight was in front of him. He was inside a large dome. It looked very quiet and magnificent. The overall appearance looked like a temple with a blue light shooting up from it. This temple building was full of books. The ceiling was so high and the floor was so low that he could barely see them. The books surrounding him in all directions must be the records of everything in the world. Ju Hian turned his head and saw something. That is. There was an orb of light at the center of the dome. That orb of light was continuously writing something. 
It was as if this orb was recording everything that was happening in real time. That has to be it. That must be the true body of the Akashic Records. But at that moment is this the inside of the Akashic Records? There were some priests next to him. They must have grabbed onto Juhian and got dragged in as well. There were about ten of them. They were extremely excited. We did it. We can even change history now that we are in here. Even the great and mighty John had failed to get in here. But they made it in. Every artifact in the world will now belong to the Vatican No, to us. Ache. Ah. Uh. The priests' bodies and heads exploded. Crack. Crack. It was quite the gruesome scene. All that was left were the clothes they had been wearing and the angel artifacts they had with them. Juhian wondered what had happened when he heard an unfamiliar voice. Intruders will automatically perish. Nobody other than the Majesty may enter this area. It was a stoic and mechanical voice. It must be the voice of the Akashic Records. Juhian then sneered. I guess you accept me as the Majesty since you kept me alive. Juhian laughed, thinking that this artifact couldn't be honest with him. However, the library shot him down almost instantly. No. You are not my Majesty. You are only accepted about 50% as the Majesty because of the Seals of Heaven artifact and the Crow's artifact. Oh. The Akashic Records seemed to know about Juhian. It was understandable since the Crow had used this library to give Juhian the memories of his past life. The Seals of Heaven is a temporary token of a monarch. It sticks to people at the Four Emperor's Grade and gives them a few buffs until they become the Majesty. For example, it allowed you to enter the Great Prison before you awaken the First Majesty's Key. In addition, the Crow is an heirloom that has been promoted to one of the Majesty's treasures. It is the Crown. It is the treasure that bestows the qualifications of the Majesty. That is why you are about halfway to becoming the Majesty since you have a provisional contract with such an artifact. That is the reason you are able to use the other Majesty's treasures as well. It was basically telling him to deflate his giant ego because he was not the Majesty. Juhian could only scoff. It also said that it could not serve two masters. The Akashic Records artifact must have liked the former Majesty. It must have liked him a lot. But Juhian didn't care about something like that. You seem to have the wrong idea. The important thing right now is that I can use you, you bastard. Juhian then pulled out a book. He pulled out a book from this library that only the Majesty could use. The Akashic Records became anxious. Whole. Juhian just laughed. He didn't care what an artifact was thinking about. The books here can change the abilities of those bastards' artifact. The book he had confidently pulled out was labeled Round Table Artifact. This book would have everything about that artifact in it. The rope had been a good girl and found it for him. Now then, with this. Juhian opened the book. However it top 100 round table artifact recipes to satisfy all women in the world. Squinting eyes face, follow these steps and even the Majesty Nim's lady friend would die from pleasure. Squinting eyes face, providing the Majesty Nim with the most important knowledge. Squinting eyes face, let's have fun at the round table. Juhian questioned his eyes for a moment. The contents were 19 material. An anxious Juhian looked toward the rope. The rope's eyes were sparkling as if it was asking for praise. This is the one, right? Right? The rope gasped after seeing the angry Juhian rip the book apart and throw it aside. It wasn't that one. It wasn't. Juhian wasn't going to blame the rope for it. I can see why it made the mistake. He frowned and started to take the books out around him one by one. How to use the stylist artifact, the stylist's daily recommendation for the elegance of the majesty. How to use the social artifact, the way to always seem full of confidence. Why are all of the books like this? Isn't this the Akashic Records? Why is it full of these useless things? The Akashic Records sighed as if to respond to his question. That area is the area the former Majesty frequently used. Even humans would be able to use that part of the library. Ho! 
What the fuck was that son of a bitch doing that, it was odd since he seemed normal when Juhian saw him through the Supreme Leader's memories. He even looked a bit like him that Juhian thought that it was a pity that he had died. You deserve to die. You son of a bitch. Juhian headed toward the Orb of Light as if he was angry. Whatever. Hand over the records of the artifact I am looking for, while I am asking nicely. I cannot allow that unless you are the Majesty. I will say it just one more time. Take it out. Otherwise, I will destroy this whole place. The library was as firm as an oak tree despite his vicious smile. I cannot give permission to someone without the qualifications. Getting rid of the intruder now. Guards immediately started charging toward Juhian like a swarm of bees. Juhian just scoffed and put on Chi Yu's mask. His strong aura exploded out and the guards were blasted away while screaming. Bong! Chi Yu's power was overwhelming. The Akashic Records was in pain after a portion of the library was destroyed. Juhian didn't care and moved closer to the light. My goodness, I like the fact that you have such loyalty toward your former master. I applaud you for it. But you should know your limits. If you keep standing there with this stick up your ass. Violent is useless. This is an area reserved only for the glorious majesty. Intruders will receive punishment boom. The moment Juhian put his hand on the orb of light something shocking happened. You have satisfied the requirement. The tokens of your actions until now all of your titles are being inserted into the Akashic records. The records of the majesty are starting to be stored. You are able to use the Akashic records. It is bringing the round table artifacts records to you. The library started to move based on Juhian's orders regardless of the record's will. Something popped out of the light at that moment. It was the book that Juhian had been asking for. The book was finally in Juhian's hands. It was the real one this time with the records of the round table artifact inside. Everything was written in Tumblef. Juhian smiled with satisfaction. Little punk, you should have done this from the beginning. The Akashic Records was completely flabbergasted. It had not brought the book out because it had wanted to do so. This human controlled me. Even if Juhian could use the Majesty's treasures because of the crow, how was this possible? Is he the king? The Akashic Records started to shake. Is this the esteemed Majesty? Juhian ignored the light and just read through the book. It wasn't hard to decipher. Juhian smiled while going through this book that anybody else would have trouble reading. Good, I found a great part to fix. While Juhian was busy in the library Wu. Sweep Pandora out. Dismantle them right now. What was going on while Juhian was inside the Akashic Records? Riots were happening all over the world. The new evidence spread by Juhian's subordinates made everybody in the world filled with rage. Pandora had lost all credibility with Unknown already, but with these new pieces of information the proof that they knew about the existence of artifacts and said nothing despite knowing people would die was the breaking point. People all over the world were going around destroying Pandora's branch offices. Every branch office was now destroyed and the only thing left was Pandora's HQ in Manhattan. Actually, it was just the Druid's clock tower that was still standing. People were currently gathering outside that tower. Get lost Pandora. Get lost. We don't need an organization like you any longer. The reason that so much had happened while Juhian was inside the Akashic Records was because the flow of time was different. Time flowed much faster out here than inside the Akashic Records. Inside the Druid's clock tower the building of the executive board was full of swearing people. Fuck, how did we end up in this mess? What are we going to do about the people outside? Let's get rid of them. We can't even go home like this. The other executives scoffed at them. They can't destroy the iron walls of this tower even if they attack it with divine grade artifacts. That is true. Actually, this might all be for the better. We don't need to be wary anymore and can just use force to get our way. It was at that moment. Bang! There was an explosion at the Druid's clock tower. The citizens outside started screaming as well. Ah! Ah! The members of the executive board started laughing. 
I guess they're already getting started. The knight said that they would massacre everybody out there. They should know their place. They are just filthy animals. Ah, I wish they would hurry the fuck up. I have my son's birthday party today. The area outside the clock tower was turning into hell. The knights of the round table and Pandora's soldiers were not just killing people holding weapons, they were also killing people who were running away. They were saying that anybody who gets on Pandora's nerves was their enemy. Please save me, mommy, mommy. Juhian subordinates as well as Irene, George, and other allies quickly moved but these bastards were cheap as hell. Wow, those sons of bitches. They're too wicked. They walked into the iron walls of the tower as soon as they appeared. They were hiding inside the druid's clock tower. They were hiding their asses while launching attacks outside. Bang! Bang bang! Ah! Please save me! Unfortunately, even Gunmir could not break through the iron walls of this tower. They couldn't open it with Joy's key either. The team members were doing their best to defend as they looked toward Julian. Vice Captain Nim, is there no way to get through this place? Julian, who had been attacking while using Kongming's artifact, seemed to be tired as well. Damn it! There's nothing we can do. Jeha ended up creating a building out of nothing to evacuate people. Please move quickly. Hurry. Chloe and Grave Company used healing artifacts inside the building to heal the injured people. People raised their voices even more through the chaos. Just a little more. Try just a little harder. You can do it. Pandora's executives are in there if we can get inside. They killed my parents. Boom. Boom. People were still trying to break the doors of the druid's clock tower. The executive board just sneered at them. This tower won't budge at all no matter what you do. Just let them be. I heard that the stupid tend to be the most courageous. That's right. We can just take a nap at the round table until it is over. Ha, huh, ha. Huh. Wait a minute. Wasn't that the sound of a door opening? Excuse me. What kind of bullshit? They couldn't help but question their eyes. Hey. W, what the hell? Look at that. The doors to this impregnable fortress were opening. They were actually opening on their own. Chapter 356 Hey! W, what the hell? Look at that. The doors to this impregnable fortress were opening. They were actually opening on their own. Pandora's guards and the executive board even the knights of the round table could not close their jaws from the shock. This was something that should never happen. Why is that opening? What the? They checked again and the doors to the tower really did open. These doors were supposed to be closed shut but why had they opened? That was what they could not understand. It made no sense for anybody to open the doors in the current situation. Who the hell? The lower floor became rowdy as they wondered what had happened. Warning! The functions of the castle have been modified. Someone has modified the abilities of the round table. Addition to the round table's abilities, ah uh, ah, uh, King Arthur's Round Table was originally a table where the knights could sit in a circle in order to not discriminate based on their ranks or titles. Henceforth, the castle gates will be open so that anybody could come and go as they please to discuss with each other. Everybody will be happy because alcohol and meat will be provided out of hospitality once people start talking. The meat would be so delicious that nobody will be able to get up before all of the meat is eaten. The Round Table artifact has a new ability. The ability to make food appear has been added. Keyword, very delicious. People at the table will be able to taste a true feast. The castle doors will remain unlocked at all times. What the hell did it just say? Who the hell would add such an ability? She didn't need to think long about who had done it. Co Ju Hian. The Akashic Records was the only treasure capable of doing something like this but I didn't hear anything about the Akashic records appearing. Merlin, who had no idea that John had hidden the fact that it was inside the Vatican, started grinding her teeth. That wasn't important right now. He modified the abilities of the round table. Merlin started shaking. It was only making food appear and leaving the castle door unlocked for now, 
but will he stop here? And then the knights of the round table are people who always think about their king and the citizens. They must never attack the citizens and cannot stop those who come to see the king. The knights of the round table who go against their knight's creed will perish. They will die instantly. Merlin turned pale after reading that message. No. Everybody needs to cancel the contract. Wah. They're the bastards on the list. Get them. Give me back my dead daughter. The people who quickly barged into the tower were viciously taking over the tower. The members of the executive board who had run away to the parking structure were screaming. They couldn't help it because people had sealed the parking garage, destroyed their cars, or gave them flat tires to prevent them from escaping. Break it. Block them. Blow it up. Make it so that these bastards cannot escape. Bang. Bang. Clang. The executive board members foamed at the mouth as they watched their cars turn into scrap. Do those shitheads know how much that car costs? That costs more than all of the money you will make throughout your life. Do you know that? I'm going to sue all of you. I don't care about that. Bind him. Screams echoed through the parking garage. The situation was pretty similar on the higher floors as well. The executive board members escaping through the stairs freaked out while seeing people come up. Fuck. Those bastards are already here. The elevators, stairs, and windows were all sealed. The angry people were holding guns, pipes, flaming bottles, and other weapons while glaring at the executive board members. All right, time to explain yourselves. Did you really know about the artifacts? Did you bastards really spread the disease on purpose? We'll fuck you up if you don't respond. The executive board members snorted at them. Sure, go ahead. We are all immortal. You will be the ones to die. The protesters and the executive board clashed against each other. The soldiers and the knights of the round table used their weapons while the protesters used their guns. However, the protesters' guns weren't working as their opponents had received the blessings of the round table. I, I saw them get hit. They're not even bleeding. The executive board members didn't even seem to feel pain as they just snorted and headed toward the protesters. We are special people so we don't bleed or feel pain. You can't think that we are the same as you inferior fools. How arrogant of you to think that we are the same. The protesters anxiously stepped backward. Fuck, I guess the thing about Pandora's executive board not being human was real. Drag them all away. Make examples out of them. The knights of the round table took the weapons away from the people. The executive board members sneered and started kicking people away. Get out of my way if you understand the situation. Ugh. A little girl bit one of the executive board members on the arm. Dwant touch my dwadi. Don't touch my daddy. This little bitch, I told you that I can't feel pain. But at that moment huh? The expression on the face of the director who was having his arm bit instantly changed. Ache. There was a terrible screech that made his fellow knights anxious. That wasn't all. Wait a minute, this, this is blood. Blood. The executive board members started getting anxious after seeing the blood flowing out from their bodies. They then felt terrible pains and fell to the ground. These people who had claimed that they were immortal zombies were foaming at the mouth and screaming. The color returned to the protesters' faces. Look, we can do it. I don't know what is going on, but this is our chance. The knights of the round table started whispering to each other. What the hell is going oh? It was at that moment. Hurry. Hurry up and cancel your contracts. The knights of the round table heard Merlin's voice through their walkie-talkies. The knights became anxious. Merlin. Cancel your contracts with the round table artifact. What do you maya? Are you crazy? If we cancel the contract in this situation. Just follow my orders. Do it if you don't want to die. What? However, at that moment ha ha ha, then goodbye, you sons of bitches. Merlin heard it again. She heard Seo Juhian's sneering voice. Some of the knights of the round table coughed up blood and fell to the ground at that moment. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. 
They were bleeding out of their eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. The terrible pain that felt as if their organs were being ground up was just extra. The rest of the knights became anxious and quickly tried to cancel their contracts after seeing some people die, but Kaya. Everybody who had contracted with the round table suddenly felt unexplainable pain and started to explode. It had really happened in an instant. Even Ju Hian's group was bewildered while watching the knights and Pandora's executive board members falling in front of their eyes. What the hell? Julian was the most shocked. He had clearly seen what had happened. The medium for the round table suddenly turned into a cursed medium. They each had a medium in their body that connected them to the round table. It had done so many different things for them, such as maintaining their youth, vitality, beauty, etc. The Celtic mythologies had a lot of connections to fairies. The round table artifact and its knights would have been deified through those mythologies and received those blessings. But it was completely different now. The abilities are completely opposite now. Having contracted the round table was making their bodies rot, making them sick, and making them feel so much pain that they would rather die. It had instantly turned into a cursed artifact. Did Ju Hian do this? He was exactly right. This is the end of Pandora. From inside the completely destroyed Vatican library Ju Hian had come out of the Akashic records and was laughing while watching a scream. Pandora's executive board members have died. List of the deceased. Ju Hian was extremely excited right now. There were three reasons Pandora could act so arrogant. Untouchable power, the blessing of the round table, and the impregnable tower. They would not be able to maintain such power after the evidence that had been spread. Most importantly, the round table, that medium that had made those bastards oh so arrogant immortals. They thought they could play God because they received the blessings of a stupid round table. Those shitty bastards. Ju Hian frowned after seeing the tablet he was looking at tilting to the side. Hey, hold it properly. TSK. Ilya moved the tablet so that Ju Hian could see properly. But he was looking at Ju Hian as if he was extremely envious. He really changed the abilities of an artifact. I'm jealous. I'm so so jealous. This artifact would allow someone to change the risks of artifacts as well. As Ilya slowly tried to put his hand on the Akashic Records books next to Juhi and Ilya. Ugh. Ilya groveled to the ground without even being told to do so. M, my king. The Akashic Records started talking to him. The Akashic Records that had been so cold to him asked for a favor. Please let me renew the contract. Wasn't this thing just throwing a fit until a few minutes ago claiming that I wasn't the Majesty? Ju Hian picked his ears and got up. We will meet up with the others at the HQ right now. The Akashic Records became anxious after being ignored. Ju Hian didn't care and pulled out Gungnir. Now that the castle doors were wide open and those annoying round table bastards were gone, the only thing left is to get the throne from there. It didn't matter if a few people noticed and managed to cancel their contracts to survive. Actually, I hope that the person who can guide me to the throne is still alive. For example, Merlin or someone like Merlin. He had an extremely vicious look in his eyes. Chapter, 357 The Downfall of Pandora's Branches Around the World Pandora was unable to survive the uprising that happened in multiple locations. 132 of the 150 executive board members are deceased. Police investigating the surviving Pandora employees. Investigations have started into Pandora, its member nations and companies. Is this the beginning of the end for their unprecedented power? Many changes started to happen in the world. The riots of the citizens throughout the world had instantly crumbled Pandora to the ground. Each country stated that they would thoroughly investigate the Pandora facilities. Every country has numerous Pandora-related facilities that have been built since the start of the era of artifacts. It is true that those facilities have gotten more powerful day after day. People did not know much about artifacts. Because of that people had sent a lot of financial support to Pandora. They had relied and trusted Pandora with this life-or-death issue similar to how people believe in religion. The people related to Pandora gained too many benefits as a result. They also received significant tax credits as well. 
This started with the unknown incident, then we heard about the tomb syndrome incident, and now we are seeing evidence of significant corruption. We can no longer accept Pandora's authority. This large organization called Pandora was burning down while being condemned by the people. The foundation that had allowed the monopolizers to run wild in the past had crumbled. As for Pandora's HQ, things were still not settled here. Where are the remaining survivors? Find them. Those damn tax thieves. The protesters were thoroughly searching every nook and cranny inside the Druid's clock tower. They were trying to find anybody who might be hiding from them. The bastards inside, those survivors, were grinding their teeth because of these people rummaging through everything. To have been pushed back all the way here, Merlin, who was hiding in this hidden area, looked toward the Pandora system artifact and frowned. This was extremely shameful. These bastards were allowed to step into this tower with their dirty feet and make them feel like captured rats. It was all John's fault. John, that son of a bitch. Why didn't he tell us that the Vatican was hiding the Akashic records? Fuck those Vatican bastards. Pandora was a collection of many organizations with different interests from the beginning. They were quiet about groups while hiding things from each other because they were all gathered together for their own benefits. But hiding the Akashic records was too much. They were probably thinking about using it to change everybody's religion to Christianity or something of the sort. We wouldn't have ended up like this if they told us they had that item. They ended up being seriously screwed over by Seo Juhian as a result. There were only 18 survivors remaining. The 150 members of the round table dwindling down to 18 in 30 minutes was something that should never have happened. It was truly a pitiful situation. We only have 5 of the 13 knights of the round table left as well, some of those important people had been dragged away by the police and were being questioned right now. Damn it. All that's left now is the remaining knights of the round table and lucky executive board members who were still alive were about 10 people. But not all of them seemed useful. You, ugh. My whole arm is gone. Save me. I feel like I am going to die. They seem to have cancelled their contract with the round table as quickly as possible, but the medium for the round table artifact that had turned into a cursed medium had swallowed their bodies. Their hands rotted and their airways tightened to make it difficult for them to breathe. These were the signs of tomb syndrome. It was the same pain that the people who became unknown had felt before they died. The generals were wailing as they felt their necks burning. Merlin, healing artifacts. Fuck, I can't give it to you even if I want to. Co Juhian's subordinates have already taken over every area with artifacts. What? Unbelievable. It was the truth even if they didn't want to believe it. Juhian's subordinates had efficiently taken over the fortress as soon as it had opened. The only place they could hide away like rats was in this area with the throne. This area was the size of a whole floor of an average building and a special seal was placed around it, making it not detected by radars. But it didn't matter. It basically means that we are captured here. In addition this place gives me the chills. One of the knights of the round table looked around as he said that. This tunnel-like area didn't have a single window. The only thing in here was the golden throne, Glitzjaf. This throne was the majesty's authority in heart that was currently being used as Pandora's heart, the Pandora system artifact. However that really is too cruel. He was looking at something sitting on the throne. It was giving off a stench even though it was too weak to say it smelled rotten. Merlin sharply rebuked the person. That is the reason everything works. Got it? Someone else nodded their heads after hearing that. She's right. I'm sure that even Seo Juhian will not be able to find this place. We have enough food so let's do whatever we can to survive as long as possible. But at that moment knock knock knock. Someone knocking gave them the chills. Someone was knocking into this area that didn't have doors or windows. It was as if they knew that someone was in here. Hey, be careful over there. Be careful. Jeha was guiding the people who had been around the druid's clock tower. The emergency shelter he had created with Da Vinci's artifact had allowed these people to be safe from the soldiers' attacks. Jeha started loading stuff into Sleipnir that had turned into a giant truck. Okay okay, hurry up and move these things. 
He patted the car's butt and Sleipner honked, as if telling Jeha not to touch it. Sleipner continued to honk, trying to tell Jeha that it would not be acting as a damn moving van if it wasn't for Juhian's orders. As they were getting close to finishing so how are things going? Huh? Look at that. Captain Nim. The team members raised their heads after feeling a familiar aura getting closer. They saw something viciously flying toward here. It was Gungnir. Juhian and Ilya were on top of it. They couldn't see it with their eyes but they could feel the aura of Ilya's devil artifact. The team members gasped after seeing that. Holy shit! Is Ilya riding on that right now? I, is he still alive? Huh? No, wait. Why are they coming this way? Jeha screamed after seeing Gungnir flying toward him. And the moment Gungnir stabbed right into Jeha. Everything good. Juhian stopped Gungnir. His technique was almost magical no matter how many times they saw it. It was amazing that he could handle this spear that never misses its target with ease. Of course, Gungnir was shouting in anger after being stopped. Let me stab him. Let me stab him. Chloe and Julian quickly checked on Ilya. Hey, are you crazy? The Captain Nim put someone else on Gungnir with him. Ilya, who had been tied tightly onto Gungnir by the rope, seemed unconscious. Even if he had become superhuman with his heirloom, Gungnir gave off an aura that would make most people's flesh burn if they even put their hands on it. Furthermore, it traveled at the speed of a missile. His body would not have been able to handle it. Juhian just picked his ear. I don't think so. Anybody on my team will need to be raised to be strong. Should I just quit? The team gasped as it sounded like Juhian wanted to put all of them on Gungnir at least once. It was at that moment. Honk honk. Sleipnir, their currently moving van, came up to Juhian and complained. Why did you ride something like that when you have me? Why? That seemed to be what it was saying. Juhian just ignored it and looked around. There seemed to be some survivors. Where are the rest of those bastards? Juhian's goal was the throne inside the druid's clock tower. His eyes flashed and Siole accurately pointed somewhere for him. They're around there somewhere. Okay, I need someone to show me the way. Juhian then walked into the druid's clock tower. That was what had happened prior to this knocking. Knock knock. Anybody there? Juhian was knocking on what seemed to be a normal wall. The team members inspected the wall as if he had gone crazy. Was there a hidden area inside this wall? Are you sure that they are in here? I can't feel the presence of an artifact or anything. I'm sure of it. They are in here. Siole had accurately pinpointed the location of the survivors. She was the only radar Juhian trusted in the world. There was no way she wouldn't be able to find something like this. Juhian nodded his head and started smiling. He didn't know why, but the treasures were getting antsy the closer he got to this place. The throne is in here. Those motherfucking rat bastards were hiding in here as well. That was why he knocked. Boom boom. Of course, the knocking was so strong that it felt as if the walls would break. I'm breaking in if you don't respond. Okay. I will give you three seconds. The smile on his white face made him seem like a murderer in a thriller movie. It would have been perfect if he had an axe or chainsaw in his hand. He started humming and counting down. Boon. The survivors in the hidden area started foaming at the mouth. Merlin. Do something. 2. They then heard the walls breaking down. Rumble. Then they heard the chilling voice. 3. I found you. Fuck. The survivors started running after seeing that Juhian had broken through the wall. He had used the Majesty's key to open the seal. The survivors all became frantic. Run ah. They were instantly brought down by a swing of Juhian's sword. Xiang Yu's sword that seemed to be cutting through the air had cut off their legs. Juhian then put the sword against his shoulder and his eyes flashed. Throw these bastards to the people outside. Yes sir. Juhian then grabbed Gungnir and threw it. Gungnir suddenly flew in the opposite direction. 
Ju Hien leisurely followed Gung Nir. He finally arrived at an open area past the long tunnel. There was a golden chair wrapped in golden vines. The Majesty's Throne. As for Gung Nir, it was extremely happy that it got to hit its target this time. It was the medium that Ju Hien had chosen as his target. He had targeted the Pandora system. Gung Nir had destroyed the monitor but seemed upset that its target wasn't a human. The golden chair that was connected to numerous devices was crackling and shaking. The system was starting to break after being hit by Gung Nir. I finally found this thing. Ju Hien walked closer to the chair. Something seemed odd. The crow seemed to be getting antsier the closer he got to the throne. It was acting different from usual. He could feel anger and pain. Ju Hien figured out the reason after getting close enough to the throne. This is. Ju Hien then said a single sentence. These motherfuckers. Chapter, 358. These motherfuckers. Ju Hien usually never got this angry. But he was justified in his reaction. It was because of the person who seemed to be sitting on the chair. Actually, it seemed more like a taxidermied person. The skin was tan like a person but the body was completely dry. It might be best described as skin and bones sticking together. Although he was basically skin and bones, his face had not crumbled as with most mummies. The features on his ears, eyes, mouth, and nose were still visible and his thick eyebrows, hair, and even his eyelashes were still there. He just had his eyes closed as if he fell asleep while in pain. He kind of looked like a doll. That was why Ju Hien was immediately able to tell who this was. It's the former majesty. He was certain of it. This was the bastard he saw in the supreme leader's memories. He was the former slave who managed to push aside the supreme leader who was a king and became the majesty. He had become the king of the artifacts after being selected by the crow, but he's the dumbass who betrayed the crow and listened to the ones who betrayed him. He was then murdered by the artifacts who wanted to get rid of their human king. The artifacts started talking after recognizing the person. This is that bastard. This motherfucking pushover bastard. Ju Hien glared at the whispering artifacts and they quickly shut up. They pretty much confirmed that this was the former majesty. There was an old spear artifact stabbed into his chest and it was stabbed so far that the spear had gone through him and into the throne itself. This was probably how this bastard was murdered. It was at that moment. The crow's aura was shaking, probably because they were looking at the former majesty. Ju Hien couldn't tell whether it was shaking in anger or sorrow. Maybe it was because the great king that it had once served was taxidermied in such a pitiful way. Ju Hien then had a thought. Did the crow send me back to the past to save this bastard? Well, the crow might also be shaking in anger after looking at the human that betrayed it. It didn't matter. So what is up with this corpse? Why did they leave it here in this state? The artifact started whispering again after hearing Ju Hien's question. He must have asked an extremely awkward question. But while they were all shushing each other why else? We didn't like the human king but we needed the majesty's power. Set was the one to respond. The artifacts foamed at the mouth. Eek. Are you crazy? Why would you tell him about that? That is the weakness of all artifacts. Sir, if you tell him that. I know. That is all I am going to say as well. But Ju Hien just started to smile wickedly. Are you lly? Even after lo- But at that moment Supreme Leader Nim, this is bad. What? The crow. The crow is headed this way. What? Didn't we capture it? How did that bastard? It escaped. Stop it. Don't let that useless bastard in here. It's just trash that was thrown away by the king when he was still alive. As he said that bang. The crow barged in despite being hindered by the artifacts. It was in its human form that had once been cherished by the majesty. The crow blanked out after seeing the majesty's condition. It was such a terrible sight. The majesty who had shined so radiantly and had been kinder than anybody else ended up as a piece of meat on the throne. Tears started dropping from the crow's pretty face. The artifacts witnessed a new hell at that moment. The berserk crow's revolt. 
the crow showed its vicious true nature and started to consume its fellow artifacts. Numerous artifacts were sacrificed in its rage. The crow was then framed. The crow went crazy and killed the majesty. It is consuming its fellow artifacts now. The Egyptian doggy divine grade and other artifacts tried to capture the crow. Eventually, they managed to catch the crow and imprison it inside the great prison. Do not kill it. We can only use the majesty if this bastard stays alive. Our livelihood is on the line. They then shoved any other artifacts that didn't listen to them into the great prison as well. It was all possible because they had the majesty's powers. They all smiled wickedly. Prometheus, Horus, and the other divine great artifacts had been the former majesty's personal artifacts. They had tricked the king to get a portion of the rights to control the artifacts. They claimed that they would act as the majesty's proxy in times of emergency. That was how Prometheus was able to use the throne. But after thousands of years while the artifacts had been living in paradise without any human interference something happened about thirty years before Juhian's time. The majesty's power is getting weaker. The throne is going to stop working soon. They had all been shocked by Prometheus's unexpected declaration. Had their trick to pretend that the majesty was still there stopped working? How is the crow? There are no changes. As it is a treasure, it is unable to kill itself. All it can do is commit self-harm. Fuck, then what the hell is going on? This is bad. We will disappear if the throne stops working. Not right away. There is still power gathered inside the corpse so it should last another twenty years or thirty if we really conserve it, but it's still dangerous. In other words, it is time to select a new majesty. The divine grade artifacts became anxious after hearing that. They had worked so hard to get the human king out but they had to select another human majesty. We can't choose another king who favors the humans. The majesty was their king and the omnipotent record keeper who could maintain the records to prevent the artifacts from disappearing. Basically, the fate of all artifacts was in their hands. Why? Artifacts were born from the human stories and traditions. But they all disappear as time goes on, making the artifacts lose their powers and perish. The majesty was there to prevent that from happening. They could use the Akashic records to stop stories from disappearing and fix any records that may have changed with time. That is why one of the requirements of the majesty is to have an excellent memory. Just the majesty's existence alone would give artifacts life. But the throne was about to stop working. We need to hurry up and select a new king. We can't turn into simple antiques. I'd rather turn into one of those exiled apocalypse artifacts. Are you an idiot? You can never return to this side if you become one of those. You'll turn into a spirit. But choosing a human king will just be a repeat of what happened in the past. They will tell us to serve humans again. Prometheus had laughed at them. Don't worry. I have a way. We just need to choose a human king who is to our liking. That was when Prometheus approached the humans and Pandora appeared in the world. Juhian smiled as if he understood it better after Set's explanation. Prometheus used this to act as the supreme leader until now. He had been wondering how they were able to use the Majesty's powers after killing him. Set seemed to have recently learned about all of the supreme leader bastard's evil deeds. Well, it didn't matter. See, crazy. That is really the former Majesty. Jeha, who had rushed in behind Juhian, gasped. He seemed to have gotten scared after seeing the corpse but he suddenly hit his forehead. It was as if he figured out a super big secret. Wow, jackpot. I get it now. I know why that crow bastard chose you, Captain Nim. What? Why did it choose me? Face. That damn crow only cares about a person's looks. Juhian wondered what kind of bullshit he was talking about, but Jeha seemed extremely certain. See. The former one has that kind of face and the new one has this kind of face. Wow, shit, this world is so unfair. Even artifacts discriminate based on looks. The crow's aura fluctuated after suddenly being verbally attacked. T, that's not it though. It could be just a coincidence, but it was true that the two of them were both extremely handsome. 
the rest of the team started to think. Now that I think about it, this corpse does look oddly similar to you. Juhian became upset. Do you want to get fucked up? Like hell we look similar. That's just a damn corpse. Ha <laughs> ha. It's just a slight resemblance. But while everybody was focused on the majesty okay, hurry up and put your hand on it. Be greedy for the throne. The few knights of the round table who had been hiding were smirking. They were breathing quietly while looking at Juhian's hand. This is our last chance. They had one way to use the throne to attack Seo Juhian. We set this trap in case the future majesty didn't listen to us. They were indeed that evil. They wanted to choose a majesty who was to their liking. But humans were fickle creatures. It's like how you are willing to pay anything to go to the restroom if you really gotta go but feel different once you get to go. Even if the majesty was to their liking prior to becoming the majesty, that person might have changed their mind once they received the majesty's authority. Prometheus had put this on the throne for that possibility. It's a device that would turn the new majesty into the same stuffed corpse like the former one. Basically, the former majesty's power would activate and turn Juhian into a similar taxidermied corpse if he tried to take the throne. This might actually be for the better. They needed to pick a majesty anyway. They were just trying to choose a majesty they could work with so that things would be easier. Taxiderming a living person comes with too many risks and costs too much to maintain, but, they had no other choice. They had no way to defeat Seo Juhian by any other means right now. That was why they could only suck this bastard dry like they had done with the former majesty. They could get rid of Seo Juhian that way and then gather new monarchs and restart the process. That was the only method they had left at their disposal. All right. So hurry up and put your hand on the throne. Become a slave like the stupid former majesty. The condition to trigger the trap was to have negative thoughts about Pandora. Juhian would easily meet that condition. Hurry up and get fucked. The trap on the th Why? Why isn't the trap activating? Why? What was the reason behind it? Julian lightly chuckled while looking at Juhian. I did think that it was weird that he was touching it without any hesitation. It was obvious what had happened. He must have used the Akashic records. That was indeed the case. However, the corners of Juhian's mouth were twitching for a different reason right now. You are unable to use the Akashic records. The records modified by Seo Juhian are unable to take effect. The Akashic records is being fixed by an external power. The records fixed by the human, Seo Juhian, have returned to normal. What was going on? The Akashic records was not working. Juhian was not the majesty yet. He could not use all the abilities of the treasures. He was shocked that he could not even browse the records of the throne with this corpse, however there were no issues modifying the trap though. But something weird happened the moment he put his hand on the throne. An external power has infiltrated the Akashic records. The records have changed back to normal. A person who respects Pandora will dry out as a living corpse, has changed to a person who has negative thoughts about Pandora will dry out as a living corpse. The crow must be responsible for the trap still not working on him. The crow that had blocked the trap was frantically moving around. You cannot dominate the throne. The corpse is trying to label you as an enemy. The crow's power is preying on the trap's aura. It is consuming the aura with everything it has. Ju Hien, who had stepped away from the throne already, started frowning. The corpse's aura showed no signs of stopping despite the fact that he had moved away from the throne. The crow tried to protect Juhian until the end but its aura started to become faint. It cannot hold on any longer. This is the limit with this clone body. It could not do anything about it. Hurry up and come here the real body must contract that was the last message before all messages from the crow stopped. The crow's aura that had been doing everything it could to protect Juhian had disappeared. He glared at the throne. It looks like the former majesty bastard's power is still there. That former majesty bastard must have been the one to infiltrate the Akashic records as well. Siole seemed to have detected something as she urgently shouted. Captain Nim. The corpse's aura seems dangerous. Bang. A chaotic aura shot out of the throne as soon as she said that. 
The throne was moving in an odd way. Julian quickly figured out the reason. Someone is making the corpse go berserk from the outside. Ju Hian realized something and quickly called Gungnir to his hand. And then. Swoosh. He threw the spear once more as soon as Gungnir ended up in his hand. Swoosh. The remaining executive board members became frantic. Just the fact that Gungnir was flying was filling them with fear. But Gungnir unexpectedly flew out of the building. Jeha's eyes opened wide after noticing it leave who did you throw it to? Merlin. She went outside. Ciole was shocked. That's not possible nobody has left the tower. Ju Hien had given Gungnir the same order a while ago. He had told it to set Merlin as its target. Gungnir had hit its target earlier. Ciole, check on the woman on the 24th floor. Ciole was shocked after sending one of her ghosts to check. Her soul left the body before she died. Ju Hien laughed after immediately figuring out what had happened. It looks like her soul left the body the moment Gungnir stabbed her. It was a temporary solution but it did allow her to get away from Gungnir's target. Ju Hien just scoffed. That bitch sure knows how to use her head. But it was not a solution she could use that many times. The executive board members started shouting after hearing that. Does that mean that bitch ran away from here on her own? I'm sure she didn't just run away. She must be planning on using the final trump card. Ju Hien became interested. The final trump card? Huh, like hell we would tell why Ugg. Speak. The executive board members foamed at the mouth as Ciole pointed knives at their necks. Ah. Okay. Okay. S. She went to get the apocalypse artifacts. Pandora has already lost its authority. The only way for us to gain our power back is through unmatched force. Jeha seemed to have realized something. Unmatched force. Are they talking about the end of the world artifacts? These apocalypse artifacts were the worst artifacts to exist. The executive board members started quietly whispering to each other. But isn't the Majesty the only one who can use them? Is she trying to make that corpse use it? Gungnir is headed for her. We're done if Merlin dies too. But at that moment Gungnir should stop if I kill its master. Merlin's voice echoed through the tower. Ha, ha ha ha. The gods are helping us. They gave us such an amazing opportunity. What? What does she mean by opportunity? Merlin became angry after the executive board sounded confused. That bastard Seo Juhian has lost the crow's power right now. Don't you know what that means? Siole and Julian realized what she meant. The Captain Nim's crow's aura. The crow's aura had disappeared after going up against the former majesty. It was because it was only a clone. But that was not the problem. He can't use the treasures without the crow. Juhian's contract with the crow was probably the reason he could use the majesty's treasures. Merlin urgently shouted. This is the chance to steal the treasures from that bastard. We might even be able to go get the crow. So use this chance to get rid of the bastard. This was the chance of a lifetime for them. It was shocking that a mere clone could handle the power of this corpse but they didn't have time to sit around being shocked. This was probably the only chance they had to kill Juhian. One of the knights of the round table started running wild as if to launch a suicide attack. Huh, if he can't use the treasures he's just a punk who can only use divine grade artifacts. Fuck, Captain Nim. A chaotic evil god artifact went berserk. Chi Yu's artifact activated and the evil god artifact exploded in an instant. Bang. Bang. Baba -ba bang. Ah. Ju Hian turned into black fog and ruthlessly dissected the enemy into molecules that didn't even leave any bones behind. Ba -ba 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 bang. It was complete destruction. Chi Yu's black fog had absorbed everything without leaving anything behind. This was the end for this foolish person who had tried to attack Ju Hian. Ju Hian snorted in response. You retards, who said that I can't use the treasures? The others gasped after looking at him. Did he just use a treasure? B, but the crow is gone. How? Wasn't he relying on the crow, 
the Majesty's crown to use them. The enemies were not the only ones to be shocked. Julian and the others were shocked as well. He wasn't able to use the treasures just because the crow was his heirloom. There was a more fundamental reason. The treasures are recognizing the captain as their master. That was why he could still use the treasures despite the crow's power being gone. Does it mean that he has that much talent? The executive board members screamed once the fog form Juhian turned around to look at them. T, this monster bastard. Juhian nonchalantly took Chi Yu's mask off and gave an order to his team. Split into two teams half will stay here and protect the throne while taking care of these bastards. The other half go chase after Merlin. What about you, Captain Nim? I am going into the great prison. Will you be okay? Juhian smiled. I won't take that long. He needed the full majesty's power in order to destroy this damn corpse. And who is aiming for whose heirloom? Juhian smiled viciously. I am going to go get the crow from the tomb. I can become the full majesty if I get the crow's real body. I should thank the crow while I'm at it. Thank. It sent me back to the past so that I can achieve a lot of things. I can't ignore its wish for me to get it out of its tomb. Julian looked at Juhian as if someone had switched Juhian with a clone that just looked like him. Ho, oh, for you to say something so nice. Of course, Jaha just scoffed. There's no way this guy has such good intentions. He would be right. He definitely was not being nice and trying to fulfill the crow's wish. Do you really think I would share authority of the treasures with a damn corpse? I will take care of you soon, you former majesty bastard. That was probably the reason. The knights urgently shouted as Juhian started to move. They had heard his plan. T, that bastard is going to go get the crow. They turned pale. We can't let this bastard get the crow. He will fully become the majesty if he gets it. It will be the start of a new generation. We can't let him get out of here no matter what. The throne flashed as if it was responding to them. The golden vines started to create an impregnable fortress. The enemies laughed as they watched. We know that you awakened three of the keys. But do you really think you can destroy the iron walls created by the majesty at your level? Juhian just made a call with an expression that seemed to be saying, Oh is that what it is? Ah, uh, it's me. You started installing grinders in that prison a while back, right? Yes, that thing. Can it be used right now? Oh, really? Then activate it. Yeah. Grind up all of the evil gods. Something shocking happened a moment later. Flash.